After the apocalypse, while everyone was desperately trying to avoid zombies, I took a different approach and willingly became one of the first batch of zombies in the end times, then I followed behind the zombies to hide from humans, simply because I suffer from severe depression, coupled with extreme social anxiety, I, who no longer want to live, voluntarily let a zombie scratch me, and then I lay back in bed, waiting for death to come slowly, I didn't expect it, I wanted to die but didn't succeed, instead I became a self-aware zombie, after turning into a zombie, I don't feel hungry or thirsty, I stayed in the house for a few months and heard the sound of announcements and gunshots outside, but I dare not go out because I am a zombie, if I go out, I will definitely not be treated as a human by them, instead, they will shoot me dead, so I just occasionally wander around in the hallway, there are a few zombies in the first floor hallway, these zombies may look a bit ugly, but I know them, I look at these howling and wandering zombies, sighing, perhaps they all don't want to die, unlike oneself, feeling that death is a relief for oneself, unfortunately, those who wanted to die didn't succeed, while those who didn't want to die became lifeless walking corpses, during this period, I have mostly been staying at home, until one month later, the power in my neighborhood suddenly went out, and then the internet was also gone, I used to watch videos to pass the time, but now I have become completely bored, after much contemplation, I have made a bold decision, which is to embark on a nationwide hiking trip, the decision was made in the morning, and the person left at noon, I only carried one bag, took a map, and set off with a sun umbrella, because I am an extreme social phobic, going to tourist attractions to see the scenery is completely impossible for me, but now I'm not so afraid anymore because the scenic area definitely doesn't have any living people, and the zombies don't actively come and talk to me, I live in a small city that is not very developed, it has a population of 2 million people, based on what I have heard on the radio and some notification videos in recent days, it also made me realize that 80% of the world's population has turned into zombies, I held the map, looked at the several places marked on it, and then drew a big red cross on it, because these places are survivor bases established by Huaxia, one absolutely cannot go there, since you want to travel on foot, then start from the province where you live, the place where I live is a province known for tourism, so there are also many natural scenic spots, although the radio repeatedly warned not to go towards the border, I still insisted on heading in this direction, after leaving the residential area, there are many scrapped vehicles on the road outside, inside the cars, there are corpses as well as zombies, there are also wandering zombies on the streets, I don't know them, and they won't bother with me, this has made me feel much more relaxed, however, this leisurely atmosphere lasted for less than half an hour, I then heard a few gunshots and the sound of cars, I was scared and quickly hid to the side, while the zombies around me went towards the sound, I put away my umbrella and grabbed a passing zombie, reminding it, don't go there, there are humans over there, the zombie I caught was a bit annoyed, baring its teeth and roaring loudly at me, after understanding his meaning, I could only let go reluctantly, looking at all the zombies rushing past in this area, their relentless appearance makes me wonder if there is some kind of treasure ahead, but I know, ahead is humanity, the mortal enemy of these zombies, even though I am a social anxiety sufferer, I still have the inherent nature of Chinese people loving to watch drama, I sneakily follow behind these zombies and walk forward in the direction of the sound, soon, I saw several cars in the distance, and some plants were emerging from the cars, as long as the zombies get close, they will be whipped away by these vines, I immediately realized that there was a superhuman in this car, although I was just watching the excitement, I also kept a safe distance and didn't get too close, there were only three people and a dog in the car, as the vine was retracted, the passenger door was opened, and a dog jumped out of the car, afterwards, a young woman emerged from the driver's cabin, she appeared to be in her early twenties, about six or seven years younger than herself, but seeing her beautiful and cool appearance reminded me of the female protagonists in the post-apocalyptic novels I have read. Soon, the three of them entered a supermarket, while the zombies were separated by the rolling shutter door outside, only able to watch as delicious food entered the supermarket. The zombies were clinging to the door, muttering and cursing. Although humans couldn't understand what these zombies were saying, as a zombie myself, I could understand what they were saying. Since there are humans in this place, it is not suitable for oneself to stay here all the time. After about two hours, those three people and a dog came out again. The zombies at the door have dispersed, but they gathered again after hearing a sound. I watched as those three people put some things into the car and then got in and drove away. After making sure that those people had left and wouldn't come back, I leisurely made my way to the supermarket. The supermarket is messy, with many food items scattered on the floor. I picked up the messy things from the shelves, opened them, and ate them. Then I found out that it wasn't tasty, but it wasn't really bad either. 
it was just plain tasteless. In the end, I still didn't dare to eat it because I didn't know if my stomach could digest these things. After taking a stroll, I walked to the clothing section and excitedly tried on those beautiful dresses and skirts that were neatly displayed. Just now, my body is bruised and wearing any dress doesn't look good. But I don't mind. After all, who would care about what a zombie wears? So I put a few beautiful dresses in my backpack. I walked out of the supermarket with these clothes. Before leaving, I still put a few hundred yuan on the cashier's counter. Even though I knew the money was useless now. But I feel that there still needs to be a sense of ceremony. After walking for the whole afternoon, as the night fell, I looked around and found a hotel that seemed decent. I pushed the door and went in. There are two zombies behind the counter. You can tell they are hotel staff by the uniforms they are wearing. When I pushed the door open and entered, those two zombies, who were originally very excited, instantly became dumbfounded upon realizing that I was also a zombie. I ignored them and walked straight towards the elevator. But after pressing it for a while, I realized that there was no response. Suddenly, I remembered that the power had been cut off last night. So I had to go up the stairs. And there were zombies in the stairwell. I could even see people falling down from upstairs in a panic and dying from the fall. However, I don't know why these people didn't turn into zombies, but instead rotted on the ground. However, I have long been accustomed to these smells. I calmly continue walking upstairs. Since I didn't want to continue climbing the stairs, I found an open room on the second floor. Looking at the tidy room with no messed up bed or blanket, I decided to stay here tonight. Originally, I thought that my first night out would be very quiet, especially since it's the end of the world. However, I didn't expect that just when I was sleeping soundly, a loud explosion sound startled me, causing me to jump out of bed. Then I quickly looked out the window and saw a building several hundred meters away engulfed in flames. Nowadays, only human intervention could cause an explosion in a residential building at this time. This means that there are people around me. This makes me somewhat puzzled. Why are there always humans around me? I lay on the windowsill, looking at the residential buildings in the distance. Once I was sure there would be no more noise, I crawled back into bed and continued sleeping. But after lying down for less than half an hour, I heard the sound of a car approaching from a distance, heading towards my direction. Sure enough, this loss of hearing is impressive. I haven't even seen the car yet, but I can already hear the sound of it. Although this is indeed a good thing for me, now I feel that I might be in some danger myself. Because of this car, it seems to have stopped downstairs at the hotel where I live. And then I heard the sound of their conversation. Stay here tonight. There aren't many zombies around this area. This hotel looks good and it's also located on the outskirts of the city. Rest here for the night. Tomorrow morning, leave again. This is a man's voice. Sounds like he is not very old. Yes, the final response was a girl's voice. And it seemed like she was in a dominant position leading the whole team. After the girl agreed, these people prepared to stay at this hotel. But at this moment, I am very anxious because I am a zombie. If I look like a human on the outside, it would be fine. Maybe I could pass unnoticed but now I look too much like a zombie. Maybe because it was too painful to become a zombie. There is a deep gash on my mouth, although there is no pain. But with this grayish skin and wide open mouth, it doesn't look like an ordinary person no matter how you look at it. However, that's not the worst part. The worst part is that I heard the sound of a dog, which instantly reminded me of the trio I encountered during the day. Their combined combat power is so strong that even if there were 10 of themselves, they would still be defeated in an instant. Suddenly, at this moment, the door was pulled by someone, scaring me so much that I immediately lay on the ground pretending to be dead. Soon, I heard the sound of someone entering the room. This room is clean. It looks like no one lives here. But the next second, I rely on, there, when the leading boy walked in. He didn't see anyone at first. However, as he turned the corner past the bathroom wall, he saw me lying on the ground pretending to be dead. Just from the perspective of a young person, I am nothing but a dead person, without breath, pale in complexion with a deep crack on my face. Then another girl walked in. When she saw me lying on the ground, she glanced at the decorations by the bed and then approached. I am so nervous right now. What's wrong with these people? There are so many rooms in the hotel. Why did they specifically choose this one? Anyway, since I don't have a breath or heartbeat, it doesn't matter if the other person comes to test my breath. As long as I lie on the ground and don't move, it's fine. When I was ready to let this girl test her own breath, the next second I was dumbfounded. Sister Chang, what are you doing? She's already dead. The boy did not expect that Gu Wanqing would actually pick up the corpse from the ground. But Gu Wanqing turned a deaf ear and, after putting me on the bed, thoughtfully covered me with a blanket. Sorry, my friend and I disturbed you. Have a good sleep. Gu Wanqing looked at me on the bed and said. After finishing her words, Gu Wanqing took two people and left. After hearing the sound of the door locking, 
the entire room fell silent. Only then did I dare to open my eyes slightly and confirm that there was really no one there. I just relaxed. If these people don't leave, then I will have to get up and rush out. Although that younger sister is very gentle, I still can't adapt. I just lay in bed like this until dawn. Although I have turned into a zombie and it doesn't really matter whether I sleep or not, I still have some human thoughts, so I still feel like I should sleep at night. However, I find that I can't sleep at all because I'm very afraid that those three people and a dog will come back again. Sure, here's the translation, as expected. As soon as it was daylight, my door was pushed open by someone. Sister Chang, no matter what you do to her, she's already dead. The boy followed Gu Wanqing into this room, feeling very puzzled in his heart. I know, but we can't just let him rot here. We have to give him a proper burial. Gu Wanqing responded to the boy's words. After hearing what she said, I felt speechless in my heart. Not, little sister, this is the end of the world. You should take the supplies and go to the survivor's base instead of burying the bodies here out of kindness. I am indeed dead, but not completely dead. There is no need for you to kindly bury me in the ground. But Yu Qingxiao knew that she couldn't open her mouth to speak at this time. If she did open her mouth to speak, she would really be killed. Since the heavens hadn't killed her, she certainly wouldn't die now. Gu Evening put Yu Qingxian in the car and chopped down two zombies that came over to her in passing. Although Yu Qingxiang didn't open her eyes to see, she knew that if she suddenly sat up now, she would also end up like that. Therefore, Yu Qingxiao was dug a hole and buried by Gu Evening Cheng, and all of her luggage was placed beside her as well. It was good that Yu Qingxiao no longer needed to breathe, and after being buried, she wouldn't feel uncomfortable. Not knowing how hot or cold it was, other than the smell of mud being rather heavy, it was quite comfortable. This made Yu Qingxian think that after she traveled everywhere she wanted to go, she would dig a hole and bury herself. Lying in the ground was indeed quite comfortable. Yu Qingxian slept underground like this. By the time she climbed out of the ground again, the sky was already colored red, sleeping from morning until evening. She could really sleep. Yu Qingxian looked down at the new skirt she was wearing, which was already stained with the marks of dirt. She could only rummage through her backpack, which still had two clean skirts in reserve. After changing into her clothes, she looked around, realizing that she had already left the city. At this moment, she was in a green belt outside the toll station on the outskirts of the city. Yu Qingliang turned her head to look at the place. The area around the toll station was full of scrapped vehicles and some zombie limbs. There were also some zombie bodies with fresh wounds. They should have been killed by Gu Evening Ching and the others. There should be a survivor base nearby, which was why Gu Evening Ching buried her in this place, and also put a bouquet of flowers on her. This made Yu Qingliang a bit surprised. Originally, he thought that someone who could live so dashingly and powerfully in the post-apocalyptic world should be like the heroines of those post-apocalyptic novels, a bit more indifferent. He didn't expect that he would bury a stranger who had already died, and even gave flowers. This made Yu Qingliang couldn't help but pray for that person. Hopefully, she could live peacefully in this post-apocalyptic world. Yu Qingxiao then headed towards her destination. Her first attraction was naturally a wetland park that she had always wanted to go to, but was crowded. There was definitely no one in that place right now so she could just go there. It was only 50 kilometers from her current location. Two more days of walking would be enough to get there. Anyway, she didn't need to eat or sleep, and she wouldn't be tired. She should be able to walk there in a day and a night. Thinking this way, Yu Qingliang set off, going forward along the highway. According to what she could learn from reading so many zombie novels, after the end of the world, the highway was usually blocked and very few survivors would take the highway. They all took the country roads, although there were many towns. There were also many supplies, and they were places that survivors patronized. Those who dared to run around outside looking for supplies at this time were not ordinary people. Yu Qingliang, a zombie, certainly wasn't going to run into a gun, so she chose the highway that was dangerous in the eyes of humans. She flipped over the cars that were messily colliding with each other. Some of the zombies that were caught in the cars heard the sound and looked her way, then realized that they were their own kind and continued to struggle and hiss. Yu Qingliang could understand what they were saying which was nothing more than wanting to eat, being hungry and so on. Of course, Yu Qingxiao didn't have the heart to care about their lives. Although she was considered half a kindred spirit with herself, she still had a human mind. Naturally, she would subconsciously feel that monsters that ate people were not good things. Of course, this did not include herself. She was a good zombie that didn't eat people. Yu Qingliang walked forward for a while before it became completely dark, although she didn't know if it was because she had turned into a zombie. The difference between day and night was just a slightly darker vision, but darkness really didn't have much of an effect on Yu Qingliang's sight. This was also the reason why she chose to not stop even at night. After Yu Qingxiao had walked for almost three hours, she suddenly saw a beam of headlight shining from the side. 
This scared Yu Qingxiao so much that she crouched down towards the ground, letting the highway fence block her figure, but there were still quite a few zombies around her that were starting to get a little agitated because of the lights, as Yu Qingxiao squatted on the edge, the two zombies next to her came over, directly ignoring Yu Qingxiao who was squatting here, and were about to step on her face, this made Yu Qingxiao somewhat speechless, reaching out to push one of the zombies away, and the car seemed to be just passing by, shaking a bit and disappearing, Yu Qingxiao stood up, and the zombie that just had to stomp on her face was hanging around in front of her, this made Yu Qingxiao feel a bit speechless, and directly lifted him off the fence and just dropped him heavily on the ground, unfortunately, the zombie didn't know pain and quickly stood up again after falling to the ground, it even gained freedom because of Yu Qingxiao's revenge instead, Yu Qingliang looked at the zombie that was groping towards the town and couldn't help but reach out and pick her head, she actually felt that the zombie was safer on this elevated highway instead, although they might be starved to death, they wouldn't be killed in the short term, she clapped her hands together and continued on her way, it was only after only a few steps that she heard the sound of gunshots again, the sound caused all the zombies on the highway to crowd towards the source of the sound, some zombies directly tumbled off the highway because of the push from the zombies behind them, Yu Qingliang stood on the side and watched these zombies fall down like dumplings, then climbed up from the ground and headed towards the source of the sound, she also didn't know how many living people were in that car, just a few gunshots could attract the zombies of the entire town, although Yu Qingliang was socially terrified, she wasn't to the point where she wanted to turn against humanity, she looked down towards the highway and it wasn't too high, after thinking about it, she still jumped down, let's feel out the situation first, as long as she didn't go near humans, she was perfectly safe, as she entered the town, she furtively followed the walkers forward, finally looking at the car, but there were no humans in sight, the wheels of the car were damaged and the windshield of the car was broken, it looked like it had abandoned the car and fled, originally, with a car, Yu Qingliang felt that the chances of them escaping might still be higher, if they had left on foot, they would have been surrounded by zombies from all over the town, she was definitely not able to kill a bloody path for others like those zombie text heroines, but if she left it alone, these people might or might not be able to escape, if anything, some strange smells drifted from the tip of Yu Qingliang's nose, like the scent of meat and cake that she had smelled herself, this flavor she had smelled on Gu Evening Ching and the others, she had thought that it was because Gu Evening Ching and the others had meat and cake in their supplies, now that she thought about it, it wasn't the smell of food, it was the smell of humans in the eyes of the zombies, those bloody smells were definitely not considered good in the human sense of smell, it would even be disgusting, but those smells were delicious to the zombies, even the odor of a human's body would be a way for a zombie to detect the presence of a human, those smells were not the various flavors that human noses smelled, in the zombie's nose, that was a variety of food odors, in other words, there were indeed humans in this town, even if she couldn't smell them, Yu Qingliang could just follow the zombies, after all, her greenish gray skin was a zombie in any case, it was just a zombie that wasn't that badly corrupted, Yu Qingxiao watched as the zombies in all directions circled towards a building that was a few stories high, he probably knew that was where these people were hiding, but hiding in this place for a day or two was fine, but after a long time, they would either be eaten by the zombies or starved to death, it was still necessary to find a way to escape, Yu Qingliang looked around, and then sneakily went in another direction, in fact, as long as these people hid well and didn't make any noise, as long as there was something else to distract the zombies, they were able to escape, and that was probably all Yu Qingliang could do, whether or not they could run at that time, it would be their own lives, Yu Qingxiao touched the town's radio room, the recorder inside should have a backup power supply, it was also necessary to connect the radio, then those zombies would come to her place, it shouldn't be a problem to find the same kind to have a midnight party, right? Yu Qingliang tinkered for half a day and finally connected to the radio, she originally wanted to open her mouth to let those people escape, but on second thought, if she opened her mouth to speak, wouldn't she be exposing herself? Therefore, she thought about it. As long as this broadcast is sounded, the zombies will move at the sound. Then as long as these people weren't stupid, they all knew that this was an opportunity to run away. Of course, Yu Qingliang didn't know at this time that the survivors hiding in that building did feel at the end of their rope. Originally, they had come to this town to look for supplies. As a result, they were chased by the zombies, and then the car unexpectedly had a flat tire. The car was out of control and crashed into the wall, directly unable to drive, they could only abandon the car and escape, the supplies were not found, but the car was damaged in this place, now all the zombies in this town have gathered because of those gunshots, the person in the lead looked at the shivering teenager and only felt a little helpless, nowadays, no amount of blaming would help, without those gunshots, those zombies would have only been attracted by the sound of the car, as a result, 
That teenager had fired a few shots for some reason, attracting the zombies in the entire town to stir. Now that they were trapped in this upstairs, it was almost impossible for them to escape. Although the door had been locked by them, they had very little food in their hands, not enough to last them a few days. What now? On the contrary, there was a person who looked relatively calm. He stood at the window opening, looking at the zombies gathering downstairs, and then opened his mouth to ask. In fact, wanting to escape wasn't completely without a chance. All that was needed was for someone to go out and act as bait. But the person who was the bait would definitely not survive. So who would be allowed to be the bait? But as his words fell, he heard the sound of electrical waves coming from the air. What is this sound? Someone else heard the sound as well. It was really too ear-piercing. I don't know. It should be the town's radio room. Just is there anyone else in this radio room? Now that it had been more than 20 days since the end of the world, who would still be able to live in a small town like this for a month? As soon as their words fell, they heard this radio unexpectedly start playing a song, because the sound was too loud. The zombies downstairs all went towards the place of the sound. When these people saw the zombies leaving, they knew that this was the best chance to escape. Will there be someone over there in the radio room? This is also considered that person saving us. The five people went downstairs and headed outside the town. For now, they were indeed out of danger. But that person who played the radio, was it really okay? There shouldn't be anyone. Even if there really was someone, they ran away. After all, if the zombies surrounded them, they wouldn't be able to run away. No one is that stupid. The person leading the team said, just after saying this, they still chose a safe place to prepare to see if anyone came out from the town. But they didn't realize that the person who saved them at this time was having a party. Yu Qingliang saw that all those zombies were coming towards the radio room side, which was a bit spectacular. The sound of them roaring and roaring did not make Yu Qingliang feel uncomfortable. It was true that when people died, the social fear attribute was also reduced a bit. Of course, it was only for these zombies. After all, it was true that these zombies would not actively communicate with her. Even if she took the initiative to talk to them, these zombies wouldn't pay attention to her. Yu Qingliang looked at the zombies gathered downstairs and wondered if those people had escaped. But that was all she could do. When she was a human, her physical strength was average. After becoming a zombie, although she wouldn't get tired, she definitely wasn't a good fighter either. And she still had to travel. Yu Qingliang attracted these zombies over and watched those zombies eyeing the upstairs. So she came out of the radio room, looking at those zombies that were wailing for food. Yu Qingxian just folded her hands. Sorry, there's no food here, but it shouldn't be a problem for you guys to stay here for a little bit. As she spoke, she turned around and headed downstairs. Those zombies had already climbed up the stairs. However, they ignored Yu Qingliang and continued up. Yu Qingxiao was a bit helpless, although it was indeed a bit immoral to lure them here and leave people without food. But killing was against the law. Although they were all zombies, they were good zombies and did not do things like killing and setting fire. Yu Qingliang squeezed out from the pile of zombies, but did not take the main road. In case those people squatted outside the town to guard if anyone went out and saw that it was himself, then it would be over. So Yu Qingxiao was like a thief, tumbling out from the fence of this house, and then going out from this house. Plus it was night. Even if those people had night vision binoculars, there was no way they could see themselves, right? It was really difficult for this corpse of hers. Yu Qingxian managed to climb out of this town, but in the end, just after she left the town, she found a gas station with silhouettes passing by. This scared Yu Qingxiao so much that she immediately shrunk her neck back again. How come there were still people in this place? She remembered that she had left the town from the opposite direction of those people. How did she still run into them? Luckily, her zombie nose is more agile than a dog. Otherwise, she would have bumped into them. These people would not really come here to block themselves, right? Yu Qingliang's heart was somewhat comforted by the fact that she didn't run away without looking back. But now she still hoped that these people would run without looking back. They were really going to block the road. Yu Qingxiao sneaked around and started to go around the road again. Then she quietly climbed onto the highway from this gas station. As she stood on the highway, she could still hear the town's radio. As for those gas station people, Yu Qingxiao wasn't going to care. She had already helped once, and the rest was up to them. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao bumped her backpack again and continued on her way. She headed towards the south, where she could avoid the survivor bases. There weren't many survivor bases in Huaxia. Many of them were built based on military bases. Like the survivor base on this side of K City. It was a military base that had been remodeled. It originally had a tall and hard fence. Coupled with the presence of the military. It was naturally a very good shelter. Of course, this kind of shelter is only temporary. If there was a wave of corpses, it would naturally not be able to withstand it. Therefore, Huaxia was in the process of building a bigger and safer base. 
But this had nothing to do with Yu Qingliang. When the first rays of sunlight emerged from the horizon, Yu Qingxiao squinted his eyes. It was obviously only 7 o'clock in the morning, and this heat wave had already hit. However, this current temperature Yu Qingxiao could still stand it. With the town around her, she couldn't take an umbrella. If she was seen, she would probably have to come up and ask three, four, five, six questions. However, Yu Qingxiao walked and stopped, and noticed that the cars on this highway were gradually decreasing. It seemed that there would be no cars blocking the road ahead. The next exit was still 30 kilometers away. Instead, she needed to turn around and head towards the west. Just as she was about to make a turn towards the west, the sound of vehicles again made Yu Qingliang crouch down, revealing half of her head to look at the national highway outside the highway. A slightly worn bus was speeding on the national highway, and on the bus sat a dozen people, with a few zombie dogs behind them. Although they had turned into zombies, the zombie dogs were fast. Yu Qingliang looked at this scene, but he couldn't help but take out his camera to take a picture. Since he was traveling on foot, he had to take pictures of the things he met on the road. If he was a human, he probably wouldn't have the heart to do this. Just as Yu Qingliang finished taking the picture and was about to stand up, a few gunshots pushed her head down again. Her line of sight went to the SUV that was catching up behind her. The car was familiar. She had even laid in the trunk yesterday. It was Gu Evening Ching's car, and the gunshots were coming from Gu Evening Ching's car. Snap snap snap, the guns hit and exploded. Those zombie dogs flew straight out because of their speed and crashed into the side of the road. Without the threat, the bus in front slowed down and stopped as the SUV caught up with the bus. Because there was some distance, Yu Qingliang couldn't hear what they were saying. But from the expressions of the people on the bus, they could tell that they were probably thanking Gu Evening Ching. Gu Evening Ching glanced at the bus. Then her eyes locked onto something. She directly went around the front of the bus and got on. Yu Qingliang was a bit curious as to what this Gu Evening Ching was going to do. Although it was true that she didn't like humans, the Gu Evening Chang who left flowers on her grave, Yu Qingliang found it quite endearing. In this kind of world, there really weren't many people who could show kindness to a stranger. Gu Evening Ching got into the car, and this car started to get messy. Yu Qingxiao squinted his eyes at the bus, and then saw a person being thrown out of the window by Gu Evening Ching. That person was lying on the ground, not moving at all. Afterward, he fiercely stood up and pounced on the human teenager who was following Gu Evening Ching. The teenager was carrying a long knife on his back, so the person who lunged in mourning had half of his head chopped off directly by the teenager. Obviously, there were infected people on that bus, but the infected hid the fact that they were injured. Those who came down from the bus were shocked when they saw the scene. It didn't occur to them that there were infected people on their bus. If it wasn't for this little girl leading the people to catch up, it was estimated that they would all be dead. Not only was this driver shocked, it was Yu Qingliang who thought that Gu Evening Cheng was really powerful. Of course, the more powerful Gu Evening Cheng was, the further away Yu Qingxiao had to be from this person. Otherwise, if they really fought, Yu Qingxiao felt that he wouldn't even have the chance to open his mouth to explain before his head was chopped off. So it was better to run away first. There was no way to see this hilarious scene. Yu Qingxiao moved to the other side of the highway before standing up. This position Gu Evening Cheng and the others couldn't see. As soon as she turned around, she was startled by the group of zombies in the distance. Good guy. They were densely packed and estimated to be in the thousands. I don't know if it was the gunshots that attracted them, but because this side of the national highway was covered by the highway, plus there was a turn. So from Gu Evening Ching's position, they couldn't even see that the corpses had attacked. Yu Qingliang reached out and slapped his forehead. To save or not to save? That was the question. But how was he going to get Gu Evening Harvest's attention? When Yu Qingxiao thought of this, he suddenly thought of Gu Evening Ching's dog. That dog's sense of smell and hearing should be very sensitive. If there was any movement on the highway, it should notice it in time. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao looked around and saw that there was a zombie coming in her direction. This made Yu Qingxiao's eyes light up. She hurriedly stepped forward and pulled this old zombie brother in the direction of Gu Evening Ching and the others. When it reached the edge position, she crouched down and shouldered one of his legs with force. This zombie then hung onto the elevated fence. The sound of the zombie ho 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 immediately attracted the dog's attention. When Yu Qingliang heard the dog barking, he immediately bowed and ran, then ran to the side of a car and pulled the corpse in the car over to cover himself. Started playing dead again. The teenager followed the dog onto the highway, took care of the walker hanging on the fence by hand, finds there isn't much there. However, the dog walked towards Yu Qingliang's position. This made Yu Qingxiao nervous. Don't look for me, look across the street. If it wasn't for the fact that Yu Qingxiao's heart could no longer beat, she felt like her heart was going to jump out of her mouth. This favor of burying a corpse was hard to repay, but the dog just crossed over her and jumped to the opposite side of the highway, baring its teeth in that direction in vigilance. 
The teenager heard the dog's voice and also looked over in that direction. When he saw the densely packed zombies, he turned around and ran, taking the dog with him. At this moment, the teenager only felt grateful in his heart. It was good that Tsunami had reacted to this zombie, otherwise they would have been bagged by the zombies. Sister Chang, hurry up, there's a wave of zombies coming over. The estimated number is nearly 2,000. We can't handle it. The teenager's voice came from near and far. The dog also flew down. But Yu Qingliang didn't dare to move. Only when she heard the sound of a car starting did she lift off that corpse and stand up. At this time those zombies had already come over from the bridge hole under the highway. Densely packed. They headed in the direction where the car had disappeared. The bus and the cross country were already far away. So Yu Qingliang stood on the highway and watched the car disappear on the national highway. Very good. Very good. Now she and that Gu Evening Ching were considered to have cleared the air. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao picked up the map again and headed towards the west. She looked at the zombies going in the opposite direction from herself, so she inclined her head to look in their direction. Only when they were gone and there were a few zombies left that had been trampled to the point of not being able to crawl, did she get off the highway? Then looking at the struggling walkers on the ground, she politely helped the few walkers up, even stuffing the leaking intestines back into these walkers, wiping his hands on the walkers' clothes in the process. See, don't go to places where there are a lot of zombies, it's easy to cause a stampede. Yu Qingliang said, although she didn't go out, she went online every day, like some festivals or events. Stampedes did happen. This made Yu Qingxian, who originally didn't like to go out, even more afraid of humans. It was true that crowds were really scary. Yu Qingliang said so, but the zombie was still dragging the remnants of its body to catch up with the army. Yu Qingliang's kind words fell on deaf ears. Yu Qinglian looked at this impolite zombie and thought it didn't matter. It was hard to persuade a corpse that was looking for death with good words. Since there was a wave of corpses coming from this direction, there wouldn't be any living people for a while. The next part of her trip would be relatively quiet. Still, she bowed in the direction the zombies had left. I hope you are all safe on this trip. Humans used to be their own kind, and zombies are now their own kind. If the zombies were all like themselves and didn't eat people, wouldn't they be able to live in peace? Well, forget it. It wasn't up to her as an inhuman, zombie creature to decide. As the sun rose, as a human, Yu Qingliang was already intolerant to the sun, and after turning into a corpse, she was even less heat resistant. She held up her umbrella and continued to walk forward. According to the map, there were no toll booths 30 kilometers ahead and the highway was elevated all the way. This made Yu Qingliang breathe a sigh of relief. Since it was elevated, the national highways or country roads were on the ground more than 10 meters away from the elevated and there is a toll station at more than 40 kilometers, but the toll booth was probably also packed with ruined vehicles. After all, the two toll booths she passed through were in this condition, so in the middle of the two toll booths, although there were vehicles, it was absolutely impossible for a human to drive a car onto the highway, unless the area was controlled by humans and then cleared out between the roads, and clearing out the roads wouldn't clear out this kind of unimportant highway, and it had been almost a month since the end of the world. The survivors in this place had either fled or died out. Yu Qingliang looked at these zombies in front of him that had been wilted by the sun, and was even in a good mood to take the initiative to greet them. It was just that all those zombies could only hide in the shaded places. This made Yu Qingliang's mood even better. Silly. Sis has an umbrella. Yu Qingliang was a bit dejected as she bounced forward with her umbrella. Originally, she had planned to walk all 50 kilometers in one day and one night. But now, after a day and a night, she had only walked less than 30 kilometers. Obviously, Yu Qingliang had underestimated her own nature of love of hilarity. Sure enough, even if it was social terrorism, human nature still wanted to go and join in the fun. When the sunlight was not so strong in the afternoon, Yu Qingxiao put away his umbrella. The highway without humans and the sunset, as well as the surrounding mountains, were indeed beautiful. Yu Qingxiao took out his camera and took a few more pictures. Then a few zombie birds flew overhead. She had previously thought that humans might be safe if they lived on this kind of elevated highway, as long as they took care of the zombies on both ends. But she had overlooked one thing, that was that the zombie birds weren't interested in her at all, but they were interested in humans' awe. If a human lived in a place like this, it would be easy for a zombie bird to lock onto them. And if there were zombies on both sides, then this place would be the most dangerous. If she was a human and there were zombies on both sides, how would she choose to fight back? Yu Qingliang thought, and moved over to the side, at a height of more than 10 meters, it wasn't necessarily possible to fall to death, in case she only fell half dead, she would have to have her arms and legs ripped off by the zombies, that death would be too unbearable, that's why you can't live on this kind of highway, you'll die a horrible death, thinking about this, Yu Qingliang felt that she just had nothing to do, 
It wasn't something this corpse of hers should be thinking about. As the sun went down, Yu Qingliang all felt like she was coming up quite a bit in her state. While passing through a small village, the zombies were also unusually active. This made Yu Qingliang a little curious. Like this kind of small village on the side of the highway, there were only a few dozens of families, and if all the zombies in the entire village turned into zombies, it was estimated that there would only be one or two hundred of them. But wasn't this zombie too active? When faced with humans, Yu Qingxiao was obedient. When faced with zombies, Yu Qingxiao wanted to go up and take a look. Therefore, Yu Qingliang entered the small village full of zombies in a big way. The zombies were almost all gathered around the front door of a house. Yu Qingliang also went over. This family's house was a two-story one, and the fence of the yard was a bit higher than the ones next to it. Plus, the gate was a heavy steel gate. However, Yu Qingxiao's nose was wafting an aroma if anything. Obviously, there were living people in this house. It had been a month since the end of the world. It was surprising that there were still survivors in this small village. But speaking of which, she hadn't read any of those post-apocalyptic texts that had written about how the survivors of such a small village survived. After all, the places the protagonist went to were all bases in big cities, occasionally passing through a small town, or a roadside village. Like this kind of small village living on the side of the highway, it was rarely depicted. If one was lucky, one could probably still drive and run. After all, each family in the village had their own small yard, and those zombies would be kept in their own yard. So it was actually fairly safe in a small village like this. There were dozens of walkers surrounding the entrance of this family's house. It seems possible that these zombies came down from the highway. It was also possible that the unknowing villagers in this kind of village were surrounded by zombies when they went out in the morning and then turned into zombies. However, 40 to 50 zombies, for an ordinary person, it was already considered to have seen their own grave grass. Yu Qingliang came over and squeezed in from the group of zombies, then peeled on the doorway to look inside. The door of the house was locked. Even if this gate was broken, there was still a gate inside. Today's gates in the countryside looked much sturdier than those in the city. Plus if one were to live in the countryside alone, it was estimated that one could canton food for half a year. So economizing a bit and surviving for half a year was not a problem. Yu Qingliang looked at it for half a day and couldn't see anyone inside. He stopped pushing himself. If she climbed the wall and went in by herself, she would probably have to scare others. It was just that she tripped over her feet as she left the group of zombies. She looked down and realized that it was the remains of several corpses. This made Yu Qingliang startled and immediately moved her feet away from the faces of this zombie corpses. Sorry, sorry, she didn't mean to step on it. It was really embarrassing. Yu Qingxiao was still apologizing to the zombie corpse when she suddenly heard the sound of a clicking door lock going off. Frightened, Yu Qingxiao turned around and ran. Those zombies were really bold. She crawled into the next house, and after greeting the owner of this house's zombie, she felt her way up to the second floor. It was just enough to see the yard of the house next door. At this time, the door of that house was opened, and a 17 or 18 year old little girl came out from inside. The little girl smoothly lifted a baseball bat by the door and came towards the gate. Only she didn't go through the gate. Instead, she came up from the side stairs and then crouched on the fence. Those zombies smelled the smell of blood and flesh and all headed towards the little girl. But that little girl was not the least bit panicked, and against the zombie that lunged over, she directly swung the baseball bat in her hand, and smashed that zombie's head to pieces. This made Yu Qingliang feel fortunate that he didn't go to knock on the door. Otherwise this baseball bat was going to hit his head. So close so close. I'm in a good mood to eat a hot pot today. And you guys even came to join in the fun. The young girl looked at the fallen body and swung another baseball bat at the second zombie. When she had killed five zombies, the young girl seemed to look from the void. Before she climbed back up the wall in satisfaction, Yu Qingliang felt that he was worrying blindly. Those who dared to live alone in such a place must have a few real skills. It was true that heroes came out of the chaotic world. Once the end of the world arrived, there were especially a lot of extraordinary and capable people. I just didn't know who was stronger between this little girl and Gu Evening If the two of them acted together, they didn't even dare to think about what kind of cool book it would be. To say that Yu Qingliang wasn't envious, that was definitely impossible. After all, anyone would want to live so dashingly and freely. But there were people who couldn't live up to what they imagined. Just like Yu Qingxiao. Only after turning into a zombie did he dare to go out. Yu Qingxiao thought about it and thought that it was better for him to leave this place quickly. In short, this little girl was dangerous. It might be dangerous for humans as well. And it was absolutely dangerous for zombies. Although Yu Qingliang didn't understand why she had this kind of fighting power. Yet she wanted to shrink in this small village. Everyone had everyone's thoughts. Like her who deliberately scratched out wounds for the zombies and then lay down to die. There were probably people who didn't understand. 
Yu Qingliang ran away for self-preservation after she was sure that the other party had the ability to defend themselves. So after waiting for it to be completely dark, Yu Qingxiao left the small village. As for whether or not that young girl had found her, Yu Qingxiao didn't care, as long as it didn't come to hammer her. When Yu Qingxiao left, a pair of eyes were watching her. Just that little girl was also a bit surprised. After system detection, the other party was indeed a zombie without a doubt. But this zombie's hazard value was surprisingly zero. The combat power was 8. One should know that an ordinary human's combat power was 10. While this zombie was surprisingly only 8. As a human being is to get up dizzy. Walk two steps will shake the mansion. Even when he turned into a zombie, his combat power was in the single digits. Normal zombies had a combat power of 20. For humans, zombification was indeed evolution. But for that female zombie, it was just a living corpse. Originally, she was prepared to stay in the village for a while and wait for the base to be built. Then find a way to team up with others and brush up on point values. But this zombie with no force value did attract the young girl's attention. So she packed up her things and secretly followed it. She wanted to see what that weak little zombie was going to do. Yu Qingliang, the weak little zombie, didn't know the young girl's intentions. It didn't even know that the young girl had a system and was interested in her. At this moment, Yu Qingxiao was still holding the map, determined the direction, and continued to walk forward. Occasionally, when she encountered zombies piling up, she would run to take a look at them. Finally early the next morning, Yu Qingxiao finally arrived at her first destination. This waterfall was peculiar in that it was a hot spring waterfall. The water flowing out was warm, and the hot springs here were also famous. That's why there are a lot of tourists all year round, especially in winter. Of course, there are a lot of zombies. With so many zombies, it was natural that the young girl was stopped outside. She could only watch as Yu Qingliang entered the tourist area. Anyways, there were tens of thousands of zombies in the entire hot springs tourist area, even though her fighting strength was not weak. However, Court Lady Wen felt that it was better for her not to seek death. No matter how strong she was, she was still human. Just looking at that small zombie with no combat power just walked right through the zombie group and went towards the ticket window. So Court Lady Wen saw that little zombie buy a ticket, line up, and then enter the hot spring tourist area. Court Lady Wen watched Yu Qingliang enter the gate of the hot spring area with a face that was struck by lightning. This little zombie actually came to travel. You didn't come to travel when you were a human, and you came to travel when you turned into a zombie. Sick, sick and funny. Yu Qingliang was just following the usual steps of entering the scenic spot at this time. Although no one was selling tickets, those zombies weren't lining up, but were just blocked by the railings. But she still got a real feel of the tourist atmosphere. Of course she didn't know that there was someone following her at this moment, and thought she was sick. After entering the tourist area, it was found that many places were indeed damaged. But for Yu Qingliang, it didn't affect her at all. Many of the water facilities were playable. Things like soaking in hot springs and water rafting were all possible. Yu Qingliang dragged the kayak and headed towards the hot spring waterway. Wen Chang, who couldn't help but be curious, still managed to come in and find Yu Qingliang. As a result, she saw that this little zombie was actually playing. It's the end of the world. Who's as relaxed as you are? Yu Qingxian came in twice. And on the third time, she capsized, which caused Yu Qingxian to sink directly into the water. If it was a living person, she probably would have drowned. But she stepped out of the pool of water and dragged the dinghy up to higher ground again. Then she pushed the wobbling zombies next to her into the dinghy, strapped them in, and sat up herself. Yu Qingliang looked at the zombies whose eyes fell out of their sockets because of the swaying. So he subconsciously reached out to catch them, waiting until it was smooth. He put the eyeballs back on it again. I'm really sorry. I didn't realize that your orbital flesh couldn't pocket your eyes anymore. Indeed, with today's weather, these walkers didn't eat blood and flesh. Then they would only gradually rot. Like these rebellious zombies she pulled were the ones that rotted more. When she pulled they followed. And when she pushed them, they flopped towards the skiff. As for the walkers that hadn't decayed yet like herself, they were stubborn cows that couldn't even be pulled. One by one, they were all full of personality. Yu Qingliang looked at the internal organs on these zombies that were about to be knocked off their bodies, so he didn't toss them, pushing them off the dinghy, then played all the items that this scenic spot was famous for, although she was the only one conscious in the entire scenic area, but Yu Qingliang didn't feel lonely, on the contrary, she was at ease, doing everything was free, by the time she had played through the popular facilities, it was almost dark, and since this place was almost done playing, then she had to head towards the next place. Only when she was just about to withdraw, she unexpectedly found a fleet of cars coming towards to this hot spring park. Yu Qingliang was a bit curious and wondered what these people were doing here. The hot spring park wasn't a storage place for anything essential to life. Other than the hot springs, 
It was all sorts of entertainment facilities. Of course, there were also quite a few zombies. Then it couldn't be to move the zombies. And there were zombies everywhere. So there was no need to actually come to the scenic spot. Yu Qingliang didn't dare to stay in the house, but instead walked towards the forest. If it wasn't for the hot spring pool that could be seen underwater at a glance, Yu Qingxiao felt that it would be safe to go and lie in the water. She looked at the trees and then at the dirt. Is Gu watching there? It would be good to bury her in the dirt again. That way, even if someone stepped over her face, she wouldn't feel it. Yu Qingliang thought about it in his head. In the end, she found a high place with a good view and sneaked around to see what exactly these people were going to do. It wasn't until she saw that those people were actually dressed in military uniforms that it became clear that this wasn't an ordinary operation. Since it was the military, then it should be an operation from the upper echelons. Just what could be in this scenic area? Of course, because it was night, the zombies' mobility was much more agile than during the day. So at this time, they only dealt with the zombies roaming outside, and then stationed outside. So it was necessary to first use the night vision drone at night to photograph the number of zombies, then make a plan and naturally attack strongly during the day. Just don't know if this drone will shoot itself. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang folded quite a few branches over herself, trying to block her vision. Even if it was a heat-like drone, she, a dead person, shouldn't be able to feel it. And just as that drone flew towards her side, Yu Qingxiao's line of sight suddenly crossed her back. It wasn't a zombie, but a human. And Yu Qingxiao recognized this person. It was the young girl from that small village from before. It was mainly that baseball bet that really made Yu Qingxiao memorize it. This little girl had actually followed up. How did she follow up? Yu Qingxiao really didn't feel anything at all. If it wasn't because of the army, he probably wouldn't have been able to spot this little girl. If she gave herself a baseball bat, she would really have to say goodbye to the world. Yu Qingliang didn't even think about it. Threw the branch and headed behind the mountain. She had to leave this place. And as for where to go, she would first go to a safe place. So Yu Qingxiao went around the back of the mountain and headed towards the city. The more zombies there were, the safer it was for Yu Qingliang. After walking for two to three hours, he finally left the hot spring resort. Just after arriving in the city, Yu Qingxiao still went around the city. Although her eyes were really good, it was impossible for her to see things in the distance. Something like binoculars still needed to be prepared. Otherwise it would be like this time when she was being followed and didn't even know it. It was a good thing that that little girl didn't seem to want to do anything to herself. Otherwise, even if she had 10 lives, it wouldn't be enough to hit the other party's baseball bat. Yu Qingxiao was rummaging through the boxes, when suddenly her ears instantly tinnitus and she felt the sky spinning. Her eyeballs were about to be shaken out of their sockets for her, but she didn't hear any sound. Yu Qingxiao reached out and slapped her face, grabbed the binoculars and headed up the dozens of floors. She couldn't hear herself, but she was indeed affected. So that meant it was a sonic attack. Now this place was free of walkers and close to the border. Perhaps a garrison place would have to be built in this place. Also, the world is in chaos today, but the country is inviolable. That hot spring scenic spot is really the most suitable place to be a garrison, because the scenic spot is large, and in order to prevent tourists from sneaking in. So of course this fence has made special treatment. Otherwise, the reason why the zombies inside couldn't get out and the zombies outside couldn't get in. If all the zombies in the hot spring area are dealt with, it is indeed a better place to station at the border. It's less than 50 kilometers from this place to the border. As long as the equipment was installed, as soon as someone crossed the border, they would immediately be captured. Yu Qingliang used his binoculars to look over at the scenic spot. Sure enough, he saw a large truck pulling a pitch black equipment. Although Yu Qingxiao didn't recognize what it was, he knew at a glance that it was definitely dangerous. Yu Qingxiao felt that he was lucky that he ran fast, or else his eyes and tongue might have really fallen all over the place by now. If they were in the center of that sound wave, then these zombies would not be able to move at all. Of course, it also included animals with sensitive hearing. As long as the movements of the zombies are controlled, then the zombies are good to kill. Putting on the silencer and then hitting the target, as long as you have practiced a few times, you shouldn't miss the shot. And Yu Qingliang held the binoculars and looked down the hill towards the highway. Then he saw an off-road. Yu Qingxiao, sister, why are you everywhere? It's just that nowadays, this car had a logo belonging to the army on it. Obviously. This Gu Evening Cheng is a soldier. No wonder that marksmanship was so powerful. People are professionals. Gu Evening Cheng's cross country went towards the scenic area. Yu Qingliang reached out and scratched her head, almost ripping off the hair on her scalp. Now that she was dead, if her hair fell out, there would be no way to grow it back. She didn't want to be a bald zombie. Yu Qingliang quickly reached out and pressed her scalp. Afterwards, she put the binoculars in her backpack, turned around and headed downstairs. What's going on? 
She was clearly heading towards the edge and she encountered so many people. Then wouldn't she be heading inland? There was a garrison at the borderline, so it was indeed easy to meet up with the army. Yu Qingliang, who was halfway down the stairs, sat down on the steps and started flipping through the travel brochure. Next time, pick a more auspicious place. Yu Qingliang thought so and started to point out the troops on the map. This kind of place that let luck decide was not the place to pour her thoughts into. She herself had come towards this hot spring waterfall scenic spot and ended up either being buried in the ground along the way, or being stalked by a post-apocalyptic cool heroine, almost mixed in with the corpses and was killed by a sonic attack. Come to think of it, this tour of hers was really a series of twists and turns, so she had to change places, at least get rid of Gu Wanqing and that little girl before she could. With this kind of super powerful human, Yu Qingliang always felt like she would brainstorm at any moment. It was better to leave such a place of wrongdoing quickly. Previously, she felt that taking the highway was to avoid people and zombies and could be quieter. But nowadays, it could only be said that the big hideout was in the city. She would just head to the big city. She hadn't been to many cities in her lifetime anyway. Nowadays when there were a lot of zombies head for the city. When humans took possession of the city again, she'd head for the hills. Anyway, she was a zombie and would definitely turn into a mess. So she would dig a hole and bury herself at that time. Yu Qingliang looked at the selected city and was surprised that she had to cross the safe zone. The safe zone was definitely not a place to go, so she had to make a detour. What Yu Qingxiao had taken was an introduction to the province's tourist cities, so there would only be tourist cities on it. The city Yu Qingxiao chose was a city surrounded by mountains on three sides and a river on the other. This kind of city was easy to defend and hard to attack. If there was a need to build a safe zone in this area, Yu Qingxiao felt that this J city was really good, but it was a pity because this place was an ancient city. It wouldn't be very suitable to really live in this place. Besides, to build a base in this area, it was definitely necessary to choose a place with access roads. And the roads and highways and high-speed trains in Huaxia are very developed. So the choice, naturally, would not be in J City. So this place is naturally safe. It seems that more than just a tourist city introduction is needed. A national route map is also needed. Otherwise some small towns might be taken down as transit points. If she accidentally ran over there, she would have to become someone else earning points for her life. It wasn't clear if she was worth one point. Or 10. Yu Qingliang thought about it. According to the general zombie novels, killing 10 zombies to get a few points. She might not even be worth 1 point. After Yu Qingxiao decided, she left before dawn that night. After all, the faster one ran, the less likely one would collide with humans. Would the zombies in this world evolve? But on second thought, with all the psychic abilities, the zombies are bound to have levels, right? Alien ability upgrades require the crystal cores from the zombies and zombie upgrades require devouring their own kind. Once she thought that she might not be safe as a zombie either, she directly transformed into the world-famous painting the scream. Yu Qingliang, who had just left the city, really wanted to dig a hole and bury herself on this, right? She didn't feel uncomfortable in the dirt anyway. Pretending to be human was definitely out of the question. Her face was rotted on one side, and her skin color didn't look like a living person. There was no heartbeat, and her blood didn't stop flowing. She couldn't pass the body check alone, but in the zombie world, she might as well be an alien. The higher the rank of the zombie in those zombie novels, the more they could regain some consciousness. Of course, it was definitely not human consciousness, but the consciousness of how to survive and hunt as a zombie. So a zombie like himself, whose physical body wasn't even considered tough, definitely the type to be eaten. Yu Qinglian fought as she headed out of the city. She had to leave this place before dawn. Court Lady One had lost that little zombie. Originally, it was to avoid that heat-like drone. Only later did she realize that the official used a sonic attack. These zombies had all had their brains destroyed by the sound waves and appeared to be even more sluggish. Could the little zombie have become like that and been killed? It was just that she had used her system to scan the entire hot spring scenic area, but she hadn't searched for that little zombie. Obviously, she ran away. It was so hard to find a zombie that didn't eat people and seemed to carry human consciousness. How could she lose it? Before the end of the world. She suddenly realized that she had an extra system. As long as she killed zombies, she could get points and buy things from the system mall. As long as she kept killing zombies, she wouldn't be unable to eat in the post-apocalyptic world. And she could also use the points to buy weapons. But in terms of the current intensity of the zombies, using those high-end weapons would be a complete overkill. It was also easy to be targeted. A special baseball bat would be enough. Without too much force, it could directly smash the zombie's head to pieces. When Chang is an orphan and has been crawling around by herself since she was a child. She was used to being alone, because in the village was adopted by her grandmother. After that the land was occupied and got hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
The original grandmother's sons and daughters suddenly came to life. Come to the door to fight for the property. Being grandmother with a kitchen knife to drive out the door. The particularly thick fence and house that was originally built to prevent these people turned out to be quite convenient for her in the end times. Her grandmother died a year ago, and she was the only one left in the entire household. Because she had been working with her grandmother for many years, she had gained a good amount of strength, and her body was considered strong. Although she was only 19, she was quite independent. She would not be interested in humans. So a small zombie appeared, or a zombie with little combat power, when Chang was naturally interested. But now, she lost him. But by the looks of it, if she wanted to find this little zombie again, she would have to do so unless she came within her 3 kilometer range. Otherwise, she might never find it again. Despite turning into a zombie, the ability to avoid people was not small. And for Yu Qingliang, her ability to avoid people was certainly strong. After leaving the city, she traveled all the way east. She would have to bypass the survivor base. Then she would need to go around more than a hundred kilometers more. But that didn't seem like a problem to her. She didn't choose to take the highway this time. Instead, she chose to head towards the city. After all, there were some towns that had fun facilities. Of course, care needed to be taken to avoid humans. As Yu Qingliang thought this, she heard the sound of a vehicle, and there was more than one. It seemed to be heading towards the city's hospital. After all, the car had already driven into the hospital, and there was a group of zombies following behind it. Yu Qingliang watched as the zombies passed in front of her, and then inclined her head to look in the direction of the hospital. It looked like there were several hundred zombies surrounding towards the hospital. However, the hospital's doors had already been closed. Since they were able to enter the hospital, they were obviously looking for medicine. It's just that the hospital didn't only have medical staff and patients, but also the patients' families. Hospitals in general were zombie hit areas. After all, the injured and the unconscious were the first to be sent to the hospital. These people would pounce on the medics and family members as the zombies turned. Trying to find medicine at the hospital was a difficult task. At least that was the case in the novel she read. Of course, Yu Qingliang also wrote novels, just not much sci-fi post-apocalyptic ones, but if she wrote them, she would inevitably feel the same way. Yu Qingliang watched the zombies pushing and shoving at the door, and then circled around to the back door of the hospital from the side alley. The back door was mostly restaurants, stores and hotels. There were also a lot of zombies. Yu Qingliang leaned against the wall and probed into the alley. Then he met a pair of eyes that protruded out of his face. This made Yu Qingliang blink and then look upwards. The zombie had already been killed. It seemed to have fallen down from the upper floor and hung on the fence. For some reason, suddenly seeing a zombie, she wasn't afraid at all. She was afraid that someone would suddenly pop up. Yu Qingliang stared at the zombie and then looked at the wound. The time should be a few days ago. It was not caused today. Yu Qingxiao felt that someone should have broken into this hospital and also wanted to find medicine. I just don't know if the person who came to look for medicine escaped. Yu Qingliang was sure that there should be no humans at this back door. Only zombies. Only then did he go this way. The doors of many hotels were open, and some zombies were wandering around the house. Yu Qingliang looked at the signs. It was found that they were all various place names plus the word snack. Yu Qingliang curiously walked in. There were blood stains on the ground and some scattered vegetable soup. Of course, the vegetable soup had already become stains. Yu Qingliang wandered around a few stores before looking at the back door of the hospital. There were quite a few zombies gathered at the back door, and there were also quite a few zombie corpses. Someone should have escaped from here and closed the back door, blocking the zombies from chasing after them. It was really powerful. Yu Qingliang's line of sight crossed from the building diagonally across the street and then landed on those buildings of the hospital. She didn't dare to get close. It was almost when it was almost dark and those convoy people had left that Yu Qingxiao entered the hospital. Now that there were no humans, Yu Qingxiao naturally waltzed right into the hospital. There were quite a few zombies lying on the ground. All of them had their heads chopped off by long knives. Obviously, using large weapons in a place like this was a complete death wish. Of course, there were also fresh corpses. These should be people who were injured and didn't want to turn into zombies. Thus they understood themselves. Yu Qingxiao looked at these corpses. It was obvious that the caravan left quickly and did not take these corpses away. Of course, Yu Qingxiao felt that there was probably no way to take away these corpses. There were so many zombies. The corpses had already been chewed on by the zombies. Just the cold flesh and blood was no longer attractive to the zombies. Yu Qingliang looked at these corpses that had been eaten. And after thinking about it, he went to the hospital's warehouse and found a shovel and a hoe. Then only then did she dig a large hole in the hospital's garden. Although it was rather slow, the good thing was that she wasn't tired. She dug the hole for four or five hours. Then it took another two hours to drag the bodies over there. Burying the bodies again was another hour or so. By the time she had taken care of all this, 
It was already past three in the middle of the night. It was the dead of night. And from these people's clothes, Yu Qingliang saw a list. It said how much various medicines were needed. Yu Qingxiao looked at the mound of dirt, then at the list in her hand, and turned towards the hospital's medicine storage room. She took out a cart and rummaged through a few more large cardboard boxes, comparing the names of the medicines on the paper. She put double the amount of those medicines in. By the time it was five in the morning, Yu Qingliang pushed a few large cartons full of medicines towards the edge of town. She also didn't know if those people had gone back or were still living in the city. Anyway, sending it to the edge was the way to go. If she didn't get enough this time, she would definitely come back next time. She placed it on the path those people must take. It should be fine. Should she write a few big letters to prompt them? It wasn't long after she pushed the cart of medicine out of the hospital. She suddenly saw cars parked in front of an office building. Wasn't it one of those fleet cars? The sign posted on it. Yu Qingxiao remembered. Yu Qingxiao naturally did not dare to move forward. But in his position, those people couldn't see those medicines. If he went any further, he would easily be seen by the people on sentry duty. At this moment, Yu Qingxiao really wanted to slap himself. What was the point of meddling? But if someone really needed these medicines urgently and couldn't get them after sacrificing so many people, then more people would die. She was actually very convenient to do these things. Yu Qingliang thought about it. She had already done it. So she didn't need to regret it. She reached out and pushed the cart out of the corner. Those people should be paying attention to this direction of the hospital. As long as they looked in the direction of the hospital, then they would see a cart of medicines on the main road. Yu Qingliang pushed the cart forward with force and the wheels rolled on the ground, attracting a few zombies. Those zombies came towards the source of the sound, but when they saw that it was also their own kind, they instantly returned. Yu Qingliang watched as the cart was pushed to the middle of the road by her, immediately bowed and ran, then ran towards the building diagonally across the street, at least to see if those people could see the medicine they took, and she had thoughtfully written a note on it. Take it. No thanks. It's not poisonous. For a while, Yu Qingxiao always felt as if he was one of those underground heroes, silently guarding humanity. This made Yu Qingxiao cross her arms. It could make her bullish. Brother Qin, we just heard a little noise, so we looked over towards that side. There is suddenly an extra cart in that place, and on the cart, there are some medical cartons. Should we go and take a look? A sentry suddenly pushed open the door and walked into the room. This time, looking for medicine was also a desperate endeavor because the amount of medicine needed was too much, and there were even quite a few medicines that were not sold in pharmacies, that's why they came to the city to look for it, the entire fleet of 5 vehicles had a total of 30 people, after going on a trip today, they lost 7 people, 3 of them didn't break on the spot, they were only injured, so they were bundled up and placed in one of the rooms at this time, there were only 2 Xenos in the entire convoy, among them was the captain, Sheenan, who was a fire type alien with a very strong attack, there was also another one who was a water alien. It was just that the water type alien's combat power wasn't really strong, but it was essential for the team. If one of these three people who were injured became an alter ego, then they would have earned it this time out, even if they didn't get the medicine. Just looking at their situation, the possibility of zombification was higher, because when injured by a zombie, there was still a lot of difference between zombification and alienization. A zombified person would start to have a fever an hour after being injured after which they would fall into a coma and their face would start to turn blue. A shifter, on the other hand, was quite normally awake. Even the wound would become more and more painful and the person would become more and more awake. So 99% of those who start to have a fever after being wounded by a zombie are necrophiliacs. When Chinan heard the sentry's words, he walked to the window and took the binoculars to take a look towards the street. Although it was a bit blurry, he could indeed see familiar medical cartons. He could be sure that there was no such thing when they retreated. But at this point it was still light, the sun hadn't come out yet, and the zombies were moving quickly. He had already lost seven brothers, couldn't risk his brothers again, so he was prepared to wait until dawn. And Yu Qingliang waited from close to six o'clock until the sun came out at seven o'clock or so before he saw a man jump straight down from the second floor. He had a gun strapped to his waist and a long knife on his back. By the looks of it, he should be the captain of this convoy. He carefully walked over, then skillfully killed the few zombies prowling beside him. Only then did he touch the side of the cart. For large cardboard boxes on the cart, the cardboard boxes were not sealed, but there was a note on it. Sheenan picked it up and glanced at it. A flash of doubt flashed under his eyes. But still, he folded up this note and put it in his pocket, which then took out his walkie-talkie and said, let the brothers pack up and get ready to retreat. Come a few people to my place. The stuff he had read, it was indeed what they needed, and it was even a double portion. This made Sheenan puzzled. Who on earth? could take out so much medicine from that hospital full of zombies. 
When Jean and 14 members came over, they saw these four large cardboard boxes. What was inside was the purpose of their trip. They were not from the official base. This base that they were in today was a survivor base that had been transformed from a farm. After all, from this place to the official base, there was also a distance of more than 200 kilometers. And inside the survivor base, many people didn't have the means to travel that far. In this small base, it was possible to live for a while longer. If they were really heading towards the official base, they might die halfway. Like Chinan and the others, they did have the ability to go to the official base. But if they left, then the people in this base would not have any power to fight back in terms of food or even encountering zombies. Furthermore, in this civilian survivor base, they were relatively free. Although they needed to take risks every few days, but it was all worth it. If they didn't, everyone would only die. Yu Qinglian watched as they put the medicines into the car and left the place before the zombies surrounded them. It was just that before Qinan left, he still couldn't help but look around. When the car started, Qinan raised the window. Only then did he take out the note in his hand. He looked at the crooked lines on it, not knowing what was written. It was like a child's haphazard scribbles. But it seemed that the other party wanted to write. They just didn't know what they were writing. Never mind. Since the other party had the ability to take out so many medicines from the depths of a hospital full of zombies, it meant that the other party had the ability to protect themselves. And since the other party wasn't going to show his face, Chinan could only bring these life-saving medicines back first before he could do so. As for the person who gave them the medicine, if they could meet him in the future, they would naturally have to thank this person properly. Yu Qingxian watched these convoys leave, and only then did he let out a sigh of relief. However, she also felt that there were so many medicines in this hospital. If there was no way to take them out and use them, wouldn't it be a waste? Anyway, she wasn't in a hurry to go traveling, so she might as well move all these medicines to the edge of the city, so that those who are destined to come, can get them as well. In this way, humans don't have to face zombies to be eaten by zombies. The zombies are now considered her own kind again. If the zombies are killed off, she won't be able to hide herself well. So Yu Qingliang dragged the car towards the hospital again. The zombies in the hospital were not interested when they saw Yu Qingxiao pulling the cart in. On the contrary, there were a few zombies that seemed to be sensitive to sound that followed behind Yu Qingxiao. When Yu Qingxiao saw them just looking around, he complained a little in his heart. As a kindred spirit, he did not know how to help. Well, forget it. She didn't expect the zombies to deliver food and medicine, so she worked alone again in silence. She moved one trip after another, regardless of day and night. Looking at the mountain of medicines in front of her, Yu Qingliang looked at the sky. There was no telling if it would rain, but nowadays, even though it was winter, the sky was very hot. There was no sign of rain either. There was no need to do any covering, right? But many medicines couldn't be exposed to the sun either. So Yu Qingxiao dragged over that big umbrella from the snack bar next door and blocked the sun. After doing this, Yu Qingxiao felt like he was completely an angel, not a zombie. After Qinan returned to the survivor base and had given the medicine to those doctors, the entire survivors of the base were happy for the harvest they brought back this time. What this small base of theirs lacked the most was medicine. In this kind of post-apocalyptic world right now, no one dared to get sick for fear that they would turn into zombies once they had a fever. And two days after Qinan returned to the base, he was ready to go out again. His team members naturally disagreed when they heard that Qinan even wanted to go out again. This time, they had already lost seven of their brothers going to the city to look for medicine. It was also their luck that they got help from good people. It was only then that they were able to get these medicines without any problems. But the captain surprisingly wanted to make another trip. Don't worry, I'll be fine going by myself. If you guys don't want to go, stay at the base. Chinan opened his mouth. Anyway, he had to go back and take another look. That graffiti note, he studied it for two nights and probably read what was written. From those scribbled words, he could tell that the other party was aware of what they wanted, and even took the initiative to help them. But from the handwriting, it was obvious that the other party's mind should be somewhat uncontrolled. Even if they had broken their hands and wrote with their feet, it wouldn't be so bad to write like this. And even if the hand was really broken, then these medicines would definitely not be delivered. So Chinan was wanting to go and find out what was going on. It was just that a squad member naturally disagreed when he heard that Chinan even wanted to go alone. In the end, they could only draw two people to follow Chinan. How to put it, even if they didn't want to go, they still had to follow. If Chinan died, then they would have nothing to rely on. They still understood Chin An's character. If they died, then their own families, Chin An would help them take good care of them. But if Chin An died, it would definitely be bad for them and their families. When Chin An saw that they were going to follow him, he didn't stop them. Only when they drove for two hours to the edge of the city and saw the pile of medicines that looked like a mountain, all three of them couldn't react. 
So many medicines, even if one person moved it, two or three people would have to move it for days. Sheenan looked at the medicines and immediately had someone use the radio to contact the people from the base to have the people from the base drive a truck. This cross country of theirs, there was no way to take away so many medicines. You guys watch here, I'll go look around. Sheenan felt at this moment that these medicines must have been deliberately placed here by someone. And it was definitely the same person from a few days ago. Just why was the other person able to take out so many medicines? Even if this person was more powerful, there was no way he could carry out so many things from the hospital while killing zombies. And counting the day he went back, it was only three days and two nights. One person definitely couldn't accomplish it. Xinan's eyes swept over the surrounding area, trying to find a little trace. Yu Qingliang felt fortunate that she had slipped away quickly. How could she not have expected that the man would come back so quickly? Usually after a mission, one would rest for a while, right? How could it be that in less than three days, this kid was heading back into the zombie nest? And what is he looking for? He wasn't looking for himself, was he? Yu Qingliang felt that it was completely unnecessary, so she ran away again, only this time, she was in a bit of a hurry, and as soon as she turned around, she crashed into a pillar, the thud caused Qinan, who was not far away, to react instantly, Yu Qingliang was a bit flustered, it wasn't too appropriate to play dead now, sure enough there weren't many zombies on the edge of the city, which wasn't good for her, Qinan directly crossed over from the top of a scrapped car, coming over towards Yu Qingliang's side, with his speed, he was about to catch Yu Qingxiao in a minute. Yu Qingxiao wondered if he had a short life ahead of him. Obviously, he had just helped him. Yu Qingxiao flipped the window and ran towards the place where there were many zombies. Anyway, she could just run away first. Only when she ran out, she heard a clanking sound behind her. The sound of iron weapons clashing together. Yu Qingxiao immediately dodged behind a wall, revealing half of her little head to look behind her. Only to see that Qinan had drawn his long knife and blocked a baseball bat. A baseball bat? Seeing that familiar baseball bat, Yu Qingxiao's hair stood up in fear. Was it that little girl? Yu Qingxiao didn't dare to watch the fun anymore. Turning around, she ran as fast as she could. Originally, she thought she had gotten rid of this little girl. She actually caught up with her again. Is this little girl sick? What is the meaning of chasing her one zombie? There are so many zombies. Isn't it okay to kill those? Although the zombies are their own kind. But what should be sacrificed? Must still be sacrificed. It took five days for Court Lady One to finally find the little zombie. As a result, just after finding it, she found a man staring at her. How could Wen Chang agree to the little zombie being killed by someone else? Qinan also didn't expect that he would be blocked by someone. Get out of the way. I'm looking for someone. Qinan did not want to surround himself with this little girl. But if this little girl was that person's person, Qinan would understand somewhat. This little girl was very good with her hands. Then the one who ran away was bound to be no better. But when Chang didn't let go, and the baseball bat she retrieved swung hard again, this man didn't look like an ordinary person. The one he was going after was definitely a small zombie without a doubt. If he knew that the other party was a zombie, he would definitely have killed the little zombie. The combat power of a small zombie was not as good as an ordinary person. It was already not easy to survive in the post-apocalyptic world. Sorry, I won't let you chase after it. When Chang replied, Xinan knew that he really had nothing to say to Wen Chang. Then he could only defeat this little girl to find that person. Seeing that the other party had moved for real, Wen Chang knew that if she wanted to leave, she definitely wouldn't be able to do so. She could only fight with Qinan. And after 10 minutes, the system prompted her that she had lost track of the little zombie again. This made court lady Wen furious. She directly reached out and pulled out her pistol and pressed it against Qinan's chest. Put away the knife, or I'll shoot. Qinan did not want to really fight with Wen Chang. In fact, it wasn't difficult to avoid the bullets from Wen Chang. However, Qinan still withdrew his knife. When court lady Wen saw that Qinan had withdrawn his knife, she frowned and said, What a pain in the ass. I lost him again. Having lost him this time, court lady Wen felt that it would be even more difficult to find him. Before, maybe this little zombie didn't know that she was following her. Now that she was seen in this place again, she must have felt that she was following her. Otherwise, even if this little zombie had met someone before, she would still want to see the fun. As a result, when she met someone today, she ran without hesitation. Even 10 minutes to run a good result of 3 kilometers. As soon as Qin and heard the words of Wen Chang's court lady, the corner of his eyebrows raised and he knew that this little girl was also tracking that person. His eyes rolled and a smile appeared on his face. Since you lost the person, you can't rest in a place like this where there are zombies all over the place. I'm a person from an alien squad from a civilian base in front of me. If you're willing to cooperate with me, I can help you look for that person. Don't worry. I'm definitely not going to hurt that person. Chinan opened his mouth. 
If one wanted to survive in the post-apocalyptic world, then one needed to cooperate with a strong person. This little girl took a look at her stance although she was not a practiced fighter and her movements were reckless, but agile and with deadly moves. It is a strong person. First abducted. No. First recruited into their own squad. As for the person who gave them a lot of medicine, does this little girl know something about it? Perhaps it is possible to know some from this little girl's mouth. And court lady one agreed. She really needed a stable squad to earn points. Relying on herself alone, her ability was still too little. Now she could bind an affiliate to earn points for her. Begrudging this man was indeed a good choice. So the two people, who each had their own agenda, agreed to work together. And Yu Qingliang didn't dare to stop at all. Sure enough that little girl was following her. It wasn't an illusion on her part. Just why on earth was she following herself? And that man, couldn't he just take the medicine and leave? It seems like it's true that you can't be careless at all. Yu Qingliang gave a scurry and ran straight through the afternoon. She waited until it was dark before stopping. She didn't know where she had run to. It seemed that she had to go further and find the signposts in order to determine where she was. After walking for another half an hour, Yu Qingliang walked to a small town. There was a sign bunched up on the country road, writing the name of this small town. She immediately took out the map from her backpack and looked at it. It was discovered that she was now almost 50 kilometers away from that urban area in the morning. It turned out that she could still run far if she kept running. Although Yu Qingliang wasn't tired, she still searched for a house and climbed inside. By the way, she shooed the zombies hanging around the house out the front door. Yu Qingxiao was pleased with her behavior of taking over the house. She closed the gate. Only then did she take a closer look at this courtyard. The original owner was a lover of life. There were quite a few flowers and plants planted in the yard, but they had withered now. After not being watered for over a month and being exposed to the sun, they definitely wouldn't survive. Yu Qingliang walked to the water faucet and opened it. There was water. But this kind of water must be full of zombie virus. Humans would definitely not dare to drink it. She used a bucket to catch a few buckets and sprinkled them on the flower beds. As for whether or not these plants could live, it was up to them. Since there was water, Yu Qingxiao bathed herself and changed into a new dress. She then carried two of them. It seemed like she would have to go up to the clothing store to find another dress. The changed skirt. Yu Qingxiao didn't have the leisure to clean it, and directly threw it to the side, before sitting down on the sofa in the house. Although no one had lived in the house for a month, there wasn't much dust in the house. Yu Qingliang took out a pen and wrote and drew on the map, eventually identifying a few places she had to go to. Those were the Cross Sea Bridge in the south, as well as the ancient gardens in the east, and the imperial city and snowy land in the north as well as the Holy Plateau in the northwest. These five places were her must-visit. They were also places that she had seen recorded in many documentaries. In the past, after Yu Qingxian went out and came into contact with people, she would come home with a fever, unable to eat, and vomiting whatever she ate. So of course Yu Qingxiao wouldn't go to this kind of crowded scenic spot. After she went to Jay City, she could go all the way south to see the Cross Sea Bridge. After packing up, Yu Qingxiao set off at first light, in the direction of Jay City. Just getting closer and closer to J City, one would have to bypass this secure base. This secure base was indeed an official base. According to those broadcasts that Yu Qingxiao had listened to in the first half of the month, he probably understood that there should be more than 100, 000 people in this base. For Yu Qingliang, this number would completely scare her out of her mind. But actually, doing the math, there were millions of people in the counties under the jurisdiction of just a few cities. For a municipal base, there were only 100. 000 survivors. It could be imagined that this zombie virus, for the human race, was almost a disaster of extinction. If the human race dies out, perhaps after a few thousand or tens of thousands of years, the earth will give birth to a new hegemon to dominate the earth. Like the dinosaurs of the past, the humans of today. This is the end of mankind, but not the end of the earth. Yu Qingliang looked at the rising sun. Another new day had arrived. She followed the road in the direction of J City, and the closer to J City, the closer to the safe zone, and the fewer zombies there were. One could even see speeding convoys on the road. Scared Yu Qingxian so much that she shrunk her head and didn't dare to move around. Yu Qingliang was originally prepared to take a detour. After all, there were signs of human activity within a hundred kilometers. It wasn't like the places that he had passed through before, where there weren't even that many people. It was true that humans just couldn't be defeated. Even in a place like this where zombies were everywhere, they were able to carve out a place where they could live. They were really tough. But while humans were strong, Yu Qingliang had no way to be strong. There was always a caravan passing by outside, which left Yu Qingliang completely helpless to leave. As for those zombies that didn't have much of a consciousness, they were strutting down the main road. When a vehicle passed by, they pounced on it. 
and then were knocked off or crushed into zombie cakes. Because the zombies in this neighborhood had been pretty much cleaned up by the official army and some alien squads in the past month or so, Yu Qingliang could only retreat backward. But how could she not expect that this retreat? She had witnessed a zombie cannibalism scene. Yu Qingxiao had retreated back more than 10 kilometers, and it was almost more than 20 kilometers away from the official safe zone. For a car, it was just a 10-minute journey, but it was those 10 minutes that could possibly never arrive. The previous Yu Qingliang was wandering around though. She could see people and corpses but she had never seen a zombie eating a person with her own eyes. So seeing a small car surrounded by a dozen zombies, a mother and daughter sitting in the car while the man with a steel pipe kept knocking the zombies. I don't know if the car broke down or ran out of gas. Anyway, a family of three, surrounded by these zombies. The man was also just an ordinary person, wearing a pair of glasses. He should have been sitting in an office before. His steel pipe hit the past, to those zombies did not have any killing power at all. It was a very difficult thing for ordinary people to get a gun. Unless they arrived at the base and formed a mission squad, they might be able to borrow a gun from the officials. Yu Qingliang watched as the man was bitten by the zombies on his arms and thighs, but the man was still dead against the door of the car, not allowing the woman in the car to get out of the car. Only when the man was drowned by the zombies and broke his breath, and his flesh and blood lost its temperature, did those zombies move away from the man's body? Following that, they climbed up towards the car. The strength of these zombies was not small. The car window was cracked in three or two knocks. After all, it wasn't bulletproof glass, so it was naturally easy to be knocked out. If the car window glass was really broken, then this mother and daughter would definitely perish in the mouth of the zombies. Yu Qingliang was a little hesitant. Then she fished out a piece of paper from her bag and pasted it on her face, blocking the somewhat horrifying crack on her face then rushed over. She reached out and pushed the two zombies away. She then blocked in front of the car and yelled at those zombies. Get the hell out of here. Those zombies seemed to be really frightened by Yu Qingxiao's roar and actually stopped their attack. Yu Qingxiao froze. Although it made her a bit puzzled, she still shouted roll again. Those zombies backed away resentfully. The mother and daughter in the car originally thought that they were definitely hopeless. Where did they know that a little girl rushed out and blocked in front of them? Just that roar scared the mother and daughter goosebumps all over. Although they were scared, that little girl did save them. And when Yu Qingxiao turned her head to look at the two people in the car, even though covered with a piece of paper on her face. But her pupils that were whitened only a little bit made the mother and daughter shrink back again. This is also a zombie. When Yu Qingxiao saw that the mother and daughter were actually shrinking back, she was a bit puzzled. Although he wasn't particularly pretty, but blocking his mouth wasn't so scary. Although the skin was indeed just a bit scary. Only then did Yu Qingxiao open his mouth. Come down. The car broke down. You guys have been in the car. There's no way I can wait with you guys. It was just that after Yu Qingxiao said this, the mother and daughter were even more terrified and hugged together. This made Yu Qingxiao very puzzled. He was speaking in human language. Why couldn't they understand? Although Yu Qingxiao was puzzled, she didn't have much time to explain and directly reached out to pull the car door. The clanging sound made the surrounding zombies to gather over again. Yu Qingxiao turned back and cursed again. And those zombies started to face the wall again like eunuchs in a Qing dynasty drama. With a few hard tugs, she pulled the car door open. And the mother and daughter in the car shrunk even further over there. Yu Qingliang was a bit speechless, but she didn't move and just stood to the side. When other zombies came, she pointed at those zombies and cursed twice. The eight-year-old girl finally realized that the mother and daughter were saved by a zombie. The little girl wasn't afraid at this time, and immediately climbed out of her own mother's arms and poked outside the car. Dad, dad, the little girl lying on the side of the car, looking at that mess of corpses that have become inhuman, are almost unable to cry out. At this time, that woman also reacted and immediately came down from the car. She looked at the corpse on the ground and instantly reddened her eyes. Yu Qingliang stood with her back to the mother and daughter. She felt that it was because the mother and daughter were too nervous that they didn't hear her clearly. But Yu Qingxiao also didn't expect that these zombie elders would give themselves so much face. Having just scolded them, she was a little embarrassed. It was good that this mother and daughter were scared and sad, but they also knew the current situation. Excuse me, can we bury my husband and then go with you? The woman opened her mouth. At this moment, she also realized that this zombie wasn't trying to eat them. Yu Qingliang did not look at their expressions. She actually understood the pain of losing a loved one. But no matter how painful it was, she still survived. Of course, it wasn't exactly living now, but she still wished for those who wanted to live to live well. So for this kind of thing, Yu Qingliang agreed. He even helped the mother and daughter dig a hole together and then buried the remains of that man. At this moment, Yu Qingxiao felt that he had been encountering convoys before, but now it had been almost two hours and he hadn't seen any convoys passing by. 
could it be that he really had to escort this mother and daughter to the safe zone? This pair of mother and daughter was even if they were just scared, they didn't want to resist, nor did they want to hurt themselves. Yu Qingliang buried his head in Kuku digging a pit, and the eight-year-old girl next to him was a bit puzzled. Why would a zombie save their lives? And why was a zombie so skillful in digging a pit? Her movements were not as stiff as those of the zombies, but more or less the same as a living person. It was just that the little girl couldn't understand what she was saying at all. Is sister a zombie? The little girl boldly inquired. When the woman next to her saw her daughter asking this, her eyes also looked at Yu Qingxiao. She was indeed a zombie, both from the color of her skin and her eyes. She could tell that she was a zombie, but zombies only ate people. They had never seen a zombie save a person. Yu Qingliang did not answer the little girl. He just reached out and pointed to the man's body in the pit, telling the mother and daughter to say something. He himself was going to start burying the soil, and it was already afternoon. If there was any more delay, there were going to be more zombies. Whether she would be able to stop those walkers by then, there was no telling. And the little girl seemed to understand Yu Qingliang's action and immediately pulled her mom along to pay her respects to her dad. The woman's face didn't look too good, but it was impossible for her to die along with her husband, because the daughter was still young. Even if she loved her husband no matter how much, she hated to die with him. They still had a daughter. And as parents, they couldn't be so selfish. After all, she was only 8 years old, not 18. Yu Qingliang watched as the mother and daughter buried soil into the pit, and began to bury soil into it as well. Her hands wouldn't get sore, so naturally she buried faster than the mother and daughter. After burying the man, Yu Qingxiao took out the map and looked at it, pointing in the direction of the base. However, she thought about the fact that she spoke as if the humans couldn't understand her, so she took out the map and pointed to where the base was. The little girl immediately understood. This zombie sister was sending them to the base. She then immediately translated for Yu Qingliang so that the woman could understand. The woman was a bit surprised to hear this, but she also knew that she couldn't wait now. Although the temperature was indeed high during the day, at night, it would instantly drop to zero degrees. They mother and daughter could not stay in the wild. The woman immediately went to the trunk of the car and took out the backpack. The things inside were already packed. Yu Qingliang saw that the zombies seemed to have left so he wandered around to take a look. A car was seen in a family's garage. This made Yu Qingliang feel her eyes light up. She immediately pulled the woman to the edge of the garage. The woman was also overjoyed, then went into the house to look for the car keys. Luckily, the car keys were placed at the door of the living room, and most of the zombies here had actually been cleaned up once. The woman let her daughter sit in the car before starting the car. When she saw that Yu Qingxiao was not willing to get into the car, she looked at Yu Qingxiao with some doubts. Aren't you going to get into the car? Yu Qingxiao shook her head and then removed the paper from her face. The mouth that was half cracked open showed what she meant. She was a zombie. She couldn't go to the survivor base. If she went, her little life would not be guaranteed. It was only about 20 kilometers from here to the base. And most of the zombies here had been cleared. As long as they didn't stop, no zombie could catch up with the car. Therefore, Yu Qingliang was not very worried that they would encounter zombies. And as long as they were close, and it was evening, the squad that went out to do the mission would definitely have returned. The little girl seemed to have realized something as well, and immediately probed out. Don't worry, sister zombie, we will definitely not say anything about you. And also, my name is Hangy Jean, and my mother's name is Song Jing, we won't forget about you. And sister zombie, don't forget about us as well. Song Jing also nodded and then started the car. Then I wish you a safe journey as well. Song Jing said, if someone else found out, then they would definitely kill her even if she was a kind zombie. But not everyone thought that there were really good zombies. In Song Jing's mind as well, if she encountered a zombie next time, she wouldn't feel that the other party wouldn't go after her. She really had to work on her ability to meet a zombie again and only let others protect her. Yu Qingliang watched the car drive away, but she was a bit puzzled. They wouldn't see each other again in this life, so why did they have to announce themselves? But Yu Qingliang also made a note of it. It was good that this mother and daughter were not the kind of people who screamed when they encountered danger, or directly hit her with something when they saw that they were zombies. Of course, Yu Qingxiao also hoped that in the future, when they encountered a zombie, they wouldn't have any hesitation. Of course they would kill if they could. Yu Qingxiao watched the car disappear into the road before turning around to leave. This place really wasn't safe. If she encountered the alien squad that went out from the base, then she would really be cold. Therefore Yu Qingxiao naturally stayed away from the base the farther away the better. Mom, will I see that zombie sister again? Hang Jean was sitting in the co-pilot, watching them finally leave the town, so she couldn't help but ask her mom. I don't know, I think it's best if I don't see it again, at least it means she's doing a good job of avoiding humans. 
Julia Song said, although she didn't know why this zombie still retained human kindness, but she felt that it was best for this kindness not to be discovered by humans. Not everyone would appreciate each other's kindness, let alone a zombie's. If a human found out about her existence, then there were only two things that could happen to her. One was to be killed outright. Two was to be captured to study the reason why she still retained human consciousness. But looking at that zombie, she had a map for traveling with her, and also put a cross on the location of the base informed by the radio. Obviously she herself knew she couldn't go to that place. It was just that she had circled several places that were a lot of tourist attractions. So Song probably understood this little zombie's purpose, because past towards this place was J-City, which was notorious for being an ancient city. But she hadn't thought that a person who had turned into a zombie would want to go traveling. Why was that? Was it because they didn't have the chance to go before? It was just that. Since this was her will, no one could stop it. She and her daughter wouldn't bother questioning her behavior either. When the car drove to the base, the mother and daughter breathed a sigh of relief. It was good that they entered the quarantine zone before dark. There was nothing on them. The car was parked in the parking area. After making sure there weren't any wounds on their bodies and they didn't have a fever, they were sent to another room for isolation. This quarantine was only for one night. It didn't need to be 24 hours. Once a person relaxed, they would think about things. Song Jing had just sat down and after watching her daughter fall asleep against her arms, she thought of her husband. She instantly reddened her eyes, but Song quickly wiped the tears off her face again. One could not cry. If it wasn't for her husband getting out of the car to protect their mother and daughter, they would have been eaten by the zombies as well. Therefore, she could not give up on herself. In the future, she had to protect her daughter alone in this post-apocalyptic world. At least let her daughter have the ability to protect herself and survive in this post-apocalyptic world. She helped her daughter pull the blanket on her body. Before she whispered, wait for a few days, you'll start exercising your body. Of course, studying this kind of thing, don't fall behind. Even if you don't need to take the exam now, but you can't let you become a semi-literate. There were still people around, but they wouldn't care what Song Jing was saying. Being able to get to this place, they just wanted to win a full night's sleep in peace. There was no need to worry about whether or not zombies were surrounding them anymore. Well, I'll write down everything mom says. Hangy Jean suddenly opened her mouth, and it was clear that she wasn't asleep. Although her whole body was fatigued and now she was suddenly safe. But the thought of her dad being killed and eaten by zombies in front of her. Hang Yi Jin naturally wanted to become strong. If she was strong and could kill the zombies, then dad wouldn't die. It's just that there is no if in everything. And even if she cries harder now, dad can't come back. If she doesn't get stronger, the next time she loses, it might be her mom. Not every time she and her mom would be so lucky to get help. The night was late and quiet. Instead, the zombies started to move. After Yu Qing Liang roared those zombies away during the day, there was a doubt in her mind. She had originally thought that she was a war 5 scum. She hadn't thought that she would be able to scold the zombies for fear. But it was probably because the zombies didn't have much energy during the day. That's why they were yelled at by themselves to face the wall. So at night, when the moon was on the branches, Yu Qingliang found a group of zombies. She directly cursed at these zombies again. These zombies also just looked at her and then walked away. It wasn't like they gave her face at all like they did during the day. Yu Qingliang. It turned out that she was still battle scum. Although Yu Qingxiao felt that she still didn't have much combat power, she didn't care. How could she say that she was also a zombie? There was no need to kill zombies. Also, it was probably just because during the day today, that zombie had given herself more face. Thinking like this, Yu Qingliang then turned around and prepared to leave. Just as soon as she turned her head, she saw a zombie standing at the intersection. The zombie was staring straight at herself. This made Yu Qingxiao's back go a little cold. It was because the zombie gave her a feeling of danger. However, the zombie stared at her for a while before turning away. Its movements were not quite the same as those stiff zombies. It was like a normal ordinary person. It didn't stagger or walk around. Yu Qingliang knew full well that this zombie was definitely dangerous. But she still chased after it. What if it could communicate? Yu Qingxiao felt that even though she had turned into a zombie, she still had the inferiority of humans. For example, loving to get together and being nosy. Yu Qingxiao, this zombie, was not exempt from this even though this zombie was different from other zombies. But in terms of speed, Yu Qingxiao was still better. Yu Qingxiao caught up with it, and called out to it. You wait. Yu Qingxiao spoke, and the zombie stopped. She instantly understood that this zombie could understand her. Perhaps this was a tacit understanding between the zombies. When Yu Qingxiao saw it stop, she went around to its front. This zombie's face didn't look like any other zombie. He looked more like a dead person. There wasn't a single scar on his face. Of course, when Yu Qingliang looked at it, 
Its pair of eyes also looked at Yu Qingliang. It was just that those eyes were different from normal zombie eyes. It had dark red eyes. Sure enough, it was a different zombie. Even its eyes were different. Looking at its hair and dress, it should have been a high school student when it was alive. It was wearing a high school uniform. But now the uniform is stained with blood. I don't know if it's its own blood or someone else's blood. Or maybe it was left behind after preying on others. Yu Qingliang didn't make a move when she saw it staring at her. And the feeling that made her feel dangerous just now also disappeared. But if the humans didn't notice such a dangerous zombie and then lost their lives after being careless, then should she write a flyer to inform the humans? But this kind of words without knowing the source, even if it was posted at the gate of the survivor base, no one would believe it. And she didn't have that ability to post a note to someone's gate. Yu Qingliang felt that it really wasn't appropriate for her to go and ventilate the situation. So how about putting this mutated zombie in one of those iron dungeons? But there was definitely more than just this one mutated zombie in this world. If she locks this one up, but she can't lock up that many, and she would have to find them one by one, it would be too much of a waste of time. It would be best if she could communicate with these walkers. It was just unlikely. Not all zombies were like herself and didn't have to eat the flesh and blood of the living. It was like a person telling someone not to eat. Wouldn't that be starving the other person to death? It might be the other person's good temper if they didn't get beaten up. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang was ready to turn around and leave. Although it was said that the zombies had begun to advance, then the human aliens had also begun to advance. It was also not his turn to be in charge. Moreover, with this kind of powerful zombie attracting attention, then those powerful aberrants wouldn't be able to stare at themselves. And in a place with many zombies like that, those humans would be even more afraid to set foot in it. Wouldn't he be safer? As soon as he thought of this, Yu Qingliang grabbed the other's hand and shook it up and down. Do your best to become a big zombie. I'm optimistic about you. Yu Qingxiao cheered the other party on. The zombie that had already grown after only a month or so in the end times. As long as it was not killed by humans in the early stages, then it would become a powerful zombie. As long as it became more and more conspicuous, then it would look like an ordinary zombie itself. As soon as he thought that, Yu Qingxiao felt that it was quite good to have a few more evolved zombies. Yu Qingxiao also stopped caring about this high school zombie and turned around. Only after walking for a few hundred meters, Yu Qingxiao realized that the high school zombie was actually following her. It was just about 10 meters away from him. Not far but not close. When he stopped, it also stopped. This made Yu Qingxiao a little puzzled. It couldn't be that it was going to follow her and then wait for her to get careless and eat her, right? But was zombie meat really tasty? As Yu Qingxiao thought so, she just pulled her legs out and ran wildly. An ordinary zombie shouldn't be able to run away from her anyway. But she was careless. This upgraded zombie was originally a high school student in life. Or a high school boy. Its legs were almost up to her waist. Although there is an element of exaggeration. But this young man should have been over 1 meter 8 in life. Yu Qingliang was soon chased by this zombie. This gave Yu Qingxiao a headache. Just because he chased after it and took one more look. The two zombies have been accompanying each other ever since? What the hell? This was not a pet. This was a zombie. A man-eating zombie, or a zombie that had advanced. Maybe one day it will gnaw itself. Stop following me. Can you talk? Say something to hear? Yu Qingliang turned to look at this zombie. Let's just follow the zombie novels and call it a level 2 zombie. Thinking that it was already a level 2 zombie, it could at least communicate normally. After all, she could understand what the normal level 1 zombies were saying. Although the words spoken by those zombies were all words spoken by instinct. Not much use. The reason why Yu Qingxiao felt that this level 2 zombie could communicate with her was because when she told it to stand still, it did stand still. Therefore, Yu Qingxiao felt that this level 2 zombie should be able to communicate with himself. However, this level 2 zombie did not make a sound and just stared at Yu Qingxiao with its red eyes. This made Yu Qingxian somewhat helpless. However, she still went up and went to rummage through the pockets on this level 2 zombie. Since it was a high school student, it would be carrying its student card or something that could prove its identity in its pockets. Right? When Yu Qingliang wanted to touch it, this level 2 zombie reached out and blocked it. I'll look at your name. It's not like I'm going to strip you of your clothes. Yu Qingxiao had never thought that he was a social terrorist in his life. But after he turned into a zombie, he became a zombie social cow. Sure enough, the secondary level understood his words. As soon as Yu Qingxiao said that she was just looking for its name, it really put down its hand and let Yu Qingxiao search it. She fished out a student ID and a meal card from the jacket pocket of this level 2 zombie as well as a palm-sized notebook. It was all stained with blood, but it was good that the name was still visible. A sophomore in high school, named Toki Sungwoo. Sophomore? Just 16 or 17 years old. Not even underage. Yu Qingliang swept a glance towards his body, and there were no external injuries. 
meaning that it was the very first batch of zombies. What a lucky guy. He didn't even need to be bitten by a zombie to become a zombie in his sleep. Yu Qingliang finished reading its name and put the student ID back into its pocket. And at this time, the little star Yu zombie still didn't say anything. Still staring at Yu Qingxian. Only then did Yu Qingxian open his mouth. Your name is sure Xingyu. Your age should be 16 or 17. In any case, that's it. Well, I really have to go. Don't follow me. I'm not good to eat either. Go eat another zombie. After saying this, Yu Qingliang turned around and left. She walked a distance and looked back to make sure that the level 2 zombie didn't follow her. When she was out of the county, she made sure that the zombie called Shi Xingyu didn't follow her. Only then did she breathe a sigh of relief. Another hundred kilometers or so and she would be in Jie City. Yu Qingliang took the map and studied it again. She had traveled very fast these past few days. So according to the current speed, she should be able to reach Jie City in three days. Of course, if something strange didn't happen in the middle of the journey. For example, if she ran into the alien squad head-on, Yu Qingliang immediately threw this horrible thought out of her mind. If she really encountered the alter ego squad, that would really be the end of it. But this place was more than 50 kilometers away from the base, and it was nighttime, so she couldn't run into the people of the alien squad. Moreover, she had already left the base. Yu Qingliang chose a more popular highway, and she heard that if she went over from that place, she would also go over the lake. This highway was half on the lake and half under the water. And in the fall and winter, the forests on both sides of the lake took on a beautiful red and yellow color, reflecting beautifully in the lake. There are photos posted above. It is indeed very beautiful. It's just that the end times happened, causing all the creatures in the lake to mutate. Humans definitely didn't dare to go up there. Isn't this suitable for her? Making up her mind, she said she would go. This time, Yu Qingliang made preparations in advance. The first thing was to get a different camera. It had to be one with exceptionally good pixels. Even if she couldn't see the pictures, she still had to feel the atmosphere. There was also a need to prepare pretty clothes and a few pairs of shoes. She couldn't keep wearing these ordinary cloth shoes on her feet. They were all dirty. But thinking about it, she definitely had to pull a suitcase. Of course, it didn't have to be too big. Preferably a solar-charged suitcase that could walk on its own. That way you can still sit on it yourself. The sunlight in winter was good anyway. Yu Qingliang looked at the map and realized that there was a county next to her. So she turned a corner and went there. She went straight to the large shopping mall and went there. Although it was a county town, it had developed exceptionally well over the years. So this five-story large mall really gave Yu Qingliang a very selective opportunity. Even without the lights, it was indeed pitch black in the eyes of an ordinary person. But this did not affect Yu Qingliang at all. There were quite a few zombies in this mall. And there were no signs of humans having come. Things and everything were neatly placed on the shelves. She went towards the digital area first. Looking at this big shopping mall, Yu Qingxian had no idea that she had not only shopped at the supermarket and gone to the scenic spots, but now she was also shopping at the shopping plaza. In the past, it was really unthinkable. And after Yu Qingxian chose a prettier camera, she rummaged through her backpack. She actually had money. In addition to the insurance she received after her mom and dad passed away, she had saved up some money over the years. Only now, all of it had become waste paper. Yu Qingliang thought about it. So she took out her bank card and placed it on the counter. Then she found a few more rechargeable batteries and put them in her backpack. Her cell phone had been out of battery for a long time. This cell phone was actually many years old. It just had her chats with her mom and dad stored in it, as well as some group photos. Previously, she didn't think that she would suddenly meet the death of both of her parents. Nor did she think that the end times would happen. Although she also wanted to dump out all these chat records and videos and pictures for backup. But because she never wanted to go out. She always felt that tomorrow, so countless tomorrows let her waste three years, and was not willing to go out. The less she went out, the less she got in touch with people, the less she wanted to go out. It was just a vicious cycle. It couldn't be helped. Nowadays, no matter where you go, it's all people. Her social fear was no longer limited to the psychological. It had gotten so serious that it was physical. Now that her body had died after becoming a zombie, she wouldn't vomit or have a fever. Although psychologically there was still some fear of going to a crowd pile, but now her identity, Yu Qingliang was accepting it quite openly, but looking at many zombies, Yu Qingxiao did not feel that she was afraid of them. It was true that her social fear was really only for humans. Yu Qingxiao took her things and went to look for a suitcase. Sure enough, she found a suitcase. It was written on it that this suitcase could ride for 20 kilometers if it was fully charged. Yu Qingxiao thought it was really good. Then he put his things in the suitcase. This suitcase was solar powered, and even though it had no electricity right now, it only needed to be placed in the sun for an hour to activate the writing mode. 
The weight capacity was 200 kilograms. Yu Qingliang dragged the suitcase towards the clothing store. She all chose thinner skirts. Sure enough it was still the smaller skirts that suited her better. She wasn't afraid of the cold anyway. Yu Qingxiao happened to pass by a supermarket and was going to take a look at the masks. And while passing by the household goods section, she stopped. She looked at the sanitary napkins stacked all over the shelves and fell into deep thought. Most of the alien squad were men. And they usually looked for food or medicine or something like that. So the women in those bases, did they have shifter squads of their own? That sort of thing was a necessity for women, right? She stood for a moment though, before pulling her suitcase and turning to leave. She was a zombie. She couldn't help the humans. Yu Qingliang found the masks, took quite a few more and put them in the suitcase and backpack. Only then did she turn around and leave. Just before she stepped out of the supermarket door, she turned back, finding cardboard boxes, loading sanitary napkins, and then taking tape to seal the boxes. Just so one box by one box thrown downstairs, and then moved out of the supermarket one box at a time. She looked around, if this box by box to the curb to move, she did not know how long she can move. The good thing is that there are indeed a lot of cars parked on the side of the road, but the sedans couldn't hold much. There are trucks, but she doesn't know how to drive them. Forget it, there's always something to try. So Yu Qingliang went around pulling car doors. Finally she was able to pull open the door of a van. Even the car keys were in the car. Just who the owner of the car was, Yu Qingxiao didn't know, but she climbed straight into the car and tried to start it. It was good that the car seemed to be ready to haul cargo, and the car's gas was still full. Just as she had just sat in the driver's seat, Yu Qingxiao's mind recalled when she had just started her driver's license test 10 years ago. Although it was her mom who accompanied her, Yu Qingxiao did not want to try a second time. She tried to start the car. After familiarizing herself with it, it wasn't too difficult. She drove the car to the main entrance of the supermarket, moved all those cardboard boxes up, but there was still a lot of space left in the car. Yu Qingliang made many more trips to the supermarket. It wasn't until noon the next day that she filled the van. It was full of food and supplies. It shouldn't be a problem to drive outside the base and stop and run. Yu Qingliang simulated the running plan in her own mind a few times before she put her suitcase on the passenger seat and drove in the direction of the official base. At this point in time, there shouldn't be any people to meet, right? Yu Qingliang looked at how close the distance to the official base turned out to be. She hadn't thought that she was only three hours away from the base by car. And as she stopped the car, she saw vehicles traveling over in the distance. Yu Qingxiao immediately pressed the truck's horn, then opened the door and ran with her suitcase. In short, her purpose was achieved. Whoever saw this vehicle would look at what was in it. Yu Qingxiao dragged her suitcase and leapt towards the house next to her. She only hoped that her rough movements wouldn't break her suitcase. Gu Evening Ching was indeed an official person, coupled with her supernatural abilities and some secrets she couldn't tell. She became the governor overseeing the various official bases, other than being responsible for helping to kill zombies and finding supplies. The rest of the time was indeed free, and she just returned to the base from the border this time, preparing to investigate the body of the girl she had buried before. When she came back the day before yesterday, she passed by there. As a result, the whole grave was plowed open, and the bouquet of flowers was gone. Of course, along with it, there was also the corpse. Could it be that the body was necrophiliacized? It was indeed possible. If she remembered correctly, there was indeed a big crack on the face of that corpse. A lot of zombies had this crack. Perhaps the corpse had really come to life and turned into a zombie. There was no way for her to go further into the city, so she could only look around. And there were no zombies that looked familiar to her. Sister Haru, there's a truck in front of us and it's honking its horn. Should we go down and take a look? The teenager inquired. If he was not mistaken, it seemed that a person got down from the driver's side and ran into the town. Well, go over and take a look. Gu Evening Chang looked back at the truck on the road in front of her. The car stopped at the side of the truck. The driver's door was still open, and the car key hadn't been pulled out. But there was no one. Gu Evening Chang sat on the passenger side and glanced at the car next door before opening the door and getting out. Sister Chang, be careful. What if there's something else in this car? The teenager also drove down and followed Gu Evening Chang's footsteps. On the contrary, the man sitting in the back seat didn't get out of the car, still sitting in the back seat with his eyes closed. Gu Evening Ching didn't care about this man either. It was just someone the higher ups had asked her to protect, but it wasn't like she could stay in a fixed place. Naturally, she could only take the man with her everywhere. It was good that this man looked bad to contact, but was quite good to talk to. What to give, what to eat. Let live there to live there. Not too pretentious. The man's name was Pei Yuan, the son of Gu Evening Ching's boss's boss. He grew up weak and sickly, and his parents felt that no one else had the ability to protect their son's safety, so they could only let Gu Evening Ching come. 
Gu Evening Ching is the first psychic in the whole of China. It wasn't because of the end times. She awakened her psychic abilities three years ago. It was also because of this that Pei Yuan was assigned to her for protection, the teenager who followed her. On the other hand, was a kid who entered the lab afterward. For three years, both of them were in a lab. The end times suddenly came, the lab collapsed, and she and this child were able to be liberated. When Qing Sheng, the teenager, carefully opened the back bucket door of the van, he froze when he saw an entire truckload of supplies. Sister Cheng, it's supplies, it's all a load of supplies. When Qing Sheng was astonished, who could get such a large cart of supplies to give away in the end times? It was completely a living Buddha. Gu Evening Ching also looked at the supplies and realized that they were all female items and food, immediately understanding who the things in this van were for. I'll drive the van back. You drive and follow. I probably understand the other party's intentions, Gu Evening Ching said. After saying this, she called out to Tsatsi. The big black dog then got into the van's passenger side, and she sat in it as well. When Qing Sheng didn't object, so he went straight back to his car and started it to follow the van. At this point, Gu Evening Ching could probably figure out if the person who sent a truckload of supplies to this base was a man or a woman. It wasn't that men couldn't think of something like sanitary napkins, and the fact that there were quite a few things like warming patches showed that the other party was indeed a careful girl. But why did the other party throw down the car and supplies and run away? This was something Gu Wanqing really couldn't figure out. It was just a matter of not thinking about it. Yu Qinglian watched the two cars leave from the third floor in the distance, especially the two familiar people that came down from the car. It was a bit relieved. Although Yu Qingxiao was also curious as to why he could meet this Gu Evening Qing everywhere he went. But with this load of supplies in Gu Evening Qing's hands, Yu Qingxiao felt that she could handle it properly. It was just that she was a little girl, running around all day long. Was she really not scared at all? Yu Qingxiao was really convinced of these people. Not only did they have this energy to run around in the post-apocalyptic world, but they could also keep pets. She felt that this Gu Evening Ching was really capable. If she wanted to raise a zombie, wouldn't she be able to afford it as well? It wasn't so much as feeding a living person, but live chickens, cows, goats, or whatever. It should be possible. Anyway, zombies eat all living things. Thinking about this, Yu Qingliang thought that he should go check out a farm or something. Were there still these live animals now? There should be. Gu Evening Ching's big black dog should be a mutated animal. Mutated animals were aggressive. Of course, it was still humans that attacked. As soon as she thought of this, Yu Qingxiao bowed her hands together again for the humans. She then walked around a piece of heaven and earth and walked up a country road, placing the suitcase on the ground. She checked it properly, making sure that it wasn't damaged, and then she breathed a sigh of relief in her heart. She checked the power level and found that she could activate the writing mode. Yu Qingliang naturally rode on without hesitation. The lever could be turned into a steering wheel that controlled the direction. Just like driving a small car. This could make Yu Qingxiao happy. In the past, I watched many travel bloggers ride luggage. Yu Qingxiao also held the suitcase with one hand and raised it high with one hand, then happily let out a returning oh oh sound. Ever since her mom and dad died, Yu Qingxiao was rarely as happy as she was now. Just when she heard the sound of a car, she was so scared that she rolled up from the suitcase, dragged it and broke into the village. The pleasure was so short-lived, and it was only when she ducked into the village that she smelled the aroma. There were actually living people in this little village, but it was also, it was only a kilometer or two away from the base, and all the zombies around it had been killed, and probably a few kilometers or a dozen kilometers away. There were monitoring stations, not for detecting survivors, of course, rather, it was for detecting the zombies. If the movements of the zombies are not known in advance, then this base is not safe. Only by grasping the movements of the zombies in advance could the survivors be better protected. It was likely that there were monitoring squads around the several cities surrounding this official base, and they are using walkie-talkies with super long airwaves. It can be notified in advance. The general movement speed of the zombie tide would not be too fast. A distance of 1 to 20 kilometers would be enough for the entire base to make adequate preparations. If it was that kind of tens of thousands of zombies, naturally it was necessary to activate thermal weapons. If it was more than a hundred thousand, then it would choose to retreat. Therefore, the official walls of the base under construction became the primary focus. Of course, these were all just Yu Qingliang's guesses. As for the specifics, one would have to wait for the actual base to be built to know. Yu Qingxiao sniffed towards the place where the smell was drifting from. There were quite a few people living in this small village. There were at least 20 or more. Of course, what Yu Qingxiao cared about right now was not those humans, but the caravan traveling over. The caravan stopped in the village. This made Yu Qingxiao startled. Done and done running into someone's lair. Just now, her ghostly screams wouldn't be heard. Yu Qingxiao was at the end of the village, 
The place where those people live seemed to be at the head of the village. After all, there was a river behind the end of the village, so naturally, they couldn't live by the river. But in this village, instead, it was the dozen or so families at the end of the village that seemed to be richer, all of them constructing large three and a half story villas. Of course, the head of the village wasn't bad either. Yu Qingliang put his suitcase by the door before going upstairs to take a look. At this time, all the things that could be used in the building had been moved away. Indeed, compared to going to a place full of zombies to look for supplies, ordinary people would naturally prioritize a safe place with fewer zombies. And Yu Qingliang climbed up to the top of the three and a half story villa and sneakily looked ahead. She could see smoke coming out of the house in front of her. It was obviously cooking dinner. Having dinner was a good time for her to run away. So Yu Qingxiao immediately went downstairs, carried her suitcase, opened the courtyard gate, carried the suitcase and ran. After all, the suitcase dragging on the ground would make a sound. This ordinary person is not even a problem. In case there was an alien, the body of an alien was further strengthened. Sight and hearing were further advanced. It was natural to be afraid that the alter ego would hear it. And in the village, a little girl's head poked towards the courtyard entrance. The captain who had just closed the team was a bit puzzled when he saw his team member poking out. What's wrong? Hear something? Well, I did hear it, but the other side doesn't have a heartbeat. It should be a zombie. The little girl opened her mouth. She was a mutant, and it was completely different from a shifter. A mutant was the ability to strengthen a certain part of the body. For example, eyesight and hearing or strength as well as speed. This was an ability that was dependent on the human body and could not be externalized like a psychic ability. She, on the other hand, was an auditory mutant. Of course, this auditory mutation was not the ability to hear the sound of a needle dropping a few kilometers away, but all the vibrations due to sound within a kilometer. She could hear, like someone's heartbeat, or the sound of a foot on the ground. It was also because of this that allowed the little girl to survive before joining the alien squad. Footsteps with a heartbeat were people, and these footsteps were regular, and footsteps without a heartbeat were zombies, and these footsteps were disorganized. Of course, other sounds were naturally easy to hear. Walkers? Impossible. The zombies within a 10 kilometer radius of here have already been cleared out by the army. And this place is just less than 2 kilometers away from the base. How could there be zombies? When the captain heard the little girl's words, he immediately retorted, but felt that Wan Xing's words shouldn't be false. That's what I thought too. But this sound is indeed human footsteps. But there's no heartbeat and it's not like a zombie cluttering up the place. And it's getting farther and farther away from us. Ruan Xing withdrew his head and continued. In other words, even if that was a zombie, it wasn't harmful to them. Forget it, let's wait until we get closer. There's only one. It's not enough. Let's eat dinner first. The man opened his mouth. In the post-apocalyptic world, eating was the serious thing. Who knew if we would still be able to eat tomorrow? Living today was the most important thing. And as soon as the man's words fell, Ruan Xing's ears were devoid of the other party's voice. Obviously. The other party had already left the range of less than a kilometer. The speed was quite fast. Just whether this was a human, or a zombie? Forget it, it was unlikely that he would encounter it again anyway. So let's just pretend it never happened. It's better to eat dinner first. Yu Qingliang was relieved to see that the alien squad didn't catch up. Coupled with the fact that it would soon be dark, Yu Qingliang's entire body relaxed. After all, once night came, all humans would stop moving. The night belonged to the zombies. But Yu Qingliang didn't need to sleep. So naturally, he walked all night long. And when it came to the latter part of the night, Yu Qingxiao felt that the sky was even darker. There were no stars to be seen either. Speaking of which, the sky had been filled with dark clouds since it started to get dark. Could it be that it was going to start snowing? Indeed, it was already the end of December. The second year soon, the weather that should have gotten colder hadn't gotten colder. Of course, this was how Yu Qingliang felt when he was alive. But looking at what those survivors were wearing, it should still be a hot day. Maybe it was okay to have snow. Just would snow in the end time sound so aesthetically pleasing? The rain, snow, wind and frost of the post-apocalyptic world were all deadly. It's just that this snow said it would fall. Yu Qingliang had just withdrawn his eyes when he felt something fall. Piece after piece. It was small at first. But after that, the snowflakes looked like they had been pinched into a circle and slapped flat. One snowflake was as big as a palm. The sound could even be heard when it fell on the ground. According to this kind of big snowflake, it was estimated that it wouldn't even take a night. In less than an hour, the entire world would turn white. But there was no place to hide from the snow in her neighborhood. Hopefully the snow won't fall too much. Although it was true that she didn't feel cold, Yu Qingxiao still planned to go find a down jacket to wear. It would be good to cover up her identity as a zombie when it snowed. As long as she wrapped her head body and arms and legs, 
and wear a windproof goggles, no one would be able to recognize that she was a zombie. But with things like talking, she spoke as if humans really couldn't understand her. But she clearly understood what she was saying and what the walkers were saying. Why can't humans understand? Surely it was still because the body had lost its vitality and the vocal cords had gone wrong, right? But obviously in those post-apocalyptic novels, zombies can also talk. Damn it. Why wasn't she so lucky? Thinking so, Yu Qingliang still walked forward. It was not until dawn that Yu Qingxian saw a small town. According to her speed, she should have gotten out of the radius of the base, because Yu Qingxiao started to see zombies. Being able to see zombies meant that it was already 20 kilometers away from the range of the base. Yu Qingliang finally found a suitable place to rest at dawn. There was also a clothing store in the town. Because it was very hot before, naturally no one wanted the down jackets in this clothing store. Adding to the fact that it was November and February, the clothing store also hung up the down jackets. Just who knows suddenly changed the weather. Yu Qingliang found a beautiful down jacket to wear. Although she couldn't feel any temperature, Yu Qingxiao still went to take a look in the mirror. Well, not bad not bad. It was kinda pretty. She turned her head and saw a zombie dude walking over with a head full of snow. So she opened her mouth and asked. This down jacket is not bad. Right. Do you want to wear one? Only that zombie dude took a glance towards the clothing store and walked away with a heavy pace through the snow again. Yu Qingliang looked at the skirt under her down jacket and changed to another longer down jacket. This time, it covered up to the calf belly, revealing the lace of the flower skirt. Yu Qingxian was still stinky and turned around in the mirror. When she turned her head, she met up with a pair of red eyes again. Yu Qingxiao also did not expect that that brat Xiu Xingyu had been following her. This made Yu Qingxiao a little helpless. They just weren't corpses on the same path. How could they follow her? She didn't eat people. Yu Qingxian was a little helpless. Come in and sit. What Yu Qingxiao wanted in his head was to just close down the roll-up door of the clothing store, regardless of this teenage zombie. But it just stood in the doorway all alone, with the rustling snow behind it, making this teenage zombie look more and more lonely. This kid wouldn't have no mom or dad, right? Oh, I forgot. Her own mom and dad are dead. She doesn't have a mom and dad either. Yu Qingliang's words fell. And that's when Xing Yu walked in and sat down on a chair. It turns out that zombies can also sit. She thought that the zombies' joints were like rusty iron. There was no way to bend them. And movements like sitting down and squatting could not be done. But when she thought that if the zombies really can't move their joints, then how can they walk and run? And even tear the limbs off of people. Enough to show that in fact their hands and feet and strength must have been strengthened. After all, an ordinary person wouldn't have the ability to tear a human alive. But Yu Qingliang didn't trust a level 2 zombie. And it was still a level 2 zombie with a brain. It might just chew itself up one day. Yu Qingxiao put on a pair of furry stockings and snow boots. It was a good thing that this clothing store did prepare a lot. After Yu Qingxiao put them on, she then looked at Xu Xingyu. And it was still sitting in that place. Only its eyes kept staring at her. This made Yu Qingxian somewhat helpless. Xu Xingyu was still wearing that thin school uniform. But the blood stains on his body didn't seem to have increased. In other words, Xu Xingyu hadn't eaten anyone else all this time. Sure enough, he thought that he could upgrade faster by eating himself. Damn it. She wasn't targeted by humans, but by zombies first. That's not true. She was targeted by humans a long time ago. That little baseball bat girl. It's hard to be a human, but it's hard to be a zombie wandering around. Is there any justice in this world? It's all over now. I'd better dig a hole and lie down. And don't go traveling. Yu Qingliang was originally a negative person. Originally, he thought that if he became a zombie, there would be no more pain. He didn't need to struggle to stay alive. How did he know that he was still conscious? The courage that was so hard to muster up. Now suddenly all of it was unloaded. Ah, I want to die. Yu Qingliang's negative thoughts instantly surged to his heart. However, after sighing, Yu Qingxian picked herself up again. Although she, as a person, wanted to die. Since she wanted to do something, she definitely had to finish it before she could die. As for why Yu Qingliang was willing to be scratched by a zombie and turn into a zombie. It was also because of the end of the world. The novel she wrote didn't need to be updated. And with her social fear, there was no way to survive in the end of the world. If you want to live in the post-apocalyptic world, you have to cooperate with others. Can you talk or not? Yu Qingliang was afraid that in case someone came to this town looking for something, so this town couldn't stay. But with this appearance, Xu Xingyu was a zombie at first glance. If it wasn't packaged, anyone who was a human could tell that it was a zombie. There was no other way. Yu Qingliang could only pack Xu Xingyu a bit. He put a down jacket on him and put on a mask, hat and glasses. Only then did he say, this town is a bit close to the base. We have to go. You do have the ability to defend yourself. But I don't. After saying that, 
Yu Qingxiao carried his suitcase and walked out. Now that it was snowing so heavily, there was no way to use the suitcase. It was really the heavens that were against her. She had only ridden for three minutes. Shi Xingyu was obedient, and although he didn't open his mouth, he obediently followed Yu Qingxian. It was just that it was a proper zombie in the end, and it looked a bit clumsy in its long down coat. When it took a few steps, it had to trip a little. But Yu Qingxiao didn't care about it and continued to walk forward. But now the snow was almost past Yu Qingxiao's calves, and the snow still had no sign of stopping. It was a bit difficult to walk further. But after half an hour, Shi Xingyu's speed picked up. In the end, it was still long legs. Looking at Shi Xingyu who was gradually walking in front of her, Yu Qingxiao suddenly stopped. She turned her head to look around, then drilled into a store to find a rope, then tied it to her suitcase, then reached out and circled Shi Xingyu's waist, tying the other end of the rope to Shi Xingyu's waist. It's okay. Yu Qingxiao felt that Shi Xingyu was struggling, so she opened her mouth to tell him to be quiet. After she tied it and sat on the luggage, he then said, Keep walking, go out of the town first, I'll give you directions. Shi Xingyu was obedient, like a big snow white dog pulling a sled. He went in the direction Yu Qingliang pointed, turning into a zombie. His physical strength had already surpassed that of a human. Dragging a suitcase of less than 10 pounds plus a 90 pound Yu Qingxiao did not affect his pace at all. It was even much faster than Yu Qingxiao walking by himself. However, Yu Qingxiao thought about it. If she was sitting in a suitcase and letting a zombie drag her around, was it still considered hiking? All in all, with the addition of this old cow, sometimes starry eyes, Yu Qingxiao's progress was much faster. In only half a day's time, Yu Qingxiao was sitting on the suitcase and saw the lake with a stunning view. Although it wasn't full of red leaves and autumn colors, it was a completely different view. There was only a white color in this heaven and earth. The water was frozen and the banks were snow white. Even the highway in the middle was covered tightly with snow. But it was good because there was a tall street lamp on the side of the highway, allowing Yu Qingliang to know where the road surface was and where the lake surface was. A zombie who didn't want to talk and a zombie who was socially terrified seemed unusually quiet in this world. As the two zombies stepped onto the highway that crossed the lake, the sky swung down again as the wind swept down and swirled large flakes of snow down. Yu Qingliang spread out the umbrella that was originally blocking the sun and blocked the snow that fell on him. As for Shi Xingyu, Yu Qingxian didn't care. It was just a zombie that couldn't speak. And Shi Xingyu didn't seem to care about the snow piled up on top of his head, just going straight ahead. Yu Qingxiao looked at the scenery around him and suddenly spoke. Stop. Shi Xingyu was like a robot, stopping when he said so. Yu Qingxiao took the camera while thinking about Shi Xingyu. One would definitely not allow it to eat people. But how long could a zombie live if it didn't eat blood and flesh? Yu Qingxiao didn't know. Although he had read novels that had three months, half a year, one year, three years or even ten years. Shi Xingyu just stood on the side, watching Yu Qingxian take pictures here and there. Then Yu Qingxian turned to Shi Xingyu. Reaching out, he ripped off the tiredness from his face. Although the skin wasn't living, it was obvious that it was good looking in life. Speaking of which, when she was in high school, she cowered in her seat. Growing up, she knew up to six classmates in the front and back seats. When she went to college, she didn't live on campus, so she didn't really have any friends. And Yu Qingxiao also felt that she didn't need any friends. To this day, Yu Qingxiao felt the same way. That's why she could nestle in her house alone for three years, or she could arbitrarily choose to die. Even more so, she could travel without any attachment after turning into a zombie. But what about Shi Xingyu? What kind of person was he in life? Yu Qingliang had never wanted to understand anyone, nor did he want to be understood by anyone. But this zombie was following him, which made Yu Qingxiao somewhat unknowable. There was nothing special about himself, so why would a level 2 zombie follow him? It was actually considered a relatively powerful zombie in the zombie group, right? At least the kind that could be a dominant party. Yu Qingliang took a few more pictures of it. If the zombies really became extinct in the future, these pictures that he took would probably become display pictures in textbooks. It was a pity that Shi Xingyu just stared at her blankly and didn't know how to smile. Well, to a zombie, she couldn't have such high expectations. Putting away the camera, Yu Qingliang sat back down on the luggage again. Let's go. Crossing the lake on the highway, Shi Xingyu really Yu Qingxian did not let it stop. It just kept going forward. Though the entire corpse was instantly dragged by Shi Xingyu to break into the snow. She could not feel the temperature of the snow. Nor would she feel suffocated after being buried in the snow. Because she was actually already a dead person. Wasn't it that Shi Xingyu was like this as well? That's why he had no qualms about breaking into the snow-filled underground access road. There weren't any vehicles encountered on the road. After all, this road was originally built for sightseeing and was not suitable for escape. After stepping out of the place piled with snow, the front suddenly lit up. Because this was a highway for sightseeing, 
Not only the above ground highway could be used for sightseeing, the underground one can as well. The walls on both sides were bordered by super transparent special glass. It doesn't affect the view, and it's not afraid of the water pressure crushing and crumbling the walls. Even in this suddenly cold weather, it is still well fixed underground. It's just that the water is very muddy nowadays. Occasionally a few fish swam by, and their bodies were tattered. It even grew sharp teeth, although the fish was nothing to look at. Since it was a tourist, it couldn't be like a mission accomplished. Stop. Yu Qingliang spoke again. Although it said that it couldn't be like a mission, it did seem like a mission to this zombie. Sure Xingyu, forget it, when it got bored, it would leave on its own, or when it got hungry, it would go look for food. Yu Qingliang walked over to the glass wall and carefully looked at those zombie fish under the water. Even though the scales on these fish had fallen off and even exposed their bones, it was another kind of elegance in Yu Qingliang's eyes. It was just that it was indeed a bit of a pity that he didn't get to see the maple leaf lake in the fall. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao suddenly spoke. Let's wait for next year's fall and do it again. It was indeed a bit of a pity that he didn't see it this year. Good. She heard a slightly hoarse voice. This caused Yu Qingxiao to freeze, and then reacted to the fact that the one who answered her words was Shi Xingyu. She inclined her head to look at Shi Xingyu next to her. Seeing that Shi Xingyu was finally not staring at herself, but rather looking at the zombie fish that were swimming by, Yu Qingyu seemed to have some realization. Was this child, in life, just like herself, who had never been anywhere? But that sentence she just said was just her own exclamation. Sociopathic people were sociopathic, but that didn't mean they weren't talkative. When she was alone, her words were dense. Yo, even role plays when she's writing a novel. So there's no such thing as not being talkative. It's just that she doesn't love to talk to people. And Shi Xingyu had never struck up a conversation with herself. Just a simple word was enough to shock Yu Qingxiao. But on second thought, if two zombies talked, in other eyes was it a burst against Ho Ho Ho? Yu Qingliang felt that image was weird just by thinking about it. So you can talk. Yu Qingliang said. In the past, he froze and didn't say a word after he talked to him so much. So Yu Qingxiao took Shi Xingyu as a second grade zombie with no humanity. At this moment, Shi Xingyu had become a sawed off muffled gourd again and didn't say a word. Yu Qingxiao didn't expect him to say anything else. Taking out his camera, he took a few pictures, then pointed to a place. Stand over there, I'll take two pictures of you. This stuffy gourd was truly unrivaled in the aspect of obedience. No, it was no corpse that could beat it. Watching him obediently stand over, Yu Qingliang helped him take a few more shots. There were even compositions. Even when he turned into a zombie, Shi Xingyu was one of those particularly good-looking zombies. It didn't have that repulsive face of those zombies. A little boy like this must have been very popular when he was alive, right? But now, it must be feared by everyone. After taking the picture, Yu Qingliang commanded this old cow to continue onward again, passing through the underground glass stack. Shi Xingyu dragged Yu Qingxiao up to the ground again. Although a few abandoned cars could be seen, there were no zombies in sight, and certainly no living people, and the snow outside was piling up thicker and thicker. Yu Qingxian had lived for 28 years, and it was the first time he had seen such a large amount of snow. Although when she was a child in her hometown, she had also seen snow that was as deep as her calf. Now this snow is almost a meter deep. She sat on the suitcase, only exposed a head outside the snow. But this snow was completely unobstructive to Shi Xingyu. He was like a natural snowplow, pushing out a narrow path directly. This caused some uneasiness to rise in Yu Qingliang's heart. However, Yu Qingxiao was only uneasy for a few minutes before he was at peace again. The big deal was that if he was hungry in the future, then he would begrudgingly go and catch a few live chickens and ducks for him. And arriving at J City was in the morning of the fourth day. Although the snow had stopped by now, but the depth of the snow was almost more than Yu Qingxiao's height. If she walked into the snow, she might not even be able to see her. And where the ancient city was located, it would not have snowed too much in the first place. Now that it was snowing so thickly, many of the ancient buildings had already been collapsed by the snow. Naturally, you can't feel any scenery of the ancient town. There were only crumbling ruins that had been crushed by the snow. Yu Qinglian knew that he really could not see the elegance of the ancient town. In his heart, he felt a bit regretful. Perhaps if she had come a few days earlier, she would have been able to see it. Perhaps she would have traveled a little faster. But this kind of thought, Yu Qingxiao only flashed for a moment. There were some landscapes that were lucky to be able to see. And if you couldn't see them, you could only let nature take its course. After all, she still wanted to see the dinosaurs of the dinosaur era. Yu Qingxiao untied the rope from Shi Xingyu's body, then dragged her suitcase through the snow and walked towards the house. As a result, after taking a few steps, she collided head-on with a walker. Right oh, it's been a few days since she's seen any zombies. She'd forgotten that there must be a lot of people in J City. 
And then there are a lot of zombies as well. So bumping into a zombie head on was nothing. Yu Qingliang looked at this zombie that didn't even avoid. She could only step back and let this zombie pass. How rude. Just as Yu Qingxiao gave way to this zombie, Shi Xingyu directly rushed up, choked this zombie's neck, and smashed its head with a slap. A crystal core was then pulled out from its head. The crystal core was not big, just like a glass bead. And this series of actions happened in an instant. After watching this zombie that had lost half of its head fall to the ground, Yu Qingliang felt that Shi Xingyu was even more rude, coming up and lifting someone's skull. Then Yu Qingliang watched as Shi Xingyu swallowed this crystal core directly. This kid didn't know to wash it in the snow. He just ate it directly, really not being polite at all. But watching Shi Xingyu's actions, Yu Qingxiang covered her head. There wouldn't be a super powerful crystal core in her head as well, right? This time Xingyu was going to fatten herself up and eat it? And Shi Xingyu's eyes stared at Yu Qingxian again. Seeing Yu Qingxian dragging his suitcase and taking two steps back, his red eyes flashed with a flash of doubt. It seemed to understand something again. The little spoken Shi Xingyu finally spoke. You didn't. Three words caused a bunch of question marks to pop up on Yu Qingxiao's head. I don't have what? I don't have a crystal core? Oh ha. Huh. That's really great. Her brain was healthy and didn't have a tumor. But since she didn't have a crystal core in her brain, what was Xingyu doing following her at this point? It couldn't be to form a tour group with her. Could it? What's this nonsense? Yu Qingliang didn't care about Shi Xingyu and went towards the tall building. Although Jay City was an ancient city, on the other side, it was indeed a modernized city, separated by a thousand-year-old city wall. On one side was a modernized city, and on the other side was a thousand-year-old city. Yu Qingxiao climbed up to the hotel with his suitcase and chose a room with a good view to stay. And Shi Xingyu didn't follow. It should have gone to look for zombies to get crystal cores. Yu Qingxiao didn't care about him either. Killing a few more zombies then might be able to save two more people. So as long as he didn't kill himself, Yu Qingxiao encouraged Shi Xingyu to go for a big kill. At least for now. Yu Qingxiao knew that Shi Xingyu wouldn't kill himself. Yu Qingxiao put the suitcase down, then walked to the balcony and took a shot in the direction of the ancient city with his camera. When it was almost done, Yu Qingxiao then went back to his room. Just like a living person, he went to look at the bathroom and tested the water. There wasn't a single drop of water. Yu Qingxiao waited for a while to make sure that there was indeed no water. The province she lived in was originally on the southern side, and never had such heavy snowfalls, nor did it have the facilities to deal with freezing. It was estimated that the water pipes had long been frozen. So Yu Qingliang went and brought up a few buckets of snow and put them in the bathtub, burying himself in the snow. Until half an hour later, the snow still didn't have the slightest trace of melting. Yu Qingxiao, I'm such a cold corpse. Three hours later, Yu Qingxian finally climbed out of the snow, changing into clean clothes then as it got dark. Yu Qingxiao laid down on her bed. It seemed like it had been a long time since she had slept, although it was true that she didn't need to sleep. No one would want to stand all night. Lying down for a night was also fine. It was true that Yu Qingliang didn't need to sleep, but she wasn't like other zombies. She could indeed fall asleep, and it was a deep sleep, like she didn't even feel it when Shi Xingyu walked into her room. When Shi Xingyu stood at Yu Qingxian's bed, those red eyes just kept staring at Yu Qingxian who was sleeping quietly on the bed. His eyes then turned to the window, looking at the bright light that gradually appeared in the sky. He walked over to the floor-to-ceiling window and reached out to grab the curtains, blocking out all of the white snow and the bright light from the sky. He then lifted a chair and just sat down at the end of the bed, looking towards the entrance of the room. Unlike the quiet stare at Yu Qingliang, his eyes staring at the doorway carried a hint of wariness. When he was collecting the crystal cores, he discovered that there was also a powerful zombie in this urban area. In that mall, there were piles of zombie and human corpses. There were even the corpses of two Xenos, a zombie that even a psychic couldn't kill. It must be very strong. The level, it seemed, was similar to his own. But looking at the style of this zombie, it seemed to be heading towards the direction of beast brutalization and hadn't evolved much intelligence. As long as the alien used a little bit of brain, he could also strangle this zombie. But in the end, it was the same kind. Shi Xingyu naturally hoped that the stronger his kind was, the better. He no longer had the memories from when he was a human and didn't care if he had a name or not. When he noticed this zombie, he just mistook the other party for a human. It was really because she was so weak that she couldn't even reach the energy of a normal zombie. So at that time, he turned around and left without hesitation. But how could he not have thought that this little zombie, who was so weak that she could fall to her death if she dropped a heel, would dare to stop him, pulling out the things in his pockets. So he had a name. So he was once human. Timothy followed her, watching a zombie give something to a human, and laughing a little hilariously at her riding a suitcase. At the sound of a human moving, it scowled and ran like a mouse that had met a cat. 
He had never seen a walker like that before. If he left her alone, a zombie as weak as her would be killed by humans one day, right? Maybe killed by her own kind, like that zombie in this town. It just killed both zombies and humans. Naturally, it didn't distinguish between enemy and self. Thinking about this, Shi Xingyu felt that he was also like this. In order to be strong, in order to get more blood and flesh, he was also slaughtering his kind. Thinking of this, Shi Xingyu's eyes calmed down, but just a slight sound made him stare at the door of the room again. Yu Qingliang was woken up by the noise. When she opened her eyes to see it wasn't the roof, it was the sky. Ma yeah, what is this situation? She was just sleeping. How come the roof was demolished? All around her were falling rocks. Only the bed didn't even have a small stone. The front was indeed a complete wall. While she couldn't help but look back, then she saw a large hole appear behind her, running through a dozen or so rooms. Yu Qingxia knew even if she was a fool that this was what had happened. There must have been a fight during the time she was asleep, and this wall behind him had obviously been knocked out. Yu Qingxia immediately lifted the cold air bubbling under the covers, put on his down jacket and snow boots, climbed over that big hole to see what was going on, and there were zombies in the other rooms. Only most of these zombies were in a state of disrepair. There were broken arms and legs but they could still move. Some were headless. This was really dead. Yu Qingliang climbed to the last room and finally saw the two zombies that had lifted the roof of her room. One was Shi Xingyu, and the other. Yu Qingliang did not recognize it. These two zombies' frontal combat power felt about the same, but it was much stronger than her, or even the humans she had seen. It seemed that Shi Xingyu wasn't a level 2 zombie. It should be level 3 or above. It was her own small family. Being able to understand what one said was not something a level 2 zombie could do. After all, a level 2 zombie could only do fast running and climb some low fences. For example, a 2 meter fence like that in the countryside shouldn't be difficult for a level 2 zombie. So the ones that could communicate with her like Shi Xingyu were probably level 3 or above. It's only been over a month since the end of the world. There were two big zombies that were this powerful. The future of mankind can be said to be dark. Fortunately, she was a zombie. At this time, Shi Xingyu was held down by the zombie on the wall, because this was the outermost wall. It was also the thickest. It was only then that Shi Xingyu didn't smash through the wall. It turned out that such a long wall was smashed by this kid. Not very old. Quite a hard back. But this repulsive looking zombie uncle, bullying a 16 or 17 year old little zombie. Isn't it a bit unethical? Seeing Yu Qingliang actually coming towards this zombie, Shi Xingyu wanted to open his mouth to tell her to run. Originally, he thought that this zombie was just reckless but he didn't think that it had even mutated and possessed a power mutation. Fortunately, the zombie that was smashed was himself. If it was Yu Qingliang, he would have become a pile of mud. But before his words came out of his mouth, the power mutated zombie was ripped by Yu Qingxiao's back collar and thrown out directly. Are you sick? He's not a human. He's also a zombie. What are you doing hitting him? High school students already have heavy schoolwork. How pitiful. After turning into a zombie you finally don't have to study. And you're still using him as a sandbag. If you have the ability you can lift up this building and throw it out. Just know how to bully the weak. So shameless. Yu Qingliang pointed at this uncle zombie and cursed. Shi Xingyu was her old bull. If his back broke, where would she find such an obedient zombie? As for this mutated zombie, after being thrown to the ground by Yu Qingxiao and being scolded by her pointing at its head, the entire zombie knelt on the ground and seemed to be trembling. A look of wanting to run but not daring to. It could only hold its head ho-ho and try to speak. Don't you say anything? I don't want to talk to a savage zombie. Yu Qingliang was really pissed off at this time. He had managed to choose a room to sleep in and was ruined. The zombie that he found to pull the suitcase was almost killed by it. So this savage zombie shut up. And Shi Xingyu, who was protected by Yu Qingxian, looked at Yu Qingxian with completely changed eyes at this moment. It was because for a moment just now, he felt the terrifying power from her that made him almost fall on the ground. It was absolute suppression, making him completely unable to give birth to the slightest thought of resistance even if that power wasn't directed at himself. Of course, Yu Qingliang didn't know that, but after seeing this zombie really leave, he again felt that the other party, although savage, was okay to communicate with. Sure enough, it was still useful for her to retain her human consciousness. Humans evolve language also to avoid physical collisions. After all, a gentleman uses his mouth and not his hands. Watching that zombie uncle run away, Yu Qingliang then breathed a sigh of relief. It was so close. If the other party had taken a swing at him, he would have definitely turned into a stinky meat pie as well. Ha ha ha, that's great. Luckily the other party was reasonable. A good zombie. You must not have talked to it properly. You didn't get flattened, right? Yu Qingliang pulled Shi Xingyu up from the ground. 
Sure Xingyu looked at the small zombie in front of her that looked like it had survived a robbery, still not reacting. Was she pretending? Or did she simply not realize this? But looking at it, she belonged to the latter. Although Yu Qingliang felt that this zombie uncle was good to talk to, he still had palpitations in his heart. Even Sure Xingyu couldn't beat it. It was better to run away. So 20 minutes later, Sure Xingyu looked at the small zombie in front of him who was running fast with his suitcase. Still silent. Was she powerful for just a moment? When he cursed that zombie, that rampaging look, he thought that mutated zombie was going to commit suicide. As a result, that rampaging little zombie was almost scared half of its life away as well. It packed up and ran away before dawn. Her back gave Sure Xingyu the feeling of a big zombie that was so powerful that it made the zombies instantly tremble. But on the surface it was weaker than the average zombie. And it always gave others the feeling of, so close, almost didn't get killed. What in the world made her unable to know that she had this power in her own body? Forget it, this kind of power was naturally something he couldn't have. But he had to find a way to make her confident. She was capable of protecting herself. Speaking of which, as a zombie that still retained a human consciousness, it was already incredible. Even if he did have a rank of four, humans were nothing more than food in his eyes. He wouldn't have any sympathy for food. But for Yu Qingliang, it didn't seem to be the case. She was the one who knew she was a zombie. Yet she was still willing to protect humans. What a ridiculous zombie. Naturally, Shirshing Yu couldn't do what Yu Qingxian did to show mercy to food or even act to protect it. But he could teach her to have the combat power to protect herself. At the very least, when meeting head-on with an alien, she could also have the ability to escape. Like the idea before. If she just left it alone, this zombie with human consciousness would eventually die at the hands of the humans she was trying to protect. Right? At least now, he could be sure that no zombie could hurt her. Yu Qingliang felt bad luck. Sure enough, the place dot dot Daodu had determined to travel to wasn't appropriate either. The place where they played before was taken under official control. Now the ancient city that she wanted to see was covered in snow again. And then there was a big zombie in this city. Run run run. But as she ran out of J City, she turned back. Finding a super large piece of white cloth, she drew a large yellow triangle on it and then a large black exclamation mark in the center. After drawing it, Yu Qingliang dragged the super heavy cloth again to go upstairs, but after dragging it for half a day, she was completely in place. Sure Xingyu didn't know why an adjective popped up in his head, space step. However, he knew that if he just relied on Yu Qingxiao to drag this piece of cloth, he wouldn't be able to drag it upstairs until next year. He reached out and grabbed the other side and leapt up to the second floor, his hand suddenly digging into the wall like a sharp nail, and just tugged the cloth up to the roof. He didn't want to help the food, and certainly didn't want the mutant walker to become powerful. He wouldn't have grown so fast just by relying on the zombies in the city. It was mostly because of those two gullible shifters that the zombie had grown fast. So be wary of the incoming people. Maybe there would be a shifter to help him kill this opponent? Yu Qingliang looked at this agile movement of Shi Yu with envy in his eyes. A powerful zombie was so good. Unlike her, when she encountered danger, she could only lie down and play dead. Yu Qingliang nodded his head as he watched Shi Xingyu hang up the vigilance sign. That way whoever came would know that this town was dangerous. Starve that violent zombie to death. Surprisingly bullying a minor. But when Shi Xingyu went downstairs, Yu Qingxiao pulled him and ran. It wasn't stopping at all. Running for days at a time. Only when she was sure that the zombie shouldn't come after her did she stop. You, isn't it time to practice self-defense? Shi Xingyu opened his mouth. It wasn't like Yu Qingliang could run fast enough for an ordinary adult to catch up with her and she was always royally nice. Didn't know that humans today were enemies to her. Maybe knew. Otherwise she wouldn't have seen people as if they were being chased by ghosts. Running faster than people being chased by zombies. Only seen walkers chasing people. Or the first time she'd seen a walker being chased by a person. Why? Yu Qingliang was surprised that this kid could say so many words. Of course, he was also puzzled as to why a zombie would need to learn self-defense. Self-defense was learned by humans. Right? She had turned into a zombie. What kind of self-defense would a corpse learn? Because you need to fight. Sure Xing Yu added. Why do I need to fight? Yu Qingliang was puzzled. She just wanted to travel. And when she had visited all the places she wanted to go, then she would turn into dirt. If you're like this, you'll be killed by humans. You're too close to them. Sure Xing Yu pointed out Yu Qingliang's shortcoming. Being too close to humans would not end well. Humans wouldn't think that zombies wouldn't eat people. And whenever they saw a zombie, they would kill them all because if they didn't kill the zombies, then they would become the zombies' rations. The two are such creatures that cannot coexist, born to be mortal enemies. Well, if I really get killed then, then it's fine to kill it. It's not like I'll be in pain anyway. Yu Qingliang carried his suitcase and looked around, taking out the map to look at it again. 
running around by himself, there was snow everywhere, and he didn't even know which place he was running towards, it was not easy to see a road sign, it was better to hurry up and confirm one's location, you want to die? Sure Xing Yu was puzzled, becoming a zombie gives you great power, this world should have been ruled by zombies, humans should be captive by zombies and become food, as you can see, if I wanted to live, I wouldn't have taken the initiative to give the zombies a scratch, when Yu Qingliang sniffed, she took off her gloves, revealing the wound on her wrist, it was the mark of being scratched by a zombie, the marks made even Sure Xing Yu a little shocked, surprisingly, there was a human who would actively turn into a zombie, the first time he had seen it, although he no longer remembered the memories from when he was a human, he could tell by looking at the reactions of those people, no one would be willing to turn into a zombie, Sure Xing Yu was shocked at just how much determination Yu Qing Yan had made to do this, of course he didn't know how disappointed Yu Qingxiao was when he woke up from a nap and realized that he hadn't turned into a zombie. However, at this moment, he felt that if Yu Qingxiao had not turned into a zombie, he would have been a person who loved life very much, someone who liked to travel around and take pictures everywhere, right? But you're living a good life now, even after turning into a zombie, you still have your own hobbies. Sure Xing Yu couldn't help but ask again, this was indeed what he was curious about. What are you saying? I'm dying peacefully alright. Don't talk nonsense if you don't understand. Yu Qingliang withdrew his hand and put on his gloves before continuing to look for the name of the place on the road sign. Oh, found it. Sure enough it's off course. Yu Qingxiao righted the map and then took it and compared it to the road sign, turning it towards where she was going. After determining the direction, Yu Qingxiao then put away the map and lifted her suitcase. After taking two steps, she realized that Xu Xingyu was still standing in place. Then she turned back to look at Xu Xingyu. Are you going or not? If you're not going, then let's part ways here. Goodbye. After saying this, Yu Qingliang waved his hand, then walked away without a trace of attachment. Xu Xingyu, saying that she was a person was still an overestimation. She really was still a zombie without feelings, leaving as soon as she said she would, without a trace of attachment at all. Of course, Yu Qingliang wouldn't miss Xu Xingyu. After all, she was already used to being alone, and meeting Xu Xingyu was indeed an accident. But zombies were originally like this. The reason they were in groups in the eyes of others was simply because the destination was the same. She didn't feel that Xu Xingyu and herself had the same destination, but one helped the enemies of humanity. Was that really good? If Xu Xingyu killed humans in the future, then she would be an accomplice. Well, forget it, it's not like Xu Xingyu alone will make the humans perish. She really thought that humans were too weak. The humans in this world have experienced all kinds of difficulties and still managed to live strongly. If all the humans in the world were like her, then they would really die out in an instant. Yu Qingliang fought like this and walked forward through the snow, nor did she look back. It was as if the past few days with Xu Xingyu were all an illusion. Xu Xingyu watched Yu Qingxian leave without looking back, and for a moment, he wasn't sure whether he was a zombie or Yu Qingxian was a zombie. He chased after him, no matter what method was used. Yu Qingxian had to learn how to deal with the zombies first. It was natural for her to take advantage of the fact that nowadays, when it was snowing heavily, the range of human activity was not that wide. This made Yu Qingxian incomparably impatient. She would just run when she saw people. Moreover, a zombie can learn any self-defense techniques, demanding so much from a corpse. Therefore, when Xu Xingyu recited a curse to her, Yu Qingxiao completely ignored it. As for Xu Xingyu wanting to follow her, she naturally couldn't drive him away. The further south they went, the thinner the snow became. Sure enough even the most powerful blizzard had no way to get close to the hot equator. These extremes of weather were nothing more than scratching an itch for the earth. As Yu Qingxiao thought this, her ears twitched and she turned around and pulled Xu Xingyu towards the snow pile. Xu Xingyu was just about to ask what to do when he heard voices. Several cars then traveled past from a distance. The wheels had anti-skid chains on them, crunching on the snow. But Yu Qingliang's ears were too sensitive. Right and he didn't even hear the sound until the cars were close. Of course, this proximity was also a distance of a few hundred meters. Judging from Yu Qingxiao's reaction, it was estimated that she could hear the sound of a car one or two kilometers away. After all, zombies were indeed sensitive to sound, but they were not sensitive to the extent of Yu Qingxiao. Only after a few cars had passed did Yu Qingxiao and Xu Xingyu climb out of the snow pile. Only when Yu Qingxiao looked at Xu Xingyu's appearance, there was something wrong. His face was bruised. His red eyes were getting brighter and brighter, and he was even secreting some unknown liquid around his mouth. Yu Qingliang stared at his appearance and instantly understood. He was craving for gluttony. It was also really admirable that he could endure it. After all, ordinary zombies definitely couldn't help it, but those high-level zombies in the novels could even blend into the crowd. Probably the higher the level, the more they could hold back. Yu Qingliang asked this question to Xu Xingyu, 
Sure Xing Yu, however, looked as if he had heard something funny. The higher the rank, the stronger the greed for the flesh and blood of living things. Just how can I say it? The more advanced the zombie, the less there is a lack of living things to eat. So naturally, they are able to control their desire for humans. Sure Xing Yu had finally opened his words since he started talking that day. In other words, the reason why Sure Xing Yu was able to hold back just now was entirely due to his strong willpower? Or was it? There's an alien in the fleet that's very strong. Sure Xing Yu graciously admitted. Yu Qingliang listened to his words and looked again towards the convoy of cars whose exhaust fumes could barely be seen. There was a very strong alter egoist? Why couldn't she feel it? It was true that she was really weak. How did you feel it? Yu Qingliang felt that how she could sense that the other person was dangerous was important to her. If she knew in advance that this person was dangerous, then she could run away in advance. The intuition of a strong person. Sure Xing Yu spoke. This kind of thing wasn't something that all zombies had. The place where he had evolved was just a bit more special. When Sure Xing Yu's words fell, he received a handful of snow on his face from Yu Qing Yu. What a narcissist. But it didn't matter if she was strong or weak as long as she ran when she saw someone. It was just impossible to run around on a snowy day like this without a little bit of strength. Yu Qingliang came out of the snow and walked forward along the road. Because a car had pressed through, it had made a road out for her. This was quite a good way to go. But looking at the wheel marks, it seemed that the other party's goal was also in the direction of the cross sea bridge. But it was not certain at the moment. It wasn't until she and Shi Yu had walked for a day that they realized that the wheel print was still there. When it was almost dark, Yu Qingliang found a fork in the road ahead. And this car went down towards the fork in the road, because further ahead, was the very popular highway. But if you think about it with your brain, you know that this highway was absolutely blocked by vehicles. Yu Qingxiao went a little further. Sure enough, the snow on the road ahead was uneven in height. Some were very high and some were very short. Yu Qingxiao reached out and peeled away the thick snow and was able to see a zombie trapped in the car. The zombie was lying on the car window glass with its teeth and claws open. And the whole zombie was frozen slightly stiff. Even if it is a zombie, it can't stand the cold. How to say is still mortal flesh, was frozen to death of the zombie is not less. Of course, the survival of the fittest, the zombies that survived, naturally all evolved a level. This is a new round of test for humans. Perhaps this winter, many more people had become zombies, and many more people had become aliens. Of course, this was not something that Yu Qingliang, a zombie, should consider. And as she was about to go on, she heard a few gunshots. The sound should be relatively far away. It should be two to three kilometers away from their current location. As a general rule, Yu Qingliang wouldn't go and look. She dragged her suitcase and continued walking. However, the old ox she had picked up was carrying her in one hand and her suitcase in the other, flying towards the place where the gunshot rang out. How could Yu Qingxiao not expect that Xiu Xingyu would carry himself to the place where the gunshots were? And the closer they got, the stronger the aroma at the tip of Yu Qingxiao's nose became. Of course, Yu Qingxiao was not a glutton. It was naturally impossible to drool. It was just that the drool of Shi Xingyu, who was fishing for her, had turned into rain and landed all over Yu Qingxiao's head. However, she was being fished by Shi Xingyu on her waist and could only grab a handful of snow and wipe it on her face. She really didn't understand why Shi Xingyu was pulling herself along if she wanted to eat someone. It couldn't be that he was going to stuff her with a heart, liver, spleen, stomach and kidney, right? Was it really good to eat it raw? But fortunately, Shi Xingyu wasn't this perverted. He just threw Yu Qingxiao into the thick snow. Afterwards, he tied the suitcase to a tree and tied ten dead knots. Only then did he tumble over the fence. Yu Qingxiao climbed up from the ground, jumped on the fence and looked behind the fence. There were two people lying behind the fence. Of course, there were bloody holes in their heads. And Shi Xingyu was currently lying on the ground gnawing on those two people. The two people had just swallowed their breath. And their body flesh and blood were still warm. When Shi Xingyu saw Yu Qingxiao staring at him, a flash of embarrassment flashed through his red eyes. It had been half a month since he had followed Yu Qingxian without eating. If this continued, even the toughest zombie would starve to death. When Yu Qingxiao saw Shi Xingyu nibbling on people, those eyes didn't fluctuate much. It just slowly shrunk down the fence. Shi Xingyu was a little puzzled. How to say that Yu Qingxiao was also a zombie? In any case, he wouldn't give him this action to be scared. Who would be scared by eating? And Yu Qingxiao was at that moment unwrapping her suitcase but the cloth was really wrapped too tightly. Ten dead ends. What was this old cow thinking? And the cloth was also hard to untie and couldn't be torn. Yu Qingliang's eyes fell on that small tree. This tree should only have grown for two or three years. Yu Qingxiao's attention shifted from the cloth to the sapling. She then took hold of the sapling with both hands and snapped it raw. Although it was true that she was a bit sorry for the sapling, but Yu Qingxiao faded the cloth from the trunk and ran off with her suitcase. 
Yu Qingxiao did not object to Shi Xingyu eating humans. After all, humans were food to him. If he kept letting Shi Xingyu follow him, Yu Qingxiao felt that he would starve to death one day. Of course, if he starved to death, he himself would be considered to have gotten rid of a big zombie for the humans. But he was only 16 or 17 years old when he was born. So how could he live past 30 years old? If he was 30, it would actually be considered a short life. Never mind. She didn't get involved in the fight between humans and zombies. But those two humans, they should have been killed by their own kind. Were they the ones from the car before? If they came out together, why did they kill each other again? Forget it. Don't think about it. It's better to head to the cross sea bridge first. Being lifted by Shi Xingyu to jump off the highway. Then it could only go forward. It couldn't be circled back again. That was too much of a waste of time. And when Shi Xingyu finished gnawing on the people and went over the fence, he saw that the tree that was tied to the suitcase broke. And the suitcase was gone Yu Qingyao was also gone. Shi Xingyu was somewhat speechless. How could this little zombie run so well? Indeed, for Yu Qingxiao, who still retained human consciousness, seeing himself gnawing on a human there, he would definitely be frightened, right? But it couldn't just run away. The down jacket on his body was torn cloth by him. And at this time, he didn't know whether it was goose feathers or duck feathers. And as he moved, it drifted down to the ground like snowflakes, toward the direction Yu Qingxian left. Yu Qingxian originally wanted to get back on the highway. But how could she not think that she had run onto the grounds of someone else's firefight? Yu Qingxiao poked out half of her little head and stared at the house in front of her. No wonder she had just heard gunshots. And after coming over there would be two corpses in this place. Now these people were in a firefight again. Yu Qingxiao didn't realize what was going on. Until she saw the familiar silhouette again. It was Gu Evening Chang. Why was she in this place? The very powerful and strong person in those cars was talking about her? Come to think of it. She could run around all over the world and wouldn't really dare to do so without some skill. It's just that she's an official. Yet she's in a shooting war with the other side. That meant that there was something wrong with the person on the other side. Yu Qingliang put her suitcase in a place where it wouldn't be seen. Before she went over in the direction where the group of people with problems were. She wanted to see what this group of people were doing. Just after taking a few steps, Yu Qingxiao came back. It was useless for her to know. It was better to go see the cross sea bridge. Yu Qingxiao dragged her suitcase around the group again. And Shi Xingyu caught up with Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxiao looked at the goose feathers on his down jacket had fallen off and the blood on his face was gone. Instead, she didn't say anything. It was as if she hadn't wanted to dump Shi Xingyu just now. Seeing that she didn't have any weakness at all. Shi Xingyu also knew that it was useless for him to be catty here. Yu Qingxian put on her mask and I mask again at this time. Shi Xingyu felt that as long as Yu Qingxian covered her face and didn't let people see her greenish gray skin, then the average person wouldn't really be able to tell if she was a human or a zombie. As long as she didn't open her mouth, just like this, she was really a bit of a cold person who didn't like to talk. Otherwise, when he saw her for the first time, he wouldn't have mistaken her for a human. While Shi Xingyu was shaking his head, Yu Qingxian took the mask and put it on his face. In fact, in Yu Qingxiao's eyes, Shi Xingyu's skin was a bit whiter than his own. And at first glance, it just seemed that Shi Xingyu was a bit too white. Unlike his own skin which was gray. At a glance, she could tell that she was a zombie. Before she thought it was the wounds on her face. But now that she thought about it, she couldn't pretend to be a bit of a human being. Shi Xingyu originally didn't want to be like Yu Qingxian, who was on the verge of crawling over the ground. She was so wimpy. And she was still so hilarious. But looking at her like this, it shouldn't seem like she was trying to get along. Yu Qingxiao was certainly not there to get along at this time. If she knew that Shi Xingyu thought she loved to get along, she would definitely be kicking him in the face. They went around from the housing area. It was only then that Yu Qingliang realized that there didn't seem to be any zombies in this town. So that meant there was a connection to the residents here. By the time Yu Qingxiao and Shi Xingyu bypassed the firefight site and were about to head towards the elevated area, Suddenly a few people sprang out in front of them with guns in their hands, telling the two of them to stand still, stand still, or we'll shoot. Those two people were wearing cotton clothes and holding guns in their hands, to make Yu Qingxiao and Shi Xingyu stand still. Yu Qingxiao did not know at this point why these people would suddenly come out to attack them. They were just two zombies. However, Yu Qingxiao reached out and patted Shi Xingyu's hand, signaling him to stay calm. Let's take a look at the situation first. After that, Yu Qingxiao raised his hand in a surrendering gesture. Shi Xingyu didn't understand what Yu Qingxiao meant by making this gesture, but he had no choice but to imitate Yu Qingxiao. Yu Qingxiao then felt something behind her against her back, signaling them to move forward. The two were then grabbed into a basement by these people. It was only then that Yu Qingxiao saw that there were quite a few people locked up in the basement. There were both men and women, young and old. It was just that they looked yellow and thin, 
and the clothes they were wearing were all summer clothes. It was obvious that they were people who had been locked up before the snow fell. Yu Qingliang instantly realized that since Gu Evening Qing was from the officials, she was here to save these people. There should be talents that the official needed in these people. But after waiting for two months, they didn't wait. That's why they sent someone to find them. But was it really good to rob two zombies and put them in a pile of people? Those people looked at Yu Qingliang and Shirxing Yu with different expressions on their faces. When those people closed the door behind them, the entire room went dark again. It was just that the darkness did not have the slightest effect on Yu Qingxiao and Shirxing Yu. These people were skin and bones, looking like the kind that only ate one meal in a few days. There were also a few small children inside. Yu Qingxiao took off the down jacket on his body and walked towards the woman with the two children. The woman heard the commotion and was a bit scared. It was just that Yu Qingxiao definitely couldn't open her mouth. Once she opened her mouth, everyone would know that she was a zombie. Yu Qingxiao put the down jacket over the two children. Then she turned around and gave the down jacket that had lost most of its tattered goose feathers on Shirxing Yu to the child next to her. Now she could be certain. These survivor people who captured them were not good people either. Since they weren't good people, they might as well give it to Shirxing Yu as rations. Yu Qingxian reached out and pointed at the iron door. And Shirxing Yu knew what Yu Qingxian meant. It was just that he didn't understand that it was impossible for them to be caught in the first place. It was just four or five ordinary people. They could still make it difficult for him. Yu Qingxiao didn't say anything and just stared at him. Shirxing Yu helplessly stepped forward and directly kicked open the iron door. The clanging sound did not only scare the people who were closed in the house, but also the people who were guarding outside. And after the iron door was opened, light shone in. Yu Qingyu finally spoke. You can eat those people. Of course, these words were naturally heard in Shi Xingyu's ears. And in those people's ears, they heard the unique ho-ho sound of a zombie. This made those people even more terrified. And before the two guards at the entrance could react, they had their necks snapped by Shi Xingyu. After that they headed towards the place where those humans lived. Nowadays, the large force of these people were fighting Gu Evening Qing's people, so the remaining people weren't really that many, but the armaments of those people looked quite a lot. Yu Qingliang went over towards that room. The people in the room heard the noise and also came out of the room. Then they saw Shi Xingyu running towards them. There were only three people, so of course, Shi Xingyu killed them directly. Only when the people were dead did Yu Qingxiao venture out and go into the room to get his suitcase. The suitcase was just put aside and not opened because it had a password. She pulled on her own suitcase and took another look at the two pistols on the table next to her. Yu Qingliang took them without hesitation. And of course, the bullets, although she hadn't used them, but studying it, it should work. It was fine to use it to scare people. When Shi Xingyu saw her smiling and carrying the suitcase out of the house, he was a bit puzzled. Aren't you close to humans? Surprisingly, she let herself eat these people. You're doing the people a favor. It's not considered hurting them. Yu Qingliang said. However, she didn't expect that Shi Xingyu hadn't eaten anyone. Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingxian, as a person, was actually not particularly close to people. Even in the post-apocalyptic world, some people who looked at that human-like appearance of a zombie would not necessarily lay their hands on them, not to mention living people. But the feeling Yu Qingxiao gave him was completely different. Previously, he felt that Yu Qingxiao was not willing to hurt humans, nor was he willing to hurt zombies, just standing so vaguely in the middle of the two. After Yu Qingxiao said this, he carried his suitcase and left, and as he passed by the corpse of one of the people, Yu Qingxiao added, You really don't want to nibble on one? Sure Xingyu, nibble on it, it won't be hot later. On a snowy day, it cools down fast. Yu Qingxiao saw that Sure Xingyu seemed to be frozen as well, so he continued again. Sure Xingyu certainly did not want to waste these humans, but suddenly being said so by Yu Qingxian, he instantly didn't want to eat them. In the instant he hesitated. Yu Qingxiao drummed the pistol in his hand and then fired a shot into the air. The silent night was broken by this shot from Yu Qingxiao. At least those people who were in a firefight had silencers on their guns. After all, night could attract more than just zombies. It could also attract zombie animals. Shi Xingyu was a little surprised to see Yu Qingxiao holding up his gun. Run, run, run. When people come later, the one you said was particularly strong. Will also come. After Yu Qingxiao said this, she carried her suitcase put the pistol into her backpack, turned around and ran. She wasn't worried about the pistol going off. As long as it didn't hurt her head, she couldn't even die. Seeing that Yu Qingliang really ran away, Shi Xingyu could only follow. He was completely confused as to what this little zombie was thinking. And this gunshot really did make the sound of the gunshot echo all the way over the entire quiet little town. Gu Wanqing had originally wanted to find these people's lair. It was just that they were blocked, and the town wasn't exactly small. She wasn't sure how many people the other side had left behind. Now that there were gunshots in that direction, 
It was bound to be that place. Ah Shang, you lead the men to stall these people. I'll go save them. Gu Evening Ching said. When Ching Sheng sniffed and nodded, Sister Ching be careful, bring Sa Tian with you. Gu Evening Ching gave Wen Ching Sheng an okay gesture, then waved at the half-man tall big black dog next to her. Satsi immediately followed. As for Pei Yuan, he watched Gu Evening Ching go over alone, so he reached out and unloaded the gun on his waist and handed it to her. Gu Evening Ching didn't refuse and took it, directly shortening her body to leave. Pei Yuan watched Gu Evening Cheng leave, before he turned to the person next to him and said, Give me the sniper rifle. When the person next to him heard this, he handed Pei Yuan a box of aluminum alloy that was more than a meter long. When Qing Sheng glanced at him, what does this sickly man want to do? Sniping? He turned out to know how to snipe? No wonder Sister Cheng said that he was only sick and not wasted. Gu Evening Cheng arrived at the place where the gunshots rang out at this time, but when she got to this place, she only saw bodies on the ground. She entered the house and found a few boxes of arms, then went over to the house next to it. That should be a basement. The two people at the entrance of the basement were also dead, and by the way their necks were twisted. They had been twisted instantly. Even the expressions on their faces hadn't reacted yet, but Gu Evening Ching walked towards the basement, which was filled with an unpleasant odor. But when she saw those people, Gu Evening Ching's eyes flashed with surprise. It was because these people were already thin and not much of a human being. There were frostbite everywhere on their bodies. She took out her walkie-talkie and spoke. The people have been found. No need to show mercy. Not one of them will be left behind. Gu Evening Ching swept a glance. And the number of people didn't match up at all. In other words, they were too late. The people had already been killed some. When Wen Qing Sheng received the news, he made a gesture to the people around him. Finally no longer backing down. Everyone put on their night vision glasses and rushed towards the opposite side of the street. There was no need to worry about the hostages at all now. It only took 20 minutes to wipe out dozens of people on the other side. As for those who were imprisoned, they also walked out from the basement and entered the warm interior. But at this time, Yu Qingliang and Shi Xingyu did not leave. If you do so much, those people won't thank you. They will only thank this human who suddenly appeared. Shi Xingyu didn't understand what Yu Qingxian was doing all these things for. After all, it wasn't like she had any way to explain to the humans that she had done a lot of good things. There was also the danger that she would be discovered and killed by the humans. Yu Qingxian sniffed, but didn't care. Even without me, she was able to save these people. And you were the one who kicked the door. You were the one who killed people. And you haven't even laid a finger on those humans. I didn't do anything. Yu Qingliang said. These words left Shi Xingyu speechless. It was clear that they wouldn't be caught at all in the first place alright. So whose fault was it anyway? Now it's all being pushed onto his head. What an evil person. He wanted to argue something else. But Yu Qingxiao turned around and walked away. You trust her a lot? You know her? Ha! Huh? Shi Xingyu caught up with Yu Qingxiao. Looking at the way she looked at that woman. There was actually something different. It was as if these people were completely saved if they were handed over to that woman. Buried me once. A good person. Yu Qingxian commented seriously. If Yu Qingxian were to say, that woman, Gu Evening Cheng, was indeed very much like the heroine in the novel. Gentle and powerful, and decisive in her actions. Shi Xingyu was a bit puzzled. What did it mean to have buried her once? Having buried her, shouldn't that not be considered good? Gu Evening Cheng checked the condition of these people and determined that they were just malnourished and slightly frostbitten. Only then did she breathe a sigh of relief. As for what these people said about there being two people, it should be a man and a woman. It was that man and woman who saved them. As for the words that the man and woman might not be humans but zombies, they were completely unable to speak. What kind of zombie would save a person? However, they heard the hissing sound of the zombie with their own ears. Although this hissing sound sounded rather civilized, it was as if it was quietly talking to the man next to it. Since the other party could understand the hissing sound of that zombie, it was bound to be a zombie as well. But they said that the two zombies saved them. This kind of words to say out who believe ah. Besides, if they said that the other party was a zombie, they might be hunted down. And on the off chance that those two weren't zombies, wouldn't that be slandering them? However, there were dozens of them. And only those who were leaning against the side of the door heard that zombies ho 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 sound. It was also possible that they were hallucinating from hunger. Therefore they looked at each other and said that it was two people. A man and a woman. When Xingxing could tell at a glance that they were lying, but Gu Evening Cheng acted as if she couldn't tell. It just nodded slightly before getting up, curtsying and apologizing to the crowd, not being able to pick them up in time. These people just looked at Gu Evening Cheng and didn't say much. They were all originally family members of some techies. Originally, people were sent over to pick them up. Even if it was too difficult to walk, a month's time should have arrived. So after a month of time had passed, the officials still hadn't seen anyone. 
it was known that something had gone wrong. Gu Evening Ching became the leader of this mission again. As for those who had intercepted the survivors' convoy, they were outlaws before the end of the world, so when they saw their convoy, they just robbed it. As for the official people inside who resisted, they were killed at first. Later on, some of these family members were also pulled out and killed. As for the few young girls, after they were pulled out, they were not sent back. Wen Xingxing couldn't even listen to these animal acts anymore. But Gu Evening Ching continued to listen quietly. I'm going to go out and take a look at the car. Wen Qingsheng said, they had dozens of survivors today, and it was best that they needed a bus. Currently Pei Yuan hadn't seen any infected people in these crowds, and Wen Qingsheng didn't have to worry about anyone suddenly turning into a zombie. Gu Evening Chang watched him leave, then withdrew her eyes. She raised her eyes to those who had survived. Say it, what kind of compensation do you need? Don't worry and speak boldly. I'll help you fight for it. Except of course the one that won't work of bringing your family back to life. Gu Evening Ching said, it was useless to apologize anymore nowadays, so it was better to mention something practical. Only if these people were pacified, then those researchers would be able to better upgrade their weapons. That way, the things in her space could be better taken out. Yu Qingliang and Shur Xing you left this town. If they went a hundred kilometers further, they would be at the cross sea bridge. The down jacket on Yu Qingxiao's body had already been taken off by her, and now there was only a single thin halter long skirt on her body. It was blown by the cold wind and stuck to her body. Hiss, so cold. Yu Qingxiao suddenly stopped her steps and couldn't help but say. These words caused Shur Xingyu beside her to look at her with some surprise. She could feel cold? No wonder she wore a down jacket after it snowed. You can feel the temperature? Shur Xingyu couldn't help but ask. It was clear that he couldn't feel any temperature on her. Why would she feel cold? Can't ah. Just sighing. If a living person was dressed like this, they would definitely be freezing to death. Yu Qingxiao waved her hand. She definitely couldn't feel the cold. But if they were in such low temperatures all the time, their flesh would definitely be damaged. Otherwise, it wouldn't have really frozen some of the zombies to death. For example, those popsicle-like zombies, they were completely frozen to death. Even the virus was frozen to death. Yu Qingliang didn't want to turn into a statue. Then she continued to walk forward again. Finally on the morning of the second day, she walked to H City, and the first thing she did was not to see the cross sea bridge. Instead, she went to look for the down jacket. Incidentally, she put another one on Shur Xingyu. However, after the experience of being brutally beaten by the zombie uncle last time, Yu Qingliang chose a shorter version for him this time. Shur Xingyu then felt that Yu Qingxian, this zombie, was really capable of tossing and turning. Humans cared about running for their lives and wouldn't be picky about their clothes. Zombies couldn't feel the temperature in the first place, much less wear extra clothes. The clothes on the zombies were all left over from when they were humans. Of course, there were also many zombies whose clothes had been damaged. Yu Qingliang changed into a down jacket of a much better quality, and only then was satisfied and padded the clothes. It was so soft, she hadn't even worn this brand before she was born. After all, it cost seven or eight thousand dollars. She felt that it was not cost effective, and she did not go out, and could not wear it a few times even if she bought it back. Now you can wear it without money. After changing her clothes, Yu Qingxiao then headed towards the cross sea bridge. The snow in H city wasn't really thick, only up to the calf, but this is for the H city that never snows. It is considered a rare sight for hundreds of years, not to mention the snow piled up to calf deep. If the south was like this, Yu Qingliang naturally dared even less to imagine the situation in the north. However, it snowed every year in the north, so there should be a lot of facilities to deal with it. Even if the snow was several meters deep, Yu Qingxiao couldn't do anything about it. Yu Qingxiao imagined herself going to sweep the snow, probably for 30 years. When she arrived at the cross sea bridge, she found that there were actually guards by the bridge. Rather, it wasn't a sighting. Rather, it was the smell. The houses looked like complete brick walls on each side of the bridge. As for the bridge, there were fences. At a glance, it was to intercept the vehicles coming and going. Yu Qingliang reached out and slapped his head at this moment. Since this place was possessed by humans, then the gardens in the east, and the imperial city in the north, were they also occupied by humans? Then what the hell was she going to do? Might as well go catch a few ducks, circle a plot of land, and just plant in situ. Shershing Yu watched Yu Qingyao staring at that blockade post, so angry that he almost crushed the binoculars in his hand. Rather, he found it somewhat amusing. Since you can't go, then just change the place. If you really want to go that badly, you can kill the people. Shi Xingyu's words were always filled with indifference towards humans. Yu Qingliang reached out and gave Shi Xingyu a handful of knives. These are official people. How can we just kill them? If we kill them, and there are survivors who want to ask for help and no one responds, 
Yu Qingliang paused when she said this. She suddenly thought of something. First of all, if the people at this post were official people, then it was impossible that they didn't know that people who pass through here would be intercepted. And, those people would not necessarily pass through that town. And how did those people know that there would be survivors passing that way? Plus, there could be more than those survivors. So why were some survivors able to pass through this place without any problems? The people who could make the officials send Gu Wanqing to rescue them were bound to be important people. Was it possible that these people had captured those important people and exchanged some kind of conditions with the officials? And how did these miscreants know that those people were important? It means that someone has checked the identities of those survivors. What's the one place where you can check the identities? It would only be the guard post on this bridge. Those survivors would naturally not be suspicious when they see people in official uniforms. Either these people have betrayed the official. Either that or these people were fakes. But either way, these people were not worth keeping. Of course, if one could think of this, then Gu Wanqing should also know. There's no need for you to kill them. Someone else will take care of it. Yu Qingxian said. After saying this, Yu Qingxian went to find a place with a good view and a safe place to observe this place. Shirshing Yu really didn't understand Yu Qingxian running away when he saw a human on one side, while at the same time, he was very fond of watching. However, Xing Yu did not stop Yu Qingxiao. He wanted to see what kind of people this Yu Qingxiao said would be dealt with. As expected, someone came at noon. A car, two people, and a dog. Gu Evening Ching had been thinking about this all night. That was that all these miscreants were able to accurately capture the families of the researchers. It meant that these people knew the news in advance. That's why they intercepted these people. Even the official people dared to do it. Do you really think that you can do whatever you want when the end times come? As Shershing Yu looked at the woman in front of him, he could be sure that the powerful force he felt earlier came from her. The woman opened the car door and a large black dog followed and got out of the car. The zombies that followed behind her because of the sound of the car were whipped away by the several vines that she threw out from her hands, before they could get up again. Those vines instantly pierced into their foreheads and churned their brains. A dozen zombies, seconds in a flash. When Yu Qingxiao saw Gu Evening Qing's actions, he looked at Shi Xingyu with a proud face. This made Shi Xingyu somewhat speechless. That's a human. What the hell are you proud of? She could take ten Yu Qingxian in a second. You're laughing my ass. This time, ten of you won't be enough for her to kill. Shirshing Yu said what was in his heart. It's fine. It's not like I'm going to mess with Gu Evening Chung. Yu Qingliang didn't care. It wasn't the first day she knew that Gu Evening Clear was powerful. Although Gu Evening Ching killed a dozen or so zombies in an instant, these zombies wouldn't feel a hint of fear because of the death of their kind. And the remaining zombies still rushed towards Gu Evening Ching. The snow wasn't deep enough to have much of an effect on the zombies' movements. And when the people in the guard post heard the sound, they directly opened the small window and looked outside. When they saw the car's special license plate, a flash of surprise flashed in their eyes. This was discovered. It was just that the visitors were just a little girl and a dog, and there was a person sitting in the back seat of the car, but it didn't look like anything lethal. A mere two and a half people could do anything to them. At first, there were also people who asked Gu Evening Ching what she was doing here. If she wanted to go to the island, it would be better not to go there for the time being. There were also a lot of zombies over there, and there were even aquatic zombies on the beach that had come ashore. And Gu Evening Ching didn't listen to these people at all. The vines in her hands directly pumped over. Obviously, Gu Evening Ching's behavior explained her intentions. In only 10 minutes or so, the people in those guard posts were taken care of by Gu Evening Ching. She used vines to roll up the people and threw them under the bridge, where they fell into the water and were instantly split up by the aquatic zombie creatures. Of course, she still left two people breathing. So naturally, she had to ask them about their reasons for doing so. Although Yu Qingliang could see what Gu Wanqing was doing with her binoculars, she couldn't hear what Gu Wanqing was saying at all. It wasn't like she had the ability to read lips. Yu Qingxiao's line of sight stayed fixed on Gu Evening Cheng, and suddenly felt that someone was looking in her direction. The line of sight instantly turned to the SUV. A man was seen looking in her direction. This caused Yu Qingxiao to be startled. And then she saw the man take out a long sniper. Without even thinking, she reached out and tugged Shi Xingyu back. But the man didn't shoot. It seemed to just want to use the multiplier on the sniper rifle to see if this place was occupied. But wasn't this man a little too sensitive? He hadn't even stared at him, so how could he think that there was someone in this place? When Shi Xingyu saw that Yu Qingxiao had suddenly pulled himself inside, he was a bit puzzled. Don't look. Someone is using a sniper rifle to look at our place. Got to move. Yu Qingxian was indeed watching the hustle and bustle. But like this kind of hustle and bustle that was dangerous, it was not to be watched. Yu Qingxiao lifted his own backpack and suitcase, and went straight downstairs. There were people in this place, and that man would definitely talk to Gu Evening Ching about this matter. If Gu Evening Ching really came over, 
Shi and Shi Xingyu would definitely not be able to fight, just by looking at her movements, she knew that she was really good at fighting, although Shi Xingyu didn't know if this intuition of Yu Qingxian's was accurate or not, he still followed and left, and Yu Qingxian's thoughts were indeed correct, Gu Evening Chang would know that there was someone in this place, but it wasn't that Pei Yuan had told him, rather, Gu Evening Ching knew that there should be someone in that place when she saw Pei Yuan aiming his sniper rifle at that place, someone, Gu Evening Ching asked, zombies, Pei Yuan spoke, Gu Evening Ching was a bit surprised to hear those two words, Pei Yuan's special ability was to see if there were infected people in a crowd, although Gu Evening Ching didn't know what the world looked like in his eyes, but since that was a zombie, why didn't Pei Yuan do anything about it, there's something wrong with a zombie's color, a zombie's color, something similar to you, means the other party's level isn't low enough to snipe, Pei Yuan was telling the truth, because one of them found him when he was reaching for his sniper rifle, even if he was fast, he couldn't have sniped it instantly, Gu Evening Ching was a bit surprised when she heard Pei Yuan's words, if there was a zombie of a similar level as himself in this H city, then these iron houses wouldn't be able to stop that zombie, why didn't that zombie attack, there's another one with the wrong color, how is it wrong, Gu Evening Ching cleaned up the blood on her hands before getting into the car, while asking, she started the car, this place couldn't be manned by ordinary people, it had to be manned by an alien, otherwise it would be inappropriate for something like this to happen again, this zombie, hasn't eaten anyone, no, it hasn't eaten living things, Pei Yuan went on to explain, these words caused Gu Evening Ching to be stunned, it is indeed the female corpse you buried, Pei Yuan's eyes were bright at this point, as if he had seen something that interested him, Gu Evening Ching was indeed a bit shocked at Pei Yuan's words, Although she felt that the female corpse had disappeared, was it zombified, but Pei Yuan at that time didn't say a word, it made her think that it was just a tourist who had gone out but died in the field, because she had mistakenly entered her room, she was thinking of letting her go into the ground, where did she realize that she was a zombie, since it was a zombie, then why did this zombie not attack them at that time, but chose to just play dead, you didn't ask me either, Pei Yuan put away his long sniper and spoke as a matter of course, Gu Yibing Ching, she's sick to be chatting with Pei Yuan, this psychopath. But anyway, let's go look for it first. She hasn't seen a zombie that doesn't eat people yet. Yu Qingliang crossed the street, crossed the spacious main road, then crossed the guard post and went up to the cross sea bridge. How did you know they would go in that direction to look for us? Sure Xing Yu was watching with his own eyes as the car went to the direction they were in before. And in his heart, he somewhat admired this little zombie. Whether she was strong or weak, Sure Xing Yu still did not understand. Intuition. Yu Qingliang opened his mouth. Having read a lot of zombie novels, the people around people like Gu Evening Chang, who particularly looked like the heroine of a zombie novel, could not be underestimated. There were a thousand different supernatural abilities, and there was more than just natural phenomena like wind, fire, thunder, and lightning. What if the other party could see through her being a zombie at a glance? After all, she had personally seen Gu Evening Chang get on a bus and directly throw a person off the bus, and as a result, that person quickly turned necrotic so it wasn't impossible for such a thing to happen, zombies have intuition too, sure Xing Yu's red eyes carried a hint of doubt, how come it doesn't, you said before that you yourself are the intuition of a strong person, then I am the intuition of a novel author, no, Yu Qingliang retorted, sure Xing Yu, what was a novel author again, actually, sure Xing Yu didn't really understand the meaning of many of Yu Qingxian's words, however, sure Xing Yu did not ask more questions, the broken vehicles on the bridge were moved to one side, and a two meter wide access road was moved out of the middle. Of course, Yu Qingliang didn't take this cleared pathway, but went to the next door pathway that was full of zombies in vehicles. The 20 meter wide roadway was packed with vehicles, while the gaps between the vehicles were full of zombies even though there were gaps between them. But there was no way for these zombies to cross over the cars that were almost as tall as them. But Yu Qingxiao didn't walk on the ground at all. Instead, he stepped on the roof of the car and directly jumped over. At first, Yu Qingxiao did jump over carefully. But at the back, Yu Qingxiao started playing around. Red is a bomb, white is walkable, and black is a step back. Yu Qingxiao also gave himself rules. Sure Xing Yu felt that Yu Qingxiao was just idle, but she did have nothing to do. Otherwise she wouldn't be traveling around. Although he didn't understand what traveling meant, he probably knew that she wanted to look around. She handed the suitcase to Sure Xing Yu to carry and bounced on the roof of the car herself. And the zombies next to her with a head of snow froze as they watched Yu Qingxian jump over their heads. Sure Xing Yu watched as Yu Qingxiao stepped on the black ones and literally took a step back, and could only shake his head helplessly as he continued to walk forward. He didn't walk on the roof of the car, but on the pavement. There was a sidewalk in the lean-to position, and although it was not wide, there were really no cars. 
Yu Qingliang Wenxing Yu did not feel that there was anything to see in this kind of scenery. This sea is not like a lake, completely frozen up. At this time the sea is still rough. From time to time, there were a few zombie fish and mutant fish tangled together. Then he saw a zombie being thrown down from his side. The zombie then struggled in the water and was instantly devoured by the sea creatures. Oh, it's over if you fall down. This sea creature turns out to even eat zombies. Yu Qingliang said. Originally, she only wanted to jump on the roof of the car. Who let this zombie to grab her clothes? It caused her to fall off the roof of the car. Although it didn't hurt, but she fell off the roof of the car. Then the game was over. She was in the middle of playing. As soon as she got angry, Yu Qingliang dragged this zombie over the fence, onto the sidewalk, and directly pushed it down. At this point, Shirxing Yu knew that Yu Qingxiao was not only rude to humans, but also rude to her own kind. This zombie threw it when he said so. Yu Qingliang had come to the crossy bridge to watch the sunrise. Just looking at the sky, there was no telling when it would clear up. So she chose a not bad car and used it as a temporary shelter. Wanting to wait for the sunrise here. When Shirxing Yu saw her get into the car, he put his suitcase into the car. And only then did he speak. I'm going to look for crystal cores. Yu Qingxiao didn't know where to fish out a book. And as soon as she heard Shirxing Yu's words, she waved her hand at him, signaling that it would be fine for him to go. It was just that once Shirxing Yu went, he did not return. By the time Yu Qingxian came back to his senses, it was already dark outside. Yu Qingxian had to get out of the car and look around. She was already near the center of the cross sea bridge at this time. It was also more than 10 kilometers away from the shore. This cross sea bridge was the longest cross sea bridge in the world. Going to find Shi Xingyu? Yu Qingliang just thought about it for a second before giving up. Whether it was looking for people or zombies, it was troublesome. Furthermore, if Shi Xingyu couldn't handle it himself, she would just be sending food if she went. There was no need for that. Yu Qingliang didn't go back to the car, but climbed onto the roof and looked up at the sky. She seemed to see stars. Of course, it could also be that her eyes were blurry from her own low blood sugar. She squinted her eyes and stared at the sky. Looking like this, it was midnight. When Shi Xingyu returned, he saw Yu Qingxiao sitting on the roof of the car from afar. She was like a statue. Looking at the sky like this, Shi Xingyu placed a bag next to Yu Qingxian, and what sounded like a stone collided with a sound on the roof. But Yu Qingxiao didn't look down. What are you looking at? Shi Xingyu asked. Looking at the stars. Yu Qingxiao said. When Shi Xingyu heard this, he also looked up at the sky and did not see any stars. Although the clouds did disperse a bit. Where were the stars? Where? Shi Xingyu couldn't see any stars. So naturally, he couldn't help but ask. It was only at this time that Yu Qingxiao reacted that in fact, Shi Xingyu didn't understand a lot of things about what he said. But again, he was able to communicate very smoothly. Are you able to speak human language? Yu Qingliang suddenly thought of something. That was that advanced zombies were able to speak human language. If you want to enter the crowd, naturally, you can learn their language. But, it's not necessary. Shi Xingyu explained. Once Yu Qingliang heard what Shi Xingyu said, his eyes stayed fixed on him. It turned out that advanced zombies were truly able to speak human language. Speaking human language is not for the purpose of integrating into the crowd. It's just to make humans accept us better. Shi Xingyu continued. In the eyes of humans, zombies were low-level creatures that only acted on their own instincts. But in the eyes of their high-level zombies, humans were the low-level ones. After all, they were just food. So language has also become a means for you to prey on humans? Yu Qingliang couldn't help but ask. After all, when I read zombie novels in the past, I also didn't think at all that the reason why high-level zombies would speak human language was to prey on humans in order to get close to them. If you want to prey on prey, of course you will find a way to do so. This is probably the instincts I left behind when I was a human. Shi Xingyu answered honestly, although he actually couldn't quite understand the meaning of some of the words. But the instincts that he once had as a human could tell him how he should answer and react. This was something they were born with as zombies. Zombies didn't count as living in groups. And the stronger the zombie, the stronger the sense of territory. Moreover, zombies didn't have any feelings and would only think about getting stronger. Just like now. The reason why Shi Xingyu followed Yu Qingxian was not only because of the curiosity he felt towards her, but also because she was really strong in her own eyes. At least by following Yu Qingxian, if he encountered a zombie with a higher level than his own, he would be able to save his life. Yu Qingxian listened to Shi Xingyu's words and did not ask anything else. Just that she lifted up the small bag that Shi Xingyu had placed beside her, and she could feel energy gushing out of this bag. It should be a crystal core. It's just that this kind of thing is not only important to the altered, it's also important to the zombies, right? Giving her this pouch, she would probably have to kill quite a few zombies. No wonder it went for a night. However, 
Yu Qingliang still handed the crystal core in his hand to Shi Xingyu. Keep this. I don't use this kind of thing, but it's good to use it as a checker. Yu Qingxia took out one and played with it in his hand. The rest of the bag of crystal cores were returned to Shi Xingyu. This made Shi Xingyu somewhat surprised. Although the zombies had turned into monsters, they still needed to eat. If there was no food, then it would also need to absorb the energy in the crystal cores. This was also the reason why many high-level zombies brutally killed their own kind. Naturally, in order to not attract the attention of humans, so they needed to absorb more crystal cores. It's just that these ordinary crystal cores have a lower effect on the more advanced zombies. It was natural to look for crystal cores of the same level, but zombies of the same level were not good to kill. Then it would be necessary to find the alterans amongst the humans. Even if it was an ordinary aberrationist, the crystal cores in their bodies were very rare for high-level zombies, like the power mutated zombie from before, which was obviously not yet enlightened, was able to get that much power because of those two aberrants. It was really unfair. That kind of stupid thing was able to kill two Xenos, and he had to follow Yu Qingliang, a leisurely zombie, to watch the sunrise on this bridge. It's a snowy day with dark clouds. Where can we see the sunrise? He was kind enough to get her some crystals, but he said he'd use them to play checkers. Do not forget it. Starve to death. Shi Xingyu reached out and took the bag of crystals, and shook them all into his mouth. It was like eating fried peanuts, chewing with a crunchy sound. You seem like a rat. Yu Qingliang couldn't help but spit out the sound. Shi Xingyu, can you say something nice? What do you mean like a rat? And it just so happened that a mutant rat passed by from the side and seemed to be eating something in its mouth as well. That sound. The same as the sound of Shi Xingyu chewing on a crystal core. When Yu Qingliang heard this sound, he couldn't help but slap the roof of the car with laughter. This angry Shi Xingyu slapped the mouse into the sea. Then he turned around and went to clean up the zombies again. Yu Qingxiao didn't care about him either. It was normal for teenagers to be rebellious. Yu Qingxiao looked at the sky gradually whitening and even tinted with golden light. This made Yu Qingxiao immediately roll down from the roof of the car, opened the trunk and took out the camera. She looked towards the distant Shi Xingyu who could no longer vent his anger from killing the zombies and started throwing the car, and immediately waved at him. Come over here. The sun is coming out. Yu Qingliang still looked good-natured. Looking at her slightly smiling face, Shi Xingyu could only throw the car in his hands and walk towards her. He didn't know what there was to see in a broken sun. He didn't like the sun anyway. However, he walked over to the car Yu Qingxiao was sitting in front of, and his sight looked towards the sea in the east. In fact, a golden horizontal line appeared between the sky and the sea. It was as if someone had drawn a line of light in this darkness with colored pencils. Although the clouds had not completely dispersed, they could not blot the sun that was emerging from the sea. Yu Qingxiao sat on the roof of the car and held up his camera, taking pictures of the sea in the distance. After taking a few shots, Yu Qingxiao put the camera aside and watched the sunrise seriously. Although the sun rose every day, whether it was cloudy or sunny, rainy or snowy, it was always there. Yu Qingliang had lived for 28 years and had never seen a sunrise properly. Of course, he had seen it many times in other people's travel videos. Sometimes she envied others for being able to go out and travel, but sometimes it made her fearful, because mom and dad died on the way of traveling. This made Yu Qingxian even more reluctant to go out. Yu Qingxian looked at the beautiful sunrise. It was rare for her not to resist the word dawn. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yu Qingxian asked Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu squinted her eyes and couldn't help but say, it's blinding. Come on, I've prepared props. Yu Qingxiao rarely agreed with Shi Xingyu's words and handed a pair of sunglasses to Shi Xingyu. Before Shi Xingyu could receive the sunglasses, Yu Qingxian's sight had already put them on, because after turning into a zombie, his sight was indeed much better, so he was indeed sensitive to light. The sunrise was nice to look at, but it was indeed too blinding. Looking at Yu Qingxiao's leisurely appearance, he took the sunglasses and put them on with some puzzlement, before looking at the direction of the rising sun. Well, it was very general. Yu Qingliang had seen the sunrise on the cross sea bridge, so this trip was considered a perfect conclusion. Although the sun was out, this sunlight should be cold. The snow on the ground did not have the slightest trace of melting. Yu Qingliang packed up her things and dragged her suitcase again and bounced towards the shore. Shi Xingyu simply couldn't figure out that Yu Qingxiao had ventured onto this bridge just to watch the sunrise? Was it really necessary? She really was the most boring zombie in the world, and he himself was still farting around and following her so he was even more boring. Shi Xingyu felt that he had scolded himself. Yu Qingliang was in a good mood as she took out a map and drew a tick on the cross sea bridge, then went towards the garden to the east. But if you go over to stroll around the gardens and the imperial city or something, don't you have to change into an ancient dress? Forget it, no need to wear it now, in case she encounters any danger and she lies down on the ground. Won't she dirty that dress? It's not appropriate. 
Then for the time being, let's include wearing Chinese dresses as one of the things she wants to do. Having determined this, Yu Qingxiao naturally hoofed it down to the bridge. Yesterday, the person at this guard post was killed by Gu Evening Cheng. Then new people would be sent in a few days. Maybe there would be an alien who would come. His own small body was not enough for them to warm up. Therefore, Yu Qingxiao's running back was slightly obscene in sure Xing Yu's eyes. The sneaky Yu Qingxiao, who was still looking around, made sure Xing Yu feel ridiculous. He had only seen people afraid of zombies, but this was the first time he had seen zombies afraid of people. The fact that she was so afraid of people wasn't entirely due to being a zombie. It might have something to do with when she was a human. Then wouldn't she never go out when she was a human? Why are you in such a hurry? Sure Xing Yu followed. This place belongs to an important junction, so the officials are naturally going to send strong people over to guard it, and there might be an alien. Yu Qingliang explained, if she was a few days late, she wouldn't have been able to get off the bridge. One would have to live on the bridge for the rest of her life. Of course, this kind of thing was impossible. I guess this kind of place would be cleared out in a few years. The bridge was pretty important. Otherwise it wouldn't be that the end times hadn't happened for long and there would be a garrison at this place. But after this incident, it should expand the team's numbers. Or even take the entire city of H back into their hands. Anyways, H city used to be a very important city. Yu Qingliang dragged his suitcase and passed through the guard post. And suddenly turned back to look at the cross sea bridge. I hope I have the chance to come back again. If I can, I must take a look at the clean and beautiful cross sea bridge. Yu Qingxiao suddenly opened her mouth. Although it seemed like she was speaking words to Shi Xingyu behind her, but Shi Xingyu knew that Yu Qingxian was not speaking to herself. Rather, she was speaking words to the humans. As a zombie, she was so trusting of humans that she even felt that humans could defeat zombies. May I ask this zombie, are you on the wrong side? However, if Yu Qingliang didn't think so, Shi Xingyu would have to wonder again. But after all was said and done, it was still Yu Qingxian the zombie that was strange. Yu Qingxiao looked at the gradually rising sun and would not feel that the sunlight was making her de-energized. Therefore the umbrella wasn't necessary either. They walked from this place to the east, along the near sea avenue. While the offshore avenue was gradually approaching the sea, a little further, they could see some aquatic zombie creatures that climbed up the shore. They were all strangely shaped. Of course, there were not only zombie creatures and these aquatic creatures that dared to go up to the mainland. There were also some mutated aquatic creatures. These things even ate zombies. They really weren't picky at all. However, it was also true that many fish and aquatic creatures originally lived on carrion. Maybe zombies were more to the taste of these fish and aquatic creatures. I'm good at cooking. Do you want to try? Yu Qingliang's suddenly unspoken words caused Shi Xingyu to look at her. No need. Shi Xingyu refused. The zombies only ate living things that were hot. I'll make it out of living things. Hot. It was as if Yu Qingxian at this moment possessed the ability to read minds and gave a thumbs up to Shi Xingyu. In her lifetime, Besides writing novels and eating snacks and watching various books and travel videos, Yu Qingxiao's favorite thing was cooking. Of course, she always felt like she was wasting food. Every time she finished cooking, she definitely couldn't eat alone. The next time, she promised to make sure to watch the portion size. But the next time she made the portions, they were still more than enough for one person to eat. Maybe it wasn't that she didn't pay attention to portion sizes, but that in her heart, she longed for someone to eat with her, like when mom and dad were still around. Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxiao's rare eyes shining brightly, but did not refuse her. However, he still wanted to tell Yu Qingxiao that zombies ate the kind of living, breathing, living things, not hot food made from living things. After all, zombies needed to absorb fresh flesh and blood to boost their vigor. Meat that has lost its vigor, to a zombie, is like a human eating rotting meat, right? Adding more seasoning would only make it harder to eat, right? But looking at Yu Qingliang's appearance of wanting to make a big meal, Shi Xingyu could only resign himself to his fate. Of course, the matter of making a big meal, with Yu Qingxiao himself cannot stand the flavor of cooked meat cooking before half and the midway collapse. Yu Qingxiao also did not expect that the moment this cooked meat was heated up, it gave her a rotten meat flavor that made her sick. You even promised me to eat this kind of thing. You're so bullish. Yu Qingxiao once again gave Shi Xingyu a thumbs up. In her place, she wouldn't have eaten it even if she was dead, even though she was already dead. You're the one who made me eat it all right. Shi Xingyu retorted. He had said he wouldn't eat it. After the little kitchen theater, Yu Qingxian dragged the suitcase again and continued east. And this time, there was no need for Yu Qingxian to tie a rope around Shi Xingyu's body. Shi Xingyu had already taken the initiative to help Yu Qingxian pull the suitcase. In Yu Qingxiao's eyes, Shi Xingyu, this old ox was becoming more and more competent. It would be bad if he really followed himself and got starved to death. I say... Do you eat live chickens and ducks? Yu Qingxiao rode on the luggage. 
his back leaning against the luggage's drawbar, and couldn't help but ask Xu Xingyu, as long as it's a live animal, it's fine, Xu Xingyu replied, in this regard, he was not a picky eater, of course, humans were the most delicious as all, then let's find a way to raise a few ducks, in case you faint from hunger on the side of the road, I can't carry you, so I'll have to leave you behind at that time, Yu Qingliang said as he flipped through the map, there should be feedlots around this kind of big city, although most of them had turned into zombie ducks, there should be some that were still alive and had become mutant ducks, Yu Qingliang's words were tinged with concern and very cold, they had been together for almost a month, and if she fainted, she was going to leave herself behind, Xu Xingyu felt that this zombie with human consciousness and memories was much more desperate than the authentic zombie he was, there's no need to think about me fainting from hunger, it's just that, you really haven't eaten any flesh and blood from the time you turned into a zombie until now? Sure Xing Yu thought of this question. Many zombies would be weakened if they didn't eat any flesh for a month or two. Of course not to the point of death, but some zombies would gradually decay. No, I'm not interested in cannibalism. Yu Qingliang turned the map over the page. Recently, she had added a lot to her equipment. For example, an illustration of all of China. Originally, this kind of thing was not available to the general public. Of course, if she didn't come to H city, she wouldn't be able to get it either. There was a detailed record of all the places in the entire country on it. And naturally this kind of thing couldn't be mass produced. Therefore it was only available in the exhibition hall. A few pages were randomly played every day. And of course it was still very fast. Yu Qingliang had also once seen this thing in someone else's video. Sure enough no one had gone to get it. Now it was cheap for her. But zombies also need to eat. If you don't eat, you will also starve to death. Xu sure Xingyu reminded her. It wasn't that turning into a zombie made you immortal, although it was quite a bit tougher than humans, but it wasn't tough all the time. Then let's wait until we're hungry. If I really feel like I'm starving to death to make me suffer, then I'll do it. Yu Qingliang said with full concern. After all, she had originally wanted to turn into a zombie in order to give up getting along with humans. It wasn't that she hated humans. She just didn't know how to get along with humans, even knowing that there were many kind and wonderful people in humans. It was Yu Qingliang who just couldn't take that step. But there should be people like himself in the world. If these humans were still alive, would they really be able to overcome their mental difficulties and get along with humans? If they could get along well with humans, that would be really great. Don't ever follow your own example of becoming a zombie. Zombie. Not very nice to look at. Do it? How are you going to do it? Xu Xingyu was a bit puzzled as he looked back at Yu Qingxiao who was sitting down on the suitcase. She didn't have a single bit of combat power ran away when she saw someone, and sucked at being nice. Xu Xingyu had thought of many possibilities, but it never occurred to him that she would take out a pistol and put it against her temple. It turned out that when she said do it, it wasn't to humans, but to herself. Obviously, the one who made him eat people before was this zombie who pointed a gun at himself. You'd rather kill yourself than do it to a human? I thought you weren't the type to care that much about humans. Tokoyami said, I just don't care about those who hurt their own kind, but I was once a human. I don't want to become an existence that hurts my own kind. That would be the same as the people I hate. I don't want to become that. Yu Qingliang answered this question of Xu Xingyu very seriously. Of course, she didn't think that Xu Xingyu, a zombie, could understand her words. After all, how could a zombie understand what the word fellowship meant? It was true that Xu Xingyu did not understand what Yu Qingxian said, nor did she understand what Yu Qingxian did. She would rather commit suicide than take action against humans. But, when you humans lay your hands on animals for slaughter, you don't see anyone committing suicide either. Sure Xing Yu didn't understand. That's why I didn't stop you from eating humans, wasn't it? Yu Qinglian looked up at Sure Xing Yu. She had always understood this. There was naturally no way for Yu Qingxiao to force everyone to think like herself, nor would she force the zombies not to eat people. Although it was true that Sure Xing Yu could not understand Yu Qingxiang's thoughts, he knew at this point, if there was ever a day when she really had to lay her hands on unarmed humans, she would really raise her gun and solve herself. So when she took the gun in the first place, it was to do this? Then what did she take so many bullets for? Ten at the most would have been enough. Then with that many bullets, you're not going to take me along with you, are you? Sure Xing Yu added. Since she could even do it to herself, she must not have much pressure on other zombies. Don't be nervous. It's not reserved for you. It's for people like the ones you killed. Yu Qinglian closed the map book after determining where the goose farm was. After saying this, he pointed in a direction. There's a big duck farm over there. If you're lucky, there should still be some alive. If you're not lucky, I'll cook for you. Yu Qingliang said. Xu Xingyu felt that it would be better for him to starve to death. Hey, he, a level 4 zombie, couldn't starve to death even if he didn't eat for 3 years. 
It was true that after spending time with Yu Qingliang, he had become an idiot. As Shi Xingyu started to head in the direction Yu Qingxiao pointed, Yu Qingxiao thought of something else. That was whether it was possible for a zombie to actually develop feelings for a human and not be able to lay a finger on them? After all, humans also trained animals as pets. So could a zombie become a human's pet? Or could a human become a zombie's pet? Yu Qingliang was curious and asked this question out. This made Shi Xingyu feel that she was a bit whimsical. After Yu Qingliang asked it, she also felt that her question was indeed a bit ridiculous. She herself wouldn't believe that zombies wouldn't eat people. So why would others believe that zombies wouldn't eat people? Therefore, if I were a human, eat? Shi Xingyu answered first without waiting for Yu Qingyu to finish. Obviously, he knew what Yu Qingxian was going to ask. It was that Yu Qingxian wanted to say that if she was a human, then would he eat her? That was for sure. He didn't have any shedding feelings towards Yu Qingxiao. A zombie wouldn't develop such feelings either. Wanting humans and zombies to coexist peacefully, Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingxian should just die of this heart while he still could. Of course Yu Qingxiao knew this. There were cases in zombie novels where zombies and humans got along well. She wasn't just asking a question. If someone really wanted to get along with zombies, she would definitely be the first one to rush up and wake them up. Let this person not be delusional. The zombie with human consciousness doesn't even think there's anything wrong with zombies eating people. Not to mention the zombies themselves. It was like he had been with Shi Xingyu for a month as well. But if he were a human now, he would still gnaw on himself without hesitation. This was the zombie's way of survival. The end of the world was originally a fight between zombies and humans. It is impossible to live in peace, unless one side defeats the other. If the humans win, then the earth will still be dominated by humans. If the zombies win, then the future overlords of the earth will be the plants and animals. Without humans, the zombies' food source would be cut off instantly. It can be said that this is probably the earth's self-cleaning. It's like the age of the dinosaurs, or maybe even longer ago. But, I'm betting that humans will win. Yu Qingliang added. Shi Xingyu was a bit helpless. If the humans won, then all of them, the zombies, would die, including Yu Qingxiao. But when he thought of Yu Qingxiao's attitude, Shi Xingyu felt desperate again. Walking towards the duck farm, one would have to cross half of the H city center. If it was two living people, they would definitely not dare to do so. But Shi Xingyu was dragging his suitcase, and Yu Qingxiao was leisurely riding on the suitcase. After walking for 20 minutes, Yu Qingxiao suddenly felt the ground vibrate slightly. Shi Xingyu also stopped. Yu Qingxiao inclined his head to look behind him. When she saw that the zombies around her started to avoid the side, she was a bit puzzled. Was there something unimaginable coming over? It wasn't until a 5 meter tall zombie turned around from behind the building that Yu Qingxiao got right off the suitcase. This zombie had a large head. But of course, that wasn't the most terrifying part. It was its body. As if a lot of zombies had stuck together to make it so large. It was no wonder that the surrounding zombies all turned and ran. As long as a zombie was stained by it, it would be devoured in an instant. Only a large city with a large population like H city would raise such a strange zombie. And this zombie was clearly not an ordinary zombie. Yu Qingliang stared at this zombie. It was found that although its entire body was devouring zombies, but on its body, there were indeed many zombies sticking to it. It was just that the heads of these zombies were not being devoured, and they were even struggling to climb out. This made Yu Qingliang immediately understand that this zombie's upper limit of devouring should be almost reached. Otherwise, the heads of these zombies wouldn't be exposed, much less have the opportunity to crawl outwards. When Shi Xingyu saw this kind of zombie, he knew that it was not good to fight against it, unless it was a long-range attack. Therefore he pulled his suitcase and ran elsewhere. On the contrary, it was Yu Qingliang who took out his camera and took pictures of this zombie. Devouring evolution was also considered one of the methods of zombie evolution. It's just that this way is too primitive and doesn't look elegant. It was the same as a wild beast. Yu Qingliang preferred Shi Xingyu's way. At least it looked more in line with human eating aesthetics. And at this moment, Shi Xingyu, who was praised by Yu Qingyu, did not feel any honor at all. When he turned around, he saw that Yu Qingxiao was actually taking pictures with a camera, and was momentarily furious. Are you here to travel? Of course. When this was asked, Shi Xingyu regretted it. Sure enough, Yu Qingxiao nodded. Yeah, as I said before, I'm here to travel. Traveling could certainly be perfect, or it could be a constant stream of accidents. But whichever it was, Yu Qingliang would face it openly. Of course, when it was time to lie on the ground and play dead, she would definitely not hesitate for a second. After Yu Qingxiao snapped the picture, she jumped off the suitcase. The sudden lack of weight made Shi Xingyu stagger a few steps. When he turned around, he saw that Yu Qingxiao had actually walked towards the large zombie. How many levels of zombie is this? It should have a crystal core, right? If you get the crystal core of this zombie, 
It should be able to be more useful than ordinary crystals. Yu Qingliang said. First of all this zombie could devour zombies, then it could devour humans, and it still looked like it was a very difficult type of zombie. If it really let it digest these zombies, it would probably become even more difficult to handle. And looking at it, the number of zombies it had devoured should be nearing its upper limit. This was a good opportunity. Shershing Yu completely did not expect that Yu Qingliang was doing this for himself. This zombie was a level 3 zombie, and although its abilities weren't strong yet, it would indeed become more troublesome if it finished devouring. He wasn't a long-range attacking zombie, although he did have supernatural abilities. But if he was stuck by this zombie and forcefully devoured it, then he would waste half of his strength struggling. Most importantly, was Yu Qingliang underestimating this zombie too much? Although it did look bulky now, but the number of zombies it had devoured was already unknown. Yu Qingxiao pulled out a pistol from his backpack and shot the zombie in the face. Only then did he turn his head and ask Shi Xingyu, lure it to a place with more zombies, the more the better. Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingliang was crazy, but he himself was crazy to be willing to listen to Yu Qingxian. This way, Shi Xingyu pointed a direction to Yu Qingxian. After Yu Qingxiao determined the direction, he said a lot of unpleasant words to that zombie. That zombie was immediately attracted towards Yu Qingxiao. Only for some reason, after seeing Yu Qingxiao and Shi Xingyu, the zombie turned its head and ran. Yu Qingxiao? Why did it run away? It's afraid of you. Yu Qingxiao said. It was true that in the zombie world, being powerful meant you could do whatever you wanted. Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxiao looking at her with admiration and didn't know how to explain. This zombie was scolded away by her after a few curses. Protect your suitcase? I'll go drive the zombie towards that place. You find a place to hide first. Shi Xingyu probably understood what Yu Qingxian was going to do at this point. He shoved the suitcase in his hand and instantly ejected. Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu who disappeared in an instant. Yu Qingxian thought. It's true that those who can do more. Waste walks ah. Luckily, she was trash. Otherwise it was going to be a dry run. Yu Qingxiao went over from the next street. There were more zombies in that direction. And she could still occasionally see the tall zombie through the gaps between the buildings. As for Shi Xingyu, she did not see it. But Yu Qingliang wasn't worried about his safety. All in all, no matter which one she took out, it wasn't really too much of a loss for Yu Qingliang. It was that if the old ox died, she would have to drag her suitcase and walk by herself. But that was how she planned to travel step by step in the beginning. It was just a return to the original point. Yu Qingliang saw the front. In front of her was a square that was densely filled with zombies. It wasn't known if they had gathered in this place before they were born, or if they had gathered in this place after they had become zombies. Anyway, the snow on the ground of the square had been trampled by the zombies. Yu Qingliang looked at the number of zombies and went to the nearby building, taking out her camera to take a few shots. Why didn't she think of taking a picture of the zombie tide or something before? Video recording would be fine. And that zombie was driven towards the square by Shi Xingyu. The closer it got over there, the more zombies stuck to this zombie. And the places it passed by left behind zombie limbs. These limbs were all undigested. Obviously, Yu Qingliang's idea was correct. One could only blame this zombie for being unlucky. It had encountered Yu Qingxiao. It was already full of food and then after being scolded by Yu Qingxiao, it panicked, thus getting stuck with more zombies, then it would collapse on its own. Yu Qingliang was not involved in the battle between Shi Xingyu and that zombie. Therefore, he did not know how Shi Xingyu and that zombie fought. Anyway, half an hour later, when Shi Xingyu returned, his body was clean and he was holding a crystal clear crystal core in his hand. This crystal core was much larger than normal crystal cores. It was almost as big as Yu Qingliang's palm and there was a beautiful luster flowing inside. No matter how Yu Qingxiao looked at it, she couldn't imagine that a creature as ugly as a zombie would have something so pretty in its brain. Only when she looked at Shi Xingyu and offered this crystal core to herself again, she still refused. I don't need this kind of thing. Keep it for yourself. Anyways, this zombie was killed by Shi Xingyu, so the crystal core should also be Shi Xingyu's. However, Shi Xingyu did not put it away, but directly stuffed it into Yu Qingxiao's backpack. So heavy. Yu Qingxiao complained. At most two pounds all right, it can weigh you to death. Shi Xingyu was speechless as she looked at Yu Qingxian who was about to lie on the ground. This crystal core was much lighter than that camera she hung around her neck. That camera didn't weigh her to death. This crystal core could weigh her to death. It was just that he hadn't thought that this crystal core was actually with attributes. Whether it's a human or a zombie, as long as it's fused with this nucleus, there's an 80% chance that it will awaken psychic abilities. He already had psychic abilities. Absorbing this crystal core so rashly was a complete waste. Also cannot let him one time promotion. Might as well keep it. When this little waste when he thinks he should have some ability to use it again. After all, it's not easy to find a crystal core with attributes. 
Yu Qingxiao also knew that this crystal core should be very rare, or else Xu Xingyu wouldn't have stopped eating it and instead let himself carry it. Forget it, just carry it on your back. If you don't eat it now, I'll give it to some kind and cute kid who knows what he's doing. Xu Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxiao's rolling eyes and knew what she was thinking. I'm doing this for your own good. Xu Xingyu was helpless. Then thank you so much. Yu Qingxiao gave a thank you to Xu Xingyu. Obviously a child who was a dozen years younger than himself. How could he speak to his big sister like an elder? It's good that you know. Is there anything left to do? If it's done, we have to go. Xu Xingyu said. Yu Qingxiao immediately straightened up at his words. No more no more. Let's go. After saying her words, she mounted her beloved luggage again. Xu Xingyu felt that he should be considered to have been taken advantage of. As expected. Yu Qingxiao. This zombie. Was a zombie with a human heart. Anyway. No matter what. She wanted to minimize the trouble for humans. That zombie would indeed be difficult to kill if it really digested all the zombies in its body. If she killed that zombie herself, then she would be eradicating a potential hazard for humanity. If he died, then he could also eliminate a big zombie. What a bad-hearted little zombie. Let's go. Shershing Yu reached out and grabbed the suitcase, dragging it along. Hooray! Set off towards the duck farm. Yu Qingliang raised one hand before giving the order. After they left, the dead zombie transformed into a pile of slime that continuously eroded the surrounding zombies, melting all the skin and flesh of the surrounding zombies into a pile of foul-smelling blood. It was already a few days later when Court Lady Wen arrived in H City. Sheenan looked at the city in front of him. The snow had slightly melted, but it looked like there would be another heavy snowfall in a few days, even bigger than this one. The two of them, Sheenan and Court Lady Wen, were considered to be more compatible nowadays. Before, because of that civilian survivor base, Sheenan had no way to leave, but after he pulled back so many medicines, he got in touch with the official base, and in exchange for those medicines, he let the survivors of this civil survivor base enter the official base. Of course, it was the official people who came to escort them. Being able to go to a big base, the survivors of the civilian base were naturally willing, especially to an official big base. That was definitely guaranteed. Plus, these survivors could also see that Sheenan was staying in this place because he was worried about their safety. They were a small base, with only a couple thousand people. Thus they were naturally willing to go to a large base, taking responsibility for themselves and giving Chin and freedom. Someone as powerful as Chin and could go anywhere. Are you sure that person will come to H-City? There are a lot of zombies in this place, right? Chinan's car stopped at the side of the road and didn't go forward. If they went further, they would enter the city center. The population of such a large city would have been large, and there would be a lot of zombies. The survivors of just one city would be enough to establish a survivor base. What's more, this place was connected to the cross sea bridge, so there must be official people guarding this place. It was just that if they wanted to clear out the zombies in the entire downtown area, it was estimated that without a few years, it would definitely not be possible. Not sure. I guess it should come to this place. Wen Chang said, then pushed open the car door and got out of the car. If she hadn't guessed wrongly, that little zombie, would inevitably be traveling through all the famous scenic spots, and this cross sea bridge was the place that many people would come to hit. Of course, she could have guessed wrong. It was just that the other day, the people from their official base found a warning cloth with danger signs painted on it in J City. It looked like a child's graffiti, but you could barely tell that it was indeed a sign of danger. After that, once they checked the base's alterans, they found that there were two alteran squads that hadn't returned after going to J City. In other words, those two squads, most likely, had folded in J-City. Even a Xenomancer could die inside. What kind of person could hang such a large piece of warning cloth on the roof of J-City? And as soon as Chinan and Wen Chang combined the clues that both of them got, it can be determined that the one who left that piece of warning cloth is the person the two are looking for. However, Wen Chang didn't tell Chinan that it wasn't a person, but a zombie. But saying that, like that little zombie would protect humans, how could it be considered half-human? She not only went to the hot spring scenic spot, but also went to the ancient city of J City, so it was inevitable that she would also come to the cross sea bridge in H City. But Court Lady Wen wasn't sure if that little zombie had come or hadn't come. The system also had no way to detect the other party's traces nowadays, so it could only follow the way it wanted to. Sheenan watched Wen Chang get out of the car, so he looked back at the car behind him. The original squad he had was now only five people. After all, to run across the country, there would definitely be people who wouldn't be willing. Staying in the base and joining another alien squad would be the same. There was absolutely no need to wander around. What if they died out there? The three people who followed Chinan and Court Lady Wen were naturally following because they had a lifelong friendship with Chinan. It was natural to follow. As for Wen Chang, this little girl, she was also a strong fighter, 
and even though it was her idea to leave the base, but anyways, the three of them and her had also cooperated in battles, they had also put their lives in the hands of this little girl, no matter what, she was also trustworthy, Yu Qingliang was catching ducks at the moment, naturally, she hadn't expected that little pervert to be able to touch H city, at this time, she looked at the zombie ducks in the duck farm, and directly activated the machine in the duck farm that she didn't know what it was, and pressed it all the way over, sure Xing Yu squatted on the wall, watching Yu Qing leisure crush those zombie ducks like crazy, but there was nothing surprising about it, after all, after these ducks turned into zombie ducks, they were also cannibalistic, as soon as he saw that all the ducks in this duck farm had turned into zombie ducks, he knew that Yu Qingliang definitely couldn't sit still, sure Xing Yu did not intend to stop him either, zombie ducks were just very low level zombies in his eyes anyway, the mutated ducks were probably already full of wildness and flew out, even if they didn't fly out, they were still eaten by those zombie ducks, Yu Qingliang waited for this machine to stop before realizing that this machine should be used to cut corn, this duck farm, should be fed with pure grains, and with such a large scale, business should have been good before the end of the world, Yu Qingliang looked at those zombie ducks that she crushed into cakes, but she was a little embarrassed, she then went to the house where the people lived, it was found that the ones who lived here were a couple who should be older, both of them had turned into zombies, Yu Qingliang stood at the door and looked at the two zombies in the house, so she spoke, excuse me, after saying this, he went into the house, it was as if he was a guest at the door, when Shi Xingyu, who was squatting on the fence, saw that Yu Qingxiao had really gone into someone's house, he stood up, he looked around to make sure there was no danger before jumping off the fence. By the time Sher Xing Yu entered the house, he found that Yu Qing Xian had already started to take someone's tea set and make tea. As for the two zombies in the host's house, they were just hanging around the house. There was no intention to drive Yu Qing Xiao away either. Yu Qing Xiao's tea making was just a process. Without electricity, that electric kettle for making tea couldn't be used. But Yu Qing Xiao did all the steps. Afterwards, he poured two cups of tea and placed them on the table. Only then did he stand up. Sher Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxian's serious expression and thought she was going to do something. As a result, Yu Qingxiao bowed to the two zombies. Sorry, I crushed all the ducks you raised. After saying this, she pointed to the two cups of tea bathing water on the table and continued. So I made two cups of tea for you guys as a way to apologize. After saying this, Yu Qingxiao pulled Sher Xingyu out of the room and then locked the door. It was directly shut. Sher Xingyu looked at the door, which she had tied with all sorts of things and looked at Yu Qingyan somewhat speechlessly. A minute ago, you were apologizing to someone else. A minute later, you're directly locking someone up in this room. It can't be helped. It's not like I can kill them, but I can't let them run out and eat people. This is the best way. Yu Qingliang looked at Xu Xingyu's speechless expression and knew what he was going to say. When Xu Xingyu heard this, he also felt that this was indeed the best way. But this kind of duck farm usually wouldn't have people coming, right? Even if they didn't seal the door shut there wouldn't be any problems, Yu Qingliang looked at the closed door, originally coming to catch a few ducks, but now he could only return empty handed, luckily, Shi Xingyu was currently starving, so she didn't have to worry much, after leaving the duck farm, Yu Qingxiao and the others went all the way east again, just how could Yu Qingxiao not think that he could still run into that little pervert head on even though he had been traveling for a month, Yu Qingxiao was seeing two cars from afar, one of which she had seen before, it was the car driven by that man, and that little pervert had crossed paths with that man, now that that man's car appeared in this place, the reason was definitely not simple, what if it was egged on by that little pervert, so Yu Qingxiao immediately called out to Shi Xingyu to hide, it was just that Yu Qingxiao didn't know that as soon as she entered the 3 kilometer range, her whereabouts were instantly under the control of court lady 1, so when the system alerted her that she had found the little zombie's whereabouts, it made court lady 1 jump straight up from her seat in joy, she hadn't expected that it had really been found, but there was also a level 4 zombie beside the little zombie, a level 4 zombie, she hadn't encountered one yet, what's wrong, Qin and saw that Wen Chang looked very excited, so she asked with some confusion, Wen Chang's court ladies originally had the same purpose as Qin Ann's, both looking for that little zombie, now they were also considered partners, there was no need for her to hide it from Qin and, I've found the trace of the person you're looking for, Wen Chang said, after saying this, she added, but I didn't tell you before that it wasn't actually a human, it was a zombie, the word zombie fell into Qin An's ears, causing him to directly hit the brakes, the car behind him also stopped immediately, using the intercom, they asked Qin An about the situation, Qin An just said he was fine and restarted the car again, a zombie, how could a zombie help a human find medicine, Qin An was still a bit incompetent in accepting this, only humans would help humans, zombies would only eat people, believe it or not is up to you, 
Otherwise you said that even you didn't enter the interior of the hospital. How could that person go in alone and carry out so many medicines? Wen Chang asked rhetorically. It was precisely because it was a zombie that it was able to do these things. All of Qin An's doubts at the time were solved. So why would someone be able to go unhindered in a place full of zombies? Why give the medicine and then hide? But since it was a zombie, there was no need to find the other party. Anyways, the other person was avoiding them, and there was absolutely no need to look for them anymore. Then what are you looking for this zombie for? Qin An was a bit curious. He had never asked court lady one about this. As a human, chasing after a zombie wasn't quite appropriate. Was it? Just curious, aren't you? A zombie that doesn't have any hostility towards humans. Anyone else would be curious, right? When Chang's court lady smiled, but she was honest about it. Chin and nodded. This was true. A zombie that didn't have any hostility towards humans. If it could become a partner, it would almost be able to run rampant in the post-apocalyptic world. However, judging by the other party's behavior, this zombie didn't seem to like being in a crowd. However, it's a bit difficult to approach this little zombie now. Court Lady Wen could sense that the other party wasn't making any movements at this point. Stopping in front of them, that level 4 zombie didn't move either. Why? Sheenan was puzzled. Although it was a zombie, Court Lady Wen had said that the other party didn't have any combat power. Because beside this zombie, there is another level 4 zombie. Wen Chang did admit it graciously. She definitely couldn't fight a level 4 zombie. As for Sheenan, he was now a level 2 exalt, which was already considered the best among exalts. But it was still a bit dangerous to want to fight a level 4 zombie alone. Sheenan also didn't expect that there was a big zombie beside this small zombie. If they wanted to get close to this small zombie, then they would have to kill this level 4 zombie. But they were not clear about the relationship between these two zombies. So it was naturally inappropriate to make a move rashly. When court lady when finished saying this, she signaled Sheenan to stop the car. Sheenan stopped the car and looked in the direction that Wen Chang pointed. Only to see two silhouettes. One tall and one short. Standing on the roof of a 10-story building, it was almost a few hundred meters from their position. But in an instant, the two silhouettes disappeared on the roof of the building. Yu Qingliang stood on the roof of the building, holding binoculars to observe the two SUVs. Sure enough, she saw two familiar people. She immediately beckoned for Shi Xingyu and then handed him the binoculars. That man seems to be an alien. The girl is not clear, but she is very powerful. She has grown a dog's nose. She can find me wherever I go. I doubt if I have GPS installed on my body by her. It's a pervert. Her age may be about the same as yours, not older than a few years. Yu Qingliang introduced to Shi Xingyu, and Shi Xingyu did not expect that these two humans were Yu Qingyan's acquaintances. Can we eat? There was indeed a shifter, and it was still someone Yu Qingxiao hated. It should be fine to eat it then. You kid take it easy. I suspect that little girl has something on her. In short, don't mess with it easily. And that Gu Evening Qing too. Stay as far away as you can. Yu Qingliang waved his hand in a hurry. It was no longer a matter of whether to eat or not. Their car stopped. And that little girl is reaching out and pointing at us. Shi Xingyu said. Once Yu Qingxiao heard that the other party had noticed them, he tugged Shi Xingyu and left. They came down from the roof of the building and quickly shifted positions. Are you that afraid of them? With me around. They wouldn't dare come near you. Right? Shi Xingyu said. It was not clear what she was afraid of. If you really can't beat them, just head straight for the zombie group. Even if the other party is more powerful, they can't really rush into the zombie group to capture them. Yu Qingliang felt that the zombies were just ignorant and fearless. They really didn't understand what it meant to have a protagonist's aura. Even if you are powerful, in the end, you will only become a crystal core in the hands of the protagonist. Yu Qingliang felt that. Is it necessary for her to give Shi Xingyu a popularization of what it means to be a protagonist? There are some people that naturally look like they can't be messed with. But as she looked back at Shi Xingyu, she couldn't help but say, if you die someday, it will definitely be because of ignorance. Shi Xingyu sniffed and didn't care about the words. Death was optional for zombies. It would not be feared or scared. Zombies were meant to keep charging forward for food. Unless the opponent was strong enough to make the zombie retreat in fear. In this case, zombies only had fear when they were against their own kind. Like the kind of fear that couldn't make the zombies resist when Yu Qinglian yelled at those zombies. Yes, Shi Xingyu's tone was relaxed not feeling that death was anything to fear. Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu's indifferent face, and she realized that Shi Xingyu's face almost never had much of an expression on it. In the end, they weren't really the same. Are you following me with any intentions? Yu Qingliang reached out and took her suitcase from Shi Xingyu's hand, unable to resist asking him. This was a question that she hadn't even asked before. Shi Xingyu didn't stubbornly try to help Yu Qingxian pull the suitcase either, and didn't feel anything as the suitcase was taken over by Yu Qingxian. 
there's just nothing to do. Sure Xing Yu said, is a zombie's personality affected by its pre-birth personality? Yu Qingliang couldn't help but ask again, other than the memories and the cognition of being a human. The other personalities and ways of speaking should be the habits from when they were humans. Sure Xing Yu said, Yu Qingliang nodded. It turned out that Sure Xing Yu was also not talkative when he was alive, and he would only open his mouth when others took the initiative to talk to him. He belonged to the slow type. It seemed that in school, in the eyes of those students, just like himself, he also belonged to the category of freaks. Yu Qingxiao did not pass the suitcase to Sure Xing Yu, but carried it himself. Sure Xing Yu looked at the back of the person walking in front of him. He didn't know why, but he always felt that Yu Qingxian seemed different from the beginning. But then again, it seemed like it was still the same as before. They were just walking one after the other. The zombies around them also just brushed past them. It was as if the end of the world hadn't actually happened. Sometimes Yu Qingliang would stop in front of the window for a while, lying on the glass as if he was actually shopping. Sure Xing Yu felt that Yu Qingliang was just wasting his time. However, he glanced back at the stagnant zombies behind him and felt that the zombies themselves were also wasting time. With so many zombies, they might not be able to take a bite of fresh flesh and blood until they were turned into a pile of rotten meat. Yu Qingliang's eyes moved away from the window, before looking ahead. Let's part ways here. Yu Qingxiao looked back at Sure Xing Yu. These words were said very suddenly. It made Sure Xing Yu not even react. Why would Yu Qingxian want to say goodbye to himself so suddenly? When Yu Qingxian did not receive a response from Sure Xing Yu, she slightly inclined her head to look at Sure Xing Yu's expression. It was as if she suddenly remembered something. So she took out the crystal core in her backpack. Right oh, there's also this, I have to return it to you. Yu Qingliang said, only Shi sure Xingyu didn't pick it up, and directly snatched Yu Qingxian's suitcase, dragged it and ran forward. When Yu Qingxiao reacted, Shi sure Xingyu had already run out a hundred meters. No, how is this zombie still robbing Ah? Originally, she should have rushed up to hold this brat down and beat him up, but instead, she didn't speed up her own pace, and as she walked through an alley, she looked sideways. Then she saw a little girl standing in the alley. The little girl was wearing a white dress and was standing in the dimly lit alley. Of course, it was certainly not a human. Rather, it was a zombie. Yu Qingxiao looked at this zombie, and this zombie also looked at Yu Qingxiao. This made Yu Qingxiao feel as if she had met Shi Xingyu for the first time. Yu Qingxiao just looked at her a few more times before withdrawing his sight and walking forward. And Shi Xingyu, who had already disappeared, folded back. When he saw Yu Qingxian standing at the entrance of the alley, he couldn't help but say, doing what? Don't you want the box? Yu Qingxiao sniffed and then remembered that his box had been snatched by this little bastard. You still have the nerve to say, my box was lifted by you. Before Yu Qingxiao finished her words, a figure suddenly rushed out behind her. Then it directly jumped onto her back. The hand circled her neck. This caused Yu Qingxiao to fall back slightly, but her hand still subconsciously went back to hold the person on her back. In terms of weight, the person who popped onto her back wasn't heavy and she didn't smell the aroma that only belonged to living things, indicating that it was a zombie. Realizing this, Yu Qingliang reached out and yanked the zombie off her back. A quick look revealed that it was a skinny-looking girl. Sure enough, it was the zombie he had just seen in the alley. She just took one more look. Shi sure Xingyu also immediately felt that this zombie was a level 3 zombie. However, it could break through level 3 into level 4 at any time. Looking at her movements, she instantly jumped onto Yu Qingliang's back so it wasn't a stupid and savage zombie. It was in the same evolutionary direction as herself. There weren't many zombies that could evolve their own consciousness. Many more evolved towards great strength. They only need to prey on more humans. It didn't need the intelligence to maneuver with humans. After all, to evolve intelligence, will lose a large portion of the energy. Resulting in this type of intelligent zombies in human body size is not different. In addition to the color of the eyes cannot be changed. There is no body temperature, heartbeat and respiration. The appearance is not much different from humans. However, zombies that choose the direction of evolution of intelligent zombies have subconscious minds. That is to say, this little zombie, also unwilling to become savage, and it was also a very intelligent type when it was born. The smarter one was, the higher the chances of evolving into an intelligent type of zombie after being infected with the virus. Yu Qingliang looked at this little zombie. The snow around her hadn't melted yet, and she was wearing a thin summer skirt. Even though Yu Qingxiao didn't feel cold, she still couldn't help but fight a cold war. However, Yu Qingxiao wouldn't think that she was a cute little kid just because she wasn't very old. After all, this was a zombie. By the looks of it, it was also a high-level zombie. She already had a high-level zombie by her side. If she brought another high-level zombie with her, Yu Qingxiao didn't think she could handle it. So she reached out and pushed the little girl. Before turning around and walking forward. Sister, 
Aren't you taking me with you? You can even carry him. When the little girl saw that Yu Qingxian refused to take her, she spoke directly. When Yu Qingxiao heard this, she looked at the little girl with some surprise. It turned out that this zombie could also talk and communicate. It was thought to be a zombie of the same type as Shirshing Yu. It was one that possessed intelligence. Since it possessed intelligence, it should become a party overlord. Shirshing Yu couldn't get rid of it anymore. And if there was another one, Yu Qingliang felt that he wouldn't be traveling on foot anymore. It would become a tour group. Of course Yu Qingxiao wasn't happy about it. Originally, he had planned to be by himself. The reason for bringing Shirshing Yu was because this old cow could help her pull her suitcase. But what could this little girl do? And her intuition told her that this little girl was dangerous. An existence even more dangerous than Shirshing Yu. Shirshing Yu pulled Yu Qingxiao behind her. And only then did she stare at this little girl. As a zombie, he could also feel the level of danger of this little zombie. It was estimated that she had fooled a lot of humans with this look of hers. How many people have you eaten? Sure Xing Yu asked her. The little girl, however, opened her big red eyes and looked as if she couldn't understand what Sure Xing Yu was saying. Her eyes just kept staring at Yu Qingxian. It seemed like she was waiting for Yu Qingxian to speak. As for the zombie in front of her, who was of a higher rank than her, the little girl did not put it in her eyes at all. When Yu Qingxiao saw that the little girl kept staring at her, she shrunk behind Sure Xing Yu. Sure Xing Yu, no way. She looks dangerous. Although Shirshing Yu was also a high-level zombie, but how to put it, he didn't have much heart. But this little girl looked like a zombie with 80 heart eyes. If he brought it with him, maybe one day both Shirshing Yu and himself would have their skulls lifted by this little girl. Although he didn't have a crystal core in his head, ordinary zombies wouldn't stare at him. But Shirshing Yu was different. A level 4 zombie. If taken out, it would be a complete jackpot. But why did this little girl look like she was targeting herself? Yu Qingliang reached out and took his suitcase, and without talking nonsense with this zombie, he turned around and ran with the suitcase. Even Shi Xingyu didn't react. Shi Xingyu, help me block her. We'll see you later. Yu Qingliang sold Shi Xingyu without a second thought. In short, let Shi Xingyu block this zombie first. She ran first. What's going on here? Yu Qingliang just wanted to take advantage of the fact that no one was around to take a good trip. Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxian and really didn't care at all about the more than a month of time spent together and directly sold him out. So who was the more ruthless zombie ah? Thanks to Yu Qingxiao, this zombie still had a human consciousness. The little girl watched Yu Qingxiao run away, so she dodged and tried to go after him. Only when she dodged, she was grabbed by Shi Xingyu's calf and directly threw her out ruthlessly. The little zombie directly hit the wall. But this kind of impact was completely nothing to damage for a high-level zombie. But this little zombie also did not expect that this Shi Xingyu was also very fast. It seemed that to get close to that zombie, then the only way was to defeat this zombie in front of him. Rank combat power. One is definitely inferior to this zombie. So now was it to run? Or just fight? Yu Qingliang was really running away. Although he was very sorry to Shi Xingyu. It was something that could not be helped. It wasn't like he was here to collect little brothers. Moreover, with two high-level zombies, it was hard for one to lie down on the ground and play dead. Those exalted could think that they were a corpse or an ordinary zombie. But with ranked walkers, the shifters were able to detect it. On the contrary, with a high-level zombie, it was still easy to be detected. But Yu Qingliang was a bit puzzled at this moment. Why could that little girl find herself? Was it possible that his idea had been exposed? Otherwise, how could she have chased her to H City? Then wouldn't one's visit to the eastern original garden be known? Yu Qingliang ran while looking back. Then he heard the sound of banging, although he didn't know what the situation was. He only felt that the fight should be very intense. If they were fighting so heavily, they wouldn't have attracted an alien, right? Like the little girl and the man who had been coming after her. Though I don't know what the name is. And of course, there was Gu Evening Ching. If Gu Evening Ching hadn't left yet, then Shi Xing Yu and that little zombie, their lives wouldn't be in danger, right? Yu Qingliang thought so, and then felt that he was overthinking it. Those two were high-level zombies and were intelligent. They would definitely run when they encountered danger. Worrying about them was better than worrying about himself. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao began to feel at ease again, but she also didn't expect that after three hours, these two zombies would block her way. Yu Qingxiao instantly fell to her knees. Sorry, I didn't do it on purpose. Yu Qingliang conceded with alacrity. When Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxiao, who was kneeling in front of him on his face, a drop of sweat also fell out of the back of his head. He then looked down at the little girl next to him. This was the zombie she was going to follow. It was really unreliable. I talked to her. She's just interested in you. She doesn't want to hurt you. What she said. Let's say it's the truth. Sure Xingyu said. When Yu Qingliang heard this, he looked at the little girl next to him. 
The little girl was still looking at Yu Qingxian with wide eyes. There was still a smile on her face. What do you mean? For the time being, I don't even trust you 100%, let alone her. Yu Qingxiao spoke directly, and of course from the heart. The one in front of him was a zombie, and naturally, he would not feel any harm for what Yu Qingxiao said. There was no trust or distrust between zombies. They only acted on their own thoughts. Although Yu Qingxiao was indeed special, in terms of the energy of the zombie itself, it was not even comparable to an ordinary zombie. Even if they lifted her skull, they wouldn't be able to pull out half a crystal core. In other words, for them, these high-level zombies, to lay their hands on Yu Qingxiao was completely just having a real brain problem. But I'm just interested in my sister. I don't want to do anything else. The little zombie carried her hands behind her back, those beautiful red onyx-like eyes carrying a smile. As expected, seeing a human's expression on a zombie's face was weird in any way. Such a zombie. It wouldn't be the kind of zombie heroine in the post-apocalyptic zombie text. Smart and powerful, but also able to rule over zombies. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang ventured to ask, Sister, can you command zombies? Can o. Oh. The little sister tilted her head and replied, Oh, goodness. This was the third suspected female protagonist of a post-apocalyptic text she had met. Shirxing Yu actually wasn't too sure if Yu Qing Yu would take this little zombie with her, but the question she had just asked was indeed surprising. How did Yu Qing Liang know that this little zombie could command zombies again? And the little zombie also answered that he could. This little zombie was indeed extraordinary. After all, only a zombie king could command zombies, but her rank wasn't as good as her own. She had no way to control the zombies herself but she was able to control the zombies? Then Yu Qingliang, who was kneeling on the ground, stood up. There's no way out then. Together, Yu Qingxiao spoke. After saying this, he handed the suitcase in his hand to Shi Xingyu. When Shi Xingyu reached out and took it, Yu Qingxiao sat up again. With regards to Yu Qingxiao's transformation, both Shi Xingyu and that little zombie were a bit surprised. For some reason, Yu Qingxiao suddenly agreed. It was true that Yu Qingxiao had given up resisting. First of all, Female main characters all had a female main character aura. Of course, there were also reasons why the female leads were great. Like that Gu Evening Ching, she herself was very powerful, but one did encounter her a lot. There was also that little pervert. His fighting strength was not bad. A person who could live in the post-apocalyptic world for a month. And even Shabu Shabu in the post-apocalyptic world. It was not simple. It was definitely not simple. Compared to Shi Xingyu who didn't remember her name. This little zombie didn't remember the memory of being a human either, but she had a ring on her wrist, so she handed it to Yu Qingxian to see. Yu Qingxian recognized it, the medical identification band that hospitalized people wore on their wrists, and on this little zombie's wrist, she was wearing a red wristband, that meant that she was an endangered patient when she was alive. It had her name, age and department on it, it's a 12-year-old heart patient, and very sick with this condition, but before she died, she ushered in the end times. After that, she turned into a zombie and lost her memories from when she was a human. The little girl's name was Xiao Ji, 12 years old. Yu Qingliang thought she was at most 8 or 9 years old. She looked skinny and small. It turned out that she was already 12 years old. Now that she had turned into a zombie, she shouldn't have to suffer from heart disease anymore. But what was the use of following her? Is it okay for you two to follow me? Not going to compete for the title of zombie king? Yu Qingliang turned the map over again and studied where exactly she was going. What if she was afraid that little pervert would find her again? The seashore was dangerous nowadays. So take the coastal route. The three of them were all zombies anyway. Shi Xingyu didn't say anything, but it was Xiao Ji who smiled and said, I'm not interested in that kind of location. If you're not interested, you can still do what you're interested in. Follow me, but there are no humans to eat. Look at him. He hasn't eaten anyone for almost a month. Yu Qingliang pointed at Shi Xingyu. This was indeed the truth. Ever since that night when he gnawed on two dead people, he hadn't eaten fresh flesh and blood. He's a waste. I'm not. Xiao Ji replied. These words were clearly mocking Shi Xingyu. It was as if she had eaten a lot of people. Xiao Ji looked at Shi Xingyu as she said this. After all, Xiao Ji had never seen a zombie that didn't eat people. But as soon as she raised her eyes, she saw Yu Qingxiao just staring at her. Isn't it? Xiao Ji looked at Yu Qingxian staring at her. And for some reason, she felt a trace of pressure from this Yu Qingxian the zombie. Do you think he won't be able to eat anyone? Yu Qingxiao asked Xiao Ji in return. Although Xiao Ji was pitiful when he was born as a human, but now that he had turned into a zombie, this personality was really bad. With such a bad character, it shouldn't be the female lead, right? Yu Qingxiao sat on the suitcase and let Shi Xingyu drag her along, but her eyes fell on Xiao Ji's body. This Xiao Ji, could it be that she is not the female lead, but a villain? 
How could there be a female lead with such a bad personality? On the contrary, Shi Xingyu did not expect that Yu Qingxiao would help himself. Regarding Xiao Ji's words, Shi Xingyu did not care. It was as if he had long been used to such mocking words. Since he can eat people, why doesn't he eat for a month? Xiao Ji was a little puzzled. Humans were nothing but food, so why not eat them? Then I asked you not to eat humans in front of me. Can you do it? Yu Qingliang closed the map book. This was said seriously. Even Shi Xingyu was a bit surprised. During the time he had followed Yu Qingxian, Yu Qingxian had not forbidden himself from eating people. But in the end, he was still a bit shy about eating people in front of Yu Qingxian. It was just that Yu Qingxiao had seen him eat people and did not resent it, but would pick this kind of thing out and say it to Xiao Ji. Shi Xingyu did have some trouble understanding what she was thinking. In Shi Xingyu's eyes, Yu Qingxian was that strange creature that was half human and half zombie. She was unforgiving towards some humans, and would be destined to protect some zombies. Xiao Ji, on the other hand, breathed a sigh of relief when she heard Yu Qingxian's inquiry so full of vigor. The mocking smile on her face instantly disappeared and was replaced with a more sincere smile. That's good. I thought I was the only zombie in this world that didn't need blood and flesh. Xiao Ji hurriedly waved her hand. She didn't want to be treated as a freak. Even though she no longer remembered human memories, she didn't want to be ostracized. But in this entire H city, she had never seen a zombie that didn't eat humans. Until she met these two zombies, she secretly observed them for several days, determined that they really don't eat humans, especially that big sister, and even don't eat the crystal core. Eating the crystal core of a zombie. Xiao Ji didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but letting her eat the flesh and blood of living people. Of course she was not happy about it, but as a zombie, she couldn't help but eat blood and flesh. Therefore, she would save some humans in H city and exchange a bit of blood over from their bodies. The good thing was that zombies and humans weren't the same, and if they didn't eat food for a few months, they wouldn't starve. It would only be somewhat weakened. Plus, it had been two months and she had yet to see a zombie that she could communicate with. Therefore when she encountered these two zombies, she of course hoped that the other party was the same as herself. But in case the other party was a cannibal, then wouldn't she become a freak again? So first blackmail the other party. And upon hearing that Shi Xingyu hadn't eaten human flesh for a month, Xiao Ji was naturally very happy. After all, a great zombie as powerful as Shi Xingyu could not possibly not eat people for a few days. Yu Qingliang and Shi Xingyu both looked at Xiao Ji with some surprise when they heard Xiao Ji's words. So those words that mocked Shi Xingyu just now were intentional? In other words, Xiao Ji, a human, didn't eat humans either? You don't eat humans, ha? Huh? Yu Qingxiao looked at Xiao Ji with some surprise. After all, Shi Xingyu was a human eater, and she didn't stop Shi Xingyu from eating humans. Now a Xiao Ji popped up who didn't eat humans, which made it a little difficult for Yu Qingxian. It was true that she didn't eat humans, but it didn't mean that she felt that zombies that didn't eat humans were good zombies. Of course, for humans, a zombie that didn't eat humans was a good zombie. The main thing was that this Xiao Ji was too much like a human, causing her old problem to return. Xiao Ji was somewhat at a loss for a moment when she looked at Yu Qingliang standing on the side of the road dry heaving. She looked at Shi Xingyu with some confusion. What's wrong with big sister? Xiao Ji asked. The fear of people is just acting up again. It's fine. Shi Xingyu said. Only after saying this, his eyes were fixed on Xiao Ji. Xiao Ji shouldn't be considered an ordinary zombie. Anyways, in this month or so, Yu Qingliang had followed his side, and this kind of condition had not appeared. In other words, Xiao Ji was considered at least half human. Otherwise, Yu Qingliang wouldn't have reacted so strongly. It had also been a long time since Yu Qingxiao had felt this way. It was as if Xiao Ji was not a zombie, but a living human being. Yu Qingxiao straightened his back, then pulled away from Xiao Ji. Sorry, I don't think you should be considered a 100% zombie. Yu Qingxiao opened his mouth. The more she said, the further away she got from Xiao Ji. When Shi Xingyu looked at her small broken steps moving back, he looked at Xiao Ji with some helplessness. As you can see, she really doesn't like to come into contact with people. And looking at you, it seems like you kinda like humans. After saying this, Shi Xingyu added, although it's true that she doesn't eat people, it doesn't mean that she likes humans. If you follow her, not only will she be uncomfortable, you will also be uncomfortable. Xiao Ji sniffed and his eyes went back to Yu Qingxiao. So why is big sister pretending to be a human? Since she didn't like humans, why did she dress up as a human again? It's precisely because I'm not human that I have to dress up as a human so that I won't be killed by humans, isn't it? And I have things that I want to do. Are you sure that what I'm going to do, you're going to do? Yu Qingliang looked at Xiao Ji. Of course, if Xiao Ji also wanted to go on a trip, then it would be a different story. Xiao Ji listened to Yu Qingxian's words and was a little confused. 
Then what is sister going to do? Hiking the country. Yu Qingxian replied. After all, this kind of thing wasn't something that couldn't be seen by a zombie, and there was nothing wrong with saying it to a zombie. That's so, I see, there are things you want to do, that's really good, I should also think about what things I can do. Xiao Ji nodded. It was because she didn't know what she wanted to do that she wanted to follow these two walkers, because they looked like they had a lot of ideas of their own. You can speak the language of humans, right? If you still like humans, then you can try to contact them. In short, what I'm going to do is definitely not what you want. Yu Qingliang spoke seriously. To be able to make even this corpse of hers react, it meant that this Xiao Ji was definitely not an ordinary zombie. At least she was still half human. Xiao Ji didn't force herself and stood still to watch Yu Qingxiao and Shi Xingyu leave. And as she stared at the two, thinking about what to do, a mechanical voice suddenly rang in her head. Hotel system activated. Complete the task. Can change back to human. Please choose the hotel address as soon as possible. The sound of this voice caused Xiao Ji to instantly return to her senses. She had something to do. Although she couldn't follow that big sister, it was indeed that big sister who woke her up. She did still want to become human. And now there was a system that could help her become human. Xiao Ji turned around and went back to the city of H. This city was important and had a lot of supplies. There would definitely be survivors in this city. She just needed to receive these people who were being chased by zombies, and then send these survivors out of the city afterward. Apparently, that's what she did before. In short, go ahead and choose a site. Sure Xingyu didn't feel Xiao Ji following him, so obviously she had figured it out. He didn't ask much when he saw Yu Qingxiao leaning against the pull-up bar again without saying anything. Why did Yu Qingxiao know that Xiao Ji liked humans? Shi Xingyu wasn't sure and wasn't going to ask. However, Shi Xingyu knew that that Xiao Ji did not know that Yu Qingxian's ability. It was probably just when she was slightly special. Perhaps it was also because of himself that Xiao Ji was too wary of himself. Only then did he not look deeper into Yu Qingxiao's identity. If Xiao Ji thought about it carefully, he would have realized that Yu Qingxiao was just a very weak little zombie. But she was able to communicate with high-level zombies without any obstacles. This alone was enough to make other high-level zombies suspicious. And half of the reason why Shi Xingyu had pulled the box for Yu Qingxiao was because he didn't know why Yu Qingxiao had a human consciousness in the body of a low-level zombie. And then the power that could suppress all the zombies was what made Shi Xingyu really want to follow Yu Qingxian. High-level zombies were powerful. But it didn't mean that there weren't more powerful high-level zombies. Like before in J City. If Yu Qingxiao hadn't come, although he wouldn't have been killed by that zombie, he definitely would have been injured. Yu Qingxiao was holding a novel in her hands when a snowflake landed on her book again. She looked up and the huge snowflake hit her directly on her face. Yu Qingxiao reached out and wiped the snowflake off her face before she put away her book. She thought that winter had already passed, but it seemed that the real winter had just begun. Even the snowflakes in the south were so heavy. I wonder what the situation was in the north. The survival of the human race was still really at stake. Find a place to avoid the snow. Yu Qingliang opened his mouth. When Shi Xingyu heard this, he headed towards the building next to him. Although this place was a suburb of H City, it was also under construction. Originally, none of these projects were rotten, but because of the end times, these places became rotten. When Shi Xingyu pulled Yu Qingxian towards this kind of building that hadn't been built, Yu Qingxian smelled a faint aroma. She then looked towards the building. Obviously, there were people in the building, but it was also true that if there was a fighting force, it would be easier to stay in such a big city and survive instead. After all, it was easier to find supplies in big cities, like this kind of building under construction nearby. There would be some small restaurants, although these restaurants looked simple. At least some rice and seasonings were available. It was possible to survive without having to go to the base so dangerously. Shirshing Yu also felt it and stopped his steps slightly. It's fine. Go next door. Yu Qingliang spoke. Shirshing Yu was different from himself. He was eager to eat people. If he had been with a human, he might be able to endure it for 10 minutes. But what about half an hour? Three hours? Yu Qingxian wasn't sure if Shirshing Yu could hold back. Maybe if he was a bit higher ranked he could endure it. Like those zombie kings in novels, he could follow the heroine's side. There were dozens of survivors in this building under construction, and among them was an alien. However, it wasn't the kind of ordinary survivors that Yu Qinglian and Shi Xingyu thought. The seven or eight girls in the house at this moment were snuggled up to each other, and there were people guarding the door. These people had guns in their hands, and even the person leading the way was a shifter. The girls had originally heard the people outside the door say that someone was coming. There was originally a hint of expectation in their hearts, expecting someone to save them. But upon hearing that there were only two people, this hope was instantly extinguished. Two people, simply can't beat these people. But they didn't dare to cry out for help. If they called the zombies, 
Then they would only be pushed out by these people to feed the zombies. Originally they were imprisoned here with more than 10 people, but some couldn't stand it, so they committed suicide. But since they survived, they couldn't die like that. If they died, then who would avenge the sisters who were forced to commit suicide? So they must live. Yu Qingliang and Xiu Xingyu went to the building next door. The snow outside was getting heavier and heavier. The snow that had already melted a bit was instantly brushed with another layer of white by the heavens. And this snowflake wasn't as big as the palm of Yu Qingxian's hand that she had seen before, but a snowflake as big as her face. A ringing sound could still be heard when it hit the ground. Yu Qingxiao directly stopped at the first floor. They weren't afraid of zombies, and there was no need to go up. They would leave when the snow stopped anyway. It was just that Yu Qingxiao didn't want to mess with the humans. But it was just that the humans were coming to mess with them. In less than 10 minutes, the three men came over stepping on the snow. They could see clearly from upstairs before. It should be a man and a woman. And the woman among them was sitting on a suitcase. You guys are survivors? Where did you come from? The man in the lead still had a cigarette in his hand and asked Yu Qingxian and Xiu Xingyu in a dangling manner. Yu Qingxiao took one look at the three men and moved his position, turning his back to them. Xiu Xingyu didn't say anything either. Although advanced zombies could mimic human voices, he didn't really want to bother with these people. The three men who didn't get a response were annoyed by their attitude. We're talking to you guys. Are you deaf? If you don't open your mouths, we'll take you and feed you to the zombies. The one leading the group said viciously. Yu Qingliang got up and dragged her suitcase to leave. She really couldn't stand it a little bit. Originally she just wanted to quietly avoid the snow. How did she know that these people would even come to her door? And the attitude was still so bad. The fact that Yu Qingxiao was dragging her suitcase to leave was even more upsetting to the three people, who directly pulled out their guns and pointed them at Yu Qingxiao and Xiu Xingyu. We're just passing by. Xiu Xingyu's hoarse voice reached the ears of the three people. Although it was a bit hoarse, it was indeed human language. When Yu Qingliang heard Xiu Xingyu speak, he secretly glanced at those three people. It was discovered that they seemed to have understood. In other words, Xiu Xingyu was speaking the language of humans. It looked like Xiu Xingyu didn't want to fight with these humans. But was Xiu Xingyu such a kind-hearted zombie? It couldn't be because of himself, could it? Yu Qingliang looked at Xiu Xingyu a little differently, but she didn't think that these people who didn't move to point their guns at people would be good people. Passing by, who is she? Your girlfriend? Ha, huh? one of them said, about to walk around in front of Yu Qingxiao. Obviously, Yu Qingxiao's long hair and the hem of her skirt under her down jacket did make it obvious at a glance that she was female. My sister, Xiu Xingyu replied. After saying this, Xiu Xingyu still couldn't help but step forward and blocked Yu Qingxian's front, covering her figure. Although he didn't know that these people were aiming for Yu Qingxian, he also didn't know what they were going to do. However, Xiu Xingyu still subconsciously protected Yu Qingxian. After those people heard that it was Xiu Xingyu's sister and not his girlfriend, this unsavory smile on his face increased a few more points. One of them was about to cross over Xiu Xingyu towards Yu Qingxian. With just a gunshot, a bloody hole was added to this person's brow. When neither those two men nor Xiu Xingyu reacted, Yu Qingxian pulled the trigger again. Two more shots were snapped, directly cutting off the lifespan of these two remaining people. Yu Qingxiao did not go soft. She knew what she would face next if she and Xiu Xingyu were just two ordinary people. But unfortunately, although she still had a human consciousness, she was indifferent to humans when she was a human. Yu, before Xiu Xingyu could finish his words, he was interrupted by Yu Qingyu. As I said, I'm not protecting all humans. My gun isn't really for myself. Yu Qingxiao directly put down the suitcase and stepped over the bodies that were still steaming. Yu Qingxiao's three gunshots attracted those people next door. After all, the gunshots appeared to their ears. It must be one of their own. This one alien who was leading the group had originally just asked someone to go and take a look. And if the woman was pretty, bring her back. If it wasn't pretty, then forget it. Looking at them, there was nothing worth robbing. So there shouldn't be a need to shoot. Is it hard to believe that there was a fight? If it's a fight, it looks like that man and woman are not not ordinary people. Looking at the direction they came from, it's the direction of downtown. Could it be that they are aliens? And these three gunshots, I wonder if they made these people notice that there were also those little girls who were locked up in the room. Could it be that this group was trying to rob someone else again? Just over 10 minutes later, the door to the room where they were locked up was suddenly opened. What walked in from the doorway was not those people, but a girl who had wrapped herself up. Yu Qingliang wasn't too surprised to see the eight little girls in the room. She let go of the door handle and then turned around to leave. As for those people in the house, by now, they had already been packed away by Xiu Xingyu. He wasn't around nowadays, so he had probably dragged a few people to feed. Yu Qingliang squatted in front of one of the corpses and rummaged around, finding a set of keys. She then turned around and walked back to the room she was in before and threw the set of keys in. 
These people's cars were all downstairs. As long as they wanted to live, then there was always a way. Those little girls were still young at first glance, probably students. To be able to insist on living in this situation was enough to show their confidence in wanting to live. Yu Qingliang left this place. The snow was still falling outside. The smell of blood shouldn't spread too quickly. It was also unknown where this zombie, Shi Xingyu, had run off to feed. There were two people being eaten. One was the alien who was leading the way, and the other, who seemed to smell a bit better, should be a mutant, really good at picking food. And Yu Qingliang headed downstairs. Just as he got his suitcase, his ears twitched. It seemed like a convoy was coming over, and Yu Qingxiao didn't even think about it. He directly laid down on the ground and tried to play dead. When Shi Xingyu came back, when he saw Yu Qingxian lying on the ground pretending to be dead, he almost fell to the ground on the spot. What's the use of pretending to be dead at this time? It was fortunate that he came back, or else Yu Qingxian would have definitely been treated as a corpse. He scooped up Yu Qingxiao with one hand, carried the suitcase with the other, and disappeared into the house in an instant. The snow outside was still very heavy. When Yu Qingxiao left the house, he made Shi Xingyu stop. Then they squatted outside the house. At this time, Yu Qingxian wasn't pretending to be dead. The convoy stopped in front of the house and a black trench coat man came down from the car. In terms of Yu Qingxiao's aesthetics, even in the entertainment industry, there weren't many that could compare. Was it because she went out less? Or did she not watch many videos? How come she hadn't seen this kind of big handsome guy before the end of the world? This kind of degree. Are the male lead degree? Right. Yu Qingxiao's head was covered with snowflakes, and her eyes were staring straight at the man coming down from the car. Shi Xingyu gave her a somewhat puzzled look. Why don't you play dead now? Yu Qingxian had just finished sighing at the man's handsomeness, while another SUV sped by, even grazing the man to a stop. This off-road Yu Qingxian was familiar with, although not the most familiar one, of that was indeed driven by Gu Evening Ching. When the car stopped, the boys around the man immediately pulled out their guns and pointed them at Gu Evening Ching's car. Gu Evening Ching was not the least bit afraid, she didn't even give the man a look, turned around and headed towards the building under construction. When Qingsheng also got out of the car and came towards the building where Yu Qingxiao had just played dead, although there was snow and wind outside, Yu Qingxiao and the others weren't too far away, so they could hear these people talking. It turned out that the people here were in the same group as those who had kidnapped the family members of the official technicians before. Later on, they split up because of strife, and these people felt that tying up the official people was just looking for death, and that was why they split up. It's just that these people imprisoned those little girls and made a mess of this place. Yu Qingliang watched as when Qingxing entered the first floor and found the three bodies. After checking them out, he was sure that they were dead. Only then did he stand up. They had also searched for days before finding this place. It was Sister Chang who got the information from those people. That was that there were still some gangsters here who had kidnapped some girls and were in the suburbs of H City. As for what suburb, it was unclear. So in the past few days, Gu Evening Ching had been looking for these people. And what attracted them over was the few gunshots that sounded like an illusion. At this moment, when Qingxing could be sure that the gunshots they heard in the wind and snow were not an illusion, he looked around, withdrew his sight, and went out of the house. Gu Evening Qing's sight also brought eight little girls downstairs. They were already wearing thick clothes, and Yu Qingxiao probably knew where these clothes came from, but it was none of her business. Gu Evening Chang was doing a good thing, and she didn't need to stop it. When those eight girls arrived downstairs and looked at the cars, Gu Evening Ching asked if any of them knew how to drive. After determining that someone knew how to drive, an assignment was made. As for that man, Gu Evening Ching didn't have time to care about him for now. Only after when Qing Sheng drove off in one car with another did Gu Evening Ching begin to deal with that man. The two men looked as if they knew each other. When Yu Qing Liang saw that the two seemed to be talking, the fire of this gossip instantly rose. She pulled out her binoculars. So Gu Evening Ching and that man's faces were instantly in front of Yu Qing Xian's eyes. In fact, Yu Qing Xian didn't need the binoculars to see these two and could even hear them talking. That's why Shi Xingyu didn't understand at all why Yu Qingxian even needed the binoculars. Yu Qingxiao could tell from the words of Gu Evening Ching and that man that this man was called Xin Yanli. He was the boss of an underground arms dealer, and Gu Evening Ching was running around the world to find this Xin Yanli. Xin Yanli was bound to have a lot of hot weapons in his hands. Plus, the officials were worried that this Xin Yanli would have a different heart. How to say, Xin Yanli was a criminal before the end of the world, only that he was too well disguised. The officials couldn't catch any evidence. Therefore, in Gu Evening Ching's eyes, this Xin Yanli was like a thousand-year-old fox. It just didn't occur to him that he would meet in this place, because Gu Evening Ching's license plate carried the word police. Xin Yanli's people of course knew that Gu Evening Ching was the official. Yu Qingliang listened while gossiping in his mind. If this Gu Evening Ching was the female lead, then this Xin Yanli was the male lead? 
But the sniper who had been following Gu Evening Harvest around felt good too. Yes, if there is a male lead, then there must be a male second. Yu Qingliang felt sorry for that sniper at this time. Although you were here first, but love is something that doesn't distinguish between first and last. Sure Xing Yu listened to Yu Qingxian chattering away. He couldn't understand a single word, but he could see that at this moment. Yu Qingxiao's expression was indeed like the expression of a zombie that hadn't eaten anyone for a long time suddenly seeing a human being. That focused and serious yet feeling very delicious expression. Sure Xing Yu didn't understand, but looked at the man and woman again. At this time, his face was expressionless. Didn't understand, didn't understand at all. Yu Qingyu's binoculars moved from Gu Evening Ching and Xin Yanli's body to the car. It then met a smiling face. Pei Yuan's hand was then patted on the car window, his head leaning on the back of his hand, staring at Yu Qingxiao with a crooked head. It was as if he could really see himself. Yu Qingxiao saw that he didn't take the snipe anymore, but he wasn't afraid of him. Stretching out a finger, Pei Yuan also stretched out a finger out. Yu Qingxiao stretched out another finger and this time Pei Yuan compared it to a yeah. At this moment, Yu Qingxiao instantly knew that this kid could see them. It was clear that they didn't have any sound and were still in the snow pile. Even Gu Evening Ching and Shen Yanli didn't notice them. But this Pei Yuan seemed to have been staring at the two of them for a while now. Run, hurry up and run. The people around the heroine were no sesame seed crackers. Before Shi Xing Yu could react, he was pulled by Yu Qingxian to run. She had a suitcase in one hand and was pulling on her sleeve with the other. It was the first time that Shi Xing Yu had seen Yu Qingxian run so fast. There was even some panic. This made Shi Xing Yu a little puzzled. Yu Qingxian ran all the way out, looked around, and headed for the beach. What are you running for? Shi Xing Yu let Yu Qingxian pull her along as she ran wildly. Seeing her slow down, he then inquired. Not running and waiting to be caught? There's someone beside Gu Evening Ching who can see us. Yu Qingxian explained. We were already visible. What's wrong with that? Shi Xing Yu was puzzled. They were zombies, not ghosts. Anyone with eyes could see. The problem is big. If we didn't have any cover, it would be fine if we were seen, but we were hiding in the snow. This being seen, that would be completely inappropriate. Yu Qingxiao suddenly stopped and looked at Shi Xing Yu seriously. She and Shi Xing Yu hiding in the snow. People would not normally think that a living person would hide in the snow. After all, people needed a certain temperature to live. Hiding in the snow, this was completely looking for death. So in general, one would not think that there were people under the snow. Of course, zombies under the snow. As long as they smelled the smell of blood and flesh, then they would definitely not stand still. As Shi Xing Yu listened to Yu Qingxiao's explanation, he instantly understood. He and Yu Qingxiao had just been in very thick snow, and ordinary people could not see them. Plus, what they themselves were wearing was a white down jacket. How could a human see it if they didn't stare and look closely? And what could make even Yu Qingxian a little alarmed? It was definitely not a normal small thing. But at this time, the snow was still falling, and the sight in front of them was less than a few meters. Everywhere was white. There was no telling how long this snow was going to fall. As the snow became heavier and heavier, the wind also became stronger and stronger. Yu Qingliang felt as if she was not in the south, but in the north. Could it be that she was actually traveling in the wrong place? Yu Qingxiao felt that she should find a compass to take a look, but she was in the vicinity of H city. It should be normal. Yu Qingxiao stopped and looked for road signs. The main thing was that there was an official base 300 kilometers northeast of H city. It's just that it's been more than two months since the end of the world, and the real several bases should still be under construction. After all, these bases would need to be used for a long time in the future. Therefore the fences were the most important. Yu Qingxiao managed to find a road sign and then turned out her map, but it was too windy for her to turn it over, so she could only head to the house next to her. It was good to be near a big city and not worry about not having a house. As soon as Yu Qingxiao entered the house, she saw a few zombies. Originally, Yu Qingxiao did not want to care about them. How do you know that she just sat down? These zombies surrounded. Ho 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 noisy starving to death. The noise made Yu Qingliang quiet. She could only send them out of the house one by one. The whole house was finally quiet. Shi Xing Yu leaned against the window and watched the several zombies being pushed out of the room by Yu Qingxian. Then he couldn't help but say, they'll freeze to death. Then you can just invite them back again. Yu Qingxian didn't care in the slightest. Freezing to death was fine. There were quite a few zombies that froze to death anyway. Shi Xing Yu. Yu Qingliang remembered the name on the road sign just now and found the location on the map. When she saw the name of the town, the red cross she drew was right next to it. It didn't matter if she looked at it. One look at the body made her a little uncomfortable. There were less than a hundred kilometers to go, and they were going to be at someone's base. Sure enough there was no direction when it came to running around. She didn't even know how long she ran before she stopped. 
Anyway now she was less than a hundred kilometers from the official base. Although she was indeed frightened, when she thought about this kind of weather, Yu Qingliang wasn't worried about being caught. First of all, to catch herself, she would still have to defeat Shi Xingyu first. Right now, it seemed that the old ox could still act as a bodyguard. He could also be pushed out to block the way when necessary. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang suddenly looked up at Shi Xingyu. He shouldn't die that easily. To die, he should also be behind himself. After all, he was so weak. After determining his direction, Yu Qingxiao looked at the wind and snow outside and did not rush to go. Instead, he waited for the snow and wind to stop in this house. Yu Qingxiao sat on the sofa chair in the house, flipping through the books she had fished out from whoever's bookstore she didn't know. After all, her suitcase was empty, with only the camera protected by foam. That was why Yu Qingxian had put quite a few books in it. In addition to loving to watch other people's travel videos during her lifetime, Yu Qingxiao was writing and then reading books. In short, all kinds of books. She read, especially now that there was nothing to do. Of course it was more suitable for reading books. This heavy snowfall was for several days at once. The thickness of the snow went straight to the second floor. Yu Qingxiao pulled open the door of her room, and the snow outside the door blocked her sight. However, it was good that the snow outside had stopped. Shi Xingyu watched Yu Qingxian walk outside and didn't stop her. She was like a little hamster, her hands constantly digging through the snow to move forward. Shi Xingyu followed right behind her, dragging her suitcase. The height of the snow had all reached the second floor, and although it was the snow of the end times, it wasn't actually considered pure snow white. Rather, it was covered with a layer of gray dust in general. If a human ate this kind of snow turned into water, it was estimated that there was also the possibility of zombification. So where on earth did Yu Qingliang get the confidence to bet on the humans to win? It was estimated that with this snow, another group of people would have to die. Thinking of this, Shi Xingyu again felt that Yu Qingxian was right in thinking that if the humans lost, then the zombies would not have the ability to live. The food of the zombies was said to be living things, but in fact 90% of them were humans. If the humans didn't have any, then the zombies would starve to death. If the humans won, the advanced zombies were actually able to hide amongst the humans. As long as they found a way to get fresh blood and flesh, they could naturally live in the human world as well. But like Yu Qingxiao, there was still no way to live in the human world, right? She was allergic to humans, wasn't she? What a strange problem, being a human herself, but being allergic to humans. But, are you sure the direction is right? Shi Xingyu couldn't see the sky either, so he didn't know if Yu Qingxiao was going in the right direction. It should be right. Anyway, I'm walking in the opposite direction towards the base. Yu Qingxian withdrew her hand and looked up at the top of her head. After saying this, she lowered her head again to contemplate. Shi Xingyu also waited for her to finish thinking. Just jump up and take a look. Yu Qingxiao said. Shi Xingyu. He knew that Yu Qingliang couldn't be relied upon. It was just too difficult for him. A zombie. To jump up 4 or 5 meters directly. He was a zombie. Not a springer. Although Shi Xingyu did spit in his mind. He still managed to confirm the direction. Yu Qingliang had indeed not gone in the wrong direction. Although in the several meters of thick snow. Yu Qingxiao was indeed walking a straight path, but Shi Xingyu felt that it was probably unlikely that Yu Qingxiao wanted to see the scenery. Now with this several meters thick snow, it was difficult to go out, let alone see the scenery. Yu Qingxiao was traveling in the post-apocalyptic world. Was this kind of thing serious? After the end of the world, it wasn't just humans that had changed. There were also animals and plants. Some plants had also become blood and flesh eaters. Of course, Shi Xingyu had never seen one is all. Yu Qingxiao had never seen it either. In fact, Yu Qingxiao also planned to take a look at this kind of mutated plants. Yu Qingxiao thought so, but he didn't expect to actually come across it either. After Yu Qingxiao had walked for 7 or 8 days, the snow had finally gotten shorter. But the thickness of the snow was still a meter and a half high. While Shi Xingyu could still have more than his chest outside the snow, Yu Qingxiao had only floated ahead outside. Of course, as soon as they encountered the town, Yu Qingxiao could see that many zombies were floating with a head on the snow. This made Yu Qingxiao's heart more or less balanced. Of course, at this time, she was still nearly 700 kilometers away from the Eastern Garden. In other words, she had traveled for 7 or 8 days and had only gone halfway. And that was even with her not stopping much. Sure enough, it was really hard to walk in winter. On the ninth day, Yu Qingliao saw a very weird rose tree from afar. The reason why it was said to be weird was definitely because it was white flowers everywhere. But this one was full of red roses. And also a large area. Although it looked weird, Yu Qingliang had to say that it was really beautiful. She turned around and climbed up the building next to her, taking out her camera to click pictures. Shi Xingyu did not follow her up. Normally, she would stay on the first floor if she could, 
and would rarely climb high buildings, except when she wanted to see the scenery. Sure Xingyu thought about this Newton plant before, and as a result, she really gave encountered it. Just when Xingyu was not clear whether this Newton plant is a man-eater or even a zombie-eater, or maybe it doesn't eat either, Yu Qingliang didn't think that much. Yu Qingxiao had never really seen such a large patch of roses with his own eyes. It would be nice if there was a little more sunlight. It would be nice to have some more sunlight, like in the morning or in the evening when the sun was setting. Yu Qingxiao was lying on the window, looking at such a big piece of rose garden. She was a little curious if this rose could be cuttings by herself, but she didn't have the time to raise them now. When she traveled through the places she wanted to go, maybe she could raise some flowers. If there were seeds, then it would be a good idea to collect some seeds and put them away for later. When she found a place where no one lived, then it would be good to plant some roses in the yard. As Yu Qingxian thought this, the heavy clouds in the sky gave Yu Qingxian face. After 20 minutes, it actually cracked open a few slits and leaked out some sunlight. The light shone right on the roses on the snow. This made Yu Qingxiao directly exclaim, Sure Xingyu, come up quickly, don't take the stairs, it's too slow. Yu Qingxiao excitedly took his hand and thumped the wall. As for Yu Qingxiao's excitement, Sure Xingyu was a bit surprised. After two months, this was the first time he had seen Yu Qingxiao so excited. It was just flowers. What was there to see? He also told him not to take the stairs. Sure Xingyu actually did not want to see those roses in his heart, but he could not resist Yu Qingxiao's enthusiasm so he could only climb up from the outer wall. However, before he climbed up to the floor where Yu Qingxiang was, his eyes went to those red roses with green leaves underneath, which made sure Xingyu drool. How it looked. It looked like an oversized piece of fresh flesh and blood, so he really couldn't figure out what Yu Qingyu was so excited about. By the time he climbed up to Yu Qingliang's window, he saw Yu Qingliang holding a camera and taking a picture of him. Sure Xingyu suddenly remembered that during this period of time, whenever there was a beautiful scenery or building, Yu Qingxian had asked herself to go stand and then she took pictures of him. It was clear that she wanted to travel, but she didn't take pictures with the scenery. Sure Xingyu climbed in and turned his head to look out the window. The light sunlight sprinkled on the red roses, but Sure Xingyu was not able to feel the scenery, because he was just a zombie. There was no human aesthetic anymore. Yu Qingliang could see that Sure Xingyu did not like looking at the scenery, but when he saw a beautiful scenery, he still couldn't help but want to share it with others. She only had Sure Xingyu by her side so she could only share it with Sure Xingyu. Although Sure Xingyu couldn't see what was so pretty about this kind of scenery, he turned his head and saw that Yu Qingxian's greenish-gray face seemed to have color. Regarding Yu Qingxian's past, Sure Xingyu did not know, nor did he want to know. After all, he was only a zombie and was not interested in the past of being a human. He was just more curious as to how Yu Qingxian, as a zombie, could still maintain human consciousness and memories. Seeing Sure Xingyu staring at him, Yu Qingxian explained, for the first 28 years of my life, I seldom went out and traveled. And you know my body, it's not suitable for going out. And my parents, died in a car accident on their way out and traveling, so I dislike going out even more. Speaking here, Yu Qingliang sighed. In fact, sometimes I wonder if it would have been better if I had followed my mom and dad out at that time. There was regret in Yu Qingxiao's heart. After mom and dad passed away, Yu Qingxiao's days and nights were upside down. Of course, Yu Qingxiao thought that he might just live like this for the rest of his life. Yet, he did not expect to encounter the end times at all. Perhaps it was because of the end times that gave her the courage to walk out of that room. If I were a human, or had a human consciousness like you, wouldn't I be able to respond to this topic of yours from a human perspective? Sure Xingyu could probably understand Yu Qingxian's words, but could not understand the meaning of her words at all. The fact that she would suddenly say this to herself should be because she wanted someone to strike up a conversation with her. Yu Qingxian saw that Sure Xingyu actually wanted to try to understand the thoughts of humans, which made her a little surprised. No, because you're a zombie, that's why I'm talking to you about this. I don't think I need comfort or sympathy. Those things don't serve any purpose for me. Yu Qingliang explained. It was because Sure Xingyu didn't understand anything that Yu Qingxiao was able to be uninhibited in front of him. It was like when she was in her own home. She chatted with her hand-me-downs and Muppet dolls. She didn't need any response. Sure Xingyu was a bit surprised by Yu Qingyin's words. Humans were all group animals. And because of this, Sure Xingyu always felt that Yu Qingxian actually needed friends. Otherwise, he wouldn't have brought himself along. Then the reason you're willing to bring me along is? Sure Xingyu asked her. But you're the one who followed me up, aren't you? Yu Qingliang asked Sure Xingyu in return. She had never said that she wanted to be accompanied by Sure Xingyu. And he and Sure Xingyu had already said goodbye twice. But Sure Xingyu always caught up. Sure Xingyu was similar to a hand puppet in her eyes, right? In the past, many handicraft or anime fans would go out and take pictures of their favorite character with a cotton doll or a stand-up bar or something like that. 
Yu Qingliang let Shi Xingyu go to stand and take pictures. It is also regarded as taking a hand puppet to hit the card. Should Yu Qingyan's words made Shi Xingyu realize it was indeed him who was dead set on following Yu Qingxian. It was he who needed Yu Qingxian, not Yu Qingxian who needed him. The fact that Yu Qingxiao would share the scenery with him was probably just a subconscious reaction. It wasn't necessarily for him to come and see it. Once he thought of this, Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingxiao, this zombie as a human, was also a freak, right? Put in a crowd, it was definitely an unpleasant type. You must have been very unpleasant when you were a human, right? You couldn't even do the most basic human word of fitting in. Shi Xingyu couldn't help but say, he just wanted to know what words could touch Yu Qingyan. Yu Qingxiao retorted as he put away his camera. That's not true. When I used to go to school, my classmates were all very good at getting along with each other. So don't think too badly of humans. After saying this, Yu Qingxiao thought of something else before adding. Of course, don't think too well of humans either. But that's not much use to you. You just need to think of humans as enemies. They were zombies now, and were on the opposite side of the human race. If they thought that all humans were good people, then they would definitely suffer a great loss. No, it was losing their lives. While Shi Xingyu was still thinking about Yu Qingxian's words, Yu Qingxian had already packed her bags. She reached out and shouldered her suitcase and headed downstairs. She, who was usually afraid of trouble, really never complained just for the sake of seeing the scenery. It was only at this time that Shi Xingyu realized that amongst humans, there were all sorts. Just like zombies, there were all kinds. By the time Shi Xingyu reacted, Yu Qingxiao had already descended two floors. He hurriedly chased after him. It was then that he heard Yu Qingxian muttering to herself. She didn't need others to respond, being able to handle both the questioner and the answerer perfectly by herself. Self-questioning and self-answering were manifested in Yu Qingxian's body. But Yu Qingxiao wanted to pick roses. It was too dangerous. First of all, it wasn't sure if the mutated plant would absorb the zombies as well or not. And this problem was also within Yu Qingxiao's consideration. If this plant had turned into a carnivorous plant, then there was no need. In case there was a man-eating, zombie-eating plant with her that came out to bite her from time to time, she couldn't stand it, and there was no snow around this rose. It seemed that snow did not fall on top of this rose. Yu Qingliang sneaked over the snow. She pinched a few snowballs and threw them over, but the rose didn't react, so she threw a few more over. Still no reaction. Yu Qingxiao looked at the snowballs in her hands and then looked back at Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu was standing at a distance guarding her suitcase, his eyes just watching her. It was as if he was afraid that she would be swallowed by that rose. When Shi Xingyu saw Yu Qingxian turn his head to look at him, he was a bit puzzled. Just before he could open his mouth, a pinched hard snowball smashed precisely on his face. Although it didn't hurt, Shi Xingyu didn't know what Yu Qingxian was doing. Could it be because the scent of that rose could affect the consciousness of zombies and humans, causing them to attack their own kind? Thinking of this, Shi Xingyu immediately rushed forward and directly carried Yu Qingxian back. Yu Qingxiao was a bit puzzled, not knowing what Shi Xingyu was trying to do, could it be that this rose could really attack? But she didn't see it. It wasn't until Shi Xingyu put Yu Qingxian down and exchanged thoughts that she realized this was an oops. You sure are boring. Boring zombie. Being a human must be boring too. Yu Qingxiao couldn't help but spit at Shi Xingyu after he stood firmly. And how interesting are you? After Shi Xingyu had been in contact with Yu Qingyan for a long time, he would refute Yu Qingyan like a human. This made Yu Qingxian a bit surprised. Indeed, I am also boring. Yu Qingxiao nodded his head and admitted this. In the end, after Shi Xingyu's probing, he learned that this was a mutated rose, but it wasn't interested in zombies. It had simply become more hardy. Of course, it wasn't certain if the plant wasn't interested in humans as well. In short, this rose plant was safe. After Yu Qingliang was sure that this rose plant was safe, he dove in headfirst like a small child. This was one of the few times when the Yu Qingxiao and Shi Xingyu's eyes was so outwardly emotional. He didn't understand why Yu Qingxiao would be this happy over a plant. Anyway, when Yu Qingxian walked out from under that patch of rose trees, apart from the fact that her entire body had become fragrant and her clothes were scratched by the rose thorns, there was only a large bouquet of roses in her arms. She also had a few rose seeds in her pocket. But Yu Qingxiao hadn't thought about planting flowers before. And now that she had collected the seeds, it would be time to look for a few books on planting. Yu Qingxian thought so, and of course did so. She commanded the old ox that was shirshing you to go to the town's bookstore again. She just didn't know if this kind of bookstore in this kind of town had this kind of books. But she went in and flipped through them and found that they didn't. Mostly novels and students cramming materials and such. She wasn't too disappointed, and took a few novels she wanted to read, then put the ones she had finished on the bookshelf. Is this sort of bartering? After taking the books, they started walking east again. Originally, they thought that the further north they went, 
the thicker this snow would get, but the truth was the complete opposite of what Yu Qingliang thought, the more they let go of the north, the less this snow became, which made Yu Qingxian curious, the weather in the end times was unpredictable, so the temperature in the south was switched with the north, this, no, then she still wanted to go to the north to see the snow, but once she thought of the snow in the south, she felt that she could go see the flowers in the north, so the plan was changed, the matter of going to the north to see snow was replaced with going to the north to see flowers, really live a long time, what strange things can be seen, at this time Yu Qingliang suddenly felt that it was a blessing that her consciousness had not dissipated, if she hadn't left her human consciousness behind, then she wouldn't be able to see these images, as for Yu Qingxiao's large bunch of roses, they were made into specimen bookmarks by her, Shirshing Yu did not understand these practices of Yu Qingxian, but did not stop them either, when they were about to reach the oriental garden, Yu Qingxiao still sneaked around to see if there was a survivor base ahead, anyways, there were a lot of people in this area, just one base should not be enough, right, and it had been three months since she had gotten hold of human intelligence, it was possible that she might have missed something by mistake, it would be bad if she broke into someone else's base camp, the city of Ji in February seemed unusually warm, of course, it wasn't Yu Qingliang who felt it, but there wasn't any thick snow here, and even his suitcase had started charging automatically, it was enough to show that the sun was just right here, but again, she didn't feel mentally drained, which meant that today's sunlight wasn't too strong, it was probably just right for spring weather in the mid-twenties, Shi Xingyu followed behind Yu Qingxian, and at this point, the suitcase was already fully charged and didn't need him to pull it, Yu Qingxian rode on the suitcase, the whole person lying on the lever, sneaking through the streets and alleys, Shi Xingyu had absolutely no idea what the hell she was doing, Yu Qingxiao did not realize that her own caution, in the eyes of Shi Xingyu, became sneaky, the city of Ji is located in the easternmost part of the city, it was still some distance away from the sea, but in the past, this city was a coastal city, a famous harbor city in ancient times, but now it was already considered half an inland city, Yu Qingliang looked at the zombies loitering on the streets, which was a relief, obviously this city was still under zombie occupation, however, Yu Qingliang had just breathed a sigh of relief when he heard the sound of gunshots, which made Yu Qingliang so scared that he took control of his suitcase and headed for the alley. In short, as long as it was an artificially created commotion, she was just like a scared bird, always making a fuss. Shi Xingyu also followed Yu Qingxian into the alley, and after they entered the alley, a convoy of cars traveled in the distance. There were five cars. There should be quite a few people. Sure enough, it was a big city, and even if it was an alien squad, the number of people was quite large, Yu Qingliang watched as the five cars drove past his eyes, while heaps of zombies followed behind them, these zombies had obviously evolved in the winter, the speed was already very fast, already exceeding the speed of an average person running, nowadays, in the post-apocalyptic world, if one were to rely solely on the two legs of a human, one would definitely not be able to outrun a zombie, as she looked at these running zombies, she couldn't help but sigh, if all these zombies were to participate in a marathon, there wouldn't even be enough medals to give out. Shi Xingyu didn't know what Yu Qingyu was talking about and just calmly replied, At this speed, they are definitely going to starve to death. Yu Qingliang didn't care about Shi Xingyu's oxymoronic words. These zombies were already running faster than himself. But in fact, Yu Qingxiao felt that his physical ability was already stronger than when he was a human. To say that the zombie virus was an evolution, Yu Qingxiao felt that it was very true. But to say that it was a good evolution, that was not necessarily true. If zombies were like themselves and could choose not to eat people, that would be quite good, no matter what way you looked at it. Creatures like zombies did have obvious weaknesses, but as long as the weaknesses were protected, then they were really invincible. The sustaining ability was strong, and as long as they ate a little bit of blood and flesh, they could last for a long time. But the point of rushing upwards at the smell of blood and flesh really didn't fit well. Sure enough the zombie still had to be a high-level zombie. Like Shi Xingyu, Yu Qinglian thought so and looked up at Shi Xingyu. Seeing that the corners of his mouth began to secrete saliva again, she didn't say anything, it was true that zombies still couldn't change their cannibalistic nature, didn't you just eat two people, why are you craving again, Yu Qingliang couldn't help but spit at Shi Xingyu, why are you so gluttonous, when Shi Xingyu heard this, he retorted to Yu Qingyan, it's not just eating, it's been almost a month, as a high level zombie that evolved fast in the end times, it only ate once a month. This was definitely going to be laughed at by other advanced zombies when it was spread out. Yu Qingliang didn't say anything. She hadn't eaten for three months and didn't feel any hunger. Nor would she want to eat. The fact that an alien squad appeared here means that there is indeed a survivor base nearby. Of course, it's also possible that these squads have traveled a long distance to come here. But whichever it is, 
It means that this city can't be stayed in for a long time. Yu Qingliang watched the group of zombies pass, so he went forward and bent down to pick up a small zombie that was lying on the ground. The little zombie should have been five or six years old when it was alive, and now it was also running and chasing after those zombies. The little zombie that was helped up by Yu Qingliang did not stop and continued to chase forward. However, after running for some distance, it lost its target and started to slow down again, indicating that the caravan had already left the scope of these zombies' sense of smell. However, the tip of Yu Qingliang's nose still faintly wafted some aromas. The aroma dissipated to the tip of Yu Qingliang's nose after a minute. It seemed that those people had completely left the city. Yu Qingxia turned around and came back, mounted her suitcase and continued to the city center. The center of the city of Ji City was the target of Yu Qingxia's trip, the place known as the Eastern Garden. There were a lot of zombies in the city, but for Yu Qingxiao and Shi Xingyu, they were not an obstacle. They arrived at the Oriental Garden very smoothly. The garden hadn't been damaged much. It was just that because there was no one to manage it. Those grasses and trees had grown a lot crazier in the three months. But this was completely unimportant to Yu Qingliang. She went to the entrance and lined up for a while before she poked her way in to get her ticket and then entered the park. Still sitting on the luggage, with a visitor's guide map in her hand. She was like a real tourist, not caring that there were walkers all around her or that she was just a walker. Yu Qingliang looked at the surrounding scenery very carefully and would also take her camera out to take pictures. Shi Xingyu followed right behind Yu Qingxian, his eyes looking around, not feeling anything special. He was also not sure what was going on in Yu Qingxian's head. Yu Qingxiao wasn't thinking about anything at this time. She was just looking at the scenery in her own way. When Yu Qingxiao used to watch other people's traveling videos, it was more of a preparation for writing a novel. After all, there were some things that one couldn't write about without experiencing them personally. But authors are such existences, describing everything in words and weaving a false yet real world for readers. A well-written author can make the reader feel as if the characters in the book have actually lived in the world. However, Yu Qingxiao didn't have that kind of attainment, and at most, he entertained himself when he wrote. But at this moment, Yu Qingxiao looked at these landscapes and probably had some understanding of why many authors like to go out and travel. It's just that now Yu Qingxiao doesn't need these things. She comes out to look at the scenery. There is the influence of those authors. There is the influence of her parents and there is the influence of her neighbor's big sister. But most importantly, it was the step she took. If she hadn't thought of traveling, she would have remained in her own home, lying on that bed, waiting for her energy to run out, and then turned into blood, white bones, and finally a handful of dirt. But now, Yu Qingliang was very thankful to himself, thankful that he had walked out of that room. When the sun went down, Yu Qingxiao didn't proceed to wander further. Instead, she went out of the forest garden and found a hotel to rest. Shi Xingyu didn't understand why she was doing this. But he felt that he had learned something from Yu Qingyan. That was, as a zombie, as a powerful zombie, one could not be too ostentatious. Humans, were not fragile, perhaps, he should separate from Yu Qingxiao. Zombies were never hurt animals. And he wasn't the least bit worried about Yu Qingxiao dying at the hands of humans, much less worry about her dying in the mouth of a zombie. They were always different. Yu Qingxian couldn't understand the thoughts of a zombie, and he couldn't understand Yu Qingxian who possessed human consciousness. So when Yu Qingxiao looked at Shi Xingyu standing in the doorway to say goodbye to her, there wasn't a hint of surprise. Goodbye, I hope to see you again this fall. Last year I said that I would go to see Autumn Lake again this year, but don't get killed by humans. Yu Qingliang said. There wasn't a trace of reluctance on his face. When Shi Xingyu heard this, he also just nodded slightly and then disappeared in front of the hotel room. Zombies originally fed on humans. Shi Xingyu was a gentle person in his lifetime. Right. Even if he didn't remember his memories from when he was human, he would subconsciously avoid himself when he fed, and also wouldn't take the initiative to prey on humans. It was indeed very hard ah. When Yu Qinglian woke up and didn't see Shi Xingyu, he was indeed a bit uncomfortable, because after seven or eight days, Yu Qinglian would pick a place to rest for a good night, and Shi Xingyu would always sit by the bedside like this and stare at her. Now that she woke up and did not see him, it was indeed a bit surprising, but Yu Qinglian was only uncomfortable for a moment. She slowly got up, because there was no more snow and there was still sunlight. Yu Qingxiao changed into a pretty dress again. She carried her suitcase downstairs and also went to change into a dress that wasn't really an ancient system. It was a new Chinese style dress. It was very everyday. But one could see what ancient clothes looked like. A skirt like this didn't affect movement and wouldn't be out of place in this ancient garden. Even Yu Qingxiao's action of sitting on the suitcase was not a straddle but a side seat. It was true that people depended on their clothes. Yu Qingxiao felt that his movements were much more restrained. Yu Qingxiao sat on the suitcase, and the suitcase carried her, still wandering in the garden. There were zombies in the garden, 
and most of the clothes they were wearing also fit well with this garden. She took out her camera and took pictures of the zombies, but it was only one morning before the camera in Yu Qingxiao's hand almost shut down due to low battery. It was good that Yu Qingxiao's luggage was rechargeable. She then found a place with good sunlight and let her suitcase charge, while she was wandering around idly on the side. For her suitcase and camera, Yu Qingxiao didn't think that any walkers would come and take them. If she put a fresh piece of flesh and blood, that would be something to worry about. Yu Qingxiao stood under the pavilion and looked at the suitcase and camera that were basking in the sun, thinking that she had so much time, should she take what she wanted to do as a young child and try it out? Thinking so, Yu Qingxian let the suitcase bask in the sun here while she left the garden and went to the store next to it. When she came out again, she was holding a few sketchbooks in her arms and some pencils in her hands. For these things, Yu Qingliang had quite a few memories. When she didn't know any better, she liked to take the pencils and draw on the walls at home. At that time, she didn't really like talking to others. Yu Qingxiao felt that she was more autistic when she said she was sociopathic. But then again, she wasn't completely autistic, because as long as she wanted to, she could still communicate normally with others. It was just that Yu Qingliang did not want to communicate with others. She felt that it was completely unnecessary. When Yu Qingxiao returned to the garden with her sketchbook in her arms, the consumed power was already fully charged, and the camera's charge was also one-third full. Yu Qingxiao put the camera back into the suitcase and sat on the suitcase, holding the sketchbook and pen in her hands, and continued walking again. The suitcase was stable and not really bumpy. The speed was also set to the minimum by Yu Qingxiao. The minimum speed of this suitcase was similar to a human walking. The fastest speed, on the other hand, was able to catch up with the speed of an electric car. It was no wonder that a suitcase could be sold for over a hundred thousand dollars. If it wasn't for the end of the world, Yu Qingliang felt that he would only be able to look at it. It was impossible to pull it to accompany his own upheaval. So Yu Qingxiao's first drawing was for her own suitcase. She got down from the suitcase, studied around the slowly moving suitcase, and then directly pressed stop the suitcase, squatting on the ground. She observed her suitcase 360 degrees, then made sketch after sketch of it. Finally she chose the one she was most satisfied with, and she held it out to the suitcase, saying it was the best one she had ever drawn. Although the suitcase was just a suitcase and didn't have the means to answer her words, Yu Qingliang didn't care at all. All in all it was a good day. Of course, it was limited to just the morning. When the sun was slightly in the west, the tip of Yu Qingxiao's nose caught a faint aroma. It was an aroma that belonged to living things, because everyone's flavor gave Yu Qingliang a different aroma. For example, Gu Evening Qing's aroma was the kind that was light and gave people a feeling of refreshing their minds when they smelled it, and the teenager next to her also had a very light aroma. As for the one who had been sitting in the back seat, it gave Yu Qingxiao a feeling that it was more like that kind of plant aroma, and did not belong to dessert or meat aroma. However, if these three people ate it, it would definitely be in the excellent category, because the more fragrant the food, it wasn't actually the most flavorful to eat. Of course, it could also be very unhealthy. It was just that even if it was an extreme human like Gu Evening Ching, Yu Qingxiao had no appetite for her. As for the strong aroma of those ordinary humans, it was like passing by a store and suddenly smelling the aroma feeling like you wanted to eat something. However, when entering the store, it was not at all as appealing as the aroma that one suddenly smelled when outside the store. In an instant, there was no appetite. This was also the reason why Yu Qingliang didn't have any thoughts about humans. Once she got close, that aroma was enough to make her feel full. Thinking about this, Yu Qingxiao suddenly reacted. Actually, she had been eating all along, right? It was just that she didn't need to consume blood and flesh like ordinary zombies, nor did she need to be like a high-level zombie like Shi Xingyu who could eat at intervals. The way she fed was by smelling the aroma of humans, right? As long as there were people in her neighborhood, as long as she was smelling that aroma, she was already feeding, right? Of course, this was just Yu Qingliang's guess. Oh, Toki see you. Can you smell the aroma from humans? There was no voice to answer her. Ow, oh, the human isn't there. Yu Qingliang reacted. She stood up and looked at the zombies coming and going. So she grabbed a random one and asked. Of course, they were all just subconsciously venting their desires. And there was no way for them to communicate with Yu Qingliang. Yu Qingxiao couldn't communicate with them. So she didn't dwell on the issue anymore. She continued to sit on the suitcase again and stroll through the garden. As for the faint aroma wafting from the tip of her nose. Yu Qingxiao didn't care, because it was very faint. Yu Qingxiao knew that there was some distance away from her. It was only when it was evening that Yu Qingxiao felt that the aroma gradually dispersed. It didn't suddenly disappear, but dispersed. This had happened once when she had witnessed the man's death. It had also appeared when she killed those people before. In other words, someone had died. Yu Qingliang pulled her suitcase through the garden and went through another door. 
At this time, there were quite a few zombies surrounding the entrance of this door. It was only because these zombies were separated by the crowd-proof guardrail. Yu Qingliang slightly inclined his head and saw the person lying next to him who had already lost his breath. He was not injured by the zombies. If he was injured by a zombie, then this person would have turned into a zombie. Instead, he had bled to death here. She crouched down and faced the man who had passed away. And looking back to the walkers that were scrambling to try and rush forward, she reached out and waved at them. She moved as if she was hurting a small animal. Of course, the walkers couldn't read it. It was just that the dozen or so rows of guardrails made it impossible for them to come in. And while there weren't many walkers in this place, there was another gate shutting off the access to this place. None of the zombies that passed by could open it. That's why Yu Qingliang, the one who still maintained human consciousness, was able to open this gate. It was also this gate that isolated this person's vitality. If I had gone faster, you would have survived. Yu Qingliang couldn't help but say as she looked at his unwillingness before he died. Of course, she didn't blame herself in any way. After all, it wasn't herself who killed him. Yu Qingxiao's eyes moved from his face to his hands. He was still holding the gun in his hand. Well, it's a good thing I didn't come in a hurry, or else I would have to eat your gun as soon as I opened the door, right? Yu Qingliang opened his mouth. After saying this, she had to put his gun away. As a result, just as she picked it up, she fired a shot at the floor. Sure enough, even the safety was on. As soon as a walker got close, he would shoot, even if he knew that he would die even here. He wouldn't let the walkers hurt him, and even if those people came after him, he was planning to fight back to the death, right? What's the point of fighting so hard? In the end it's still not death. Yu Qingliang was helpless. After saying this, she bent down and dragged the corpse's legs, directly dragging him away, only leaving a trail of red blood on the ground. Yu Qingliang felt like a post-apocalyptic cleaning ant oh, how many people had she buried? The three at the hospital, the man later, and now another one had appeared. Five now. All of them were men. Luckily there were no girls. Otherwise Yu Qingliang didn't know how to face this girl. After all, between the same sex, there was always a hint of affection. Yu Qingxiao plowed the pit and dumped the man in. Looking at the man lying in the pit, the man's looks were considered clean cut. Right. And he didn't look too old. He should be a few years younger than himself. Yu Qingliang thought so, but still buried the soil into the pit. There was no place to find a coffin and no time to cremate him. The temperature of the flame wasn't high enough and at most, it would just roast the man to a crispy aroma. Moreover, zombies were afraid of high temperatures. Yu Qingliang was also afraid of it. With this in mind, she buried the man before nightfall. She even went up and stomped the new soil solid. The soil could isolate the smell of blood. This way the buried body would not be plowed out by the zombies. Yu Qingliang looked at the grave that didn't even have a small mound. If the grass grows in the future, no one would remember if there was this person. After she buried the person, she shifted her position in her suitcase. Since the forest garden was done strolling around, she was going to continue her journey north. It was just that she rode her suitcase into a small alley. Then she heard the sound of a car again. There was no aroma to be smelled. So it seems the car didn't have the windows open. It was sealed well. And these people were really vigilant about not letting the scent escape. But it could just be a coincidence. Yu Qingliang probed from the alley. And three minutes later, several cars stopped at the location of the garden's back door. Seeing that these cars were modified, even the windows were fitted with protective nets. It was very professional. In fact, Yu Qingliang and these cars and people were very close. It was just more than 10 meters away. It was just that if they were talking in the car, then she couldn't hear them. If the windows were down, Yu Qingxiao could still hear them. Of course, what they were going to say. Yu Qingxiao was interested and not interested. After all, Yu Qingxiao couldn't go and knock on someone else's window and make them talk to themselves but the heavens did not fail the melon eaters. Those people dropped their windows. Oh, fierce looking. It looked like the face of a villain from a TV show. Yu Qingliang has always encountered characters that look like protagonists. He wouldn't meet a villain this time. Cleaned up? The man looked towards the back entrance of the garden. But because he had dropped the window, it caused many zombies to surround it. The roars of those zombies were close to silencing the man's voice as he spoke. This made Yu Qingliang really want to roar. After many days, I can finally eat melon. How can I be silenced by the voices of you fools? Yu Qingxiao crouched in the corner, his whole body radiating a ghostly aura. The person in the car also seemed to dislike the noise of those zombies and directly roared. Those zombies actually did not make a sound. Yu Qingliang was shocked. This person is a cow. Surprisingly, he was able to suppress the zombies. The people in the car were also a bit surprised when they saw that the zombies were silenced. However, these low-grade zombies could not break the defense of his modified car. At this moment, the zombie was lying on the front of the car. 
also blocking his vision. He did not see the man's body, but with that serious gunshot wound in this city full of zombies, it was impossible to survive. The most important thing was that what he shot was the man's lungs. Even if he had a hard life, he wouldn't survive. He would only die a painful death. Even if he was more powerful, wouldn't he die under his own gun now? Becoming a zombie's ration, he couldn't even leave a whole body. Yu Qingliang was listening happily on the side. Originally so originally so. The mutiny of the alien squad. The original captain was taken out. In other words, the person she buried turned out to be the captain of a shifter squad. But it was also true. If it was an ordinary person, with such heavy injuries, there was no way to find a safe place. On top of that there were a dozen rows of one and a half meter high fences to climb over. Such a talent. Unexpectedly really dead. Twenty minutes ago, it was even buried by her. What a pity. What a pity. Anyway, these people just came to see if that person was dead or not. To be able to travel freely in a big city full of zombies was really something. Anyway, Yu Qingliang didn't want to be discovered by these people. If she was discovered, then she could only lie down on the board. Retreat, retreat, retreat. Eating melon ended. Yu Qingxiao tiptoed around with her suitcase and left. She was afraid of making a little noise. It was true that humans were too dangerous. Yu Qingxiao was glad that she didn't have a heartbeat anymore. Otherwise, she felt that her heartbeat could be heard eight miles away. Yu Qingxiao carried her suitcase, bent over, and crawled like a dog away from this place of wrongdoing. Only when Yu Qingxiao felt that she had reached a safe place did she put down the suitcase. Anyway, first look for cover. It was true that just because you were in a big city, you couldn't do whatever you wanted just because you thought there were a lot of zombies. There were still people like Gu Wanqing who could do whatever they wanted in a big city. That's why Yu Qingliang's days in the future would be difficult. It turned out that being a zombie was not that easy. At this moment, Yu Qingxiao had the idea of locking herself up in the house again. As long as she was in the house, she wouldn't have to worry about how to face those humans. Of course, in just an instant, Yu Qingxiao kicked open the door of the room. Screw shutting up the house. She still had to go hiking across the country. But first, let's check out the route. Was she going to steal some human information? If she wandered off, she could lose her life. Since this city had two alien squads come in two days, then it means there must be a survivor base near this city. And these squads look very strong. After all, they all staged a coup. It means that there are a lot of strong people in the squads. If they were not capable enough to command their men, then they would definitely be replaced. So this must be someone from the official new base, right? What does a big base look like? I want to see it. Why don't we sneak in and take a look? Take a few more pictures? Ow. Oh, excitement. Yu Qingliang thought so and started to make plans. First of all, it must not be too close, because the defense line was set up in a few kilometers or even a dozen kilometers, right? How to say it is also considered a place where human beings will live for a long time in the future. Naturally, it cannot be easily overrun by zombies again, so the situation in the novel where the zombies surrounded the city and then abandoned it would never exist. It wasn't that Yu Qingliang thought things too well, rather, the country she lived in was indeed capable of doing this. Yu Qingxiao thought so, but of course, she had to be careful. The first thing was to sneakily follow those alien squads. In the past, it was Yu Qingxiao who avoided the humans and went. And now, Yu Qingxiao followed the humans. Although following people naturally meant being careful of some Xenos, such as Xenos or mutants with good eyes and very sensitive ears. But what Yu Qingliang needed was not to follow the humans all the time, until one roughly knew where they were heading. That was enough. As long as it was a place where humans travel to, it was bound to be a place that was safe for humans. If it was safe for the humans, then it would be right for her to go in the opposite direction. After Yu Qingliang finalized it this way, she held up her nose and sniffed around, to see where there were humans. Originally, Yu Qingxiao thought that she would have to wait for a few days before she could encounter humans, but how could she not expect that this G city, there were so many people, come here to play mahjong, ha? Huh? Of course, these people didn't live in the city center of G city, rather, they were at the edge of the city. After all, the number of zombies at the edge of the city was small, and it was easy to run away. Yu Qingliang could smell the scent of two groups of people. It was estimated to be dozens of people. Thinking like this, then there must be a large base in this neighborhood. After all, there were many big cities within a few hundred kilometers. Those who went out to fight for their lives were almost all rooted in these cities. If there were many zombies, then there were also many survivors. If there are many survivors, there are also many corresponding psychics. Otherwise, that kind of usurpation drama during the day wouldn't have happened. Yu Qingliang placed her suitcase in a safe place before carefully taking her binoculars over. First she had to determine the number of people on the other side. There were two parties in total. It was only a few hundred meters apart. 
It was probably also for the sake of a good fight if zombies did appear at that time. Yu Qingliang squatted upstairs and used the binoculars to observe the cars of those two squads. They were all downstairs and did not drive into the house. It was true that humans' ability to react and adapt was indeed very strong. The cars of the two squads were all modified. Even the wheels were the kind of thickened material that could press nails without being poked. Even the roofs of the cars had continuous machine guns mounted on them. Obviously, three months was enough time for the humans to generate the ability to defend themselves. Yu Qingliang looked at the vehicles and then looked upstairs. It was found that the windows were all plastered with lightproof stickers. This kind of lightproof sticker could clearly see the outside from the inside, but the outside couldn't see the inside, nor could it see the light from the inside. After all, zombies also have phototropism. If there was light, then it would attract zombies and zombie birds. Of course, this kind of lightproof sticker is only lightproof and ordinary zombies, like some secondary zombies and tertiary zombies are completely unable to prevent. In this situation, of course, they could only fight. Yu Qingxiao took a closer look and realized that the survivors that were closer to him seemed to be the same group of people that he saw during the day. This made Yu Qingxiao a little more careful. Just as she was about to take her binoculars back, she realized that what looked like a super large bat was affixed to the outside of the house where that group of people were temporarily staying. Yu Qingxiao stared carefully and realized that it wasn't a bat. Instead, it was a zombie, still maintaining a human body and head. It could be seen that it was humanoid. Only that it was lying on the wall with black flesh skin attached to its hands and feet, causing it to look like a supersized bat. Obviously, this zombie was an evolved advanced zombie. It should be looking for an opportunity to attack humans. It was estimated that it would have to wait for the dead of night before it planned to strike. It was true that evolved zombies were better and knew how to pick the time. Yu Qingliang didn't have the kindness to remind those people. If they couldn't even solve this kind of zombie, and came to this big city full of zombies, they were totally looking for death. When it was almost 1 or 2 o'clock in the night, that zombie finally moved. It directly broke the window and entered. And for a moment, this house immediately resounded with sounds. It was followed by the screams of the humans. Yu Qingliang lay down on the window and carefully looked at the situation in the house. One could probably see the panic in the house through the broken window. After all, a high-level zombie like this one that mixed in a sneak attack was indeed surprising. The screams startled the surrounding zombies. And these zombies surrounded towards the place where the screams were made. For a moment, those people didn't care that the gunshots would attract zombies. After all, the screams had definitely attracted zombies. Now was the time to first kill this high-level zombie and leave this place. The other alien squad a hundred meters away had also moved. As for whether or not to help this squad, it was definitely impossible. Even if they did go to help, they would most likely be used by the other party as bait. And that Black Thunder squad was such a team. Especially since the Black Thunder squad's captain disappeared half a month ago. The Black Thunder squad had become even more lawless. In the past, there was still their captain who had suppressed it. Therefore the squads in the base all felt that the reason why the Black Thunder squad's captain had disappeared might have been killed by that whoever. But no one had proof. Until three days ago, there were people who said that they had seen the Black Thunder squad's captain in G-City. And he was still alive. Just running away at the sight of people. Seemingly afraid of being found out about his whereabouts. Now that they came across the Black Thunder squad in G-City, maybe they came to kill the former captain. Like this kind of squad that could be deadly to the captain and would use their team members as bait. They wouldn't help. Therefore, in Yu Qinglian's eyes, the other squad found out about the high-level zombie attack and directly packed up their things and ran away. This made Yu Qingxiao startled. She thought that at this time, there would be two squads working together to take down this high-level zombie. After all, the crystal core of a high-level zombie should be worth a lot of money, right? So even if they couldn't get the crystal core of this zombie, they would still be able to get a lot of things from the other party. Right? Thinking of the word crystal core, Yu Qingxiao felt as if the weight of the backpack on his back was very heavy. This made Yu Qingxiao transform into a screaming chicken again. She had forgotten to return the crystal core to Shershingyu. With that kid's speed, he would have run off somewhere by now. The phone didn't work, and even if it did, she couldn't contact Shershingyu. Yu Qingliang sighed as she leaned over the window. In the future, she would have to carry this crystal core on her back. Wait until the fall. Then return it to Shershingyu. Yu Qingxiao squatted at the window and watched for almost 20 minutes or so. That zombie was still taken down by that alien squad, but with several hundred zombies surrounding them. If the squad's people wanted to leave, someone would have to lure the zombies away, or just blow up the walkers. But these zombies were very close to their vehicle. If they threw a bomb, it would definitely affect the vehicle. Just as Yu Qingliang was curious about what this squad of people were going to do, two people suddenly jumped down from the second floor and ran over in Yu Qingxiao's direction. The zombies behind the two people saw that the gate could not be opened. 
so they naturally came after the two people. While these zombies left, the people upstairs immediately came down and drove away. Yu Qingliang instantly understood that these two people were the bait. Originally, he thought that this kind of bridge would only happen in novels, but once he thought of many social news, Yu Qingxiao felt that it would happen as if it wasn't too surprising. Who would have thought that the little handsome man who had no communication barriers with him would eat people? The two people who were used as bait also ran as hard as they could. Anyways, as long as they got rid of the zombies, then there was still a possibility of survival. Yu Qingliang looked at the approaching zombies and felt that there was not much chance of these two people surviving. But in the end, those who were able to enter the alien squad were definitely not trash. The two ran very fast, and one of them stepped on the roof of the car and flipped up to the second floor. After all, it wasn't safe to stand on the roof of the car. But if there were zombies on the second floor that the person flipped up to, then that person would be considered a sheep in a wolf's mouth. Yu Qingliang stood on the building, wanting to see how the remaining person would escape only to see the teenager quickly pull out something from the small bag on his waist and then throw it back. A boom followed, and the corpses of the group of zombies were instantly blown away. The rumbling sound carried far. In a clean city like this, it seemed unusually loud, especially if one's hearing was as strong as Yu Qingliang's was nowadays. That was why the sound of the explosion was like it was blown on her brain and heart. It was true that having too good hearing was not always a good thing. Yu Qingxiao didn't move, but watched these two people escape. Anyone who could be pushed out as bait shouldn't be particularly good at it. After all, if they were very good, then these two people would have been caught and eaten by the zombies before they went downstairs. Being right at the door is not much use at all. So the ones who could be used as bait were either fast runners or capable. Obviously, the two people Yu Qingliang saw were indeed capable. Just would the car that had already driven away come back to pick them up? Yu Qingxiao inclined her head towards the far side of the street. The group of zombies running over. She felt that it shouldn't be possible. A few hundred zombies would already make people take out living people as bait. If for the sake of this bait, the entire squad was put in danger again, it would definitely be inappropriate. In other words, these two people were definitely abandoned. Yu Qingliang turned towards the room on the other side of the building, making sure that the zombies on the other side had also gathered. Even the zombies on his floor were stirring. When Yu Qingliang returned to the window where she had just watched the show, she realized that the two were gone, but she could still smell the two aromas. It meant that the two were still alive and hadn't left a certain range, but the scent of those two squads was no longer there. That meant that they should be one or two kilometers away from Yu Qingliang. Trying to circle back around would probably still be difficult. Yu Qingxiao waited in the house for about 10 minutes, and those two squad members did not come back. Of course, those two decoys survived. It was just that the downstairs was packed with zombies. Yu Qingxiao didn't even dare to go downstairs for fear that he would be trampled by these zombies if he went in. Although Yu Qingxiao's height is not too short but she belongs to the thin type, itself is a house, really want to push and squeeze with those zombies, certainly cannot push, Yu Qingxiao went down to the first floor, looked at those zombies outside the door, then turned around and headed in another direction, there weren't too many zombies on the street at the back, so Yu Qingxiao opened the window and climbed out, and those two decoys seemed to have found a safe place to hide for the time being, the aroma was stable, indicating that those two hadn't moved, but it was also, there were all zombies down there, how could they dare to move? But then Yu Qingliang didn't care at all. She walked back from the back street to where she put her suitcase. Actually, it wasn't that far from that street. It was just a few hundred meters away. But because it was a dead end, plus it was a small alley where there weren't too many zombies, humans wouldn't easily wade into such a place. Yu Qingliang sat on the suitcase and thought. The main reason was that she couldn't speak human language. Otherwise she could save those two people and get words out of their mouths. For example, has the official big base been built yet? The land of Huaxia was large, and it always felt that building five bases was definitely not enough. At the very least, they all had to be more than five. So Yu Qingliang had to figure out the location of these bases before he could do so. The more aberrants there were, the greater the range of human activity. She was able to come across so many survivors at the beginning of the end of the world. When the humans were gradually able to face the zombies, then she couldn't mess around. There was no way for her to upgrade. Nor was there a way for her to gradually take on the appearance of a human like Shershingyu. Even if she masked the wounds on her face, she was instantly recognized as a zombie, trying to find that mother and daughter. Yu Qingliang felt that it was a bit difficult, although if she asked them herself, they might talk, but the risk was a bit greater than going to look for them yourself. Thinking about this, Yu Qingxiao thought about it. Those were the people from the alien battle team, killing zombies like a piece of cake. If he went over there, he would definitely get shot. Forget it. Let's continue on our way. On the other side, two teenagers hid in a house, 
Looking at the densely packed zombies downstairs, they both fell into silence. It was naturally expected that they would be used as bait. After all, they were the original captain's people, and the vice squad would definitely not let them live. But they had to live. They still had to find the captain. They couldn't believe that the captain had died just like that. Just as the two were thinking about how they were going to escape from the encirclement of so many zombies, they then heard the surprising sound of firecrackers ringing out from the next street. But counting the time, today happened to be the Lantern Festival. But this was the end times. How could someone set off firecrackers in the middle of the night? But after hearing the sound of firecrackers, these zombies went over towards the sound of firecrackers. The sound of a firecracker doesn't last long. Therefore, after the first firecracker sounded, the zombies hadn't completely moved away. But just at this time, the second firecracker sounded. There were even fireworks. This stunned the two teenagers. In the end of the world, there are still people who are not afraid of death. What kind of fairy was setting off firecrackers and fireworks? At this time, Yu Qingxian who was treated as a god looked at the fireworks that were lit by her in front of her, but she felt that it was very beautiful. When she saw those zombies turn from the roadside, she said happily, Happy New Year, everyone, although it might have been New Year's last month, those zombies came towards the fireworks, and when they saw that there was only one zombie on this side, they didn't continue forward, they just stood on the street row by row and watched Yu Qingliang set off the fireworks. From the smell, they could sense that the two decoys had moved. It seemed that the zombies had all been lured over by her. Yu Qingxiao pulled out a few strings of electronic firecrackers from the cardboard box at the back and hung them on a few zombies. After flipping the switch, Yu Qingxiao pulled her suitcase and left. The several zombies that were hung up on the firecrackers were instantly drowned out by other zombies. Yu Qingxiao was a little embarrassed, but he still pulled his suitcase and left. He had lured those zombies away in order for those two decoys to find a way to escape. As for whether they could escape or not, that was not something she could care about. However, Yu Qingliang never expected that those two decoys had made a big detour to the place where she had set off the firecrackers and fireworks. Yu Qingxian was right upstairs watching clearly. The backs of those two teenagers were sneaky and seemed to be looking for someone. Yu Qingxiao stared for a few minutes before realizing that the two decoys were looking for themselves. No, run when you're saved. What was the point of running over to her? Yu Qingxiao felt that she had already saved them. If they didn't think of running away but came to join in the fun, they would fall into a crisis again. She definitely wouldn't care anymore. Having helped the humans before, then she couldn't stop the zombies from feeding this time. She was being fair. However, Yu Qingliang stared at those two for a while and realized that they were very agile. At a glance, they were not ordinary people. Even if they hadn't awakened their psychic abilities, their physical skills were definitely not bad. Two people crossing the roof was as simple as jumping over a small ditch. This kind of talent wouldn't be actively coming to be bait, right? The two teenagers only saw the zombies downstairs but did not see any humans. Only those few zombies had electronic firecrackers hanging from them that were still flashing. The teens were a little confused, but they also knew that they couldn't be on the roof at this point. Still had to find a way to find a car so they could survive in the city. In fact, they privately wondered if it would be their captain, but now it seemed that it was not. Yu Qingliang stared at them for a while before turning around and leaving. Obviously, they didn't leave this place at the first opportunity after getting out of danger. Instead they ran towards the inner city. That meant that the decision to be the bait was their own. Since it was self-inflicted, it had nothing to do with her. Yu Qingxiao turned around and went downstairs, reached the first floor, mounted her suitcase and headed in the direction where those two scents disappeared. It was almost 5 o'clock when the sky had begun to whiten. Yu Qingxiao suddenly stopped at the side of the road and just sat quietly on her suitcase, waiting for the sunrise to come out. At this time, the houses on the edge of the city had collapsed quite a bit for some unknown reason. Some of the vines around them were climbing on them. The green leaves swayed as the breeze brushed by. Yu Qingliang stared at those leaves and couldn't help but get up and walk over, picking one and hanging it on her head. And so the leaf swayed on her head. This made Yu Qingliang's mood inexplicably better. Ow, oh, I'm the slow goat village chief. Yu Qingxian opened her mouth. After saying this, Yu Qingxiao went and picked many more roots and stuck them on her head. The agonizing slow goat village chief, Yu Qingxiao added. And during the time she was fooling around, the sky slowly dawned. In Yu Qingxiao's previous life, the day and night were always reversed, and he had indeed rarely seen the sunrise. He had seen it once before on the Cross Sea Bridge, but Yu Qingliang had originally gone to the Cross Sea Bridge just to see the sunrise. It had never been like today, waiting for the sunrise because it was almost dawn. Yu Qingxiao looked at the slowly rising sun with the breeze blowing. No wonder many people wanted to travel. This was the first time Yu Qingxiao really felt that he was really traveling. Yu Qingxiao didn't remove the canes, but stared at these green leaves as he walked. However, because of the sun, these leaves wilted after half an hour. 
When Yu Qingxiao passed by a town, she realized that the town was built along both sides of the river. She carried her suitcase down the stairs and could still see that this town should have been considered lively before the end of the world. But because of the stairs and some guardrails, it did block the zombies from coming out of this ancient town. Yu Qingliang carried her suitcase downwards and looked at the shambling zombies, which made her hesitate for a moment. The truth was that these zombies were all looking towards her in that instant just now. If it wasn't for the fact that those zombies instantly lost interest in her, Yu Qingliang felt that she had mistakenly entered the pre-apocalyptic world. These zombies today should have evolved once. Their reaction to sound was much sharper and quicker. Of course, the clothes on their bodies were torn and tattered quite a bit. There were also a lot of zombies with skin and flesh falling off their bodies, exposing their bones. There were even those that dragged their internal organs around. The zombies that had lost interest in Yu Qingliang began to wander around aimlessly again. Yu Qingxiao could only nod awkwardly at them before dragging his suitcase down the street. The stores on the side of the street were already dusty because they hadn't been cleaned. A lot of grasses and trees had grown out of the cracks of the stones. This made Yu Qingliang feel surprised. It had only been three months since there were no traces of humans, and these grasses and trees had gone crazy. Maybe it was because the weather was good for this kind of plant to grow. Yu Qingliang took out his camera and took pictures of the beautiful stores along the road. Most of the stores by the river were actually coffee shops and bars. And of course, there were also some bookstores. When he saw the bookstore, Yu Qingliang walked in without hesitation. The store looked neat and didn't have any mess. There were indeed two zombies in the bar, but one of them had already collapsed on the ground, presumably dead. The other one looked healthy. It's just that because this bar is closed, you need to open the door to enter. So these two zombies were in the bar and didn't come out. Yu Qingliang said to them that he was disturbed and carried the suitcase up to the second floor. The situation on the second floor was not so good. After all, it was a scenic spot and there were quite a few tourists. There were quite a few bloodstains on the floor. But it was already blackened and didn't look so scary anymore. Yu Qingliang put the suitcase on the stairway. Only then did he go to look at the zombies. There were the remains of humans that had been split up. But at this point, they had already rotted beyond recognition. Yu Qingxiao didn't care. She was kind enough to pull the zombies that were wandering around on the second floor down the stairs and send them out of the bookstore. She also sent the zombie that had been trapped in the bar for three months out of the bookstore as well. Yu Qingliang also didn't know if this store was owned by this zombie. But as a human, as an adult, it was the need to get off work. Yu Qingliang now, was just sending it off work. You can go play after work now. If you still want to come back, come stand at the door for a while. I will open the door for you. Yu Qingliang said. It was wearing the work clothes of this bookstore, which was quite recognizable. But was it appropriate to wear working clothes after work? Yu Qingxian thought of changing its clothes, but when he turned around, the zombie had already run out of sight. As expected, both people and zombies run fast when they are off duty. She moved all the corpses in the bookstore out of the room and buried them in the flower bed. Although using the flower bed as their grave might be a bit aggravating, but it was the only thing Yu Qingliang could do. By the time she was done with these things, it was already afternoon. It was only at this time that Yu Qingxiao reacted to what she had done in order to quietly read her book. Yu Qingxiao stood in the doorway, looking at the westward sun. She then turned around and entered the bookstore. After going upstairs and looking at the empty second floor, she began to pick up the books scattered on the floor and put them on the bookshelf, then went to get water and cleaned and wiped down the entire bookstore. By the time she was done with it, it was already dark. Yu Qingliang's vision was not much affected, but she still went and reached out to press the switch. There wasn't any change, even though she didn't need to sleep either. She still couldn't help but initiate a nap after a few days. After Yu Qingxiao went upstairs, she sat down towards the chair and plopped her entire body on the desk. After being paralyzed for a while, Yu Qingxiao took out her charging cable and connected it to the spare power source on her suitcase, wanting to charge his cell phone. The phone hadn't been charged for months, but that wasn't the most important thing. The most important thing was that there was no way for her to turn it on. Although this was an old phone from many years ago, many apps and games wouldn't run, but the photo albums and chats could still be viewed. Nowadays, it unexpectedly couldn't be turned on. This made Yu Qingliang anxious, but didn't dare to just knock on it, afraid that if he knocked it, it would really break. Although it couldn't be turned on, it showed that it was charging. Yu Qingxiao felt that she either had to find someone to help her fix her cell phone, or she would have to teach herself how to fix it. But Yu Qingxiao didn't trust her own skills. She only had one cell phone and wasn't sure she could fix it. Surely it was better to find someone to help her fix it. This was also too difficult for a zombie. Yu Qingxiao was torn between learning how to fix a cell phone herself or finding someone to do it for her until dawn. In the end, Yu Qingliang still chose to learn by himself. Since she wanted to learn by herself, she would need to watch a tutorial. She did not have the knowledge in this area. 
It felt like it was hard to learn this kind of thing without a master to bring it along, right? Yu Qingxiao thought to herself that she shouldn't be able to learn for 8 or 10 years, she could wait for 8 or 10 years, but his cell phone certainly can't wait. Yu Qingxiao was anxious at this time to frame and hit the table. The specialties she had learned in school were completely useless in the end of the world. Yu Qingxiao looked at her cell phone that was already fully charged, but there was still no way to turn it on, which made her very puzzled. Since it could be charged, why couldn't it be turned on? She had previously thought of getting a computer and importing everything into it. As a result, the phone wouldn't turn on. It couldn't be that it was frozen in the low temperatures when it was snowing heavily earlier, could it? Thinking about it, it could be. After all, the cell phone she was using did turn itself off in low temperatures and wouldn't turn on at all, but she was now in a warm place. No matter what, it should have turned on. Yu Qingliang placed her cell phone on the table and reached out to push open the window next to her. Just as the sunlight poured through, Yu Qingxiao turned around and took a book out from the bookshelf next to her. It was as if she was ready to settle down in this town. Reading books in the morning, going out for a walk at noon, and going to a restaurant to sit for half an hour. Even if no one cooked for her, even if she didn't need to eat. But there were some things that Yu Qingliang just wanted to do that much. After all, tourists do that, right? Yu Qingxiao sat on the chair for a while before she got up and left. She was leisurely as if she was really a tourist. There was no need for a mask, and she wouldn't be watched. Much less would someone suddenly rush up and strike up a conversation with her. Of course, it actually wouldn't have been before the end of the world. It was just that no matter what she did, she needed to talk to people. And that was something that really bothered her. After all, she really wasn't good at communicating with humans. Yu Qingliang passed by a dentist store just as the wind blew over and her long hair fluttered up. It made her seem like she saw something. Stopping in her tracks, she looked towards the dentist's shop. For some reason, things that seemed to have been forgotten reappeared in her mind. At that time, she was actually 20 years old. An adult, she should have the ability to go to the doctor by herself. But she was still like a three-year-old, grabbing the corner of her mom's coat and following behind her. Because at the dental appointment, it was just the dentist and herself. Mom sat outside and waited, and the doctor just spoke to her and she couldn't help but cry all the time. This caused the doctor to think if the anesthesia had failed to work it hurt too much to cry. It was all she could do to keep from covering her eyes and telling the doctor not to talk to her. Now that I think about it, the doctor would have thought she was sick. It was really a bit hard for the doctor at the time. It was entirely her own fault, and it ended up making the doctor blame herself a bit. Sure enough being a human was really exhausting. There were those like her who weren't good at getting along with humans and there were those who had to get along with all types of people in order to make a living. Yu Qingliang came over and leaned over the glass door to look inside. There were no zombies inside, and a lot of the equipment inside was already gone. It should have been taken away by the survivors, but it was also true. After all, these things were very much needed in the post-apocalyptic world, but it also made Yu Qingliang think of something. That was that since there were survivors coming here to take things, did it mean that there would be survivors coming here? He himself wouldn't be in danger, right? Yu Qingxiao turned his head to look at the road on both sides of the river. Actually, there weren't too many zombies on both sides, and most of them were gathered at the location of the intersection, because there would be vehicles passing by on the road from time to time. These zombies would then gather at the intersection. So when Yu Qingxiao came down from the steps, this place was full of zombies. Yu Qingliang paced back to the bookstore. He spent another afternoon taking pictures everywhere with his fully charged camera. Sometimes she took pictures of the house. Sometimes she took pictures of the river. Sometimes she took pictures of the zombies, and sometimes she took pictures of the flowers. All in all, certainly not something she would have done in life. Yu Qingliang stayed in this town for five days, from the head of the town, all the way to the tail of the town. Although this kind of town was already full of commerce, it might have even once been frequently trolled on the internet, but suddenly quiet. It looked beautiful. Yu Qingliang pulled his suitcase and stood at the end of the town, looking up at the blue sky that drifted through white clouds. A few birds wowed and flew past her head. Yu Qingxiao smiled slightly. She needed to head to her next stop, waving at the town. There was no telling if the next time she came, the town would be back in human hands. Yu Qingxiao mounted her beloved luggage again and continued on her way. It was estimated that if he went further, he would be able to see the official base. There was no telling how far it was. After walking for another three days, when Yu Qingxiao came to a small town, he realized that there were no zombies in this town. This made Yu Qingliang instantly understand that this place already belonged to human territory. However, because no one lived here, it seemed unusually quiet. Yu Qingxiao carefully sniffed and made sure that there were no humans in this town before finding a tall building to climb up. Then she used her binoculars to observe the distance. It finally allowed her to see a black dot on the horizon. Just because of the distance, 
It was just a black dot in Yu Qingliang's eyes, but being able to see the city at such a distance was enough to show that the walls were very high and large. This made Yu Qingliang even more curious about the newly built survivor base, but wanting to get close to the survivor base was not a simple thing. Of course, for humans, seeing the base was seeing the hope of life. So how to approach the new home of the humans? After all, only where there are people will there be those who repair electrical appliances. But there should be people alive who repair cell phones. Yu Qingliang now hated to transform into a living person and rush to the base to fix the cell phone. The longer the delay, the lower the possibility of fixing it, right? Yu Qingxiao thought, I really have to start learning from scratch. This made Yu Qingxiao anxious as she went around the room. And just as she was anxious, she smelled an aroma that belonged to a human. This made her startled, because the human was approaching. Yu Qingxiao was so scared that she tiptoed around the room. It was good that these humans had no intention of going upstairs. It seemed like they were still doing some kind of secret deal. They said that there was a black market 50 kilometers to the east of the base. Anything can be traded there. But because there are too many things to trade, they are not officially protected. But it's a good thing that the people in the black market are all very skilled. Whether it's modifying cars or buying heat weapons, it's all possible. Therefore, it was protected by quite a few altered warriors. And from time to time, they helped to clean up the zombies in the neighborhood. Of course, this black market generally collected medicine and food. Yu Qingliang was a bit surprised after hearing the words of these people. Since it was a black market, then it should be possible for her to mask her face, keep quiet, and just take her tablet and type it out for the other party to see, right? Besides, medicine and food, it would be convenient if she went to get them. It's just that the base is 50 kilometers to the east, and there's no telling where it is. Never mind, it was always good to have directions. Yu Qingxiao carefully looked at the few cars downstairs, which seemed to be trading something. Yu Qingxiao then squatted upstairs and listened to their transaction. It turned out to be trading crystal cores. After waiting for 20 minutes, these two parties left the place. Yu Qingxiao made sure they left before she went downstairs. However, just as she was about to leave, she found a piece of paper at her feet. It seemed to be the location of that place. Yu Qingxiao didn't even think about it and directly picked it up and put it in her pocket. After determining where she was going, Yu Qingxiao didn't hesitate anymore. Only she didn't know that less than 20 minutes after she left, a car drove by. The people in the car came down and looked everywhere, but they couldn't find the note. Didn't it fall here? It wasn't in the car either. It couldn't have been blown away by the wind. One of them said in disbelief, how could something so important be lost? If it was really dropped here, then it must still be in the same place. It's impossible for someone to have picked it up. It couldn't have blown away. But what kind of person would come to this place? The man who had lost the address was also depressed. It had only been 20 minutes or so. How could someone just happen to pass by here and pick it up? And of course Yu Qingxiao, who had picked up someone else's note at this time, didn't know that those people were back again. She ran as fast as she could on her own little suitcase. The specific address she knew. It would take 200 kilometers to go around from her place. But for Yu Qingxiao, it wasn't too far. Even if she had to go through a city full of zombies. For others, it was indeed dangerous. But for Yu Qingliang, it wasn't that difficult. But the important thing was this skin color of hers. Yu Qingxiao was ready to make up a little bit of herself. At least make herself look less scary. Yu Qingxiao took the rare step of looking for a makeup mirror to take a closer look at her face. It had been a long time since she had looked at the cracks on her mouth. It was only at this time that Yu Qingliang carefully observed it. The split seemed to have been torn open hard by her own fingers, which caused the left side of her face to be completely open. The flesh and blood did not show any signs of decay, which made Yu Qingliang somewhat surprised. After all, many zombies had already started to rot. I don't know if it was because of this winter or the exposure to the sun before winter, but in any case, many of the zombies were rotting very badly. Yu Qingliang didn't even look at his face these past few months, but he was actually afraid of this problem. But nowadays, it seemed as if there was no need to worry about this problem. It was just that the weather had warmed up, so she still had to deal with the wounds on her face. Even if it didn't hurt, it would be bad if Fly seated her face and then grew her a mouthful of maggots. Yu Qingliang felt that wearing a mask was indeed a good thing to do, but it was better to sew up her face first. Yu Qingliang went to the hospital and wandered around, and finally found the sheep's intestine thread used for surgery. She just didn't know if this sheep's intestine thread could be absorbed by her own body. If it didn't absorb, then didn't she choose the sheep intestine thread for nothing? After Yu Qingxian was done dwelling on it, she used the sheep intestine thread to sew up her face first so that her face didn't look so scary. It took half an hour for Yu Qingxian to sew up her face in a decent manner. Even the claw marks on her wrists. Yu Qingxiao also took a bandage and wrapped it tightly. She didn't want herself to get maggots. After all, if she got maggots, 
she would definitely have to get them out one by one, it would be too troublesome. Yu Qingxiao actually didn't realize that there was anything wrong with her eyes. It wasn't until she took a book of her own photos from the side and came over to compare them that she realized that there was indeed something wrong with her eyes. It turned out that she had turned into a zombie, and there was indeed a filter in place to beautify herself. This pair of eyes of her own, how could she look like a living person? Thinking about it, Yu Qingliang still felt that wrapping herself up was the way to go, but wrapping himself too tightly would be very suspicious, right? As expected. Being a zombie had its conveniences and inconveniences, but Yu Qingliang couldn't help but fix his cell phone. It would be best if she could just transfer all these things to a new cell phone. That way she could handle it herself later. Yu Qingxiao still chose to dress in a tighter package, changing into long pants and long sleeves, but since it was a thin undershirt, it covered the color of her skin and didn't make her look like an idiot wearing a lot of clothes on a hot day. Then putting on a mask and a fisherman's hat, Yu Qingliang's entire body really looked like a human being, although she was a zombie. After becoming a zombie, her athletic ability could be many times stronger than when she was a living person. After all, she could now climb 20 floors without taking a breath. After making sure that her appearance could not be seen to be broken, it was time for Yu Qingliang to think about the problem of communication. The first thing was the language. She had always thought that she was speaking a human language. Where did she know that what she actually spoke was not human language at all? Then Yu Qingxiao would have to wonder if humans could understand the words she wrote. Therefore, Yu Qingxiao was not sure of the words she had written, since he wasn't sure if humans could read his own writing, then he really couldn't write. Yu Qingxiao first took a tablet, turned it on after it was fully charged, then flipped out the memo, and after typing the words, he let the system voice read it again. After determining that the words he typed out were indeed what he wanted to express, Yu Qingxiao finally let out a sigh of relief. Fortunately, her brain wasn't broken, and the things she wanted to express were still the same as humans, since she could type to communicate. She didn't have to worry about not knowing what to say when the other party asked her words. After preparing everything, Yu Qingxiao headed in the direction of that black market. However, Yu Qingxiao was actually still a bit worried. After all, if he was alone, what if he was being watched? Forget it, death is death. Anyway, I've already died once. Brace yourself for the bold ones. In case it went well to get the phone fixed, then she would have earned it. All in all, whichever way it ended, it wasn't bad for Yu Qingliang. Yu Qingxiao hadn't been to the black market, she put a few boxes of anti-inflammatory and fever-reducing medicines as well as painkillers in her backpack. This kind of medicine should be very important in the end times. Anyway, she only had this one chance. If she didn't die at the hands of the black marketers, she wouldn't have the courage to come back a second time. Her 28 years, no, 29 years of courage had all been gambled on this moment. After she arrived at the place, she realized that this black market was underground and this underground black market was still outside the safety range of the base, because there were still quite a few zombies in the town 10 kilometers away. Those who could open a black market here were really skillful and bold. Yu Qingxiao was actually very afraid of being searched. As long as she was touched, she could feel that her whole body was cold and had gone cold. Luckily, when the two people guarding the door saw Yu Qingxian, they only looked at her a little bit more. After all, Yu Qingxian's appearance, at first glance, was a girl, or a girl who was alone. It was indeed uncommon, but they also let her in. There was a light at the entrance. I don't know where the electricity was connected from, or whether it was generated by a generator. Anyway, after entering, it wasn't exactly dim. Yu Qingxiao walked down the passageway, and after almost two minutes, Yu Qingxiao's eyes opened up. It was found that this was like an underground street. There weren't many people, but there were indeed all kinds of stores. Yu Qingxiao didn't know what kind of people to look for to repair a cell phone but she swept around and looked towards a place that looked more like a place that dealt with electronic equipment to go, because this store had some cell phones and walkie-talkies sitting on the counter. Yu Qingliang walked over and reached out to knock on the counter, which led her to input her thoughts onto the tablet. The man looked up at the tablet in Yu Qingxiao's hand before speaking, fixing a cell phone. Ha, huh? nowadays, they don't even use cell phones much. This new type of communicator they use has a long distance and can adapt to today's magnetic field. Do you want to change it? Yu Qingliang shook her head. She didn't need to contact anyone. She only wanted to fix her cell phone. That shopkeeper saw Yu Qingxian shaking her head, so she didn't push any further, but asked Yu Qingxian to give him the cell phone. As for why Yu Qingxiao didn't speak but instead typed to him, this shopkeeper didn't care. After all, people who couldn't speak, although few in the end times, didn't mean there weren't any. Anyone who dared to come to a place like this alone was not a good person. It's not hard to fix a cell phone, but what are you going to pay with? The man added. Just to repair something like a cell phone, there were people in the base who could do it, so why run to a place like this? 
Yu Qingxiao sniffed and took out a box of fever-reducing medicine from his own backpack and put it on his counter. This box of medicine was completely unopened, which made the man's eyes almost fall on this box of medicine. One must know that even the alterans in the base wouldn't give out entire boxes of medicine. It was important to realize that there weren't many medicines on the market today. Although the officials were also dealing with the situation urgently, all the plants and water were contaminated after the end of the world. If you want to make new medicines, then the herb aspect is the most difficult to solve. And the medicine that could be obtained had already been taken out by the alien warriors and the officials. There was really no way to get into the hospitals in some big cities. So Yu Qingxiao directly took out a box of fever-reducing medicine. Undoubtedly like taking out a pound of gold and putting it on someone's table before the end of the world. The man instantly took the medicine away and then said, Don't worry, I promise to help you fix your cell phone and help you transform it to be able to adapt to today's magnetic field, so you can use it for at least another 5 or 10 years. Although Yu Qingxiao didn't believe the man's words, he didn't retort. When the man saw that Yu Qingxiao didn't say anything, he took it as her acquiescence. He even brought a stool out for Yu Qingxiao to sit on. Yu Qingxiao also sat down. As for whether or not there were people around looking at her, she didn't really know. This fisherman's hat was really good. Not only could it block the upper half of one's face, it could also block the sight of others. Yu Qingliang sat on the chair and took out a book from the suitcase and looked at it. According to what the boss said, it would take an hour or two to repair the phone. As long as she sat down, she was instantly inconspicuous. I really don't know about you. The note was properly carried in your pocket, but it fell off. How was I to know? Indeed it's all my fault, otherwise we wouldn't have delayed these few days. Another voice immediately replied, with a hint of apology in his tone, because they had delayed for a few days, the good things had already been bought, but the good thing was that these things weren't disposable, there were more to follow, and as they had already booked the next one, it didn't cause too much damage. As the two of them talked, they walked out of this underground black market, they didn't speak loudly, but they couldn't help that Yu Qingliang's ears were good. Moreover, the smell on their bodies was indeed the same as the smell they had smelled a few days ago. It was enough to show that the note in her pocket was dropped by these two people. But Yu Qingxiao still kept her head down, not even willing to look up at the two people. The note was picked up by her, but it was still definitely not going to be returned. She didn't hear anything and didn't know anything. When those two left, she continued to look down at her book again. Almost two hours later, the boss of this repair store spoke. The cell phone has been repaired for you, although the appearance has changed. The content inside has not changed. The running memory and intrinsic memory has also been expanded a lot. So at least you don't have to worry about running out of memory for 3 to 5 years. Yu Qingliang reached out and took her cell phone as she listened to her boss. She was wearing sunscreen gloves on her hands. It was not possible to see the color of her hands. Yu Qingxiao opened her cell phone and checked. The chat records of her parents and herself, as well as the various photos. There really wasn't anything missing. Of course. Things like repairing a cell phone was not something unusual for this boss. When he was in the base before, he often encountered people who wanted to repair their cell phones, like their parents, loved ones and children, who were all killed in this disaster. So wanting to get the phone turned back on was naturally a very important thing. Yu Qingliang made sure that although her phone had changed its look, the contents were not missing. Then she nodded to the boss and put the book back into the suitcase, and the tablet and phone back into the backpack. She didn't stay in this place for long turned around and left this underground black market. Instead, it was that boss who waved at Yu Qingxiao's back. Next time, if you still want to fix something, remember to come and find me. Yu Qingxiao thought about it, turned back and walked over again, using the tablet to type out the text to show this boss. The boss took a look at the location of the several bases that Yu Qingxiao wanted to officially build and instead took out a map for him. This map will be given to you for free. There is information on the official bases on it. Each base is recruiting strong people. I see that you are very good. Just go to whichever base you want. Surely they will be happy to take you in. The boss said to himself. Yu Qingliang took the map and realized that it was more like an electronic screen. It turned out that three months on earth, technology had instantly developed to this extent. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao took another box of anti-inflammatory medicine and placed it on the table before turning to leave. Letting the boss behind her call her however she wanted. She treated it as if she didn't hear. The success of pretending to be someone this time made Yu Qing Xian sigh in relief. But it didn't mean that if it worked this time, it would work next time. Yu Qing Xiao always felt that her success this time had cost her a lifetime of luck. Yu Qing Xiao sat on her suitcase and headed north. At this time, she had already determined the location of the official base. And the map did make it a lot easier for her. It wasn't as bad as looking both ways. Yu Qing Xiao put the map book in her backpack and then opened her cell phone. Inside were all the messages her mom and dad had sent her as well as various photos. 
Her mom and dad did like traveling. Of course, it was because she didn't like to go out, so they went out and traveled, taking all sorts of photos to show her. After seeing her mom and dad's photos, Yu Qingliang froze, because mom and dad did take pictures of the scenery of many places to show her, but at that time, she had never really looked at the photos of the scenery that her parents had taken, and had paid more attention to her own parents, and would rarely take the initiative to ask them what they had seen today. The last time Yu Qingliang looked at the photos her own mom and dad had sent was in the early hours of the morning on the day they were in the car accident, sent a message and said to her that they were going to see the earliest sun in the country. There was no news after that. She hadn't even gotten the first call that day. Yu Qingliang was a person who didn't answer anyone's phone calls except for mom and dad's phone calls. Oftentimes, mom and dad would not even call her when they contacted her because they knew she wouldn't answer. So it was only when the police came to her door that she learned of her mom and dad's death. And at that time, she had several missed calls on her cell phone with no notes. But for some reason, she didn't feel much sadness when she found out that mom and dad had died. It even felt like relief. After all, her motivation for surviving was entirely because of her mom and dad. She had a loving mom and dad, and her family was pretty good. But for some reason, she was still sick. Yu Qingxiao didn't have any unpleasant past or dark memories, but she just doesn't want to live. Yu Qingxiao looked at the message sent by her mom. It was more than three years ago at around two o'clock in the morning. That was also the last message that mom sent over. Baby, mommy and daddy are going to see the earliest sunrise and take pictures of you. Yo, Yu Qingliang rarely looked at these chats. She was born with weak feelings. Even when facing mom and dad, her feelings were so weak that it was scary. It was as if mom and dad's relatives had said that it would be better to give birth to her than to raise a dog to be affectionate. And she felt the same way. So after mom and dad died, she stopped hanging out with those relatives. She didn't know if any of her parents' relatives were still alive. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang withdrew her thoughts. She had arrived at this place. So let's go see the earliest sunrise that mom and dad wanted to see. Yu Qingxiao determined what she was going to do next and began to relax again. In the past, it was mom and dad who took pictures of the scenery for her to see. Then next, let her take pictures of the scenery for mom and dad to see. She was going to see the sunrise that mom and dad hadn't seen. To see the scenery that mom and dad had seen. Yu Qingliang also wanted to try to understand the love that mom and dad had for her. And she wanted to love mom and dad as well. After determining where she was going to go next, Yu Qingxiao wasn't in that much of a hurry. She clicked on the map that the boss had given her and turned on the navigation. This map didn't know what it was charged with. In any case, when she looked left and right, back and forth, there was no charging port. It was just a thin one, thinner than her tablet. She entered the place she was going to and it showed a distance of 3,000 kilometers. When Yu Qingliang heard this distance, she couldn't help but make sure of the map again to make sure she hadn't miscalculated. 3,000 kilometers. According to the kind of day and night traveling she was doing nowadays, she would have to walk for a month. Adding to this recent slow movement of hers, it was estimated that she would have to walk for more than a month. The fact that she was able to get here so quickly before was entirely because of Shershingyu. Now that she was on her own, she must have been wandering around getting along. Wouldn't be in that much of a hurry to catch up. After all, traveling this kind of thing, it wasn't like doing a mission. You couldn't rush it. Otherwise it wouldn't be relaxation. Of course, rushing to catch a car to catch a plane except, her own mother had often told her that because she couldn't get up in the morning and couldn't get up, she had delayed the airplane. Yu Qingxiao remembered that he said to her at that time, since she couldn't get up in the morning, then don't book a ticket for the morning, book for noon or afternoon. But his mom said that the plane had to be at that time of the day. Yu Qingxiao did not understand why it had to be that time of the day. This kind of feeling, Yu Qingxiao felt that he would never understand in his life. The luggage went north along the road. She did not intend to walk in a straight line. Although going in a straight line was quick, she also planned to walk along the edge. In short, a long detour would avoid encountering humans. Now that it was March, she and Shershingyu still had a date to go to Autumn Lake in the fall to see the scenery, so there couldn't be too much delay either. Otherwise, when she went, the lake would be frozen again. As soon as she thought of this, Yu Qingxiao increased the speed of her suitcase by a notch. But what Yu Qingxiao also did not expect was that the prices of this post-apocalyptic world nowadays were indeed somewhat confusing to her. A box of medicine could get her a new cell phone with an exceptionally large memory. Indeed even if she took pictures every day, a thousand a day, she could still take pictures for six or seven years. It was just that she had a camera and didn't use her cell phone to take pictures. Yu Qingliang tapped on the camera, but it was the front camera. When she suddenly saw herself in the camera, it was a bit of a surprise. Yu Qingxiao had tens of thousands of photos stored in her cell phone, and they were all photos taken by her mom and dad. She rarely took pictures, let alone selfies. Although she had taken quite a few pictures of Shi Xingyu, 
they didn't have a picture together. Anyways, he was also an old ox who had pulled her suitcase for three months, so when the fall came, it would be good to take a picture with him. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian compared V to the camera and took her first selfie in more than 28 years. Yu Qingxiao looked at herself in the camera, her gray skin, the eyes that only had pupils, didn't look a hint of moisture. Previously, she also thought that wearing pupils should be able to block her strange eyes, but she realized that the pupils were dried up within a short while of wearing them in her eyes so she gave up on using her pupils to decorate her eyes, otherwise she would have to put eye drops into her eyes every 5 minutes, plus it wasn't like she was really going to live in a crowd, so there was no point in torturing herself, one thing that was important though was to not let the fly have any hold on her, the fly was very good at seeing things, even if it was a living thing, it could lay eggs on those animals, let alone a corpse like herself, especially since she couldn't feel any pain, so even if there were maggots squirming in her body, she wouldn't feel it, thinking about this, Yu Qingliang wondered if she had to take a medicinal bath to check it out. What if, when Yu Qingxiao thought of this, she made a U-turn and went to the city, then found a bath center and after determining the bath, she went to the hospital to get the medicine. Of course it was all sorts of insecticides. Then Yu Qingxiao was completely soaked in the medicated water, only revealing a head. There were quite a few internal worming pills on the shore, although these insecticidal medicines were definitely damaging to the body. But to Yu Qingxiao, it was absolutely nothing. After all, she was actually just a corpse now. It was just because of the zombie virus that kept her from decaying like a corpse. But the bug eggs were different. Even if they were zombie bugs, they wouldn't be able to withstand such a large dose of their own insecticide, right? After Yu Qingliang finished the two big bottles, she sank herself into the bathhouse to sleep in the water for half an hour. But there were no bug eggs or maggots or anything floating out of this water, which put Yu Qingxiao at ease. Fortunately, there were no bug eggs or maggots on her. Coming out of this bathhouse, Yu Qingxiao also went to wash her hair. Of course, she used bucket water. Originally, she thought that her scalp would fall off as soon as she tugged on it, but fortunately, it was just her illusion, and her hair was still firmly stuck to her scalp. In the future, she should still be more careful, but don't let flies get close to her. So Yu Qingliang, who had soaked in the medicated bath, left the bathing center with the smell of insecticide all over her body. As the weather gradually warmed up, flies began to surround those zombies. It was just unknown whether these flies were zombie flies or ordinary flies. Of course, no matter which kind it was, it was always flies that were obnoxious. There were also mosquitoes. Maybe it was because Yu Qingxiao still had a strong odor of insecticide on her body. In any case, those flies that were covered in other zombies were all flying around her. Yu Qingxiao was a bit shocked to see all those flies avoiding her. So she came up to them. Sure enough, it wasn't her illusion that the flies were just avoiding her. Yu Qingxiao ran a little here and a little there looking at the flies that avoided her, revealing a dejected expression. Now there would never be any flies to stick to her. Only Yu Qingxiao's dejected look was reflected in the eyes of another zombie. That zombie stood at the intersection and stared at Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian felt the line of sight and immediately turned back. She saw a zombie standing at the intersection staring at her. That zombie was wearing a green sweatshirt, but there were black marks on this shirt that should be blood. The high ponytail had gotten a little loose. Of course, the most important thing was that this zombie also had red eyes. Red eyes. Advanced zombie. Yu Qingliang knew from Shi Xingyu's side that she didn't have a crystal core in her head, so she wasn't as worried that other zombies would target her. But at this moment, Yu Qingliang was still a bit nervous. She didn't have a crystal core in her head, but there was one in her backpack. It was still a crystal core of a level 3 zombie. This high level zombie wouldn't be looking at this crystal core in her backpack, but this crystal core was not hers. She still had to return it to Shi Xingyu. Anyway, communicate first. That, please, can you understand me? Yu Qingxian opened her mouth and took the initiative to greet. Yu Qingxian felt that she had really taken a big step forward in this aspect of socializing. She was really brave. The female zombie heard Yu Qingxiao's words and took a step forward. And Yu Qingxiao was so shocked that she took three steps back. Obviously, this zombie understood. For a low-level zombie to be able to communicate with a high-level zombie, this female zombie did become interested in Yu Qingxiao. Although this female zombie did initially come for the crystal core that this small zombie was carrying. Of course, as to why a low-level zombie would be carrying a crystal core in its backpack, these were not important to this female zombie. She only wanted to get this crystal core. But how could she not think that this little zombie could even communicate with her? Anyways, she was also a zombie that had evolved towards the intelligence aspect among these savage zombies. It was true that she had given up some of her combat abilities. But in this kind of world, just rising combat power without growing a brain would not be able to survive. At least she had witnessed a zombie with a higher rank than her die in the hands of a human. 
And at that time, she had only begun to evolve, so she realized that even if she was more powerful, she couldn't fight humans without a brain, so she chose to give up some of her fighting power and evolve towards the path of an intelligent zombie. Of course, wanting to evolve into an intelligent zombie was also a difficult thing, that is to be able to think when you are a low-level zombie, only then could one gradually evolve towards an intelligent zombie. Of course, this female zombie was not able to think too deeply at this time. For example, why was this low-level zombie even able to strike up a conversation with herself? So she spoke directly, I want the crystals in your backpack. Yu Qingliang was not expecting anything from such a direct zombie. Even that Xiao Ji, who felt like a very direct zombie, would test the waters first. This zombie was good and directly asked for it. However, this made Yu Qingliang feel that this zombie was very good to talk to for being so direct. But, sorry, I can't give you this crystal core. It's from another zombie. Yu Qingliang replied, their main focus was a sincerity. Really? Then I'm really sorry. The female zombie spoke. The two zombies just looked at each other across the main road. For some reason, Yu Qingxiao didn't feel any embarrassment either. If there was a living person on the opposite side, Yu Qingxiao would probably feel awkward. I'm going to rob it. The female zombie opened her mouth. She could feel that the crystal core Yu Qingxiao was carrying was very special, and the energy was all much stronger than ordinary crystal cores. Since she asked for it and didn't give it, then she could only rob it. Yu Qingxiao also did not expect this zombie to be so direct. Although it was intelligent and able to communicate, it wasn't more inclined towards the human way of thinking like Shirshingyu or Shaoji. How to put it, even if this zombie had intelligence, it was also biased towards the idea of the strongest being the most respected. That is, if you want it, you grab it by virtue of your strength. Yu Qingliang reached out and held down her backpack. If she really fought with this zombie, she could hold on for a few seconds. She stared at this female zombie, not moving or opening her mouth. If it was possible, she didn't want to start a conflict with a zombie or a human. Whether she was a human or a zombie, she wanted to be a kind person or a zombie, like her mom and dad. When others mentioned it, they would say that the couple was gentle. Of course, she didn't ask for anything in return for what she did. It was just that she wanted to do that. However, this crystal core, she couldn't give it to this walker. The female zombie did want to grab it, and in the zombie world, there was no such idea as loving other zombies. After all, only when one was strong could one live in this world. How could one make food stronger than oneself? But when being stared at by the small zombie in front of her, the female zombie had a timid feeling. It was as if the small zombie in front of her was not an ordinary zombie, but a zombie that was so powerful that she could not give birth to any thoughts of resistance. She even wanted to turn around and run, yet she could see the vigilance emanating from this zombie. It was amazing that these two strange auras could be concentrated on a single zombie. The female zombie was somewhat unable to think at this point, completely unable to understand why this was. Yu Qingxiao saw that the female zombie suddenly took two steps back and thought that the other party was going to rush over and beat her up. Without even thinking about it, she turned around with her suitcase and ran. The female zombie also didn't know why Yu Qingxian suddenly ran away, and thought that Yu Qingxian saw some danger, and immediately followed Yu Qingxian to run. But this action made Yu Qingxiao feel that this zombie really wanted to grab this crystal core. Why don't we just give it to her? When she saw Shi Xingyu, she could apologize to him again. After all, she couldn't let herself get beaten up because of a crystal core, right? The two zombies ran for 10 minutes one after the other. Yu Qingxiao finally couldn't help but turn around and ask her, Do you want this crystal core that much? The female zombie was also a bit surprised and couldn't help but ask back, Aren't you in danger? One sentence made Yu Qingxiao directly stop. She turned back to the female zombie and just pointed at her. The danger is you are. You wanted to come and grab it, so I could only run. The female zombie hadn't thought about it either. But it turned out that the reason this zombie ran was because she was going to snatch her crystal core. But now she could be sure that if she really wanted to snatch it hard, she would definitely not be able to snatch it. So she gave up. But from this little zombie's mouth, she could tell that she didn't seem to be clear about her abilities. No more robbing. It's just that you won't eat this crystal core? The female zombie asked Yu Qingliang. If a zombie wanted to become stronger, it was natural to eat people or crystal cores. Of course, it would be great if they could eat mutants. After all, zombies could also mutate and stimulate alien abilities. They zombies belong to the higher creatures now. Don't eat it, it's something for other zombies. Yu Qingliang shook her head, although he knew that if she gnawed on this crystal core, it shouldn't chip her teeth. But this was sure Xingyu's stuff. Giving it to her to eat was a complete waste. She didn't want to become stronger, nor did she want to live forever. It was just that this was something that obviously the female zombie in front of her didn't understand. So why was this crystal core in this little zombie's hands? 
and why wasn't the little zombie eating it? Moreover, there weren't any other stronger zombies in the neighborhood, so why don't you eat it? The female walker couldn't help but ask again, because it's from another walker, so I can't eat it. Yu Qingliang didn't mind and answered again. That female zombie slightly inclined her head before she went over towards the zombie next to her. She directly lifted the skull of that zombie and skillfully pulled out a crystal core from inside. She then pinched the crystal core and walked over. Eat, I gave it to you, the female zombie said. Yu Qingliang looked at the crystal core in her hand that was full of brain matter and then looked at the female zombie. She felt as if she was being treated as a little sister by the other party. It couldn't be that she was going to take herself in, right? Yu Qingxiao naturally wouldn't eat it. No thanks, eat it yourself. Yu Qingxiao let go of her hand and the suitcase fell to the ground. After saying this, she turned around and mounted her suitcase and left. The female zombie also didn't expect Yu Qingxian to refuse the crystal core she gave, and was about to chase after her and shove the core into Yu Qingxian's mouth. This made Yu Qingxiao startled. No, the zombie world actually had gifts for children, but this was too rough, but it looked like it should be a bit younger than himself. Still wearing sportswear and dressed more youthfully, although it wasn't as young as a high school student, but judging by the remaining nail pieces still on his fingers, then it should be a college student. Of course, it could also be someone who was already working and had changed into sportswear to work out. Advanced zombies don't leave any wounds on their bodies, and unless they are killed directly, advanced zombies have a strong ability to recover. It could be said that the zombie virus did belong to evolution for humans. That female zombie was also a bit surprised when she heard Yu Qingliang say that she wouldn't eat it, since she didn't eat that advanced zombie's crystal core. Why didn't she eat this crystal core that she got herself? It was given to her by herself. The way for a low-level zombie to submit or show loyalty to a high-level zombie was naturally to give the best to the other party. So the female zombie instantly understood that the crystal core was a tribute from another zombie to the zombie in front of her. However, she felt that the crystal core belonged to another zombie. Perhaps this little zombie in front of her was because it wasn't considered a fully intelligent zombie and thus didn't know that this crystal core could be eaten. Of course, Yu Qingliang did not know what this female zombie thought. If he knew, he probably wouldn't bother arguing with her about anything. Since there's nothing else, I'll leave first. Seeing that this female zombie didn't say anything, Yu Qingxiao waved her hand at her and started the suitcase to continue on. The female zombie saw this little zombie move and run, and chased after her again. She didn't understand why Yu Qingxiao was sitting on something so slow. And what was this thing under Yu Qingxiao? And Yu Qingxiao didn't expect this zombie to be so fast. Of course, she knew from Shi Xingyu's footsteps that advanced zombies were definitely faster than ordinary people, but she didn't expect it to be this fast. Since you are intelligent, you are an intelligent zombie. Your own speed should be faster than this broken box. The female zombie chased after her. She even just walked quickly to keep up with Yu Qingxiao. When Yu Qingxiao heard this, he looked at this female zombie with some doubts. Broken suitcase? Do you know how expensive this suitcase is? How dare you call it a broken suitcase? Never mind. Speaking about human values with a zombie would be her mistake. So you're fast? Yu Qingliang looked up at the female zombie next to her and couldn't help but ask. No matter how she looked at it, she felt that Shi Xingyu and Xiao Ji's levels were higher than this female zombie in front of her. Then those two zombies should be faster. When she thought of this, Yu Qingliang thought that she had been running out for more than 10 minutes, but she was still caught up by Shi Xingyu and Xiao Ji. It seemed like they were really fast. Of course, Otherwise why do you think human cars are reinforced and thickened and weighted? The female zombie said, reaching out and overturning a nearby car, shocking Yu Qingliang for a whole year. It turns out that advanced zombies are so strong. Lost respect lost respect. However, it was also true that on the human side, there were strong people like Gu Evening Ching, and if the zombie side was too weak, then the battle would be tilted. In the end of the world, it's not possible to be alone. It's a test of survival. The winner will survive. The strongest may not necessarily win, but the winner must be strong. As far as this survival test was concerned, Yu Qingxiao was like a bystander, outside of both. In fact, Yu Qingxiao knew that if the zombies knew that she possessed the consciousness of a human, they would definitely accept her as a foreigner. And if the humans knew that there were still zombies with human consciousness like her among the zombies, they would certainly not hesitate to kill them. When she was a human, she couldn't integrate into the human world. As expected, as a zombie, she couldn't integrate into the world of zombies either. Yu Qingliang looked at the overturned car and then looked at this female zombie. Of course, it's only limited to this kind of car. Like a bigger car, I definitely can't lift it. This time it's necessary to destroy the wheels of these cars, so that the human's car will go out of control. The female zombie then explained to Yu Qingxiao. When Yu Qingxiao heard the female zombie's words, he suddenly thought of that alien warrior team's car. The wheels were all special. 
It turned out that it wasn't just to prevent overwhelming hard things like nails. It was also because the zombie knew that destroying the car's wheels could also stop the car. Thinking about this, Yu Qingliang finally realized that this zombie was teaching itself how to prey on humans? Wasn't it said that there was no such thing as mutual help between zombies? Why would this female zombie actually teach her to hunt for food? Yu Qingliang just nodded and did not say anything. The female zombie was considerate and directly pulled Yu Qingxiao off the suitcase. Yu Qingxiao was forced to shut the suitcase down. She was pulled to a car by the female zombie. Try to overturn the car and see. The female zombie said. However, this sentence did make Yu Qingxiao feel that it was completely heavenly. A small car weighed over a ton at the very least, and to topple this kind of small sedan by herself was simply too much nonsense. But as she looked at the serious look on the female zombie's face, she also felt that if she didn't go and flip it over, it would be a little too good. So she stepped forward, and with all her strength, she only slightly lifted the car up by one wheel, but it was only slightly off the ground, and then it was stuck to the ground again. Yu Qingxiao did not have that much strength to overcome the car. The female zombie was a bit surprised when she saw that Yu Qingxiao really didn't have the means to overturn a car. However, she felt from this little zombie's body the kind of intimidating pressure that did not allow her to resist. A zombie had no righteousness but was afraid of might. This was also the reason why high-level zombies were able to command low-level zombies. It wasn't because these zombies were of one mind. Rather, it was because instinct made them do so. But she was obviously so weak. Where did that powerful oppressive force come from? The female zombie stared at Yu Qingliang but she saw that the little zombie didn't show any frustration because she didn't overturn the car. So you don't want to get stronger at all? The female zombie asked Yu Qingxiao in disbelief. Since this little zombie belonged to the natural advanced zombies, why didn't she utilize this talent? If she worked hard, wouldn't she be able to turn into a stronger zombie? Of course, if this little zombie became powerful, then one would have no choice but to bow down. But one didn't have the means to kill the other party. If the other party felt threatened, the kind of intimidating pressure that scared her would instantly strike. Besides, her original purpose was just that crystal core on this little zombie. Since she couldn't get this crystal core, she could only go and find another way to improve herself. Yu Qingliang was a bit surprised because this was not the first time that the zombie had said this kind of thing to her. Shi Xingyu had said it as well. She didn't understand. Wasn't it true that the stronger the zombie got itself, the better? Why did they still expect her? A little weakling? To become stronger? Don't want to. Since there's nothing else, I'll leave first. Yu Qingliang shook her head. She was not interested in becoming stronger. To make someone who wasn't even interested in staying alive become stronger even after turning into a zombie. It was like asking a first grade child to help a college student take the public exam. She didn't want to become the zombie king who ruled over all the zombies. Nor did she want to become the savior of humanity. Right now she just wanted to look at the scenery and slowly rot. Yu Qingliang did breathe a sigh of relief when she saw that the female zombie did not follow her. A while ago, he made her eat the crystal core, and just now, he made her lift the car. If she stayed in this place any longer, it was expected that this zombie sister was going to take her to raid the humans, although it wasn't like she hadn't killed anyone before. Thinking about it this way, Yu Qingliang felt that he actually didn't have much resistance to killing. As for why he could use a gun, and was even a good shot, it was also because when she was writing the novel, she really didn't know how to portray it, so she tried it herself. But Yu Qingliang hadn't thought that it would actually be used either. However, as she looked at the zombie sister who was standing still, she waved her hand at her. See you later, I'll see you again sometime in the future. Although the words were said, Yu Qingxiao felt that the possibility of seeing her again in the future was definitely negligible. After Yu Qingxiao said goodbye to this female zombie, he continued northward. And that female zombie did not follow. After all, not staying in this city by herself was good for that high level zombie. If a zombie wanted to upgrade, then there would be fights. It wasn't just humans. There were also amongst the zombies. Yu Qingliang was actually a bit puzzled as to why these high-level zombies all seemed to be of a very good nature. They didn't rush up and lift her skull. And they were also very good at talking. She felt that the survival of zombies was actually no less stressful than the survival of humans. The pressure on both sides was the same. Humans have to guard against others' calculations. And zombies also had to worry about whether they would be targeted by other zombies. Yu Qingliang took his cell phone and turned back to take a picture in the direction of the female zombie. Afterwards, he put away his cell phone and tucked it in his bag. At this moment, Yu Qingxiao really wanted to contact Shi Xingyu and return this level 3 crystal core to him. Carrying this time bomb on his back was really too scary for the zombies. If the zombies he encountered next time were not this kind of reasonable zombies, Yu Qingxiao would definitely not be able to protect this crystal core. Yu Qingxiao thought so, but he didn't really want to throw away this crystal core. In fact, 
Yu Qingxiao had never had such a sense of responsibility, like the things that mom and dad had said to her in the past, even though she had agreed to do it, she didn't necessarily do it properly, it was just that, how she said it, she was also taking someone else's things, and she had to find a way to return it to the other person's hands. Yu Qingliang had been talking to Shi Xingyu about the backpack being heavy and this crystal core being heavy. It wasn't a joke. Carrying someone else's things on her body was just heavy. Thinking so, Yu Qingxiao suddenly took out his umbrella from his backpack. After spreading it out, he carried it on his shoulder, blocking the sunlight above his head. The zombies couldn't feel heat or cold, but how could they say that? They were still flesh. As long as they were flesh, then they still had weaknesses. Yu Qingliang looked at the surrounding zombies also moved to the shadows so he knew that the temperature had come up. It's only spring in the north. Is the temperature also this high? Yu Qingxiao thought so, so she took out her cell phone and looked at it, and found that the temperature was 27 degrees. The time of her cell phone was also adjusted to the correct time by that boss. In other words, she wouldn't have to guess what day of the week it was in the future. Sure enough, it was only March. Originally, in the north in March, there shouldn't be this temperature, right? It did seem to have changed a lot. It's as if the temperature between the north and the south has been switched in half. The north, which was still cold enough to make people shiver, actually had summer temperatures in March. However, this did not have any effect on Yu Qingxiao. Yu Qingxiao walked another 20 kilometers to the north, and when his ears twitched, he heard the sound of a car. After the car was reinforced and aggravated nowadays, Yu Qingxiao was able to hear the sound of a car from a much farther distance. Immediately, Yu Qingxiao pressed stop on the luggage and pulled it to the side to hide in the village. Almost three minutes later, a convoy of cars traveled over. Yu Qingxiao did not know whether the people in the car were strong or not, but the people who could come out of the He base must be very strong. Yu Qingxiao watched the convoy of cars drive past, so he took out his map and checked it. There was also a big city ahead, much bigger than the one she had come over at noon. It was considered a big city that was also relatively famous in the north, like the city of Ji, but it was still more than a hundred kilometers away from her. Yu Qingliang suddenly thought of Ji city. There were also many alien warrior teams infested over there. So the S city in front of her would also have a lot of alien warrior teams, right? It was also unknown if this city was safe now. After she thought about it again, she was prepared to go around the edge of the city. The truth was that this S city was straddling the direction she was going. There was no way to avoid it. Obviously seeing these survivors, it did make Yu Qingliang a little worried. As the time of the end of the world got longer and longer, the human aliens would also get stronger and stronger. It seemed like this matter of her looking at the scenery would become a bit difficult. Yu Qingxia sat on the suitcase and looked at the map in her hand. In fact, if she went to the left, she could still take a look at the ancient capital in the meantime. But imagination was beautiful and reality was cruel. Yu Qingxia looked at the several big words floating on the ancient city. In fact, to say that it was unexpected, it was also a bit unexpected. But to say that it was not unexpected, it was also not unexpected. After all, this place was once the capital of many dynasties. Therefore, even if it is the end of the world, this place is not likely to become a zombie's paradise. Just to be able to build a base in a place full of zombies like this, it really was really impressive. Although Yu Qingliang might not be able to go and see the ancient capital, but seeing that humans were able to build a base in such a place full of zombies, in his heart, he still couldn't help but stand in awe. It was true that no matter what happened, this country was strong. Yu Qingliang thought in her heart that she should not go over there. But by the time she came back to her senses, she had already gone in this direction. Even if she had turned into a zombie, Yu Qingxiao couldn't change the melon-eating physique that humans possessed. Although she was a social terrorist, she was also a web surfer in her lifetime. Eating melons to join in the fun was something that all individuals could not avoid, including Yu Qingxiao. It wouldn't take more than a few days to travel from Yu Qingxian's place to the capital. But Yu Qingxiao never thought that she would see humans again five days later, and it would be at a time when humans and zombies were at war. Yu Qingxiao was able to know that the opposite side was human because she saw those uniforms. The familiar colors would make her stand in awe just by seeing them. As for the zombie side, countless zombies were besieging the capital base. The one who caused this phenomenon was a high-level zombie. This high-level zombie was stronger than all the high-level zombies Yu Qingliang had seen before. Even the slow-witted her could feel the threat from this zombie's body. Yu Qingxiao was originally just preparing to pass by, but the zombie behind her rushed forward and pushed and squeezed instead almost stomping Yu Qingxiao on the ground. This made Yu Qingxiao have to carry his suitcase up the stairs. The entire capital was huge, and only that ancient palace was circled. With that place as the center, it slowly spread out to the periphery. As for the zombies in the outer city, they naturally wanted to find a way to enter the base and enjoy the food. Of course, 
Yu Qingliang's attention wasn't on these zombies, nor on those soldiers fighting the zombies. Rather, it was the zombie standing on the high building. Yu Qingxiao had never felt the feeling that the other party was strong and the other party was dangerous in anyone or any zombie. That was why when Shi Xingyu had told her that Gu Wanqing was strong, she really couldn't feel it. But now, Yu Qingxiao clearly felt it. This zombie was strong. Just like that innate sixth sense suddenly gave her that feeling. Yu Qingxiao now knew that this zombie was very strong, and it even gave her a feeling that this zombie could slaughter anyone if it wanted to. Looking at the zombie on the roof, Yu Qingxiao was trying to avoid it. It was better to do more than less. Without even thinking about it, Yu Qingxiao went downstairs and walked in the other direction. And the moment Yu Qingxiao withdrew his sight, the zombie on the roof instantly sensed something. It looked over towards Yu Qingxiao's direction. It was because there was a beam of gaze just now that sent chills down its back. It was as if it had been looked at by some powerful superior. Retreat. This zombie waved its hand and roared at the zombies that were attacking towards the human base. Even the zombies in the front row heard their king's order. So the zombies that were just about to attack in force suddenly retreated like a tidal wave. This made those soldiers in the front row a bit puzzled. But they were still on guard. What if these zombies made a comeback? The zombies retreated? Gu Evening Ching had just been notified that a high-level zombie had single-handedly created a zombie tide, and had just rushed to the capital base when she heard that the zombies had retreated. Yes, it just retreated 10 minutes ago. It's been half a month. This is the first time the zombies have retreated. As for the reason, it's still under investigation. A man in military uniform next to him immediately became very serious when he saw Gu Evening Ching. His attitude towards Gu Evening Ching was very respectful. Obviously, Gu Evening Ching's rank was higher than his. Gu Evening Ching listened to him and reached out to take the report from him. Strange things had indeed happened a lot in recent months, like the zombie that didn't eat people, and the high-level zombie that followed the zombie around. She had a fight with that walker a week ago, but that small walker that didn't eat people wasn't with it, and that senior walker seemed surprised when it saw her, and was originally going to attack their convoy. But after landing on the front hood of her car and locking eyes with her, it instantly jumped away. This made Gu Evening Ching a bit surprised. After all, it wasn't the first time that advanced zombies Gu Evening Ching had encountered them. And every time, it was a big battle. While it was true that there would be losses on her side, it was already within her best efforts. Not to mention that this high-level zombie was considered the strongest of the zombies she had encountered. But the fact that the other party had given up on attacking their convoy made Gu Evening Harvest puzzled. However, Gu Evening Ching didn't know the exact reason. And there was no way she could capture that zombie and question it. Her current mission was to kill the zombie that was leading the zombie tide. Although it was said that the reason for the zombie tide was still unclear. The basis had also experienced some zombie tides, but none of them were serious. It was just this side of the capital base that had been continuously besieged by zombies for half a month, which was not normal. Gu Evening Chang looked through the photos and reports. The silhouettes on the photos were blurry, but it was clear to see that the other party was not a human, but a zombie. In other words, it was this zombie that had caused the constant stream of zombies for nearly half a month. Well, I know. I'll talk to the higher-ups about what happened afterward. Gu Evening Ching took away the information and turned to the man. After saying this, she stopped again and turned around, pulling a box of chocolates out of her pocket and throwing it over. Hard work, Gu Evening Ching said. When the man heard this, he immediately stood up straight and saluted at Gu Evening Ching, sending her away. As for those behind him, they had no idea about Gu Evening Ching. Why their captain would be so cautious about a very young lass. Yu Qingliang was still a bit surprised when he realized that the zombies had retreated. After all, with so many zombies, Yu Qingxiao was wondering if this zombie king was going to take down the entire base. But to suddenly retreat at such a time did make Yu Qingliang a little confused. After all, it would soon be dark. Retreating during the day, Yu Qingxiao could still understand. After all, when the temperature was too high, the zombies' activity would decrease. But nighttime was completely different. The zombies at night, not only their eyesight and motor skills but also their hearing and so on would be doubled. This made Yu Qingliang think of bats, owls and other animals. In short, night was the best time for the zombies to attack the human base. But this zombie king even gave up. Although Yu Qingliang was curious, she didn't look into it. She couldn't go to that zombie king and ask why it suddenly retreated. Yu Qingxiao went up to a particularly tall building. Even though Yu Qingxiao knew that there was no electricity, she still couldn't help but press the button for the elevator. But with the sound of the elevator running, it surprised Yu Qingxiao. The elevator in this building was actually able to run. In other words, this building was all electrified? The elevator door opened in front of Yu Qingxiao. There were a few bodies of zombies lying inside. And Yu Qingxiao didn't mind as he directly walked in with his suitcase. Then pressed the button for the top floor. The elevator was indeed running. 
Yu Qingxiao squatted down and carefully went to check how those zombies died. When she saw bullet holes left by bullets on the foreheads of the zombies, she knew that this place had been walked over by humans. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao suddenly looked up at the camera in the elevator. Yu Qingxiao immediately stood up and climbed onto his suitcase, reaching out and ripping off this camera. Since the elevator was able to run, then wasn't this camera able to run as well? Although Yu Qingxiao was certain that there were no living people in this building, but what if there was someone watching the cameras in this building? After all, this was not in a safe zone, but on the contrary, this building had electricity. Of course, it could be that Yu Qingliang was overly concerned, but it was better for her to be careful. She threw the camera to the ground, and the elevator stopped at this time. As soon as the door opened, Yu Qingxiao dragged her suitcase out of the car and saw the base in the distance. Of course, she could barely see the buildings inside while surrounded by high walls. It wasn't the original imperial city that came with it, but the new ones that had been built in the past three months. From her angle, the wall was at least 20 meters high. To be able to build such a high wall in three months, it really was something. Yu Qingliang went over to the side. The huge glass stacks allowed her to see everything moving below and around her. It also included the zombie that made her feel powerful. Yu Qingxiao did not expect the other party to come after her at all. But strangely enough, Yu Qingxiao didn't have much tension. She watched as the elevator's numbers pulsed, and as the numbers gradually grew larger, then the elevator dinged and stopped. A zombie came out from the car. This zombie also looked young, and was wearing a one-piece work uniform with a good appearance, but it was not the red eyes of the high-level zombie that Yu Qingliang was familiar with. The eyes of this zombie were golden in color. It was like those cat eyes, or vertical pupils. Yu Qingxiao took out her cell phone and took a picture of it. If this zombie was going to kill her, she was going to leave a string of words on this photo as well, writing, zombie killer. But obviously, this zombie seemed to be wary of her as well. It actually subconsciously covered its forehead when Yu Qingliang took a picture of him. Obviously, this zombie knew what a zombie's weakness was. But unfortunately, what she had in her hand was just a cell phone, not a pistol. Although she also had a pistol, it was difficult to kill advanced zombies with a usable pistol. After all, they were fast. When this high-level zombie saw Yu Qingliang put the cell phone away, those golden eyes flashed with a touch of doubt. Obviously, this was a zombie, or a zombie that didn't look like it had much combat power. But why? Her movements and behaviors were very similar to humans. It could even use human tools. The two zombies just stared at each other. Yu Qingxiao wasn't sure what kind of attitude this zombie had towards her, so Yu Qingxiao didn't take the initiative to show her favor and didn't open her mouth to speak. The zombie didn't seem to want to talk to Yu Qingxiao either, so it just stared at her. Seeing that this zombie didn't make a move even after looking at her for three minutes, Yu Qingxiao took a step back. That, may I ask what's the matter? Yu Qingxiao was still ready to break the layer of awkwardness first. For some reason, Yu Qingxiao felt that after she became a zombie, she had all turned into a social cow. Every time he encountered a zombie, he was the one who took the initiative to strike up a conversation. What was this all about? And this senior zombie was not too surprised to hear Yu Qingxiao take the initiative to communicate with him. It was the first time he had encountered a zombie that could make him feel threatened. At least the zombies in the entire city obeyed him. Level 2, 3 and even 4 zombies, all voluntarily submitted to him. The first day he became a zombie, he possessed his own consciousness. Although he didn't remember his previous memories, he knew that humans were his food, and he was above all creatures. And, there was something he wanted in this base. Unfortunately, he had tried many ways, and in these three months, there was no way to capture this base. Even the tide of corpses couldn't do anything to this base. And Yu Qingliang's appearance, to him, was to come and grab that thing from him. Since the other party took the initiative to communicate, it was obvious that he also thought he was powerful. You came here to get that thing as well? The male zombie spoke. A question mark popped up on Yu Qingliang's head when she heard his words. She didn't quite understand what this walker's words meant. What thing? Yu Qingliang was curious. She didn't know what was worth this zombie commanding so many zombies to besiege the space. And in the face of Yu Qingliang's questioning appearance, the male zombie was obviously a bit surprised. Since you didn't come here to get that thing, what are you doing here? The male zombie asked again. This zombie was strange. From her appearance, she was undoubtedly a zombie of the lowest level. But judging from the pressure, she was clearly a high-level zombie. And the fact that she could even make him feel pressure was enough to show that she was really powerful. This was also the reason why he chose to take the initiative to approach this zombie. If they joined forces, they might actually be able to get that thing. He didn't mind sharing half of it with the other party. But now it seemed that she didn't sense that thing was in the base. Come to travel. Yu Qingliang answered honestly. But this zombie was not that communicative at all. He himself asked him what that thing was. But he didn't answer. 
When this zombie heard Yu Qingxiao get the words, he wondered if he had misheard. Come to travel? A zombie? Traveling? Yeah, but what was that thing you just said? Yu Qingxiao asked again. Seeing that Yu Qingliang really didn't know, the male zombie said, I'm not really sure, but I can feel that thing is in that base, and it's very attractive to me. What he said was indeed the truth. It was because he could feel that there was something in this base that exuded a powerful force, and this power made him feel very comfortable, so he wanted to get this thing. When Yu Qingliang heard the male zombie's words, he turned back to the side of the base. Something attracted him? No feeling, no feeling at all. And at this moment, tension rose in the base. Because the high-level zombie that could command zombies that appeared in the capital naturally put everyone on guard. So several buildings in the capital that could observe the base were deliberately electrified. In order to be able to activate the surveillance in the building. The photo of the zombie that was taken earlier was discovered from the surveillance. After a lapse of more than 10 days, they once again found a high-level zombie triggering the elevator. Only this time, there was not just one, but two. The first one didn't feel much like a zombie because it was wearing a hat and even pulling a suitcase. On top of that, the surveillance was also dismantled by the other party, so they concluded that the first one was definitely a human and not a zombie. Walkers wouldn't do this kind of behavior. Just what kind of person could have gone to the place with the most zombies instead of using the safe passage? It was important to realize that a lot of people had been lost in order to connect the circuits of these buildings in the first place. It could be said that the squad that went on this mission never wanted to come back alive. The truth was also that even with the special explosion-proof suits, no one from these squads had ever returned. But they completed the mission and were naturally heroes. For this human, although they were curious, how could they not expect this human to dismantle the surveillance five minutes later? That zombie that they had been trying to find, actually appeared in the footage as well. So they found that human's whereabouts. It was only because the surveillance couldn't capture the human's appearance. And the other party had a strong sense of self-protection. At this moment, Gu Evening Chang and Wen Qingsheng also walked into the surveillance room. Following the two was Pei Yuan. He glanced at the surveillance then leaned against the door and didn't speak. Pei Yuan also didn't expect that he would still see that little zombie after more than a month. But looking at her, she was wrapping herself up completely. The average person probably wouldn't be able to tell that it was a zombie. The reason that could make her do this, could it be because she wanted to pretend to be human? Pei Yuan, come here and take a look at the strength of this zombie. When Gu Evening Ching saw the zombie on the monitor, she turned back to Pei Yuan, who was leaning against the door. This was Pei Yuan's supernatural ability. Of course, Pei Yuan hadn't been completely honest about the specific functions. Not only could he tell if the person was infected with the zombie virus, he could even tell how strong or weak the zombie was, and whether it had eaten more or less humans. In short, this supernatural ability was indeed very strong. Pei Yuan sniffed and walked over. This zombie, level 5 and up, belongs to the zombie king class. Pei Yuan concealed the news that Yu Qingliang was also there. Gu Evening Ching sniffed and pointed at the person next to her who was all black. Human or zombie? Gu Evening Ching asked. Pei Yuan, however, did not speak. When Gu Evening Ching saw that Pei Yuan didn't speak, she didn't force him. Pei Yuan was like this. He had to be happy before he would tell the truth. Normally, if he said something, it was enough to believe two out of ten sentences. But in this kind of thing, Pei Yuan wouldn't lie. If he and this zombie fought, it wasn't really certain who would lose or win. Gu Evening Ching also didn't expect the zombie to evolve so quickly. The reason why her powers were stronger than the average person was because she had awakened them when she was 19, that middle of the night more than three years ago, because several meteorites fell. Many accidents happened that night, and she was a survivor of that accident. It's just that she was more lucky and survived. Although she survived, her head hurt badly. There was a strange kind of energy in her body, touching anything and everything was bad. In the end, she had no choice but to be locked up in a lab and could only evacuate this energy in her body that was enough to make her explode through various instruments. Of course, at that time she met Wen Qingsheng. Also like her, he had survived the accident. Like herself, Wen Qingsheng had also awakened his supernormal ability three years before the end of the world. And Wen Qingsheng's alien ability was so special that Gu Evening Chang would almost never let him use it. After all, using it once would harm his body. And in today's post-apocalyptic world, it was not yet possible to use his supernormal ability. Yu Qingxiao did not know at this time that their whereabouts had been discovered. What she was a little puzzled about was that this high-level zombie that could only command a group of zombies would be attracted to something in the official base. But what was this something? She did not feel it. However, Yu Qingliang had no intention of stopping this zombie. Well then, good luck, Yu Qingxiao subconsciously said. Just after saying this, she suddenly reacted. If this zombie succeeded, wouldn't the base be broken? Thinking of this, 
Yu Qingxiao looked back at the solidly built base walls again, and again felt that it should be unlikely to want to capture it. How long have you been controlling the tide of corpses to attack this base? Yu Qingxiao still wanted to ask. After all, she had only seen corpse tides attacking bases in novels and movies. Now that she had seen it with her own eyes, she was a bit curious. After all, inside those movies and novels, many bases were easily overrun. That's why she wanted to know how long it had been since this zombie had led so many zombies to besiege this base. Half a month. This zombie was honest and directly said the exact time. Once Yu Qingliang heard that a zombie tide like today's siege had been going on for half a month without hitting the entrance of someone's base, he admired the human warriors in his heart. If he was still alive and reached the base instantly, wouldn't he be able to live as well? Hmm, that was probably impossible. After all, the survivors in the base also needed to labor. Especially now. At the beginning of the end times like this, a lot of things need to be made from scratch. Naturally, it was likely that the official base's uniform distribution of food, in order to ensure that everyone had something to eat, it was probably also encouraging everyone to go to work to work. Yu Qingliang thought about his lazy nature. Then it was better to forget about it. After all, she lived in an old neighborhood, but all the equipment in the house was very modern. Didn't like washing dishes, so there was a dishwasher. Didn't like sweeping the floor, so there was a sweeping robot. Didn't like the hassle, so the washing machines were all washers and dryers. Sure enough, in her 20 years, the first 25 years, because of mom and dad, she almost rarely did things with her hands. How to say it? Having lost all kinds of high-tech products, Yu Qingxiao herself was just a waste. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao smiled somewhat helplessly. It was true that people who could try to survive in the end times were all very brave people. They were all people she admired. Yu Qingxiao suddenly went silent, causing the zombie on the opposite side to be a bit surprised. In his opinion, a zombie like Yu Qingxiao, wanting to blend in with the crowd, should be a very simple thing, right? Of course, for him, it was still a bit difficult. The moment he just exited the elevator, he did almost recognize this female zombie as a human, because she was just too human-like. Let's cooperate. Is that okay? The male zombie opened his mouth and took the initiative to mention cooperation with Yu Qingliang. Sorry, allow me to refuse. Yu Qingxiao calmly refused. Cooperating with a zombie was nothing more than leading the zombies together to attack the base. Yu Qingxiao wasn't going to stop this zombie king, but she wouldn't follow him to attack humans either. She was not a pervert. After Yu Qingxiao said this, she pulled the suitcase with one hand and took out the map to check. It was determined that this building was indeed a local landmark. So from this building, one could indeed overlook the entire city. Yu Qingliang was in the spirit of having come here. So how could he say that he had to see enough? I heard that this building originally required a ticket to come up. Now there was no need for a ticket. And the scenery of the city hadn't really been damaged too much. Seeing the city from this angle was something Yu Qingliang had never really tried before. She didn't just go up to this tall building to take a look at the current base of the human race. She was also prepared to take a look at the scenery. With the idea that she had come all the way here, Yu Qingxiao certainly intended to take a good look at the landmarks of this city as well. Anyway, there was this zombie king attracting human vigor. She would just become a super ordinary zombie wandering around. That zombie looked at Yu Qingliang and surprisingly refused which was a bit puzzling. After all, there were many energizers in this base. If they ate a few more, they would become stronger. But the humans in this base are delicious. With your strength, you should be able to take care of the strongest alien in this base. That zombie did not die and continued. If this zombie could help him get rid of the toughest alien in this base, then it would be a big favor. But if she was killed by the shifter, then he would have one less competitor. Right now she looked like she wasn't interested in herself. But what if she was hungry? Even if she seemed to have a docile personality, she might just be full. Yu Qingliang completely did not think that he could handle the strongest alien in this base in the eyes of this zombie. Big brother, you really think too highly of me. Yu Qingxiao reached out and patted this zombie's shoulder before giving him a thumbs up. Nice imagination. Letting her take care of the strongest alien in the base. Why not say that she should immediately take care of the relationship between humans and zombies? Yu Qingxiao even felt that the latter seemed a bit easier to realize. After saying this, Yu Qingxiao withdrew her hand, sat on the suitcase and started moving. There should be quite a lot of surveillance on this building. If there really was a human who could see this surveillance, then wasn't he himself being watched as well? Never mind. With this heavily armed appearance, he wasn't worried about being recognized. There shouldn't be any acquaintances watching the surveillance. But she didn't seem to have any acquaintances either. Forget it. Just watch it. I still have a zombie king by my side. Who would dare to come? and Yu Qingliang completely guessed what those people who were watching the surveillance were thinking. Even though this person seemed to be related to that high-level zombie, 
but none of them dared to easily send someone forward to this building. When the man sitting on the chair saw the scene, he turned his head to look at Gu Evening Cheng. When Gu Evening Cheng saw him looking at him, she spread her hands. Sorry, I have other tasks on me. My mission is to protect this person even if I die. So ask him if he agrees with me going. After saying this, Gu Evening Cheng still pointed at Pei Yuan. She was already busy enough. Precisely the whole country had been run by her. But precisely because there were some things that could only be done by her as well. There was naturally no way for her to refuse. Although Pei Yuan didn't say whether the other one was a human or a zombie. But Gu Evening Ching was 1000% certain that the other one was a zombie. A zombie that didn't eat people. Meeting one was already enough to be a legend. When the man heard Gu Evening Ching's words, his eyes turned to Pei Yuan. Pei Yuan just tilted his head and smiled at him. I'm sorry, my bodyguards, they aren't lent out. The man froze, not reacting for a moment. It looks like the necrotic tide won't be coming tonight. So tell the people that the danger is temporarily lifted. And get a good night's sleep tonight. Knowing that there was nothing left for her to do. Gu Evening Ching waved at them and turned to leave the monitoring room. Pei Yuan and Wen Qingxing followed them out as well. Only the people in the surveillance room were left looking at each other in disbelief. But Team Gu was right. There was no more corpse tied tonight. And it really wasn't appropriate to keep the people underground all the time. Although the weather today was no longer cold. It really wasn't appropriate to stay underground all the time. Therefore the people who had been living underground for half a month had finally returned to live on the surface. Yu Qinglian's cell phone suddenly rang. She took it out and saw that it turned out to be that her cell phone had entered the signal range of this base. A message from the base was received. Level 1 alert is lifted. There will be no zombie attack for the time being tonight. So everyone can have a good night's sleep at ease. Yu Qingliang looked at this text message and was a little surprised. So it turns out that the survivors of this base have been living underground for the past half month. It was really hard work. But for an otaku like her, living underground was a refreshing feeling. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang turned back to look at the male zombie who was walking slowly behind her. But why did you suddenly retreat today? Earlier, Yu Qingxiao was curious about this question. Since it had lasted for half a month, why did it suddenly retreat? It wasn't like the zombie would get tired. And he didn't feel anything when he was killed. If they kept attacking at this intensity, they might really be able to take down this base. Of course, this was with very good luck. Otherwise, with the people in this country she lived in, there would definitely be people who were willing to sacrifice themselves to protect others existed. Maybe there would be an alien who would find a way to come and die with this zombie. So giving humans a chance to catch their breath was also giving this zombie a chance. It's just that the zombie wouldn't think about that. They would just try to find a way to take a bite out of a living thing. Wasn't it your warning? Tell me to stop attacking human bases. The male zombie spoke. Although it was true that Yu Qingliang didn't say it, he did feel the pressure. In short, he knew that this point in time was no longer suitable for attacking human bases. When Yu Qingxiao heard this, he felt that this zombie's ability to talk nonsense could be really strong. It was true that not all zombies were as good at communicating with each other as Shirshing Yu. You really are a zombie that fantasizes easily. And I didn't say anything at that time. On the contrary, you were too cool. So I just took a look and left. Yu Qingliang replied. She hadn't said anything like don't attack human bases. That zombie also froze when he heard Yu Qingxiao's words. It was obvious that he had already sensed it, but she even denied it. Forget it, the human base could be attacked at any time. Anyway, let's first figure out what exactly this zombie was doing here. Saying that it came to travel. Killing him he didn't believe it. So with what Yu Qingxiao said, this zombie didn't believe it. Yu Qingxiao didn't care if this zombie believed it or not. Anyway, Overlooking the entire city from here was something Yu Qingxiao had never experienced before. She had read the introduction of this building. There was an open air balcony overhead. It was just that the elevator couldn't reach it directly. Because this place belonged to the private places of many rich and powerful people. So there were almost no photos circulating. Yu Qingliang looked at the sign on the building and walked upstairs through the stairs. When he stepped on the steps, Yu Qingxiao felt the wind blowing. Yu Qingxiao placed his suitcase on the side, which led him to the roof of the building carrying his bag and holding his camera. Only when he got to the top floor did Yu Qingxiao feel that the wind was a little too strong. But there were indeed a few zombies staggering around upstairs. They were still wearing flashy clothes on them. When Yu Qingxiao thought about how he used to frantically look up the brands of these clothes when he was writing his novels, just so that the rich people in his novels wouldn't reveal how poor the author himself was. Now at a glance. Well, it wasn't as good as the quality of the uniform on the waiter. The clothes on that waiter were still intact. The clothes on those rich people were already rotting. Yu Qingliang ignored those zombies and walked to the edge of the position. Then looked down. If you fell down from here, you would definitely have no bones left. So high. Yu Qingxiao was getting scared of heights just looking at it. 
she withdrew her head that had poked out, then turned back to look at the shaking rich zombies. It was true that a commoner like her couldn't understand the taste of these rich people. Please ask about eating on the roof of such a windy building, where a hot meal would be cold in less than a minute. Do people who come here to eat like to eat cold rice? Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang shook his head again. I don't think so. It's just because it's the end of the world now, so there's something wrong with the weather. Anyways, it was also a place enjoyed by the rich, and in winter, this place should also receive guests, so it can't really be open air. Then it should be heated to prevent wind. It was only because it was the end of the world that the cold wind was allowed to blow. Yu Qingxiao found a chair, took off the vest on the waiter, took a bottle of wine from the counter, and directly poured it onto the chair, wiped it with the vest, and as Yu Qingxiao wiped the stool, her eyes caught a glimpse of the bottle of wine she had emptied. At first, she thought she had misread it, but she threw the wine-stained vest away and grabbed the bottle to look at it herself, and flipped out her cell phone for a closer comparison. Sure enough, it was the dead expensive bottle of wine she had written into her novel. The wine worth $3 million that the heroine poured down in one gulp when the hero and heroine first met. Although there were wines that were more expensive than this kind of wine, most of those were only one bottle and were not appropriate. Something like this wine that was limited to single digits and wasn't really out of print was the only way she could end the grand finale with the same wine. Wine she couldn't afford a bottle of in her lifetime was used as stool polish. But why was such an expensive wine just randomly placed in that glass cabinet that was so close to her off? Uh, thinking of this, Yu Qingliang turned her head to look at that glass cabinet. It seemed to be a display cabinet, not a cabinet for wine. In other words, this bottle of wine was placed here for display purposes, indicating the nobility of this place? Forget it, it's the end of the world. This bottle of wine might not be as valuable as a loaf of bread. What the hell was she pitying? Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang picked up her vest to wipe the chair again, so this bottle of wine played its final role in wiping the stool, otherwise it would have rotted on the roof of this building. Thinking about this, Yu Qingxiao thought about it, so he poured the other wine into this bottle and then put it back into that cabinet. Three million dollars of wine. How to say just like this poured, really let Yu Qingxiao some heart weakness, but the good thing was that no one saw it now. This place shouldn't have cameras. How to say that the people who came here were some powerful people. If there was a video circulating, it would be a big problem. Although there were no cameras, there was a zombie who had watched all of Yu Qingliang's movements in his eyes. He didn't know why this zombie was so startled and had to burrow under the table, looking left and right. This place was the center point of the zombie tide, and since the last time humans broke in, he had most of the zombies surround this place, so it was completely impossible for humans to break in. What was she afraid of? Yu Qingliang turned around and saw the zombie standing at the stairway looking at himself. Although one could tell something about how this zombie always liked to be whimsical, those golden eyes now actually carried a hint of dislike when they looked at themselves. No! What do you mean by peeking at other zombies and showing an expression of dislike? Yu Qingliang took one look at him and withdrew his eyes. The wine on the chair quickly evaporated, and Yu Qingxiao didn't care about him, directly paralyzing on the chair. There wasn't any cover overhead at this time. She was surprised to see the Milky Way in the sky in the big city. This surprised Yu Qingxiao. After all, stars were only seen in the countryside when she was a child. But that was more than 20 years ago and she didn't even remember it. Yu Qingxiao stared at the stars in the sky so she took out her camera and took a few pictures. Could this place see such a beautiful starry sky even before the end of the world? After all, ordinary people could only see those street lights and neon lights, although many of the lights were also beautiful. Yu Qingliang thought, but anything that glows and shines is burning itself, right? Of course, this kind of thinking wasn't really right, but like sitting on a chair like this and casually looking at the stars, in his own lifetime, it was almost impossible. Yu Qingxiao in a rare moment when he didn't want to bother with that zombie, waved at him, come over here. That zombie heard Yu Qingxiao's words and walked towards her. It didn't know what Yu Qingxiao was going to do. And naturally, he was not as preachy as Yu Qingxiao. That kind of dusty chair. This zombie just sat down directly. When Yu Qingxiao saw him sitting down beside him, he pointed to the sky. The starry sky is beautiful, isn't it? You must have never seen it. The zombie looked up at the sky at those words. He didn't really know what Yu Qingxiao was happy about but all in all, it just felt like she was happy. It's pretty average, the zombie said. When Yu Qingxiao heard this, she suddenly felt like she had heard similar words there. Oh yeah, when he brought Shi Xingyu to see the sunrise, Shi Xingyu also said that the beautiful sunrise was average. Yu Qingliang didn't care. After all, she couldn't force a zombie to know how to appreciate the scenery. Just like a zombie couldn't force her to gnaw on a raw cow, Yu Qingliang definitely couldn't do that. So she didn't force force this zombie. Do you have a name? Yu Qingxiao asked this zombie after taking a few pictures of the starry sky. After turning into a zombie, 
it forgot all the memories of being a human. Since then, it lived with the idea of a zombie. Humans were food, and zombies existed to eat living things. No, the zombie said. Even though he had the ability to think independently, the idea Yu Qingliang was completely confused. Is that so? I have a name. Yu Qingxiao said. That zombie sniffed and looked at Yu Qingxiao, and Yu Qingxiao didn't care about his eyes. It was more like he was talking to himself. My name was changed by my parents later on. Mainly because I'm a person who doesn't like to come into contact with human beings. I like to stay at home. So they changed my current name. As for what it was called before, I don't remember. Yu Qingxiao's voice was not loud, even because the wind was too loud. The zombies next to her didn't hear the second half of what she said. When the wind stopped, the zombies finally saw her face from under her windblown fallen hair. She smiled and said, I'll give you a name then. How about I call you Knight? Whatever. The zombie wouldn't have any touching emotions in him even at a time like this. He accepted it simply because this zombie in front of him was stronger than him. Thus, this zombie king that all zombies within a few hundred kilometers were afraid of had a name because of Yu Qingxiao's words. Yu Qingxiao had finished looking at the stars and had even given a zombie king a name in the process. It was quite an accomplishment. It was only that Yu Qingxiao realized that these high-level zombies were really a bit sticky. No, it was the sticky zombies. Until dawn, night didn't leave. Obviously, he had commanded the zombies to besiege the base before. But as a result, he was now sitting here with her to look at the stars for the whole night and then followed her to watch the sunrise. There was also a garden on the top floor, and the morning sunlight shone from afar, orange in color, which made Yu Qingliang think of orange fudge. Hmm, it would be good to look for where to find orange fudge later. Although she couldn't taste it, suddenly wanting to eat orange fudge had become Yu Qingxiao's obsession. She also didn't ask Knight where to find orange fudge, but there should be some in the mall. Yu Qingxiao got off the building and then headed towards the mall. It was a good thing that this place was busy and had everything. Yu Qingxian was looking for orange soft candies, and Ai Yi was right behind her. This made Yu Qingxian think of Shi Yu. The Shi Yu from back then also followed her in the same way. The zombie was actually a puppy? Why did it like to follow itself so much? After half an hour, Yu Qingxiao found orange fudge. It was still the most expensive brand. Yu Qingxiao stuffed one in his mouth. Sure enough, it didn't have much flavor. It still wasn't hard to eat or tasty. She looked at Ai Yi just standing to the side looking at herself. So she handed one over eat? Knight wasn't really interested in human food, but he took it anyway. He shoved it into his mouth, chewed it, and spat it out. Hard to eat, Ah Yi said. Yu Qingliang wasn't surprised. If human food was tasty to zombies, there would be no need to go through so much trouble. It was as if the food was cooked by itself, and it stank as much as a deep-fried cesspool. Yu Qingliang stayed in the city for two days before she was ready to leave. During these two days, Knight had been following her. Although the other party might be a zombie king, but in Yu Qinglian's eyes, it was like a delusional puppy. It was true that you couldn't give any living creature a name. After calling it for a few days, one would become attached to the living thing. Of course, Yu Qingxiao was only like a puppy kitten to Ai Yi. It was just that this feeling was probably something that only Yu Qinglian could experience. After all, Ah Knight was a zombie king, a brutal creature to humans. I'm going to proceed north. I won't stay here, so take your time and toss it. Yu Qingliang was at the edge of the city saying goodbye to a knight, and Ai Yi did not say goodbye to Yu Qingxiao, nor did he follow, he was just like when Yu Qingxiao first saw him crouching on the roof of a tall building, his eyes indifferent as he looked in front of him, Yu Qingxian didn't care if Ai Yi could see her, but she still waved her hand in Ai Ye's direction, hopefully, he would still be alive the next time they met, if it was possible to meet, Ai Yeo finally breathed a sigh of relief after watching Yu Qingxiao actually leave, he had thought that the zombie had come to fight him for that thing, but it wasn't, he didn't understand Yu Qingxian's thoughts and practices, but Ai Yi learned one thing from Yu Qingxian's side. It was to stop organizing the zombies to besiege the base. Sure enough, as long as he didn't let the zombies besiege the base, then the food, of its own accord, would come out. The food this time, however, gave him a strong feeling. This made Knight even more cautious. As expected, the more advanced the zombie, the sharper it was when faced with danger. If he continued to let the zombies surround the city, Maybe this powerful food would take the initiative to attack him, when he had no defense. Yu Qingliang didn't realize that his staying in the city for a few days would give the base in the city a respite. But in any case, she wasn't the one who made the decision not to attack the base, so it didn't matter to her what the outcome would be in the future. Yu Qingliang sat on the suitcase and continued north again. It took her half a month to come because of the bias to this place. On the day of April 1st, Yu Qingxiao squinted her eyes at the large tornado that rose up flat on the ground. This made Yu Qingxiao a little shocked. It wasn't, 
Why would there be such a large tornado in his own country? Coastal cities should experience them. But this was the north. It was hundreds of kilometers away from the sea. Even though she was still quite far away from this tornado at this point, she couldn't stand up now. This tornado should have blown over from the sea. After all, along with the wind coming down, there were countless amounts of rain. After sitting on her suitcase and being blown by the wind and sliding for a few hundred meters, she finally reacted to find a place to take shelter. She hadn't experienced a typhoon before, so she was quite shocked at the sight of it. Yu Qingliang hid in the house and took out her camera to take pictures, to say that zombies were the end times for humans. But for Yu Qingxiao, this tornado that was rising up to the sky now was more like the end times. The sound of wind and rain crackled against the windows. Yu Qingxiao put down his camera and cowered on the sofa inside the house. The window glass could no longer see the scenery outside because of the rain, and even the wind outside was so loud that it seemed like the whole world was just her. However, Yu Qingxiao felt relieved after a long time. Every time it rained, Yu Qingxiao would have this feeling of peace of mind. In the past, she hadn't looked deeply into why she felt relieved when it rained, but now she knew that she didn't feel relieved because of the rain, but because she was in the house when it rained, she didn't need to be exposed to the wind and rain, so of course she would feel relieved. Yu Qingxian just nestled on the sofa, listening to the wind and rain outside. It wasn't until an hour later that Yu Qingxiao felt the ground beneath her feet shaking, as if it was an earthquake. However, Yu Qingxiao knew that it wasn't an earthquake, but a tornado approaching. Yu Qingxiao had just come over to try to see what was going on outside when a zombie bird flew past the window. It was followed by a zombie dog. It seemed that the tornado had already approached this small town. Many places in the north were large plains, causing this tornado to roll over. There weren't many obstacles. Of course, Yu Qingliang didn't know if this house could block the tornado. A cement building. It should be able to hold up. After all, it wasn't a wooden house. Yu Qingliang didn't leave. I just don't know if this window can hold up. Only after her thoughts fell, this window instantly shattered. A huge wind blew in and swept up all those light things in the house. Yu Qingxiao pressed her hat, her long hair snapping at her face as the wind blew. This wind was really strong. Yu Qingxiao wasn't particularly tall but she wasn't short either. It was just that she herself belonged to the skinny type. Every year during the spring gale period, a wind of six or more would be able to topple her over. After Yu Qingxiao thought about it, she took off her hat and put it in her backpack, first tying her suitcase to the sofa, and then using the curtains to tie herself to the sofa as well. Letting the gale blow, Yu Qingxiao hung on that sofa. There were still most of the walls inside the house to block the wind, but the zombies outside were not so lucky. There were even zombies that were swept up by the wind. They flew past the window of the house where Yu Qingxiao took refuge. Oh, Yu Qingxian had never thought that that kind of scene that appeared in a movie would actually appear in front of her eyes. The speed at which that zombie flew past was fast. If she had human eyes, she might have felt just a black shadow flying past. Fortunately, she was a zombie's eyes and could see very clearly. The gale lasted for half an hour. Yu Qingliang even took her cell phone out of the suitcase and lay on the sofa to record the situation outside the window. What if another zombie flew past? And Yu Qingxiao's luck was good. The tornado was blowing from a few rooms next door to her, so it swept up several zombies and flew past her window. After that, the sound of the wind gradually became smaller, so it should be that the tornado blew over. The movement in the house also slowly quieted down. Only then did Yu Qingliang undo the curtains on her body. She turned around and walked to the window, then looked to the back. At this time, that huge tornado had already gotten a lot weaker. It was true that the further inland one went, the less powerful the wind became. If it was as powerful as it was when it first arose, it was estimated that all of these concrete houses would have been pulled up with their foundations. Yu Qingliang held his camera and took a picture of the tornado. There were not many chances to see a tornado so close. After Yu Qingxiao finished taking pictures, the rain outside still didn't stop. The tornado was expected to stop after another hundred or two hundred kilometers. I just don't know when the rain will stop. By the time it was almost dark, the wind had died down a lot. The rain was also a bit lighter. Yu Qingliang was not in a hurry to rush. Instead, he was in the house ready to wait for the rain to stop. However, the rain continued for several days at a time, with no intention of stopping. Yu Qingxiao didn't intend to wait any longer and left the town with his suitcase and umbrella. Most of the zombies wandering around the town had been reduced. It was estimated that they were swept up into the sky by the tornado and didn't know where they had landed. I don't know if these zombies would still be alive if they fell down. Of course, if they didn't hurt their heads, they should still be alive. It was just that Yu Qingliang had only been out of the small town for a short while when her suitcase ran out of battery. She could only pull the suitcase along. Yu Qingxiao pulled her suitcase and umbrella as she continued to walk north. The land or houses in this surrounding area had been destroyed quite a bit by the hurricane a few days ago. There were also quite a few zombie limbs. 
there were either legs or arms in the roadside ground. There were even human heads. Yu Qingliang stood by the roadside and looked at it for a while, so he picked up the human head whose eyeballs didn't know where it had gone and put it to the side, then dug a hole for it to be buried. Turning into a man-eating zombie was not something that this person wanted either. In fact, Yu Qingliang wanted the humans to win so that the zombies' corpses could be centrally disposed of. After all, people in this country of theirs were very particular about returning to their roots, not to mention ordinary people, even grave robbers despised the type of thieves who stole corpses. The death of a human being is the greatest. Yu Qingxiao looked at this small dirt bag in front of him, and suddenly thought of the bouquet of flowers that Gu Evening had placed in front of her grave. This made Yu Qingxiao suddenly touch his pocket, and sure enough, there was a rose seed inside. Yu Qingxiao touched one and buried it on the edge of the small mound of soil. It's good to give you one. I didn't put much. It's up to you whether it can germinate or not. Take good care of this seed. In the future, when it grows up, it can still give you shade from the sun. Yu Qingliang said to herself, not expecting the head buried in the ground to answer her. Living in this kind of post-apocalyptic world was indeed difficult. If humans could really reincarnate, they must be reincarnated in a peaceful era in their next life. Yu Qingxiao looked at the small mound of dirt, then turned around and left. Yu Qingliang walked all the way and buried all the way. The limbs on the road were put under the road, and when they came across a human head, they were buried. After all, only the severed limbs could not determine that the zombie was dead. But if there was only a head or half a head, it was probably dead. After walking for two more days, Yu Qingliang finally didn't see any more severed limbs, which also made Yu Qingliang breathe a sigh of relief. She was about to turn into a mole spirit herself. It was a good thing that she had put a few engineer shovels in her suitcase after burying a few people. Otherwise, if she really used her hands to dig the ground, she would really become a mole spirit. The further north Yu Qingliang traveled, the hotter the weather became. Even on a rainy day, the temperature could reach over 30 degrees. No wonder even if there was no sun and it was raining. Yu Qingxian felt wilted and had little strength. He couldn't wait to point at his suitcase and ask why it wasn't moving. It had been almost half a month, and it hadn't cleared up for a single day. So this suitcase of hers hadn't turned on for half a month. It could only let her pull it along. But at this time, Yu Qingxiao really didn't want to move. She walked to a county and passed by a bedding store. This store was made up of very large floor-to-ceiling window glass. A large bed in front of the glass looked very comfortable. Yu Qingliang stood under the eaves and leaned over the glass to look at it for a while, then pushed open the glass door and walked in. This store had not been visited by walkers, and there were no walkers in the house. Yu Qingxiao put the suitcase on the side of the bed, lifted the quilt, took off his shoes and clothes and lay on it. It was soft and felt good. And Yu Qingxiao slept this time, until the second half of the night. When she woke up, the rain outside had stopped. Taking out her cell phone, she saw that it was already 3 o'clock in the middle of the night. The cell phone's battery was almost gone. If the sun didn't come out again, Yu Qingxian really couldn't walk anymore. Of course, not physically, but psychologically. Yu Qingxiao lay down on the bed and glanced outside the glass, realizing that the moon was visible in the sky. In other words, today was a sunny day. Great, she could finally sunbathe herself. She felt like she wasn't all moldy on her body. In short, she needed the sun badly. A zombie needing the sun. Saying that out loud would probably scare other zombies to death. What kind of zombie likes the sun? Of course, this also included Yu Qingliang. Yu Qingxian did look forward to the sun a few hours ago after a few hours she still couldn't help but open her umbrella. She had just experimented and after less than an hour in the sun, Yu Qingxian felt pain. This made Yu Qingxiao a little shocked. She thought that zombies didn't have pain. But if they were exposed to the sun too much, they would have felt pain all over their body. No wonder those zombies were unwilling to give the sun a try. It turned out that the sunlight sterilized the poison. Right. The zombies are infected with the virus before they become zombies. That's why zombies are afraid of the sun. In the past, Yu Qingliang thought that those zombie novels were just for fun. But it turns out that zombies are really afraid of the sun. It's not that the corpse is afraid of the sun, but the virus that controls the corpse is afraid of the sun. Of course, the virus is also afraid of high temperatures. So if the temperature is too high, the zombie's activity will be reduced. If the temperature of the earth rises to 50 to 60 degrees, won't all the zombies die? No, 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 this is not a good idea. Isn't it going to send all the creatures in this world to the sky? Yu Qingliang held her umbrella and watched the light on the suitcase blinking. 
she didn't write on the suitcase as soon as it could be activated. Instead she was going to let the sun fully charge the suitcase. At least it would last a while longer when it was full. If it suddenly rained for another 10 days or so, she'd have to go through the same thing she did the other day all over again. As much as she hated the sun, she could still use her umbrella to block it. Without the sun here, the suitcase would really run out of power. Yu Qingliang didn't leave until noon. When she passed by a river, she realized that the water had risen a lot, and there were even a lot of corpses floating in the river. There were corpses of zombies, corpses of zombie animals, and corpses of mutated animals. Some continued down the river, while others were washed up on the bank. Yu Qingliang startled a bunch of flies as he walked over. These flies did not pounce towards Yu Qingxiao, but instead avoided her. Yu Qingxiao felt that she had really made the right decision in soaking in the medicinal bath. Just so to say that corpses soaking by the river would develop infectious diseases, right? Yu Qingxiao stood at the river's edge, and the river water had spread to a position above the river bank. That was why the bodies were washed up on the bank and stranded, or blocked by trees and houses. Yu Qingxiao lifted his suitcase and raised it above his head as he walked towards the bridge. The water on the shore was not deep, only up to Yu Qingxiao's calf. It seemed that the hurricane and rain from half a month ago still had an effect. Just the small river alone had risen so much water. I dare not think what the situation of the big river was like. Yu Qingxiao walked across the river. The reason why Yu Qingxiao didn't fish up the bodies in the river this time was simple. Those corpses were soaked and rotten. As soon as they were touched, the flesh would fall off from the bones, which made Yu Qingxiao think of the instant noodles he had soaked for three hours and forgot to eat, and the steamed buns that had fallen in the water. So such a corpse Yu Qingxiao did not know what to do with it. Like this soaked in the water can still be intact. If she hands to fish, then the whole body is gone. The infectious disease can be compared to the zombie virus? So Yu Qingxiao only thought for a second before giving up the idea of fishing for the corpse. After walking across the river, Yu Qingxiao turned around and bowed to the corpses. Sorry, you guys better soak it. After saying this, Yu Qingxiao turned around and walked away without hesitation. The shoes, socks and pants were wet. Yu Qingxiao was in no hurry and took them off to change into new ones. The pants and shoes from before were wrapping themselves tightly. And now there was no need to touch humans. Yu Qingxiao changed into her favorite little dress and little leather shoes again. Now that it was hot, it was appropriate to wear pretty little dresses. However, Yu Qingxiao looked at her legs and noticed that her skin didn't seem to be as heavily colored as before. Of course, it was still greenish gray as all. It's just that before, Yu Qingxian was very much like an eggplant dyed in gray. No matter how you looked at it, it didn't look like the skin that a human should have. But now that the color had receded a bit, at first, Yu Qingxian looked like someone who had been bruised all over his body. Then now that the greenish gray color had receded some, it was actually somewhat greenish. This made Yu Qingxiao think of a potato that had been baked in the sun. Why couldn't he himself have some normal color? Forget it, there were still blackened zombies. It was already very good that he hadn't turned blackened. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao sat on the suitcase and went forward with an umbrella. Yu Qingxiao felt that holding an umbrella was not too flashy? How about finding a sun hat to wear? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao felt that he could try it. After all, there were still clothes on his body. So as long as he covered his head, it would be fine. The zombie virus was hosted in the brain. So as long as the temperature of the brain was not allowed to get too high, then the zombie virus would disappear and it would become a corpse. To say that at the beginning Yu Qingliang really didn't have the need to live. But now, she seemed to have gradually found a little bit. Of course, it was only a little bit. If a person really rushed out to kill her, then she really wouldn't resist. Yu Qingliang was originally worried about the rain. But after that previous rain, the day afterward got hotter and hotter. When they passed by the river again, they realized that the water in this river was already much less. Some zombie aquatic creatures dried up on the riverbed. Yu Qingliang placed her suitcase on the bank and she walked down the riverbed with a stick. She wanted to try if the aquatic zombie creatures could still live after leaving the water. The stick poked the aquatic zombie creatures and found that they had rotted and wouldn't even move. It seemed that the zombie aquatic creatures in the freshwater weren't as tough as some of the ones in the sea. After all, the aquatic zombie creatures on the seashore had all gone ashore. Yu Qingliang squatted by the river and watched for a while when she suddenly heard the sound of a car. She was so scared that she hurriedly went ashore and lifted her suitcase to hide under the bridge. Several cars traveled past her head, but stopped by the bridge. Yu Qingliang's entire body was almost stuck to the bottom of the bridge when she heard the car stop. No, one shouldn't have been discovered. What were these humans doing? Yu Qingxiao's hiding from the humans was subconscious. It wasn't really that she was afraid of being killed by humans, but she herself would subconsciously avoid them. After the flood comes the drought. Ha, huh? survival is getting more and more difficult now. And those hurricanes at the beginning of the month were really blowing. The people in the car just dropped the glass window to look at the river. 
After all, it was the beginning of the recovery and development, which was already difficult. Not only did they have to face the threat of zombies, but also the test of nature. Zombies could be killed, but there was no way to control natural disasters, like the hurricane before. It wasn't like it was human controlled and could press pause. Even with the modified vehicles, there was no way to get too close to the hurricane. After all, not everyone had the guts to get that close to a hurricane either. Are you talking about Chinan and the one by his side called Court Lady One? Those two are completely abnormal. How could anyone dare to run after a hurricane? One of them said. And Yu Qingliang was a bit puzzled as she listened to that person's words. These two names she hadn't heard of and didn't recognize. Gu Yibing Qing's name was still something she only knew after that person who could see her called it. That teenager was called A Shang. His full name was unknown. And the dog was called Sa Tian. Right. Right. That court lady when doesn't have much of a weapon either. Holding a baseball bat in her hand. I heard that the other day. She took out a level 3 zombie by herself. The person who had just started talking added. And while this sounded like it was in an ordinary exchange. To Yu Qing Liang. It was something extraordinary. The young girl with a baseball bat in her hand. She knew it. It turned out that that little girl was called court lady one. And she had even killed a level 3 zombie. Sure enough the little pervert was really strong. Then Xinan was the one beside the little pervert? How could Yu Qingliang not expect to hear the names of those two in this place? Sure enough, among the survivors, these people were all very powerful. All of them were already well known among the survivors. Of course, she, a zombie, had also heard it. The people in the car should have come out from the base to scout the situation. The last month has been either a hurricane or rain, and now it's stormy. With weather like this, Humans were naturally worried about what would happen next. It was as if humans had started to be eliminated from the planet. But even so, humans still had to live well. After the vehicles took a few pictures, they continued on their way. The people in these vehicles should be here to check the river's condition. Yu Qingliang came up from under the bridge after listening to the vehicles go away. Although this riverbed did dry up, there was no place for Yu Qingxia to hide. Her small leather shoes were full of mud. Yu Qingxiao put the suitcase that was on top of her head on the side of the road, and only then did she look at her leg of mud. She had to find a place in front of her to wash it. Yu Qingxiao just stomped forward with a pair of muddy shoes, leaving a trail of footprints, arriving at a small town. Yu Qingxiao looked for a few faucets, but no water came out. She turned to the supermarket to see if there was any mineral water. It took several supermarkets before she could find it. Sure enough the small town had been emptied by humans. After she cleaned her feet, she put on new shoes also looked for a full body mirror to take a picture. Yu Qingliang uncovered her mask and looked at her face. It was fine and didn't show any signs of healing, and it certainly didn't rot. This was already a very good thing for Yu Qingliang to not rot. Sure enough at this time, her whole body was on the greenish side. Yu Qingxian thought about it. It was most likely from soaking in the medicinal water. I don't know if it can be restored. Although she did quite like the color green, it wasn't particularly nice to have her skin turn green. Yu Qingxiao also specifically looked for a sun hat and wore it to the sun for a while, and found that it still didn't work too well. It did cover some of the sunlight, making it not so unpleasant for her. But in the end, Yu Qingxiao still chose to use an umbrella. That was the most suitable way for her. Yu Qingxiao took her cell phone and took a few pictures of herself in the mirror. Actually, she didn't really understand why many people like to take pictures of themselves. The previous her didn't understand it, but now she seemed to understand it somewhat. Human life was fleeting for this world. No one knew when an accident would come. To be able to leave behind a photo, this was to leave some thoughts for those who cared about them. Yu Qingliang looked at the photos and was somewhat helpless. No one could see it even if he took a picture. Forget it, I've taken the picture. Thinking this way, Yu Qingliang even took a picture with the stone at the entrance of the town. The name of the town was written on the stone. Sort of a tourist photo. It proved that he had traveled here. It was already the end of April when Yu Qingxiao arrived at the easternmost part. She felt that at her speed. She didn't know if she could catch up with this year's autumn colors. At this time, there were some zombies hanging around in the square. She looked here and there, and finally chose a suitable place, waiting for the sun to rise. And the camera in the back was recording at this time. It wasn't even 3 o'clock in the morning when Yu Qingliang saw the golden light flying up from the sky. It rushed out from the darkened ground. Mom and Dad said they were watching the sunrise in the middle of the night. Was this the sunrise they were watching? Yu Qingxiao turned her head to look at the camera. She moved closer to it, and as the sun popped up, she whispered, Mom and Dad, I saw the oh-so-exciting sunrise that you wanted to see. After saying this, Yu Qingxian stepped aside and the sunlight poured into the camera. Yu Qingxiao looked at the slowly rising sun, and then looked at the time. So what time do people in this city wake up? It wouldn't be getting up at 3 in the middle of the night. 
right? Yu Qingxiao muttered to herself. After all, she hadn't thought about this at all before. After the sun had fully risen, Yu Qingxiao turned off the video, and the surrounding zombies began to find ways to hide towards the lightless places as the sun shone. Yu Qingxiao smelled the odor of humans. She had just received her camera into her suitcase, and when she looked up, she locked eyes with the human at the edge of the steps in the distance. Yu Qingxiao also did not expect that she would encounter humans in this place, and it was still a human wearing a uniform. This was the official people. Yu Qingxiao didn't turn and run at the sight of a human like he usually did, but stood up straight, and the man leading the group didn't have his eyes lingering on Yu Qingxiao's body. He looked at all the zombies equally. After that, the dozen or so people behind him held shields and blocked the sight of those people. Yu Qingxiao finally saw the red color in the hands of the person behind that person. She suddenly understood something. Then she looked towards that flagpole. Yes, this was the border. Even if it was the end of the world, it wouldn't let others take advantage of the situation. It was the first time Yu Qingliang had watched the national flag being raised in the morning. The zombies in the entire square came towards those people. But although they rushed forward, they were not killed, but were kept out by the shields. It wasn't until the flag was raised that those people took off their hats and saluted those zombies. Only after that did they shoot and sweep those zombies. Yu Qingliang walked to the edge of the square with her suitcase and also took in the scene. By the time she reacted, the zombies had already been dealt with. Yu Qingxiao crouched behind the fence, her body blocked by the flower beds. Therefore, those people couldn't see Yu Qingxiao, but Yu Qingxiao could see them. She watched as they helped these zombies organize their remains and then took away their corpses. The only thing left in the entire square again was the national flag that fluttered in the wind. No wonder there weren't many zombies in this square. It turned out that every once in a while, someone would come and clean it up. Yu Qingliang waited for those people to leave before walking out from behind the flower bed with her suitcase. She stood underneath the flag for a while before she took out her camera and snapped a picture. Sure enough looking at the red color, Yu Qingxiang, who was a zombie, felt very relieved. But then again, if the ones who killed themselves in the future were also official people, then wouldn't they also get the hat off salute? Oh, thinking that he was so respected when he died, Yu Qingxiao wondered if he could choose a coffin for himself in advance, lie down in it and find a comfortable position before giving her a shot. Thinking this way, Yu Qingxiao took out his cell phone and added an entry to the pending catalog, find a pretty coffin, but she's a zombie, so she shouldn't be able to leave a whole body, right? Then find a nice urn. It's best if it's one that I push the flow of hemp model. Yu Qingliang thought so, and got on the suitcase and left the city. There weren't many zombies in this city. It was estimated that there was a garrison guarding this place for the past half year. So the survivors in this downtown didn't go to other bases. When she first arrived in this city, she was still a bit scared. But now it seemed that even if she walked on the streets by herself, she wouldn't be able to bump into any survivors. When Yu Qingliang left this city, she didn't forget to take a picture with this city. After thinking about it, she felt that she should find something that could print photos. She had seen it on shopping software before. It could be linked in various ways, didn't know if there was one that could connect to a camera either, then find a few pretty notebooks and pens, print out the photos and paste them on the books, it should be pretty, Yu Qingliang hadn't done this kind of handbook before, it would be a good idea to try it now, then we need to prepare the notebooks and pens first, this kind of thing should usually be available in the bookstore near the school, Yu Qingxiao pulled open the map and took a look, there was indeed a middle school nearby, so Yu Qingxiao went that way, but halfway there, Yu Qingxiao felt something was wrong, because she smelled a lot of human smell. It seemed like it was in this school right in front of her. Yu Qingxiao suddenly pressed down and stopped her suitcase and thought of a problem. In fact, if the school was cleaned up after the zombies, it really was the most suitable place to be a gathering place. There were many dormitory houses, cafeterias and playgrounds for exercise. So no matter what, the most suitable place to be a survivor base in a city was a school. It was no wonder that when students were still students, they felt that schools were the hardest places to get out of. Yu Qingliang didn't go any further, but backed away. This time it wasn't because she was afraid of people that she left. It was because she just didn't want to scare the humans. In her own appearance, she was a zombie at first glance. Humans today should already know that some advanced zombies possessed intelligence. Not all advanced zombies grew towards savagery. Because of this, humans needed to be exceptionally careful when dealing with zombies. Although intelligent zombies were human in appearance. Their eyes still didn't look like human eyes. Although the eyes of high-level zombies were red, they weren't all red. Like Knight, his eyes were golden. Sure Xingyu and Xiao Ji's eyes were red. Although they were red eyes, the eye lines were still a bit different. But where it was different, Yu Qingliang couldn't remember. Who would stare at someone's eyes for nothing? Although it was an intelligent zombie, every zombie was different, right? So the eyes would also change. For example, 
for zombies of the same level, the combat power of a brutalized zombie was definitely above that of an intelligent zombie. Otherwise that kid, Shir Xingyu, wouldn't have been held down and smashed through a dozen walls. But when you think about it, a human alien of the same level can completely defeat a zombie of the same level. Half of the beginner alien can fight against the second grade zombies, and if they have the talent, it is estimated that they can fight with the third grade zombies. Of course, some luck might be needed to survive, but a level 2 psychic was fully capable of fighting a level 3 zombie. Although she knew this, she didn't really know how to judge the other party's level. Like Shirshingyu or Xiao Ji and Ai could easily determine how strong the other party was. It was true that the stronger the zombie was, the more it could sense how strong the human was. Yu Qingliang thought to himself and turned towards the outside of the city. It would be good to go to another city to look for a laptop or something like that. This city, it was estimated that in a short while, it would be back under human control. Yu Qingxiao felt that it was fortunate that she had come quickly. If a few more months had passed, she probably wouldn't have been able to cross the city to see the earliest sun. She headed west again, and as she passed a highway, she suddenly stopped. At that place, there was a barbed wire fence stopping it. The danger sign on it, Yu Qingliang knew, and there was an official sign on it. This place, Yu Qingxiao looked around and didn't see any landmarks. But, Yu Qingxiao immediately took out a map to check where she was now. When she saw the name of the place, her green face went a little white. It was the place where mom and dad had their car accident. It was less than 20 kilometers away from the place where she was watching the sunrise. Yu Qingliang lay down on that net and then realized that this net should be the power grid. It was just not electrified because the power was cut off now. This highway was also newly built later. In other words, the original highway was blocked off. Oh, Yu Qingliang remembered that she hadn't seen her mom and dad's remains. And the official people said that they hadn't been saved because the car was on fire. So it had burned to a handful of ashes. Even the cancellation of the account was done for her by the official people. Well, she just went and attended the funeral. Then she went home. And even how it was handled afterwards. Yu Qingxiao didn't care much. Now that I think about it, those relatives were right. It was better to raise her than a dog. All parents would not want to raise a cold-blooded child like her, right? Yu Qingxiao reached out and tore apart those iron nets, then headed towards that place. Just the closer she got, Yu Qingxiao's head started to hurt a little. She thought of the feeling she had earlier when she was in the water park. But this feeling wasn't as strong as before. Before it made her feel like her eyeballs were going to shake out. Now this headache she was the pain of sleep deprivation that she had long ago gotten used to. Passing through a dozen or so barbed wire fences, Yu Qingliang finally got a good look at the scene in front of her. It was a huge what looked like a deep bird pit, and there were quite a few strange fragments in the pit. The fragments were slowly glowing. There was just nothing in this place. Yu Qingliang jumped from the edge of the deep pit. Originally, she should not have felt any pain at this moment. She felt her head hurt as if she had been stabbed by needles, and quite a few images suddenly flashed before her eyes. But they weren't her memories. Rather, it was things that had happened here before. It seemed to have been recorded by these crystals. Yu Qingliang stood in the middle of the deep pit, and the scenes of that night kept flashing back before her eyes. The sky was suddenly bright and then exploded like lightning in front of one's eyes. After that, it was instantly plunged into darkness. This image kept playing before Yu Qingliang's eyes. So his own mom and dad, it wasn't because of the car accident at all, but because of this sudden bright light. As the image kept flashing back, that light was getting slower and slower in front of Yu Qingxiao's eyes. Gradually she seemed to see something in the bright light. It was a crystal the size of a human brain. And there was more than one of them. It was only because the moment was so bright that other bright lights in the sky were overlooked. In other words, there were countless of these crystals falling all over the planet in a single moment. Causing countless accidents. And his own mom and dad were killed in this accident. The image was still playing in front of Yu Qingliang's eyes. But Yu Qingliang felt that he was a bit physically exhausted. It was true that this place was not only dangerous to humans but also to zombies. But in fact, Yu Qingxian was willing to die in the place where his mom and dad died. Yu Qingxiao just flopped down on the ground. As the sun set, the sky around them grew darker and darker. The crystal fragments in that pitch black pit were also glittering. Even Yu Qingxiao's body was flickering. It wasn't until the middle of the night that Yu Qingxian woke up again. She was a little disappointed when she realized that she hadn't died yet. Yu Qingxiao crawled up with slight difficulty and just sat on her knees. The sky was dim, but stars could be seen. Obviously, it was already nighttime at this point. Yu Qingxiao turned her head to look at the moon, then determined the time. She had probably passed out for about 7 hours. At this time, she had already adapted to the pain caused by the crystals. During the daytime, she couldn't see too clearly, but now she could see clearly. After all, even if the zombies were unrestricted at night, 
things that glowed would be especially conspicuous in the eyes of the zombies. As long as the sun does not appear, then a little bit of light in the eyes of the zombie will be magnified countless times. This is also the reason why zombies tend to light. Zombies are also human beings, so their subconscious still knows that as long as there is light, there are humans, and humans were food. Yu Qingliang stood up and picked up all the pieces of these crystals. Well, mom and dad died here. There wasn't even a body. So take this as a souvenir. It's just that even though this crystal blew up, there should still be a big piece of it. Forget it. Since the officials have sealed this place up, it means that thing has already been taken away. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang suddenly had a flash of insight. The thing that attracted night wouldn't be this crystal. But this crystal is harmful to both zombies and humans, right? Or did the officials do a modification to this crystal over the past three years? Removing the harmful substance in the crystal. So what is this harmful substance? Is it the zombie virus? Since the country has removed this harmful substance, how did the end of the world happen? Did it even happen overnight? Yu Qingliang suddenly reached out and slapped her head. Was she a fool? There were so many countries on the entire planet. It wasn't like if their country controlled it, other countries could control it as well. Yu Qingxiao was like picking up pretty little stones by the river bending over and squatting here and there to pick them up. And at this time the sky was almost bright in this place. It meant that it was already 3 in the morning. She put those broken crystals she picked up in her pocket. Only then did she crawl back again. Then the barricade net that she tore apart was screwed back again. Although it was obvious at a glance that the barbed wire had been vandalized. But she really had tried. There was no way to get it back as it was. In order not to be caught doing something bad, Yu Qingliang mounted her suitcase and quickly ran away. In fact, there was another good thing about the end times, which was that her suitcase had been sitting here for hours, and surprisingly, no one had taken it. It was really great. Of course, she didn't mean to say that other people liked to take things indiscriminately. Well, Yu Qingliang had this idea. After all, when she was in school, her cell phone was taken from her pocket on the way home. It scared her so much that she didn't dare to go out for three months, taking away one's cell phone without a word. Then whatever that person wanted to do, they could do it without a word. It was really too scary. As soon as Yu Qingxiao thought of this, she became even more cautious and reached out to protect her backpack. Obviously, there was no one around, not even zombies. If someone or a zombie saw Yu Qingxiao's movements, it was estimated that Yu Qingxiao's life would really be tied to the word sneaky. When Yu Qingxiao entered the next city, she realized that there were more zombies in this city than in the previous one. She happily headed towards the bookstore in this downtown area. After all, there was something she was looking for inside. Yu Qingliang had just walked into the bookstore when she felt the sound of breaking wind behind her. She turned around sharply and saw a shadow coming towards her. Yu Qingxiao was shocked and directly closed the glass door. But it was obvious that the glass door could not stop the other party. The figure directly passed through the glass door and landed in front of Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxiao was startled. It's over. It's over. It was really a high-level zombie that had come to take her life. Just after she saw who the other party was clearly, her eyes instantly went cold. They changed back to eyes with only a black dot. The old cow went home. Shershing Yu looked at Yu Qingxiao, who had just looked terrified, and reverted back to her PIs when she saw clearly that it was herself. But had she just stared wide-eyed? He had seen the color of Yu Qingxiao's eyes. It wasn't just one color. What was it? Shershing Yu didn't understand. But neither did Shershing Yu think that he would suddenly see Yu Qingxian. It turned out that she could run so fast by herself. He had thought that Yu Qingxian was still hiding somewhere. So Yu Qingxiao didn't really need herself. When Shi Xingyu thought this, he saw Yu Qingxian come up to pull his hair and look at his clothes. Yu Qingxiao stared at Shi Xingyu in front of him and realized that his hair had grown a bit longer and his skin was already close to Aya's skin color. Not so white. Moreover, Yu Qingliang stared at Shi Xingyu's alien pupils, one golden and one red. He had indeed evolved again. In other words, Shi Xingyu was moving in the direction of a corpse king. However, his speed was too slow. Next time, I'll introduce Shi Xingyu to Ai Yi to get to know him, so that Ai Yi can teach him how to advance. It wasn't just Yu Qingyao observing Shi Xingyu, Shi Xingyu was also observing Yu Qingyao. If he hadn't seen Yu Qingxiao's suitcase and heard the sound, he wouldn't have been able to sense that Yu Qingxiao was here at all. Her aura was getting weaker and weaker. Obviously, she had gotten stronger, but it was getting harder and harder to sense Yu Qingxiao's aura. It seemed that she hadn't failed to grow in these few months. At least it was getting harder and harder to detect her presence. May I ask what this zombie was doing by not raising its attack power or leveling up, but instead trying to hide itself? Yu Qingliang looked at Shi Xingyu and thought for a moment before saying, But how did you find me? Since she knew it was Shi Xingyu, she wasn't that worried. Chased here by someone. Shi Xingyu answered honestly. After all, he had been held down in front of Yu Qingxiao. 
so there was no need to put on an act in front of her. Hmm, Yu Qingshan looked at Shi Xingyu with some surprise. Him, being chased by someone? It shouldn't be ah. Could it be that humans have evolved very much these past few months as well? It's that little pervert you mentioned. I don't know why. I was locked by her and chased me for more than a month. Hurricane didn't even get rid of her. Shi Xingyu said. When Yu Qingliang heard the hurricane little pervert, he immediately remembered what he had heard before. It said that court lady when ran after hurricane, the one who was emotionally chasing after it was Shi Xingyu. Good lord, since he was locked by court lady one, then Shi Xingyu was in danger. Can't stay with him. Otherwise, he was going to be found by that little pervert. Court lady one, since you're being chased, then go somewhere else. What are you doing here looking for me? Yu Qingxiao stared at Shi Xingyu, a little speechless in his heart. I was heading elsewhere ah, but I didn't expect you to run so fast, and I didn't expect to meet you in this place even more. Shi Xingyu was also somewhat speechless. He had already said goodbye to Yu Qingliang before. It was true that he did not expect to meet her in this place. Then you go now and head somewhere else. Yu Qingxiang pointed to the door and told Shi Xingyu to go. Shi Xingyu also did not expect Yu Qingyan to actually rush him away. Although being a zombie at a time like this wouldn't have any feelings, Shi Xingyu was still a bit puzzled. Whose fault was it that he would be locked up? Just thinking about it made Shi Xingyu a little angry. Don't you know the reason I was targeted by that little pervert? Believe it or not, I'll hand you over to that little pervert right now. Shi Xingyu also pointed outside the door. Really, it was so hard for him to be on the verge of advancing, but as a result, she let herself go, obviously carrying the consciousness of a human, but without a bit of human conscience. Yu Qingxian shut up instantly when he heard that Shi Xingyu was going to hand himself over to that little pervert. If she was really sent out by Shi Xingyu, she definitely wouldn't be able to resist, and maybe that little pervert would even cut herself into eight big pieces. Sorry, I was wrong. Don't give me away. Yu Qingxia directly knelt down and sat in front of Shi Xingyu, her tone sincere. Shi Xingyu, he really felt that Yu Qingxia really never faced up to his abilities. But then again, Shi Xingyu felt that this was good. With her nature, if she knew how powerful she was, wouldn't she jump into the sea with all the zombies around the globe hand in hand to kill herself? Although she always said she was fair. But as long as she still had humanity, it was impossible for her to turn a blind eye to the deaths of humans. Forget it, I only came over to take a look when I saw your suitcase, thinking that in case it was a human who killed you and grabbed your suitcase, then I would help you take revenge. I didn't expect it to be you. Shi Xingyu opened his mouth. He had suddenly barged in and really didn't realize that it was really Yu Qingxian. When Yu Qingxian heard that Shi Xingyu wanted to avenge himself, she quickly waved her hand. No, no, if I die. Remember to snatch my body and bury it. See, I designed the coffin for myself. She said and took out her cell phone, showing Shi Xingyu the coffin she designed. Shi Xingyu looked at those strange lines. Even if he was a zombie, he couldn't quite understand this kind of what she was drawing. What are you drawing? Shi Xingyu finally couldn't help but ask her. When Yu Qingxiao heard Shi Xingyu's words, she spoke. Coffins. Ah, coffins with urns and coffins containing corpses. She was very satisfied with her painting. But looking at Shi Xingyu's puzzled look, she felt that having turned into a zombie, she definitely didn't recognize them. Of course, she wouldn't laugh at Shi Xingyu. Yu Qingliang also didn't care about Shi Xingyu, but went to look for a book suitable as a handbook, and then pens of various colors. Shi Xingyu still stood on the side as before without saying anything. Although this period of time away from the old ox, the mobility aspect did make it a bit difficult for her, especially when there was no electricity. Yu Qingliang could only drag her suitcase along. When she was done taking these things, she put them in her backpack, and she had just zipped it up when an aroma came from the tip of her nose. It was the odor of a human, and this smell was familiar to her. It was the smell of the little pervert. As expected, Shi Xingyu was really locked by the little pervert. Yu Qingxiao looked at him. You run, run in the opposite direction. In short, the farther away from me the better. After saying this, Yu Qingxian lifted his suitcase and rushed out of the store, running towards the west. Shi Xingyu, However, did not move. He actually felt that he could talk to that human. He had fought a few times with the other party, but that little girl hadn't even made a move. So Shi Xingyu felt that that little girl running after Yu Qingliang wasn't trying to kill her. Perhaps there was another reason. Are you just going to run away for the rest of your life? Aren't going to talk to her? Shi Xingyu didn't move and just looked at Yu Qingxiao's back. They advanced zombies weren't really completely unreasonable. Like that kind of difficult human, they would naturally deal with each other in a human way. After all, humans felt that they zombies were once humans, and had developed the intelligence of zombies, and could even communicate with humans. Then there can be some negotiation. After all, humans do not want to consume too much, 
There was also no benefit to be gained from a deadly fight with the zombies. So humans would believe. They would believe the zombies. Yu Qingliang's footsteps lurched when she heard Xiu Xingyu's words. She had never thought that she would have to deal with humans. There was no way to properly talk to humans as a human, let alone herself who had turned into a zombie. She didn't feel the need to intercede. But why did Xiu Xingyu look so sure? That little pervert could negotiate? Court Lady Wen finally detected the little zombie again after a few months. Sure enough, as long as they locked onto that senior zombie, they could find this little zombie. It's just that they didn't escape? Why? It was strange to say that in this month or so, she had directly dealt with that senior zombie several times, but the other party had simply left. If the other party was really serious, although she could take the other party's head, she would definitely not be able to stand it either. That's why Court Lady Wen was a bit surprised when she saw two zombies sitting and standing in front of a bookstore. Because of Xiu Xingyu, those zombies around them directly withdrew to several kilometers away. Qinan saw Yu Qingliang at a glance. Although he was indeed surprised after learning from Court Lady Wen that the other party was a small zombie. And looking at her all green and wearing a white dress, she was sitting on a suitcase. That male zombie who had fought with them several times was also there. Only this time the little walker wasn't running. She turned her head to look at the two in the car. The two people in the car also looked at her. Yu Qingliang had thought that she would be scared, but strangely enough she wasn't. Perhaps it was because there were only two people on the other side. But how could she say it? There was still the old ox on the side to back her up. Court Lady Wen used her system to probe Yu Qingxiao's abilities again. It was found that her combat power had even dropped. To say that there was still eight before, then it was only five now. Not only had it not grown, it had even regressed. It was also, if it wasn't for the system making sure of it, she wouldn't have been able to detect the existence of this little zombie. Her presence was also weakening. As a zombie, being so weak, could she survive well in the end times? The answer was probably unknown. After all, this little zombie was alive and well. When Court Lady Wen made sure that the surrounding zombies were all a few kilometers away, her eyes fell on the male zombie, glancing at him before placing her eyes on Yu Qingliang. Xu Xingyu knew that he was ignored. The people and zombies nowadays really didn't give him, a high-level zombie, the slightest bit of attention. It was really the world style that was deteriorating. Xinan did not get out of the car. Originally, he thought that the person who gave him the medicine was an expert so he was prepared to pull the other party into the team. However, after learning that the other party was a zombie from Wen Chang's mouth, he gave up on this idea. The members of his own three squads also stayed in the official base afterward. Nowadays, the zombies were also getting stronger and stronger. So Chinan naturally wouldn't let those three teammates follow. So he left them in the official base. He also didn't like staying in one place all the time. More importantly, Chinan somewhat liked Wen Chang, and Wen Chang was even more reluctant to stay in the base. Even if she was by herself, she still wanted to leave. Xinan knew that Wen Chang was not as gentle and needy as her name, but he still couldn't help but follow. It was just that Xinan didn't know why Wen Chang was so obsessed with that little zombie. He didn't ask, and it wasn't like he had to know. So Xinan was dead set on Yu Qingxiao at this point, wanting to see the unique points of this little zombie, but it was indeed quite unique. It was the first time he had seen a green zombie, but he was also curious as to why this little zombie was helping humans. Seeing that both of them were staring at him, Yu Qingxiao tugged at Xu Xingyu and hid behind him, but there was absolutely no way. She was lifted from behind by Xu Xingyu. They can't understand when I speak, Yu Qingliang said. This had been tried when facing that mother and daughter. The humans couldn't understand what she said. Xu Xingyu sniffed, but said, it's because you don't want to communicate with humans. Right, try it the way you humans speak. Yu Qingxiao had some doubts emerge on her face when Xu Xingyu said this. He himself had always spoken like this ah, but since Xu Xingyu had said so, it's better if you say it for me. Yu Qingxiao shrunk behind Xu Xingyu again. Xu Xingyu, big sister, come out and say it yourself. But this time, he didn't bring up Yu Qingxiao, but instead looked at court lady one. What are you trying to do by running after us all the time? Make it clear beforehand. Just because she doesn't eat people doesn't mean I don't eat people. All this time I've only refrained from taking action against you guys because of her face. This time too. Be prepared to make it clear. If you keep chasing after us in the future, I won't be polite. Shershing Yu was already very skillful in speaking human language nowadays. There wasn't that hoarse feeling from before, and it sounded like a normal boy's voice. It wasn't particularly good, but it certainly wasn't hard to hear either. After all, Yu Qingxiao's ears had been raised to be very tricky by those radio dramas and various fan dramas. So a normal voice in Yu Qingxiao's ears would be considered a good-sounding voice for a normal person, right? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao thought, I wonder if my favorite voice actor is still alive. Should I ask for a photo? When those voice actors appeared in the past, 
There were too many fans and she didn't dare to go. At this moment, Yu Qingxian began to wander again. Court Lady Wen looked at Yu Qingliang staring at Shi Xingyu's back not knowing what she was thinking. Her eyes retracted and landed on Shi Xingyu's body. Regarding the fact that two zombies would live in a group, Court Lady Wen was indeed surprised. After all, the system had also said that zombies would not be in a group living situation. Especially two powerful zombies were even more unlikely to come together. Of course, if it was a low-level zombie, it might be possible. So Court Lady Wen was thinking that Yu Qingliang was controlled by Shi Xingyu. But with the current situation, it seemed that the relationship between these two zombies was more like the other way around. I'm sorry, I'm just more curious about this zombie. After she turned into a zombie, her combat power not only didn't go up, but instead decreased. And I've been wanting to explore. Of course, I have no malice. When Chang opened her mouth, and she could tell from this male zombie's mouth that that little zombie didn't eat people. In other words, it was likely that she still retained a human conscience. Otherwise, she wouldn't have helped Qin and get the medicine. But how much of it was retained? Court Lady Wen wasn't sure. It shouldn't be much. If she still retained human consciousness, she would have wanted to integrate into the human world instead of mixing with the zombies all the time. Shi Xingyu's eyes narrowed slightly as he listened to Court Lady Wen's words, clearly not believing her. Just being curious, you could follow Yu Qing for half a year? This kind of words, Shi Xingyu did not believe. He asked Yu Qing Xian in a low voice, Do you believe it? When Yu Qing Xian heard this, his eyes moved to Court Lady Wen's face. Then he retracted his gaze, tell her not to follow me anymore. As for that question from Shi Xingyu, Yu Qingyan directly ignored it. Shi Xingyu had also long been used to her being like this, so he relayed Yu Qingyan's words to Court Lady Wen. After Court Lady Wen learned of Yu Qingxian's words from Shi Xingyu's mouth, she seemed to want to say something else, but in the end, she chose not to say anything at all. Don't worry, I won't show up again in the future, and I'll rot it in my stomach about you guys. Court Lady Wen had thought that this zombie would have a common language with herself, but now it seemed that even if they were both out of place, it didn't mean that they got along. After saying this, Court Lady Wen turned around and went back to her car, and erased these two zombies from her system. There was no need to track this walker in the future. As Qin and started the car, he still looked at Yu Qingxiao. Thank you for the medicine before. After saying this, Qin and raised the window and the car drove past Yu Qingxiao and Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu watched as the car disappeared into the street before he turned back to look at Yu Qingxiao. Yu Qingxiao was not touched by the humans thanks. I thought you did a good deed just for this thank you. Shi Xingyu said with some surprise. This kind of thing placed on a human should be something that made people very happy. But looking at Yu Qingliang, she didn't seem to have any feelings. Her expression remained the same as before. It's not like I did this kind of thing just to hear him say thank you, because doing so would make me happy. That's all. Yu Qingliang said, she would only satisfy herself by doing things. Probably people like her lived in groups and belonged to the selfish category. You have to make yourself happy before it's someone else's turn. Doing good things was only done because one wanted to do it. She really couldn't be a kind person like her parents. As Yu Qingxiao thought this, she saw Shi Xingyu staring at her. She was a little puzzled. What was this brat looking at? It wasn't like she was some stunning beauty. Your face? You sewed it up? Shi Xingyu said. You just realized it now. Ha, huh? I'm not bad with my hands. Am I? Yu Qingxiao ruffled her long hair with a proud face. It sucks. Shi Xingyu said honestly. There were even several pinholes poked out because she sewed herself crooked. Luckily it was her own face and didn't go and trash another walker. Yu Qingliang knew that zombies didn't know how to appreciate it and didn't bother with him in general. But she suddenly remembered something. Immediately, she returned that third level crystal core from her backpack to Shi Xingyu. The crystal core is returned to you. You don't even know that I'm carrying this crystal core on my back. And I'm being stared at by those zombies. And I'm having a hard time. Yu Qingliang handed that crystal core to Shi Xingyu. Finally, he could get rid of this hot potato. And Shi Xingyu looked at this crystal core intact being handed back to her hands by Yu Qingxian. How could she not think of it? This crystal core she froze and carried for two months. She really hadn't even nibbled on a single bite. Who are you fooling? Shi Xingyu didn't believe that Yu Qingyan was having a hard time. As long as Yu Qingxiao was on guard, it was expected that there would be no zombies in this world that would really want to grab something from her. Yu Qingxian didn't care that she was poked and prodded by Shi Xingyu's lie, and instead rode on the luggage. She started the suitcase and Shi Xingyu consciously followed on the side. As for that crystal core, Shi Xingyu didn't eat it, but put it into a bag on her waist. Yu Qingliang inclined her head to look over, only to realize that Shi Xingyu had an additional small bag on his waist. He didn't know what was in it, but after putting this crystal core in, it bulged, but it didn't matter. The crystal core had already been returned to Shi Xingyu anyway. You're about to advance. 
aren't you? Yu Qingliang asked him back. Well, soon, sure Xing Yu said. If it wasn't for the fact that he was being chased by that little pervert, then he really might have already advanced, but now he seemed to be stuck. For a moment, he didn't know what to do. When Yu Qingxiao heard Shi Xing Yu's words, he suddenly thought of his one gold and one red eye, so he couldn't help but say, a level 4, 5 zombie, it's the first time I've seen it, same to each other. Shi Xing Yu wasn't blown away. After all, he hadn't seen a zombie that didn't eat people either. Originally, I was going to wait until September to go to Autumn Color Lake to return the crystal core to you, but I didn't expect to meet you in this place, so are we still going to see it in September? Yu Qinglian sniffed. She wanted to go to too many places and was afraid that she wouldn't be able to go to Autumn Color Lake in September. Go ah, you said it before. Shi Xing Yu said. Yu Qingxiao looked at Shi Xing Yu. It doesn't matter what the scenery is like, right? It's not like you. A zombie can appreciate it. Shi Xing Yu, however, did not reply again. Although the truth was true, it was so right, but he always felt that it wasn't quite right. Anyway, anyway, just go and watch, Toki Song was said. Also, go and see. After Yu Qingliang said this, he suddenly looked at Shi Xingyu again. I do know a zombie, he's already above level 5. If there's anything you don't understand, I can take you to see him and let him teach you. These words made Shi Xingyu a little surprised. She actually knew other zombies, even at a higher level than himself. The things Yu Qingliang had experienced in these two months were quite wonderful. I don't think that zombie will teach me, but will instead knock my brains out. Shi Xingyu said honestly, he didn't really feel that that walker could accommodate his own existence, especially since he had half a foot in level 5. The other party would definitely do everything possible to get himself killed. How could it possibly get along well with itself? Why? Yu Qingliang asked with some confusion. After all, she felt that apart from her love of fantasy, Ah Yi was still very gentle as a zombie. Of course, like Shi Xingyu, it didn't understand appreciation, because I also want to crack the other person's head, Shi Xingyu answered honestly, if the other party was stronger than him, then he could only submit to the bottom or be killed, zombies also had pride, of course they couldn't submit under another zombie, this would only make that zombie stronger and stronger, and the zombies below would not be able to share the fresh blood and meat, of course it was only right to be the king, when Yu Qingliang heard this, he also realized this problem. There was no such idea as cooperation between zombies. The only way to become stronger was to eat more blood and flesh. Otherwise, if you grew a crystal core, you would also be the one to be lifted off the skull by other zombies. Yu Qingxiao fell silent when he thought of this. Seeing that Yu Qingxian didn't say anything, Shi Xingyu reached out and pressed Yu Qingxian's suitcase to a stop, then skillfully pulled the lever out from the back. Yu Qingxian was completely turned around. She also didn't expect this old cow to be so self-conscious. I can only send you out of the city. I won't follow you. Shi Xingyu seemed to have begun to understand Yu Qingxian, and she said the words before she even opened her mouth to ask. Shi Xingyu didn't get Yu Qingxiao to get a response and didn't care. He had said before that he was different from Yu Qingxiao. He himself was a real zombie. It was impossible for him to not eat people for Yu Qingxiao, and the fact that she saved people seemed inexplicable in his eyes. Around her, he would always be under her control, even if she didn't say anything, even letting himself be at will but her entire body was filled with the aura of not being allowed, not being allowed. When they reached the edge of the city, Shi Xingyu let go of Yu Qingxian's suitcase. Yu Qingxiao also started her own suitcase. I'll see you in September then. Don't die. After all, I have no way to contact you. Yu Qingxiao waved his hand behind Shi Xingyu's back, a sort of ending to this short get-together. No one knew if they would still be able to live in this world tomorrow. Humans didn't know, and neither did the zombies. Yu Qingliang withdrew his hand clicked on the map, and continued traveling west. Shi Xingyu didn't care as he watched Yu Qingxiao not return his head. He reached out and patted the fanny pack on his waist. What an excessive request. There were quite a few powerful humans in this world, and there were quite a few zombies as well. Let's hope. In September, his head was still on. Yu Qingxiao seemed to have thought of something, and when she turned back, there was no longer any figure of Shi Xingyu on the edge of the city. She was thinking that at this time, she should have set a wish for a safe journey but saying it to a zombie didn't seem to be of much use. Yu Qingliang typed in the place she wanted to go, and the map showed up, and a route was made for her. It even told her which base would be more suitable as a resting place in the middle of the journey. When Yu Qingxiao looked at the route, she felt that it wouldn't work at all ah. This route was just asking her to break into the crowd ah. When Yu Qingliang thought of this, she took out the photo from her backpack again. On it was a photo of herself and her parents. Mom and dad were smiling happily, and only herself was expressionless. She really was a failure as a person. Even taking a picture with mom and dad, 
she wasn't willing to show a single smile? Yu Qingxiao stared at the photo, but there wasn't a single tear. She clearly knew that at a time like this, if it was someone else, she would definitely be in tears, but she didn't want to cry at all. But she understood that her mom and dad were very important to her. Ever since she was a child, she had never been able to fit into the human social circle. It was especially worst when she was 15 or 16 years old, so severe that she felt physically ill when facing strangers or even acquaintances. It was also during that time that her condition progressed from not being able to interact properly with others as a child to having feverish symptoms in her body whenever she took a trip outside, barely able to bring herself to deal with humans afterward. Even when she went to the doctor, she didn't even listen to a few words that the doctor said. But why? Why did this symptom decrease a lot after turning into a zombie? Yu Qingxian was not clear and could not figure it out. Yu Qingliang's next stop was a place she had been looking forward to for a long time. It was also the place where she used to say she wanted to go to see the snow. Only now it seemed that the place no longer had snow, so it was to see flowers. But that place is covered in snow all year round. Can you see flowers? It would be good to go to a flower seed store. If there were no flowers, then she would scatter all the way there. Anyway, next spring, surely it would be possible to bloom, right? Even if it was once a harsh winter, it would still be able to bloom in the next spring, right? Yu Qingxiao said that she was choosing flower seeds, but when she saw so many flower seeds, she was a bit torn. What seeds could grow in the north? But then she looked at the sunlight outside and felt that she was overthinking it. Yu Qingliang gave up on those seeds and instead went to look for those flower seeds that had mutated in the end times. Like there were a lot of them on the roadside. These flowers were beautiful. And although some of them hadn't been inoculated yet, there were some that already had seeds. Yu Qingliang looked at those plants in the fields and put his suitcase on the side. Along with the backpack of course, she was going to those thorn bushes. And she scratched her clothes the last time she went to the rose bushes. Still, she put her things slightly to the side of the road, worried about being spotted by passing survivors. Of course, in a place like this now, she probably wouldn't see a living soul for a few days, so she didn't have to worry about that. Yu Qingliang crossed the aqueduct at a leisurely pace, walking into the thorn bushes. It was just that she had only taken a few steps when something seemed to be wrapped around her foot. It wasn't because Yu Qingliang felt it, but by the time she realized it, she had already been hung upside down. The long skirt was all reversed, blocking her view. Yu Qingxiao reached out and pressed the skirt down. And only then did she see that there was a super beautiful petunia in the thorn bush. At this moment, she was caught by the vines of the petunia and one of her legs was caught. Yu Qingxiao could barely see the vine on her leg. There were green leaves and pretty petunia flowers growing on it. Yu Qingxiao stared at those flowers and then spoke. I'm blooming. But, she couldn't be kept hanging in this place. Although it was now close to evening, the sun would rise again in the morning. If she kept hanging in this place, she would definitely be dried up by the sun. Yu Qingliang reached out and grabbed in the air, but this petunia seemed to realize what Yu Qingxiao was trying to do, and even lifted her up a few more meters. At this point, she was estimated to be more than 10 meters away from the ground, and it was still head down. She couldn't care about the front at this time. However, from this viewpoint, it was possible to see the surrounding area clearly. This should be someone's vegetable plot, but now it was filled with all kinds of vine plants. Obviously. This petunia used to need to climb other plants or tree branches and fences in order to grow. Now it was actually able to lift 90 pounds of her. It was really powerful. It was true that the end times had made a lot of things awesome. Even herself, a social terrorist who didn't want to step out of her room, had embarked on a hiking trip. So whatever happened in this world, Yu Qingliang wouldn't be surprised anymore, but put her down first. This petunia, however, couldn't understand her words and not only didn't put her down, but also threw her up as a windmill. Yu Qingxiao wrapped her arms around her chest and was thrown around by the petunia. She didn't have that feeling of congestion. Sure enough turning into a zombie still had its benefits. As for Yu Qingxiao's sudden quietness, this petunia seemed to be a bit dissatisfied and directly threw her out. Yu Qingxiao fell to the ground, grunted and rolled around a few times, and then lay down on the ground in a big shape. And when she sat up, she met eyes with a pair of beautiful eyes. Of course, it wasn't a zombie or a human, but a big white dog. Looking at its appearance, its size was bigger than all the dogs she had ever seen. After a zombie and a dog stared at each other for three minutes, Yu Qingliang finally realized that it was a mutated dog, like the big wolfhound beside Gu Evening Ching was. However, she hadn't raised a dog or a cat. Oh, it wasn't that she hadn't raised any. It was just that they had passed away. She, who wouldn't be saddened by the passing of a human, cried as if she was crying a lot at that time. It was a civet cat that grew up with her, but by the time she was ten, the cat passed away. Now that I think about it, that was the worst she'd ever been in terms of emotional outbursts. It wasn't because mom and dad died, 
But because of a cat, Yu Qingliang once again felt the coolness in her body once again. The dog was huge, and there seemed to be no way to break the collar around its neck, which was tightly pinched at this moment. What was once a sense of security had become something that was killing it at this moment. Yu Qingliang knew that it probably thought of itself as a human. It was ready to ask for help from humans. If it was a zombie, it might have pounced on it at this moment. Yu Qingxiao stood up and went forward, and this big white dog didn't back off. I don't know if I can break it. I don't have a knife in my hand. Yu Qingxiao reached out and grabbed the collar. With it, came a heavy aroma. Sure enough, the collar had strangled deep into its neck. Yu Qingxiao grabbed the collar, and the mutant dog seemed to be in pain, its whole body trembling, but it didn't instinctively come to bite Yu Qingxiao. She grabbed both sides of the collar with her two hands, and then with a forceful tug, the collar collapsed. The collar was actually very loose and wasn't something that was used to bind it. That's why this mutated dog was able to become so big and wasn't immediately strangled to death by this collar. Instead, it was just put around its neck for most of the year. Yu Qingliang looked at the name on the dog's tag, Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's your name. Ha, huh? your name is Tyrannosaurus Rex Ah. Yu Qingliang stared at this big dog in front of her with her pee eyes wide open. It was only at this moment that this big dog was lying on the ground, and the sudden relief made its taut nerves loosen up. The place that was originally bleeding had already stopped bleeding. Yu Qingliang inclined his head to look at it and realized what an awesome self-healing ability. It was probably this self-healing ability that saved it. Yu Qingxiao looked at the collar in his hand, which was actually about to be scratched off. There were many marks on it. It was only because this collar was strangled in the flesh. Even if this big dog was strong, it was impossible to scratch the collar off directly through the flesh. She stood up and carried that collar to the edge of the aqueduct. There was water running in the canal, and she squatted down to wash the blood off her hands and the collar. Only then did she place it on the edge of the aqueduct. The Tyrannosaurus Rex also followed with shaky feet, but it hadn't eaten for a long time, I guess, and it looked big only because of its fur. There wasn't much meat on it. It was just the only thing Yu Qinglian could do to help it. How could Yu Qingxiao not think that trying to catch a bird would be so difficult? Originally, these birds had already mutated and were even more agile. Luckily, the effort was not lost on her. Finally, in the middle of the night, it allowed her to find a nest of bird eggs. She even terminated the bird's nest. The two birds then chased after her and pecked. After getting rid of the birds and returning to the house, Yu Qingxian realized that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was already asleep. This left Yu Qingxiao speechless. So why on earth did she have to fight so hard for a dog that she didn't even know who it was? Never mind. It was just this once. Anyway, once this mutated dog regained its strength, its fighting power would definitely be above her own. She didn't have to worry about it. By the way, the dog owner doesn't need to worry either. Your Tyrannosaurus Rex is still alive. Yu Qingliang fed the Tyrannosaurus Rex five mutated bird eggs. Of course, with five bird eggs, a normal child wouldn't be able to get enough, let alone a mutated large dog. It was just that this was all she could do. Previously, she had wanted to catch a few mutated birds, but in the end, she had no choice but to settle for the second best option of giving people's children a litter. Yu Qingliang mourned the five bird eggs in her heart. Sorry. The Tyrannosaurus Rex that had eaten the five bird eggs did look to be in a better state. Although it didn't feel like it was enough to stuff its teeth, it was still better than nothing. It was better than a corpse and a dog staring at each other. Yu Qingliang did not know if the owner of the Tyrannosaurus Rex was still alive. If he was alive, why did he leave the dog behind? So it was probably dead. Of course, Yu Qingxiao had no way to bring this big dog with him. It was already a mutated dog. It was bleeding every day and hadn't let the zombies eat it. It was enough to prove that it was powerful. Yu Qingxiao left the room, carrying her suitcase and headed out. Just as soon as she moved, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which had just closed its eyes, instantly stood up and wanted to follow Yu Qingxiao. Yu Qingxian had only taken two steps when her skirt was bitten by the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This made Yu Qingxian's footsteps lurch. It was just that Yu Qingxian herself was a bit stubborn and pushed forward. The Tyrannosaurus Rex wouldn't let her go. So one by one, this already thin skirt was torn in half. When Yu Qingxiao heard the sound of fabric tearing, she turned around, only to see that the Tyrannosaurus Rex had a piece of its own skirt in its mouth, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex seemed to have realized that it had done something wrong on its own and immediately lowered its eyebrows to the ground. But Yu Qingliang didn't care. She opened her suitcase and took out another skirt from it. Dang dang, I have a spare skirt. Yu Qingxiao looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex with a proud face. It turned out that the white skirt was supposed to be changed because the petunias had gotten all muddy. The Tyrannosaurus Rex's eyes lit up as it watched Yu Qingxian change into a new skirt and pose in front of itself, because just now it had done something wrong, but Yu Qingxiao in front of him didn't blame it, 
Yu Qingxiao threw the broken skirt to the side before looking seriously at the Tyrannosaurus Rex in front of her. I don't know if you can understand me, but I'll say it anyway. Yu Qingliang couldn't afford to raise this big dog on her own. Perhaps Gu Evening Chang or Court Lady Wen should be able to raise it. First of all, I'm a zombie, or a zombie that doesn't eat, and I'm clumsy and not very capable. There's no way I can raise you, and even though I said I can go and get the dog food for you, I surely can't lug around that much dog food. Yu Qingliang explained to the Tyrannosaurus Rex very patiently. The main thing was that the places she passed through were either nowhere to be seen or places full of zombies. The Tyrannosaurus Rex definitely couldn't follow. In case they encountered a high-level zombie, such a mutated dog would definitely be a tasty meal. Therefore, she felt that it was better for the Tyrannosaurus Rex to go its own way. Yu Qingxiao saw that the Tyrannosaurus Rex seemed to have listened to her words, and only then did she walk out of the courtyard of this house with her suitcase. The yards in this place didn't even look tall, and the houses weren't tall either. It was probably to keep warm, but the temperature in this place was very high right now, and a small, low house like this one must be stifling. Yu Qingliang walked out of the courtyard, continuing to walk forward. Originally, she wanted to look for flower seeds, but that petunia's temper was too grumpy, and during the day it just threw her around. What if she went again by herself and this petunia swallowed herself? Plants in the post-apocalyptic world could eat living things or zombies. It was only when Yu Qingliang had walked about a kilometer or two that she felt the Tyrannosaurus Rex following her, although it did try very hard to hide itself. But anyways, even if it had mutated, its size was naturally bigger than before. So the Tyrannosaurus Rex hit its head, but its entire body was exposed. Yu Qingliang was helpless. She had only ever raised cats, and that was nearly 20 years ago. Now raising such a big big dog, this was completely making things difficult for her. Obviously this Tyrannosaurus Rex had an owner. One was only helping it to get its collar undone. It wasn't like it had done anything great. Why should it follow her? Yu Qingliang didn't care about it either. After following itself around for the day, it would leave when it saw that it didn't care about it. Yu Qingxiao did think so, but five days later, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was still following her. Although sometimes the Tyrannosaurus Rex would leave for a few hours, but then it would follow again afterward. The Tyrannosaurus Rex's back was already over a meter tall just by standing on all four feet. If it stood up, it was estimated to be over two meters tall. Yu Qingliang was helpless. Of course, she didn't care about it, but in the past few days, she saw some small wildflowers on the side of the road. She would be very interested in taking a camera to shoot these small flowers, directly lying on the ground, to find an angle for the small flowers. Originally it was tiny growing on the side of the highway, but Yu Qingliang photographed it as if it was holding up the blue sky. After looking at the photos she took, Yu Qingxiao was very proud. Over the past few months, her photo-taking skills could be said to have improved qualitatively, although she didn't have much talent, but as long as she took more pictures, then quantitative changes would produce qualitative changes. Yu Qingxiao saw that around the highway, there were some hardy trees, it was just that they were dying from the sun. After all, these trees are hardy but not heat resistant. However, when Yu Qingxiao passed by a small hill, he found that amongst the yellowish trees, there was a red pine tree. It wasn't an ordinary red color, but a red color like blood. Yu Qingxiao stood at the bottom of the hill and did not go forward. She took two steps back and photographed this blood red pine tree, although it looked somewhat eerily beautiful. However, Yu Qingliang knew that this kind of existence that was weird in the end times was all very dangerous, although if this pine tree was cut down, maybe the wood could still be of some use. However, Yu Qingxiao didn't head towards the mountain, but continued to walk forward. Yu Qingxiao didn't find too many flower seeds, so he planned to look for them in the town in front of him. If there weren't any seeds suitable for this temperature, then when she went to the south she would bring a packet with her and wait until next spring to plant them. Of course, if she was still alive as a zombie at that time, Yu Qingliang took out the map to have a look and realized that she had already reached the northernmost part of her country. If it was before, this place in June would only be in the teens. I think, Yu Qingxiao was a bit wilted even with an umbrella. She took out her cell phone to take a look at the temperature. 42 degrees. Yu Qingxiao. No wonder she was listless. So the temperature was so high. It's just that with such a high temperature, she won't die on this road, right? If she was going to die, she would have to choose a beautiful posture. Thinking this way, Yu Qingliang also stopped walking. She took out an engineer's shovel and prepared to dig a hole for herself. But she had only squatted down when she heard a sound. Yu Qingxiao immediately rolled and crawled down the roadside trench with her suitcase, directly lying on the ground. Although it was a bit of a cover-up, Yu Qingxiao really had no choice but to do so. Because the temperature was too high, she felt that her sense of taste and hearing had dropped a bit. Wanting to run farther away was definitely impossible. Luckily, the ditch was still quite deep, about a meter high. 
It was originally supposed to drain snow water. There was no snow today, so it was dry. Plus there was 50 centimeters of dirt on the side of the road with weeds growing on it. It did manage to block her solidly. Yu Qingxiao was lying motionless in the ditch at this moment. She suddenly remembered the Tyrannosaurus Rex. She didn't know if that stupid dog was hiding. But if it wasn't hiding, it shouldn't be a problem. After all, many alien squads would raise mutated animals to help them fight. So Yu Qingxiao was less worried about the Tyrannosaurus Rex than he was about himself. But Yu Qingxiao realized that the car had stopped in the distance. And a group of people came down from the car. They looked around carefully before going up the small hill. Yu Qingxiao looked at those people and then looked at the location at the top of the hill. And instantly understood the target of those people. It was that blood pine. As expected this mutated plant, it couldn't escape the clutches of humans. Luckily it wasn't here to catch her. Yu Qingxiao didn't dare to move at this moment. She squatted in the gutter and even grabbed a handful of grass and hung it above her head. There were still four or five people below standing on guard in front of the car holding their guns. And the rest of the people were cautiously heading up the hill. Yu Qingliang watched as those people even wore special helmets and carried several things that looked like fire extinguishers on their backs. She didn't know what it was. But since these people were heavily armed, they must have stepped on the ground in advance. Maybe someone had already suffered at the hands of this tree. It was just that Yu Qingliang didn't know what a blood red pine tree was good for. She didn't know what was happening on the mountain. But she could hear some booming sounds. It was followed by a booming explosion. The few people in front of the car were also shocked to look at the top of the mountain. At this moment, the top of the mountain suddenly burst into flames, and the fire snake was swept up by the wind and went straight up into the clouds. Yu Qingxiao didn't dare to take the camera out to shoot, but could only take a few shots with his cell phone and record the screen. What followed was a few people running wildly down from the top of the mountain. Get in the car. The fire can't burn down this tree. The person in the lead was a little panicked, looking back as he ran. It seemed like something was catching up behind them. Those few people immediately got into the car and opened the door. Once those people scurried into the car, the car drove off quickly. Yu Qingliang looked at the fire at the top of the hill, and then looked at the cars that ran out of sight. Not, setting fire to the mountain. Yu Qingliang didn't know if the fire would burn several mountains in a row. A dozen people went up, and less than ten came back. Obviously those people stayed on the mountain. Yu Qingxiao waited for half an hour, but the fire on the mountain did not spread. She heard the sound of leaves soughing, and a wisp of blue smoke rose from the top of the mountain. After which nothing moved. Yu Qingxian climbed up the road from the ditch and shook off the grass on her head. Then a smell that made her feel sick drifted from the tip of her nose. Those people are already cooked, right? Yu Qingxiao lifted her suitcase up from the ditch and stared at the top of the mountain for a while before she felt the smell slowly dissipate. She jogged over and saw that the trees in that area were all burned pitch black. But the blood pine still stood there. Even Yu Qingliang felt that it was glowing. The color even felt a bit more colorful than before. Yu Qingxiao understood at this point that this tree ate people. But it was obvious that this tree existed in such a place and was naturally a safety hazard. It was normal for humans to want to get rid of it. Or maybe this blood pine should have some medicinal or other value. Yu Qingliang didn't go up to greet it either. He just took out his cell phone and took a few more pictures of it. With so many people hitting on it, it was estimated that it would definitely be dug up by the roots in the future. While he could still look at it, Yu Qingxiao looked at it a few more times. When it was dark, Yu Qingxiao finally walked to a small town. This town looked beautiful. The road surface wasn't that kind of concrete road, but a very pretty cobblestone-like ground. The periphery of the surrounding houses were all built out of wood, and there were large floor-to-ceiling glass. It seemed to be convenient to use to see the snow, but Yu Qingliang could only see those pine trees at this moment. This place used to be covered in snow all year round, but at this time, the snow melted, revealing the rocks underneath, which was quite a sight. Moreover, some green grass had grown in the soil between the rocks, and for some reason, Yu Qingxiao felt that this place was definitely suitable for herding cows. It would also be fine for grazing sheep, because the high places were all rocky. Yu Qingxiao found a small building with a relatively good view and stayed there. After tidying up a little, she went out in the night. The temperature did drop quite a bit at this time. Yu Qingxiao's energy was also quite a bit higher. She walked through the entire town and climbed up a high mountain on the first floor. Standing on top of the mountain, she could overlook the entire town. And as she turned to the north, she could see another country in the distance. But that country was sparsely populated, so she didn't have to worry too much about the zombies rushing over. Yu Qingliang looked at it for a while and retracted her eyes. The town she came to was just an ordinary town, just to see the winter cedars. The city that was more than 10 kilometers away was the place where humans went more often, like sled rides on the frozen lake. Ah, skiing and such. Nowadays, Yu Qingliang couldn't play with these facilities. Although it was a bit of a pity, 
Yu Qingliang didn't have the intention of having to play. That's what he said. However, Yu Qingxiao set off in the middle of the night, heading towards the city next door that had a lot of recreational facilities. For more than 10 kilometers, Yu Qingxiao walked for two hours, because it followed the highway. It did take some detours. There were mountains all around this area. As this area went over to the southwest, there was a large mountain range. The birch forest on this side was not yet tinted with gold like in the fall and winter. But as Yu Qingxiao listened to the sound of the wind blowing the leaves, it was as if the trees on both sides were applauding her. Yu Qingxiao suddenly stopped her pace and raised her hand to wave at the trees on both sides. You're welcome, you're welcome. Yu Qingxiao had a smile on her face. She had only seen videos of others walking through various woods during the day, but it was the first time she had walked through this kind of forest path at night. Yu Qingxiao sat on the luggage, but she couldn't help but sing Birch Forest. It was just that at this time in this place, there was no snow. The sense of atmosphere was not very adequate, but Yu Qingliang was happy. After crossing the forest path, Yu Qingxiao walked back on the highway, finally arriving at that city, M City, when it was almost dawn. But a little further north of this place was a good place to see the northern lights. Yu Qingxiao thought about the time being right. After all, the best time to see the northern lights was after September. She came to this place at the hottest time. It was still at a time when the Earth's climate had shifted dramatically. Yu Qingxiao felt like traveling somewhere. Don't hesitate to go directly when you have the time and the financial ability to do so, because when you want to travel is the most suitable time to travel. Yu Qingxiao looked at the map, still following the particularly common tour guide, first going to the first northern post. This was the northernmost town in the entire country, but Yu Qingxiao didn't dare to strut over there. Because of this place, Yu Qingliang smelled some aroma. In other words, there were humans in this place. This made Yu Qingxiao seem a bit cautious. After all, in the city where the sunrise was earliest before, there was also a garrison present, so Yu Qingxiao naturally had to be a little more careful. She didn't want to startle those garrisons. Luckily, this place was quite big, and even if Yu Qingxiao went over, she did not attract attention. She sat on a long chair in the distance and turned back to look at the fluttering red flag again. She stared at the flag for a while, took out her cell phone, and took a picture with the flag. Yu Qingxiao didn't see the Aurora Borealis in this place, and in the evening, she headed to the next attraction. Just how could she not expect that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was still following her? After more than a week of recovery, the Tyrannosaurus Rex looked a bit rounder than before. The previous Tyrannosaurus Rex would still hide from her, not letting her see it. It seemed to know that she wouldn't intentionally drive it away, so it became more and more unobtrusive. Yu Qingliang didn't bother with it, but pulled her suitcase and followed the road signs. When it came to this kind of tourist destination, there was no need to even look at a map. There were road signs everywhere. At this time, the map given to her by the man in the black market was no longer in her hands, but a book of scenic spots she had shunned from the ticket office. Every time Yu Qingliang arrived at a place, she took a picture with the stone monuments of those attractions. Looking at the photos in her cell phone, Yu Qingxian was stunned. She thought of her mom and dad when she looked at the photos of herself and those landmarks in her phone. Yu Qingxian immediately flipped through the photo album and found the photo that mom and dad had sent earlier. Sure enough, the spot she was standing at. Her own mom and dad had once stood here as well. However, she was too slow to understand. Only now, three and a half years later, did she slightly understand the significance of the photos her mom and dad had sent her. People would die, the scenery would change, but there were traces of them everywhere in this world. Yu Qingliang was not alone. There were still mom and dad with her. She stared at the photo and slid another one to the right. And sure enough, the scenery was still here. Mom and dad were really patient. Not only were there photos and videos, but there were also various written explanations. Yu Qingliang put the copy of the scenic introduction sheet she had taken on the side of the road and instead viewed the views based on what mom and dad said. It wasn't the same though. She opened the video, and inside was her mom's voice. The scenery that the video was recording was exactly what she was seeing in front of her. She looked at the scenery in the distance and listened to her mom's voice. It was like a family of three traveling, along with the images in the video. Yu Qingliang climbed up to the viewing platform of the cliffs by the river and looked at the place as if it was like a long dragon just 9 curves and 18 bends. This place had a wide view and she could see far away. She put her cell phone in her pocket and held her camera in her hand to take pictures. Yu Qingxian didn't know if the sudden switch in climate between the north and south was for a short period of time, or if it would be like this from now on, but since she was here, of course she had to take pictures. It was only through the lens of the camera that Yu Qingxiao saw a black, unknown animal crawling up from the river. Yu Qingxiao immediately put the camera away and took out her own binoculars to look at that place, only to see that it seemed to be a big fish, but this fish actually had claws growing on its body. That big split mouth was full of sharp teeth. Oh, what was that? The fish landed. No, 
She had seen fish coming ashore before, but those fish weren't as big as this one. One like herself, it swallowed it in one bite, right? And it was still crawling from the river to its side of the country. Yu Qingxiao blinked her eyes, and only then could she resist the urge to tell this strange big fish to crawl to the other side. And while Yu Qingxiao was thinking that the big fish shouldn't eat the zombies, a zombie deer shook its almost dropped head and passed by the side. Then a long tongue came out from the mouth of the big fish and swept the zombie deer over. Although he couldn't hear the sound, Yu Qingliang felt as if his bones hurt a little. So this big fish also ate zombies. The big fish crushed the trees and climbed up the river bank towards the city. Just as Yu Qingliang was worried, several off-roads had already driven over from the highway. The big fish also stopped when it heard the commotion. Yu Qingxiao looked around and pulled his suitcase and squatted behind a trash can. Only then did he sneakily look at the situation below. Several people came down from the car. However, they weren't wearing uniforms, which meant that they were people from the alien warriors. Yu Qingliang crossed over their faces one by one. Hmm, good, don't recognize any of them. Yu Qingliang couldn't help but cover his face in surprise as he watched those people skillfully use a fishing net to catch fish. Were these people geniuses? She just thought that the fish had grown legs and didn't need to breathe, so it was natural for them to go ashore. But because of the zombification, it did trap Yu Qingliang's mind that this fish would no longer be an ordinary fish once it landed. But she didn't expect that these people would use a fishing net. And this fishing net seems to be specially made. No matter how much that zombie fish struggled, it didn't break free. However, the zombie fish began to spit when it could not break free. This saliva with corrosive. If spit in the human body, not dead will have to lose a layer of skin. But obviously these people and this mutant zombie fish have already fought several times. So it was easy to avoid the zombie fish's saliva. When the zombie fish spat out that strong and powerful tongue, one of them cut off the zombie fish's tongue with a single slash. After that, several people held their submachine guns in their hands and shot at the zombie fish. The submachine gun was equipped with a silencer. So Yu Qingliang couldn't hear much sound. After some fighting, the zombie fish stopped moving. The man in the lead stepped forward with a knife, pried open the head of the zombie fish, and took out a crystal core from inside. Yu Qingliang looked at the other party's skillful movements and couldn't help but hold his head. How many zombies did this have to have killed to have such skillful maneuvers? However, when they came over, they naturally attracted the zombies. But these people had obviously gotten used to it. And after getting what they wanted, they directly turned around and got into the car. Those zombies only came close. A few cars directly crushed through the bodies of these zombies, and then went away. Some of the zombies that were knocked away landed on the ground, and then quickly climbed up, frantically chasing towards the car. That speed, just like a sprinter. However, these zombies followed the car and left, also far away from Yu Qingliang's field of vision. She put away the binoculars, put the camera back into the suitcase, and put her cell phone in her backpack, and was ready to leave this place. She was really too close to the humans. And the humans here were obviously experienced in combat and were not ordinary people. Yu Qingliang carried her suitcase and sneaked out of this place. She didn't take the highway, but rather took the path from the mountain. There was no way to ride a suitcase on this kind of mountain path, so she could only carry it. But both sides of the path were full of weeds. It was obvious that no human had set foot in this kind of place for a long time. After Yu Qingliang walked for a while, she turned around and saw that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was still following her. She didn't know where the Tyrannosaurus Rex was hiding before. Obviously, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was hiding much better than herself. She stared at the Tyrannosaurus Rex, while the Tyrannosaurus Rex suddenly started to show its teeth. While Yu Qingxiao was a bit confused, the Tyrannosaurus Rex directly leapt up and jumped over her head. Only then did Yu Qingxiao look ahead. She saw several zombie deer blocking her way. Yu Qingliang was not in a hurry and took out her cell phone to click pictures of the few zombie deer not far away. Don't worry. That zombie deer shouldn't eat zombies. Yu Qingxiao finished taking pictures and retrieved his phone before speaking. Yu Qingxiao really didn't need to worry because these zombie deer weren't rushing towards her. Instead, they were rushing towards the Tyrannosaurus Rex, a living creature. The Tyrannosaurus Rex barked a few times at a few zombie deer, and the zombie deer took a few steps back, but it was only backing up to build up its strength. Yu Qingliang knew that she couldn't persuade it, so she could only go to a higher place, giving this place to the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the several zombie deer. She placed the suitcase firmly and took out her camera to start recording. The battle of life and death between the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the zombie deer is about to begin. Who will the champion actually be? About to be revealed. Yu Qingliang even thoughtfully dubbed the video. The Tyrannosaurus Rex had a superb self-healing ability, which Yu Qingxiao was aware of. However, she was still a bit surprised when she saw the electric light bubbling up from the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body. It seemed that the Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't just a mutated animal, but a dog with supernatural abilities. With electric light on its body, it charged straight up, 
and with one claw, it directly scratched half of the head of that zombie reindeer at the very beginning. That zombie reindeer's brain instantly fell out all over the place, and its body started to shake before it collapsed to the ground with a bang. It was obvious that the Tyrannosaurus Rex also had a lot of experience in actual combat. It knew what it took to kill a zombie. But yeah, for the majority of the previous year, its neck had been bleeding every day, and zombie animals were exceptionally sensitive to the smell of blood. To be able to live for half a year while carrying a fatal wound, the Tyrannosaurus Rex really deserved its name. Those few zombie deer were resolved by the Tyrannosaurus Rex in three tries. However, the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't leave immediately, but used its claws to pull something from the brains of those zombie deer. Yu Qingliang listened to the Tyrannosaurus Rex grunt at itself after picking at it. She thought that it wasn't the skulls of the zombie deer that were stuck in its feet, so naturally she scooted over to take a look. As a result, she saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex push two crystal cores in front of her. Yu Qingliang, she wasn't a monkey in a zoo. How could anyone want to feed her? Senior zombies were fine, how come even a dog wanted to feed her? Did she look like she was about to starve to death? For me? No, no, you can eat it yourself. Yu Qingxiao waved her hand, indicating that she wouldn't eat. When the Tyrannosaurus Rex saw that Yu Qingxiao wasn't eating, it lowered its head and swallowed the two crystal cores. Yu Qingxiao walked back to where she had just sat and pulled on her suitcase to continue over the mountains. She didn't know how long she had walked before Yu Qingxiao realized that she seemed to have arrived at a ski resort. But she just looked at the entrance. Nowadays, there was no snow in this place either. So naturally, there was no way to ski. There were zombies in the ski resort. And these zombies were still wearing ski suits. Looking like they were all travelers. She looked around and found a place where quite a few dogs were kept. But all of these dogs had turned into zombie dogs. And hadn't eaten anything for half a year. And many of them had already turned into corpses. There were only a few left that were still alive. But looking at them, they should be starving and eating their own kind. They looked ferocious. Yu Qingliang didn't go up to open the door either. And she was also a little afraid. She was afraid of dog bites. Yu Qingxiao wandered around for a while. Then she saw the sled. She had an idea and pulled out this sled. This sled was originally supposed to be a set for the reindeer. But Yu Qingxiao felt that it was just right to use it for the Tyrannosaurus Rex at this time. So she happily called the Tyrannosaurus Rex over. And then haphazardly tied all the sleigh ropes to the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body and placed the suitcase in a safe place before sitting on it herself. Let's go, Yu Qingliang said. The Tyrannosaurus Rex also cooperated and rushed out. Although there was no snow, the leveled ground was not a problem at all for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It carried Yu Qingxiao around. Sitting on the sled, Yu Qingxian was also happy. It was the hat that was blown away and she still had to get off the sled to pick it up. She pressed the hat with one hand and grabbed the sled with the other afterward. Next time, she will change her hat with a strap so that the wind won't blow it off. Seemingly because Yu Qingliang was in a good mood, the Tyrannosaurus Rex also scattered. It even closed its eyes. Yu Qingxiao then watched as the Tyrannosaurus Rex pulled the sled and led her headlong into the bushes. When Yu Qingxian managed to crawl out from under the overturned sled, she saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex squatting on the side with its eyes squinting and its tongue showing, and its big tail thumping on the ground. Yu Qingxiao saw that it looked like it was asking for credit, so he reached out and gave it a hammer. It's all overturned. You're still happy as hell. If I were a living person, I would have fallen to my death, Yu Qingliang said, and pulled out the branch that was inserted into her thigh. If she was still a living person, this branch inserted into her thigh would have hurt her to death. Of course, if the pain was numb, it didn't seem to be felt. Yu Qingliang looked at the bloody hole, and there was no blood flowing out, but a little bit of plasma could be seen. Even though her body had been dead for most of the year, the blood hadn't completely solidified. When the Tyrannosaurus Rex looked at the bloody hole on Yu Qingxian's thigh, it immediately walked over and then stuck out its tongue and licked it. Yu Qingxian was a bit puzzled by what the Tyrannosaurus Rex was doing. Was he comforting himself? I'm not in pain. You don't have to worry. Yu Qingxiao reached out and rubbed its big head, indicating that he was fine. After saying this, Yu Qingxiao pushed the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head away and then prepared to pull down her skirt. As a result, she saw that the bloody hole she had been pierced through by the tree branch was slowly healing. This was definitely not her own ability. If she had this ability, she wouldn't be running around with half a cracked face. So this was the T. Rex's supernatural ability. But wasn't it a thunder or electricity type ability? That means the Tyrannosaurus Rex is a dual type ability? And this kind of ability is all the kind of ability that only appears on the hero and heroine in those post-apocalyptic novels. You kid. You can do it. A proper protagonist. Dog. Yu Qingliang suddenly felt that perhaps writing about the post-apocalyptic world from a dog's perspective seemed good. As she stared at the Tyrannosaurus Rex. She felt that her occupational disease was acting up again. It even felt like a good idea. Thinking about this, 
Yu Qingxiao couldn't help but praise the Tyrannosaurus Rex. By now, she had met three people suspected to be female protagonists, an underground emperor suspected to be a male protagonist, and now a dog suspected to be the protagonist. Then who was herself? Was she the NPC responsible for discovering the protagonist? Thinking about this, Yu Qingliang began to pinch her chin and think, first of all, the protagonist was indeed very powerful, but there was one thing that was fatal. That was that the protagonist had a lot of things going on around him, and it was always possible that he would encounter something that he would see once in ten years, or once in a hundred years, or once in a thousand years. Although from the protagonist's point of view, it was indeed very cool, killing his way through the zombie horde. But if he were to speak as an ordinary person, Yu Qingliang only wanted to beg the other party to save himself. But generally the protagonists of post-apocalyptic literature were not saintly, and many times they would see death to save them. Because there was the slightest possibility of threatening their lives, they could turn a blind eye to it. Yu Qingliang certainly wouldn't blame these as protagonists. It was just that she sometimes thought that if this ability was in those soldiers, the result would be completely different. Yu Qingxiao thought so and withdrew her thoughts. But cool writing is all about being cool. In the post-apocalyptic world, human life was the most worthless thing. Some human lives might not be as precious as a piece of bread. Moreover, human nature is the most untestable. What someone who was the protagonist would be tempted by, how could an ordinary person refuse? Yu Qingliang stood up and patted the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head. If it casually followed a powerful person, it would have no worries about food and drink in the future. Following itself, it was a little difficult to eat. Tyrannosaurus Rex, why don't you just leave? Following me and having nothing to eat, the zombies that followed me before, all ran away from hunger. Yu Qingliang said seriously, regardless of whether it was a human or a zombie. Following her, they were able to reach the achievement of starving for nine meals in three days, as well as the achievement of being the first in the number of steps in the circle of friends every day. After the Tyrannosaurus Rex heard Yu Qingxiao's words, it just flicked its tail and had no intention of leaving. Seeing that it didn't move, Yu Qingxiao bent down and removed all the ropes on it. As for the sled, Yu Qingxiao had no intention of pulling it back. No one would want this kind of thing anyway. In case Autumn Color Lake froze again this winter, wouldn't it really be possible to ski? Why hadn't she thought of it last year? I should have known better than to let the old ox drag her to go skating. If the river was not frozen in September, then she would go boating. Yu Qingliang added this plan to her cell phone memo as she thought this. She looked at the several to-dos listed by herself. Grasslands, deserts, and clearings, and check out the canyons and rainforests and whatnot. That's pretty much it. Yu Qingliang thought as she walked back. The cell phone camera in her hand was constantly slid by her. She had to make sure of the places her mom and dad had been. There were many places that Yu Qingxiao did not want to go to. Rather, she felt that it was too troublesome. It was already good that she could make it this far nowadays. Yu Qingxiao consoled herself. She passed through the groups of zombies, picked up her suitcase, and continued to go west. The further west one traveled, the more one had to pass through the ancient capital that was thousands of years old. That place was not the capital of today. But in many dynasties, that place was the capital. But it was still a long way from where she was now. It was estimated that it would take 10 days and half a month to walk up. Yu Qingliang had to cross this mountain range. There were originally a lot of wild animals in the mountain range. Of course, now it could be zombie animals or mutated animals. In short, all of them were dangerous for humans. But for Yu Qingliang, it seemed safe, and there was a highway passed along this mountain range. The trees on both sides were also beautiful. She had seen them in many travel bloggers' videos before. Yu Qingxiao naturally packed up her things. At this time, the suitcase was full from just a camera at the beginning. When Yu Qingxiao opened the suitcase to check her things, she was a little surprised when she looked at the suitcase of things. She had originally thought that she would be able to travel light. And this journey, on the contrary, she had collected quite a few things. She put her books and camera aside for now, before looking at the few dresses she had prepared, which were all halter-length dresses, so they didn't take up much space. Then there was the bouquet of roses she had stuffed in her suitcase. She'd gotten a few to use as bookmarks and the rest were just tucked away in her suitcase. Originally, she thought that the roses had wilted, but now when she looked at the fresh roses, Yu Qingxiao wondered if she had blurred her eyes. She picked up the bunch of roses and then saw the small bunch of flowers underneath. That was what Gu Evening Ching had given her. Let's just say, even that small bouquet of flowers looked like a few revivals. This made Yu Qingxiao's head full of questions. She didn't understand why the flowers that were supposed to have wilted were now alive, until she saw the small bag in the corner. Inside was the crystal fragment she had picked up. Could it be because of this thing? Yu Qingliang put the flower aside before she picked up the small bag, opened it and poured out those fragments. These fragments were emitting a beautiful light. 
and even the dust on them that looked like it had been created by friction with the atmosphere had disappeared. It was like a beautiful dark black bead at this point, but the look of something flowing through this bead looked familiar to her. That's right, it was a crystal core. It's just that the stuff in the crystal core was very little and would barely move. Unlike the kind of stuff in this crystal fragment, which was on the verge of flowing out. Yu Qingliang probably understood that the crystal cores that appeared in zombie bodies and alien bodies were the same as this crystal fragment. It was because of the energy in these things that could make the zombies stronger and allow humans to evolve their psychic abilities. Even the two bouquets of flowers she had were because of these crystal fragments. So why do humans die but turn into zombies and come back to life? Also because of the strange energy in these crystals? But weren't zombies a virus? Yu Qingliang was a bit confused again. After all, she wasn't studying this area, so she couldn't understand it at all. Yu Qingxiao couldn't think clearly, so she wasn't going to think anymore. She organized herself properly again, then put the two bouquets of flowers into her suitcase, and put those crystal fragments back into the bag and placed them under the two bouquets of flowers again. Yu Qingliang flipped through her book. The book was also made of plants. It couldn't be that this book had sprouted as well, could it? Yu Qingxiao flipped through his book and looked at it. It was found that the rose flower stick stuck in the book had really taken root and had grown together with the book. Yu Qingliang held the book and could only find a place to dig a hole to spread the book and bury it. After all, this flower stick had already come to life and taken root, so it was better to plant it in the soil. Yu Qingxiao suddenly thought of the seeds in his backpack. These seeds wouldn't have sprouted as well, right? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao immediately buried the flower before opening her backpack, which didn't contain much. There were only pictures of her and her parents her cell phone, a small comb, and more than 10 bags of shampoo and body wash, as well as the seeds of the roses. These seeds looked like little pomegranates in Yu Qingliang's eyes, but now these seeds also looked fresh, just as if they had just been picked, but there was no sign of germination, which made Yu Qingxiao breathe a sigh of relief. But as she breathed a sigh of relief, she suddenly remembered that she had picked the seeds just to plant them later. After thinking about it, she went back to the side of the book she had just buried. Only half of the roses were in bloom. Yu Qingliang was not in a hurry to leave. Instead, she was waiting for this half rose to really take root in the soil. After waiting for a few days, Yu Qingliang realized that half of the branches of this half rose flower started to sprout. Then it meant that the rose was indeed alive. Determining that the rose was alive, Yu Qingxiao then carried her suitcase and prepared to leave. These days she squatted under the tree during the day to cool off. Only in the morning and afternoon and at night did she look around and tried out those kinds of skis. It made Yu Qingxian feel as if she was duck walking after putting them on and instantly took them off and threw them away. As Yu Qingxiao was sitting on the bench doing stretches, she had just bent over when she heard movement. It made her bounce straight up from the bench. There was a car coming over. Yu Qingxiao carried her suitcase and rushed straight up into the forest next to her. Then she crouched behind a patch of bushes. This place was the hiding place she had envisioned before standing in the small square in front of the ski resort. If someone came, she would run towards this place and this place was a few hundred meters away from the ski resort. It was impossible for a survivor to head into the forest for no reason, which made Yu Qingliang slightly more at ease. She squatted behind a bush and looked down through the gaps in the leaves. The car could be seen, and it looked somewhat familiar. It seemed like she had seen it a few days ago. After the people in the car came down, Yu Qingxiao could be sure that it was the group of people who killed the zombie fish. Just don't know what they were doing here. It couldn't be to ski, could it? There was no snow. Of course. If Yu Qingxiao had seen this group of people back then, then she wouldn't think she didn't recognize them. After all, when this group of people were in that town before, she had even gathered zombies to have a party. It was just that Yu Qingxiao didn't know that the people she saved were a few of this group. And the person leading this small group didn't think that the one who saved their lives last year, the one they had been looking for a long time to save their lives, was just a few hundred meters away on that small hill. The reason they had rushed all the way from the south to the north was of course because it felt a little easier to survive when they got to the north. After all, it was cold, food kept longer, and winter was rare in the south. But who would have thought that they would go all the way to the north, only to have the weather get hotter the further they went. The zombies had evolved again, and they had also settled down in the capital base as well. Naturally, there was no need to risk going back to the south again. Of course, during this period of time, they didn't give up looking for the person who saved their lives. It's just that it's been half a year and still nothing. Nowadays, most of the vegetables planted on the ground would mutate, although a dozen official bases had stocks, but they were the people of the alien warriors, and they had been eating what the base gave them, so of course they were unwilling to do so, and it wasn't like they were incapable, so naturally they just left those things for those who needed them. Plus the Alterans would have needed to hunt zombies and obtain crystal cores, and this kind of ski resort, the terrain was wide, 
The view was good, and there weren't too many zombies. It was indeed very suitable for hunting zombies, and this kind of ski resort must have spare food, even if the fresh food can't be kept fresh. But the preservation time of many things was also quite long. Most importantly, in this kind of post-apocalyptic world, as long as the food didn't stink too much to eat, then it was all edible. So naturally, they started to clean up the zombies in this ski resort. Yu Qingliang went from squatting in the beginning to directly lying on the ground later. She watched as those people were like chopping up cabbages and directly cleaned up the entire ski resort of zombies. As expected, ordinary people's legs went soft when they saw the zombies pouncing over. Like these strong people, it was just like playing a game over. As the zombies got stronger, they also got stronger. In this world, there was never a lack of strong people or heroes. Yu Qingliang stared at these people for a while, took out her cell phone and took a picture, then got up and left with her suitcase. Only after she had been gone for half an hour did the Tyrannosaurus Rex come over with a super large white rabbit in its mouth. The rabbit was dying, not dead yet, and the Tyrannosaurus put the rabbit in front of Yu Qingxiao, and even arched its long nose in Yu Qingxiao's direction. The meaning was obvious, that is, if you don't eat crystal cores, then you will eat living things. Yu Qingxiao felt that this Tyrannosaurus Rex was really worried about the matter of her eating or not eating, but she really didn't need to eat ah, this is better for you to eat yourself, I don't need it, I really don't need to eat, Yu Qingliang said bitterly, it was really difficult to catch living things in the end times, so Yu Qingxiao felt that there was absolutely no need to waste it on her, the Tyrannosaurus Rex stared at Yu Qingxiao's face for a few minutes before making sure that Yu Qingxiao wasn't lying about the rabbit, the rabbit looked like it should have mutated as well, it was almost half her size, but for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it was just two bites. It even swallowed it with its skin and bones. At this moment, Yu Qingliang thought, this Tyrannosaurus Rex wouldn't have evolved to the level of cannibalism, right? But on second thought, it shouldn't be possible. Even if it recovered some of its wildness, the loyalty to humans in its bloodline should not be erased by a small virus. Yu Qingliang listened to the Tyrannosaurus Rex chewing on the rabbit clicking and clacking, and listened to it with some stuffed teeth. It was a good thing that she was soon on that highway. It was surrounded by woods, and the scenery was great. Yu Qingxiao sat on the suitcase with an umbrella, but as she looked at the slowly darkening sky in the distance, she was a little worried in her heart again. It wouldn't be raining heavily again, would it? And Yu Qingxiao's worries were soon materialized by the falling rain. Bean-sized rain fell as soon as it was said to. Yu Qingxiao couldn't even find a place to shelter from the rain, because this was a self-driving highway. There weren't many vehicles on the road. This highway was usually more popular in the fall. That was when this highway and this mountain range were at their most beautiful. However, Yu Qingliang was sitting on the luggage with an umbrella open in his hand, barely blocking the rain. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't so lucky. It crouched down and sat beside Yu Qingxiao, and its entire body was soon wet from the rain. Yu Qingxiao looked at the sky, then took out his cell phone to check the weather slightly. But this place was already too far away from the base, and there was no signal. The various information updates were already three days old. But the news from three days ago gave Yu Qingxiao some information. Three days ago, the Huashi base had predicted that powerful rain clouds were drifting towards their country. It was heard that this rain cloud had plunged many countries into the midst of flooding. And with the rain landing, there was also cold air. After it rains, this rain will freeze on. So the survivors around the various bases were asked to return to their bases as soon as possible for shelter. Yu Qingliang finished reading the message and received his cell phone into his backpack. Only then did she look back and forth and there wasn't any place to hide from the rain. It was also impossible for her to keep sitting here, so she could only lift her suitcase and walk forward with her umbrella. Until it was dark, Yu Qingxiao finally saw a caravan on the side of the road. The door of the caravan was open, and there was no one inside, nor were there any zombies. But Yu Qingxiao knew that this caravan could indeed be used as a temporary shelter. She got into the car and stopped the Tyrannosaurus Rex when she saw it about to come in. Shake off the water on your body first before coming up. The tea. Rex obeyed and quickly shook off most of the water stains on its body like a big gyroscope, then leapt into the car. The car shook a bit because of the Tyrannosaurus Rex's movements. Only then did Yu Qingliang close the door of the caravan. She sat in the caravan for a while and reached out to touch the table, which was all covered in dust. While there were some blood stains on the walls of the car, the RV belonged to a couple or husband and wife. She reached over and took off the picture that was taped to the refrigerator, the two of them smiling for the camera. It was assumed that these two had arrived at this place and stopped to rest, but without realizing it, one of them had turned into a walker. She looked at the blood on the floor that had turned black, continuing from the side of the bed to the car door. As for the blood on the road outside, it should have been washed away by the rain. Yu Qingliang idly pulled a pot to catch a pot of rainwater and wiped the caravan clean of dust. 
waiting until it was almost dawn. She sat down in the caravan's living room seat, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex had long since climbed into bed and fallen asleep. The not-so-small one-and-a-half-meter double bed was barely big enough for the Tyrannosaurus Rex to sleep on. It was true that a mutated animal like A.T. Rex still needed to sleep. She sat there for a while, then headed over in the direction of the cab. Pulling back the curtain, she sat on the driver's side. The car keys were still there, so Yu Qingliang tried to start the car. The sound of the car starting woke up the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which grunted like a puppy until it heard Yu Qingxian's voice. Then it retracted back to continue sleeping. After Yu Qingxian started the car, she looked at the gas gauge and realized that the caravan had only used a little bit of gas. She didn't start the car, but turned off the engine again. Walking back to the living room from the driver's side, the heavy rain outside hadn't stopped. The gutters on the side of the road kept running. There was no telling if this places would be flooded, but it shouldn't be too likely. This place was halfway up the mountain. Even if there was a flood, it wouldn't be able to flood this place for the time being. Yu Qingliang looked at the time on his cell phone and saw that the time on his cell phone had gone from 5 o'clock in the morning to around 12 o'clock in the afternoon. The heavy rain outside still showed no sign of stopping. The water in the ditch by the highway had already begun to swell. It was obvious that the previous message had not been faked. The message was transmitted from the West China base to the North China base, and she had received the message three days ago from within the range circle of North China base. Now she was out of the North China base's range, but hadn't yet entered the West China base's range. It was estimated that she still had to go over a few hundred kilometers before she could reach the communication range of West China base, but now it was raining so hard that she couldn't see anything clearly beyond 5 meters, and the temperature is getting lower and lower. Two days ago, the temperature was still over 40 degrees, but from yesterday's rain until now, it has dropped to more than 20 degrees, and it's still dropping. Yu Qingliang didn't feel the drop in temperature, until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, when Yu Qingxiao took his cell phone again. He found that the temperature was only 10 degrees. This drastic drop in temperature was another test for humans. Yu Qingxiao got out of the car with his umbrella and went to check the tires of this car. The air was gone from a few wheels. It looked flat. Yu Qingxiao didn't know how to inflate them. It wasn't within network range right now, so there was no way to receive any messages. It was good that the map book was still working, but of course it was limited to just checking out places. It wasn't as good as the cell phone that Big Brother had changed for her. But once she stepped out of the signal area, the phone became a brick. Yu Qingliang played the umbrella, squatted on the ground and looked at the flattened wheels, then got up and went to pull the door everywhere. She had watched a lot of caravan traveling videos, and naturally, she had seen those bloggers introduce their caravans. They would also say what things were put where, so Yu Qingxiao wanted to see if there was anything that could inflate the wheels of the vehicle. However, Yu Qingxiao opened the door of one of the vehicle's trunk boxes, only to have an arm fall out violently. Yu Qingxiao subconsciously went to catch it. This arm was already badly rotted. Her other hand opened the trunk lid completely, and she found the female owner lying in this trunk. This female owner was curled up in the trunk and her body was badly decomposed. It was unknown whether she died from injuries or starved to death after turning into a zombie. Yu Qingliang put back the arm of the female corpse before putting the umbrella back in the car and wiped his hands with a towel before taking out the engineer shovel from the trunk. The Tyrannosaurus Rex got off the bed and Yu Qingxiao told it to stay in the car. It closed the car door before coming towards the back. Either way, this female owner should have been hiding in this trunk because she had no way to run after being injured. Unfortunately, she was not saved. Even though Yu Qingliang hadn't wanted to face this kind of situation for the past half year, but when she suddenly faced a female dead person, it wasn't as hard as she thought it would be. Yu Qingxiao carried the other party's body out of the trunk, then emptied the plastic box containing clothes in the other trunk, and put her body in it. The heavy rain in the sky was still very heavy. It made it a little difficult for Yu Qingxiao to help the corpse put on clean clothes. For some reason, Yu Qingxiao suddenly thought of a song lyric, Cold icy rain slaps haphazardly on the face. Yu Qingxiao changed the female owner into clean clothes, but as the heavy rain came down, that box quickly became waterlogged. Yu Qingxiao put the lid on and put the box up again to control the water. I don't know why, but it made it seem like she was cooking to control the water. After the lid was put on, there was no way for the rainwater to enter the box. Yu Qingliang dragged the box to the forest. He chose a place with a good view and dug a hole to bury her. Those who could come out for a self-driving trip definitely liked freedom. This place had a great view, even though it was raining heavily right now and nothing could be seen. After Yu Qingliang buried the female car owner, he also took out a rose from her bouquet and placed it on the grave. Looking at this humble grave, without even a tombstone, Yu Qingxiao could only do so much. She folded her hands. Early to ultimate bliss early to ultimate bliss. Yu Qingxian's tone was sincere. Although humans were unintelligible, her heart was sincere. 
After handling the female owner's body, Yu Qingxiao was like a chicken in soup. Water had been running down her entire body. She looked up at the sky and the rain was just like someone splashing her with a basin. It was clattering and clattering. Yu Qingliang walked up to the car and was drenched in water as well. Transform into a water ghost. Yu Qingxiao stuck her tongue out at the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was lying on the bed. And the fur on its body looked even fluffier because it had been rinsed by the water damage. At this moment, it was as if a bed of cotton had been spread out. Yu Qingliang took out the shower gel and shampoo from her backpack and just stood by the door to take a shower. No one could see her anyway, so of course she was not shy. After showering and shampooing her hair, she walked back to the car, put on her skirt, and went to start the car, which had electricity. Yu Qingxiao rummaged through the owner's hairdryer, and then dry her hair. The sky outside was getting darker and darker. She moped through another day at a leisurely pace. The caravan's tires were flat, so naturally there was no way to drive it anymore. It wasn't like she could continue on in the pouring rain outside, although she could go forward in the rain. Her hundred thousand plus suitcases could not, so Yu Qingliang stayed in the caravan. But this stay was for seven or eight days. Although her location was halfway up the mountain, the rain didn't flood the place, but such heavy rain never stopped. It was just like the sky leaking. With this kind of precipitation, slightly low-lying places were definitely flooded, and I heard there would be cold air. Yu Qingliang didn't feel any cold air. She glanced at her cell phone. The temperature at this moment was around 3 degrees, although it was said that this temperature was still within the acceptable range for humans, but now there was still such strong rainfall, it would be a catastrophe. On the ninth day, the rain was a bit lighter, but it still hadn't cleared up, and it was blowing. Yu Qingliang glanced at his cell phone again, it was already minus 5 degrees, what floated in was no longer rain, but like a piece of small ice, the small hailstones thumped on the roof of the car, Yu Qingliang felt that she couldn't nestle in someone else's caravan anymore and this small hail couldn't kill her anyway. She thought about it and packed up her things and prepared to leave. When the Tyrannosaurus Rex saw Yu Qingxian collecting her things, he immediately got up. There was a bag of dog food in this caravan instead. The owner's puppy, Yu Qingxian, hadn't seen it before, so she just used it to feed the Tyrannosaurus Rex. However, she fed the Tyrannosaurus Rex just a small bowl of dog food every day, and it was barely enough to sustain the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Of course, the Tyrannosaurus Rex slept every day and didn't move around, so Yu Qingliyan thought that it would probably leave now that it knew that it would definitely go hungry by following it. After all, it could go wherever it wanted on its own. Yu Qingxiao first held the umbrella to get off the car, and only then did he carry the suitcase down as well. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex also immediately squeezed her down, afraid of being shut up in the caravan by Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian felt a little funny when she looked at its anxious appearance. How could she lock up a living creature in a place where it couldn't leave? The reason for closing the door before was because it was raining heavily and the Tyrannosaurus Rex had long hair. After all, it belonged to the long-haired dogs. Although it appeared large because of the mutation, Yu Qingxiao could barely tell that it should be a breed dog. Before, Yu Qingxiao had never bothered to dwell on what kind of canine it was, but now she didn't dwell on it either. No matter what breed of dog it was, it was a good dog. Yu Qingxiao wore a female owner's clothes, which she didn't mind. There were also two raincoats taken. One of the raincoats wrapped around the suitcase, and the other, Yu Qingxiao put it over the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head. It was really too big, so the raincoat barely covered its head, because the raincoat was a small yellow duck. It was very cute. At this moment, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was wrapped around its head. It was indeed very cute. Yu Qingliang took out his cell phone and took a picture of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The big white dog with a little yellow duck on its head was really super cute. The Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't move either letting Yu Qingxiao take pictures of it. It was still grinning and smiling at Yu Qingxiao. When Yu Qingxiao left the caravan, she even closed the door of the caravan. When she took a few steps, she realized that something was wrong. That was that the ground was icy. It was fine at first, but there was a slope as she went forward. So she started to slip a bit, but that had no effect on the Tyrannosaurus Rex. After all, with its claws, it could probably climb near vertical walls. So originally walking in front of the Tyrannosaurus Rex Yu Qingliang walked on her hands and knees. It was as if these legs were borrowed from another zombie. After three minutes, Yu Qingliang gave up struggling. Coupled with the fact that the umbrella in her hand was still being blown by the wind, she didn't even move forward. Instead she fell back half a meter. Yu Qingxiao could only put the umbrella away in her backpack and reached out to grab the Tyrannosaurus Rex's fur. Forward, Yu Qingxiao opened her mouth with one hand grasping the hair of the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the other carrying the suitcase. There was no way for her to make the motion of pointing in front of her. Fortunately, the big dog was smart and pulled her forward. Yu Qingliang didn't even need to walk, 
she was pulled by the Tyrannosaurus Rex and paddled on the ground. After all, her small leather shoes were not non-slip at all. This made Yu Qingxiao somewhat want to go back and get the sled. By grabbing the Tyrannosaurus Rex's fur like this herself, she wouldn't be able to scratch its fur off, right? What if it went bald? Fortunately, the Tyrannosaurus Rex's fur was sturdy and wasn't pulled off by her. It was better to walk all the way to the hillside. At least the first part of the road was flat and not uphill anymore. The hailstones that fell on the body of the Tyrannosaurus Rex turned into water, making the body of the Tyrannosaurus Rex wet again. However, the hailstones on Yu Qinglian's body didn't have a trace of melting. This made Yu Qingxian puzzled for a moment. Then she immediately reacted that she had no body temperature. Whatever the temperature in the air was, then her temperature was. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao thought of waiting until the next town and taking a thermometer in her pocket. At any time, she could see how many degrees she was. Yu Qingxiao took off the raincoat on the suitcase and rode on, but did not start the suitcase. Instead, with a pedal, the luggage slid out quickly. Through inertia, Yu Qingxiao's speed was much faster. At this time, the surroundings could already be seen clearly. Although there was still hail, this hail was not splashed down like the heavy rain before. Passing through a forest, Yu Qingliang knew that he had arrived at a place that was perfect for viewing the foliage. There was a small stream that crossed under the highway, and I heard that it was very beautiful. And if you were lucky, you could see wild moose, roe deer, and other animals. I don't know why. As soon as he heard about those kind of deer type animals, Yu Qingxiao would feel that they came with a feeling of immortality. Therefore, Yu Qingxiao rushed over with great expectations. Although he might not be able to see the living ones, the zombie ones would be fine. Just before she got close, Yu Qingxiao heard that rumbling sound of water. As she approached, the trees receded from her eyes, and what Yu Qingxiao saw was not a pretty stream or a small pool of water. Instead, it was a muddy flood, and even the trees on both sides had been washed away quite a bit. Even the highway was a bit waterlogged and iced over. It was only because the temperature wasn't that low right now that that flood water didn't freeze. But even a small stream in a place like this had turned into a 10 meter wide river. Wouldn't that 10 meter wide river turn into a river? Yu Qingliang walked over and looked in the direction of the mountain range. Although the highway was indeed in the mountain range, it was also built along the foot of the mountain. After all, building a highway would also damage the habitats of many wild animals. Of course it was a good idea to choose a place with less damage. Yu Qingliang placed his suitcase on the side of the road. So he jumped across the ditch and looked at the bottom of the mountain. It was found that the location below the mountain was full of muddy flood water, like a large brownish colored mirror. The original beautiful puddles and grassy areas were now gone. Yu Qingxiao folded back again, took her camera, and recorded this look as if everywhere had turned into an ocean. Fortunately, when she left, she used the car's power supply to fully charge the luggage and the camera. She didn't worry about running out of power in a short period of time. Yu Qingliang did not get too close to the location of the flood. Even though the place looked sturdy, Yu Qingxiao didn't know if she would be the last share of the weight of that place collapsing if she walked over there. She was shooting those videos from a position several meters away. A few zombie animals gathered across the bank, supposedly smelling the blood and flesh from the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was just that they didn't realize the danger of that flood, and to come over, they were directly swept away by the flood. Of course, not only did the opposite side have zombie animals coming over, even on their side of the mountain and behind, there were also zombie animals following them. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was originally protecting Yu Qingxiao's suitcase, but those zombie animals pounced on it, and it had to make a move. Yu Qingxiao wasn't worried about the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Instead she took her camera and switched from the video function to the photo function. She turned back to look at the Tyrannosaurus Rex as it changed from the cute look it had just had, and that little yellow duck's raincoat was instantly in tatters. The silky hair on its body instantly stood up, and its entire body was filled with electric light. Yu Qingliang immediately picked up a piece of the raincoat and stepped on the ground. After all, water conducts electricity, and there was no telling if this electricity would electrocute himself. But apparently Yu Qingxiao's worry was superfluous. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was very skillful in controlling its powers. Every electric light struck the zombie animals with precision. As the electric light struck the zombie animals, the heads of those zombie animals instantly exploded. Yu Qingliang even wondered if the Tyrannosaurus Rex had secretly stuffed explosives into the heads of these zombie animals. This Tyrannosaurus Rex was really powerful. It was just that there was no telling how long it would take for this flood to get smaller. When Yu Qingliang put away her camera, she realized that the hail had stopped. This made her unable to resist looking at the sky again. But the thick clouds didn't disperse. The wind was even blowing. Yu Qingxiao stared at the flying water splashes and realized that they had turned into ice in the wind. How cold did it have to be to make the water freeze instantly? Yu Qingxiao took out her camera again and directly opened the video and placed it on her luggage. In fact, 
she had already prepared for a long time, since those water splashes could quickly freeze in the air, then maybe these floods would also freeze, but it shouldn't be for a short period of time, it was just that this cold air didn't let Yu Qingliang wait too long, in less than half an hour, the water flow became smaller, Yu Qingxiao couldn't help but look up the hill and realize that the trees on the hill had started to turn white, it was like someone had sprinkled a large amount of frosting on the trees, at around 4 in the afternoon, it was getting late, while the 10 meter white flood in front of them was completely frozen by the cold air, it was flowing a lot less, but still clattering, so now when it was frozen, it was like a brownish colored road with many small bulges, when Yu Qingxiao looked at it, it was as if this was jelly dripping down from the mountains, however, Yu Qingxiao knew that this was a good time for her to go over the side, she immediately grabbed her camera, pulled her suitcase, and headed across the river, however, when she passed that small bridge, Yu Qingxiao still moved a stone and threw it over first, the stone smashed out sugar crumbs on the ice, and then slid out a long way, it seemed that the ice was very sturdy, Yu Qingliang first sent the suitcase to the opposite side of the road, and only then did he hold the camera and shoot from the top to the bottom, trees had fallen where the flood water washed over, this flood was extremely destructive, looking further down, it was a clear view, this flood water is just like a reckless person, the original creek road does not even go, directly rampage, it directly washed away a large part of the forest, so looking down from this place, one could see the wilderness, this is both the scene is not an ocean anymore, it should be considered a huge ice surface, after Yu Qingliang finished filming, he turned off the camera and crossed over this piece of ice, the Tyrannosaurus Rex also came over, but Yu Qingxiao realized that the hair on the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body was also frozen, even if it was a mutated exotic dog, there was no way for it to generate a temperature with its wet fur at this point, Yu Qingxiao reached out and patted its head, it was hard, if it didn't get warm, it was estimated that the Tyrannosaurus Rex would freeze to death, Yu Qingxiao took out the map and saw a town at the foot of a mountain a dozen kilometers ahead, she didn't play anymore and immediately pulled on her suitcase and took the Tyrannosaurus Rex towards that place, the Tyrannosaurus Rex needed temperature and food, this was the fastest she had ever run besides running for her life, when she arrived at the town, Yu Qingliang didn't smell any odors belonging to living creatures, and her heart felt a little more at ease, but there were quite a few zombies in the town, after all, this place belonged to the tourist area of the town, and there were naturally quite a few tourists, Yu Qingxian searched for a house that looked good at keeping warm and let the Tyrannosaurus Rex enter the house, she naturally went to look for a lighter and axe, after more than 10 minutes, when Yu Qingxiao came back, she found the Tyrannosaurus Rex shivering and coming together by the sofa, but this sofa that couldn't generate temperature didn't work at all, Yu Qingxiao's axe directly chopped towards the sofa, anyway, what could be lit on fire, she piled on, she took a lighter and lit the pile of sofas that she had split, after all, she didn't know how long this cold air would be gone, so she had to save her burn, Yu Qingliang avoided the fire, but the Tyrannosaurus Rex came over to it, within a few minutes, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was steaming, looking like a giant steamer, Yu Qingxiao watched it crouch and sit by the fire, which revealed a reassuring smile, you have a good time roasting the fire here, I'll go see if there's any dog food in this town, or something that can be eaten, as soon as Yu Qingliang stood up, the Tyrannosaurus Rex followed, and she immediately comforted, so big in size, so small in guts, the Tyrannosaurus Rex sniffed, which made it sit back down again, Yu Qingxian opened the door and walked out of the room, at this time, there were quite a few zombies gathered over outside this house, however, Yu Qingxiao was not worried about the safety of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but went towards the supermarket, generally this kind of thing should be sold in the supermarket, when Yu Qingxiao almost reached the entrance of the supermarket, he felt as if his feet were having some difficulty stepping out, at first Yu Qingxiao thought that it was her illusion, but when she walked to the entrance of the supermarket, she felt as if her legs were actually rusting, even bending them was a bit difficult, Yu Qingxiao immediately knew that the temperature was definitely very low now, and it was already beyond the tolerance range of the zombies, she looked back, sure enough, those zombies were all like popsicles, standing still, Yu Qingliang instantly realized the crisis, she had to go back quickly because she needed that fire too, the supermarket did have quite a few things, like sausages or something, Yu Qingxiao turned around and carried a few bags of dog food, she also cradled all the sausages on the shelves into the box as well, she then carried two shopping baskets back, but her pace was getting slower and slower, and Yu Qingxiao felt as if she was really turning into a log, how low must this temperature be, after all, this was the first time in the past half year that she felt cold, and when she was halfway there, she really couldn't move, it was good that the Tyrannosaurus Rex came out to look for her when he saw that she didn't go back for half a day, when he saw her standing in the middle of the road with a shopping basket in one hand, 
The Tyrannosaurus Rex quickly rushed over and then carried her back in his mouth. She even heard that sound of bricks hitting the floor when she was placed on the floor. Now she was more than just a cold corpse. She was bang hard and cold. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was smart enough to even know to open and close the door. It then pushed Yu Qingxian towards the fire. Only then did it sit beside Yu Qingxiao and tore open the dog food bag on its own and began to eat it. By the looks of it, it was really hungry. Yu Qingxiao stood by the fire like a statue. It wasn't until 10 minutes later, when Yu Qingxiao was finally able to move around, that she sat down on her butt, and the dog food she brought back had already been eaten by the Tyrannosaurus Rex after two bags. Yu Qingxian moved her suitcase to the side of the fire as well. In this cold weather, she couldn't let her babies freeze. At this moment, even if she didn't take her cell phone out to check the temperature, she knew that it must be a few dozen degrees below zero right now. She walked to the window and looked out, noticing that the zombies at the door were also immobilized. There was no telling what kind of powerful zombies would evolve after this period of time had passed. As for the matter of going to Autumn Color Lake in September, Yu Qingliang definitely had no way of reaching it successfully. After all, from here to Autumn Color Lake, it was almost 5,000 kilometers. And now, it was almost the middle of July. Yu Qingliang had nothing to do, so she chopped up and dragged down everything that could burn upstairs to prevent the fire from going out. She felt fine on her own, but the Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't able to leave the fire too far away. So that sort of thing would have to be done by her. After that, she went rummaging through people's closets and carried down several quilts for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Afterwards, she also put on a cotton dress for herself and cotton shoes on her feet. It was a good thing that the winter in this place before the end of the world was also very cold. So all sorts of things to keep warm were available. She even found that insulating tinfoil. Although she didn't know if it would be useful for this corpse of hers, Yu Qingxiao still wrapped herself all over before putting on her thick clothes and shoes to go out. This time, she was going to use the trailer to bring over more dog food and things that the Tyrannosaurus Rex could eat. She didn't want to run out every day and be frozen into a popsicle. Perhaps it was because she had done a very adequate job of keeping warm this time. In short, she didn't have the feeling of freezing into a popsicle that she had before. This made Yu Qingliang very happy. Very, very good. She made a few more trips back and forth, emptying that supermarket and taking quite a bit of water. The Tyrannosaurus Rex also needed more water. By the way, she stomped around to see if there were any other supermarkets in town. And just as she was about to check out another supermarket, something slammed down in front of Yu Qingliang. It directly collapsed the houses in front of it. Dust scattered everywhere, and Yu Qingxiao saw a nearly two meter tall figure in the dust. There was no aroma. It was a zombie. Yu Qingxiao stared at this zombie, and just maintained an enemy that did not move. As the dust fell to the ground, Yu Qingxiao finally saw the real face of this zombie clearly. There wasn't a single thing on its body. The skin of its entire body was just like wearing a black plastic coat, and it would even reflect light. The two eyes looked a bit weirdly white, and the mouth was split to both sides. Yu Qingliang only felt that this zombie looked slightly familiar. It seemed like he had seen it somewhere before. Until this zombie slightly opened its mouth, Yu Qingliang suddenly remembered in a trance that it looked like venom. But it wasn't that similar. It just looked like a black man with a pitch black tan. This zombie opened its mouth and said a few words. And Yu Qingxiao was confused. She couldn't understand what this zombie was saying. This is a foreign zombie. As expected, this place was too close to the border. Even though there were official people stationed in these places. There was no way to blockade the entire area. Just how could she not expect that there were still walkers smuggled over? It was even if it was smuggled over. But this dude had turned into this. Stronger and bolder? Yu Qingliang saw that its movements were agile and seemed to be unaffected by the temperature. In other words, this foreign zombie was in the cold and had evolved towards the other extreme? If it was not afraid of the cold after evolving to become this kind of ghostly appearance, Yu Qingxiao would definitely be unwilling to do so. Yu Qingxiao couldn't understand the other party's speech. And the other party couldn't understand Yu Qingxiao's speech either. It was obvious that the two zombies had failed to communicate. However, Yu Qingxiao knew that this zombie should be rushing towards the Tyrannosaurus Rexes. The only living thing around here should be the Tyrannosaurus Rex. As expected, when the zombie saw that it could not communicate with Yu Qingxiao, it headed towards the direction where the Tyrannosaurus Rex was. Yu Qingxiao looked at the zombie that suddenly disappeared. And only then did she realize that this foreign zombie was running towards the Tyrannosaurus Rex. She directly dropped the gloves in her hands on the ground, but picked them up again a second later and rushed towards the house. No, if you want to eat an animal you go home and eat it. This is someone else's dog. You dog thief, stop right there. Yu Qingliang thought to herself, had she ever put her life on the line for any person in her life? Of course not, but now she's actually fighting for a dog. It was now dark, and the temperature outside was an unknown number of degrees. 
Sure enough it didn't feel so simple to want to travel peacefully in the end times. After all, even if it wasn't the end times, there would be all sorts of difficulties. Yu Qingxiao chased after them, and when she arrived, she found that the zombie was banging on the door. This made Yu Qingxiao anxious to go up and pull this zombie that was close to 2 meters tall. When she grabbed this zombie, there was something wrong with that grip, but she still tugged hard on this zombie. I know you're hungry and want to eat living things, but that dog is mine and you're not allowed to touch it. I can tell you, I don't only know a few high-level zombies, I also know several powerful humans. If you dare to touch a hair on my dog, I'll let those zombies and people come after you. Yu Qingliang dragged it to walk backward. His mouth was still chattering to warn this zombie. So what did this foreign zombie eat? Evolved so horribly. See, it was said not to eat everything. Eat out of the problem. Yu Qingliang also didn't know how long the Tyrannosaurus Rex could survive in this low temperature if he was allowed to escape. There was no way for the Tyrannosaurus Rex to leave that fire now. Yu Qingxiao directly pushed this zombie out and then opened the door to enter the house. Without Yu Qingxiao's block, the zombie began to bang on the door again. At this time, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was also looking out vigilantly, and the hairs on its body stood up completely. A low growl of vigilance emanated from its throat. Yu Qingxiao's eyes looked everywhere, but he couldn't find any suitable weapons. A gun? No, it was useless against this kind of high-level zombie. Thinking about it, Yu Qingxiao's eyes looked towards the burning fire. She copied a burning stool leg and went straight towards the door. The moment before the zombie was about to break through the door, Yu Qingxiao directly pulled open the door. The cold wind instantly poured in, blowing the torch in Yu Qingxiao's hand somewhat out. But Yu Qingxiao didn't hesitate for a second, and directly held up the stool leg and shoved it directly into the zombie's mouth. Zombies were afraid of high temperatures. This was something that could not be avoided whether it was a high-level zombie or an ordinary zombie. However, Yu Qingliang never thought that the leg of the stool that he had stuffed on fire would have such awesome power. The moment that spark of fire met this zombie, it was like igniting a methane pool. This high-level zombie was instantly spread by the fire. Yu Qingliang only had time to hear its screams before this zombie was instantly engulfed in flames. Even after it took a few steps backwards, it directly exploded. With a roar, the flames went up to the sky before being extinguished in an instant and the place where the zombie had just stood only left behind a cloud of black debris. This made Yu Qingliang somewhat surprised. There was something wrong with the feel of the zombie she had just pulled. Whether it was a human or a zombie, one could touch bones, but just now when she grabbed this zombie, she felt as if its hand had no bones. She had originally thought that if all the flesh inside had rotted away, wouldn't it have become flammable? But how could she not think that it would even explode? It was as if this zombie was carrying a lot of hydrogen in its stomach. Yu Qingliang couldn't feel any pain so she didn't realize that she had actually been affected by the wave. When she looked down and saw that her cotton clothes had actually started to burn, she was so scared that she patted it with force, and then directly fell on the ground and rolled two times before the fire was extinguished. Not only her cotton clothes were burned, even her long hair was burned quite a bit. This made Yu Qingliang directly lie on the ground. She loved her long hair. Now that the fire snake had licked some of it, it didn't look good. If she was a living person, then her hair could still grow back but her body had long since lost the ability to metabolize such functions, so the hair wouldn't grow at all. Yu Qingxiao had nothing else to be proud of, but she, a night owl, had long and silky black hair. Now, it was burned by fire, while Yu Qingxiao was lying on the ground and didn't want to move. The Tyrannosaurus Rex poked out of the room and went to look for something in the pile of ashes. In no time, it came into the room with a crystal core in its mouth. Yu Qingxiao didn't lie on the ground anymore. The door was shaking at this time so it was expected to break if touched lightly. The cold wind kept pouring into the house. The fire that she had managed to light could go out. Yu Qingliang could only find nails and boards to nail the door shut. Anyway, she could go out through the side door. It was always the case that the temperature in this house couldn't dissipate. She added some more firewood to the fire and got up to look for a mirror and clippers. Although she did like her hair, it didn't look good to let it burn hard and hang on her head. Yu Qingliang found the mirror and looked at her entire face around her hair that had all shrunk due to the heat. She could only take the clippers and trim it carefully. After more than 10 minutes, Yu Qingxiao was able to cut off the burnt hair. Luckily, it wasn't bald. The hair on the forehead wasn't burned because it was blocked by the hat. And what was burned was the hair on both sides of the ears. All of these had to be cut off. Yu Qingliang and the Tyrannosaurus Rex stayed in this town for a while longer. Because of eating that crystal core, Yu Qingxiao noticed that the Tyrannosaurus Rex's size seemed to have gotten a little bigger again. It should have advanced. She took out her cell phone and looked at the time. It would soon be August. There was no way for Yu Qingliang to wait any longer. After these few days of wandering around blindly, Yu Qingxian had already adapted to the temperature outside. So she packed up and prepared to leave. She was fully armed nowadays. 
and even put several rolls of insulated tinfoil in her suitcase. The Tyrannosaurus Rex had also adapted to this low temperature in the past two days. Being a sled dog herself, she was also hardy. When it was frozen hard before, it was because its fur was all wet, so it could easily lose heat. But now, looking at its furry appearance made it feel warm. Yu Qingliang thought about it, so she went out to see if this town had a sled or a small crate or something, so she could put it on the Tyrannosaurus Rex, that way her trip could be sped up. Yu Qingxiao took the Tyrannosaurus Rex around the town and found that this town actually did have a sled ride. Just thinking about it, if they were to go somewhere else, it would be more appropriate to have one with wheels. After thinking about it, Yu Qingliang felt that it wasn't like the sled couldn't glide on the ground, so a beautiful sled was chosen to give out. It was just that the dog pulling the sled wasn't as big as the Tyrannosaurus Rex, so Yu Qingxiao still had to assemble one himself. It took a morning for Yu Qingxiao to get it right. This sled could not only sit on people, there was also a shelf at the back. Of course, Yu Qingxiao nonchalantly rummaged through all the dog food in this town and boxed it up, then tied it to the shelf. Then there was water. It was just that the water was already frozen, so when the time came, they could only let the Tyrannosaurus Rex eat it as ice cubes. After preparing these things, Yu Qingxiao sat up. After more than 10 minutes, Yu Qingxiao was back on that highway. With the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Yu Qingxiao's speed was much faster. In only two days, Yu Qingxiao's cell phone was within the signal range of the Huashi base. Her cell phone kept dinging, and she couldn't even ignore it if she wanted to. So she told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to slow down a bit, and only then did she take out her phone to look at it. Then she found several messages from the base pushed out. Yu Qingliang checked them one by one. The earliest one was for the survivors of the various bases to take good measures to keep warm, and not to leave their rooms unless it was necessary to go out. As for the three meals a day, the officials would uniformly distribute them. And as for how long the cold air would last, the prediction was that it would be more than three months. Yu Qingliang finished reading the first one, and then looked towards the second one. This second message was about the matter of the alien squad. The alien squad could not leave the base at will for the time being. If they wanted to leave the base, then they would need to have a fire alien in the squad before they were allowed to go out. After all, the fire alien can generate heat energy for the team members in time, and the alien war team is now considered to be the main force against the zombies. The officials gave some leniency to the management, but they also needed to be responsible for the lives of these people. As for the third article, Yu Qingliang was a bit shocked. It meant that more than 20 days ago, a certain country used some chemicals to poison zombies, and also used the world's banned weapons. As a result the zombies in that country had mutated and had a strong fighting ability, and no one from our country had ever met with them head on, and a blurry photo was attached, only a black figure could be seen from afar. Yu Qingliang stared at that photo and instantly knew that wasn't this the same zombie that she had burned to death with fire a few days ago? The time from when this message was posted was half a month ago, it was also the day she had just encountered the caravan. In half a month, this zombie had traversed tens of thousands of kilometers to get here. Yu Qingliang felt that this zombie ran really fast. If she had this speed, she would have already traveled the country long ago in this half a year. Yu Qingliang quickly scratched out the three messages. The last message was sent four days ago. It was sent the day after she arrived in this town. The content made Yu Qingxiao's body jolt. How could she not have thought that the officials had monitored this zombie? And after it was killed, the officials were well aware of it. It was just that they didn't know if the zombie was killed by someone or by a high-level zombie. So this message was released to tell people across the country that if someone killed this zombie, they could look for official confirmation. Of course, where it was killed, the official didn't say. This was also to prevent someone from impersonating it. If no one claimed it, then it was likely that the zombie had killed it. Yu Qingliang stared at his cell phone. This was news from four days ago. But the person who killed this zombie wouldn't even go and claim it ah. Because this zombie was not killed by a person at all. And it wasn't considered to be killed by her either. She was just in self-defense, stuffing a leg of a stool with a fire in it. If she said that the zombie was burned to death by herself, would others believe her? After Yu Qingxiao read the message, she stared at her cell phone for a while and instantly turned it off. The signal of this cell phone was not the previous signal. If the bases had let the alien warriors not be allowed to leave the base half a month ago, then it would have been possible for the alien battle team that left the base to kill this zombie. But there would be no need for the official to send this message out. After all, the official should know which alien war teams left the base. But what if there were other Xenos who directly occupied the land? After all, in a post-apocalyptic text, those who could be the protagonist were definitely not willing to be subservient. Now that he had encountered so many suspected protagonists in the post-apocalyptic world, Yu Qingliang felt that it didn't seem out of place for him to encounter some more. But this kind of thing wasn't always clear to the officials ah. So would the official base lock their cell phones during this time ah? After all, 
Today's cell phone was the one that that person in the black market helped her to get again. What was used for the signal source? She wasn't very clear. In the past, when there were more than a billion people, the officials wouldn't deliberately lock these signal sources. But now there was no telling how many survivors were left in this country. And signals hovering outside the base would definitely be locked by the officials. People who dared to wander around in the end times were definitely people that the officials wanted to recruit. Yu Qingliang turned off the machine, which was a relief, whether it would be or not. In any case, being careful was a good thing. She had just stuffed her phone back into her backpack when Yu Qingxian heard what sounded like a train traveling on the tracks. This made Yu Qingxiao feel a little puzzled. Could it be that it was her own illusion? But she did hear it. It was still some distance away from herself. As the Tyrannosaurus Rex pulled her up a bridge, she discovered what was actually a railroad underneath. She looked up to where the sound was coming from and saw a somewhat old-looking green-headed train. This train burned coal. Yu Qingliang still knew about this kind of old antique from her mom and dad's conversations, but seeing it was still the first time. The old antique locomotive had been hit and deformed, but the back was reinforced. The windshield was covered with a layer of white frost, so it was not clear what was going on inside. But since this train is traveling, it means that there must be someone in the train. Thinking about it, in fact, the train in the end of the world is also very good ah. After all, the train could be completely transformed into a mobile house, much better than a caravan. Yu Qingliang stared at the train as it drove past under the bridge. She counted it. There were eight carriages in total. It was just unknown how many people were in the train. She couldn't smell the aroma. So it seemed that the ceiling of this train was done quite well. It was estimated that it had been refitted for most of the year. Yu Qingliang watched the train slowly drive under the bridge. She didn't know who the people on the train were, but she was certain that it was someone she couldn't afford to mess with. Yu Qingxiao didn't care about the train anymore, but told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to keep going. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was naturally obedient. Looking at the Tyrannosaurus Rex being so obedient, Yu Qingxiao was a little curious that the Tyrannosaurus Rex could still understand his words. It was really awesome. Originally, she wanted to release the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now in this kind of world, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was so powerful. Surely its life would not be in danger. But she had previously told that zombie that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was her dog. The words had all been said. If she backtracked now, but in the heart of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, if she let it go, it might feel that she had abandoned it. Yu Qingliang could easily leave someone behind and give up her friendship or love for the other person. Instead, it was difficult to part with this kind of puppy and kitten. And at this moment in the train, Captain, I saw what appeared to be people on the bridge I just passed. Not sure if they were humans or zombies. A youth said towards the man sitting at the bar drinking. Next to him sat a very pretty woman. That was the older brother's girlfriend. The youth's eyes did not look towards the two men, but straight at the carpet on the floor. Can't you even tell if it's a human or a zombie? Where else would someone dare to run by themselves in these years? If there really is, I really want to meet this person. When the man heard his little brother's words, he snapped his wine glass down towards the table. The wine in the glass jumped a few drops out to splash on the table because of his action. The woman next to the man reached for his arm when she saw that the man actually wanted to meet the man. You want someone else to be your brother again? Give the others a break. Not everyone wants to get on our train. The woman opened her mouth. Her voice was very nice. After saying this, the woman let the youth stop the train first to take a look. So the youth immediately went and stopped the train. When the man saw his girlfriend say this, he couldn't help but say, Ah Ro, you don't understand. Nowadays, in this world, it's the need to gather people. Although this train of ours has also been remodeled, there are a lot of people on the train, and there are a lot of food and clothes, and the one who can walk in the end of the world by himself must be a ruthless person. Then if it's a tough guy, how could he come to work under you? Brother XIN, we need to be more cautious before we do that. Arrow shook her head. Although for what Brother XIN said was indeed the truth, but they weren't the only ones with psychic abilities on the train in the post-apocalyptic world. Although Brother XIN's psychic ability was already considered to be of a relatively high level, what if there were other psychics who were even stronger, especially since the news they received when they came from the Northeast base earlier, that there were mutated zombies? One should know that the official assessment given, that zombie was estimated to require a level 4 alterationist to battle with it. But four days ago, the zombie died. That was a zombie that could only be killed by a level 4 alterationist. Dead. And Brother XIN's psychic ability was only at level 3. Although it could advance at any time, it hadn't advanced yet. If that zombie had set its sights on their train, then the 50 or so people in this train would all have to die at the hands of that zombie. But for the majority of the year, Shin did hold up this train and the lives of the 50 or so people in the car. I know. Just stopping the train to take a look. Brother Shin gave a smile to reassure Arrow. 
No matter what, the most important person to him was still Arrow. Only Shin got off the train with his men and circled up to the bridge and didn't see anyone, but one of them spotted marks on the ground. Because of the cold air and the heavy rain earlier, any water stains on the ground would be frozen. There would then be a layer of ice almost 3 centimeters thick on the ground. If someone had walked through it, there would definitely be traces left on it. But on this ground today, there were animal paw prints and two trace marks the width of the back of a hand, but there were no human footprints at all. In other words, this person should be sitting on top of something similar to a sled. Looking at the footprints, they should be animals like dogs and wolves or tigers. And the footprints are much larger. They should be mutated animals. The man squatted down and carefully identified the marks on the ground. Like this kind of footprints, then it is a medium-sized dog or a large dog that is mutated. These types of dogs would all be full of wildness after mutating, and might even attack humans. Therefore, if people nowadays want to keep a pet, they need to go to the base to register. And in the base, they also need to be injected with tranquilizing drugs. Animals with bestiality are all potentially dangerous. Generally the mutated animals that can be driven by humans are those that have been raised around since childhood and have a particularly deep bond with their owners. But even so, pets that mutated and then became beastly and injured their owners abounded. Forget it, let's go. Since that person dared to go alone, there must be no need to cooperate with others. Brother XIN looked at the marks on the ground, and then turned to leave. And the shoes they were wearing were non-slip shoes. Even if the ground was frozen, they wouldn't slip. Unlike Yu Qingxiao, who took three steps forward and had to take two steps back. It was just like twisting a rice planting song. And at this time, Yu Qingxiao didn't realize that the train had stopped. She walked over the bridge and started going downhill. After walking a distance of almost a kilometer, Yu Qingxiao was almost parallel to the railroad. She had originally been a bit puzzled as to how that train had lost its sound. Instead, it didn't make the Tyrannosaurus Rex stop. There was a distance of more than 10 meters between the highway and the railroad. And there was also a high iron net stopping it. Mainly because many years ago, on this section of the road, there were people who committed suicide by lying on the tracks. Therefore, the iron net was pulled up to stop. And this section of the journey has been monitoring. Yu Qingxiao did not dare to open the suitcase to take out the camera to take pictures, because she was using the fire to bake the suitcase warm, and then wrapped it with insulated tinfoil, and then wrapped it with a down jacket. Of course, whether the camera would break or not, Yu Qingxiao was not sure. As for the cell phone, Yu Qingxiao found that it was indeed very hardy, even at dozens of degrees below zero. It didn't shut down and was still running smoothly. This made Yu Qingxiao feel that the boss who repaired the cell phone had something. Giving two boxes of medicine was really condescending. At least give a box. As Yu Qingxiao thought this, she heard the sound of a train again. It was coming from behind her. It was less than two kilometers away and caught up with her in a few seconds. The people on the train couldn't see Yu Qingxiao clearly, but Yu Qingxiao clearly locked eyes with the pair of men and women on the train through the glass. Of course, it was probably just her unilateral glance with the other person. Yu Qingxiao was afraid that the other party would stop the train again, so she had the Tyrannosaurus Rex speed up because the highway she was on would separate from the railroad a few kilometers further. When the Tyrannosaurus Rex heard Yu Qingxian tell it to speed up, it directly ran with joy. At that speed, Yu Qingxiao felt that it was no less than traveling on a highway in a small car. It turned out that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was also very fast. And Brother Xian and Aro on the train were a little concerned about that flash of a big white dog in sled. I think I just locked eyes with someone on the sled. Ah Zoe said. Although it was far away, Aro felt that the other person met her eyes. I felt that way too. It seems like a really strong person. With a raised eyebrow, Shin realized that the other party should not be worried about the zombies at all. And that the big white dog was still an alien dog. Boss, do we need to stop the train again? The youth came over again. No need. Let's go. If that person really wanted to take a ride, then he would have stopped our train. But obviously, it didn't. Shin still took Arrow's words in. Especially after the death of that mutated zombie. He did care a bit. What kind of person was it that could kill such a strong zombie? When the highway and the railroad completely separated, the highway was going into the mountains again while the railroad was going in the direction of the city. Yu Qingliang felt that this train should need to replenish its supplies, that's why it stopped at various cities. But now with this low temperature situation, it was estimated that even the supermarket doors couldn't be opened. It was also unknown how the humans were trying to keep warm. After all, she'd almost become a statue in that town on her first day. If she survived that, wouldn't that make her a level 2 zombie? How could it be considered an evolution? Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang carefully uncovered a corner of her down jacket and immediately pressed it down again. No, 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 this kind of thing can't be attempted at will. Yu Qingxiao took out the map and looked at it. 
The degree of cold resistance of this map was not as impressive as her cell phone, slightly lagging, and it took half a day to react to a click. However, it was good that it was still usable. Yu Qinglian's destination was X City, which was in the northwestern part of the country, although L City, which was located in the center of the country, was also very good, but that was where the central base was located. The central base, like the capital base, had its base built in the original city. Although Yu Qingliang wanted to go, he couldn't throw himself into a trap. At this point in time, the country's bases were in addition to the eight bases in the southeast and northwest, as well as the southwest, southeast, northeast, and northwest. There were actually seven more bases, among them were the capital base and the central base. And most of these bases were in places where there were more human gatherings, like the side of the cross sea bridge that she had gone to see before. There were three bases, all 15 bases belonged to the official bases. Of course, this was the map she got from the black market a few months ago. She didn't know if it had been updated now. According to Yu Qinglian's estimation, there should still be 1 to 200 million survivors in the country today. Of course, there were over a billion zombies, and also beware of the zombies running over from abroad. After all, the two most populous countries in the world were right next to each other. The zombies alone were estimated to be approaching 3 billion. Just thinking about the situation in that country made Yu Qinglian break out in a cold sweat. Forget it, it didn't matter. She put away the map and told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to go towards the other side. Going to the grassland, if she could catch a sheep or a cow, she could give the Tyrannosaurus Rex a taste of meat. It was cold today, so it wouldn't spoil. With the highway, it was still easy to cross the mountains. Yu Qingliang had thought that it was the kind of stunningly beautiful grassland that she had seen in the video, but when she looked at the grass in front of her that grew all the way up to her waist deep, it made her a little surprised. It was true that in the end times, other than people not being able to grow taller, all plants and animals were able to become huge. Yu Qingliang looked at the map and searched for the closest nearby city that was only a big city, although it was less than 300 kilometers away from the North China base. But Yu Qingxiao felt that he needed one thing, that was a drone a piece of equipment that many travel bloggers carried with them. This was the first time Yu Qingxiao had set foot in this super long province, although it had appeared in many travel videos as well. Of course, Yu Qingxiao felt that the province that appeared in the most travel videos had to be his hometown. But now, Yu Qingxiao was a tourist. Those grasses were already covered in frost, and the wind blew through them with a collision clinking. The sound blew from her side to the distance, and from the distance to her own ears, and so it went on week after week. She, on the other hand, arrived in the city the next morning. When she saw the city from afar, Yu Qingliang then patted the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head. The zombies in this city were not frozen and were still wandering around. Perhaps these zombies had already adapted to the temperature. Or maybe the temperature had risen. Yu Qingliang took out his cell phone and took a look. Well, the temperature hadn't risen at all. Probably because the weather in the grassland was changeable and the people here were hardy. So compared to the people in the south, the people in the north were more resistant to the cold, right? Yu Qingxiao suddenly thought of those frozen people in that town before. They were from the north. No, those were tourists from the south, right? After all, the northeast in winter was really beautiful. A lot of people were willing to come to the north in the winter to travel. For example, a place like yourself, who lives in a place where all winters are warmer, really doesn't stand up to freezing. After all, this kind of temperature could physically freeze people to death. Although Yu Qingliang was not a living person, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was alive. So it was only when it stepped into the city that the zombies pounced towards the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yu Qingxiao immediately untied the ropes on the Tyrannosaurus Rex, then spoke, go inside first, go to a higher place. The Tyrannosaurus Rex sniffed and directly stepped on the car, leaping up to the window of the three-story building and squeezing in through the window. Yu Qingliang looked at the unorthodox Tyrannosaurus Rex, but he couldn't help but give it a round of applause. If it wasn't for the fact that in the last two strokes, its hind paws stomped under the windowsill twice and missed, Yu Qingxiao felt that the Tyrannosaurus Rex's maneuvers scored full marks. He didn't know if there were any zombies in the house, but Yu Qingxiao took down his suitcase and carried it upstairs, and also took down the Tyrannosaurus Rex's dog food as well. When they arrived in the big city, they could take a good stroll. Of course, be careful to avoid humans. Yu Qingliang carried the things in one trip, then hid his sled in the store on the first floor. Going upstairs, he closed the doors and windows, then he prepared a quilt for the Tyrannosaurus Rex to keep it warm and lit a fire for it before he was ready to go downstairs. I've put all my things here, they're all very important things to me, so you help me guard them well, okay? I'll go out first. Yu Qingliang put her suitcase and backpack by the Tyrannosaurus Rex's side. In the past, no matter where she went, she would never let the backpack out of her sight. This was because if she lost it, 
then the photo of her and her parents would be lost as well. But now, with the Tyrannosaurus Rex around, Yu Qingliang was also very relieved to give her baby to the Tyrannosaurus Rex to guard. The main reason was that she didn't know when she would be back when she went out, and she was afraid that the Tyrannosaurus Rex would go out to look for her. She also wasn't sure if there were any advanced zombies in this city, so she couldn't take the Tyrannosaurus Rex out. The Tyrannosaurus Rex lay and sat on the quilt, obediently listening to Yu Qingxian's words, its eyes staring at Yu Qingxian's suitcase and backpack. Yu Qingxian didn't know if it really listened, but she still got up and went out. Eat those dog food when you're hungry. There's no need to economize. Nowadays in a big city, there should be enough dog food to go around, and water when it turns into liquid. Yu Qingliang walked to the door, still couldn't help but turn back to explain to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Seeing the Tyrannosaurus Rex looking at her, he then closed the door to the room and went downstairs. After Yu Qingxiao went downstairs, she closed the door to the hallway as well, preventing any zombies from rushing upstairs. Because the Tyrannosaurus Rex was a living creature, she naturally did not dare to close all the doors and windows. Without the Tyrannosaurus Rex following her, Yu Qingxian did not have to worry that she would affect the safety of the Tyrannosaurus Rex if she went to a place where there were a lot of zombies. Yu Qingxiao had to admit that bringing the Tyrannosaurus Rex was much more troublesome than bringing a zombie. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao suddenly realized a problem. Wasn't his previous self like this to his own mom and dad? He himself didn't want to come into contact with humans and didn't want to go out. But mom and dad's socialization was all normal. It was just that the Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't like herself. She was really reluctant to leave the house to blend in with the human world. But what about Tyrannosaurus? It was a dog and loved wide open spaces. Yu Qingliang didn't go back to bring the Tyrannosaurus Rex out. First of all, she was now considered half-owner of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. As for why half-owner? Because she was actually a corpse. Just because of an accident she kept a human mind. So she was considered half-owner. Those zombies around her didn't give her a second glance. Yu Qingliang didn't have a camera with her, but she did have a cell phone. The clothes she was wearing were other people's old clothes, although they might be famous brands. Of course, they might also be ordinary clothes. Yu Qingxiao did not understand about these brands of clothes, and the knowledge of them was all based on the temporary Bai Yidu when writing novels. When Yu Qingxiao walked to a store that looked super beautifully decorated, she walked in. In short, she changed her take slightly bloated cotton clothes into a beautiful coat. Even on her body was a pretty winter wear dress. Of course, she didn't forget to bring back a red scarf for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. A white dog looks good with a red scarf. After wandering around the clothing stores, she found her way back down the avenue to the busiest places. Of course, she wasn't going to those electronic malls to get a drone. Rather, she was going to some studios that shot scenery. What those people had in their hands was the good stuff. That being said, with these temperatures today, would those electronics still work? Although Yu Qingliang thought so, she still entered the building. There was a guide map in the lobby on the first floor, and Yu Qingxiao glanced at it and realized that she looked at that photography studio. It was a Netflix studio that took beautiful shots of both landscapes and people. Yu Qingxiao had also paid attention to this studio, and this studio had also photographed the guys they ate with. It also had a price tag on it. Yu Qingxiao glanced at that price and did a double take. She went upstairs and smoothly entered this studio. The things inside were not exactly neatly arranged. She walked in, and there seemed to be some kind of movement. Yu Qingliang was standing at the door when suddenly a zombie crawled out from the room. The clothes on the zombie were already dirty. Its entire body had rotted, and the lower half of its body was probably rotting and falling off in the room as well. Therefore, when this zombie crawled over, it only had the upper half of its body. Yu Qingliang recognized him as the founder of this studio from its festering face. 30 years old, but very handsome, whether it was from his clothes or personality or height. All impeccable. After all, he had also been on variety shows and the documentaries he had made had been on many TV stations. But now, it was rotting like this. Yu Qingxiao walked forward and squatted by the side of this zombie, then reached out, took out his cell phone and took a picture with this male zombie. Then it stood up and let this zombie crawl around. Anyway, looking at it like this, it was estimated that in a few more days, it would be completely dead. To be able to live for most of the year without food, this zombie was considered talented. If it was set free and ate more people, it might be able to evolve into a powerful person. But now, Yu Qingliang couldn't save it. Yu Qingxiao stepped over this zombie and went to rummage through the boxes. He took two drones and a camera. This camera not only shoots clearly, but is also the most cold-resistant camera. After all, this camera is put into the coldest environment can also clearly and smoothly record the picture. After all, this camera can record images clearly and smoothly even when put into the coldest environment. So this camera is the most suitable for this kind of extremely cold weather. Yu Qingxiao took the cardboard box and packed them up, 
and left the studio with them in his arms. However, on the way out, Yu Qingxiao turned back to the half zombie that was already paralyzed on the ground with little strength to squirm. I'm sorry, I've already given my money to that mole before, so I don't have any money to give you, but I'll make good use of the value of these things. After Yu Qingxiao said this, he even bowed and thanked the half zombie before walking out of the studio's door. As expected, being a big handsome guy, sometimes he wouldn't be favored by the heavens, and after turning into a zombie, he would also slowly rot and become ugly, but it was a good ending for him to die in the studio he loved in life. Yu Qingliang hugged the cardboard box and left the building as she looked around. Although she said that she didn't know when she would go back, Yu Qingxiao still wanted to go back before it got dark. When she returned downstairs, she found that many zombies had already gathered downstairs. These zombies were obviously a bit grumpy. After all, they hadn't eaten any food for a long time, and now there was a living thing right on the third floor, but they had no way to eat it. Yu Qingliang looked at the zombies crowded in this place. She could only go in through the store on the first floor, closed the door of the store, and entered the hallway of this building through the side door of the store, then glanced at the door of the building that she had closed, and headed upstairs. As she entered the room, the Tyrannosaurus Rex came straight at her. The fire in the fireplace hadn't gone out yet, and it turned out that it was the Tyrannosaurus Rex himself who had added something that would burn. Rather a clever dog. I'm back. Luckily luckily, it's not dark. Yu Qingliang opened his mouth. The Tyrannosaurus Rex wagged its tail happily when it heard Yu Qingxian's words. It was just that its tail was thick and slapped on the ground with a thud. Yu Qingxiao put the box down and took out the scarf from the box. Look, I gave it to you. It looks good, doesn't it? Yu Qingxiao held the scarf and stared at the Tyrannosaurus Rex with a smug expression. It was as if the Tyrannosaurus Rex would suddenly open his mouth to praise her. Of course, the Tyrannosaurus Rex definitely couldn't speak, but its happy look was overflowing. Without having to speak, Yu Qingliang could feel how happy the Tyrannosaurus Rex was. After she put the scarf on the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Tyrannosaurus Rex happily circled around her. Yu Qingxiao looked at the happy appearance of the Tyrannosaurus Rex and suddenly remembered something. On a certain day in a certain year, she seemed to be circling around her mom like this, because her mom had bought her the hand puppet that she had always wanted. It's just that that Comic Con wasn't in the city she lived in, but she wanted to go and didn't want to go. The thought of so many people scared her so she found someone online to buy it for her. But how could she not expect that her mom, as if she possessed mind-reading skills, knew what hand puppet she wanted, although she already had one at that time, but mom also bought her one. This made Yu Qingliang surprised, so she kept circling around her mom. She actually couldn't remember what her mom said at that time, or the look in her mom's eyes at that time. Was there a smile on her face? But she remembered. Yu Qingliang's hand gently stroked up the top of the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head and gently rubbed it a few times with a faint smile on her face. Although she knew that there were similarities between raising a dog and raising a child, there were also dissimilarities, but she could probably understand some of her mom's feelings at that time. Yu Qingxiao asked the Tyrannosaurus Rex to sit down, and she also sat down next to him. She took out her cell phone and flipped through the photos, telling the Tyrannosaurus Rex about the people in the photos. It was as if she was telling a story to a child. Very patient. Yu Qingliang talked about the past. Although she was talking to the Tyrannosaurus Rex, she was also talking to her emotionally cold self. Yu Qingliang flipped through some photos, and when he returned to the main screen, he saw that black app again. Although it was there when the guy who fixed the phone handed it to her, but Yu Qingxiao had never clicked into it. After all, Yu Qingxiao didn't care about those apps. She only cared about the chat records and photos. Yu Qingxiao stared at this app and finally clicked on it, although she was a little worried about being located but positioning was positioning. Yu Qingxiao still turned her phone on, now that she had entered the range of the Huashi base, so the phone could run. Although the app was a bit stuck opening, the page after opening made Yu Qingxiao shocked. It was 15 bases, and at the top, it read, Population of Huashia, 16005205151, People. In the instant she was surprised. The number was instantly missing by three. In other words, in that second just now, three people had died, but it went up again by one. That is to say, a newborn was born. The 15 bases were sorted, starting with the most populated. The most populated was at the top of the list. It was the East China base, with a total of over 23 million people. The least had to be the Northwest base, with a population of around 3,200,000. Other than the first five bases that had the largest populations, the remaining six bases all had similar populations. Then the four bases at the bottom were also decreasing in population. Yu Qingliang saw that each base could be clicked in. Then he couldn't help but click in. The rows of words and numbers showed Yu Qingxian what it meant to be a big country's base. However, in the first half of the year, the country she lived in had not only counted the survivors, 
but even the number of zombies, and how many zombies were in that city, and at what level of danger, and what was the number of troops stationed at the base, how many medical personnel were there, how many researchers were there, the number of alter egos and the number of alter ego battle teams, being able to compile this kind of data really shocked Yu Qingliang, it was because she had never thought that the country she was living in, was already able to do this, after she exited from the base information, she realized that the number at the top was jumping again, in short, it was jumping towards less, Yu Qingliang scrolled down and flipped to the bottom, and found that there were even records of survivors from other countries, of course, it was just approximate numbers, it wasn't as accurate as the number of people from his own country, however, Yu Qingxiao felt that the number of people from his own country was actually not particularly accurate, one could only say that it was the people who had entered the base that could be re-entered into the new system, but there were many people whose minds were defiant, in their eyes, with the end of the world, where was there an upper class, but Yu Qingliang felt lucky, because she was just an ordinary person, she would never become a protagonist, nor could she kill big, if she was a normal ordinary person, Yu Qingxiao was really also one of the people who were in these 15 bases, of course, there was also the possibility of being that zombie roaming the streets, although Yu Qingxiao knew that many times one had to save themselves, sometimes, one still needed to ask for help, Yu Qingxiao looked at the data and inexplicably felt somewhat relieved, her country was strong, and she, for one, didn't need to be a hero, after all, the country had reserves of food, if the survivors were still nearly 2 billion people, then maybe it really couldn't hold out for too long, but nowadays, the population had plummeted to less than a tenth, this food should be able to last for a while, Yu Qingliang knew that she didn't need to worry, she went to an ordinary elementary school, an ordinary middle school, a good high school, and an okay university, but Yu Qingxiao also knew very well that she was just a person who was just waiting to die, the thing that kept her alive was probably not wanting to see her mom and dad sad. Yu Qingxiao didn't delete that app, but kept it to secretly observe at any time. She stayed in the city for several days, but Yu Qingliang ran through the entire city, and in turn, fully charged all the devices on her body. After all, there were diesel generators and such. Although it was troublesome, after Yu Qingxiao drummed it up, it was still charged. This generator did work well, but it was really a bit heavy, and Yu Qingxiao still felt that it was unnecessary. It wasn't like she was going to be a savage, she would still go into the city occasionally, she would just find a way to charge it when the time came. However, Yu Qing shouted out a lot of dog food to the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and then all sorts of freeze-dried ah canned food ah, all of these were put onto the sled. When she looked at the sled being full, Yu Qing Xiao was a little embarrassed. Loading so much, do you think it's heavy? Yu Qing Xiao asked the Tyrannosaurus Rex as she pointed at the sled. However, the Tyrannosaurus Rex cooperated and stood in front of the sled even biting on the sled straps itself and threw it on itself. This made a drop of sweat fall from the back of Yu Qingxiao's head. May I ask this big dog, do you really consider yourself as a driver? Forget it. Anyway, this sled was full of food for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and he was just a suitcase, now loaded with some things. There were more than 10 kilograms, plus himself. Yu Qingliang tied the sled to the Tyrannosaurus Rex and didn't sit on it. It was fine for her to walk slowly anyway, and when the Tyrannosaurus Rex saw that Yu Qingxiao didn't sit on it, he kept signaling her to sit on it, so the corpse and the dog were at a standstill, in the end, it was Yu Qingxiao who stepped back first and got on the sled, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, after seeing Yu Qingxiao get on it, ran happily, it was as if it wasn't pulling a lot of things behind it at all, Yu Qingxiao felt that it was already 200 pounds on this sled, she definitely couldn't lift it, but this was like a piece of cake for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and Yu Qingxiao saw that it really didn't look like it was struggling, so she was relieved, it was good that it wasn't struggling, Yu Qingxiao released the charged drone, after all, this place was very close to the Huashi base, less than 200 kilometers, plus, Yu Qingxiao also wanted to try how to control the drones, so she was taking two drones, if one broke down, then there was another one that could be used, fortunately, Yu Qingxiao wasn't that stupid, and after staring at the manual for a while, she barely managed to get the drone to take off, it was only that he didn't control it well when it landed, causing the drone to fall into the dirt, but there wasn't much of a problem, Yu Qingliang experimented a few more times and was already able to control it well, she was able to see the aerial footage of the drone through the screen of the remote control, she hadn't tried it before when she had just watched others film it, this allowed Yu Qingxiao to open the door to a new world, she even controlled the drone to go to the city and made those zombies run after the drone, and when she was about to recover the drone, her drone was suddenly attacked and the drone instantly crashed to the ground, although the image was still visible, the drone was no longer controllable. Yu Qingxiao had thought that the zombies had taken the picture, but they hadn't. 
This was because she had made the drone sail at an altitude where the zombies couldn't catch it. After all, she also knew that the current zombies had evolved in speed and jumping height, but the drone still crashed to the ground. That meant the flight function was disabled. Yu Qingxiao looked at the remote control in her hand. This drone was expensive because the signal reception was around 10 kilometers, so Yu Qingxiao didn't stop and let the Tyrannosaurus move forward. Now she was almost 2 kilometers away from the city, but she still wanted to see what kind of bully had gotten rid of her drone. About 5 kilometers out, a face appeared on the screen of the remote control. This face was familiar to Yu Qingliang. It was the one who could see her and Shi Xingyu. What it was called she didn't know, but she knew that the other person must be very good at sniping. So his own drone must have been sniped down by him. No, he's sick, right? This is a drone, not a bird. But Yu Qingliang suddenly thought of something. He had been with Gu Evening Cheng and the man called a Shang, and Gu Evening Cheng was an official. Then he sniped this drone, naturally for the good of the country. It was close to the border. So if another country invaded and took the opportunity to explore our country's intelligence, Yu Qingliang gave another nod to that sesame seed cookie. Good job, but she was still a bit angry. Yu Qingxiao didn't actually smell any human aroma. Only then did she look down at the distance on the remote control screen. It was already 6 kilometers away at this point, and Yu Qingxiao told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to head back. It was so hard to test her sense of smell, she couldn't miss such an opportunity. Although the Tyrannosaurus Rex was puzzled, it still pulled the sled to turn around. Then it was 5 kilometers, and Yu Qingliang still didn't smell. When the distance was shortened to 3 kilometers, Yu Qingxiao immediately smelled the fragrance that belonged exclusively to Gu Evening Ching. It was true that one whiff of it refreshed the mind. She had smelled so many scents, but Gu Evening Ching's smell was still the best. As for the smell of Court Lady Wan, how to put it, it smelled a bit like jasmine tea. It was her favorite tea. As soon as Yu Qingliang smelled the odor, he let the Tyrannosaurus Rex not have to go back. And as for the screen in his hand, it also turned black at this time. Obviously, the drone should have been dismantled. Yu Qingxiao looked down at the remote control in her hand before throwing this remote control into the grass next to her. If she had brought it with her, it might have been reverse located. When Gu Evening Ching saw Pei Yuan return with a drone, she took out a set of equipment. It had an official logo on it, and it looked like it was some sort of classified equipment. Pei Yuan gave her the drone and she quickly dismantled this drone, then began to check what was in this drone. And when she saw those images in the drone, she knew that this shouldn't be a drone from another country, but it wasn't completely sure. So the person controlling this drone needed to be found. So naturally, Gu Evening Cheng started a counter signal tracking and found the remote control that was controlling this drone. But this remote control was thrown in the grass by the side of the road. And as for the person controlling this drone, he had already disappeared. When Qing Sheng picked up the remote control with a paddle, he just didn't know if he could get his very valid information on it. However, he still put this remote control in a sealed bag. We've already found out Zhou Xian's whereabouts. Sister Cheng. Do you really want to take a chance? When Xingsheng was still a bit uncertain. It had also been almost a year since they had traveled all over the country, and they hadn't stayed anywhere for more than a week. Although he knew that this was a task given to Sister Qing from above, but he felt that it was also too much hard work. Touch, why would I touch him? Zhou Xian is a bit of a prodigal, but it's naturally good to let him go on his way, and wherever he passes through, the railroads will be able to get through, and will sit back and reap the benefits. Gu Evening Ching listened to Wen Xingxing's words and said unconcernedly, seeing Gu Evening Ching say this, Wen Xingxing turned back to Pei Yuan and asked him to say a few words, although Pei Yuan looked unreliable, what he said, Sister Cheng still listened to occasionally, but Pei Yuan just pestled his chin and looked at the sky, that look was as if he was trying to stare out a crack in the sky, speaking of which, Pei Yuan had needed to rely on a lot of instruments to survive before the end times, but because of the end times, Pei Yuan's body gradually improved and he was even able to go out, and after he had a fever, he didn't turn into a zombie. Instead he awakened his psychic abilities. Although he still needed to take medicine, he no longer needed those instruments to renew his life at all. It's just that he talks in a heavenly manner, and only one or two sentences out of ten are true. As for the rest, it's like he's bluffing or teasing others. When Qingsheng also knew that he couldn't count on Pei Yuan, so he stopped looking for his help. As for Gu Evening Cheng, at this point, it was already clear who this drone belonged to. It was purchased by someone from a studio. Obviously, someone had taken this drone from this studio. Yu Qingxiao didn't realize how far away she was from Gu Evening Ching and the others at this point, and now she couldn't smell the aroma anymore. It meant that she had distanced herself from Gu Evening Ching and the others. Although Yu Qingxiao felt that the drone was really useful, there was also the danger of exposing herself. So one had to make sure that there was really no one around them before using the drone. The Tyrannosaurus pulled her towards the grassland. 
Although this area was really nice, Yu Qingxiao stared at the map and she didn't go to the most famous grassland. Obviously that grassland wasn't far from M City, but she missed it because she was looking at the birch tree highway. Forget it, it's the same thing to look at here. Not difficult for herself. Yu Qingliang is not rushing day and night now, or will let the Tyrannosaurus Rex stop to rest and sleep. Because although it had mutated and was much stronger physically, but no matter what, the machine also needed to rest. Yu Qingliang stared at the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head. In his heart, he thought, if the Tyrannosaurus Rex turned into a zombie, wouldn't it not need to rest? It was like Shi Xingyu, who often resented her for delaying her trip by sleeping. And at this moment, the Tyrannosaurus Rex that was burying its head in dog food suddenly felt a vicious chill and raised its head up to look around. As soon as he turned around, he was met with Yu Qingxiao's smiling face. Not enough food. Ha, huh? two more dried fish for you. Yu Qingxian said, then got up and went to the back of the sled to rummage through the dried fish. In no time, she held up two super large dried fish and walked in front of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Tyrannosaurus Rex looked at the dried fish and first came over to rub against Yu Qingxian before lowering its head to eat. Yu Qingxiao squatted to the side and watched the Tyrannosaurus Rex eat the large dried fish. If Yu Qingxiao ate this dried fish, he could eat it for a day. But for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it was gone in a few bites. It was true that as its size grew, so did its appetite. In the post-apocalyptic world, people who could afford to keep pets were not people to be messed with. Yu Qingliang looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and there was still some dejection on her face. She had raised a super big dog, so she must be super strong in the eyes of those people. So those humans had better turn their heads and run if they saw her somewhere. But when Yu Qingxiao thought about it, what if those humans saw her and thought she was powerful and begged to save them? Yu Qingxiao imagined that image. She herself was being chased by people. She ran forward frantically, and the people behind her chased after her frantically. As she exposed herself as a zombie, the other person gave herself a pike. Zombie Yu Qingliang, pawn. The moment she thought of that image, Yu Qingxiao immediately shook her head. It was fine before, but now she had a Tyrannosaurus Rex. How could she not give it a good old age? Yu Qingxiao watched the Tyrannosaurus Rex finish eating before she let it continue on its way. At least find a place to rest before it gets dark. It didn't matter to her that she couldn't let her dog sleep out in the wild. It was just that in places like this, it was actually rare to come across a town. And it was the first time she had seen a yurt that was mostly submerged by grass. Even though it wasn't dark yet, Yu Qingliang didn't walk. Directly, she asked the Tyrannosaurus Rex to go through the grassy forest and go to that yurt. The Tyrannosaurus Rex naturally went without any hesitation. It's just that the grass was growing too confusingly. Yu Qingliang completely forgot that there should be drainage ditches on both sides of this highway, or a drop off from the ground. So a corpse of a dog and sled, fell into the ditch. To be precise, it was the Tyrannosaurus Rex that pulled the sled into the ditch. Before Yu Qingxiao could say anything, the Tyrannosaurus Rex directly stood up, made a jump, and directly pulled the sled out of the ditch. That strength was great. The sled flew straight up with Yu Qingxiao attached to it. After landing hard, Yu Qingxiao could feel her zombie virus jude brain rattling around in her skull. Don't shatter your fragile brain. The Tyrannosaurus Rex will start wandering alone again. Yu Qingliang's brain wasn't shaken to pieces, but those blades of grass around her were clanging as they crashed. It even sounded a little good. Yu Qingliang had some itchy hands, so he reached out and touched them. These blades of grass were completely encased in ice but the roots were not frozen on. So when this grass blew in the wind, it shook just like the waves of wheat. After shaking for a while she withdrew her hand. First, she went to see if this place could be inhabited. The yurt looked a bit worn out. It should have been used for many years. It was almost one or two kilometers away from the highway, and behind it was a sheep pen built with stone walls and wood. Although it was simple, it was able to block the wind. Only now it was empty inside. There were no sheep, neither zombie sheep nor mutant sheep. This made Yu Qingliang a little disappointed. Originally, he wanted to get a live sheep to give the Tyrannosaurus Rex a taste. Now, go chew on the grass. When he turned around, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was really gnawing on the grass. Without a sheep, Yu Qingliang didn't care. She turned around and walked to the edge of the yurt. Excuse me, Yu Qingxiao said and lifted the curtain to enter the house. There wasn't much dust in the house, and it was cleaned up. There wasn't a trace of blood either. Obviously, this family should have escaped safely but it didn't bring anything with it either. In the center was a fireplace with a chimney attached to it. She turned her head and realized that the curtain was still carrying what looked like a quilt behind it. She didn't feel anything when she pushed the curtain in though. She reached for the door of that stove and found that it was frozen shut. She didn't have to push too hard to pull the stove door open though. And as she did, a layer of ice fell off the stove. At this point she went to look at the irons and sure enough they were all frozen on. There was even a bucket of milk that was frozen hard. 
Yu Qingliang lifted the bucket of milk and tried to pour it out, but she shook it several times and it didn't move. She also gave up, and then hung the curtain to the side before letting the Tyrannosaurus Rex in, then carried in all the suitcases and dog food and water and stuff. Then she lit the stove in the house on fire. The Tyrannosaurus Rex immediately went to the stove. Guess the temperature came up, and not a moment later, the bucket of frozen milk she had thrown on the floor began to melt. The Tyrannosaurus Rex smelled it and walked over. Yu Qingliang thought about how dogs even eat shit, so this bucket of milk wouldn't have to be drunk as well. But this should be the milk that has been put away for almost a year. If this is drunk, then what's going to happen? Just as Yu Qingxiao was about to stop it, the Tyrannosaurus Rex even plowed the ground to bury the bucket of milk. This shocked Yu Qingxiao. This bucket of milk was so stinky? Yu Qingxiao immediately took out his cell phone to take a picture, before carrying the bucket of milk out. And just after this milk left the warm environment of the house, it immediately froze up again. It showed that the weather outside was still very cold. Yu Qingxian turned around and entered the house and started rummaging through the cupboards, as completely nonchalant as her own home. She found clean bedding and spread it on the floor. Then she herself laid down in it, also covered the Tyrannosaurus Rex with thick clothes. She also put a lot of charcoal in the stove and lifted the gap in the curtain a little bit. Only after doing all this did Yu Qingxiao close his eyes and sleep at ease. In this month, Yu Qingliang had not slept. Now that there was no one and no zombies in this place, it should be fine for her to sleep. I'll take a nap first. If the charcoal is gone or if you don't feel well, come tug at me. I'll wake up. Yu Qingliang gave the Tyrannosaurus Rex an explanation. The Tyrannosaurus Rex sniffed and lay down on the ground, looking very good. Only then did Yu Qingxiao close his eyes in peace. After the Tyrannosaurus Rex was pensioned off, he himself would be able to close his eyes with such peace of mind, right? I don't know when, but Yu Qingliang's hiking trip had turned into giving the Tyrannosaurus Rex an old age. It was true that no matter what kind of creature it was, it was easy to be influenced by the things around it. Forget it, as long as she never died, then she should raise the Tyrannosaurus Rex properly, and by the time she woke up from her sleep, it should have been dark, but there was no sign of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This startled her, and she immediately rolled out of the covers and got up. Without even having time to put on her shoes, she rushed out. She looked around and saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex tangling with a few zombie wolves just a few hundred meters away. This made Yu Qingliang slap her forehead. There were wolves in this grassland. After all, the herders did raise sheepdogs, not only to help look after the sheep, but also to guard against the wolves. But Yu Qingxiao also did not expect that he would really encounter wolves, or zombie wolves. Sure enough bringing live animals with you was just this bit inconvenient. But those zombie wolves were completely no match for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. They were taken care of by the Tyrannosaurus Rex in a matter of three strokes. But Yu Qingliang walked a little further and realized that there were already several corpses of zombie wolves. It was obvious that the Tyrannosaurus Rex had been fighting for quite a while. When the Tyrannosaurus Rex sensed Yu Qingxiao coming over, it immediately ran towards her happily. Yu Qingxiao immediately checked if there were any wounds on the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Only after checking to make sure that there were no injuries did Yu Qingxiao feel at ease. However, ordinary zombie animals were no match for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Fortunately, from midnight to dawn, the zombie wolf did not appear again. It wasn't known if it was because they were afraid of the Tyrannosaurus Rex or there were no more zombie wolves in the neighborhood. Yu Qingliang didn't care. She only cared if this puppy was injured. After the day dawned, Yu Qingxiao went out with the drone. She tried to connect the drone to her cell phone. After a few attempts, she finally succeeded. After that, she controlled the drone and took pictures of the surrounding scenery then transmitted them to her cell phone to save them. When she had recorded for a while, she retrieved the drone. Then she took out her cell phone and carefully looked at the picture on it. And sure enough, it was really beautiful. Even in the end times, the scenery was still beautiful. But Yu Qingxiao saw a few things that looked like large windmills from a distance in the video. This made Yu Qingxiao immediately react. She had seen a lot of videos before, especially the kind of healing videos with blue skies, white clouds, grass and windmills. It was really beautiful. Yu Qingxiao looked at the thick dark clouds in the sky, although there were no white clouds or blue sky, but she had super grass and Tyrannosaurus Rex, although she wasn't blue herself, the green one could top it off, it was barely enough to make up for the blue sky and white clouds, Yu Qingliang packed up her things and ran to the power generating windmill with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the closer they got to the windmill, Yu Qingxian felt that the windmill was really big, she was just like a country bumpkin, her mouth couldn't close when she saw that super big windmill, taking the camera, she frantically took pictures, and then also took selfies with the T. Rex, and then also took a lot of pictures of the T. Rex, the T. Rex was really smiley and especially photogenic. Standing in the tall grass, the grass around it was also about as tall as it was sitting. 
Just when Yu Qingliang was having a great time taking pictures, she suddenly realized that there was a snake head sticking out of her boot. The snake head was as big as her fist, but there was no body at the moment, only a head. Yu Qingxiao bent down and pulled off this snake head. She couldn't figure out for a moment why this zombie snake bit her, and on such a cold day, wouldn't it find a place to hibernate? But did the zombie snake need to hibernate? Yu Qingliang threw the snake's head into the distance and suddenly thought about why she was bitten again. Just now, she had gotten close to the Tyrannosaurus Rex, so she guessed that the snake had bitten over, but she had suddenly gotten close enough to bite on her boot. Yu Qingliang walked over and asked the Tyrannosaurus Rex to stand up and take a look. After the Tyrannosaurus got up, Yu Qingxiao really saw the body of the zombie snake. Yu Qingxiao also picked up its body and threw it in another direction. Dare to sneak up on my cute puppy. I'll make you die. After Yu Qingxiao threw the snake's body out, he then clapped his hands. After taking the picture, Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex made a big circle and headed south. At this point, she was going to X City. But Yu Qingxiao also didn't expect that she would meet Du Evening Ching. And even more so, the owner of that train was also there. Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex turned from the highway, and when they passed by a small town, they found that there was a highway in front of the town and a railroad behind it. And on the highway at that moment was an off-road with a special license plate. On the railroad was the green-headed train that Yu Qingxiao had seen once. Although Yu Qingxiao knew that Gu Evening Qing was in this place, she didn't expect to encounter it so suddenly. As soon as she saw that car, Yu Qingxiao immediately jumped off her sled and pulled the Tyrannosaurus Rex's ears and hid behind the house. But the quiet town, the sound of her sled coming over seemed to be what caught Gu Evening Qing's attention and theirs. All looked over towards this place. But Yu Qingliang was lucky. Suddenly a house collapsed and a black shadow rushed towards them. Yu Qingxiao recognized that this kind of zombie was the same kind of zombie that she had burned to death with the legs of a stool. However, this zombie also had a horn on its head. That zombie was so fast that it crashed into the train with a bang. That train was directly derailed by that zombie. When Yu Qingliang saw the force value of that zombie, she thought about how lucky she and the Tyrannosaurus Rex were. If that zombie had turned its head and punched her, she would have been directly slapped flat. No matter how powerful the Tyrannosaurus Rex was, it wasn't that fast or strong. It wasn't that she underestimated the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but the fighting strength of this zombie really shocked her. And in just an instant, that zombie grabbed a person from the train. Even Gu Evening Ching's vines hadn't been able to catch up with that zombie's speed. This was the first time Yu Qingliang had seen Gu Evening Ching's vines grab nothing. Of course, it could also be because she had seen less. It was just that Yu Qingliang didn't realize that not only was she surprised, it was when Qing Sheng and Pei Yuan who were both a bit surprised. It was also the first time they had seen Gu Evening Ching's vine grab empty. However, Gu Evening Ching wasn't surprised, and instead tried to find a way to save the others. She gave up on using her supernatural abilities and instead just pulled off the long knife on Wen Xingxing's back and rushed up. She had just come into contact with Zhou Xian herself, and although she couldn't afford to annoy him, Gu Evening Ching didn't care about Zhou Xian at this point, but wanted to save the people, because there were so many people here. This zombie didn't immediately go after that person, but the man was being grabbed by the zombie, and his entire body was scared. He was just about to call for help when Gu Evening Ching said to shut up. The man didn't dare to open his mouth when he heard that, and at this moment, both of his hands were imprisoned, so there was absolutely no way for him to do any resistance. As for the sentence of help, it was really a physiological reaction to subconsciously call out. And look at this zombie, it is that kind of special zombie, need level 4 alien to be able to fight against it. He wasn't an exalt, and he didn't know what Gu Evening Ching's level was. But now, Gu Evening Ching rushed up to save her, and Zhou Xian didn't freeze and immediately rushed up as well. But still, he needed to worry that his attack would hurt that person. The fight over there was in full swing, and Yu Qingliang was watching with great interest. She even took out her camera to record the scene. Although Yu Qingxiao probably knew how to kill this kind of zombie, there was no way for her to send a message to Gu Evening Ching. The words she wrote were unintelligible to humans as well. Although she had a tablet, the one she had had long since stopped turning on, it was completely useless. A cell phone was definitely out of the question for them. Yu Qingliang could only crouch to the side and watch as well. But her eyes were attracted to the sesame seed crackers again. He went upstairs and pulled out his sniper rifle, aiming it at the zombie. And Yu Qingliang watched as Little Biscuit confidently fired, even as the corners of his mouth hooked up slightly. This made Yu Qingxiao instantly brainstorm how happy the male lead would be after protecting the female lead thinking that the female lead would think he was handsome and thus like him as the male lead, but he wasn't the male lead, so naturally he didn't have a protagonist aura. Hey, after all, a strong female text is a strong female and a stronger male, or at the very least, a double strength. So the male lead's aura is not the least bit less than the female lead, 
So seeing that the bullet hit the zombie's forehead, but it didn't penetrate the zombie's skin, the bullet fell from the zombie's forehead, leaving only a small mark. Of course, this small mark recovered instantly. Even the sniper did not penetrate the zombie's skin. Yu Qingliang then thought that she actually wanted to use an axe to chop the zombie. She kinda admired herself at this point, that she could come up with such an unreliable idea. But since there was no way to break the defense, wouldn't it have to be dismantled from the inside? She did want to burn this zombie at that time. But at first, she didn't want to stuff the other side's mouth, she just wanted to light it on fire. But who let it grow such a big mouth? So Yu Qingliang subconsciously stuffed it into its mouth. But who would have thought that the body was its weakness? Obviously Gu Evening Ching also knew that ordinary external damage had no way to this zombie. So she was attacking this zombie in 360 degrees. It seemed to be trying to find this zombie's weakness. It was just that this zombie was too fast and there was no way to catch it. And this zombie didn't seem to be willing to tangle with Gu Evening Ching and the others. After all, the food had already arrived. There was no need to fight these experts. Thus in only an instant, the zombie left with the man. Although Yu Qingliang was some distance away, she still clearly saw the look of despair on the man's face. Everyone knew that this man was hopeless. Yu Qingxiao felt that the zombie's willingness to retreat was actually actually good for Gu Evening Ching and Zhou Xian and the others. But at this time, she didn't want to watch the fun. Letting the Tyrannosaurus Rex pull the sled to wait for her in the distance. She went to check on the man's condition. If she didn't see it, it would be fine. But Yu Qingliang saw his desperate expression. When the Tyrannosaurus looked at Yu Qingxian and didn't follow him, he drooped his ears and looked at Yu Qingxian. Don't worry, I know what's in my heart. I'll just go take a look and come over to you right away. Yu Qingxian comforted the Tyrannosaurus Rex. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex was still unwilling to go. Seeing that the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't want to go, Yu Qingxiao said, Fine, you can come with me, but you can't get within the range of the zombies. Got it? The Tyrannosaurus Rex immediately nodded. Yu Qingliang led the Tyrannosaurus Rex around. This zombie ran quite fast. The Tyrannosaurus Rex ran wildly for 10 minutes without catching up with this zombie. It wasn't until tens of kilometers later that Yu Qingxiao smelled the person's aroma. The person was still alive. Yu Qingxiao immediately told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to hide. This time, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was also obedient. It probably knew itself that the zombie was dangerous. Yu Qingxiao walked through a forest and went to a river then saw the zombie and the man under the bridge. At this time, that person had already been disemboweled by the zombie. Blood was foaming from his mouth. That walker heard the commotion and looked towards himself, but because he was also a walker, the zombie wasn't interested and turned back, and the man underneath it looked in her direction. He spat more blood from his mouth, his eyes staring at her, his lips wriggling as if he wanted to say something, but couldn't say anything anymore. As the aroma disappeared at the tip of Yu Qingxiao's nose, it proved that this person was dead. Yu Qingxiao actually didn't feel much about this person's death. She had done her best to run over. After all, she didn't know this person either. And even if she didn't come over, no one would blame her. It was just that when Yu Qingxiao saw that expression of despair, she suddenly thought of her own mom and dad. In the last moments of their lives, had they ever shown this kind of expression? Had they ever been in pain? Before she could regain her senses from this little bit of sadness, Yu Qingxian instantly smelled Gu Evening Qing's scent. She was coming after him. Yu Qingxiao didn't know how Gu Evening Ching knew that this zombie was in this place, but she had to run. Yu Qingxiao immediately had to go over the creek. The top of the creek was full of ice. She stumbled and barely ran across it, then tumbled down the river stalk, looking a bit lousy. But Yu Qingxiao didn't care. She looked around and moved behind a tree. In less than 10 minutes, Gu Wanqing appeared on the other side of the river. As for the surroundings, there was no one following. As soon as that zombie saw Gu Evening Ching coming, it subconsciously tried to escape. But at this moment, Gu Evening Ching looked like a completely different person. Her speed was much faster than before. She charged straight up, holding a very thin and thin knife in her hand. It looked as if it would break at any moment. Before that zombie could react, suddenly a few vines grabbed its legs. Obviously, that was because Gu Evening Ching had planted seeds on this zombie beforehand so that she could track it over. This was because she knew that it wouldn't be easy to catch this zombie with her speed. Then there was no choice but to think of another way. At this moment, Yu Qingliang reacted violently that Gu Evening Ching's disorganized and frantic attack earlier was just a blindfold. At that time, her purpose was to plant seeds on this zombie. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao couldn't help but touch himself from head to tail. Wouldn't he have been seated on himself as well? It was good that it wasn't. And she also cleaned her body regularly to change her clothes. So there shouldn't be such a thing on her. That zombie tried to escape but couldn't. Yu Qingliang put a BGM in her head for this zombie. You say you, trying to escape are destined to land on your feet. The zombie that had lost its speed, 
Gu Evening Cheng wasn't afraid of it running away. She went up with her knife and slashed. The thin, cicada-like knife cut through the zombie's body. But even then, there was only a small, shallow cut on this zombie. It had absolutely no effect on this zombie. Even the small cut was completely recovered in just over 10 seconds. If it was cut down to this extent, then this zombie would have escaped before Gu Evening Ching killed it. Yu Qinglian was really lucky when he thought that he had managed to hold that zombie back at that time. Two of the eight vines wrapped around this zombie's legs had already broken. Yu Qingliang looked at the broken vines and anxiously jumped behind the bushes, but she didn't dare to rush up to help. And just as Yu Qingxiao, a spectator, was anxious, that zombie suddenly knelt on the ground. The limbs began to twitch. That red, black and white tofu brain was flowing out of its mouth. This caused Yu Qingliang to take a few steps back in fear. Gu Evening Ching looked at the zombie lying on the ground that had stopped moving. A cold expression on her face. Although there's no way to cut off your head, but on this knife of mine, it has a strong poison, or a strong poison for zombies, as long as it hurts a small opening, your brain will also turn into a puddle of water flowing out along with the virus, Gu Evening Ching said to the corpse of the zombie, after saying this, she shook that long knife, and a weird purple color flashed on it, which was indeed beautiful, it was like the wings of a cicada, but Yu Qinglian looked at it with a chill, Gu Evening Ching actually had a poison to kill zombies? Then if the officials took an airplane and released it into the sky, wouldn't all the zombies die? Wouldn't they all die? When he thought of his brain coming out of his mouth and nose, Yu Qingliang couldn't stand the image, and by the looks of it, that zombie didn't die without pain. It was even struggling in pain. That meant that the zombie was in pain before it died. Gu Evening Cheng put away that knife before she pulled out a dagger and pried that zombie's head open, taking out a crystal core, taking out a bottle of water out of thin air. She rinsed that crystal core clean, and it disappeared back into her hands. Yu Qingliang instantly knew that Gu Evening Ching had space. It was just that she didn't know what was in this space of hers. Was it something that could be hoarded like others? Or was it a spirit spring space? Or was it that kind of technological space? It was the space that could take out all kinds of weapons. Although Yu Qingliang was curious, she didn't come up to ask Gu Evening Ching. After Gu Evening Ching packed up, she walked towards the man's body. As Yu Qingxiao wondered what Gu Evening Ching was going to do with the man's body, Gu Evening Ching suddenly took out a pistol and fired a supplementary shot at the corpse's temple. Obviously, it was to prevent him from turning into a zombie. But when Yu Qingliang looked at Gu Evening Ching's behavior, he couldn't help but touch his head. Gu Evening Ching took out her flare gun and fired a shot towards the sky. Not long after, when Qing Shang and Zhou Xian came over with them, Gu Evening Ching also moved away from the edge, allowing Zhou Xian to look at the man's body. Of course, she also talked about what had just happened. It was probably that she hadn't been able to save the person, and by the time she caught up, the person was already dead. Joe Xian also just said that it was his life. After the crowd hastily buried the man, Gu Evening Ching and the others went back. Presumably, they were chatting about some kind of deal. Yu Qingliang couldn't listen anymore. Anyway, all she could think about now was the fact that Gu Evening Ching had poison in her hands that could kill zombies. Yu Qingliang waited until Gu Evening Ching and the others had left, and after making sure that they wouldn't return, she headed towards the corpse of that zombie. The zombie hadn't turned into a pile of charcoal like the one she had unintentionally killed. It was just lying on the ground. But it was estimated that it would slowly decay later. Yu Qingliang looked at the zombie's severed head. She found that the brain inside had already flowed into water. Only when she walked over, the corpse of this zombie suddenly moved to grab her ankle. This scared Yu Qingliang so much that she gave it a kick on the spot. Seeing that the corpse of the zombie staggered as if it was going to get up. She was so scared that she touched her body everywhere, finally pulling out a plastic pocket and a lighter from her coat pocket. Inside the plastic pocket were tea, Rex snacks, but she didn't care. She just lit the plastic pocket and shoved it into the zombie's cracked head. Sure enough, the flesh and blood that looked like water was instantly ignited by the fire. The original zombie that was trying to get up turned into a pile of dust piled up on the ice. Because of the temperature, it made a small ice pit appear on the ice surface. It turned out that this kind of zombie wouldn't die even if its brains float out, presumably because it didn't have any bones or meat in its body, all of which were in this fluid form. Even if the crystal core is gone, it still has consciousness, right? Yu Qingliang thought that this zombie is so difficult to deal with, it can't even be killed with zombie poison. It seems that the zombie poison is not very successful. The person who develops the zombie poison has to work harder. At this time, Pei Yuan, who was sitting in the backseat of Wen Xingxing's driver, Sneezed fiercely. What? You know it's cold, right? I told you to wear two more pieces of clothing. Gu Evening Ching joked. Pei Yuan, however, picked up. It should be the wind reading me. Wen Qing Sheng. Neuropathy. Yu Qingxian stood on the river for a while, and for some reason, 
Yu Qingxian always felt that something was wrong when she looked at the small dirt bag that was buried down, so she went to find the Tyrannosaurus Rex first and told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to come along the river. She took out the engineer's shovel from the sled. Originally the shovel was in the trunk, but in the suitcase was that camera of hers, which couldn't stand the cold, and her two bouquets of flowers. Yu Qingxiao always used the fire to make the temperature almost 1 or 2 degrees, and then wrapped up the suitcase. In order to prevent any accidents, Yu Qingxian put the engineer shovel on the sled. The body that was buried by Gu Evening and Zhou Xian was dug up again by Yu Qingxiao. To say that before, this person's organs had indeed been eaten by that zombie sum, but now it looked as if it was crumbled and soft like tofu brain. The Tyrannosaurus Rex stood to the side alerting if anything would come over from the surroundings, although it didn't know why Yu Qingliang had plowed out a dead person but the master definitely had her reasons for doing so. Yu Qingxiao looked at the corpse. Although the softening wasn't fast, Yu Qingxiao knew that the corpse was slowly necrophiliacizing. Of course, Yu Qingliang waited on the side to see if this corpse would turn into a zombie. She waited from the day until the afternoon, and the corpse was only softening, not turning into a zombie. In other words, Gu Evening Cheng's mending had still had an effect. However, Yu Qingliang didn't completely leave the corpse alone, nor did she bury him back again. Instead, he directly took the lighter and lit the corpse up. Sure enough, the softened internal organs were like flammable materials that caught fire at the slightest point. Although it wasn't like the two zombies that were burned with only a little bit of something left. But looking at this fragmented body, Yu Qingliang also felt that this body would be useless even if it came to life. However, he thought that it wouldn't be able to come back to life. If only the limbs and half of the neck were left, Yu Qingliang would really have to call the police. Being a zombie couldn't be this perverted. How could other zombies survive with such a volume? Yu Qingxiao not only buried these limbs back, he even brought the Tyrannosaurus Rex to stomp that small mound solidly. She also moved a big stone to press on it, before she clapped her hands and left on the sled. This was a good finish for her. It was really hard work for her, doing a good deed without leaving a name. The Tyrannosaurus pulled her to find a small village before dark. The village looked pretty good though. It seemed to be well developed before the end times. Every home was a small three-story house. Yu Qingliang chose a courtyard with a gate that looked relatively solid and went over the fence to enter. Then he opened the gate and let the Tyrannosaurus Rex in. All in all, it was as if the owner of the house forgot to bring the key when he came home. Yu Qingliang took a look at the courtyard. There was a three-car garage in the yard, but only a small car was left. But look at the traces. This family should have had three cars. Two should have been driven out, but the gate was well locked. That is to say, when leaving, this household did not leave in a hurry. This could be inferred a little from the cleanliness and neatness of the house. However, Yu Qingliang felt as if he had skewered the station. String to the next door famous detective XX. The truth is always only one. Not. Yu Qingxiao pulled his brain back and added dog food to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. After that, he went back to the yard and dragged in a large iron pot. Seeing that this large iron pot was thick, it would not cause a fire when used to make a fire. Plus, the floor of this house was plastered with floor tiles so it really wasn't suitable to build a fire directly on it directly. So she moved a few stones to pat on the ground, and only then did she set up the cauldron and began to build a fire for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Actually, during the daytime, the temperature would indeed be a bit higher than at night. If the Tyrannosaurus Rex was moving, there was no need to build a fire at night. It was just that the Tyrannosaurus Rex needed a good night's sleep at night. So naturally, it needed a warm environment. Yu Qingliang looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex lying on the side of the pot, and she went up to the sofa. Although there was dust on it, Yu Qingxiao didn't care. Instead, she opened her phone and looked at the app. The numbers on it all changed, as did the number of people in each base. Some changed more, some changed less. Yu Qingliang didn't know what method was used to count the decrease in numbers. The increase was fine. As long as they were registered, it was fine. This someone out of the base, if they didn't come back according to the time they were supposed to come back, and then they were counted as dead? But this kind of counting was also too unreliable. There shouldn't be another reason yet. Yu Qingliang had several rechargeable batteries, plus the luggage's battery could also be charged. Since the suitcase didn't have to carry her around, it could charge her cell phone many times. Of course, there was also the drone and that camera whose electricity hadn't been consumed much yet. Perhaps for Yu Qingxiao, it was still convenient to take pictures and videos with her cell phone. Yu Qingxiao just flipped through the photo album to see the pictures she had taken along the way and would also look at the videos. Occasionally, she looked back at the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The sleeping Tyrannosaurus Rex was indeed very much like a big ball of cotton, and the two ears on that big fluffy head still moved from time to time, until the Tyrannosaurus Rex suddenly raised its ears. Yu Qingliang also looked out of the window vigilantly, on the floor-to-ceiling glass that led to the second floor, 
There were two bat-like zombies lying on the ground. Yu Qingliang had seen such zombies. It would wait for humans to attack when they were asleep and undefended. But she and the Tyrannosaurus Rex were the only ones in the house. She was a zombie and didn't have a crystal core in her head yet. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex was very strong. So she wasn't very worried. So against these two zombies, Yu Qingliang even made the fire in the pot a little brighter. And the flames leapt so high that the Tyrannosaurus Rex backed up several meters. At this time, the room was bright. But the two zombies lying on the glass were still lying on the glass. Yu Qingliang took out his camera, set it to night mode, and shot at the two zombies. It seemed that the flash of the camera stimulated the two zombies. And the two zombies, which looked like big bats, slapped the glass hard. Yu Qingliang was like someone was using her head as a drum. The Tyrannosaurus Rex couldn't take it anymore, so it bit Yu Qingxian's clothes and dragged her towards the door. Knowing what it meant, Yu Qingxiao opened the door for it. This door wasn't one of those doors that opened by pressing the handle, so it still needed to turn around to open it. That was why the Tyrannosaurus Rex had to let Yu Qingxiao open it. Come on, I'll watch you. Yu Qingxiao knew that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was going to go for a dry run, so he cheered it on. It was just that Yu Qingxiao thought that these two zombies could fly. And although the Tyrannosaurus Rex could jump high, there was no place for it to land outside. Not like those two zombies can stick to the wall or glass. And when a few flashes of lightning flashed, and the two zombies had their heads smashed by the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Yu Qingliang knew that his worry seemed to be a bit redundant. The Tyrannosaurus Rex only needed the crystal cores of the two zombies. However, it was the first time Yu Qingxiao had seen this kind of zombie that looked like a bat. So after the Tyrannosaurus Rex entered the house, she went out to look at the two zombies instead. After Yu Qingxiao grabbed the hand of one of the zombies and pulled it apart, she realized that its arm was attached to its body at the back. It was completely propped up by fleshy skin. It was connected to its arm and leg by this thin piece of fleshy skin. Yu Qingliang pulled the left side and then the right side. Finally remembered what this thing looked like. Like a flying squirrel. Yu Qingliang was like a curious child. Pulling these two zombies and observing them 360 degrees. He even went to look between the legs of these two zombies. Although Yu Qingxiao felt that he was a bit perverted. But these were all fodder ah. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao cheerfully went into the house to get his camera. Smiling like a lewd uncle. Especially after taking off the mask. The crack on the left side of his face made Yu Qingxiao seem like he was really laughing behind his ears. How to look how weird. And after the Tyrannosaurus Rex ate the two crystal cores. It looked through the glass at the way Yu Qingxiao was very interested in those two corpses and was very confused. The corpses were a source of energy for it. And could make it stronger and stronger. It was only interested in the crystal cores. It wasn't interested in creatures like the zombies themselves. Yu Qingliang finished taking the pictures before entering the house. Speaking of which, she had already taken pictures of many types of zombies. For example, low-level zombies, Shi Xing Yua, Ah Night, and that devouring zombie. This bad zombie and that kind of alienated zombie. But Yu Qingliang knew that in this world, there were definitely many more strange zombies. When she arrived in X City, Yu Qingxiao did not directly enter the city but went to that imperial tomb that she had always wanted to go to. That was the mausoleum of the number one person in the world. Of course, Yu Qingxiao did not hesitate to go there, but Yu Qingxiao was actually a bit worried. She was afraid that the officials would send someone to guard this imperial tomb. If she went there rashly, she would definitely be caught in the act. Mainly, Yu Qingxiao felt that those people might not shoot themselves to death. Instead, they would capture themselves for study. Although she didn't mind donating her life for her country, after all, she had signed the registration for donating her remains at the age of 25, and she was the one who held the memorial certificate of voluntary donation of remains in her hand. So being sent to the lab herself was definitely something she wasn't afraid of. But not yet. What she had to do wasn't done yet. Yu Qingliang sneakily approached with the Tyrannosaurus Rex towards the imperial tomb. Looking at the zombies around her, Yu Qingxiao was somewhat relieved. She was not afraid of zombies, but if there were no zombies, then she needed to be careful. Yu Qingliang was a bit puzzled. Why didn't they clean up the zombies in this kind of place? On second thought, the fact that there were many zombies was actually a kind of protection for this kind of place. If there were many zombies, no one would dare to approach. Yu Qingliang told the Tyrannosaurus Rex not to follow her. After all, if she went further, there would be more of those zombies. She straddled the camera, put on her backpack, and her cell phone was charged and held. Be good. I'll be back after a turn. You wait for me at the inn properly. Yu Qingliang arranged the Tyrannosaurus Rex in a super deluxe suite in a hotel. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was obedient. So Yu Qingxian nodded his head in satisfaction and gave the Tyrannosaurus Rex a wave when he closed the door. After closing the door, Yu Qingxian went downstairs and went over towards the imperial tomb. From here, 
It was only five to six hundred meters from the place where the imperial tomb was being visited, which wasn't far. At this time, Yu Qingxiao was still following the original procedure, lining up to check the ticket to enter the park. Yu Qingxiao was really happy, holding the camera from beginning to end. That kind of picture that was only seen in the video, when it was really shown in front of his eyes, that kind of feeling was completely different. It was completely different from seeing it through the screen. Even though Yu Qingxiao had known about this kind of thing from the very beginning, from the first time he went to play with the hot spring Lechuan, he had known about this kind of thing. But Yu Qingliang was at this point glad that she still had human memories and consciousness after becoming a zombie. Perhaps this was a chance that God had given her. Yu Qingliang played around and probably took thousands of pictures. When she returned to the hotel, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was sleeping on the bed and rushed over as soon as she heard her open the door. Yu Qingxiao looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex that rushed over, so she reached out and rubbed its big head. The Tyrannosaurus Rex also knew that with its size, Yu Qingxiao would definitely not be able to hold it up. So the Tyrannosaurus Rex was very measured. Even if it wanted to make out with itself, it wouldn't stand up and pounce on her. Back at the hotel, Yu Qingxiao fed the Tyrannosaurus Rex dog food. This kind of hotel was filled with wooden furniture. It was impossible for Yu Qingxiao to light a fire for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So he went to the next few rooms and carried all the quilts and blankets over. Luckily, there was no fire, which allowed the Tyrannosaurus Rex to spend the night peacefully. Early the next morning, Yu Qingliang looked out of the window and saw that it was actually snowing lightly. She took out her cell phone and looked at the time. It was already August. There were less than four months to go, and the end times would be a whole year old. Yu Qingxian flopped on her bed and didn't know how she was going to contact Shi Xingyu, telling him that she definitely wouldn't be able to return to Autumn Color Lake in September. Tell him not to go there and wait. However, she also felt that if she and the Tyrannosaurus Rex had gone faster, she would have been able to go to Autumn Color Lake in September as well, right? After thinking about it, Yu Qingliang still decided to go to Autumn Color Lake. After all, she had already promised Shi Xingyu. As for the scenery behind her, she could go around in the opposite direction. It didn't really matter. After Yu Qingxiao thought this way, she decided with a pat on the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head, Go, Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'll take you to see your brother. Yu Qingliang opened his mouth. According to seniority and age, Shi Xingyu was considered the Tyrannosaurus Rex's senior. After all, before meeting Tyrannosaurus Rex, it was Shi Xingyu, an old cow, who helped her pull her suitcase. The Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't know what a brother was either, but whatever Yu Qingxiao said was what she said. Therefore, during this period of time, Yu Qingxiao didn't stop taking pictures, but went straight to Autumn Color Lake. After 12 days of running around, Yu Qingxiao finally returned to her hometown again. However, she deliberately avoided the location of the border and went straight through the center. There were and are several bases on her home side. In addition to the southwestern base, there were two other bases. After all, it was a big tourist province, and there were a lot of tourists during the winter. It led to three bases being built in several provinces in their area. It was a good thing that most of her area was mountainous, and the highway was curvy. That's why Yu Qingliang did feel safe taking the mountain roads. By the time August 20th rolled around, Yu Qingxiao finally arrived at Autumn Color Lake. Eight months had passed since the last time, but at this time, the lake was still freezing, but there was no snow, and the surrounding trees were indeed starting to turn yellow, completely different from the last time they saw a white color. A few of the cars on the highway were rusted out, and no one had come to clean them up. The neighborhood was quiet, and there wasn't really much wildlife in the hills, just some pheasants and rabbits and whatnot. There are no large animals, there are no houses around not to mention no zombies. The lake was frozen, and the aquatic zombie animals could not get out. After Yu Qingliang made sure that the ice on the lake surface was strong, she let the Tyrannosaurus Rex pull her to run on the lake surface. What she didn't get to play last time, she finally got to play this time. It was just that Yu Qingxiao waited for nearly 10 days, but she still hadn't seen Shi Xingyu. She wondered if that brat had forgotten about the engagement. Thanks to her detour back, while thinking whether he had gone to challenge some alien and was killed by an alien. He would have turned into a corpse by now. Or maybe he lost a fight with another zombie king and got his head bashed in by another zombie. In short Yu Qingliang thought of all the possibilities that Shi Xingyu might have encountered. Although she was a little worried, she still looked heartless as she played every day. That was until she was pulling the Tyrannosaurus Rex and preparing for another round when she heard someone calling her. Yu Qingxiao. Yu Qingxiao turned around at the sound of his voice. And when she saw the other party, she was first stunned. And then she immediately waved her hand. Come on. Come on, just waiting for you. Although Shi Xingyu was missing half of his right hand, he was still alive. Shi Xingyu was a bit helpless. The zombies and humans were fighting to the death, and blood and flesh were flying between the zombies. 
but she was still having so much fun. In fact, Shi Xingyu thought that she wouldn't come. After all, with that speed of Yu Qingliang, she was probably still in the north at this moment. But looking at her sitting on the sled, she let that big white dog pull her over. The big white dog was not a zombie dog, but an alien dog. And this psychic dog was very strong. Although it looked cute on the surface, those eyes carried vigilance. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was wary of Shershingyu, and Shershingyu was also wary of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. After all, in both of their eyes, the other was their best tonic. However, due to Yu Qingxiao's presence, they had to lay down their heads and even shake hands to make friends. Yu Qingxiao looked at Shershingyu's half-empty hand. The wound had healed, but it did not grow back. I thought that zombies can grow back with broken hands and feet. After all, you all belong to the zombie king. Right? Yu Qingliang couldn't help but say as he got down from the sled and reached out to poke at Shi Xingyu's half-broken arm. Flesh and blood can grow back, but there's no way for bones to grow out of thin air. Shi Xingyu explained. Yu Qingliang nodded at his words, then added, Then if I take another animal's right hand and give it to you, will you be able to connect it? As soon as Shi Xingyu heard Yu Qingyan's words, he knew what she was thinking. At this moment, if he answered that he could, Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingxian would definitely take many right hands and even right paws for him to try. Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu with an expectant face, wanting to get the answer she wanted to hear. Shi Xingyu couldn't stand her blazing eyes, so he moved his gaze to the side. No, as a zombie, Shi Xingyu made a rare choice to learn how to lie from a human. Yu Qingxian saw Shi Xingyu's weak-hearted look and didn't poke him, although it was indeed bad for small children to lie. She also had to take into account the self-esteem of adolescent children. Children during this period of time had very high self-esteem. As an adult, she naturally had to be considerate. In that case, then you don't hurt, right? Yu Qingliang looked at his broken arm. The clothes on his body seemed to have changed again. A little thin. This hand should not have been chopped off, but yanked off. The wound couldn't be seen, but the clothes should have just been torn. It doesn't hurt. The zombie originally couldn't feel pain, so naturally it wouldn't hurt. Yu Qingliang sniffed and stopped asking leading Shi Xingyu to prepare to go ice skating. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex only pulled her and not Shi Xingyu, resulting in Shi Xingyu and the Tyrannosaurus Rex getting along for less than three minutes before they fought. And the one corpse and one dog didn't use their powers, so they just physically fought. The fight caused blood and dog hair to fly everywhere. While Yu Qingliang, who was the only one who could persuade the fight, was at this moment holding a camera and taking pictures from all angles. Although Shi Xingyu's skin and flesh were bitten off, they recovered instantly. It was true that as long as one didn't move to the bones, then the flesh and blood could recover quickly. As for the Tyrannosaurus Rex's fur was flying all over the place, and it wasn't clear if it was in its hair replacement period. In any case it didn't decrease even after a few pounds were ripped off by Shi Xingyu. On the contrary, it was getting hairier and hairier, waiting for a corpse of a dog to fight almost. Only then turned back to Yu Qingxian, and Yu Qingxian was already pulling the sled on the ice. At first, she was slowly dragging it along, but in the back, she was actually able to drag the sled on the ice and run, when she was almost acclimatized. Then she pulled and ran in front of Shi Xingyu and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. You guys sit on it. I'll pull it. Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxiao's eagerness to try, and froze. The Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't move either. This corpse and dog, rarely reached a consensus. In short, no matter what, they would not let Yu Qingxiao pull them. When Yu Qingxiao saw that both Xingyu and Tyrannosaurus Rex were unwilling to sit, he let them stand on the lake surface and took pictures of them with his camera. At night, Yu Qingxiao went to get some firewood and went to the underwater tunnel to light a fire. After the Tyrannosaurus Rex had eaten and drunk enough to fall asleep lying beside Yu Qingxian, Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu. Who did you fight with here? Yu Qingxiao asked curiously. It was always supposed to be not a human. Fought with a zombie king, which is why I lost an arm. Shi Xingyu replied. At this moment, both of his eyes were golden in color and it seemed that he had fully advanced to level 5. It also belonged to a king now. Then that zombie king. Yu Qingliang couldn't help but ask. Dead. Shi Xingyu said. This answer did not disappoint Yu Qingxiao's expectations. Bull. Yu Qingxiao gave him a thumbs up. The two zombies had a chat, and Yu Qingxiao even showed Shi Xingyu the photos and videos he had taken during this time. This zombie, it's terrifying. It's invulnerable to knives and guns. If you encounter it, it's very dangerous to go head on. I don't know if you're afraid of fire. In short, this kind of zombie is very afraid of fire, but there's no way to burn it from the outside. You have to burn it from the inside in order to burn it to death. Yu Qingliang was like a reliable teacher lecturing a child. In short, he was telling Shi Xingyu to be careful. He also told Shi Xingyu about the fact that Gu Evening Ching had poisons to kill zombies as well. 
Although these medicines might not work as absolutely on that kind of alienated zombies, they would definitely do harm. It was important to realize that those zombies were all zombies that had survived biochemical weapons and that kind of banned weapons, so there was a reason why they couldn't be killed. But they're kind of local unpolluted and purely natural zombies, they might be able to kill one at a time. Sure Xing Yu also watched carefully. Because of this information, ordinary zombies couldn't collect it. In this world, it was estimated that only Yu Qingxiao could dip both sides and get the most complete information. After Yu Qingxiao finished saying this, she opened her suitcase and took out the small bag. She placed three crystal fragments into Shi Xingyu's hands. This thing, I think it should be useful for zombies as well. I can't see a reason for it. Come and take a look, Yu Qingxiao explained. In fact, Yu Qingxiao knew that Shi Xingyu definitely knew what this crystal actually did, because it could be seen from the expression on Shi Xingyu's face. When Shi Xingyu had been starving for a month and suddenly smelled a living thing he had never craved so much, even a will as strong as his couldn't completely suppress that fervor. Yu Qingxiao looked at his reaction and knew that what Ai Yi was looking for was definitely a crystal. Where did you find it? Shi Xingyu asked her. Picked it up. Just found it in that neighborhood in the north when I met you. Yu Qingliang didn't hide it from Shi Xingyu, because she just thought that the crystal was beautiful and that it had something to do with her parents' death, but it wasn't completely affected by this energy. Yu Qingxiao had thought that Shi Xingyu would take away the three crystal fragments or just eat them, but he still returned the crystal fragments to Yu Qingxian, no matter what kind of zombie it is. You should not give it this kind of thing, remember? Although it was true that Yu Qingxiao should be able to suppress those high-level zombies, he couldn't help that many zombies would be desperate, because Yu Qingxiao wasn't going to make a move against them, so they wouldn't intentionally hurt Yu Qingxiao either, but would instead take these crystal fragments from her hands. Yu Qingxiao was a bit surprised when she heard this and only collected two shards back, the remaining one shard was left for Shi Xingyu. After all, she had many pieces, there was no telling where the few remaining crystal pits were. At that time, if there were any left, she would pick up a few more pieces. When Xingyu looked at the fragment in her hand, she could only accept it and told her about the effects of this crystal on zombies. To say that the blood and flesh of living things were the nutrients that supported the zombies to live. Then the crystal core is what is needed to allow the zombie to advance. This crystal, on the other hand, was something that could completely change them. In short, as long as they were zombies, they would want this kind of thing badly. As for the exact reason. Sure Xing Yu couldn't say. In short, it was just very much needed. After Yu Qingliang heard Sure Xing Yu's words, he thought of what Ai Yi had said that there was something in that base that attracted him. Now through Sure Xing Yu's words, Yu Qingliang was completely certain. The thing that Ai Yi wanted was definitely this kind of crystal core. As for why exactly, neither Sure Xing Yu nor Ai Yi knew. It seemed like it should be instinct that drove them to find this crystal. But how Yu Qingliang looked at it, this crystal was the culprit that caused the end times. If there was energy in this crystal, then any creature infected with the virus would mutate, like these plants and trees, or all kinds of animals. The next day, Yu Qingliang still went to find an arm for Shi Xingyu. There were no zombies in the neighborhood, so it was impossible to find a suitable arm, and the normal zombie arms were too fragile for Shi Xingyu. It was no wonder that Shi Xingyu didn't go and grab an arm for himself. You killed that zombie, so why don't you take its arm and attach it? Yu Qingliang was a little curious. Since that zombie could rip off his arm, the other party wasn't weak either, so it didn't matter if he took it over and put it on. But Shi Xingyu's expression that was enough to eat shit made Yu Qingxiao know that there should be something unspeakable between Shi Xingyu and that zombie, right? As for what it was, Yu Qingxiao didn't ask much, give the child some face. It turned out that zombies could be nasty with each other. Yu Qingxiao took out his cell phone and called the Tyrannosaurus Rex over as well. So the three of them, together, took a picture together. This cold air will last for at least three months. Although two months have passed now, I don't know how long it's going to last, and the humans won't go out of the base again. So even if you lead the zombies to attack the base, there's no way to break the city. Right. So where are we going to go next? After Yu Qingliang finished taking pictures, she started to pack up her things, and then she couldn't help but ask Shi Xingyu. The things she promised Shi Xingyu last year had already been done now, so she was a little curious about where Shi Xingyu was going next. Nowadays. If humans don't leave the base, then the zombies will kill each other. This broken arm of Shi Xingyu was the best proof, but Shi Xingyu didn't say anything as he listened to Yu Qingxian's words. He didn't know where to go either. Wherever he could find living things, then he would go there. After all, his purpose was only to become stronger. When Yu Qingxiao saw that Shi Xingyu didn't say anything, he didn't force him. Then, the Tyrannosaurus Rex and I will leave first. If there is a chance, I will see you later law. Yu Qingliang got on the sled and waved at Shi Xingyu. It wasn't appropriate to keep letting Shi Xingyu follow him. Shi Xingyu didn't move either and just stood in place. 
It was only after Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex left that he disappeared in a flash. Yu Qingxiao didn't have the idea of giving up Shi Xingyu. After all, he was a zombie and he had his own thoughts. Moreover, he had instilled a lot of human thoughts in him. As long as he wasn't stupid, even if the zombies did become extinct in the future, he would probably be able to hide and live in the human world. He didn't have to worry about him at all. Thinking like this, Yu Qingliang stopped worrying. After that, she let the Tyrannosaurus Rex head towards the canyon. Originally, she wanted to go around in a circle and finally return to Autumn Color Lake. Then she could close her eyes in peace. Forget it, let's go see the scenery first. Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex went along that kind of mountain highway. This kind of highway was dangerous once winter came. After all, the surface would be frozen. Although a lot of highways were built later, this kind of dangerous plague mountain highway was still traveled by people. After all, many car owners wouldn't be willing to spend those tolls. The reason why Yu Qingxiao chose to take this kind of disc mountain highway was naturally because he wanted to see the scenery. At this moment, Yu Qingxiao was heading west. Going past this place would pass through canyons snowy mountains, and then the plateau, which was also the pure land she wanted to go to. Yu Qingxiao took out the map and set the current route, now taking a piece of mountain highway, then the hanging wall highway, then all the way to the west area. See the canyon, see the snowy mountains. Yu Qingxiao didn't have a boat ah, otherwise she would have wanted to see the glacier. I don't know if the glacier is still there. Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex went up the mountain highway, and around them were high mountains. Those mountains at this time got trees that had grown like crazy after half a year. Trees that might have been a few meters or 10 meters originally now look dozens of meters tall. It was estimated that many trees could break records. Yu Qingliang got down from the sled and took her camera to take pictures of those trees. And as she walked to the side of the highway, she realized that there was actually a road in this place. She asked the Tyrannosaurus Rex to wait for her on the highway while she followed the path entwined with tree vines towards the inside. Her movements were light. And when she came across branches and vines, she climbed over or crossed them. Almost a few hundred meters away from this highway, a small village was surprisingly covered by trees. There were no zombies in the village, and the green mossy vines and tree roots spread. It gave this small village an eerie feeling, but it was beautiful. And there were a few better looking houses in the village, and on the balcony of that house, there was a huge bird's nest. Yu Qingxiao carefully took a few pictures and turned off the sound flash and everything. However, Yu Qingxiao didn't get too close. Climbing over a tree root that was almost half a meter thick, Yu Qingxiao saw a feather at her feet. It was a peacock feather that looked almost twice as long as her height. It looked like it should be a tail feather. After Yu Qingxiao picked it up, she heard that sound of wings flapping the air. She immediately put the feather on her head and tried to cover her breath as much as possible. After a few minutes, a huge big bird fell down from the air. When Yu Qingliang took a look at the large bird, it was actually a super large peacock. It looked like it was estimated to be as big as 3 or 4 meters and that wasn't even adding the tail feathers, because when it landed on the house, it surprisingly looked like the house next to it was surprisingly a bit small, and there was movement in the woods, Yu Qingliang dared not move even more, a grey peacock also came out of the woods, it was a bit smaller than the male peacock just now and did not have very long tail feathers, it meant that it was a female peacock, what was in that nest, was it a peacock egg, or a baby peacock, Yu Qingliang also didn't expect that he would encounter a mutated peacock couple, and it was also so big, at this time, she was almost a hundred meters away from the peacock couple. After she took out her camera and took a few more pictures and recorded a video, she tiptoed out carrying that feather. It was true that as soon as humans withdrew from nature, this endangered national treasure had begun to reproduce on its own. It's really congratulatory. And having mutated, they are naturally more capable of protecting themselves than before. They will take that house as their nest, probably also think that the house has not been destroyed by those tree roots so it can be regarded as a very safe place. Indeed, houses were supposed to be shelters for humans. Yu Qingliang came out from the forest. She looked at the peacock tail feathers in her hand and thought about it. She couldn't take it away. If she took it away and it landed somewhere and was found by humans, then it would be a danger to these animals. Even in the end times, people who wanted to enjoy it abounded. If someone looked like this mutant peacock's feathers, then what? After thinking about it, Yu Qingliang put the camera down and asked the Tyrannosaurus Rex to wait for her a little longer while she returned the feathers. When she came out, she also pulled those tree branches tightly. She also took an engineer's shovel and dug up the little bit that looked like pavement, so that even if someone passed by, they wouldn't think there was anything wrong with this place. It was a good thing that the road in this place was all lifted up by the roots of the trees, so it was good to make it look the same as the side. However, this kind of place, there were no humans coming, right? After Yu Qingliang finished doing this, it was getting late. She looked at the sky. There was definitely no way to find a house to live in tonight. 
There were a lot of trees in this place nowadays, and people in the countryside love to plant fruit trees in front of and behind their houses, so these trees had surrounded the entire village. Yu Qingliang found a place and used the engineer shovel and axe to open up a small area to find tree branches to light a fire. These branches were frozen on, a little fire that's smoky. Yu Qingxiao felt a little funny when she looked at the smoke coming out from the top of the bushes, but she still picked up her camera and took a picture. Only then did she pour dog food for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. She looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex's food storage and estimated that it wouldn't last 3 to 5 days. Gotta make a trip to the city, and the batteries in the suitcase weren't getting much charge. It was indeed time to find a generator to recharge it. Yu Qingliang watched the Tyrannosaurus Rex eat the dog food, so she took out the map to look over the surrounding cities. One was more than 50 kilometers behind her, but folding back was definitely not an option. One was more than 100 kilometers ahead. It was a city in a canyon, and there was only one highway out of this place. For some reason, Yu Qingliang looked at this city on the map and felt a hint of despair, because this city was built along the canyon, with rivers and cliffs on one side. There was only one highway running through the entire city. The city wasn't big, with a population of less than 600, 000 people. But really, the road in this kind of place was already dangerous. If the zombie virus happened, once there was a car accident, then it would be completely impossible to escape. Yu Qingliang was really worried about the situation of this city. It had been almost a year since the end of the world. There wouldn't be any survivors in this city. Would there? Yu Qingliang thought about it and decided to go to this city in the canyon more than a hundred kilometers, with the speed of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it could actually make it in a day, but right now, its dog food would last at least three days, so there was no need to be in such a hurry, Yu Qingliang thought so, but she really never thought that there were actually survivors in this place, seemingly because of the fire she had lit, a car came over in her direction with a heavy pressure on the road, Yu Qingliang's eyes looked towards the road, she was only about ten meters away from the road, and the sled could not be dragged in, so she let it be placed at the roadside, even though there wouldn't be any cars coming on this kind of road, Yu Qingxiao still pulled the sled to the side as much as possible, so when that car stopped, Yu Qingxiao didn't even think about it, surprisingly, there were two people coming towards her place, but luckily, the other party saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex's presence and didn't come any closer, is it a survivor, why are you alone, do you want to go to our shelter to rest, the one who opened her mouth to inquire about Yu Qingliang was a woman whose voice should not sound too big, her whole body was dressed thickly, and her face was wrapped so that only a pair of eyes were exposed. Yu Qingxiao was of course unable to open her mouth, so she shrunk her hand into the down jacket and waved her hand at the woman and the people next to her, then lowered her head again as if she was roasting a fire. She put her mask back on when she heard the car. The hat on her down jacket was also pulled up and put on, plus the night was also dark, so the other person couldn't see her face clearly. The man saw Yu Qingliang waving his hand, and also saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex's formidable appearance so he didn't say anything else, it just opened its mouth and said, since you're going to stay here, be careful, here are two smoke bombs, keep them, there are mutated mountain monkeys in this neighborhood that eat people, be careful, after saying this, the man even took the two smoke grenades out of his bag and placed them on the ground, and Yu Qingliang completely ignored those two people besides waving his hand to reject them, those two people's Mandarin carried a strong accent, and they were locals once they heard it, obviously, that vehicle was also modified, there were still three people in the car who didn't come down, and one of them was holding a gun in his hand. It seemed to be on guard against the Tyrannosaurus Rex as well. All in all Yu Qingliang's encounter with the humans this time also ended safely in the other party's politeness and courtesy. The car drove out for some distance before one of the people in the backseat of the car asked in dialect, What are you calling this person for? Surprisingly a person in the wild also dare to light a fire, really not afraid of death. This mountain are the kind of mountain monkeys, and mutant animals zombie animals also not afraid of being eaten, really a little common sense is not, while sitting in the passenger side of the woman but a light laugh to appease him, do not say so, dare a person out of not dead, are some ability, now this kind of post-apocalyptic, is not rely on luck can be a live down, you did not see that person beside the big dog, powerful very much, then a few people said a few words and started to talk about the harvest this time, Yu Qingliang naturally heard them speak, but couldn't understand a single word, although she was from this province, but there were so many dialects in the entire south, one might not even be able to understand what they were saying from a village away, but Yu Qingliang didn't care, it seemed that there was indeed a refuge in this place, and there were far more survivors in the entire country than the string of numbers on her cell phone, but Yu Qingxiao was more concerned about the mountain monkeys those people were talking about, what was a mountain monkey, Yu Qingxiao inexplicably thought of a certain monkey on a certain mountain, but obviously, 
Yu Qingxiao knew that the mountain monkeys in that woman's mouth were definitely not as simple as mutated monkeys. Yu Qingxiao made sure that those people were gone before she went to look at those two smoke bombs. She touched them with the engineer's shovel to make sure that they wouldn't suddenly explode. And only then did she reach out and pick them up. It was indeed two smoke bombs. There wasn't any trap. This kind of smoke bomb was for him to use as a defense against mountain monkeys. In other words, mountain monkeys relied on their eyesight to distinguish their prey? Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang looked at the pile of fire in front of him. He wouldn't see the mountain monkeys as soon as he turned his head, right? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian turned her head violently, but there was nothing unusual in the woods behind her. She looked up into the trees again. Mountain monkeys must have the characteristics of monkeys to be named mountain monkeys, and it was still a primate, right? Like humans, orangutans, baboons, or apes or something like that. And as soon as Yu Qingliang raised his gaze, he was indeed met with a pair of red eyes. It was covered in black hair, but one could barely tell that this was once a human. So this was the mountain monkey. Yu Qingliang saw that mountain monkey hanging on the tree staring at himself and the Tyrannosaurus Rex vigilantly, and did not attack rashly. So that meant it was a high-level zombie. She reached out and grabbed her camera and just pressed the shutter at it. What a way to speak of the devil. Looking at the mountain monkey it should be a zombie resistant to cold. That's why it grows a layer of black hair on the surface of its body to resist the cold. But the overall long and thin, then the average monkey is mostly, just from the body type can distinguish that this is indeed human. It was just too ugly. Surely no hair is not good looking, but the whole body is hairy look also strange let a person feel that the value of the san. Of course, the ugliest of all was that devouring zombie. Yu Qingliang stared at that mountain monkey, so she picked up the smoke bomb next to it. She looked around and didn't see a fuse or anything. Although she had paid to go target shooting, she hadn't tried anything like this ah. She felt that if she did use this smoke bomb, not only would that mountain monkey be invisible, but herself and the Tyrannosaurus Rex would also be invisible. After all, other people used smoke bombs to escape, but she and the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't need to escape. Therefore Yu Qingxiao grabbed one of the smoke bombs and threw it towards that mountain monkey's head. Of course, Yu Qingxiao originally didn't think she could hit the mountain monkey. However, the mountain monkey was indeed smashed down from the tree by one of her smoke bombs. With a bang, the mountain monkey fell to the ground. Yu Qingliang looked at the mountain monkey that fell to the ground and then looked at her own hand. Although at first, the coach said that her accuracy was very high and she had a talent for shooting. She was even asked if she wanted to go to a competition or something. But Yu Qingliang was only preparing for writing an essay at that time. So how could she possibly go to a competition? So she also didn't think that she could hit the mountain monkey even by throwing smoke bombs. And the mountain monkey lying on the ground quickly stood up. At this moment, the mountain monkey's guard moved from the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body to Yu Qingliang's body. It barely sensed that there was another zombie beside this big dog. The mountain monkey stared at Yu Qingxiao for a while before it saw Yu Qingxiao picking up another smoke bomb and was about to throw it towards it again. This made the mountain monkey startled and immediately turned around and ran. Not to mention the fact that the dog could not necessarily be killed by itself. The zombie next to it was not something it could mess with. Yu Qingliang looked at the mountain monkey and ran away without looking back, and was a bit puzzled. It wasn't so bad that he was scared by this smoke bomb. He hadn't even said a few words to it. Forget it, it looked just like a savage, and it didn't really have to be able to communicate. After all, there is only one type of intelligent zombie that can communicate with itself, and intelligent zombies all had one thing in common. That was that they looked like humans, except for the eyes to be able to differentiate. They can even speak human language. So this kind of mountain monkey is definitely not an intelligent zombie. Not being an intelligent zombie, Yu Qingliang could only understand what they said, but could not communicate. It was just like those zombies that were wandering around. All they could say was I'm hungry, give me something to eat. Of course, it was also possible that some zombies that were obsessed with something in their lifetime would chant with their mouths, and these were unconscious, regrets left over from their time as humans. Yu Qingliang didn't go after the mountain monkey and just picked up the smoke bomb. Since this mountain monkey had left, it shouldn't be coming back. Yu Qingxiao told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to rest while she kept watch. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was very good and fell asleep by the fire. As for Yu Qingxiao, she took out her camera and enlarged the mountain monkey's photo. The expensive camera was good. Even at night, it could still take a clear picture of the mountain monkey. The mountain monkey's teeth were very long, a bit like a mandrill. However, behind the face with black hair, it could still be seen clearly as a human face, and it looked pretty good. But this kind of appearance did make Yu Qingxiao feel like her sweaty hairs were standing up. But when she pulled back her sleeve to look, it didn't. It was just her illusion. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao turned off the camera and put her hand in her pocket. As a result, she felt a card in her clothes pocket. She pulled it out and realized that it was Shi Xingyu's student card. 
It still had blood stains on it. This made Yu Qingliang a bit surprised. She thought that the card had long since fallen off. Although when she helped Shi Xingyu change his clothes, she would help him stuff this card into the pocket of his clothes. But how could Yu Qingxian not expect that this card would fall into her pocket? It was probably stuffed into her pocket by Shi Xingyu when they took pictures together. But this was the only thing he kept on him that could prove his identity. And it was surprising that he gave it to himself. Yu Qingliang looked at this student card. So she put it away and put it in her backpack. Forget it. Just consider it as a gift from Shi Xingyu to himself. After all, this was the only thing in his possession that was close to a human. The next morning before dawn, the Tyrannosaurus Rex woke up to go pee. The Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't run far either. So Yu Qingliang gathered all of its blankets and cushions next to it. She had anticipated before that it might sleep out in the wilderness. So Yu Qingxiao had gotten it a pad and a blanket. Anyway, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was pulling itself, and it wasn't letting her carry it. Of course Yu Qingxiao wanted to make the tea. Rex's living environment a little better. She collected her things and the Tyrannosaurus came over. Yu Qingxiao used an engineer shovel to dig up some dirt to bury the fire. Only then did they set off. The marks that the car had crushed last night were frozen with a layer of ice at this time. Looking at the strange wheel marks, Yu Qingxiao took out his cell phone and took a few shots. This was also a trace of strong human life. Further on, Yu Qingxiao felt that clouds had risen in this mountain. Yu Qingxiao told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to slow down a bit. Don't take her over the cliff. Although it was mist, when Yu Qingxiao reached out to touch it, he could still feel the small ice crystals. This made Yu Qingxiao a little worried about the Tyrannosaurus Rex, because these small ice crystals were actually floating in the air. No, like piled up in the air. It was only because this place had the wind coming up from below the canyon that made these small ice crystals float in the air. Yu Qingliang looked at these small floating ice crystals and also took out her camera to capture the images. Those small ice crystals. She just lightly flapped her hand and these small ice crystals scrambled away. When Yu Qingliang felt some fun, later on, instead of taking pictures, she also started to play with the little ice crystals. However, Yu Qingxiao still reached out and touched the Tyrannosaurus Rex's tail hair. At this time, the upper layer was already a bit hard. However, the hairs underneath were still soft, unlike the previous appearance in the north when it was completely frozen. After all, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was soaked to the skin at that time, and freezing like that would definitely be life-threatening. Moreover, she was also observing the Tyrannosaurus Rex's condition and realized that it didn't have any discomfort. That day was spent in a small village. This small village was on a half-mountain slope, and this mountainous highway divided the village into upper and lower halves. Yu Qingliang thought about it and headed up. If there were really people, then she could also run. It was best to find a place with a tight gate. Of course, in the end, Yu Qingxiao just found an embroidered pillow, because that wooden gate looked worn out. It was an old house that she hadn't seen before. Naturally, it made Yu Qingxiao look at it with glowing eyes. Even though she had been to her grandparents' house when she was young, she had never seen a house like this before. An old tile house with a large stone mill in the yard, and there were also compartments on the east and west sides and on the east side of the hall was the kitchen with an old table, and a fire pit. There was no sofa, just a couple of chairs made of bamboo. It looked very old. The chairs were yellow and yellow, but they looked well loved and cared for, and many of the corners were brightly worn. Yu Qingliang subconsciously looked towards the doorway and saw the broom. When she was little, the broom in her grandfather's house was also placed behind the door. She took the broom and swept the floor clean, which led her to take out the Tyrannosaurus Rex's mat and blanket then took wet and carried over a large pile of firewood that someone had cut out and saved for the winter and started the fire. As for the owner of this old house, he wasn't in the house. I don't know if he fled or passed away a long time ago. Yu Qingliang took the camera and went out for a round. He found that the west side of the old house was a pigsty, but there was nothing inside. There were some crop poles piled up. The east side was a firewood room, which contained a lot of corn and firewood, all neatly stacked. It looked like before the end of the world. This place should have been inhabited. Yu Qingliang turned his head to look at the second floor of this old house, so he entered the house and prepared to go to the second floor. At this moment, the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't sit down or lie down, but stood at the edge of the fire and prepared to dry himself out before lying down on the mat. This way it wouldn't dirty the mat and blanket. Yu Qingxiao didn't say anything when she saw it like this, although she felt that these things could be changed at any time. It didn't cost any money anyway, but the Tyrannosaurus Rex cherished them. Yu Qingxiao looked at the staircase in front of her. It was a wooden staircase and looked a bit old. It creaked when stepping on it. Going up to the second floor. The floor was also wooden. The stairs came up from the left. And towards the back was a room. While towards the front was a living room-like area. She walked over and found that this place held an offering table. There was also an incense burner on the offering table. 
which was filled with burnt-out sticks of incense ash that looked to be a few years old. On top of it, there was a red paper offering of the Heaven and Earth Kingdom's pro-teacher position. There were also couplets on both sides. As for the posters of that leader, and the portrait of the founding ceremony, they were placed next to it. It was just something that would be found in a very traditional old-fashioned building. Yu Qingxiao picked up his camera and took a picture. This kind of thing Yu Qingxiao had also seen at his grandfather's house when he was small, and then slowly grew up. He hadn't seen it again. After her grandparents passed away and the old house was developed and demolished, these memories also faded out of her mind. But how could she have imagined that because of her fondness for the wooden door and the old house, the memories buried deep in her heart would suddenly revive? Things that had originally faded out from young people's memories. And then after the impact of the end of the world, it was estimated that not many people would remember these things in the future. After Yu Qingliang took a few pictures, he switched to recording mode. He started recording from the second floor and then walked to the window on the second floor. This window was facing the opposite side of the mountain. At this time, the frosty fog had cleared up a bit, so the mountain across the street was hidden, and the houses in this village were also staggered from high to low. Yu Qingliang knew that there was a highway below the village, built along the river. After recording, the camera started to run out of power. She immediately saved the video and turned the camera off. This time the camera was completely out of power. There wasn't much power left in the cell phone either. She stood at the window for a while. The mountain wind blew over. Not that she could feel the cold. But this wind should be cold. She left the door to her room open. Don't freeze the fire roasting Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yu Qingxiao then turned around and went downstairs. As for the two rooms, Yu Qingxiao only glanced at them slightly and didn't go in. She went downstairs and immediately went to close the door of the room. Only then did she go and reach out to touch the Tyrannosaurus Rex's fur. There were no water stains on her hand. It should be dry. She brought the Tyrannosaurus Rex's dog bowl and water, fed it some dog food, and thawed the frozen water. Yu Qingxian told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to lie down and sleep when it was done eating, and if it wanted to go to the bathroom, it should go farther away, and the house would be fine. In fact, Yu Qingxian was often worried that the Tyrannosaurus Rex would freeze himself when he peed. That kind of image appeared in Yu Qingxiao's mind, making her feel funny. But thinking so, Yu Qingxiao put her hands in her pockets again and went up the stairs with a lurch. The room on the second floor she hadn't gone in. Originally, she thought that there were two rooms, but realized that there was another room behind the supply desk. Yu Qingxiao pushed open the room next to the stairs. There were many posters plastered above the room. Those were all posters from TV dramas that were decades old. Yu Qingxiao had also seen such dramas and many times she felt that her mom and dad ate well. The handsome beauties in the past, those were really handsome beauties. Since this room was plastered with this kind of pictorials, as well as a desk and an old-fashioned desk lamp, it meant that this room should be a younger room, like someone around the same age as one's mom and dad. Although it hadn't been inhabited for a long time, the room was still maintained as it was when the original owner lived there. Yu Qingxiao walked over to the desk and opened the drawer, seeing a notebook and a photo album inside. Yu Qingxiao looked at the notebook and the photo album, so he looked around. Excuse me, I'm going to open it. After saying this, Yu Qingxiao opened the notebook. The font was very elegant. It should be a girl. According to her age, she should be called Auntie herself. Although reading someone else's diary was indeed a very immoral thing, Yu Qingxiao still opened the other person's diary. After all, in his parents' time, there really weren't many families that could send their children to school. So for this aunt to be able to keep a diary and write beautifully, her diploma was bound to be low. It was really rare for such a family to send their daughter to school. It's just that this diary stopped nearly 30 years ago. It was the time of the diary owner's entrance examination. Her grades were good. It was a prestigious university. But the diary was not written again for the day afterward. Yu Qingliang put down the diary and then flipped through the photo album. It was found to be all some photos of this aunt. Every year there would be one. And the photos were up to when she was 18. And there were no more behind her. Yu Qingliang looked at the photos in the diary and had a bad guess in her heart, but she didn't think down. Instead she went out of the room and went to another room. The room across from this staircase should be a guest room, and there wasn't much in it. It wasn't until Yu Qingliang pushed open the third room that a body was lying right where the doorway was. It was even blocked when she pushed the door. She could only look inside through a crack in the door. From the height of the corpse and the clothes and the flowery white hair, Yu Qingxiao could tell that it was an old woman. The floor was covered in black marks and the flesh and blood on her body was gone. Only a skeleton remained. Yu Qingxiao stood in the doorway and didn't know whether to go in or out, but she still squeezed into the room. The room was not big, and there were three black and white photos hanging on the wall. A very young girl, a middle-aged looking man, and an older man. At this point, Yu Qingliang knew that this old woman was the last person in this family. 
After she finished looking at the photos, she turned around and went to the closet to rummage through the clothes. Sure enough, the last photos had been taken, and it was impossible not to prepare the birthday clothes, although the timing was a bit off. Yu Qingxiao still helped the old woman change her clothes and then carried her remains downstairs. It was just that she didn't know where the old woman's family's ancestral grave was. It was only after the pit was dug that she realized it. Yu Qingxian could only go back upstairs and take all the pictures of her family of three and bury them together with the old woman. Although I didn't bury your family of three together, I've done my best. Yu Qingxiao looked at the small mound of graves that she buried up before saying, After burying the people, Yu Qingxian went to brush the ice flakes from the leaves and held them back to the house. Once roasted by the fire, those ice chips melted into water, and her hands were washed clean just like that, and she didn't get anything on her. She was very careful. The Tyrannosaurus Rex even came up to her and sniffed. It seemed to smell like something, but it didn't find it particularly offensive. Still, Yu Qingliang got up and went out for a while to blow off some steam, and she didn't go inside until it was completely dark for a while. After spending the night in this small village, early the next morning Yu Qingxian continued on. According to the speed of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, she should be able to reach that city tonight. She barely charged her cell phone a little, but it shouldn't last long. Luckily, the next road was all downhill, and didn't even need the Tyrannosaurus Rex to pull the sled, which could slide down. When she arrived at the edge of the city, Yu Qingliang saw many barricades, there were even a lot of zombie corpses behind the barricades. On the road behind, the cars were piled up. Sure enough if she wanted to go to the city from this road, then she would have to give up the sled. But Yu Qingliang had used this sled for a long time now, and was a little reluctant to give it up. After all, it was very useful and could hold a lot of things. Most importantly, there were quite a few humans in this neighborhood, and it felt quite close to her. Although Yu Qingxiao knew that there were people in this neighborhood, close to her, when she suddenly heard the other party's voice, Yu Qingxiao was still startled. The other party also sensed that Yu Qingxian was shivering, so she hurriedly apologized. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. We met two days ago, remember? As soon as Yu Qingxiao heard this voice, she knew that it was the woman who gave her the smoke bomb. Listening to the voice was slightly hoarse but it should be about the same age as herself, or a few years older. She recognized this person's smell. Kind of smelled like pine. The road in front of us can't be crossed. Almost more than 10 kilometers are all cars. The roadblock in this area is made by us. There aren't many zombies in this vicinity. Except for the harassment of mountain monkeys. Everything is fine. Do you need to go to our shelter to stay for the night? The woman saw that the person in front of her even slowly moved behind the big white dog, and her voice was also a little smaller. She seemed to realize something. Then she spoke again. Don't worry, we have a lot of rooms over there. We can leave a separate household out for you. And if you want to go to the city, there are paths upwards. Yu Qingliang really had no way to deal with the other party's good intentions and stood behind the Tyrannosaurus Rex scratching her ears. But she just couldn't say half a word. The woman seemed to be very good at getting along with people who were not talkative or even talkative. She turned around and walked towards the front, even saying to herself, Our shelter is right up there. If you're not good at getting along with people, just follow behind me for a distance. Yu Qingliang lay on the Tyrannosaurus Rex's back and stared at the woman's back for a while before she patted the Tyrannosaurus Rex and followed the woman upwards. Indeed, she needed a path. The woman wasn't too surprised to see Yu Qingxiao follow. Yu Qingxiao didn't say anything, so she listened to the woman talking to herself. I used to have a younger brother, just like you. He doesn't like to talk. He stays alone wherever he goes, and I accompanied him when he went to school. When the woman said this, she suddenly paused. Her tone was gentle and relaxed, and did not make Yu Qingxiao feel pressurized. This in turn made Yu Qingxiao's steps go slightly faster. By the way, I'm the person in charge of this shelter. My name is Shir Xing Tian. You can call me Sister Shir, or Sister Tian is fine, but I don't know if I'm older than you. Shir Xing Tian, also known as the woman opened her mouth. Yu Qingliang originally didn't care if this person was the head of the shelter or not, but when she heard that this woman was called Shir Xing Tian, her hand couldn't help but touch her backpack. Could she be Shi Xing Yu's sister? But she couldn't speak human words and had no way to ask. Shi Xing Tian did bring Yu Qingliang to a room. It was outside the fence. This place should have been a small village in the past, but at this time, it was enclosed by a high fence. There were quite a few aromas inside, but not too many. It was almost just a few hundred people. Just stay here. Don't worry. I'll tell them to leave you alone. If you want to leave, wait for the day to dawn and follow this road down. Shi Xing Tian pointed to a road in front of him. It looked like it was newly opened. Sure enough, they would be looking for supplies in the city below as well. Yu Qingliang was in a hurry at this point. She could only pull open her backpack and take out Shi Xingyu's student card. 
rushing up in a few steps and shoving the student card into Shi Xingtian's hands. Then she peeled off her hat to block her eyes. Shi Xingtian was startled by Yu Qingxian's action, but when she saw the student card that was shoved into her hand by the other party and still had dried blood stains on it, her face instantly turned white. Although she couldn't see much with the scarf around her, but Yu Qingxiao still saw her slightly trembling hands. Sure enough, this person was Shi Xingyu's sister. It turned out that Shi Xingyu still had family living in this world. There were still people in this world who loved him. May I ask, this student card, where did you get it from? Even though Shi Xing Tian was emotional, she restrained herself because she knew that the other party was holding her brother's student card. That meant that she must have seen her brother. It was just that there were still bloodstains on the student card, and she felt that her brother was already in a bad way. It had been almost a year, and she finally had news of her brother. Originally, when the zombie riot happened, she went to look for her brother. But she didn't find him. She was also worried about mom and dad, so she returned here. Only mom and dad hadn't escaped. She thought that her brother would come back as soon as he had the chance, so she had been waiting here. Her own brother and does not like to contact with the people on the sidelines. Since childhood, he has been very autistic. So many years, she tried to become her brother's high school homeroom teacher. Finally, let him a little bit of integration into the school. But then she encountered this kind of post-apocalyptic world. Shi Xing Tian felt that this world is really unfair to his brother. Seeing how anxious Shi Xing Tian was, Yu Qing Xian didn't know how to answer for a moment, and thought for a moment before she took out her cell phone and prepared to type to Shi Xing Tian. Only when she had only taken out her cell phone and tapped on the memo, her cell phone automatically shut down due to a lack of power. This made Yu Qing Xiao instantly petrified. Done. The only tool to communicate with humans was gone. When Shi Xing Tian saw Yu Qing Xian's flustered look. He assumed that Yu Qing Xian shouldn't be able to speak, so he started to calm her down. It's fine. You can write it down. Writing it down is fine. Yu Qing Xian became even more anxious when she heard this. She just couldn't write. That's why she had to use her cell phone to type. It's fine. No need to be nervous. You rest first. Thank you very much for giving me my brother's student card. That already makes me very grateful. Shi Xing Tian held Yu Qing Xian's wrist, trying to calm her down. And Yu Qingxian was miraculously calmed down when she was pulled by Shi Xingtian's wrist through her clothes. She opened her mouth slightly. He. Then Yu Qingxian was startled. She opened her mouth. Her identity as a zombie was definitely going to be exposed. He what? Shi Xingtian was a bit surprised. So this person could talk. And Shi Xingtian's words made Yu Qingxian stunned. She could actually understand. He. Shi Xingyu is someone I met in a small town where I met. He turned into a zombie. Yu Qingliang spoke with some effort, as she felt her throat stinging and prickling a little when she spoke the words. It was completely different from the usual talking to the Tyrannosaurus Rex and those zombies. Her eyes peeked under the brim of her hat to look at Shi Xing Tian, watching her expression. If she realized she was a zombie, then she would have to knock her out and run away. Even if she was Toki Sun Yu's sister, I see. Thank you. Shi Xing Tian took a deep breath before turning to Yu Qingxian. Obviously. She didn't bring her personal emotions into conversations with others. This made Yu Qingxian a bit surprised. She thought that Shi Xing Tian would pull her to ask after her if she had killed Shi Xingyu, but she Shi Xing Tian didn't. She forced down her emotions and just told herself thank you. Yu Qingxiao moved her mouth, but she couldn't say any more comforting words. It wasn't like she could tell Shi Xing Tian that Shi Xingyu had turned into a zombie king, although she and Shi Xingyu did feel a good relationship, but it was limited to the fact that she herself was also a zombie. If she really brought Shi Xing Tian to Shi Xing Yu, it was estimated that if she walked out a few hundred meters herself, Shi Xing Yu would be able to eat his sister. So this kind of thing Yu Qing Liang would not let it happen. When Shi Xing Tian heard that Yu Qing Xian's voice was a bit hoarse, he asked her if she wanted some water. Yu Qing Xian didn't say anything again. She just waved her hand before letting the Tyrannosaurus Rex enter the house. With a nod to Shi Xing Tian, she turned around and went into that hut. When Shi Xing Tian saw that Yu Qing Xian also stopped talking, she didn't say anything. After she watched the door to the room close, she headed towards the shelter above. Just as she entered the door, someone came up. Sister Sher, what's wrong? That teenager looked like he trusted Sher Xing Tian. Thus when he saw Sher Xing Tian return, he immediately came over. His life was saved by Sister Sher. Thus he naturally treated Sher Xing Tian as if she was his own sister. But he knew that Sister Sher had been waiting for her brother. Otherwise, with her strength, she would have already gone to the official base. Especially since Sister Toki's special ability was also very special. It was because of Shur's sister's presence that they were able to take out supplies from the city to survive here for almost a year. Shur Xing Tian smiled faintly before saying, I'm fine. I'll go inside first to rest for a while and put people on guard. But there shouldn't be an attack tonight. 
Let everyone relax and have a good rest. That teenager heard Shi Xing Tian's words, although he was a bit surprised. He still told down, in this nearly a year, they haven't had a day when they could relax, and to be able to relax a bit today was unbelievable. But since it was what Sister Shi said, there was nothing wrong with it. Shi Xing Tian went back to her room. The place where she lived was the highest part of this area of houses. It was also the place with the best line of sight. After all, her responsibility was to be in charge of the safety of this shelter. For such a long time, she had never made a mistake. But Shi Xing Tian's eyes were red as she looked at her brother's student card. She reached up and rubbed her eyes, not letting the tears fall. Even though she had protected so many people, she still hadn't protected her brother. For a moment, Shi Xing Tian felt as if her efforts were all for naught. Many images flashed through her mind. Although there was a difference of more than 10 years of age between her brother and her, but in Shi Xing Tian's heart, her brother was also her salvation. When she didn't do well in the college entrance exam, her three-year-old brother said the first words of his life, Sister don't cry, obviously words of comfort. At that time she cried even more. Ever since then, Shi Xing Tian offered to bring up her younger brother on her own. Mom and dad were busy at that time and didn't have time to care about their siblings, and although they often apologized to her, she didn't need their apologies, because she originally liked her younger brother as well. Her brother didn't like to talk to others and often played by himself, but he would wait at the door of the rented house every day for her to come home from class, asked her, is sister tired? And then always gave himself his most precious things. She watched the child who had grown up from a little older than a beanpole, unwilling to take on the children of the world, with eyes only for her brother. Already dead, Tokoyami was unwilling to allow herself to reminisce about the past. In fact, this kind of thing, she had once thought about it a million times long ago, just that there had never been any substantial evidence. Now that she had gotten the answer, there was no need for her to hold on to the past. Shi Xing Tian just sat in the room for a while, then stood up, wiped her brother's student card clean with a towel, and put it together with his photo. On the photo was a pair of siblings who looked very similar. The younger brother who had already grown tall but was very dependent leaning his head on his sister's shoulder, smiling coyly at the camera. Shi Xing Tian looked at the photo and finally failed to suppress her tears. When Yu Qingliang was getting ready to leave early the next morning, Shi Xing Tian came over again. She didn't ask Yu Qingxian about Shi Xing Yu's words. Instead, she told Yu Qingxian that it was dangerous to go to the city alone. There were many zombies in there, and there were also high-level zombies. While Yu Qingxiao listened to Shi Xing Tian's words, he finally couldn't help but open his mouth. It's okay, thank you. Yu Qingliang thanked Shi Xing Tian. Then she took the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the city. And when she arrived in the city, she first told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to find a safe place to hide. She, on the other hand, went to look for the kind of generator that could generate electricity. Finding the generator, she went to find oil again, charged her cell phone and camera. After that she searched all over the city for the kind of thing that could print photos, finally found it when it was almost dark. She looked at the photo printer that would connect to her cell phone and camera and was finally relieved. Then after working for half the night, she finally turned on her other camera that was not resistant to freezing and connected it to the photo printer. She wanted to print out Shi Xing Yu's photo and give it to Shi Xing Tian. Although he no longer remembers the memories of his human days, he had a good life after he turned into a zombie, and was also able to take care of himself. As she printed the photos, she wondered if Shi Xing Yu followed her at first because he had a sister. After all, after turning into a zombie, some obsessions still existed in the head especially when she should have realized it before when she encountered people coming up to ask her what she was. When Shi Xing Yu was able to get the words my sister out of his mouth, she should have realized it. It was just that she didn't think much about it at that time. Yu Qingliang opened her cell phone and looked at the photos of Shi Xing Yu fighting with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and printed out a few of them as well. Although these photos would most likely reveal his identity, Yu Qingliang wouldn't stay in this place all the time. Even if the other party realized that something was wrong with him, there was no way to pursue the matter. Thus at that time, when Xing Tian saw Yu Qingxiao again, it was on the morning after Yu Qingxiao left. Before dawn, she got up to patrol and saw Yu Qingxiao scurrying out from behind the houses. There was a layer of white frost on top of her clothes, so she should have been waiting here for quite a while. This is for you. Yu Qingxian handed the envelope in her hand to Shi Xingtian as if she was stuffing a student card. When Shi Xingtian wanted to say something else, Yu Qingxian had already turned around and ran away. She looked at the thick envelope in her hand which should contain photos or something like that. Shi Xing Tian put the envelope in her pocket and waited to check around to make sure there were no zombies or zombie animals around before going back. When she went back inside and took off her hat and scarf, she sat by the fire, and only then did she take out the envelope. There was a piece of paper attached to the back of the envelope. There should be writing on it. It wasn't handwritten. 
but printed text. When he saw the text on it, Shi Xing Tian was stunned for a moment, and then he broke into a smile. It was so good that even though his brother had turned into a zombie, he had met a gentle person. Your brother is now living a good life, and normal humans and zombies can't hurt him. Taken care of by your brother for a period of time, these photos are considered my thanks. Shi Xing Tian knew where would his brother take care of people? Ah, it should be the other party who took care of his brother. Then he opened the envelope. Inside were nearly a hundred photos. All of them were pictures of her brother and the surrounding scenery. Obviously turning into a zombie would no longer think of changing clothes, but he was wearing a clean down jacket. Shixing Tian knew that the girl had really taken good care of her brother. She flipped through the photos and when she got to the next few, she realized that her brother was actually fighting with a big white dog. This caused Shixing Tian to be stunned. And looking at the scenery in the back, it was at Autumn Lake. In other words, some time ago, his own brother returned here. And the last one was a group photo. The face of the shorter one standing in the center was blacked out, leaving only Shi Xingyu and the big white dog. Shi Xing Tian was a bit helpless as she used a hot towel to wipe the black handwriting off of it, revealing a smiling face with arched eyebrows. In fact, the first time he saw her, Shi Xing Tian knew that she was a zombie. After all, with her psychic ability, she could hypnotize zombies. She belonged to the mental faculty of psychic abilities, so it was easy to tell if the other party was a zombie or a human. After thinking about it, Shi Xing Tian made a decision. It was difficult to realize that kind of idea just by herself. She needed help. As for the survivors of the shelter, when they heard that Shi Xing Tian said she was going to the official base, although they were a bit surprised, they were also a bit happy in their hearts, because going to the official base, they could live better. It was just that they didn't know why Shi Xing Tian suddenly decided to go to the official base. Although the people from the official base had come to look for Shi Xing Tian before, Shi Xing Tian had refused before. How did he suddenly change his mind? And after Shi Xing Tian made this decision, the person patrolling outside suddenly ran in in a panic. Sister Shir, those people are here again. Should we see them this time as well? See, I happen to have something to say to her, Shi Xing Tian said. And when Gu Evening Ching was led into this shelter, it was already three months ago when she saw Shi Xing Tian again. M.S. Sure, may I ask if you've thought this through? Your brother, we officially will help find him, as long as you can cooperate with us. Gu Evening Ching opened her mouth. After all, mental faculty psychic abilities were very unique, especially those like Shi Xing Tian's that could hypnotize zombies and keep them from rioting, which were even rarer. Shi Xing Tian did not open his mouth. Gu Evening Ching didn't care either, but continued, as you know, what our purpose is is not only to eliminate the zombie virus, but we want to find a way to make people who have turned into zombies regain their sanity. And for this goal, we need your help. Shi Xing Tian had originally wanted to defect to the official base. If she said that she wasn't interested in this before, then she was indeed interested now, because she had just seen hope. She naturally didn't feel that Gu Evening Ching's words were a fool's errand. When Gu Evening Ching saw that Shi Xing Tian had agreed, she was happy in her heart, but she was also surprised. After all, when she had negotiated with Shi Xing Tian before, Shi Xing Tian had been completely uninterested, even saying that their official people were talking in a fool's errand, saying that those man-eating monsters, how could they still recover human sanity? It seems that in these three months, M.S. Shi experienced something that made you feel profound, so we'll work together happily. Gu Evening Ching smiled and extended her hand to Shi Xing Tian, and Shi Xing Tian reached back to shake Gu Evening Ching's hand. Happy cooperation, but the conditions. Shi Xing Tian said, she now knew that her brother was a zombie, so it would be a little more difficult for her to negotiate with the officials, but she knew that there was no way to restore her brother to a human being just by her own ability. Don't worry, with me here, I won't let you suffer, I promise. Gu Evening Ching seemed to know what she meant and spoke. After that, Gu Evening Ching started arranging the process for the survivors of this shelter to enter the base. First, they headed to the nearest base. As for Shi Xing Tian, of course he couldn't stay at this base but needed to go to the capital base. The two over there reached a cooperation. While at this time, Yu Qingliang was coaxing the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it couldn't be helped. She had been busy all day and didn't go back in the middle of the night, and only came back this morning, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't even want to take care of her at this point. This made Yu Qingliang helpless. I really went to do my business, not to leave you here. I swear, Yu Qingxian opened her mouth. She had said that the Tyrannosaurus Rex had a good temper before but she hadn't expected that she would still get angry, and she hadn't expected that she would be busy for a day and a night. It was indeed her fault, and Yu Qingxian now apologized. She saw that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was sitting on the cushion and just not looking at her, so she stood up helplessly. I know, 
It was indeed my fault before, so please forgive me once. There will never be a next time. In the future when I go on errands, I will definitely talk to you in advance. This time I didn't think I would be busy for so long. Yu Qingliang's tone carried a hint of pleading. In fact, if the Tyrannosaurus Rex really wasn't willing to forgive her, then she could only leave on her own. She really wasn't good at coaxing others or animals. This kind of thing was really tedious. After all, she had already spent a lot of effort just taking care of her own emotions. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, on the other hand, stopped throwing tantrums after receiving Yu Qingxian's assurance. Only when Yu Qingxiao saw that it was finally willing to look at itself did she settle down somewhat. It was good that the Tyrannosaurus Rex forgot quickly, just by feeding it delicious food. The Tyrannosaurus Rex forgot about the previous things again. Being a puppy or a kitten was pretty good too. As long as their owners were nice to them, they could forget all their troubles in an instant. Maybe they might remember and just still be willing to choose to trust humans. But like this, it's really easy to get hurt over and over again. Yu Qingxiao reached out and rubbed the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head. Then he couldn't help but say, you little fool, don't believe in anyone's words. If something happens to me and I'm not there in the future, go to a big mountain by yourself, and hide and don't come out, even though I know that you're very strong, but starving humans are capable of doing anything. Beware of them capturing you to make dog meat hot pot. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, however, didn't listen to her words at all. Yu Qingliang looked at its giggling face, somewhat helpless, and could only pat its big head. What a silly dog. She gave the Tyrannosaurus refilled all the dog food freeze and whatnot. The various power levels were also full. She was afraid that the next place town was less. Yu Qingliang also put a battery on the sled. This battery was used in the car. Enough for her to use for a long time. If it wasn't for Yu Qingxiao's fear that the Tyrannosaurus Rex wouldn't be able to pull it, she would have wanted to put several batteries on it. It was just that when they went past the city center, they found that the road across the street was also blocked and piled up with a lot of cars. It was indeed difficult for them to get past. When Yu Qingliang thought of little green sister's appearance of overturning a car with one hand, she really wanted to go back and invite her to help her overturn these cars. Or why didn't he think about being skilled at that time? If she had learned to flip cars, then now she could flip them all the way over. Although the Tyrannosaurus Rex should be able to flip over cars, it would get tired. Within these few short kilometers, there were hundreds of cars stuck in the traffic. There were also zombies coming from behind. So if they didn't think of a way, they really wouldn't have a way to get past. Yu Qingliang looked towards the river. She suddenly reacted. Since she couldn't take the main road, she could take the river. So Yu Qingxiao took the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the river. Because this place had steps built along the river. There was even a sculpture erected by the river. It was more than just a sculpture. You could also see the water level. Yu Qingxiao first tried to see if the ice on the river was solid. Although she knew all about the weather of dozens of degrees below zero. What river are like ah? All give you frozen. Of course. Hot springs and such should not be able to freeze. But this river did freeze over. The Tyrannosaurus Rex ran more cheerfully when she reached the ice. She watched as the road high above her was full of cars. And there were even cars rolling down the road. Only there were no cars to be seen in the river. There was no telling if it had sunk or washed away. After following the river for almost 7 or 8 kilometers, there were a lot less cars on the road. Yu Qingxiao took out the map and looked at it. And realized that her place was also very close to that highest peak. Of course. This very close was also relative to being close to somewhere else. But counting the distance, there were still 5 to 600 kilometers. She and the Tyrannosaurus Rex had climbed onto the highway from a small village. Going forward, there were small towns and villages. Of course, although they were said to be towns and villages, but they were actually some touristy towns and villages. The houses look very old, but this is also some means to attract tourists. Of course, looking at it now, the houses were indeed much more desolate. There were some complete zombie corpses on the ground. It was estimated that these zombies were frozen when the cold air suddenly cooled down earlier. But there were also zombies that were still alive. Yu Qingliang didn't care about the zombies that came over. And just as they came over, they were slapped away by the Tyrannosaurus Rex's claw. Yu Qingliang was holding his camera to take pictures of the zombies that were frozen on the ground. Towards evening, Yu Qingxiao found a small building to live in. At this time, she wasn't sure how sure Xingyu's sister was doing. Since she knew about her brother's situation, she wouldn't be waiting in this place in her old home, right? After all, how to wait can not wait. If she really waited, Yu Qingxian didn't even dare to think about that picture. So of course, Yu Qingxiao didn't want their siblings to meet in this situation. With himself present, or with Gu Evening Qing present, it was probably only possible to avoid the tragedy. There was no way for Yu Qingxiao to fold back. She could only worship heaven and earth. After all, didn't Gu Evening Harvest like to run around the country? Of course, Yu Qingxiao was only hoping, 
As for whether Gu Evening Chang would come or not, she really didn't know. Yu Qingxiao had been following the canyon to the west. After walking for almost 10 days or so, she finally saw the towering snowy mountains in the distance, but the surrounding mountains actually still looked lush and green. She took out her cell phone and looked at the time. It was already October, but the trees on the surrounding mountains hadn't changed much. Yu Qingliang entered a house and took out all the bacon that was hanging in the other's house. Although it was heavy in salt, I don't know if the Tyrannosaurus Rex would have an effect if it ate it. It couldn't be helped. From this place, she would soon be heading to the Pure Land, and those places might not encounter cities for days and nights, so she could only take out the bacon from other people's homes. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't picky, thinking that it was able to live in the past, now it can still starve to death by following itself. Yu Qingliang was a bit unsure. What if it really starved to death by following itself? And at noon on the third day, the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't know what kind of animal it had caught from the mountains and ate a lot. Yu Qingxiao once again sighed. The Tyrannosaurus Rex's ability to survive was better than himself. Therefore, Yu Qingxiao would no longer worry about it in the future. Until the end of October, Yu Qingxiao finally left the province she was living in and entered the place she had wanted to go so much before. It also belonged to the plateau region, and she had previously read a full collection of poems and biographies about the legendary people of this place, so sometimes it was tempting to go and see the white palace that stood in the pure land. After entering the plateau, Yu Qingliang could see the snowy mountains standing between heaven and earth from afar, so this time close to a distance to take a picture. Therefore by the time she reacted, she had already brought the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the foot of the mountain. Yu Qingliang didn't feel any plateau reaction but it was the Tyrannosaurus Rex that was a bit overwhelmed. How could it say that it also lived in the plains? It felt fine to the place where it lived. The reaction wasn't that great, but now looking at its appearance, Yu Qingliang couldn't bring it to climb the mountain, so she unhooked the sled from the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body and then told the Tyrannosaurus Rex that it could wait for her in this neighborhood. This neighborhood wasn't completely devoid of woods and houses, so animals can be caught in places like this. And she put all of the tea, Rex's food in the house, so if she got hungry, she could eat it herself. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was very good and knew that there was no way he could force himself to follow Yu Qingxian up the mountain. Yu Qingxian also didn't go straight to the top of the mountain at the beginning. Instead, she repeatedly tried to go up a bit every day. She was afraid that her body wouldn't be able to withstand the temperature at the top of the mountain. So what if she froze at the top? Yu Qingxia traveled like this for almost half a month, making sure that she wouldn't freeze at the top of the mountain. Before she prepared her cell phone and camera, and carried the batteries of her suitcase up the mountain, and also chopped two not too thick and not too thin sticks to hold. As hiking poles, Yu Qingliang slowly walked up from the gentle slope. Perhaps it was because the world was in a frozen state nowadays, so there was no turbulence on the mountain. It was just quiet everywhere. Every few hundred meters that Yu Qingxiao went up, she would take out her camera and cell phone to take pictures. If she were to climb with her physical body that was a living person, she would probably rest at the foot of the mountain. At this moment, the surroundings were very quiet, and it seemed like she was the only one in the whole world. She wasn't in a hurry and slowly moved up. In fact, Yu Qingliang thought that if she roared, would there be an avalanche? Then she was buried by the snow. Or she herself lost her footing and stepped on the collapse and fell off the cliff with no bones left. Yu Qingxiao reached out and patted her face. Let her not think wildly. In the past, when Yu Qingxiao had nothing to do, he would fantasize about being poked in the eye by a pair of scissors and having his hand chopped off by a kitchen knife or the muscle in the piece of one's thumb being completely torn apart, or oneself squatting somewhere and having one's head dug out by a rake. Of course, what Yu Qingliang felt scared her the most was the chainsaw and scythe. Shaking off these thoughts, Yu Qingxiao then prepared to find a place to sit for a while. As for that kind of gully place Yu Qingxiao didn't dare to go to, if there was really an avalanche, then she would really be buried. Yu Qingxiao had just sat down when she felt her buttocks shaking. This made her a little puzzled, and when she looked back, she saw that the avalanche above her had collapsed. Of course, it wasn't her position, and it didn't look like it could crush her here. She pulled out her camera and watched the snowflakes that rolled like dust rushing down. And surprisingly, she saw what appeared to be two walkers buried in the avalanche, even fighting as the snow went down. Yu Qingliang instantly recognized the two zombies as alienated zombies. Finished, these two zombies wouldn't be rolling all the way down the mountain, right? But rolling down from this place didn't seem like they could roll down to their own country. The Tyrannosaurus Rex is also quite far from this place, and that kid was smart enough to improvise. Most importantly, these two zombies were buried in the snow and wouldn't necessarily be able to climb up. As soon as he thought of this, Yu Qingliang thought of just sliding another piece of snow down and crushing them to death. Just why was this alienated zombie always coming towards their country? It couldn't be that their country had the most survivors in the entire world, right? 
Yu Qingliang didn't know how many alienated zombies there were in the world right now. However, the fact that such a high snowy mountain could be climbed up and over this mountain range was enough to prove that there should be quite a few of these alienated zombies. When Yu Qingliang thought about it, he felt again that this mountain range was indeed a divine mountain, helping their country block a lot of problems. If this mountain wasn't high, then the alienated zombies would probably be like locusts entering the country and rushing across. This thing could be hard to kill. Although it was true that Gu Wanqing's poison could kill one, it couldn't completely kill it. Most importantly, this zombie could still climb up and move without a crystal core. In case it ate some more people or swallowed some more zombies, wouldn't it come back to life again? This made Yu Qingliang feel really sick. After all, those who fought these monsters were all made of flesh and blood. Of course, there could be more guns. Yu Qingxiao climbed up to the ridge, as this was not the highest peak, and it was even a bit far from the top of the mountain. Normally people wouldn't rest at this place either. But again, Yu Qingxiao wasn't worried about stamina or food, so she chose to squat on this ridge and look down at the two zombies that rolled down. At this time, those two zombies had already disappeared in a white blanket. But Yu Qingxiao knew that these snowflakes were certain death for ordinary people. It is estimated that even the bones of the corpse may not be able to find back, but these two zombies probably can climb out. Therefore, Yu Qingxiao really wanted to slide down a large area of snow. It would be best to freeze directly after sliding down, then wait for thousands of years before being discovered by humans. At that time, it was estimated that these two zombies would have become specimens, just like those specimens that were sealed in the ice. Yu Qingliang looked at the cracked snow. It wouldn't still be collapsing, would it? That was what she said. But if this snow layer was so fragile, then could she continue to climb? Wouldn't she be like those two zombies that grunted and rolled down once she left? As soon as Yu Qingliang thought about that image of herself, she immediately waved it away. And just as she sat down, that piece of cracked snow instantly slid down. It was even more than the piece just now. Even the patch where Yu Qingxiao was standing before was affected. In other words, she was really lucky to have just climbed up to this ridge. This made Yu Qingxiao cover her face. She couldn't be the lucky child. Yu Qingxiao immediately stood up and pointed her finger at the sky before saying, I am God. After saying this, Yu Qingxiang immediately shrunk back again, mumbling things like offended, sorry sorry sorry. When the avalanche stopped, Yu Qingxian didn't move either, and she didn't see those two zombies climbing out. She didn't know if they had rushed to the foot of the mountain, or if they had really been directly pressed under the snow. Yu Qingxiao didn't go down to look either. She squatted on the ridge for several days to make sure that there would be no more avalanches, and only then did she go down from the ridge and climb towards a higher place. Almost on the morning of the third day, Yu Qingxiao finally climbed up. At this moment, it was like she was already standing on the clouds, because it wasn't a clear and nice day. She couldn't see the situation below the mountain clearly. It had been blocked by the clouds. Yu Qingxiao thought about it and put the camera to the side, then fished the flag out of her backpack and pulled it away from the camera to delay the shot. With the camera clicking a few times, Yu Qingxiao then held up the national flag and walked over. This kind of thing she really didn't dare to think about before. But she was indeed standing on the first peak now. She put the national flag back into her backpack before she raised her camera and switched to video mode. Took a shot of the surrounding area. After the filming was completed, Yu Qingliang took out her cell phone and took a picture with the peak of the mountain. She looked at the photo in her cell phone. She didn't know when she had learned the habit of taking pictures with the scenery. Just like her mom and dad. She took a picture with the attraction when she arrived at a spot. However, Yu Qingxia was now a little proud that she had come up to a peak that her mom and dad had never come up to. I guess if mom and dad knew about it, they would probably drop their jaws in shock. Of course, it would probably be a little more reassuring too. Nowadays, she was already able to take care of herself very well. When Yu Qingliang arrived at the foot of the mountain, she realized that this side was actually affected as well. But it wasn't affected too much. This area looked all barren and rocky but there was still dead grass on these grounds. She had seen videos before, and there were inhabitants in places like this, and there were many yaks living here as well, but now not a single yak had been seen. Yu Qingliang thought so and went from the foot of the mountain towards the small village where the Tyrannosaurus Rex lived again. It was almost 20 kilometers away from the foot of the snowy mountain. There was no telling what the situation of the Tyrannosaurus Rex was now. As she walked to the main road, she suddenly smelled the scent of a living creature, but it wasn't Tyrannosaurus Rex. Instead it smelled like grass. This made Yu Qingliang walk over carefully. The camera in her hand was on and ready to shoot. She crept up the hill and then looked behind it. Then she saw a cow with a calf. The calf looked fairly normal. But the big cow was completely different. It had green plants wrapped around its horns. It also looked like it was carrying a small meadow on its back. It even had small pinkish purple flowers blooming on it. Yu Qingxiao immediately turned off the sound of the camera. Directly lying on the ground. Quietly crawled over. 
he was directly shooting at the yak. Of course, there is also the calf. The calf has no horns, and looks like it was just born not long ago, but there was already little green moss on its back. This made Yu Qingliang immediately realize, it could be that its mother was in a mutation situation that affected the calf, therefore the calf also had a tendency to mutate. The big yak was eating those frozen grass roots, so Yu Qingliang was a little curious about what the calf was eating. When the small yak went to eat milk, Yu Qingxiao was struck by lightning. Right. She had been obsessing about the cow eating grass and had forgotten that the calf was a milk eater. It was true that she had been thinking less lately, so a lot of things would subconsciously go into a kind of dead end. But when she watched the calf drink the milk, the big yak would squat down and then let the calf reach the grass on its back. Although Yu Qingliang was shocked, she immediately filmed this image. The grass on this mother yak's back turned out to be really edible. It was just that Yu Qingxiao was a bit curious. When these grasses grew, did they consume the host's life force? Or did they not have to? It was like a human awakening it would system psychic ability. Then there were some things that could catalyze plants, and some that could change plants out of thin air. Of course, there are also some that can even make dead wood spring. All in all though it was a wood system ability. Wood system ability was just a big categorization. The functions underneath were different. Of course, this was only Yu Qingliang's guess, because Gu Evening Qing was a few vines drawn out at all times, and there was only one type of those vines. There wasn't the kind of supernatural ability that could catalyze any plant that one reads about in novels. That was why it was such a guess. Plus, the odor on the Tyrannosaurus Rex was somewhat similar to the scent on Gu Evening Harvest. So Yu Qingxiao guessed that the Tyrannosaurus Rex's healing supernatural ability was probably also a branch of the wood-based supernatural ability. And the smell on Shur Xing Tian's body was somewhat similar to Pei Yuan's. Then these two should belong to the same type of psychic ability. It's just that the functions are different. Otherwise the smell should be the same because she did smell the two people's aromas exactly the same. Now that she thought about it, the aroma of an ordinary person was on the meaty side, and the aroma of a psychic was on the plant side, and this yak's aroma was also on the plant side. Then it seemed that his guess was indeed correct. Yu Qingxiao did not disturb them. Crawling over, Yu Qingxiao crawled back. Instead, he circled back from another mountain. By the time the afternoon came, Yu Qingxiao finally returned to the village where the Tyrannosaurus Rex lived but she didn't smell the Tyrannosaurus Rex's odor, and there was no response even after shouting a few times. This made Yu Qingxiao immediately rush into the house. After all, she couldn't smell a living creature when it was dead. The identity of a zombie allowed her to only smell the scent of living things. But now, the scent of the Tyrannosaurus Rex was gone. Either the Tyrannosaurus Rex was dead, or it was three kilometers away from her. She opened the door to her room and found that the sled was still inside, and the dog food and bacon were pretty much eaten there should be no food left, so the Tyrannosaurus went out to look for food. Yu Qingliang just waited at the door for a while. She glanced at the time, it was almost 7 in the evening, it was also late in the day, but the Tyrannosaurus Rex hadn't come back yet. After Yu Qingxiao waited for almost half an hour, she still couldn't wait any longer. She got up and went looking. There should be a lot of wild animals in this place, whether they were alive or had turned into zombies. All in all, it was dangerous. Yu Qingliang carefully looked at the ground trying to find traces of Tyrannosaurus Rex. There was indeed a Tyrannosaurus Rex footprint at the entrance of this house, but it walked up the highway and there were no more traces. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex's meat pads were hot and should have left traces on the ice of the road. Therefore Yu Qingliang was lying on the ground with her eyes on the ice, wanting to see if there were any plum-like footprints on this ground. She then lay on the ground and looked here and there, finally seeing footprints on the ground. The Tyrannosaurus Rex must have stood in this place for quite a while. Therefore this place had the deepest plum blossom prints to be able to melt the ice, that time must have been quite a lot, looking at the location of the footprints, they should have passed towards the opposite mountain, it wasn't a location close to the snowy mountain, Yu Qingliang then stood up and walked towards the direction where the Tyrannosaurus Rex might have disappeared, as the time got later and later, so did the sky, even though the sunset in this place was a few hours later than other places, but at this moment, it was already after 8 o'clock, and it was almost dark, if he couldn't retrieve it, he wasn't sure if the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body temperature could be maintained. Yu Qingliang circled around through a few small hills, and then he saw a lake. The surface of the lake looked like it should be frozen over as well. However, she could smell the Tyrannosaurus Rex's scent. She had immediately circled around from this side of the mountain and saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex dragging a deer back. Seeing that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was safe and sound, Yu Qingxian was also relieved. It's just that Yu Qingxiao looked at the body of the deer that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was dragging. This deer was so big, Yu Qingxiao raised her voice and shouted its name, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex immediately raised its head and suddenly flew towards her, do not even want the meat, 
Yu Qingxiao slapped her thigh. This stupid dog, how come it doesn't even want meat? But fortunately, halfway through the run, Yu Qingxiao also ran over and led it to drag the deer. Yu Qingxiao originally thought it was a deer, but when he got closer, he realized it was a goat. Sure enough, with the Tyrannosaurus Rex's ability, there was no shortage of food in a place like this. Back to that small village, Yu Qingliang dismantled all the furniture in people's houses. Although the people in these places burned what looked like cakes made of animal dung. Even though Yu Qingxiao knew that these things didn't have much flavor, but she still dismantled people's furniture. A fire was built. Yu Qingxiao roasted meat for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Of course, when roasting the meat, she didn't just plug her nose. She also wore several masks, barely isolating the smell to a level she could accept. Cooked food was really a torture for zombies. It was no wonder that the zombies lost interest in living things that were broken. But cooked meat, the Tyrannosaurus Rex ate more flavorfully. Yu Qingliang thought about it, so she got a knife from the house and broke down the meat. Although she did know how to cook, it was the first time she dissected an animal in the raw. Plus, she was wearing a heavy down jacket and looked a bit bulky. In order to keep the blood from smearing on her duvet, she also found cuffs and an apron. A look of a great ant who killed a pig. Yu Qingliang broke down the meat, and some of it was packed in pockets for dog food. Because there was blood on it, it would soon freeze. There was also a portion that Yu Qingxiao just roasted them directly and packed them in another pocket. This way the Tyrannosaurus Rex could eat raw meat or cooked meat. Yu Qingxiao looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex's water. There wasn't much left, so he still had to find a way to get water. But this place did have many small lakes, but none of them were freshwater lakes. There was no way for those water animals to drink. When Yu Qingxiao came, she came along one of the roads, so it caused her to miss a place that was very suitable for going to see the scenery. Of course, this place Yu Qingxiao wanted to go because of a character in a novel. That place known as Blossom. She had heard that that place was known as the Highland Little Jiangnan Place. She had watched many videos introducing the place. When she read the pop-ups and comments, she realized that many people also knew that place through a novel. And there were also a lot of people who went to that place because of a person. Yu Qingliang also wanted to go and see it at that time though. But he turned around and came back when he stepped out of the door of his room. She didn't even step out of the front door of her house. At that time, she even laughed at herself. In fact, she didn't love it that much. After that, she gradually forgot about those books and those characters. And now, Yu Qingliang didn't come here for that character. It was because she wanted to come and take a look herself. That's why she came. The further Yu Qingxiao moved towards this place, the kind of high mountains were no longer some bare mountains, but started to have green trees instead. As expected, only when one actually walks through it, one would feel the magic. Yu Qingxian passed through the jungle from the narrow highway. She had seen a primitive rainforest in this kind of highland area, and it truly made her feel magical. It was true that the earth was magical, and after watching countless documentaries, Yu Qingxiao would still be shocked when she actually walked in front of it. There was even a spring in this mountain, although it was already frozen. But Yu Qingxiao didn't care and took the axe and went to knock a big piece down and put it on the sled. The mountain spring water was delicious. Like before, she dug out another area by the roadside and lit a fire. Because the temperature rose a bit, the ice on those leaves started to melt and drip. Yu Qingliang could only take out her umbrella and hold it open. The trees here didn't grow exaggeratedly. It seemed that because of the altitude or some other reason. Although they didn't grow very tall, but the leaves of the trees all became very large. To say that the trees in one's old home grew taller, then the trees in this place grew sideways. The big fat leaves made the Tyrannosaurus Rex look smaller. Yu Qingliang took out his camera and took pictures of the leaves. He even compared himself with the leaves. I don't know why. As soon as Yu Qingxiao entered this place, it was as if he had turned into a villainous person. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was eating its mutton. Every now and then, it looked up at Yu Qingxiao. Yu Qingxiao, on the other hand, was taking a look here and climbing there with his eyes shining brightly. He even got stuck in a crevice when he came down from the tree because his clothes were too thick and looked for help from the Tyrannosaurus Rex in a hurry. And when the Tyrannosaurus Rex walked over, a large flower rushed over and directly swallowed the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This was a sight to behold for Yu Qingliang. A flower swallowed her dog in front of her, its owner. This was a proper robbery. Yu Qingxian anxiously took off her down jacket, which broke out of the tree crevice, copied the axe for chopping down the tree and rushed over, chopping at the stem of that big flower. Only her small axe can only chop small branches. This flower stem is thicker than her waist. So this axe chopped over, completely useless. Just as she was anxiously holding the stem of the flower and shaking it, the flower suddenly vomited, directly vomiting out the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Although the hair all over its body carried a thick green slime, it was good that it wasn't missing any arms or legs, allowing Yu Qingliang to relax a little. But how could she not expect that the plants here were still carnivorous plants? 
She hadn't heard of it before either. Forget it, even if there was a notice, she couldn't hear it ah. This carnivorous flower didn't just spit out the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it even shrunk to the side and vomited. It was only when Yu Qingliang came around behind the Tyrannosaurus Rex that she saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex's shit smeared all over its ass, it was still the diluted version. Yu Qingxiao couldn't smell it, but at the thought of that smell, she also went to crouch next to the cannibal flower and vomit. But at the thought of this cannibal flower having the Tyrannosaurus Rex's shit in its mouth, Yu Qingxiao stayed away from it again. All this time the Tyrannosaurus Rex had been killing God and Buddha, but I didn't expect the Tyrannosaurus Rex's guts weren't very big, and it even scurried thin, but also, if she was swallowed alive, she would probably struggle subconsciously, so the Tyrannosaurus Rex wanted to live, and suddenly being swallowed, it would definitely be scared. Yu Qingxiao looked at the cannibal flower next to her that was still dry heaving, so she took a stick that was on fire and waved it in front of it, that cannibal flower really kept dodging, although Yu Qingxiao felt that his burning stick could not hurt it at all, the instincts of plants would still be afraid of flames, seeing that the cannibal flower was really scared. She directly took two sticks and played a set of swordsmanship at the cannibal flower. Instead, she drove the cannibal flower away. It was only then that Yu Qingliang turned back to look at the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was dry heaving itself. I guess the mucus on its body didn't smell good either. Only then did Yu Qingxiao roll up his sleeves, not even taking his down jacket, and went to help the Tyrannosaurus Rex get the slime off its body. In just a few minutes, the slime started to freeze and was already hard. Yu Qingliang immediately rubbed those ice slimes off. As for those flavors, to Yu Qingxiao, it didn't feel much, it was mainly because she still had a human consciousness with her, so she would still feel a little bit nauseous, the good thing was that the slime was frozen on, so it was fine as long as it was rubbed off, and with no temperature on her, the slime wouldn't melt, it was the shit on the Tyrannosaurus Rex's ass that Yu Qingliang really had no way to deal with, it could only let the Tyrannosaurus Rex go and rub it clean on the blades of grass, as for whether it could rub it clean, Yu Qingxiao wasn't sure, when it came back, Yu Qingxiao saw that its entire ass was wet, and the dog shit on it was all gone. Yu Qingxiao told it to quickly roast it for the fire. Otherwise, it would freeze later. In case it froze its ass, that would be the end of it. It would be difficult to shit in the future. She went up and helped the Tyrannosaurus Rex pull its tail, then put some more wood into the fire. Although the wood was all freshly cut down and smoked a lot, but they didn't care about that at this time. When Yu Qingxiao was surrounded by smoke, she subconsciously closed her eyes for fear of getting her eyes smoked by this thick smoke, but unexpectedly, she didn't feel anything at all, there wasn't any problem with her eyes either, as expected, after turning into a zombie, there really wasn't any shortcoming except for the high temperature and being injured in the head, Yu Qingliang watched the fire rise violently, so she stepped back, then broke a branch from the side to help the Tyrannosaurus Rex support its tail, it was already completely dark, although Yu Qingxiao's sight wasn't affected too much, but Yu Qingxiao knew that the surrounding area was probably too dark to see. With the appearance of that cannibal flower, Yu Qingxiao became even more cautious. In this kind of forest, there were indeed many plants that had never been seen before, and these plants were dangerous. Yu Qingxiao watched the Tyrannosaurus Rex's buttocks collect the tree branch after the fur had already roasted dry. She threw the branch to the side before taking out the Tyrannosaurus Rex's pad and blanket so that it could sleep. Then she picked up the axe that had fallen to the ground and was going to go get the down from the tree but then she reached down and tugged on it, and realized that the duvet was completely stuck between the branches, she was a little surprised, because she herself came down from the tree, then this down jacket was just hanging on the tree trunk, now it was actually squeezed tightly by the two tree trunks, Yu Qingliang instantly realized that the fact that she was stuck by the tree branches should not be because she was clumsy, rather, it was because the two tree trunks it just would fit together, this made Yu Qingxiao stare at the two trunks and raise the axe in her hand and chop towards one of the trunks, after only two axes, the tree trunk loosened up a bit, only then did Yu Qingxiao pull out her down coat, although she was still wearing a coat, this down jacket couldn't be given to the tree, it seemed that even if there were no zombies, this forest was still dangerous, Yu Qingliang returned to the fire, holding a tree branch in one hand and an axe in the other, he stood behind the Tyrannosaurus Rex like a door god, there was a fire in front of him, so he wasn't afraid of these plants coming from the front, so he just had to guard the back, during this time, there were indeed some vines that were hitting the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but Yu Qingxiao was quick on his feet and directly cut off the vines with an axe. She also picked up the vines and followed Gu Evening Qing's movements to fling them out. Only her movements were flimsy and not handsome at all. After accidentally blinding the sleeping Tyrannosaurus Rex into waking up, Yu Qingliang simply threw the vines away. It was true that this kind of thing was like a whip, it was necessary to have merit. Otherwise the ones who smacked it would be themselves. Of course, it could also be someone else or another dog. At dawn, 
The Tyrannosaurus woke up. In order not to stay in the wild tonight, Yu Qingliang was ready to speed up to go to the middle of the county. It was a good thing that he had traveled quite fast in the previous two days. At two o'clock in the afternoon, it arrived at the county town. Although it was said to be the county town, in Yu Qingxiao's eyes, it didn't feel as big as a town. However, when entering the town, Yu Qingxiao was still a bit careful. The main reason was that there were no zombies seen in the town. Of course, there was no smell of living people either. It meant that there were no survivors or people from the official compound in this place. But the quieter the place, the more careful one had to be. The houses in this county town were loose and not really close together. Yu Qingliang explored the path and made sure there was no danger before letting the Tyrannosaurus Rex enter the house first. She closed the door and walked towards the county town with a tree branch in her hand. The easiest way to know if there were any zombies in this county was to just shout. Excuse me, is there anyone? No, may I ask if there are any zombies? Yu Qingxiao yelled a few times, but no zombie answered her. Just when Yu Qingxiao thought that there were really no zombies in this town, suddenly a figure rushed out from behind the house and then crossed over to her. Yu Qingxiao saw that the other party was wearing clothing that only locals would wear, so it was not an alienated zombie. And its target was clear. It was the Tyrannosaurus Rex. She knew there must be something wrong with this county being so quiet. Stop where you are. Yu Qingliang yelled as soon as she threw the branch in her hand, and the zombie was literally pinned in place. Yu Qingliang immediately knew that this was an intelligent zombie. It could communicate. Yu Qingxiao immediately jogged over, and looking at the other person, who was not tall and still had two big braids, she knew that it was a female zombie. She circled around to the front of the other party and realized that this zombie should not have been very old when it was alive. It was almost in its twenties. However, this zombie's eyes were red and not golden, indicating that it was a bit worse than Shi Xing Yu and Aya, but it was a level three or four zombie anyways. Yu Qingxiao stared at it, and it stared back at Yu Qingxiao. Of course, Yu Qingxiao didn't miss the secretions flowing out from the corner of its mouth. Since it wasn't as good as Shi Xing Yu and Aya, it definitely couldn't beat the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yu Qingxiao suddenly stopped worrying. Wipe the saliva. My family's dog. You can't beat it. Yu Qingxiao reached out and patted this female zombie's shoulder, signaling that it was better for her not to mess around. The female zombie listened to Yu Qingxiao's words before those red eyes looked at Yu Qingxiao. Originally, she was not interested in Yu Qingxiao. The truth was that she really hadn't even noticed this little zombie. When she had just been called out, her whole body did stir for a moment, and her body stopped involuntarily. Looking at it that way now, this zombie in front of her was weak, but it was able to communicate with herself. That was bound to be not simple and the saliva secreted by the female zombie quickly froze, and as soon as she bared her teeth, the ice shell fell from the corner of her mouth. Of course, this female zombie's teeth looked much sharper than Shi Xing Yu's and theirs. It looked like it could tear someone apart with a single mouthful. Yu Qingliang looked at her and thought that this female zombie should have listened. When the female zombie saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex, although she was craving for it, she still held back. She knew the moment she saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex that the little zombie in front of her had not lied to her. This dog, she really couldn't beat it. After that, Yu Qingliang asked her where the zombies in this county had gone, if they had all been killed by her or something like that. Later, from this zombie's mouth, she knew that because there were quite a few animals in the forest, all these zombies had gone into the mountains, but all the plants in the mountains eat people and walkers, so all these zombies were swallowed by the plants in the mountains. In the whole county, she was the only zombie left, and she was originally one of the zombies swallowed by the plants. It's just that she was lucky and devoured the crystal core of that plant, so she had the ability to avoid the attacks of those mutated plants and went to the mountains to hunt for food after a dozen days. After that, she went back to the county to stay in the city. As soon as Yu Qingliang heard the female zombie say that those plants were undefendable and dangerous, she empathized. She felt the same way. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, who was especially victimized, took a rare paw to comfort a zombie. Only the good dog was not rewarded. The Tyrannosaurus Rex comforted this female walker. The female zombie grabbed its foot and was about to bite it. Fortunately, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was originally a supernatural dog and had a high level, not something that this female zombie could bite. Instead, the female zombie was directly stomped out by the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yu Qingliang didn't care about the Tyrannosaurus Rex playing with the zombie and went up to the roof of the building with his camera. Taking pictures of the surrounding mountains, she was somewhat curious about the plants that had devoured the zombie. Since the plants in this place were so terrifying, the forests in her old home would probably have such plants that could eat people. This world had finally forced the plants to start eating meat as well. After all, that female zombie didn't look too old. Just in her teens. And these intelligent zombies made Yu Qingliang feel that the younger the person became a zombie, the easier it would be to evolve into an intelligent zombie. 
Perhaps the adults had already been disappointed with this world and had long since become like walking corpses. If you become a zombie, you don't have to work, you won't get tired or sleepy, you just have to eat and eat and eat all day long. Only teenagers, or those who still have hope in life, will try to find a way to regain their sanity. Then what type did he belong to? Yu Qingliang couldn't think clearly. She didn't have the idea of living, she was the type of person who was fine with dying and couldn't create anything by living. But it was quite good to be conscious now. Although coming out for a walk wouldn't necessarily cure the disease, she felt that being able to die in a pretty place was much better than dying in that four-square house. After Yu Qingliang finished taking the pictures, she looked downstairs, when the Tyrannosaurus Rex was still fighting with the female zombie. That, can you show me those zombie eating plants? Yu Qingliang opened his mouth and asked her. The female zombie was being pressed on the ground by the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and suddenly when she heard Yu Qingxiao's words, her sight went to Yu Qingxiao. It's dangerous. The female zombie opened her mouth, not really wanting to go. Maybe if she fought with this dog like this, she could really take a nibble. Not afraid. Let's just go and take a look. Yu Qingxiao continued, directly blocking the female zombie's refusal. The female zombie stared at Yu Qingxiao for a while, and finally pushed the Tyrannosaurus Rex away, sort of reluctantly agreeing to Yu Qingxiao's suggestion. Yu Qingxiao only carried his backpack and put the photo of his parents and himself in the suitcase, chopped a lot of firewood and lit a fire letting the Tyrannosaurus Rex watch. First of all, even if those plants would attack the zombies, if they were to attack, they would attack the Tyrannosaurus Rex first. Plus a lot of things in this town were not broken, so Yu Qingliang piled them all up in the house. And since the Tyrannosaurus Rex had a strong ability to defend itself, Yu Qingxiao wasn't worried. It was just that she didn't really want a situation like the last time where it was directly swallowed to happen. When the Tyrannosaurus Rex heard that Yu Qingxiao wanted to keep it in the county, it didn't agree at first. But as soon as Yu Qingxiao said that he would let it help watch over his baby, the Tyrannosaurus grunted and agreed. It circled around the suitcase several times and then looked at itself pitifully. Yu Qingxiao could probably understand what it meant. Don't worry, we'll be back soon, Yu Qingxiao said, and patted the female zombie's shoulder. The teenage zombie didn't move. In fact, she now preferred this big dog to leave its master behind, because she really didn't want to go to that man-eating forest at all. But it was obvious that the dog would not help her. The teenage zombie was then led towards the mountains by Yu Qingliang. She even took one step and turned back three times, but that big dog couldn't feel itself at all. It wasn't just biting its mouth. Was it so vindictive? If there's really a plant that wants to swallow you, then I'll stall and let you escape. And since you're going to hunt for food in a few days, you should know the safe route. Yu Qingliang tugged at her idly and saw her turn back before speaking. The young girl zombie was dumbfounded when she heard Yu Qingxiao's words. The words were true, but this zombie was too weak right? How could she let that dog follow? In the eyes of the teenage zombie, Yu Qingxiao was really a vegetable, but sometimes there was some aura on her that made her unable to resist. When she still wanted to confirm it again, Yu Qingxiao was again just one of those zombies that only had a little bit of energy. Even she thought that Yu Qingxiao would just die as she walked, but looking at her, she didn't look like she was going to die in the slightest. With the girl zombie leading the way, Yu Qingxiao smoothly entered the forest. The mountains over here were quite high. She had brought her cell phone camera and pistol as well as an engineer's shovel and her own axe. The axe wasn't big, but it was better than being sharp. It was suitable for chopping vines. Yu Qingliang asked the teenage zombie's name and got the same answer as Knight. She did not have a name. Therefore Yu Qingxiao adhered to the idea that since she didn't have a name, she couldn't keep calling you you you, or that zombie or something like that. Yu Qingxiao thought about it and gave her a name. Mima. Even if Mima didn't want it, Yu Qingxiao still gave it to her. As for what Mima meant? because it was Tuesday, so she was called Mima. Mima wouldn't even realize that she was being called when she heard Yu Qingxiao call her by that name at first, but when Yu Qingxiao went all the way, Mima, come here and look, what's this, Mima, look at that big leaf, it's the first time I've seen it, Mima, try to see if this worm is edible, then Mima gradually realized that Mima was herself, Yu Qingliang would recognize the meaning represented by this minority language, it was also entirely because of the novels he used to read especially when they were in school. They were unusually obsessed with the matter of today's day of the week. That was why she had memorized these pronouns. But Mima gave her very little response. Apparently, in Yu Qingliang's eyes, Mima was a high-strung zombie. In life, she should have been a high-cooled person as well. But people who were not talkative like Shi Xingyu were talkative in the back. Therefore, Yu Qingliang thought that as long as he spent more time with Mima, she would also have something to say. Mima was also a local. Even after turning into a zombie, she was still familiar with this kind of place. She would sometimes stop, and Yu Qingxiao would follow suit. That plant, which eats the most zombies and goods, is the king of this mountain. 
At this moment, they were halfway up the mountain, but she pointed at a plant on the opposite side of the mountain and said, Yu Qingliang looked in the direction of her finger and saw a very large tree. The tree was a bit strange looking. The tall trunk looked white. But of course, that wasn't the most important thing. Rather, it looked like there was a huge heart underneath its crown, and it was even beating, and the bark looked like it had veins in it, and the crown of the tree was like an umbrella, while a dozen or so ball-shaped things were hanging below. When Yu Qingliang saw that tree, he almost wondered if he had traveled to another planet, or had traveled to another world. She wouldn't even be shocked if an elf or kobold emerged from the bushes later. Yu Qingliang immediately took out her cell phone and took a picture with the tree first, proving that she wasn't dreaming. Only after that did she take out her camera to take a picture. He even wanted to take pictures from all angles. Nima looked at Yu Qingxiao as she was about to get closer, so she pulled her back. You see those things hanging there? They're filled with animals and zombies it preys on. I was almost killed by it. You're just sending it to death if you go. Yu Qingliang sniffed and didn't care but also didn't go forward. Actually, it didn't matter if it killed her. Her life wasn't worth anything, but this cell phone and camera on her body, that was quite valuable. But Yu Qingliang didn't go any closer, but circled around this mountain. So the two zombies circled around for tens or even hundreds of kilometers. During this time Mima also gave Yu Qingxiao some dangerous plants. In short the plants in this place had turned into carnivorous plants. Yu Qingxiao looked at those plants, completely unrecognizable ah. At this time, Yu Qingxiao really needed a botanist to explain to her from the side, or a cell phone that could be connected to the internet so that she could take pictures and recognize them. But obviously, Yu Qingxiao's cell phone had already gone out of the signal area and couldn't receive anything. Still, she took pictures of the trees first. That was until she was crossing a small stream when she saw a large area of pretty little pink flowers. It was spooky enough to be able to bloom on such a cold day. Still, she clutched her camera and took pictures of the patch of flowers from every angle. Nima didn't stop her though stating that even if these little flowers were dangerous, they weren't enough to harm walkers or animals. At most, they would prey on some insects or something like that. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang stood up and went to the tree to get a bug as thick as her own index finger, and as soon as she placed it on that small patch of flowers, she immediately turned on the video recording function. The bug first twisted a few times, then a tentacle suddenly poked out from the center of the pink flower, thin like a butterfly's mouth parts. This tentacle stuck directly into the bug. There was one and then there was a second. In an instant this bug was covered in these tiny flower mouthparts. In less than 10 seconds, all that was left of this bug was a fleshy skin. Sure enough, these mutated plants didn't really have to be completely harmless. Yu Qingliang had a sudden thought, so he stretched his finger over. That little flower, however, did not react at all. Obviously, they were not interested in zombies. Yu Qingxiao withdrew his hand and then picked up the camera. It was also known that many plants were not interested in dead things even though they became carnivorous. Yu Qingxia took out his cell phone and took a picture with this small flower, and even pulled Nima over to take a picture together. Nima didn't put up much of a fight. It seemed that these advanced intelligent zombies weren't that resistant to taking pictures or anything else. Therefore, along the way, Yu Qingliang also took quite a few pictures of Nima. Nima had absolutely no idea why Yu Qingxia could be so free of any sense of danger. It was because many of the plants in this kind of forest were dangerous. Further on, she hadn't even been there. However, Yu Qingxiao suddenly saw the road sign. Since there was a road sign, it meant that there was a road on this mountain. She led Nima upwards, and Nima didn't feel any danger. So she followed Yu Qingxiao upwards. When she followed Yu Qingxian to a road, she was still a bit surprised. Nima was not aware that there was even a road in this kind of mountain. Once they reached the road, Yu Qingxian was obviously much more familiar with it. Instead, Nima was pulled around by her, following the road. Yu Qingxiao did go around the back of that tree. She had just stopped when she came across the image of the tree feeding. From the crown of the tree poked down a piece of something unknown like a red leaf. Yu Qingxiao immediately turned on her camera, and with the image zoomed in closer, she finally saw what that piece of something that looked like a leaf was. That piece of leaf was like a huge piece of bloody meat. It looked fat and thin, and even emitted a meaty aroma. She could smell it from several kilometers away. And Nima was already a bit stupid at this point, even though she knew it was a trap. The smell of blood and meat kept drawing her in. As she was about to move, her wrist was grabbed. Yu Qingliang took out the mask from his backpack, folded several of them, and got some plant juice to sprinkle on it, then put it on Nima. After putting on the mask, Nima really calmed down a bit. Her red eyes also darkened, and she didn't have the same raging sense of desire that she had just had. When Nima looked at Yu Qingxian, she realized that Yu Qingxian didn't have any mask and her eyes didn't have any desire. She was acting unusually, unusually unlike her own kind. 
Yu Qingxia watched Mima calm down and let go of her hand. She also didn't feel that there was anything wrong with Mima's appearance of looking like a snacker. Shi Laonyo also had times when she had a gluttonous drool running down her face. It was just that Shi Laonyo was a bit more protective and measured than Mima. But all of these things were instilled in the head of the walkers when they were alive. Everyone is different. So walkers are even more so. Because zombies, in fact, had no humanity. Yu Qingliang just stared at Mima for a while before withdrawing his gaze. This virus was something really cruel. It could turn a living person into a monster that only knew how to yearn for flesh and blood. Obviously, they didn't do anything wrong in life. Just because they were infected with the virus, they turned into monsters, something that would be driven to extinction as long as they were seen by humans. Yu Qingliang took the camera and continued to take pictures. Even if she cursed the heavens and the earth right now, there was no way to solve the difficulties in front of her, since the zombies had lost their humanity and were no longer considered human. Let the zombies become extinct. Let these once human beings truly sleep in peace. Yu Qingliang chose a place with a good location and kept observing that big tree. Almost half an hour later, that bait suddenly moved. What was originally a large leaf-like thing was now slowly turning into a ball. The animal inside was still struggling. Yu Qingliang pulled the focus closer again and realized that the animal should be some kind of carnivore. Black in color. It was not too clear what kind of animal it was. After struggling for more than 10 seconds, the animal stopped moving. Then it turned into a ball hanging below the canopy. The heart-like thing was faintly glowing red, and it throbbed a few more times. Yu Qingliang wondered if the tree would die if she fired a shot at that heart now. The only thing she had in her entire body was a gun and an axe that was considered more offensive. But Yu Qingxiao just imagined it a little and gave up. Yu Qingxiao and Mima had been wandering around the mountain for almost 7 or 8 days, watching Mima feed twice. And both times, it was Yu Qingxiao who found the target first. There was no way that she could detect any living thing once it entered her 3 kilometer radius. These were the easiest times for Mima to feed in a row. Because this little zombie, surprisingly, could also make traps and caught several mountain chickens. When Yu Qingliang carried the mountain chickens and stuffed them to Mima, he smiled and said, This trap is still something I learned from your people here. Mima was puzzled. She had never seen Yu Qingxiao. It's on video. Yu Qingxiao took out his cell phone and played a video for Mima to see, explaining that this was the video. Mima's red eyes looked over, somewhat curious, but the video was of humans and zombies fighting, the kind of zombies she hadn't seen before, and neither had the humans, she just hadn't gotten out of this place, for some reason, Mima didn't want to leave this place either, this person is very powerful, isn't she, she's an official person, that is, if we were humans, she's the one who protects us, but we're zombies now, if she sees us, then we'll be killed. Yu Qingliang showed Mima the scene of Gu Evening Ching fighting with the alienated zombies. Mima stared at Gu Evening Ching for a while, then said, This human is very powerful. Yu Qingxiao immediately nodded his head when he saw that Mima could actually tell. Yes, 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 super powerful, if you see this human in the future, don't even think about it and run immediately, remember? Yu Qingliang said in a serious tone, just like Shi Xingyu, for example, took her words to heart, so he was alive and well so far. If he really rushed up to fight Gu Evening Chang, it was probably not going to end well. Remember, Mima nodded. They returned to the county on the ninth day of their absence. The county town was still empty. The grain Yu Qingliang had stored for the Tyrannosaurus Rex was not finished. She got some and put it on the sled, ready to leave early the next morning. And Mima just stood at the door of the house for a while before turning around and leaving. Yu Qingliang didn't say anything either. She also didn't need walkers to engage in human relationships with her. She was a zombie. So of course, she could do whatever she pleased. Thinking about it, Yu Qingliang felt that she really didn't have much humanity left. This time, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was not angry and was very affectionate when he saw her. The fire in the house was not extinguished, and she did not know where the Tyrannosaurus Rex got the wood or something else. Yu Qingxiao felt that the longer the Tyrannosaurus Rex stayed with her, the smarter it got. This made Yu Qingxiao put the other picture of the Tyrannosaurus Rex in his backpack into the photo frame of himself and his parents and the Tyrannosaurus Rex's eyes immediately lit up as it watched Yu Qingxiao's actions. It could tell that the photo was of itself, and that the photo was the treasure that its owner had said it was. Now its photo was also placed with the treasure, so it was the owner's treasure too. This made the Tyrannosaurus grunted and circled around Yu Qingxian, wanting to see the photo. Only then did Yu Qingxiao put the group photo in front of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Look, a family of four, Yu Qingxiao said with a smile, but you're all older than me and mom and dad. Ha ha ha. What a hilarious group photo. Yu Qingxiao gave the Tyrannosaurus Rex a look, and then looked at it himself, and found it a bit funny, because the picture of the Tyrannosaurus Rex was really big. Putting it in the photo frame, it was so big, 
but the Tyrannosaurus Rex was just a big dog. It was good to be bigger. Bigger would be less likely to be forgotten by humans. The next morning, Yu Qingliang and the Tyrannosaurus Rex were leaving this place. She took out her cell phone and looked at the time. It was already November. Last year's November had already begun to see people with unexplained high fevers, and the weather was slowly getting hotter. It was just that no one at that time would have thought that disaster was slowly coming. On her birthday, the ambulance came several times in the neighborhood, but she only looked through the door of her room. But there were so many people who fainted because of the high fever behind them, and those who came back later with another fever had to be homebound. And with the weather heating up somewhat perversely, she was just trying to update at that point. Then the rest of the time was spent watching videos and playing games for a while. On the night of her birthday, which was November 2nd, Yu Qingliang was a bit feverish. But at that time, she didn't realize that the end times were coming. It was just that the world was different after a good night's sleep. There were news of zombies biting people everywhere. But at that time it was still manageable. Officials notified of any symptoms of fever. People had to be bundled up and locked in their rooms and then call the officials. In fact, Yu Qingliang thought to himself, that time if the humans obeyed instead of showing favoritism and showing any preference to their loved ones, maybe the situation in their country could really be brought under control. But it wasn't. Who would tie up their loved ones and lock them in a room? Yu Qingliang knew that she hadn't turned into the first batch of zombies once she thought about the fact that she hadn't woken up with any symptoms after seeing those zombies again. And while there were sounds coming from the entire hallway from time to time, there wasn't any screaming. Yu Qingliang opened the door of his room and saw the humans who had fled through the security door. When they heard the sound of the door opening, they all couldn't be bothered to turn around at all either. Yu Qingxiao just held a cup of hot water and watched those people fleeing through the security door. She couldn't do anything but stand like this through the security door. By the time she came back to her senses, the water in the cup had completely cooled down on the perversely hot day. Yu Qingliang closed the door to her room and continued her life. It was as if it wasn't the end times outside. It wasn't until the official broadcast appeared in her ears that she jolted awake and reached out to let the zombie tickle her. At that time Yu Qingliang clearly saw the official person at the entrance of the building looking at her with a shocked look on his face. And she just nodded slightly at the other party before closing the door to her room and even unlocking it. Although her body was hurting and uncomfortable, she still laid down on the bed. Yu Qingliang came back to her senses and looked at the date of November 2nd on her cell phone. It turned out that today, a whole year had passed since the end of the world happened. It was also her 29th birthday. She put away her phone and looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex that was circling around her. So she reached out and rubbed its head. It's fine. Let's go. Yu Qingliang smiled idly, indicating that she told the Tyrannosaurus Rex not to worry. She just suddenly thought of something from the past. Besides, when they left the county, Mima was standing at the intersection of the county instead. It was not known if she had come to see them off. Yu Qingliang waved her hand at her, unable to say the word goodbye, because she knew, probably will not see you again. When she came, she felt that she couldn't leave. But when she left, it was quite fast. In only three to five days, Yu Qingliang left this place. The more they walked, the more those bare mountains became. Of course, there were also snow-covered snow mountains that could be seen everywhere, as well as those salt lakes. The tip of Yu Qingxiao's nose started to drift snow again. It was also true that according to normal time, it was winter now as well. It was just that this messed up weather had caused her to have some surprises with such gentle snowflakes. Originally this was the normal snowflake. Now that this snowflake had become normal, she felt abnormal instead. The electricity hadn't been used much lately, and the map showed that her current location was nearly 700 kilometers or so from the nearest base. It wasn't like she was worried about suddenly encountering survivors. It was just that it had started to snow, and Yu Qingliang felt that the temperature should be a bit lower. She glanced at the temperature on her cell phone. It had dropped more than 10 degrees from half a month ago. It had finally broken through the minus 50 degree temperature. Although the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't look uncomfortable and she moved her arms, she didn't feel frozen. However, Yu Qingliang was still prepared to find a small county to stay for a while. It wasn't like they were in a hurry anyway. As for the Tyrannosaurus Rex's food, although there was not a single dog food left, but there were two goats as reserve food. Plus, there was a county ahead. So Yu Qingliang was prepared to wait and see. If it snowed heavily, he would stay in this small county for a while. There wasn't much cover around this kind of small county. So some of the zombies were probably chasing after living things to leave. There were also some that hadn't eaten and had fallen to the ground and rotted. As for the zombies that were still shaking on the streets, Yu Qingliang wasn't sure how they survived. Didn't Xu Xingyu say that if a zombie didn't eat for three months, it would slowly rot and die? Looking at these zombies that were alive and kicking around, Yu Qingxiao didn't look like they were going to die. It felt like she and the Tyrannosaurus Rex couldn't survive these zombies. Finding a house that looked pretty good, 
Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex stayed in it, because this kind of place was far from the center, a lot of things would need to be transported. After Yu Qingxiao settled the Tyrannosaurus Rex, he went to the supermarket to have a look, and a lot of food had a shelf life of 3, 6 or 9 months, but there were a lot of canned goods in such places, these canned goods have a longer shelf life, some were more than 10 months, some were 2 years, Yu Qingliang didn't hesitate to take these canned goods, as for those vegetables and stuff, Yu Qingxiao didn't think about it, they had all rotted away, and even if they hadn't rotted away, she couldn't eat the vegetables, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex couldn't eat them either. Yu Qingxiao looked at the pile of rotting leaves and saw that new vegetables had even grown. There were even a few mushrooms underneath the vegetables. This made Yu Qingliang pick the mushrooms and put them in his mouth. Even if they were poisonous mushrooms, they were not as poisonous as the zombie virus. Yu Qingliang put the mushroom in his mouth and chewed it. There was still no flavor, but she couldn't swallow it. Her mouth was all dry, so she could only look into the mirror to pick out the broken mushroom again. Surely not everything was edible. She took a paper towel and wiped her hands, looked around to make sure no one had seen the embarrassment she had just been in, and only then left with a cardboard box in her arms. It was like this back and forth several times. Yu Qingxiao then moved away all the food that could be eaten in this supermarket. Back in the house, the Tyrannosaurus Rex had skillfully smashed all the wooden furniture. It also made a pile of them. Yu Qingxiao picked up some of them and started a fire. The house was immediately colored with orange light. The firelight reflected in the big black eyes of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Flickering, Yu Qingxiao sat beside it and tried to raise her hand to roast the fire like a human. But actually, she couldn't feel the temperature. As soon as her body couldn't stand the temperature, her body would subconsciously shrink back, and the head would also tingle. Yu Qingliang then moved back. The snow outside was gradually getting heavier. Yu Qingxiao leaned on the body of the Tyrannosaurus Rex and looked at it for a while before he got up to get food for it. However, when Yu Qingxiao stood at the window looking at the snow, she saw what appeared to be two cars driving past on the distant horizon. She took out her binoculars to look at them, but other than the fact that the two cars looked bullish, she couldn't see anything. These cars were not familiar to her, obviously just one she hadn't seen before. Look at the two cars going in a northeasterly direction. It was not until the cars disappeared into the horizon that Yu Qingliang withdrew her sight. She took out the map to take a look and realized that going in that direction was Q province. This made Yu Qingxiao think of the fact that many female protagonists of post-apocalyptic novels would build their own bases, and the bases that they set up by themselves would choose places like the northwest that were off the beaten path. Especially the plateau lakes in Q City were the places that these heroines to wanted to settle. Of course, this was only Yu Qingliang's guess. It was possible that those two cars were the cars of one of the base's alien squad. And, it had nothing to do with Yu Qingliang. It wasn't like they were coming here. It was probably because it was snowing and people were rushing back to the base. Yu Qingxiao stayed in this small county for several days and realized that the snow had been falling all the time, without any sign of stopping. The Tyrannosaurus Rex couldn't afford to stay in this kind of small house. It had to go out for a walk every morning and evening. Yu Qingliang thought about it and went to get a large roll of plastic shed film from an unknown family and sewed an oversized raincoat for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. When the Tyrannosaurus Rex put it on, it naturally fit well. This way, even if snow fell on it, it wouldn't get its fur wet, and Yu Qingliang also wrapped up the valuable things on the sled, especially his own suitcase and that storage battery. After preparing everything, Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex went in the direction of the palace again. Sure enough the Tyrannosaurus Rex was in a much better mood when he embarked on the journey again. Although the highway was thick with snow, the sled came in handy, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which had become very large, had no difficulty at all walking on the snow. It even scampered. Compared to the south where the roads were full of cars, it was true that in this kind of wide place, walking up dozens of kilometers, one could not even see a car. Even those desolate looking mountain packs were covered with thick white snow. This made Yu Qingliang look like one cream cake after another. The dark clouds at this time were pressed down very low. Those dark clouds were like a layer of thick hats pressing down on the tops of the mountains. It was as if the mountain was holding up the dark clouds so that this cloud did not press down on the ground. Yu Qingliang took a few shots with his camera. Then he released the drone, wanting to take a look around. The main reason was that this section belonged to the main road of this province. It wouldn't be good if they encountered the base's alien warriors. She looked at the picture in the remote control and saw that she and the Tyrannosaurus Rex were actually inconspicuous in this kind of snow. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was originally white, and her down coat was also white. The color of the sled was also white. So from a distance, naturally, you can't see it too clearly. But the drone flew over the mountain pack and headed into the distance. And before Yu Qingxiao could react, the picture on her remote control suddenly started to go out of control. It was only then that Yu Qingxiao reacted to the fact that her drone seemed to have been grabbed by something. 
It wasn't until a vulture grabbed her drone and flew over her head that Yu Qingxiao was instantly petrified. She had forgotten that there were flying birds in the sky, but her drone couldn't be eaten at all. It was useless even if she grabbed it. Yu Qingxiao's thoughts had only fallen when the vulture grabbed her drone and crashed into the rocks on the mountain. Yu Qingxiao instantly leaned back on the sled seat. That was something she had brought from someone else. It was all told to the owner that it would be used properly. First one was knocked down by sesame cookie, and now one was dropped on a rock by a vulture. Yu Qingliang could only rage impotently at this point, but obviously, the attack power was completely negligible. The vulture liked to eat carrion, and when Yu Qingxiao reacted, he immediately hugged himself. It couldn't be that this vulture was coming to eat herself. Although her body was indeed dead, it hadn't started to rot yet. She couldn't afford to be a high monk and do the job of cutting her flesh and feeding it to the eagle. Luckily, after the vulture realized that the drone couldn't be eaten, it circled around the mountaintop for a while before turning around and flying away. Yu Qingxian watched the vulture go and first breathed a sigh of relief. After that, Yu Qingxiao reacted that the vulture was not a zombie vulture, but a living one. That could be a ration for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Chase, it's up to you if you can eat fresh tonight. Yu Qingliang pointed at the vulture's back and then slapped the Tyrannosaurus Rex's butt hard. And naturally, the Tyrannosaurus Rex turned its head and rushed out, quickly pulling the sled to follow the vulture. One was flying, one was running. All in all the speeds were surprisingly indistinguishable. However, Yu Qingliang still felt that the T-Rex won. He knew that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was still dragging 200 pounds of stuff and could still run fast. So it was definitely the Tyrannosaurus Rex that was much more powerful. And Yu Qingxiao was sitting on the sled. Although it wasn't much of a bumpy ride, he was still afraid that he would be thrown out. But the fact that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was running so fast and couldn't die from a fall for the time being made her start to feel hot-blooded. Anyway, she gave the Tyrannosaurus Rex directions, and the Tyrannosaurus pulled her along and rushed over. And at that moment there were two people sprawled out on a hill in the distance. They had recently come out to look for supplies. As long as they followed the vultures, then they would be able to find living things. But just as they reached this hill, the vultures suddenly turned in a different direction. As they were about to follow, that vulture came over again. Of course, this vulture was not the key to attracting their attention now. Rather, it was the big dog, pulling a sled with a man sitting on top of it. As for the dog and the man, they were chasing their target. What a hell! I saw a man with a dog chasing a vulture in the freezing cold. People are really brave nowadays. One of the men was wearing a thick winter coat with a cotton cap on his head. His face was not covered because he was using the binoculars, so he was freezing red. The other man took his binoculars at his words and looked over. Sure enough, he saw the man and the dog. Now that it was a year after the end of the world, the zombies had also evolved a lot. Ordinary people wouldn't go out of the base anymore. Plus now that the zombie king had evolved, occasionally, they would attack the base with a horde of corpses on a whim. Of course, the humans were not to be defeated casually. Over the past year, other than the food and clothing being a bit worse than before, it was fine. However, although their alien battle team often went on missions and lost members, the quality of life hadn't dropped too much. They had even gotten used to this kind of life. It was just that this was the first time they had seen someone living alone in the wilderness. Should we go after them? The one who spoke at the beginning asked the one next to him. And from the bottom of the slope came up another person. Can you see the vulture's trail? Found it. But a man cut it off halfway. Captain, should we go after it? That young man's eyes shone brightly. And he looked at the man walking up behind him. And just leapt into action. He did want to go after him. Because if that man dared to chase the mutant vulture alone with a dog then he really had some skills. Is that so? Then it's fine to chase up and take a look. That captain sort of agreed. Yu Qingliang was just a bit head over heels at this moment, only knowing to chase after the vulture, so she only reacted when the sound of the car was already approaching. Yu Qingxiao looked back and found that there were actually two cars following a kilometer away. However, it was also because of the creaking sound of her sled pressing on the snow, so she had heard the sound before and didn't care too much about it. As she looked at the cars that were getting closer, she immediately realized that these two cars seemed to be chasing the vultures. Yu Qingxiao immediately told the Tyrannosaurus Rex to abandon the vulture and turn in a different direction. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was puzzled. It had been chasing it for half an hour and was about to catch up, only to have its master tell it to change the road. And when the Tyrannosaurus Rex turned around and saw those two cars immediately knew, zombies and humans are mortal enemies, and its own master was a zombie. So the ones who could drive were humans. The Tyrannosaurus Rex converted and immediately headed in the direction Yu Qingxiao was pointing. But as they turned the corner, the car behind them followed suit. It was obvious that the two cars were following them. Yu Qingxiao glanced at the vulture that flew away and hated it in her heart. You're lucky today. Although she thought so, 
She started rummaging through her backpack, and there was nothing much in the way of lethal weapons, until she rummaged through the two smoke bombs that Sister Shi Xingyu had given her. Later she had studied them. They were press-type smoke grenades. As long as one pressed down that circle thing at the top, then that would activate this smoke bomb. Yu Qingliang thought about it. She didn't have any suitable weapons to use against these two cars. Looking at their cars, they should have been modified. In order to be suitable for traveling in such a place full of hills and snow, the car's chassis was very high, and it looked like a mountain bike. Window glass, not to mention, absolutely bulletproof and explosion proof, so that small pistol of his own would definitely not be able to penetrate it. Yu Qingliang pressed the button and threw it behind him, and this smoke bomb looked just like a grenade. As soon as she threw it, the two cars behind her immediately swerved and drove to the side. As soon as Yu Qingliang saw the scene, he grabbed his cell phone and took a picture first. It was too troublesome to pull out the camera, and after that smoke bomb landed, smoke appeared violently, blocking Yu Qingxiao's sled car tightly, and the two cars didn't expect that the other party threw over not a grenade, but a smoke bomb. Obviously, the other party didn't want them to follow. The captain of this squad got out of the car and waited for the smoke grenade to stop before this captain walked over and picked up the rest of the smoke grenade shells. He glanced at the logo and it wasn't something from the official base. It would be a homemade smoke grenade then. Captain. Still chasing? The teenager looked at the man and dog in front of him who had lost sight of him. So he plopped down on the passenger side and asked. The man called Captain was almost in his early thirties, with a scar on his forehead and stubble on his face. His eyes were fixed on the direction Yu Qingliang had disappeared in and he waved his hand, no need, chase after the vultures, although that person did intrigue him, and he could even tell that the other party should be a girl from the long hair that was exposed under the brim of her hat, but right now, it was still food that was more important, by the time the two vehicles headed in the direction the vultures flew away, both Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex poked their heads out from behind the hillside, actually, Yu Qingxiao didn't go far, he just went around behind the mountain, releasing that smoke bomb was also to tell these people not to follow her, Obviously, these people were sensible. They didn't really want to follow them all the way. It seemed that these people were also after that vulture. Yu Qingliang watched the car go far away and let the Tyrannosaurus Rex pull the sled to follow it from the side. That stinking vulture. Yu Qingxiao couldn't forget that it dropped his drone. It was Sesame Seed Cracker's reasoning of serving the country and the people that she was holding a grudge against. Not to mention the fact that this vulture had dropped her drone even though it clearly didn't kill. That was even more unbearable. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, on the other hand, was naturally happy to hear that it was going to go after the bird again. It pulled the sled, but it wasn't as anxious as before. They followed the car for more than 10 minutes before those two cars stopped. Yu Qingliang also looked towards that cliff. That place was a large, high cliff that looked like it had been split open by an axe. There was no snow on that cliff, but a group of vultures living there. But these people were not targeting the vultures. Before, it was that group of people observing Yu Qingliang with binoculars. But now it was Yu Qingliang's turn to observe those people with binoculars. Those people's target was a group of mountain goats under the cliff. Because the wind and snow in this area was blocked by the high cliff. Allowing this area to grow a meadow and even a not so small lake. And there were quite a few animals around. Obviously this was a freshwater lake. Yu Qingliang was a bit surprised. But when he thought about it. Wasn't this vulture eating animal carcasses? And where there were animal carcasses. The odds were that there were living things. Usually when animals died they either fought or died of disease, but in any case, many of the animals in this kind of plateau, many of them lived in groups, Yu Qingliang looked at those people who were really there to hunt, so he didn't look at them, instead, he went forward and walked under the cliff, of course, there was no approaching those animals, instead, she stopped right at the foot of the mountain, she took hold of her camera and just started lying on the snow to take pictures, it was only after Yu Qingliang took a few pictures of the animals that she suddenly thought, all the animals in this place were protected animals, right? It's inedible. So she immediately stood up and went to look at the animals that the people went to capture. At first glance, it was the herd of cows and sheep that were supposed to be raised by the herders. This kind is very good to recognize. What is illegal to eat? What is not illegal to eat? Probably this is the country engraved in the bones. However, all the animals seen in this neighborhood were mutated animals, and no zombie animals were seen. She was then a bit puzzled. Since there were so many living things in this neighborhood, it should attract a lot of zombie animals, but she didn't see any at the moment. After thinking about this, Yu Qingliang used her binoculars to look at the place where those vultures were standing, then it spotted half a zombie animal. Its head was still moving one way or the other, but half of its body was trampled by the vulture's claws. The carrion on its body was yanked up by one of the vultures. Seeing this scene, Yu Qingliang immediately understood. This vulture, 
It was considered a natural enemy of the zombie. The carrion of that zombie wouldn't rot like a real corpse. Instead, it maintained the basic elasticity of meat, and the blood hadn't completely coagulated. Thinking about it this way, the zombie's meat should be the vulture's favorite food. In other words, this place had instead become a paradise for these animals. After all, zombies or zombie animals coming over would definitely be targeted by vultures. When Yu Qingliang thought of this, he immediately retreated to the back of the sled. Don't let the head of this vulture flock see it. To be able to protect such a clear land, it was bound to be more than one or two alien animals. There might be others. Yu Qingliang secretly took some videos and photos and was ready to leave. But just as she stood up and was about to leave, she heard the sound of a fight in the distance. She turned her head to where the sound came from and saw an antelope chasing after the squad. The squad was also carrying several sheep. Obviously, even if these sheep were domesticated, they were now under the jurisdiction of that antelope. Anyway this small group was in too difficult a position to escape even though they had brought food with them. It was good that that leading sheep chased it to the top of the hill and stopped chasing it. Just as Yu Qingliang thought that this antelope boss was a person who knew how to behave. As a result, a ball of light appeared between the two horns of this antelope. This ball of light was flung by the antelope and flew behind those people, directly exploding a crater on the ground. When Yu Qingxiao saw this scene, he immediately hugged the Tyrannosaurus Rex tightly in fear. Da Beo, you have to protect me. Yu Qingxiao was so scared that he called the name of the Tyrannosaurus Rex randomly, because in that instant, not to mention the three words Tyrannosaurus Rex, even what her own name was she had forgotten. Not only did plants eat meat anymore, but now this animal's psychic abilities were even more bullish than humans. Fear fear fear. And after the group hit their prey, they just got in their car and drove off to sneak away. Sure enough, this kind of group of animals are not to be messed with. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was being held by Yu Qingxiao and it directly threw Yu Qingxiao onto its back. Yu Qingxiao was turned upside down for a moment, which brought her back to her senses. She looked towards the antelope across the mountain. That antelope was beautiful. All four legs were long and slender, and its fur was also beautiful. Standing in the white snow was a bit conspicuous. However, Yu Qingliang didn't think that its life would be in any danger. Just that one ball of light just now could have smashed how many people to death. The antelope size was also mutated and much larger. It made Yu Qingxiao think of the kind of spirit beasts in immortal cultivation novels. That antelope glanced towards Yu Qingxiao's side and turned its head back. It did not chase after the car. Yu Qingxiao only had time to take a picture of the antelope's back. Those two cars had already gone far away. And Yu Qingxiao also packed up his camera before letting the Tyrannosaurus Rex leave. Yu Qingxiao realized that the Tyrannosaurus Rex's psychic ability was of the electric system, and that antelope's psychic ability was probably of the same system as the Tyrannosaurus Rex's. However, the Tyrannosaurus Rex's was more like firing electricity from its body. That antelope, on the other hand, converged from the center of its two horns, and then this energy was able to detach itself from its physical body. But that's a bit of a long forward swing. If one encountered a faster one, it would still be a bit hard to react. Yu Qingliang felt that it would be safer to have an instantaneous ability like the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex, I still think you're the best. After Yu Qingxiao weighed the situation, he still uttered words of praise for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Although the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't understand why its master suddenly praised it, it was indeed very happy and ran even more cheerfully. That tail knocked on the sled with a thud. Yu Qingliang slapped its tail and didn't mind the pain. Walking to almost evening, Yu Qingxiao finally found a herdsman's house. The house was low and looked shabby, but Yu Qingliang could only make do with what he had. It was good that the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't mind it either. It was just that there wasn't much inside. There were only two beds, and the beds were only that kind of shoddy looking wooden boards. Yu Qingxiao didn't even think about it and just chopped it. Even the roof also extracted two beams whose positions were not very important. Then he used the axe to split them and burn them as firewood. Yu Qingxiao wondered if he should prepare some charcoal in the future. Otherwise, in a place like this, it was really hard to get wood to burn. But could the Tyrannosaurus Rex pull it? I'll have to try the strength of the Tyrannosaurus Rex some other day. Although the things pulled are getting bigger and bigger. They are almost all from this puppy. Otherwise it wouldn't be good to have no firewood for a fire when it was freezing cold. Yu Qingliang didn't know why. The people over here, really liked wooden furniture. Even this kind of herdsman's temporary residence home, the furniture were all wooden. And even had carvings and hand painting on them. Suddenly, it was a little embarrassed to be chopped up and used as firewood. Only this embarrassment only lasted for a few seconds. Upon seeing the Tyrannosaurus Rex enjoying the roasting fire, Yu Qingliang suddenly didn't feel embarrassed anymore. It was also good that this wood could save the puppy's life. It snowed for a few days and still showed no signs of stopping. Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't rush too much every day. Originally, with the speed of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, 
it could run about 300 kilometers a day, especially on this kind of road that didn't have any obstacles, the speed of the Tyrannosaurus Rex was even faster, but now that it was snowing and there was still enough food, it could travel almost 50 to 60 kilometers a day, but this place is small in terms of land and people, not to mention the post-apocalyptic period, there were also very few pre-apocalyptic period, of course, no man's land can be jammed with traffic during the peak tourist season, luckily, before the end of the world, there weren't that many people traveling to the northwest, that's why Yu Qingliang didn't see any traffic jams in this highland area, after walking for almost 7 or 8 days, only then did Yu Qingxiao see that white palace from afar, and this palace, was sitting in this daylight city, Yu Qingxiao had slightly known about it before, it was because this place bathed in daylight for a very long time, it was also a pure place that Yu Qingxiang had always wanted to come to, the last place Yu Qingxiang wanted to see, originally, after she finished looking at this white palace, she might have wanted to dig a hole and bury herself, but now, Yu Qingxiao had reasons for not being able to abandon herself so capriciously, in the past, it was mom and dad, but now it was Tyrannosaurus Rex, Yu Qingxiao was somewhat helpless, humans, always disrupt and even change their minds for various reasons, but there were indeed zombies in the city, and Yu Qingxiao didn't dare to bring the Tyrannosaurus Rex around, it was just really inappropriate to keep it locked up in the house, Therefore Yu Qingxiao unlocked the sled, then pointed to the white palace in the distance and said, You can go wait for me in there first, I'll come afterward. As for the sled, we don't need it, I've already been where I want to go, I'll follow you from now on. She was now ready to transfer all the photos from that unfrozen camera to her cell phone or another camera. That camera doesn't stand up to freezing, it's not very good. As for the two bouquets of flowers in Yu Qingliang's suitcase, Yu Qingliang was also ready to put them in this palace, because this was her destination once. But now, she had to move on and couldn't stay in this place. Then let these two bouquets of flowers sleep in this place instead of her former self. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was very cooperative and scampered away and disappeared. Yu Qingliang watched the Tyrannosaurus Rex run away before doing his own thing. With the experience from last time, this time, Yu Qingxiao finally didn't need to do it for a day and a night. It was done in just one morning. Yu Qingxiao placed his suitcase upstairs, which contained a few of his books, and the camera. These were the things that Yu Qingxiao had left in this place. After that, she held the two bouquets of flowers and headed towards the palace. Yu Qingxiao was still holding the flowers and taking pictures with the surroundings during this time, and slowly walked to the front of the palace. At this time, everything around it was white, making it look even more majestic and holy. When Yu Qingliang found the Tyrannosaurus Rex, she realized that it was waiting for her on the upper floors. She could only climb up slowly. In fact, there were many places that one would probably not be able to go to if it was before the end of the world. But nowadays, Yu Qingxiao was completely unhindered. Yu Qingxiao found a suitable spot and placed two bunches of flowers in that spot. She also had a portable printer for printing photos with her, which was only the size of her palm. Yu Qingxiao wrapped her arms around the Tyrannosaurus Rex and took a picture with the two bouquets of flowers, which was printed out and placed next to the two bouquets of flowers. After getting down from the palace, Yu Qingxiao found a cummerbund that was originally supposed to be put on the back of a horse or a cow to carry something and tied it to the body of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Inside was some dog food and some water. As for the sled, Yu Qingxiao of course did not intend to use it again. Anyway, there was no time to rush next. Let's just go slowly then. As for Yu Qingxiao's things, she only had that backpack on her body. She had bought that backpack before. And it could hold a lot of things. But she hadn't carried it a few times before. Now that she had been traveling for a year. Some parts of it were already a bit torn, but it was only a little bit scratched by the branches, so it wasn't a big problem. Inside, there was the gun, bullets, a photo of the four of them together, and a map book, but not much else. Things like the axe and the shovel were all on the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body. They were considered to be lightly loaded now. Yu Qingxiao looked around and there wasn't anything he wanted to go to before he said, Tyrannosaurus Rex, whatever you want to go to in the future is up to you. I'll follow you from now on. After the Tyrannosaurus Rex heard Yu Qingxiao's words, he chose a place to go even though he was a bit puzzled. Yu Qingxiao also followed behind the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Tyrannosaurus Rex knew that Yu Qingxiao walked slowly, so it slowed down its pace as well. Yu Qingxiao had nothing to do now. So naturally, he was holding his camera and snapping pictures everywhere. For them to be so leisurely, they walked less than 20 kilometers in a day. After Yu Qingxiao didn't build a fire for the Tyrannosaurus Rex one night and realized that the Tyrannosaurus Rex wouldn't feel cold without a fire, he stopped bothering so much. The T. Rex had no complaints about this. It wasn't until the end of December that Yu Qingxiao's cell phone finally connected to a signal again. This was because for almost nearly three months her cell phone only had a photo function. After entering the signal area, 
Her cell phone piled up more than a dozen messages in just three minutes. A few things about precautions against the cold. And don't panic if you get sick with a high fever. And notify the officials in time. Then there were a couple pictures of walkers attached. Said that when these several zombies encountered, try not to act alone. It is best to retreat in time. Yu Qinglian looked at the photos. There was no Ai Yi or Shi Xingyu on them. They were all zombies she didn't recognize. And these zombies were odd looking. They didn't look like intelligent zombies at first glance. Sure enough, she recognized just five intelligent zombies. Other than Xiao Ji who should get along well with humans, Nima should have no one in the deep mountains. Sure Xingyu and Ai Yi and Little Green Sister didn't appear on these notices either. But there was probably no way to leave alive when they met a human like Ai Yi. As for Little Green Sister, there was no telling if she could beat a human. For sure Xingyu, Yu Qingliang felt that he had instilled a lot of human thoughts in him, so there should be no problem. The latter one was to have all the spiritual alien to head to the capital base. This one made Yu Qingliang more curious. Because of the spirit system abnormalities, Yu Qingliang was also very interested. This kind of psychic ability was very powerful in any post-apocalyptic zombie novel. For example, the protagonist, or the villainous big boss. But now that the official government was looking for a spiritual psychic ability, would anyone really go for it? but officially looking for them. That meant that there was indeed a big official move. After this one scratched away, there were a few more messages, and the latest one was five days ago. It was one that needed people who had become psychics because they had been injured by zombies to travel to the capital base. When Yu Qingliang saw this one, she probably understood what the officials were trying to do. After all, the fact that those who were infected with the zombie virus did not turn into zombies but became Ultrans was enough to show that these people should have antibodies in their bodies. If a vaccine could be found, it would naturally be a very good thing for the people. Yu Qingliang didn't think that there was anything demented about this kind of thing. After all, many diseases in history that had certain death, after human efforts, were able to appear as vaccines. Medicines that could cure them appeared. There were even some diseases that had become extinct from this world. So Yu Qingxiao felt that as long as humans were given some time, they might really be able to defeat the zombie virus. Yu Qingxiao then thought of the existence of the crystal. Perhaps something could really be discovered from that crystal to fight the zombie virus. As for Yu Qingxiao, she felt that she wasn't really someone who was still alive after being infected with the virus. It was just the consciousness that was alive. In fact, the person had already been dead for a year. The Tyrannosaurus Rex did wander around after not having Yu Qingxiao to show him the way. Taking a look here, digging there, it was quite relaxing. Sometimes Yu Qingliang would take out dog food and ask the Tyrannosaurus Rex if it wanted to eat it. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex would refuse. I don't know if it realized that there wasn't much dog food, or if it really wasn't hungry. In any case, the Tyrannosaurus Rex had gone from eating twice a day in the past to only eating once every three to five days now. Yu Qingliang sometimes worried if it was because the Tyrannosaurus Rex was sick. Was it because he didn't make a fire for it when he slept outside? But looking at the way the Tyrannosaurus Rex had good energy and was in a good mood every day, Yu Qingxian wondered if he was overthinking it. But as long as the Tyrannosaurus Rex was in a good mood, Yu Qingxiao wasn't worried. Only when Yu Qingxiao opened the map, he realized that he was less than 30 kilometers away from the official base. In other words, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was heading in the direction where the humans were. This made Yu Qingliang startled. Although the Tyrannosaurus Rex had followed him for half a year and had not come into contact with humans, but the dog was very fond of humans. Even if they were lied to a hundred times by humans, they would still trust them a hundred and one times. So the Tyrannosaurus Rex following himself was very lonely, right? While Yu Qingliang was thinking this, the Tyrannosaurus Rex suddenly turned a corner and went in another direction. Obviously, it was all an accident that the Tyrannosaurus Rex would walk here. Yu Qingxiao retracted his head and gave the Tyrannosaurus Rex an apology. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, on the other hand, looked back at Yu Qingxiao in confusion. It didn't know why Yu Qingxiao was apologizing to himself. When Yu Qingxiao looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex's big clear eyes, he felt that the dog was still simple. Humans were all bad things that liked to speculate. She was no exception. It was the end of December when the clouds in the sky began to thin. Yu Qingliang was still in a bit of a trance when she suddenly saw her own shadow. After all, it had been half a year since she had seen the sun. It was just that even when the sunlight penetrated the clouds and shone onto the earth, the snow on the ground did not show any signs of melting. Yu Qingliang took out his cell phone to look at the temperature. It was still around 50 degrees below zero. Although it had risen a few degrees from before, it was still colder than in August or September. Yu Qingxiao was just about to put away her phone when she realized that she had received an unofficial unified message on her phone. It was unknown who had sent it to her. The text was short. What are you doing? It was followed by a cute little emoji. This made Yu Qingliang stare at it for a while before she was sure that it was indeed someone who had sent the number to her cell phone. 
because after the end of the world, the number of the cell phone was added to the number. In other words, according to the normal 11 digits, it was impossible to find her number. Not to mention the fact that this number of hers was gotten from inside the black market. It wasn't officially approved, and it was even more unlikely that anyone would know this number. So Yu Qingliang's first thought, could it be that the person who sent this message was that old black market brother? How was it that these people in the black market would secretly write down the numbers of those guests so that they would cooperate in the future? In reply to your message, Yu Qingliang thought about it and still sent the message back. As long as he didn't call or send video calls or voice, Yu Qingxiao felt that he was still good at communicating. Three minutes after the message was sent, there was a response from there. I mean what kind of things are you doing right now? Like eating? Or working? Yu Qingxiao looked at the question sent by the other party, then looked around. There was snow everywhere. One should be traveling. But this traveling wasn't suitable to talk to humans. After thinking about it, Yu Qingxiao replied back with two words, walking the dog. Although it was now considered a dog walking her. Because the Tyrannosaurus Rex had to look back at herself after a few steps, trying to get herself to keep up. It was just that Yu Qingxiao didn't know who this person who was messaging with her was. The number didn't show the region either. Just after five minutes, the other party didn't message her back either. So Yu Qingxiao felt that the other party shouldn't message back. She was just about to put away her cell phone when it rang again. Yu Qingxiao took it out and found that the other party had taken a selfie of her. It looked like a six or seven year old girl. I'm at the base and my dog passed away. But can I trade my selfie for a look at your dog? Yu Qingliang also did not expect that the other party was a small child. Looking at the environment behind her, it was next to the window and outside the window, one could see the tall black fence in the distance. This little girl was, indeed, in the base. Yu Qingliang thought about how humans today could only live in a base. The scope of that base might only be as big as a county, or a small town, but it needed to be inhabited by millions or even tens of millions of people. Then a family would at most get a 10 square meter hut. However, it was quite good to survive. After Yu Qingliang thought about it, she called out to the Tyrannosaurus Rex and took a picture of it and sent it over. That was all she could do. If that little girl wanted to touch the Tyrannosaurus Rex, there was really no way to do that. Yu Qingliang didn't want others to know about her, so she sent another message over, and that is, don't tell anyone about me, okay? And your mom and dad don't even say it. The other party replied this one quickly, don't worry, I won't say anything, because mom and dad have already passed away. I was rescued to this base after my sister. My sister is now studying as well as working in the base's school, and I'm the only one at home. I'm in central China base. Which base are you in? Yu Qingliang was slightly stunned as he looked at the message sent by the little girl. It turned out that this little girl's mom and dad had already passed away. It was with her sister who depended on her. The older sister was still in school, so she was bound to be a middle school or high school student. Yu Qingliang did not answer the little girl, but the little girl sent a few more messages one after another. First, she complimented the Tyrannosaurus Rex for its good looks. And after that, without waiting for Yu Qingxiao's reply, she sent a few more messages. One of them made Yu Qingxiao stare at it for a while. You pay attention to me. I don't dare to get in touch with anyone other than my sister. Messages like this. I've already sent out probably many of them. And you're the only one who replied to me. Yu Qingxiao stared at this message and replied somewhat helplessly. What about after I reply to you? What are you going to do? For some reason, Yu Qingxiao thought of herself after seeing that the other party didn't dare to make contact with others. It was just that she was completely different from this little girl. It was because Yu Qingxiao's childhood was quite happy. Although the world was also experiencing various disasters, none of them had affected her. And when the end times happened, there wasn't much panic and she didn't suffer much. But children nowadays were completely different. What they had to face were zombies that could eat them alive at any time. In the following days, Yu Qingliang would receive messages from this little girl. When Yu Qingliang was in a good mood, she would even send her a message back. Of course, normally, she would just pretend that she didn't receive it. As a zombie, it was surprising that she would contact humans. Yu Qingliang himself did not even know. Until half a month later, the little girl sent another message. A big sister surnamed Gu is here. She's going to come and pick me and my sister up to go to the capital base. The capital. I haven't been there yet. Although I'm a bit scared. But with my sister, I'm not afraid. When Yu Qingliang saw this message, he immediately guessed that this big sister surnamed Gu should be Gu Evening Chun. Sure enough, this woman was busy and never stopped. Is that so? Then congratulations. Capital A. Ah, she's been there. The little girl would only send a few pictures occasionally after that. There were pictures of her. And her sisters. Then there were pictures of the wilderness. There was even a photo of Gu Evening Ching sent in. Of course. Lu Nian. That is. 
This little girl had been praising how powerful Gu Evening Qing was these days, and it was the first time she had seen such a powerful human. Regarding this, Yu Qingxiao was also quite proud of herself. It was because she had already known it the year before. After 20 days or so, Yu Qingxian had become a letter friend with Lun Yan. Occasionally, Yu Qingxiao would also take a picture of the little snowman for Lun Yan. Of course, from December last year to the middle of January this year, Lun Yan didn't know how big the Tyrannosaurus Rex really was. Therefore, Lun Yan always called the Tyrannosaurus Rex puppy. Actually, Yu Qingliang was still a bit curious about what Gu Evening Qing and the others were going to do, since Lun Yan's sister would be called to the capital base. She was bound to be someone who had been infected with the zombie virus but hadn't turned into a zombie. Yu Qingliang was curious, but she couldn't come up and ask. Now that Lun Yan was also going to the official base, it was possible that her sister would also become an insider. Then she herself would be able to get information from Lun Yan's body. Thinking about it this way, it wasn't useless to amuse the child for these 20 days or so. Lun Yan was 7 years old this year, and small children had their own thoughts, because her sister, Ryushi, is a psychic. She should also belong to the mental system. Of course, there was no harm done, just that her sister's head became super powerful. Although in the words of Lun Yan, her sister Lucy was a student in the key class of the key high school before, almost the first kind in the city. But after awakening her powers, she became even smarter, and after only one year of the end times, she had already started researching some things on her own, and she also had a good life because of her sister. At least she didn't suffer much except for the beginning of the end times. After her mom and dad turned into zombies, Yunim did cry and still tried to pounce on them, but her sister locked her in the house, alone in the living room facing her mom and dad who turned into zombies alone. And when she reacted, she realized that the door to her room was locked from the outside, and she did have a lot of food and drinks in her room. It just lasted for two days until her sister pushed open the door to her room covered in blood. After that she was carried out of the room with her sister covering her eyes and into the official's car. She never saw her mom and dad again. Her sister also often told her not to be sad because her sister was still alive and so was she. Every time Lun Yan talked about her sister, Yu Qingxian could feel the little girl's pride in her words, but it was also true that Lun Yan's sister should be a very powerful person. At least she certainly couldn't be. Yu Qingxia thought that Lun Yan should have entered the capital base before contacting her again. It was only on the fourth day that Lun Yan sent another message. Sister, my sister said that Sister Gu is talking to a zombie. Sister Gu, is she going to be alright? Yu Qingliang was certainly a bit surprised when she saw this message. Gu Evening Ching had actually started talking to a zombie. It seemed that her guess was right. What Gu Evening Ching and the others wanted to do was indeed to try and make peace with the zombies. Right? Yu Qingxiao couldn't help but send a message over. Can you take a picture of the zombie's appearance for me to see? Only Yu Qingxiao didn't get a reply from Lun Yan. However, she also felt that this kind of request was indeed a bit of an imposition. Not all humans were like Gu Evening Cheng who dared to face zombies or even talk to them. Of course, her own situation was considered an exception. After all, she was still able to take a picture with a zombie. About 10 minutes later, Yu Qingliang's cell phone received a message, but it was sent from another number. Next time this kind of dangerous thing, let me do it. My sister she's still young. Seeing this message, Yu Qingxiao immediately knew that this was Lu Yan's older sister. Lu Xi. Just how did Lu Xi know that he was in contact with her sister? Could it be that little girl Lu Yan really wanted to get out of the car to take pictures? But yes, it was indeed a bit difficult for herself to let a little girl who was only 7 years old to take pictures of the zombies. However, she did not expect that Lu Yan's older sister, Lu Xi, did not call over to scold her, but actually went to take pictures for her. This made Yu Qingliang very impressed with this little girl Lucy as well. Yu Qingxiao finished reading the text before going to look at the photo. There were four silhouettes on the photo, and all four she recognized, especially that zombie that was chatting with Gu Evening Ching. She couldn't be more familiar with it. Wasn't that sure Lao Nyo? When did he and Gu Evening Ching become so familiar? Of course, the only ones facing the camera were the little sesame seed cookies. Apparently, Gu Evening Ching and that A Sheng still had times when Xing Yu didn't look at the camera. It was assumed that they didn't care even if they knew. Yu Qingliang was curious as to when exactly they got together behind their backs though. But she wasn't angry. Not at all. She really wasn't at all. After almost 10 minutes or so, Lucy sent another message to Yu Qingxiao. Team Gu said that this place is very safe. Tonight we're going to rest in this urban area for the time being, and it's only 4 or 500 kilometers away from the official base. So we should be there in a few more days. I've just gone and asked. Once this place had several alien squads die. Then a new zombie king came and took over the city, and there haven't been that many serious casualties since then. That zombie king was rare and not being brutal. So it seems like Team Gu made some kind of deal with him, a somewhat humane zombie for the time being. 
Lucy sent such a long text message and added a sentence afterward. Although I don't know who you are, but thank you for being willing to chat with my sister, as well as the matter of Team Goo. That's all I can say. The rest is classified and can't be told to you. Sorry. Then after sending this message, the messages from the two sisters Lucy Lunyan were cut off. Yu Qingliang also sent a message to Lunyan after a few days, but didn't get a reply. However, it was also true that a number of unknown origin like his own was probably not put into the official statistics, so it was only natural that he would be suspected. Yu Qingliang didn't care that these two sisters didn't care about her. She just, when exactly did that boy Shi Xing Yu cross paths with Gu Evening Ching? When he came to find himself before, Shi Xing Yu hadn't said anything about it either. But the matter of occupying the city, she probably knew when it was. After all, he had broken one of his hands. A zombie king who could command a city's zombies was bound to be not easy to mess with. To know a city's zombies how to say there are hundreds of thousands or even millions of it. Bigger cities have 5 million zombies. The original Shi Xing Yu so powerful? She didn't even feel anything. She only felt that pulling the suitcase went quite fast. Without the news of the two sisters, Yu Qingliang didn't change much. If this was a normal person, it would probably be lonely. But Yu Qingxiao had long gotten used to being alone. As the Tyrannosaurus Rex walked, he realized that Yu Qingxiao had disappeared. Once it turned around, it saw Yu Qingxiao climbing up a small hill. When it was a bit puzzled, it saw Yu Qingxiao lying directly on the top of the hill, rolling down the hill in a long line. Even Yu Qingxiao's mouth dubbed itself, Gollum Gollum. Then Yu Qingxiao rolled all the way from the top of the mountain to the foot of the mountain. But it wasn't like she was wrapped up into a snowball by the snow like she had imagined. The snow just didn't stick to her at all. She climbed up and rolled several times until she saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex smashing the snow with its tail. And only then did Yu Qingxiao get up from the snow. Alright, let's go. Yu Qingxian patted the snow scum on her body. The Tyrannosaurus Rex watched Yu Qingxiao walk forward. Before he followed, without a destination. Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex just walked for a while to have some fun. The heavy clouds on these heavens finally dispersed a bit. The blue sky once again appeared in Yu Qingxiao's eyes. Originally there was no blue sky sunshine is very beautiful plateau. Now is even more beautiful that she is a little reluctant to go. It is no wonder that when many of those cycling bloggers arrive at this place, the scenery is beautiful without a filter. Sure enough, it is a plateau, and everywhere you look there are high snow-capped mountains. Of course, now this situation, not to mention the northwest plateau, I guess even the southern coast, it is also a piece of white. Until the beginning of February, Yu Qingliang was still hanging out on the northwest plateau, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex liked this kind of place. Maybe it was because of the width, maybe it was also because of the snowy mountains. Anyway Yu Qingxian would also follow the Tyrannosaurus Rex to climb those kind of high mountains, wanting to reach the clouds, and she also received the message again at the beginning of February. It meant that she was within the range of the base's signal again. The number Yu Qingxiao had given to the two sisters, Lu Si and Lu Nian, earlier had been noted. The one who sent the message was Lu Si. We've arrived at the capital base. What's surprising is that there's a zombie king living outside the capital base. But this zombie king doesn't attack humans at will. It's true that there are quite a lot of zombies with different personalities. And I'll also have to trouble you to accompany my sister to have a chat afterward. I'm going to start getting busy. Thank you. Obviously, Lucy still had some trust in Yu Qingliang. Mainly because Yu Qingliang never asked about confidential things either. Chatting with her sister was also something that her sister sent out more while the other party replied less. The other party even had a dog, obviously a very powerful person, and also her own sister took the initiative to contact the other side. Their own future may see her sister every day time is very little. There is a person can accompany her sister to chat. Only Lucy sent it over. The other party did not reply, but she didn't care, and put her cell phone in her exclusive locker, and turned towards the lab. Even though it was hard now, Willoth knew that they were working hard now so that in the future people like her own sister would no longer have to accept the pain they were feeling now. Lucy pushed open the door of the laboratory and looked at the seniors inside who had already struggled for a year, but also only uttered a sentence of please teach them more in the future. As for those polite words, they were also completely unnecessary. Yu Qingliang looked at the message sent by Lucy, looked at it, and did not reply. She didn't think there was anything she needed to reply to. It was estimated that the other party would not need herself to reply to her either. Yu Qingxiao put her cell phone back in her pocket and looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex that had already run away. So she chased after it. In fact, compared to what Lu Si was going to be busy with, Yu Qingliang was more curious about whether Shi Xingyu had recognized his sister or not. Of course, Yu Qingxiao felt that Gu Evening Ching was also really capable of contacting Shi Xingyu. But, all that was going through Yu Qingliang's head were the words that Shi Xingyu had said to himself. It was impossible for zombies to look at their food equally. 
They spoke human language just to swindle humans, so cooperation with humans was also a lie, right? Yu Qingliang suddenly stopped walking and directly squatted on the ground. So what the hell was Shershing you up to? First, he killed the zombie king who massacred humans indiscriminately and replaced it himself. And now talking about cooperation with humans. In fact, Yu Qingliang was now pulling on both sides. That is, if Shershing you was talking about cooperation with others with his own selfishness, then he had a high chance of success. But if the person Shershing you wanted to talk about cooperation with was Gu Evening Ching, then the possibility of him failing was 99.9. .9. After all, Gu Evening Ching is the suspected candidate for the big heroine of the post-apocalyptic text. So Yu Qingxian thinks that if Shershing you has any ideas, Gu Evening Ching is probably aware of them. But Shershing you wasn't a fool. He had revealed so many things about Gu Evening Ching to him. That was for him to absolutely not provoke Gu Evening Ching. But he still took the initiative to reach cooperation with Gu Evening Ching. This was puzzling to Yu Qing Xian. Thinking of this, Yu Qing Xiao stood up. Forget it, what did it have to do with her? If it was true that Shershing Yu had made a mistake, then there was nothing good that could come of it. He had already helped what he could, and as for what he was actually going to do, Yu Qing Xiao had no way to ask him directly. Although he was supposed to be in a city between the central China base and the capital base, but there were quite a lot of cities in between, and there was no telling which city this kid was actually in. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao took out her map book to look at the cities between the central China base and the capital base. After looking at the map for a while, she probably knew which city it was. Indeed, that place was in the middle of the two bases and connected the east and west as well. If there was really a vicious zombie king place there, it was indeed not a good place to go. So perhaps Xu Xingyu had his own considerations as well as other reasons for going to kill that zombie. After all, the expression on Xu Xingyu's face at that time looked like he had eaten shit. So Yu Qingliang felt that there should be something nasty between these two zombie kings. After that, it was Gu Evening Cheng who went from that place and realized that the king in this city had been replaced with another zombie. That's why she had the idea to get in touch with Xu Xingyu, right? Forget it, she couldn't guess even if she guessed. Maybe she would slowly find out later. The Tyrannosaurus Rex brought Yu Qingliang to a small city. And Yu Qingliang took a look and realized that she had already arrived in Q province. But there was still some distance from the lake that was known as the Pearl of the Highlands. After Yu Qingxiao entered the city, she realized that the zombies were a bit more active. She took out her cell phone to look at the temperature and found that the current temperature had risen more than 10 degrees from before. It was still bitterly cold for humans, but it was also much better than before. Yu Qingliang reached out and waved the air, feeling no temperature. Without the sled, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was a lot lighter. And even if it went towards a place full of zombies, it wouldn't be hurt by the zombies at all. Even when Yu Qingliang was lying on his back looking at the clothes in the window that was full of cracks, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was like it was at a playground. Running here, jumping there, watching those zombies wailing and chasing after it. Even when those zombies couldn't catch up with it, it backed up and waited for those zombies. Yu Qingliang looked at its happy appearance, so he grabbed the camera and took a picture of it. Those zombies were really fooled by it. Yu Qingxiao took the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the pet hospital again, although she was completely incapable of doing examinations. But still, she let the Tyrannosaurus Rex get on the scale and weighed it. When Yu Qingliang looked at the weight on the scale, she couldn't help but look at the Tyrannosaurus Rex. You're surprisingly over 200 pounds, so you're not just falsely fat. Yu Qingliang reached out and rubbed the Tyrannosaurus Rex's big head. Indeed, the Tyrannosaurus Rex looked mostly bigger than himself now. Just like a small car, especially with its white dog hair, it looked even bigger. Yu Qingliang took a ruler and measured its height. It was 1 meter 6 from its head to the ground. No wonder when it squatted and sat on the ground, he could completely hide behind it. And the distance from the back to the ground was a little less than 1 meter 3, but it was considered exceptionally tall. From the nose to the tail, there was really nearly 2 meters. Yu Qingliang used to think that it had 2 meters because he thought it was really big and exaggerated, but when he really used a ruler to measure it out, Yu Qingxiao was still taken aback. It was already completely like a half-sized calf. Yu Qingxiao looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So he took some insect repellent and dotted it on the back of its neck. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was quite cooperative. It was just that she didn't know if that small amount of medicine worked or not, so she ordered several more. She watched the T. Rex for a while and saw that it didn't react. Then she started to look for dog food, but a lot of the dog food had actually expired, and some were still within the shelf life. Yu Qingliang wasn't sure what was wrong with the Tyrannosaurus Rex eating these expired dog food. It was just that in a city like this now. This was the only place where one could find food for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The things in those supermarkets had also long expired and were inedible. So usually, a year after the end of the world, there were fewer people in the city who came to look for supplies. 
This time of year it's all about going out into the wild to hunt mutated animals, to see if there were any fruits and such. However, Yu Qingliang felt that with their country's cultivation techniques, they were actually more competent at eating. After all, their ancestors had starved hard, causing their descendants' bones to be filled with the gene for farming. Even autistic kids like Yu Qingxia would think about planting flowers and plants on their balconies, even thought it was okay to plant some vegetables, some of which grew or were appreciated. Even if today's soil and water were contaminated by the virus, humans had been living for more than a year, the body also had resistance, and those plants that were mutated and zombified, it would be fine to just pull them up. Just because the process was more trivial, it was more suitable for people with patience. Yu Qingliang thought so and looked down to see the Tyrannosaurus Rex himself going to get the dog food. Obviously these dog food had been kept at a low temperature level, preserved relatively intact, and there was absolutely no sense of any deterioration. Yu Qingliang couldn't smell it either, so he could only let the Tyrannosaurus Rex pick it out himself. After the Tyrannosaurus Rex dragged out a few bags, it stopped moving. Yu Qingxiao then loaded these several bags of dog food onto the cummerbund on its back, because he was afraid that the heavy objects would hurt its waist. The pouch was placed on its shoulders. Fortunately, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was very large, so it could barely put down the nearly 100 pounds of dog food. Then Yu Qingliang went out and got quite a bit of ice and came back. She didn't turn it into water and bottle it, but slowly extracted distilled water. This extraction of distilled water was day and night. Yu Qingliang was afraid that the Tyrannosaurus Rex would be too annoyed, so he removed the pouch and let it play with the zombies on its own. However, it seemed that the Tyrannosaurus Rex could also maintain its strength and vigor through the crystal cores, so Yu Qingxia told it to get some more. Then this dog food could also last a while longer. So after Yu Qingxia let the Tyrannosaurus Rex out, the city started to fly. One moment, the zombies were chasing the Tyrannosaurus Rex through the door, and the next moment, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was chasing the zombies through the door with all the electricity. It was an endless bullishness, and Yu Qinglian was tired of watching it while sitting on the sofa. After a few days, Yu Qingxiao was able to get a few bottles of distilled water. After packing up, Yu Qingxiao was ready to leave the city with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Of course it was also this time that Yu Qingxiao received a message from Lun Yan. Good New Year. Good New Year for the dog too. Yu Qingxiao opened his calendar and realized that today was New Year's Eve. Time had flown by really fast. It made Yu Qingxian think of last March when she was setting off fireworks in the city to the east. Other people didn't dare to set them off. But she did. Lun Yan did not receive a reply from the other party and naturally her heart was a little worried. She sent several more messages over in succession. Finally the opposite party sent a message over. Happy New Year's Eve. Want to see fireworks? Lun Yan stared at this message for a while, naturally surprised and delighted. But as soon as she thought of the current era, Lun Yan replied, although I want to see it, the sound and light will attract zombies and zombie animals. I can secretly search for previous videos to watch. It's okay. When Yu Qingliang saw the message, he thought that Lun Yan was really a good kid. At seven years old, she already had to think so much, but she really isn't afraid of zombies or zombie animals ah. It felt like in today's post-apocalyptic world, she was the only one who could carry a stereo around, right? Yu Qingliang didn't reply to Lun Yan's message. Instead, he took the Tyrannosaurus Rex and went to look for fireworks. I don't know if the fireworks can still be set off nowadays. After finding them, Yu Qingxiao even tried them first. He found that it was still okay. Instead, it was the Tyrannosaurus Rex that was scared by the firecrackers. It couldn't be helped that the Tyrannosaurus Rex's sense of hearing was also very sensitive. Yu Qingxiao was afraid that some of the fireworks would get damp, so he even built a fire on the roof and roasted it. Then he just sat on the roof and waited for it to get dark. After waiting for it to get dark, Yu Qingxiao started dragging the pile of fireworks over and lit them. Although they weren't as pretty as other people's professional ones, Yu Qingxiao thought they were pretty good. She put her camera aside to record and her cell phone also recorded a video. Almost every firework recorded a video. Finally, she chose the most beautiful one and sent it to Lun Yan. Yu Qingxian set off the fireworks and naturally, the sound was heard in the empty valley. A dense crowd of zombies gathered downstairs. There were even some secondary and tertiary zombies climbing up from the outer wall. However, the Tyrannosaurus Rex had long since run away, and this place was only by itself. When she saw a level 2 zombie climbing up, she even smiled and greeted the other party. Happy New Year's Eve ah! You come to see the fireworks too? And that zombie looked around and saw that there were no living things around, so it felt that it had been tricked. It stood on the roof of the building and cursed Yu Qingliang for a while before jumping away. Hey, I'm the one who showed you the fireworks, how can you call me a psychopath? Yu Qingxian said, so she picked up a firework and lit it up and took a shot at its back. Everyone was a zombie, so she wasn't worried about anything. After all, 
zombies were only interested in food. It wasn't like they would stare at themselves or look at themselves with measuring eyes, much less would one need to take the initiative to talk to it or even try to please it. In short, getting along with people was the world's number one problem for Yu Qingliang. Getting along with zombies was much easier, because Yu Qingxiao, as a person, was really worried about how others would think about her actions. Even when she was chatting with others on the internet, she had to deliberate for a long time when she sent a paragraph, to the point where she just gave up. It was because she realized that no matter what she said, it was going to be misinterpreted. From the beginning, she would also express her own opinion. To the later point alike and scratch away, there are quite a few words in her heart that she wants to say, but in the end, she just think forget it, because explaining it was really troublesome. When Lun Yan received Yu Qingxiao's video text message, she was naturally a bit shocked. She hadn't thought that the other party could actually set off fireworks, and it was still at night. It was important to know that at night the hearing and vision of zombies increased exponentially. There were also various zombie birds as well. The zombies still have fences that can withstand them, but the zombie birds can't. Today's humans are researching to install a cover-like thing over the base. If the zombie birds attacked, the lid could be activated. But this kind of cover is fine for a small area, but a base. That cover would be too big. With the current technology, there was no way to reach it. But her sister said she would try. So Lun Yan thought that when she grew up, she would also try to develop it. She also wanted to be a scientist. Yu Qingliang received a text message reply from Lun Yan. The little girl first thanked Yu Qingxian and then also said her New Year's wish and also told her to be safe, because Yu Qingxiao did not state her age and gender. So Lun Yan directly called out her brother, sister, uncle, aunt, uncle and aunt. This made Yu Qingxiao feel funny. Of course, Yu Qingxiao just returned a cheer and said nothing more. After Yu Qingxiao put out the fire on the roof of the building, he was ready to go downstairs, and a few zombie birds flew from the roof of the opposite side of the building, and seemed to have squatted upstairs without seeing anything alive. Yu Qingxiao went downstairs and took out his cell phone to check the temperature. It was found that the temperature had risen some more. Thinking so, this cold spell should be almost over. It was just the beginning of a new year, and Yu Qingxiao certainly hoped that the more humans lived, the better they would be. But the reality was of course impossible. When it was around 4 in the morning, Yu Qingxiao saw a bright light in the sky coming down from overhead. It shouldn't be considered to the extent of a meteor. It should be a meteorite. Just don't know where this meteorite landed. Yu Qingxiao watched as the bright light streaked towards the eastern sky and disappeared into the horizon. However, she didn't hear the sound of the meteorite hitting the ground. It was thought to be really far away. Just as Yu Qingxiao felt that her life would be considered complete if she could see a meteorite smashing on the ground. Of course, it would be best if it smashed in a place where no one was. But when the second and third one smashed down, Yu Qingxiao felt that things were not that simple. One in particular felt like it was pressing down on the top of his head. It was just that even though it looked like it was coming down on top of her head, it passed by where she was and headed towards the north. Until that meteorite disappeared, Yu Qingliang wasn't sure if it would land on domestic territory. But by the looks of it, it shouldn't be too big. It was almost 20 minutes or so before Yu Qingxiao felt the ground shake slightly. It was followed by a strong gust of wind, and then it was instantly quiet again. Yu Qingxiao's cell phone also rang at this time. It was found to be a message from the official. It said that 18 meteorites were detected to have landed on Earth. One of them landed on the northern border of the country. And currently there were no casualties in the country. And the signal was not affected for the time being. As for whether the meteorite would appear again in the follow-up, it had not been observed for the time being. Yu Qingliang thought of something, she took out her map book, then shrunk the map and then shrunk it again, and indeed saw the global map. There were 18 red exclamation marks labeled on it, indicating that these 18 places should be where the meteorite fell. And among them, that meteorite that fell in the country was almost 400 kilometers away from her. In other words, she was probably the closest to this meteorite. Thinking of something like that, Yu Qingliang naturally wanted to go and take a look. But with this kind of meteorite falling on the ground, the officials would definitely take action. Yu Qingxiao didn't know how big the meteorite whose residual power could spread over 400 kilometers was. But the strong wind that reached the city was estimated to be as strong as 7 or 8 winds. As for the temperature Yu Qingxiao wasn't really able to feel it, but when she stepped out of the house, she noticed that there were traces of melting snow and ice on the ground, so that meant the temperature should be quite high. Yu Qingxiao took out her cell phone and glanced at the temperature, which was probably around 3 degrees at this point. In other words, the hot wind that came out from the impact of this meteorite instantly made the temperature in this neighborhood pull up 20 to 30 degrees. However, after the wind blew, the temperature was decreasing. About 10 minutes it dropped 6 or 7 degrees. By the time 5 o'clock rolled around, the temperature had dropped to about 20 degrees below zero again and didn't drop any further. 
Yu Qingliang looked at the temperature for a while and immediately went to look for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. When she saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex, she was relieved to find that there was nothing wrong with it. It was just that right now. Yu Qingxiao couldn't see what effect it had on it. Yu Qingxiao then brought it around the house for several hours, making sure that nothing seemed to be wrong with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but Yu Qingxiao was still relieved. After all, some things didn't react in just a few hours, like many of the videos she had watched. They all changed slowly, or the offspring had problems, but Yu Qingliang just observed for a few days, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't feel uncomfortable, and the temperature did rise as the meteorite landed. From the previous minus 20 degrees or so, it was now 1 or 2 degrees above zero. Those ice that probably hadn't melted for half a year were also slowly melting. Yu Qingliang looked at his snow boots and finally went to change into a pair of rain shoes. Because the ice was melting now, wherever there was a low-lying area, there was a layer of water. Yu Qingxiao was also a little worried about whether the Tyrannosaurus Rex's feet would have problems if they kept soaking in the icy water. But fortunately, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was very smart and always went to the high places, trying not to let their feet soak in water. Plus this place was already pretty high up, so all this water went down the river. With so much ice melting into water, Yu Qingliang felt that the lower reaches of the river were probably going to have another flood. However, the officials should have been able to anticipate this as well. Looking at the locations of the bases on the map, none of them were in low-lying places that were prone to flooding. When it was almost March, Yu Qingliang really saw the official convoy in the direction of the meteorite landing. Both Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex avoided walking. But because the closer they got to this place, the more official people they encountered. Because Yu Qingxiao was already out of the signal range of the base, he couldn't receive the information. So it was unknown just how many people came to this place. It wasn't until March that Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex sneakily arrived at the place where the meteorite landed. This place was at the junction of Q and N provinces. However, she had expected it to be like any other meteorite. Only a crater could be seen. And as for the meteorite, it had shattered. After all, Crashing down from such a high place, it was bound to shatter into pieces. And when she saw that dark meteorite lying in the crater in good condition, there was a moment of brain downtime. This was out of order. But when he thought that he had turned into a zombie and still maintained human consciousness, he felt that this world no longer needed the common sense of the past to judge. So this kind of meteorite didn't turn into debris and fly everywhere for good reason. So Yu Qingxiao didn't dwell on it. Yu Qingxiao looked around with his binoculars and did not see Gu Evening Cheng. She didn't know if she hadn't come or if she had already come and left, but she saw one of these people who seemed to be in a position of leadership, a young girl who looked very young, appearing to be only 18 or 19 years old. Although she was young, the people around her seemed to listen to her, and didn't have any reluctance to be commanded by someone younger than themselves. When Yu Qingxiao thought about it, this kind was probably the genius of geniuses. Yu Qingxiao originally thought that she had arrived at this place and was already outside the signal range of the base, so she shouldn't be able to receive messages but her cell phone dinged in her pocket. This made Yu Qingxiao immediately understand that it was because there was a signal here, and the source of the signal was the distant garrison. She picked up her phone and tapped on the messages surprisingly there were dozens of them. Two of them were official, and the rest were all from Lunyan. There were two or three every day, just like clocking in. Even if Yu Qingliang didn't reply, the little girl was still able to send her a message. She was really patient. Lunyan said that she hadn't seen her sister for most of a month. Nowadays the people who take care of her life are the official people, saying that in the capital base, life is a lot better than before, but she is not that idle now because she has to take classes now, and nowadays the study of culture and martial arts classes together. Just for example, if you like cultural lessons, then you will specialize in cultural lessons, just that the cultural lessons nowadays are different from the previous ones, and you need to start touching the experiments. As for martial arts classes that would be very simple, need to work on their physical strength, and in the future, they definitely want to enter the official team or the alien war team. But even so, students who chose different directions still had to learn cultural or martial arts classes. It's just that the focus is different. On the other hand, Lu Nian wanted to become a scientist. So naturally, he had to choose the culture class. Then there were all the daily routines. And Yu Qingliang had read them all. Until the message that was sent three hours ago, made Yu Qingxiao more concerned. That was that Gu Qing seemed to have had a quarrel with her leader which she had accidentally seen. As for what the quarrel was about, Lun Yan couldn't hear it too clearly, only that after they had quarreled, they even went to the cafeteria to eat together. This made Lun Yan very shocked, because she and her best friend quarrel or several days do not care about each other. But it was clear that these two were arguing one second, but the next second they were able to have a dinner date. Yu Qingliang saw this message and thought that Gu Evening Ching had a clear separation. Work was work and life was life. 
It seemed that Gu Evening Cheng's leader was also a clear-cut one. It was true that protagonists were not ordinary people, and protagonist leaders were not ordinary people either. Even if it was because of a work quarrel, Yu Qingxiao felt that she couldn't afford to eat with the other party after work. She would have to be angry for a while. Of course, Yu Qingxiao only thought she would be like this, but in fact, she didn't have much work experience. There were friends on the internet, but then they were also cut off because of a momentary thing. Now that she thought about it, she didn't know how that close friend was doing nowadays. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao withdrew his thoughts. In fact, Yu Qingxiao was more curious about what Gu Evening Cheng and her leader were arguing about. Being able to argue showed that what Gu Evening Cheng wanted to do was indeed very bold. Yu Qingxiao just replied back to Lun Yan that there was no signal before. Of course at this time the little girl was probably in class so she didn't reply to her message. Yu Qingliang used his binoculars to look at the people who were stationed there. Looking at these people all went to study that meteorite. Then everything was sent to the tent where that little girl was staying. Obviously, that little girl was also the one who was hosting the exploration of this meteorite this time. What kind of person is that, to be so powerful? How did the brain grow? Can't it be that it's Tianshan Tongmu? In fact, it is a bit old. Just look young. Yu Qingliang gave himself a slap on the face when he thought so. You can't judge a person by his appearance. But with so many people here at this meteorite, there was definitely no way for her to look at it. She just took out her camera and took a few pictures and left. Although Yu Qingxiao said to let the Tyrannosaurus Rex lead the way and she followed the Tyrannosaurus Rex. But occasionally, it was still Yu Qingxian who decided where to go. This time, coming in the direction of the meteorite was also something Yu Qingxian wanted to see. At the beginning of March, the temperature officially warmed up. In fact, Yu Qingxiao was a little worried about the next temperature. Whether it would be a constant high temperature. After all, most of the previous half of the year had been freezing cold. If it suddenly became hot, there was no telling if the human body would be able to withstand it. When the temperature entered 15 degrees, Yu Qingxian took off the pile of down jackets and coats on her body, and changed into a lightweight little dress. Yu Qingxian noticed that her skin wasn't green anymore, but it had returned to its initial color. It was still greenish gray. As far as her current appearance was concerned, she wouldn't stand out when mixing with the zombie horde, because everyone was one color. Other than the fact that she was cleaner, there wasn't much of a difference. Yu Qingliang knew at this point that she had indeed turned green because she had soaked in too much potion. Next time, she would look for something to repel insects that she could put on her body. That way, there would be no need to soak in medicine. As expected, once it was a hot day, Yu Qingxia was worried about his body getting insects, because even if there were wounds on her body, and she got flies laying eggs in them, Yu Qingxian wouldn't feel it. That was what worried her. As the weather became hotter, not only did Yu Qingxian not want to go out and move, but even the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't want to go out and walk. The zombies on the streets were also somewhat wilted by the sun. Although the zombies could overcome the bitter cold, there was no way to resist the heat of the sun. The temperature wasn't particularly high right now, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex already didn't want to go out. I really didn't know how it had gotten through such a hot summer last year. Or is it that the T Rex has also been spoiled by itself? I don't know if the Tyrannosaurus Rex sensed Yu Qingxian's doubts, but it even got up and left the house. Yu Qingxiao could only put on his umbrella and followed. The big white dog was basking in the sun, and it was even somewhat reflective. This big white dog could be seen from afar, but she looked at her own parasol and felt that she couldn't go any lower. What kind of zombie would wear an umbrella? Forget it, no one would see it anyway. Yu Qingliang followed behind the Tyrannosaurus Rex and wandered around without a purpose. They walked out of the city and followed the road to the east. The mountains on both sides were loaded with white clouds. It was beautiful. Yu Qingxiao raised his camera and took a few more pictures. Then he took a few more shots at the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The highway was a bit dilapidated at this time, and the surrounding yellow hills looked quite unique. It was just that I didn't know if this extreme weather today would make plants grow on these deserts. Of course whether plants would grow or not. Yu Qingliang wasn't sure, but she was now clear that she heard the sound of a car. No, there was even a car in this kind of sparsely populated place. She immediately ran to the side and hid behind that small hill. The Tyrannosaurus Rex also immediately jumped behind her and lay down. And it should have heard the sound. After all, its ears were perked up. Yu Qingliang also didn't know why now that the entire earth was 90% less populated. She could still meet people in this kind of less populated Great Northwest. It was true that he really couldn't be idle. When Yu Qingxiao opened the map and realized that she wasn't too far away from the Northwest base, she knew that she was wrong about the humans. Now that it wasn't cold anymore, of course she had to go out and look for supplies. And the place to look for supplies was naturally the city. Although a lot of food with a shelf life had already been eaten, things like those in some rice and grain stores should still be edible. So it was normal for people to come out to look for food, 
Yu Qingliang crouched on the dirt slope, trying to hide her presence as much as possible. She waited for a few cars to pass before she relaxed. It suddenly occurred to her that she seemed to be playing the desert map of the chicken game with her friend. Two people hid behind a hill and prepared to sneak up on each other, realizing that the other party was a four-member full formation, and immediately acted as if nothing had happened. The current her and Tyrannosaurus Rex seemed to be in this state. Only when the caravan had completely left did Ju Qingliang then continue to walk forward, since she would encounter the caravan if she took the highway, she would take the desert. Crossing the desert was fine, the Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't have any objections either, so they planned to cross the desert. Yu Qingliang was fine, she was just a little worried about the Tyrannosaurus Rex's rations, but once she thought that there should be animals in this desert, an alien dog, it couldn't starve itself to death. Of course, after Yu Qingxiao watched the Tyrannosaurus Rex grab a mutant bird from somewhere, she was sure that even in that kind of desert, the Tyrannosaurus Rex wouldn't be able to starve itself. What Yu Qingliang was more curious about now was what Xu Xingyu and Gu Evening were working together on, so she did want to ask. But then again, she felt that it was Xu Xingyu's own business, and there was no need for her to care about the other party. What she should do now was to find a small courtyard in the countryside, plant some flowers, and then give the Tyrannosaurus Rex his last rites. When the Tyrannosaurus Rex had reached the end of his life, she would be almost ready to leave this world. But once she didn't have that particular thing she wanted to do, Yu Qingliang really wanted to swing. Because the Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't a dog that couldn't live without itself. Furthermore, Yu Qingxiao felt that she could entrust the Tyrannosaurus Rex to a human. Like the two of them, when Chang or Gu Evening Chung, with their strength, they could definitely afford to raise this dog. Yu Qingxiao looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex that was gnawing on the bird's fur on one side so she couldn't help but say, Tyrannosaurus Rex, if one day, I give you to someone else to take care of, will you hate me? At this moment, Yu Qingliang did have some regrets, she was not a responsible zombie, and when she chose to take care of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it was only because she wanted to try skiing, later on, it was also because she felt that with the Tyrannosaurus Rex around, she would be faster, now that there was nothing left to do, she wanted to send the Tyrannosaurus Rex out instead, it was true that if she was like this, she wouldn't be suitable for a pet. As soon as the Tyrannosaurus Rex heard Yu Qingxian's words, it became anxious. It obviously didn't want to leave Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian looked at its anxious appearance, so he reached out and patted its head. I'm not leaving you behind. As you know, I'm a zombie, and I don't know when I'll die. What will you do at that time? Yu Qingxiao rubbed the Tyrannosaurus Rex's big head, unable to resist trying to reason with it. In fact, Yu Qingxiao had been thinking about this all along, even if she avoided the humans. Sooner or later, she would meet them head on. The fact that she was a zombie was something that could be seen at a glance. Not everyone was like Gu Evening Ching and Court Lady One, who wouldn't lay their hands on her if they saw her. She didn't mind if she died at the hands of a human. She was just more worried about the Tyrannosaurus Rex. However, the Tyrannosaurus Rex used its head to arch her body, placing its large head in her arms. Yu Qingliang smiled when she looked at its clumsy movements. It's fine. Maybe it's changing seasons. So there are some emotional problems. In fact, she hadn't been in such a negative mood for over a year. Perhaps it was because she had purposefully wanted to go, and now that she had suddenly traveled all over, she didn't know where to go for a while. That's what caused her to be overwhelmed. It was really the old habit coming back. When Yu Qingxiao was guilty, she really didn't care about anything. Now that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was suddenly rubbing around in front of her eyes, it had brought back a trace of her popularity. She suddenly felt that if she was under the disease of non-violent symptoms, Having a cat or dog was indeed quite healing. At least when you want to die. Suddenly back to God if you die. What about your puppy kitten? Even if you do meet a kind person. But what if you don't? It's just like the original myself. I want to finish the novel before I die. Now Yu Qingliang is also this kind of idea. Want to die also wait again. Yu Qingxiao who had gathered his thoughts then reached out and rubbed the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head. What I just said. Take it as if I didn't say it. Alright. Let's go. Yu Qingxian stood up and gathered herself. It was just that when she stood up and looked at the wilderness in front of her, she just stood there with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. There was no telling where to go. Yu Qingxiao and the Tyrannosaurus Rex stood on the wilderness for half an hour like fools. It was only when they were really overwhelmed by the sun that they moved to a shady place. With the sun at his back, Yu Qingxiao then took out his map book. Tyrannosaurus Rex, you pick the place. Pick anyone and we'll go there. Yu Qingxiao pointed at the map book. It was true that she didn't quite believe in her luck, so it was left to the Tyrannosaurus Rex to make this fate-determining choice. The Tyrannosaurus looked at the map book Yu Qingxiao handed to it, and instead of picking it up with its front paws, it used its nose to point. 
Yu Qingxia was narrowing it down to the whole country and then letting the Tyrannosaurus Rex point at random. As long as the Tyrannosaurus Rex touched it, then it would be zoomed in. Yu Qingxia watched the Tyrannosaurus move away before she inclined her head to look at the place. When she looked at the place, she looked up at the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Why don't we pick a new one? Yu Qingxia felt that the Tyrannosaurus Rex really liked to follow her. And the messy places were not too good. This city, if Yu Qingxia was right, was the city where Shi Xingyu stayed, right? Looks like we are both the same. Our luck is limited. Forget it. Let's go. Let's go find your brother one more time. I'm also curious as to why he wants to work with Gu Evening Ching. Yu Qingliang stood up and headed towards the east. But since she didn't have a sled or a suitcase right now, she could only go on foot. From her location to the city where Shi Xingyu was, it was roughly 1. 400 kilometers. There was no telling how long she would have to walk on her two legs alone. Never mind. She could always walk slowly. However, she and the Tyrannosaurus Rex had only walked a few hundred meters when Yu Qingliang felt the ground shaking slightly. Although the vibrations were not big, Yu Qingxia knew that the vibrations that could be hundreds or even thousands of kilometers away were definitely big. It was also at this time that Yu Qingxiao's cell phone rang. She picked up her phone and looked at it, realizing that it was an official message. Sure enough, it was an earthquake. The current estimate was a magnitude 10. In other words, the epicenter had probably become a ruin. But the good thing was that there was no base in which place. After all, originally that area used to have frequent earthquakes before. So when the base was built, it was chosen to be in a spacious place. And the officials seemed to have anticipated this problem. So later on, the houses and walls of the bases were very effective in resisting earthquakes. Although he might have expected earthquakes, Yu Qingliang was still the first time he had encountered such a large earthquake since he was a child. Previously, he had only seen such a large earthquake on the news. Therefore Yu Qingxiao was a bit worried about the survivors in that neighborhood of the earthquake. It should be fine. As for the previous skyscrapers, Yu Qingxiao felt that it was very likely that they would collapse. Because of the cold and hot temperatures in the end times, many southern buildings simply couldn't withstand the drop. Plus, after there was no human life, plants grew like crazy. There were even some high-rise buildings that had been broken off by plants. In the end times, concrete and steel bars were not even comparable to mutated plants. If humans were still living in such high-rise buildings, then this earthquake would have caused very serious casualties. Yu Qingliang thought, humans don't live in the city, but zombies still live in these high-rise buildings. How to say that these zombies were also considered to be her own kind? Yu Qingxiao didn't know how to describe her feelings. She could only pray as well. After all, there was no way for Yu Qingxiao to go and write the skyscrapers that were going to fall down. Yu Qingxiao headed to the east. In the period of time that followed, there were many tremors, big and small. At first, Yu Qingxiao would be so scared that she would find an open place to stand still. At the back, even if the ground was shaking, she could still calmly walk forward. This is probably growth. Before every earthquake, the T. Rex was very alert. Apparently animals do have a sense for such sudden changes. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Yu Qingliang were different. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was very alert every time. Even when it saw Yu Qingxiao still sleeping in the house, it would carry her out of the house, fearing that she would be killed by a falling brick. Although Yu Qingxiao felt that she wasn't that vulnerable, but she also didn't want to let down the Tyrannosaurus Rex's good intentions. So as long as the Tyrannosaurus Rex reacted at the back, she picked up her backpack and followed the Tyrannosaurus Rex to run outside. Although none of the earthquakes behind her were particularly big, Yu Qingxian still saw the houses tilting and collapsing when she passed by some small towns. To say that the city before was just an unoccupied city, it didn't look like a deserted city from the outside. But now that a year and a half had passed since the end of the world, because of the sudden heat and sudden cold temperatures, some of the glass had shattered while the walls had cracks, coupled with the fact that no one was living in the house. It was naturally badly damaged. Yu Qingliang passed through small towns or counties at first. When she reached the first big city, she looked at the slightly dilapidated and even crawling with green vine plants. Yu Qingxiao didn't quite recognize these plants, unlike petunias or creepers. She came downstairs and wanted to see what kind of plant the vines were. When she saw that the vine was stuck into the concrete like a steel bar, even the vine's vines looked sturdy and had dense little thorns on them. There was red powder on top of the small thorns. Even if Yu Qingliang didn't recognize it, he knew that this vine must be poisonous. If one fell on this kind of vine, they might really be poisoned to death. It was also unknown if this poison could poison zombies. Yu Qingliang reached out to touch it, but her hand retracted when she was about to touch it. She looked around and was about to pull a zombie over to try, but that zombie was unwilling to come over, and Yu Qingxiao was still tugging on its hand. As a result, Yu Qingxiao yanked off the entire arm of the person. She held that zombie's arm and was first shocked, after which she tried to apologize to the other person. 
but that zombie didn't care about the arm either and directly ran away. That, your arm, don't want it? Before Yu Qingliang could finish his words, that zombie turned a corner and disappeared. It was as if by walking slower, Yu Qingxiao was going to rip off its other hand. Yu Qingxiao looked at the corner where the zombie ran away, and then looked down at the arm in his hand. Yu Qingxiao looked at the blood dripping on the ground and then looked at the arm in her hand. This zombie's hand was actually bleeding. It was completely different from herself, because even if she was injured, this blood was like that chocolate thick syrup and didn't flow. This zombie's blood was thicker and darker than a living person's blood though, but it was flowing. Yu Qingliang picked it up and smelled it. The flavor, let's not mention it. Yu Qingxiao took the zombie's hand and touched the vine's small thorns. However, there was no change in the zombie's arm. He didn't know if the poison didn't work on the zombie, or if it didn't react because he was using a stump. But even so, Yu Qingxiao subconsciously felt that this vine was definitely poisonous. After Yu Qingxiao was sure that this vine was poisonous, she carried this arm again to find that zombie. If the other party still wanted the arm, she could help them sew it back on. Only when she went after them, she didn't find the zombie. Yu Qingliang could only put the arm on the ground. Hopefully, that walker would come back for it, and that she would never tug on a zombie's arm again. The Tyrannosaurus Rex also didn't know where it had run off to. When she came back to her senses, the Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't even by her side. She also didn't smell the Tyrannosaurus Rex's scent, which meant that the Tyrannosaurus Rex had left her range for three kilometers. It had been nearly a year since the Tyrannosaurus Rex had left itself this far away. She immediately went to look for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, until more than 20 minutes later, Yu Qingxian smelled the scent of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and of course, the scent of another living creature. Yu Qingxiao could only lie down behind the scrapped car and observe, because this scent was familiar to her. It was the little sesame seed cookie that followed Gu Evening Ching around. It was just that nowadays, the only scents here were him and another person. The other scent, Yu Qingxiao hadn't smelled it before, but based on the aroma, the other person was definitely a shifter. The fact that Sesame Shortcake was able to leave Gu Evening Harvest and act alone was something Yu Qingxiao hadn't expected. It was just that Yu Qingxiao's attention at this moment was not on Little Cookie, but on the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Tyrannosaurus Rex had obviously been circling around itself, but now it even squatted in front of that Little Cookie with a smiling look. Yu Qing felt that the Tyrannosaurus Rex should not be that kind of ungrateful dog, but she saw it all. Pei Yuan glanced at the place where Yu Qing was idly hiding, and then withdrew his gaze pretending that he hadn't noticed her. Instead, he bent down and reached out to touch the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head. You've been raised quite well. It seems like she really doesn't eat living things and can really tolerate it. The Tyrannosaurus Rex listened to Pei Yuan's words and also turned back to look in the direction Yu Qingxian was hiding in. When Yu Qingxian saw that this stupid dog was actually looking in his direction, he immediately shrunk back. This dog couldn't be a trap, right? That shouldn't be the case. After all, if the Tyrannosaurus Rex almost being strangled to death was all by design, then she would have to curse. But Yu Qingliang's eyes moved from the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body to Little Biscuits, and ducked back to the person standing in front of the car. The other person was good looking, and looked a bit similar to Little Biscuit. That would make them brothers. Though the teenager had long hair, he had a flat chest and was bony enough to be a man at first glance, compared to Cookie, who always had a smile on his face. This teenager was a bit fierce. Those eyes, Staring anywhere felt like pressure everywhere. Brother, what are you talking to a dog? The teenager looked around the room before looking at the large dog. Obviously he didn't understand why his brother had the patience to talk to a dog. There weren't many zombies around, but they would soon be surrounded. He also didn't know why his brother came all the way to this place and talked to a dog. Was his brother familiar with this dog? Nothing, it's just that this dog doesn't follow humans to survive. Pei Yuan replied. After saying this, he signaled the Tyrannosaurus Rex that he could go back. As for the fact that he had discovered Yu Qingxiao, he didn't say anything to his brother either. Only after Pei Yuan got on the car did he ask his brother, Chang Mu, do you believe that there are zombies in this world that don't eat people? Pei Ching Mu listened to his brother's words, so he glanced at Pei Yuan in the backseat through the rearview mirror before withdrawing his sight to start the car. Team Gu has been arguing with dad over this matter. I really haven't seen a zombie that doesn't eat people. Team Gu's idea is too naive. People who have turned into zombies are long gone from being human. Pei Ching Mu felt that Team Gu had spent a lot of time with his own brother, and his brain had been influenced by his own brother to become strange. Where in this world were there zombies that didn't eat people? It's also true that it might eat it at some point. Pei Yuan looked at the bite marks on his wrist and looked out the window again. Pei Ching Mu was a little curious when he looked at his brother who kept staring at his wrist, because there was nothing on there. His brother had become godly since four years ago when his body had suddenly gotten much better. Sometimes he would say things that no one could understand. He also liked to stare at the sky, 
or stare at his wrist. And he also talked to his dad about letting Gu Evening Ching protect him. Obviously, as long as he stayed in the base, he could be safe and sound, but he preferred to follow Gu Evening Ching around. It was also puzzling that he suddenly had to bring him out on his own a few days ago, but Pei Ching Mu brought him out anyway. Where did he know that he had come to look for a dog? The situation everywhere was grim lately, and he still had the heart to wander around. However, we have to agree to Gu Evening Prim's proposal. Pei Yuan made a rare serious remark. These words caused Pei Ching Mu to be startled. Just now his brother had agreed with him, saying that there were no zombies in this world that didn't eat people. How was it that he was now going to agree with Gu Wanqing's proposal? But father would probably agree with his brother as well. After all, his brother looked neurotic, but all the decisions he had made in these four years had been correct. Yu Qingliang looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex when it came back, and then looked at it with exasperation. It was clear that he had raised it for almost a year, but in the end, he left himself and ran away with someone else. However, as it looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex's cautious appearance, it felt as if this image had been there before, only in reverse. Thinking about it this way, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was bound to have bitter feelings. It couldn't be that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was looking for help from a human because he was suddenly depressed before, right? But when she thought of a dog of the breed of Tyrannosaurus Rex that could rush up and giggle at people when it saw them, she thought it was unlikely again. Still, she forgave the T. Rex, she had dropped the Tyrannosaurus Rex before, and now that the Tyrannosaurus Rex had dropped himself to find someone else, it was even. However, as her eyes swept past the Tyrannosaurus Rex's cummerbund, she noticed that there seemed to be something extra inside. A letter was placed inside. She picked it up and looked at it before realizing that it actually had her name on it. This made Yu Qingliang startled. Other than Shi Xingyu, there was no human who knew her name. So it was written on it for her to personally open. It was obvious that that sesame cookie knew that she was raising a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And the other party also knew his name. And it wasn't a pronunciation. He could even know which word his name was. It seemed that this sesame seed cookie probably knew himself a long time ago. Yu Qingliang opened the envelope and looked at the text on it. There was a self-introduction at the beginning. It was quite frank. It turns out that the little sesame seed cracker's name is Pei Yuan. Well, never heard of it. Don't recognize it. After Pei Yuan finished his self-introduction, he went straight to the point afterward. I know you want to die, but don't die yet. Yu Qingliang, even she knew that she wanted to die. It seemed that this little cookie really wasn't simple. And the words that followed shocked Yu Qingliang even more. This little cookie had actually told her all of Gu Evening Ching's thoughts. In other words, what Gu Evening Ching wanted was to help the zombies find their sanity and suppress their desires. And while it was possible that such a thing was indeed quite whimsical, Gu Evening Ching could indeed do it. It was just that Gu Evening Harvest still needed some help, because once upon a time, Gu Evening Harvest had failed. The biggest reason was that she didn't find a zombie that could suppress her desire to not eat people. And now, Yu Qingliang was that variable. Most importantly, there were several countries that were doing secret experiments. They were choosing a zombie king and then taking advantage of the end of the world to try to take over the world. It seems like what wasn't done nearly a hundred years ago is trying to make a comeback. The reason why the zombie virus had spread so quickly was due to the fact that these countries were behind it. Yu Qingliang finished reading the first half of the article, all about some classified news. She felt as if she had nothing to do with it. The back, on the other hand, was starting to dip into it. I know that you and Shir Xingyu know each other, and he has agreed to cooperate with Gu Evening Harvest and accept Gu Evening Harvest's transformation, and Gu Evening Harvest also wants to create a king that is uniquely ours, and Shir Xingyu is indeed the most suitable choice. Yu Qingliang had originally wanted to go and ask what kind of cooperation Shir Xingyu and Gu Evening Ching had reached. As a result, she hadn't even met Shir Xingyu yet, and Shir Xingyu's thoughts were all shaken out by Pei Yu safety. Yu Qingliang felt that it was justifiable for Shir Xingyu to go and become this king. But what exactly was Shi Xingyu's reason for agreeing to this condition? To become the king? But after cooperating with the humans, he wouldn't be able to prey on them at will. Could he really let go of the temptation that the humans had for him? Or did he choose to accept the experiment and kill humans after becoming king? The youngster's idea was great. But she felt that the possibility of realizing it wasn't too great. It was impossible for Gu Wanqing to really be unprepared at all. No matter how powerful and intelligent the zombies were, they still couldn't fight humans. The rules, more often than not, were in the hands of the higher-ups. When Shi Xingyu promised Gu Evening Ching that he was willing to undergo the experiment, he was already in a passive position. Sure enough, no matter how much the lad evolved towards intelligent zombies, he still didn't understand how complex humans really were. Humph. At this point, he had excelled himself. Yu Qingliang smiled to herself for a while, thinking that Shi Xingyu wouldn't actually be at too much of a disadvantage if she cooperated with Gu Evening Cheng. 
This was because what she needed was to gather Shi Xingyu's heart, and thus wouldn't be watching Shi Xingyu too closely. Perhaps it was because of this that made Gu Evening Qing argue with the higher-ups. Indeed, a zombie king, if it didn't wear a muzzle, then it would bite at any time. But actually, Yu Qingliang didn't care that it didn't matter how Gu Evening Qing and Shi Xingyu had reached a cooperation between them. What was important was how exactly Gu Evening Qing was going to do the experiment to suppress the zombie's desire for humans. In fact, advanced zombies like Shi Xingyu and the others were actually able to suppress it slightly, so there was a need to amplify their sanity? But the only ones who could suppress their desires were intelligent zombies. Ordinary zombies never cared. For example, the one that Shi Xingyu killed. I guess that one is not considered an intelligent zombie, so it will go on a killing spree, and will not think about it. If it continues to kill like this, human beings will naturally find a way to deal with it. But all a little bit of wisdom, will not kill the human beings anxious. Not to mention the human beings killed anxious. Those senior zombies will also be anxious. Everyone wants to take the lead and no one wants the other to take the lead. Therefore, that zombie king's death was inevitable. Even if Shi Xingyu didn't clean it up, Gu Evening Chang or someone else would clean it up. It was just that what it did made Shi Xingyu use it as a ladder to step up. Thinking about it this way, Knight became the zombie king before Shi Xingyu, but Knight didn't work with Gu Evening Harvest. However, Yu Qingliang also felt that Shi Xingyu was more suitable to work with humans than a knight. After all, he himself had taught Shi Xingyu a lot of human terms and ways of thinking. A knight was too simple, and even if he was stronger, he would still be easily deceived. Thinking like this, Yu Qingliang wondered if he needed to visit A knight. Tell him to avoid Gu Evening Qing even when he saw her in the future. Don't ever learn from Shi Xingyu, who even greeted him when he told him to avoid walking away. Yu Qingliang withdrew his wild thoughts and continued reading down again. Obviously, the content of this letter was not just written, but was written before. In other words, the other party knew that he was in this place? Perhaps the other party was deliberately coming to find himself, then smiling at himself before. That was on purpose. In fact, he knew himself a long time ago. But even though Yu Qingliang used to write novels, she wasn't famous enough for others to know her third dimension name. Even if she had fans, it was impossible for her to be recognized. And she wrote female-oriented novels and didn't have any male fans. Someone like Pei Yuan shouldn't be able to read her own novel. Then there was another reason. He even knew the purpose of some countries. It was also known that Gu Evening Qing's idea was the optimal solution. An exclamation mark instantly appeared on Yu Qingliang's head. This little sesame seed cookie was reborn. Of course, this was just her guess. Yu Qingxiao slapped her head. Her novel writing problem was back. It couldn't be helped. In the past she liked to look for material all over the internet. And sometimes when she was really uninspired, she would boldly squat on the side of the road in front of the neighborhood in full armor to observe the pedestrians. So it will brainstorm what kind of character these people would be if they were in a novel. Especially this letter written by Pei Yuan is like standing in God's perspective. And the only person who could have God's perspective, besides being reborn, would be wearing a book. Of course, it couldn't be ruled out that this person had precognition. But Yu Qingxiao was more inclined to whether Pei Yuan Yan was reborn or not. As soon as he thought of this, Yu Qingxiao immediately took out his own cell phone and then adjusted Pei Yuan in the memo from the position of the male second to the place of the male lead of the reborn text. When Yu Qingxiao looked at the memo in her cell phone, she couldn't help but cover her head. In short, occupational disease really should not be tolerated. Even after turning into a zombie, she didn't forget to collect material. Now looking at the huge pile of material in her hands, but she had no place to publish it. It made Yu Qingxiao feel like a complete waste. Yu Qingxiao squatted on the ground and shut herself up for a while before she stood up. Forget it, none of this mattered. What mattered was why Pei Yuan was looking for herself. Of course, he didn't say it directly to himself, and used the method of a letter. At the bottom, he also left his own contact information. This made Yu Qingliang a little surprised, because the fastest way to talk to her about things was to use words to communicate rather than talking face to face. Yu Qingxiao folded up the letter and put it in his backpack, saving Pei Yuan's number into his cell phone. Although he didn't know if he wanted to contact Pei Yuan, it was just that Yu Qingliang felt to have some good feelings towards Pei Yuan. Of course, it was only because the other party didn't come to speak to himself directly, but instead passed the message through the Tyrannosaurus Rexes. He also let himself contact the other party by way of a phone call. So it was because of himself that the Tyrannosaurus Rex would meet Pei Yuan. Then Pei Yuan was clearly coming for himself. But Pei Yuan said that Gu Wanching's plan had once failed. And Gu Wanching needed a zombie that wouldn't eat people. This zombie that wouldn't eat people couldn't be referring to himself. Could it? That's why Pei Yuan's first words were to tell herself that she knew she wanted to die but told her not to die yet. In other words, she was once really in the ground? Sure enough, on second thought, 
If Pei Yuan was wearing a book, then she herself was also a character in the book, but a zombie like herself, who wandered off the edge of the plot, wouldn't be a prop on the heroine's path to success, right? Of course, regardless of whether Pei Yuan was reborn or wearing a book, he himself seemed to be a very important prop, but the zombie that doesn't eat people, she recognized ah, isn't Xiao Ji not eating people? Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang didn't go looking for Shi Xingyu, turning her head, she went to look for Xiao Ji, moreover, Xiao Ji looked like he wanted to turn into a human, so Yu Qingxian thought that Xiao Ji would be a good fit, thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao sent a message to Pei Yuan, zombies that don't eat people, I know them ah, I'll go look for them first, I'll let you know when I find them, Pei Yuan was indeed a bit surprised when he received this message from Yu Qingxian, he did know about a zombie that didn't eat people from the mouths of some high level zombies in his previous life, and that zombie had suppressive power over all zombies. Only that zombie had found a mountain to bury itself in the summer of the second year of the end of the world, thus leading to the fact that Gu Evening Qing's experiment did fail at the back, barely found a zombie that didn't eat people. It ended up giving him a bite on the third day of the experiment. Pei Yuan looked at his bare wrist. In the past, this place, there was a deep teeth mark. Even the most sensible zombies had no way to maintain their sanity in front of him. In the words of ten years after the end of the world, it probably meant that his flesh and blood had a fatal attraction to the zombies, and wherever he stayed in his previous life, he would attract a large number of zombies. It wasn't until he met Gu Evening Ching later that he barely avoided being chased by zombies. It was only when his own father annoyed Gu Evening Ching in his previous life, or Gu Evening Ching was a bit more atmospheric. After all, for the sake of the country, that he rejoined the official post in the eighth year of the end of the world, and when he was reborn back four years ago, it was also half a month after Gu Evening Harvest was admitted to the lab, thus he naturally had no way to make his father do what he did in his previous life again, even if he felt that his father was doing it for the good of all the survivors in this country, it was just that Pei Yuan felt that Gu Evening Ching's approach was a bit more appropriate, therefore Pei Yuan felt that he should do something for this country, but there wasn't much he could do, probably apart from his concentration and patience, Pei Yuan felt that he was useless. Even after being reborn, he didn't know what he could do. Perhaps it was because he didn't turn into a zombie after being bitten by a high-level zombie in his previous life, which in turn gave him the supernatural ability to be able to tell the strength of a zombie. After being reborn, this supernatural ability had in turn evolved a bit. It could even tell if a human was capable of being infected with the zombie virus, if they were going to zombify, or if they were going to turn into an alien. Gu Evening Ching didn't have any objections when she knew she was going to be a bodyguard for herself, so he wouldn't have any complaints when he followed Gu Evening Ching around, but how could he not have expected that he would encounter that legendary zombie? As for the reason Pei Yuan didn't talk to Gu Evening Ching, it was naturally because he heard that the zombie was a social terrorist, but Pei Yuan didn't think that there were two zombies in this world that didn't eat people. Most importantly, he had left his phone number and was only testing to see if Yu Qingxiao could really read human writing. In other words, the other party was really able to read and even use human things, then a lot of strange things could also be answered. But how could Pei Yuan not have thought that this little social terrorism zombie's necrovein was quite wide? It was already very difficult for them to find a zombie that didn't eat humans. But after finding Yu Qingliang, Yu Qingliang actually knew other zombies that didn't eat humans. This shocked Pei Yuan. Only, was the zombie that Yu Qingliang knew really not eating humans? H City. At this time, Xiao Ji's restaurant was also doing well. Opening a restaurant in a place full of zombies like this would indeed have some inconveniences. Like at the beginning, you need to find your own ingredients. After receiving the first guest, the system's ingredient library could only be opened. Nowadays, she had already received quite a few guests. Until after the door was knocked once again, she said with a smile, Welcome. The little girl wasn't very old, but she did a good job of cooking. Of course, there was also the added benefit of the system is all. As long as you complete the quests, you can get all sorts of things. It was just that Xiao Ji was a bit surprised after seeing that what walked in was a big dog. The guests she received were both zombies and humans. It was still the first time she received an animal. Wow. Surprisingly it's a big dog. May I ask what you want to eat? You can just open your mouth and bark. I can understand. Xiao Ji had an apron tied around her body. And looking at her, her eyes were no longer red, but close to human brown. Obviously, Yu Qinglian's hunch was good. This Xiao Ji really did want to turn back into a human. If Xiao Ji really turned into a human, then it would naturally be of great help to Gu Evening Ching. It was just that Yu Qing Xiao was right at the door and did not enter the house, because she was afraid that the smell of cooked food in the house would make her want to vomit. But strangely enough, just now when the Tyrannosaurus Rex pushed the door, although the aroma of the meal came from it, strangely enough, it didn't have the kind of nausea that cooked food gave her. 
Still, she crouched outside. The surrounding houses were all dilapidated. Only this restaurant looked clean and gorgeous. There weren't even many zombies around. It was enough to show that this place was frequented by people. It was just that Xiao Ji could understand the words of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yu Qingliang squatted outside and looked at the sky in a daze. It was already May now. Time had passed quite quickly. It was just that she had previously told Pei Yuan that she had come to find zombies that wouldn't eat people. But now it seems that Xiao Ji doesn't look like a zombie anymore. Right. And has already recovered into a half-human. And also opened a food store. When Yu Qingliang thought of this, she immediately took out her cell phone to record it. She had also read the novels about opening a store in the post-apocalyptic world, so Xiao Ji would naturally not be the zombie heroine in the post-apocalyptic text, but actually be the store owner heroine in the post-apocalyptic text? But Xiao Ji had said that she could command the zombies. It seems that this Xiao Ji is not very old, but very capable. Thinking so, Yu Qingliang made a note on the memo. What is sister doing crouching outside the door? Want to come in and sit? Xiao Ji pushed open the glass door and saw Yu Qingxian crouching in the doorway. Yu Qingxian suddenly heard Xiao Ji's voice and was so scared that she shoved her cell phone into her arms. After all, the contents on her phone were not to be shown to others. She turned around and saw Xiao Ji lying in the doorway staring at her. Xiao Ji seemed to have thought of something when she saw Yu Qingliang looking at her. It's fine. I'm the only one in this store. There's a big dog here. You don't have to be so nervous. Xiao Ji's tone relaxed a bit, then walked out and reached out to pull Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian was grabbed by Xiao Ji and didn't know what to say for a moment. Suddenly she thought of the zombie that she had yanked on earlier. She could finally realize how that zombie felt. Yu Qingxian promised that she would never force another zombie again. It was just that Yu Qingxiao had something to ask Xiao Ji for in the first place. So she was dragged into the restaurant by this little friend. After entering the restaurant, Yu Qingxiao did not feel the destruction of her sense of smell by the food at all. She could even feel that the food should be delicious. And by now the Tyrannosaurus Rex had already eaten. Yu Qingxiao could only sit on the sofa at the entrance in a hasty manner. Watching Xiao Ji busy herself. What does sister want to drink? Or something to eat? Xiao Ji opened her mouth and pointed to a refrigerated cabinet next to her. Yu Qingliang's eyes looked over and saw that the drinks inside were all red, but labeled with what type of blood it was. Yu Qingxiao. So this little girl was also in the zombie business. She really underestimated this little girl. No, I'm not hungry. Yu Qingxiao rejected Xiao Ji's good intentions. However, Xiao Ji still took a bottle of water from behind her and walked out with a tray. The things inside looked delicious, very much like watermelon strawberry fruit, but not exactly like it. These things zombies can eat. After all, the food here, are not the food on earth, but this is something I will only talk to my sister about. Xiao Ji said and sat down across from Yu Qingliang. She picked up a fork and speared a fruit and handed it to Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxiao could only take it, but did not stuff it into her mouth. It was Xiao Ji who had no problem stuffing two fruits into her mouth. Yu Qingxiao also boldly stuffed the fruits into her mouth. She was supposed to eat these things without any flavor. But when she felt the sweet and silky flavor spreading out in her mouth, she was a bit surprised. She was actually able to eat the flavor. It seemed that this fruit really wasn't a normal fruit. Nor was it a creature from Earth. It was probably something from Xiao Ji's restaurant system. After that, she tried something else. And it was surprisingly delicious. It was just that after these things were eaten, they didn't go down the esophagus and into the stomach. But instead turned into energy that filled her limbs as she swallowed. Tasty right? Don't worry. I know that my sister is a zombie, so I won't take things for humans for my sister to eat, Xiao Ji said. Yu Qingliang was a little surprised when she heard Xiao Ji's words, so there was something specifically for zombies to eat. It seems that this Xiao Ji was doing business with both zombies and humans. Actually, I came to find you this time for a reason. Yu Qingliang was so tangled up that his fingers were almost twisted together before he could get the words out. HM, what is it, if I can help? Xiao Ji tilted his head and looked at Yu Qingliang. How could she say that she would bind this system? And she also knew what she really wanted from Yu Qingxian's body. She still wanted to become human. So God had given her a chance. Xiao Ji was of course grateful to Yu Qingxian and looked forward to seeing her again. It was just that when they saw each other again, the high-level zombie by her side was gone, replaced by a big dog. Yu Qingxian also did not expect Xiao Ji to agree so quickly. She didn't want to hide it from Xiao Ji, so she told her what Pei Yuan had said. Xiao Ji nodded in understanding after hearing this. So that's how it is. The officials are looking for zombies that won't eat people. And it's true that I don't eat people. But now I don't exactly count as a zombie. In other words, she wasn't sure if she could help. When Yu Qingliang heard this, she looked at Xiao Ji. Indeed, from the looks of it, she didn't have the slightest bit of a zombie's appearance anymore. If one were to say to others that Xiao Ji was a zombie, I guess no one would believe it. So in the end, 
The zombie that doesn't eat people is still herself, right? Then she had traveled for nothing. Thinking of this, Yu Qingliang looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex lying on the ground again and felt that it wasn't a wasted trip. Xiao Ji, do you like dogs? A single sentence caused the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Xiao Ji to suddenly look at each other. They seemed to know what Yu Qingliang meant by those words. Of course I like it. I just don't know if it's willing to stay. Xiao Ji opened her mouth. Of course she loved dogs, and it was such a beautiful exotic dog. The Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't lying on the ground anymore. It walked over to Yu Qingxiao's side. Yu Qingxiao reached out and stroked its big head and said, I shouldn't be able to take care of you in the future. So you should follow her. She's someone I can trust. She had made her own decision after realizing that Xiao Ji was no longer considered a zombie now. Her own mind had long been spoken by Xiu Xingyu. She had never favored humans. Even if she wasn't good with humans, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was well behaved, but a bit stubborn at times. Just like when she told it to stop following her. It seemed to be hurt. Yu Qingliang didn't get angry and tell it that she was doing it for its own good. Rather, she felt that Xiao Ji could take good care of it. Can I stay here for a few days? Yu Qingxiao patted the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head and looked at Xiao Ji. Xiao Ji was naturally happy to hear this. Of course, you can stay for a year or three if you want. Xiao Ji nodded her head repeatedly. For Yu Qingxiang to live in this place, she was of course very willing. Yu Qingxian also didn't expect Xiao Ji to be so enthusiastic, but smiled slightly as he looked over towards her. Sorry to trouble you. Xiao Ji looked at Yu Qingxiao's smile, but her heart was inexplicably peaceful. She was a little curious as to how the Yu Qingxiao used to live in the past. For the next few days, it was Xiao Ji who took the Tyrannosaurus Rex out for walks. Yu Qingliang just sat by the window and read. Every time the Tyrannosaurus Rex came back, he came to her first, as if she could really run. It was true that Yu Qingxiao would leave, but she didn't think of leaving without saying goodbye, because she was a polite zombie. The relationship between the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Xiao Ji was pretty good now too. Like the Tyrannosaurus Rex's three meals a day and going out for a run every day were all handled by Xiao Ji. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex seemed to realize Yu Qingliang's reason for doing so. But how to put it? The Tyrannosaurus Rex was indeed an understanding puppy. When Yu Qingxiao said goodbye to it, it didn't rush out, but followed Xiao Ji and stood at the door to watch her leave. Xiao Ji was holding a picture frame that Yu Qingxian had left for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. She seemed to have thought of something, so she immediately spoke in a loud voice. Sister Yu, don't worry. I'll take care of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and I'll keep your picture. Xiao Ji was also sad about not being able to help Yu Qingliang, but she knew that if she was sad, Sister Yu would be even more uneasy. It was June when Pei Yuan received another message from Yu Qingxian. I'm in East City, bring Gu Wanqing to me. When he showed this message to Gu Evening Ching, she had just come out of the lab. What's this? Gu Evening Ching took off her mask and glanced at Pei Yuan's cell phone. She didn't know who had sent this to her. It was only when she was washing her hands that she seemed to think of something and looked directly up at Pei Yuan. A message that could make Pei Yuan show himself was not ordinary. Sure Xing Yu had already entered the base. And as for who told him his name and what he had done, Sure Xing Yu wouldn't say. So now that Pei Yuan could show himself this message, it meant that the other party was one that he cared about. The only thing he cared about was the zombie that had once stayed by Sure Xing Yu's side and still didn't eat people. Found it? Gu Evening Ching's tone wasn't as excited as she had imagined. But Pei Yuan looked at her slightly trembling hands and knew how excited she was at this moment. Anyone else would probably have been so excited that they would have fainted. But Gu Evening Ching was still able to calmly ask a question and then deal with the matter at hand. Pei Yuan didn't answer. But Gu Evening Ching knew the answer. However, before leaving the base to go pick up Yu Qingxian, Gu Evening Ching still went to find Xiu Xingyu. She had only said Yu Qingxian's name. And Xiu Xingyu's reaction made her certain that the one who had taught Xiu Xingyu those things was Yu Qingxian. When Gu Evening Ching left, Xiu sure Xingyu only came over from the side. She injected a syringe into Xiu sure Xingyu's arm before she spoke. You reacted too much. It was true that Xiu sure Xing Tian did not expect that she would see her brother again. Moreover, her brother and the female zombie who gave her the picture knew each other. This made Xiu sure Xing Tian not know how to be grateful to Yu Qing Xian. But at least, she could help now. And there was hope for the future. Yu Qing Xiao sat on the gravel head. In less than two days from sending the message over, Gu Evening Qing's SUV appeared in front of her eyes. It was fast, and the car was dirty, with blood stains. It was obvious that Gu Evening Ching had driven over quite a few zombies, even though Yu Qingliang had given herself several days of mental construction. But when she was facing Gu Evening Ching directly, she didn't even know where to put her eyes. Her hands gesticulated in a bit of panic. Finally, she stifled out a few words. Hello, please give me your autograph, Gu Evening Cheng. When Ching Ching on the passenger side, what words was this zombie saying? Yu Qingxiao also reacted to what he had said only after he finished speaking. But the words had been said. 
It wasn't appropriate not to have a signature. She immediately fished out her pen and paper from her backpack and handed it over. Although Gu Evening Ching didn't understand why Yu Qingxiang wanted her signature, she still cooperated and took the book Yu Qingxiang handed over and signed her name for Yu Qingxiang. However, Gu Evening Ching unintentionally glanced at what was in front of her, and even though she didn't read it, she didn't say anything, but handed the book and pen back with both hands. Do you think this is okay? Gu Evening Ching softened her voice a bit as well, afraid of suddenly startling this little zombie in front of her. Yu Qingxiao took the book handed over by Gu Evening Cheng and looked at the three big words flying on it, very satisfied. This was the heroine's signature. As an author, to be able to get the signature of the female lead, Yu Qingxiao felt that he was really super awesome. Yes, thanks. Yu Qingxiao gave Gu Evening Cheng his thanks. Gu Evening Cheng did not stare directly at Yu Qingxiao. Her eyes should be false in the other party's eyes. It wouldn't give off pressure. And it was true that Yu Qingxiao did not feel pressure from Gu Evening Cheng's body. This made Yu Qingxiao think of Shi Xingtian. That person didn't feel pressure from her either. This made Yu Qingxiao also be able to feel that it was actually not that stressful to get along with people. Of course Yu Qingxiao did not feel strange, because it was the other person who had compatibilized herself downwards. Yu Qingxiao put the signature in his backpack before he looked at Gu Evening Chang. Let's go. Until Yu Qingxiao got into the car. When Qingxiang had been staring at her, Yu Qingxiao then pulled her hat downwards, blocking Wen Qingxing's line of sight. In fact, Wen Qingxing really wasn't sure that there were really zombies that didn't eat people in this world. But since Sister Qing had said so, Wen Qingxiang would just believe it for now. When he thought about how this zombie had even laid down on the ground and pretended to be dead, he even let Sister Qing personally bury her. Now that he took a closer look, he realized that the cracks on her face had already been sewn up and were not so scary anymore. The dress on her body had also been changed, and it was clear that she was indeed living like a human. When Qingxiang wanted to talk to Yu Qingliang, but was stopped by a look from Gu Evening Qing. He also had no choice but to touch his nose and didn't open his mouth. The car was quiet. And even though Gu Evening Qing drove fast, the car was smooth. When she entered the capital again, Yu Qingxiao's eyes looked towards the city. She suddenly thought of a night. She didn't know if that kid was still alive. Gu Evening Qing saw Yu Qingxiao lying on the car window glass looking outside from the rearview mirror and didn't say much. Although she knew what Yu Qingxiao was looking for, that advanced zombie had indeed been attacking the base before but then changed its mind. It was obviously because of Yu Qingxiao's influence. Yu Qingxiao also didn't ask Gu Evening Ching about a night situation, but thought that a night shouldn't have died so easily. It was necessary to swipe the identity card when the car entered the base. At this time, Yu Qingxiao kind of knew how to record the number of humans. That is, as long as they were alive, they would use their cell phones to determine their identity cards within 24 hours. If the identity card was lost, then it could be lost with the cell phone. If the cell phone is lost, it can also be determined with someone else's cell phone. If the identity card was not determined within 24 hours, then it would be judged as dangerous. And if the identity card was not refreshed within 3 days, then it would be judged as dead. This was also the reason why Yu Qingliang had watched Gu Evening Qing and when Qingqing swiped their identity cards in the past 2 days. As for her, Gu Evening Qing just said, she doesn't need to brush it, she's new. After that, Yu Qingxiao followed this car and directly entered the base. Nowadays. This base had expanded another area towards the outside. The tall black wall that she had seen before was now the inner wall. Yu Qingliang had thought that she would enter the inner city, but she didn't. Gu Evening Harvest drove around a corner and headed towards a building. That place looked a lot like a hospital before the end of the world. She followed Gu Evening Qing into the place. Yu Qingxiao then tried to follow Gu Evening Qing's example of being examined. But no, she was sent to a room with everything in it. You can stay here for now. By the way, Shi Xingyu lives diagonally across from you. Gu Evening Cheng opened her mouth and said that she even pointed to the door of the room diagonally opposite. It was just that the door to that room looked specially made and was a bit different from his own ordinary looking door. However, Yu Qingliang also knew why Shi Xingyu was given special care. Anyways, he was also a zombie king and even if he agreed to cooperate with the humans, the humans would still be on the defensive. Here's the key. Gu Evening Cheng handed a key to Yu Qingxian as well. Yu Qingxiao looked at the key in her hand, and thought that this Gu Evening Qing really trusted herself, and wasn't afraid that she would run away with Shi Xingyu in the middle of the night. She nodded at Gu Evening Chun before entering the room. There was a large closet in the room, which was full of pretty little dresses. Looking at Yu Qingxiao's eyes glowing, she immediately rushed to the bathroom to wash up. After cleaning up, Yu Qingxiao took the key and sneaked towards Shi Xingyu's room. When she opened the door to her room, she saw Shi Xingyu sitting at the desk by the window. He turned around when he heard the sound of the door opening. Upon seeing Yu Qingxiao, he was a little surprised. His eyes then looked out the door. There was no one there. 
didn't I tell you to avoid her and go away? Why did you run into the crowd? Yu Qingliang said and walked over, inquiring with some confusion. What Shirxing Yu had on his desk at the moment were all his photos, and the photographer was Yu Qingxiao. You too, Shirxing Yu replied. Of course, as for him looking at his own photos while the one who took the photos for him was right behind him, Shirxing Yu wouldn't have any sense of shame, even though in the past few months, the person who claimed to be his sister had talked to him about many things in the past, but he didn't have the slightest impression. But judging from the group photo she was holding, the other person wasn't lying. I took a good picture, didn't I? Yu Qingxiao came over with a smug look on her face. Shi Xingyu nodded his head in a rare moment. The shot was indeed good. Before, Shi Xingyu had no feeling at all. But now that he looked at so many photos, he realized that he had indeed been to many places. Especially that person who called herself his sister always cried every time he talked to himself about his former self. He couldn't feel why the other person was crying. Nor could he understand their feelings. But he didn't resent the other person. You said before that I shouldn't mess with her. But you also said that you would bet on the human to win, but I don't want to die just like that. So the best way is to accept the other party's terms of cooperation. Shi Yu looked at the photo in his hand. It was the first time Yu Qingyan took a photo of him. It was in an underground passage with a zombie fish behind him. And because of that, that was why Yu Qingxiao came to such a place wasn't it? Yu Qingxiao was a bit surprised when he heard what Shi Yu said. She didn't expect that this kind of thing would be something he decided on after serious thought. She had thought that Shi Xingyu was trying to enter human territory and then secretly eat people. It turned out that she was the one who thought too badly of the zombies. And what about you? So afraid of contact with humans, yet you're sticking your head in the piles. Shi Xingyu put the photo down before he stood up. He wore a monitoring anklet on his ankle. It was something designed to stop him from moving at high speeds. But for this, Shi Xingyu didn't care. Since he had chosen to work with humans, he naturally didn't care about this. What he wanted to do was to become the zombie king that humans trusted. I signed up to donate my body, so I have no problem donating my body to the country. Yu Qingliang said without caring. After saying this, Yu Qingliang also went through the photos on Shi Xingyu's desk. The negatives of these photos were all in her hands. Although Shi Xingyu didn't understand what Yu Qingyan meant by this, he still asked her, What about your dog? The Tyrannosaurus Rex? I gave it to a worthy human. Dogs are meant to live with humans. When Yu Qingxian thought of Xiao Ji, he felt that that little girl was not very old, but she was very dependable. That was why Yu Qingliang wasn't worried about the Tyrannosaurus Rex's situation. Shi Xingyu sniffed and stared at Yu Qingxian for a while and did not say anything. He should have thought of it a long time ago. Never mind. He himself was in no position to accuse Yu Qingxian now, because he was also considered an anomaly among the zombies. When he came across a human, he wouldn't just go straight for it. Although other intelligent zombies would also think about each other's abilities. But in general, they would still go straight on. When you can't beat them, then run. Shi Yu had memorized all of Yu Qingxian's words anyways. That is, you can't really push the humans to the brink of extinction. One or two humans are fine. If they were in groups, they would need to weigh things up a bit. And now after he entered the human base, he realized that there are many weapons that humans want to deal with zombies. Just why they didn't take them out to get rid of all the zombies. There was indeed a reason. As for what the reason was, Shi Yu was not sure. Seeing that Shi Xingyu didn't say anything, Yu Qingyu turned around and left his room. I'll come back to see you some other time. She then left Shi Xingyu's room. She looked at the door lock and then at Shi Xingyu who was standing in the room. Then I'll lock the door oh. Yu Qingxiao still uttered a voice to remind Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu didn't respond, seeming to have gotten used to being locked in the house. Yu Qingxiao left the door unlocked, before looking around and sneaking back to his room. But what Yu Qingxiao didn't realize was that the footage of her going to look for Shi Xingyu was all recorded including what she said. It was just that the communication between these two zombies was not something that humans could understand. In other words, although it was known what these two zombies said, there was no way for anyone to know what they said. So what are you guys doing listening in on two zombies talking? Gu Evening Ching felt a bit amused when she walked into the monitoring room with a glass of water. Watching them analyze the language between the two zombies felt a bit baffling. She felt that instead of analyzing it here, she should just go and ask. When the people from the technical department heard Gu Evening Ching's words, they also knew that Gu Evening Ching was just flirting with them. It wasn't that they felt that it was a useless endeavor. Anyways, this plan was also one of Gu Evening Ching's steps. First of all, to reach cooperation with the zombies, then it was necessary to know what kind of language system they had. Although it wasn't always possible to break down the words of low-level zombies, but the language between those high-level zombies was naturally something that had to be analyzed. No matter what one did, the first thing one needed, was to understand the other party's language. If one couldn't understand anything, naturally, 
It was similar to being deaf. Yu Qingliang could actually sense that they were probably being watched. He just didn't know if he would be watched when he took a shower. Forget about it. Anyway, they wouldn't lose a piece of flesh if they watched them. Although Yu Qingxiao had his own room, he actually spent more time with Shi Xingyu. Sometimes, he could still see Shi Xing Tian and Gu Evening Qing coming in to do inspections on his body. On the fourth day, Yu Qingliang came across the matter of putting Shi Xingyu on the operating table. So he was a bit curious and wanted to follow and watch. Gu Evening Qing and Shi Xing Tian glanced at each other. So they put Yu Qing Xian's sterilized bag on the side and watched. In fact, they also wanted to let Yu Qingliang know that what they were doing was not hurting the zombies. Yu Qingxiao squatted to the side and watched, realizing that the surgical process was difficult. First of all, advanced zombies had a strong healing ability, so opening and opening healed in less than a few seconds. But after the potion in Gu Evening Qing's hand was injected in, the wound healed much slower. Yu Qingliang stood to the side and watched, not knowing what exactly they were going to do. She wasn't a medical student and couldn't understand what these things were doing, but she still moved to the side of Shi Xingyu's head. Are you in pain? Yu Qingxiao asked Shi Xingyu in a low voice. It doesn't hurt. Shi Xingyu replied. Even if he was completely disintegrated, Shi Xingyu would not feel any pain. Although Shi Xingyu said that it didn't hurt, Yu Qingxiao still reached out and touched his head as a pacification. Shi Xing Tian's afterglow caught a glimpse of Yu Qingxian's action, and a flash of relief flashed under his eyes. Although her brother didn't remember himself, she knew that there was another sister who cared for him during the time he turned into a zombie. The surgery wasn't a long process, and it was over quickly. And after each surgery, Gu Evening Chang would give Shi Xingyu a bag of blood, for a zombie to heal from an injury. It was all very energy intensive, and Shi Xingyu took the bag of blood and sucked on it like a human. You want it? Gu Evening Chang asked her when she looked down at Yu Qingxian, who was squatting on the side of the surgical bed. Yu Qingxian shook her head, indicating that she didn't need it. It wasn't like she was hungry. Only after Shi Xingyu finished drinking and put on his clothes did Yu Qingxiao take him back. Gu Evening Qing looked at the back of the two of them as they left, and then looked at the one that had been Shi Xing Tian. Is it really okay for your brother to be so dependent on others? Gu Evening Chang spoke. She didn't have any siblings, but A Sheng was considered her brother. Even if it was her, if A Sheng suddenly didn't remember her and was still close to someone else, Gu Evening Qing felt that she would probably feel very sad. After all, that was her own brother. Shi Xing Tian sniffed but shook his head. There's no problem, because that one is also a sister. During the period of time that Shi Xing Yu did not remember, it was Yu Qingliang who was taking care of her brother, and Shi Xing Tian was certainly grateful to her. It was enough that his brother, whether he was a human or a zombie, had a sister that he relied on. Gu Evening Qing listened to Shi Xing Tian's words and looked at the two zombies that had already walked away, and also revealed a smile. There were still a lot of things she should learn. Thinking of this, Gu Evening Chang then looked at Shi Xing Tian, then after work is over, is sister free to go eat with me? Shi Xing Tian smiled at his words, sure, Shi Xing Yu could feel that Yu Qing Leisure's appearance had caused almost all of the human surveillance on him to be withdrawn, it was as if the humans really trusted that with Yu Qing Xiao around, he wouldn't escape, but this was indeed the case, even if Yu Qing Xiao didn't come, he actually wouldn't have escaped, it was just that the withdrawal of human surveillance would make him more comfortable, otherwise, the tip of his nose was always the smell of food, and he wasn't sure if he would go for a nibble one day. Yu Qingliang took the camera and cell phone, and showed Shi Xingyu where she was going afterward. She also told Shi Xingyu that in the future, if he was free, he could also go to see the scenery and such. When Shi Xingyu looked at her in the photos, he felt that these photos were completely different from when he first met her. If he were to use human words, the Yu Qingxian of the past was gray, but the current Yu Qingyan was probably colored. Despite this feeling, Shi Xingyu found it harder and harder to feel Yu Qingxian's presence, even though the feeling she gave herself in her body was completely different, the air of chicanery in her body had disappeared, it was no longer like before when she said whatever she wanted on her lips, but her body was filled with an aura of not being allowed to not be allowed, now that feeling was gone, instead, staying by her side would feel warm, Shi Xingyu didn't know what Yu Qingxian had gone through, but he knew that what Yu Qingxian wanted to do was already presumed to have been done, okay, I'll go and see, Shi Xingyu nodded his head in agreement. Although those landscapes were nothing special in his eyes, but for the first time, Shi Xingyu wanted to understand human feelings. Yu Qingliang began to check his body half a month after arriving at the base. A young girl of 18 or 19 years old came to her. As soon as Yu Qingliang saw the little girl, she immediately recognized her. It was the person who had led the research on meteorites in the first place. It turned out that this person was also a researcher at the base. As soon as Lu Si looked at Yu Qingxian, she reached out her hand. Hello, I'm Lu Si, 
And as soon as Yu Qingxiao heard the word Lu Si, he immediately realized that the Lu Nian that he had been chatting with during that time was her sister. But thinking about it, Lu Nian had been brought to the capital base by Gu Evening Cheng, so that meant that she was definitely in the capital base. Yu Qingliang also just nodded and didn't say that he was the zombie who was texting with her sister. Although Lu Si wasn't very old, she had a good head on her shoulders. She took Yu Qingliang to do all sorts of tests. Lu Si was also a person who didn't like to talk, and Yu Qingxian also didn't like to talk to people. Therefore this person and zombie got along for a month and said no more than 10 sentences. Generally, it was Lu Si who asked her to check, and Yu Qingxiao followed without speaking. Until the 31st day when Yu Qingxiao entered the base, Lu Si finally said a few more words. I'm going to perform a surgical experiment on you today. Can you accept it? Lu Si opened her mouth. She knew that Yu Qingxiao was different from other zombies. She retained a human consciousness. So it was different from Shi Xingyu. And after more than half a month of examination, Lu Si also discovered a problem. That is, Yu Qingxiao's body does not exist the function of fast healing, although she can't feel the pain, and also won't be like those zombies, and the strength of her body has gone up. How to describe it? If it was said that the possibility of a zombie recovering into a human was rare, but it was not completely absent. But Yu Qingliang that was completely absent. All the functions of her body had died. She couldn't even do simple actions like swallowing. The most common zombies were able to convert blood into energy. But this kind of thing Yu Qingxiao seemed unable to do either. Nothing useful could be seen from the inspection anymore. So she could only look at the situation from the inside. It was just that she also had concerns about Yu Qingxiao's situation. As she had no way to heal her wounds. Yu Qingxiang didn't have a problem with having to go on the operating table by himself. As for the question of whether or not the wound would heal, Yu Qingxiang didn't really care. After turning into a zombie, she didn't care that much about her appearance anymore. As long as the overall look was good, it would be fine. Although she said she didn't have any opinions, she was still a bit scared when she went on the operating table. Because Yu Qingxian's condition was a bit special. Lu Si wasn't the only one doing the surgery. That's why Yu Qingxiao wore an eye mask and headphones. The songs were still chosen by Yu Qingxiao himself. The main reason was that she was able to relax by listening to her favorite songs. Although Yu Qingxiao thought about what if she fell asleep on the operating table. But when she did fall asleep on the operating table, she didn't remember how she got off the operating table at all. Anyway, when she woke up, she saw that Gu Evening Chang and Lu Si were both in her house. This made her a bit surprised. Gu Evening Chang and Lu Si were indeed shocked by the fact that Yu Qingxian was completely motionless and couldn't be woken up. They looked for Shi Xingyu who was not worried and glanced at him and said that Yu Qingyan was asleep, and for the zombies will sleep this matter, really shocked to the human. When humans sleep, they can tell if the other person is still alive by their breathing and heartbeat temperature. But Yu Qingxian had none of these characteristics. As long as she didn't move, she was completely like a corpse. This was also the reason why when Yu Qingxian first met Gu Evening Cheng, she fooled Gu Evening Cheng by simply lying down on the ground. Even though Shi Xingyu said that Yu Qingxian was just asleep, with Gu Evening Chang's and their knowledge of zombies, they were still a little unsure. It wasn't until they saw Yu Qingxiang sitting up from the bed that they really looked dumbfounded at Gu Evening Chang and Lu Si. It turned out that Yu Qingxiang could really sleep. When Yu Qingxian woke up and saw the two people sitting in the room, he was shocked for a moment. Just this shiver from Yu Qingxiao also made the two people in the room tense up a bit. I'm sorry, we were just a little worried about you, afraid that you wouldn't wake up. Gu Evening Ching didn't mean to sit in this house to scare Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian swept a glance at them and did not say anything. When Gu Evening Ching saw that Yu Qingxian didn't say anything, she took Lu Si and left her room. And when Yu Qingxiao watched them close the door and go out, she lifted the covers and pulled up the pajamas on her body that she didn't know who had changed her. Pulling the pajamas violently, she did not see the wound on her stomach. This made Yu Qingliang a little shocked. No, she had felt someone touching around in her stomach before she fell asleep. How come there wasn't even a wound now? Human medical skills had already reached this level? Yu Qingliang froze for a while before realizing that there should be a healing ability person among the people who operated on her. After all, there was no way for herself to heal as quickly as Shi Xingyu did. She didn't know how many more times she would have to undergo surgery, but she still ran to see Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu was just sitting in a chair at the moment, fuming. Now there was no need to think about food or worry about being harassed by other zombies. If it was a normal zombie being locked up in one place, it would probably be very grumpy, but Shi Xingyu didn't feel that. His body memories made him very used to being in this kind of not so big room. It was just that he was a zombie and was idle after not looking for food. Plus his nominal sister would come by every few days to give himself sedative type medication. But Tokoyami didn't think it was the drugs that calmed him down. It was the human who quieted him when he spoke to himself. When he heard the door open, he turned around to look at the doorway and saw Yu Qingxian catapulting in. 
When Yu Qingxiao saw Shi Xingyu looking at him, he heatedly smiled. I came to see you, Yu Qingxiao explained. You come every day, Shi Xingyu said. There was nothing for him to look at. Yu Qingxiao smiled, but he wasn't annoyed, and circled around Shi Xingyu before saying, If you're bored, how about you try learning about humans? You're so smart anyway. Shi Xingyu also did not expect Yu Qingyu to advise him to learn about humans. He was just about to say why should he learn, but on second thought, he thought that it would be good for him to learn about humans so that he wouldn't be bored. After that, when Yu Qingxian had time, he would go and teach Shi Xingyu to recognize words. Of course, in this aspect of writing, Yu Qingxian couldn't do it, so he could only let Shi Xingyu go to his sister. After that, Yu Qingxiao rarely went to look for Shi Xingyu. Her surgeries were also once every five or six days. Sometimes Gu Evening Chang would take her out for a walk. Of course it was places where no one was around, but more often than not, it was Yu Qingxiao by herself in her room. It was about half a year later that Gu Evening Ching came into the house with a happy face. It should be that their experiments had made great progress. There was indeed big progress. They had been experimenting all this time. That is, after Yu Qingliang's plasma was diluted and then processed by Shi Xingtian and Wen Qingsheng and the rest of them, the first batch of vaccine had been made. It was just that this vaccine could only be used on people who were injured by zombies for the time being. It doesn't have much effect on humans who have turned into zombies. Previously, when one was injured by a zombie, there might only be a 1 in a 1,000 or even 1 in 10,000 chance of surviving. But now, because of this drug, it had been blocked at 1 in 10. Even though the possibility was still very small, this was already a great improvement. They believed that it wouldn't be long before the zombie vaccine could be produced. It was only a matter of time. Yu Qingliang listened to Gu Evening Qing's happy words, and for a moment, she didn't know how to answer her. It was true that she hadn't thought that the blood in her body could produce a vaccine. Thinking so, she was a little happy. If it's useful, that's really great. Yu Qingliang said. When Gu Evening Ching saw Yu Qingxian say this, she reached out and took her hand. We feel that the lifespan of the zombies has already broken through the human imagination. As for how long the zombies can live, I'm not sure, but I want to ask you for one thing. After she said this, her eyes looked at Yu Qingxian seriously. Yu Qingxian looked at Gu Evening Ching with some doubt. What she wanted to do had already been done, and she had agreed to join the base to make a contribution because of the application she had signed during her lifetime. So she originally wanted to have Gu Evening Ching burn her in a fire, then make her a runny hamper and bury it in a place full of pretty flowers. It was just that she hadn't expected that she would be asked for things. Yu Qingxiao didn't answer, and Gu Evening Ching also knew that her saying so was a bit forceful, but she knew that she could only ask Yu Qingxian for things nowadays. I don't know what kind of things you're going to ask me for, but I want you to respect my idea. Even though I might be a corpse now, my dream is to find a place to bury myself after traveling. I can make it this far. I'm already super awesome. Yu Qingxiao interrupted what Gu Evening Cheng wanted to say. If in case Gu Evening Cheng had to please herself to live for dozens or hundreds of years, then she would die of exhaustion. What if the zombies could live for a long time? It wouldn't really want her to live until thousands and thousands of years from now. She was 30 years old. Couldn't she be a bit more capricious? Gu Evening Cheng looked at Yu Qingxian like this and didn't force her. She just got up and left. After Yu Qingxiao saw Gu Evening Chen leave, she stood up and touched the door, opening the doorway and looking at Gu Evening Ching's back as she left. She didn't know what to say, but she had really tried her best. However, later on, Gu Evening Ching would take her to see the test fields in the base from time to time, and also the underground farm. Even though it was underground, she didn't feel it at all. The light above her head was simulated daylight, and it would also simulate 24-hour light changes and the temperature and humidity and such were all controlled. Yu Qingliang was like a country bumpkin, staring blankly, only exclaiming her shock in her mind with flowers and birds. In the third year of the end times, she saw the underground world created by humans. But human technology, it was developing too fast. Until Yu Qingliang saw familiar people in the underground farm, court lady Wen was holding an electronic light screen in her hands and was debugging the data. It seemed to be dealing with a new area. How could she not expect that court lady Wen would be in this place? Court Lady Wen wasn't surprised when she saw Yu Qingliang. She just glanced at Gu Evening Cheng. Why did you bring her here? After saying this, Court Lady Wen looked at Yu Qingxiao. At this moment, Court Lady Wen looked a lot more mature than before, and her long hair had been cut short. It looked a lot sharper. It was just that Yu Qingxian didn't know why Court Lady Wen was so obsessed with herself. She was wondering if she owed her money. After that, Court Lady Wen explained why she had appeared in this place. It was because they had met a zombie king unexpectedly earlier. Although she killed the other party back, Qinan was paralyzed for saving her. Even though Qinan said that this incident had nothing to do with her. However, Court Lady Wen knew that at that time, 
She had the ability to keep both herself and Chinin unharmed, but because she didn't want to expose her system, she had been trying to pretend to be a pig and eat a tiger. But obviously, reality had slapped her hard. If she didn't care about others and didn't have to hide herself, then Chinin wouldn't have been unable to walk for the rest of his life. It was also at this time that Gu Evening Ching found her, bringing her to the base. Court Lady Wen also felt that there was no need for her to hide anymore. If she showed her abilities, then many people could avoid being like Chinin. That was why she had borrowed the system's ability to create this underground farm. What she had been worried about was that there would be people coveting her system. But Gu Evening Ching had promised her that there wouldn't be anyone who would dare to hit on her. For the past six months, Gu Evening Ching had fulfilled this promise very well. And she was also trying to find a way to cure Chinin. It was only a few days ago, when she was having dinner with Gu Evening Ching, she learned about Yu Qingliang from Gu Evening Ching's mouth. Of course, at first, she didn't know who Yu Qingxiao was. And it wasn't until later when Gu Evening Ching said it was the zombie that wouldn't eat people traveling around that she reacted. However, Court Lady Wen was in no hurry to meet Yu Qingxiao. Earlier, Yu Qingxiao had let that high-level zombie convey to her that she should not follow her. And now, Yu Qingxiao's energy value had dropped some more. There was no telling what the reason was. Other zombies would get stronger and stronger. But Yu Qingxiao was getting weaker and weaker. Although Court Lady Wen was a bit concerned, she didn't say anything more. She just gave Yu Qingxiao the current plan in hand. The ground was easily infected by the virus, and the underground environment was better. At least it wouldn't suddenly cool down or warm up. Yu Qingxian had been inside for most of the year and hadn't gone out, so she didn't know about the temperature or anything, but she did see it snowing. As for the high temperature, it wasn't too good to feel. Obviously the temperature of the rooms in this experimental building was well controlled. It seemed that the weather outside was still extreme. Yu Qingliang followed Gu Evening Cheng around and went back. The days went by like this day by day. Yu Qingxian's time on the operating table was also getting longer and longer, but the number of times was also getting less and less. She didn't feel uncomfortable. It was just that her perception of time was getting weaker and weaker. By the time she came back to her senses, 10 years had passed. She had been staying in this space for these 10 years, and the people in this space had already moved away. Those who remained were all official people. Sure Xingyu had left 3 years ago. He had the official locator and monitor on him, so the officials had been in control of Shi Xingyu's plans. Most importantly, his body had been completely transformed, slightly able to digest some cooked food now. His desire for living things had dropped quite a bit. However, it still favored eating fresh flesh and blood. The broken right hand was reinstalled with a mechanical hand with the help of Gu Evening Cheng and the base's researchers. The strength was set according to the strength of his body. She even went to squat and watched Shi Xingyu's rehab activities. Smashing and flattening an armored car with a single punch made Yu Qingliang's hair stand on end as she watched, and when the officials let Shi Xingyu out, they weren't letting him go out and hang around, it was for him to first beat up those high-level zombies and relocate all of them to one place, that way it could be managed in a unified manner. Officially, he wanted to create a world where humans and zombies could live together, it was naturally unrealistic to want to kill all the zombies, the manpower alone was completely insufficient, and for so many years, Although the world had held several general meetings to tide over the difficulties together, but every time, there was a country backstabbing. As a result, for 10 years, there was no agreement on the matter of unifying goals. However, some of the smaller countries around their country had attached themselves to their country. In this, the official personnel led by Gu Evening Ching really contributed a great deal of power, and now the vaccine against the zombie virus had been researched. Of course, the emergence of the vaccine also suppressed the emergence of the aberrants. In the past, when an ordinary human was injured by a zombie, there was still a certain chance of turning into an alien. It was just that humans injured almost always turned into zombies. So it didn't matter if they didn't turn into an alien. Ten years had passed since the end of the world. In fact, many of the survivors of the base had already lived a normal life. And in ten years, technology had taken another big step forward. For example, the airborne electromagnetic track that was designed nowadays could detach from the ground and quickly travel through the air. The track connects 15 bases and is very fast. The fastest time to arrive is 2 hours, and the latest time is only 7 hours. In short, the technology nowadays is developing very fast, although a bit sorry for other countries. But during this decade, protective walls were indeed built along the borderline. Of course it was used to keep out the zombies. It was really the lack of cooperation from those countries that caused the zombies to keep coming to their countries. Of course, whether the zombies were unconscious or conscious, then no one knew. Nowadays. The residents in the base had already lived normally, but it was naturally very difficult to make the zombies regain their consciousness. Still, during the 10 years, the officials didn't have any thoughts of giving up. 
Because it had once succeeded. Because there had once been zombies that were carrying human consciousness. That was why the officials had never given up on the possibility. But Yu Qingliang had thought that he would only stay here at the base for a few months. He just didn't realize that it had been 10 years in the blink of an eye. In 10 years, Xiao Ji had brought the Tyrannosaurus Rex to see her once. Although the Tyrannosaurus Rex was already a mutated dog, the upper limit of a dog's lifespan was placed there. The veterinarian had also examined it, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex was estimated to be 7 or 8 years old when he met Yu Qingliang. Now that it had lived for another 10 years, it was considered a high life expectancy dog. Of course, in the words of the veterinarian, the Tyrannosaurus Rex could almost live to be 30 or so years old. Moreover, the relationship between the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Xiao Ji had become very good. After a few years of not seeing each other, Xiao Ji had also grown into a big girl. Of course, after Gu Evening Ching learned from Xiao Ji's mouth that she was a zombie who had become a human, she decided to keep Xiao Ji in the base. As a result, Xiao Ji ran away in the middle of the night, and Gu Evening Chang went to chase after her. She hasn't come back for half a year. Yu Qingliang was now free and clear. No one came to bother her. So she changed her clothes, rummaged through a backpack, asked the staff for a camera and cell phone, and secretly left the base. When Gu Evening Chang returned, she only found a note in the house where Yu Qingxiao used to live. I'm going to see the spring flowers law, don't want to die for a while, but don't look for me. The writing on it was crooked, but it was clear enough to see what she was writing. Look at spring flowers? Gu Evening Chang walked over to the window and looked out. So, it was spring again, the end of the entire text. After Shi Xingyu left Yu Qingliang, he wandered around the city, but still a little uneasy. He squatted on the roof of the building to see what Yu Qingxian was doing, seeing that she was still royally good at packing up human corpses and then also going along for the ride, and then watching her run away with her suitcase on top. This made Shi sure Xingyu helpless. I don't know if Yu Qingxiao can survive under the eyes of humans like this. Forget it. Anyway, Yu Qingxian was not something he should worry about. But even so, Shi sure Xingyu still did not leave immediately. Instead, he stayed in the city for a few more days. It wasn't until after seeing the fireworks in the distance that night that Shi sure Xingyu knew he was worried for nothing. This little zombie was having fun. Thinking of this, Shi Xingyu turned around and left. And during this time away from Yu Qingliang, Shi Xingyu was a bit uncomfortable at first. There would always be a subconscious desire to hand carry something. But he realized that he no longer needed to help Yu Qingxian pull his suitcase. While passing by a store, Shi Xingyu saw a fanny pack that looked good. He went in and took the fanny pack off and strapped it to his body. It was fine to use it to hold crystal cores. It was just that Shi Xingyu realized that now that he had left Yu Qingliang, when he encountered humans again, he had a taboo about laying his hands on them. He felt that this was not a good habit. He himself was a zombie. Humans were just food. There was absolutely no need to be polite to food. And again when he encountered humans again, Shi Xingyu did not rush up. It was because there seemed to be an argument between the other party. A man seemed to be threatening the mother and daughter. If they wanted them to take away the mother and daughter, then they would need to pay something. The tone of his mouth carried a hint of molestation and his eyes were sweeping that girl up and down. The middle-aged woman immediately blocked in front of her daughter. Although she was scared, she still opened her mouth. We can trade food for it. As long as you take us out of this place, we can share all of our food with you afterward. Just not her daughters. The woman didn't say this out loud. The people in the car heard the woman's words and were also a little soft-hearted. After all, there were still empty seats in the car, so it was better to help out. In times like these, it's not easy for everyone to stay alive. Only when those people opened their mouths. The man slammed the car door. Don't talk nonsense. You all have to listen when Lao Zi speaks. Whoever dares to say one more word, Lao Zi will whip whoever. That man opened his mouth. After saying this, his eyes moved back to the 15 or 16 year old little girl. Shi Xingyu was leaning against the wall not far away. He heard all the conversation in his ears. Without knowing how, Shi Xingyu rushed over. He was so fast that he grabbed the man's neck in an instant. And when those next to him saw Shi Xingyu rushing out, they thought it was a human at first, but some saw his scarlet eyes and instantly knew that the other party was a zombie. Just before their screams came out, Shi Xingyu carried the man away, and after Shi Xingyu finished eating, he looked at the man lying on the ground twitching and about to die. His mind was full of Yu Qingliang's words, this is ridding the people of evil, it's not considered murder. The man was twitching on the ground for less than a few seconds before his breath was broken, and in less than three minutes, the man struggled to stand up again. When Shi Xingyu looked at the man who had turned into a zombie, he pointed at the high building. Climb up and jump from the top floor. The man who had just turned into a zombie shivered and walked towards the building with twisted and stiff steps. It had no way to disobey Shi Xingyu's order. Bored and reaching out to wipe his mouth, 
Sure Xing Yu casually jumped onto the roof of the car and sat down, waiting for the man to come down from the roof of the building. It was just that the man climbing the building was just too slow. 30 floors, it climbed for days, by the time it jumped down, it landed on its head, and it couldn't be saved even if it wanted to. Sure Xing Yu looked at the mess of flesh and mud before he jumped down from the roof of the car and loitered away. He didn't know if it was because of Yu Qingliang's influence, but when he arrived at some strange looking buildings, he would stop and look at them for a few more moments. And when he saw a car, he naturally rushed up. He hadn't eaten for many days. When Yu Qingliang was around he only ate once a month, and that was completely fine. But now that he was all alone, of course he wouldn't be condescending. It was only when he rushed to the other car that he locked eyes with the person on the passenger side. It was the one who had been running after Yu Qingliang. Yu Qingxiao had said not to mess with this person, but he felt that if these two people ate it up, then he would inevitably be able to upgrade. But Xu Xingyu only pondered for three seconds before jumping away again, because that little girl seemed to be about to make a move. But what Xu Xingyu didn't know was that although Court Lady Wen made her move with the idea of defense, more than that, she was marking Xu Xingyu. It was just that the little zombie that had been following this zombie around wasn't there. With the mark, Court Lady Wen was in no hurry to chase after it. As long as she wanted to chase, then she could. It was the reaction of this senior zombie that was a bit strange. It was reasonable to say that the zombie preferred the alien a bit more. This zombie was surprisingly able to take control and leave. Of course, Xu Xingyu didn't want to give up on these two prey. But every time he wanted to make a move, Yu Qingliang's words would rattle around in his head, letting him know that he couldn't make a move against these two. Xu Xingyu couldn't make a move against humans, but he could make a move against zombies. He directly lifted the skulls of quite a few zombies before he left this place and made his way north. And on the way north, Xu Xingyu naturally ate much more frequently than before, but when he intercepted a car again, Xu Xingyu locked eyes with a woman again. This person was familiar to Xu Xingyu. It was the person named Gu Evening Cheng that Yu Qingxiao had been chanting about. This made Xu Xingyu feel that he was really unlucky. Intercepting whoever's car wasn't, and intercepting a human who couldn't be touched. Therefore, Xu Xingyu left again without hesitation. After leaving Gu Evening Cheng's car, Xu Xingyu encountered Court Lady Wen's car again. After that, he realized that little girl had been following him. This puzzled him. He had already separated from Yu Qingyan. So why did that little girl keep following him? Sure enough, she was a pervert. When the weather changed, Xu Xingyu wasn't in a hurry to rush, wanting to avoid the storm. But he realized that that little girl's shadowy spirit kept following him. He could only continue walking as well. As a high-level zombie, being chased by a human, was that reasonable? Never mind. Wasn't Yu Qingxian also always being chased by humans? It was true that after spending a lot of time with Yu Qingxian, he had been infected with her unlucky bastard's luck. Xu Xingyu was trying to use the hurricane to get rid of Court Lady One. Even when he sensed that a level 3 zombie was nearby, Xu Xingyu deliberately went that way. He couldn't lay his hands on this little girl himself, so it shouldn't be a problem for him to use other zombies to finish off that little girl. Thinking this way, Xu Xingyu scurried over to that third level zombie's territory. There was a strong sense of territoriality amongst high level zombies. So when Xu Xingyu's scent appeared in the territory of the third level zombie, it made that third level zombie cranky, along with Court Lady One and Qin and also followed into the territory of the third level zombie. Xu Xingyu originally wanted to sit back and reap the benefits, but he hadn't expected the level 3 zombie to be so unforgiving. No wonder Yu Qingliang said that he should not mess with this little girl. It turned out that the little girl was truly capable. Although Xu Xingyu felt that this little girl was very powerful, she couldn't keep following him. He had thought that the rain could isolate his breath or something, so he just ran even in the pouring rain. But obviously, he thought beautifully, even the heavy rain didn't get rid of the little girl. After the hurricane made landfall, Xu Xingyu also dove headfirst into the hurricane. It also wanted to use the hurricane to get rid of these two humans, because humans would avoid these dangers. But his thoughts were once again shattered by the appearance of Court Lady One. At this time, Xu Xingyu finally realized why Yu Qingxian was so afraid of this little girl. He couldn't fight it and he couldn't shake it off. He now sort of felt what Yu Qingxian was feeling. Even if he couldn't get rid of it, he still had to get rid of it. When Xu Xingyu really couldn't get rid of Court Lady One, he saw Yu Qingxian again. At this time, her breath was even harder to capture. As he looked at the greenish zombie in front of him, a flash of doubt flashed in the bottom of his eyes. It had only been a few months since he had seen her, but she had turned herself green. Never mind. With Yu Qingxiao's thoughts that he couldn't understand. He wouldn't be surprised even if the next time he encountered it was pink. But having met Yu Qingxiao, then let her go and get rid of that little girl. One couldn't just let that little girl keep following them. And after settling the matter of court lady Wen with Yu Qingxian, Xu Xingyu naturally had to leave. 
For some reason, Xiu Xingyu felt that the death wish in Yu Qingxian seemed to be a little deeper. If it was before, he would have been curious, but now, Xiu Xingyu was no longer so curious. In Yu Qingxian's words, she had not wanted to live in the first place, but she had also lived until now. Xiu Xingyu knew that he couldn't go with Yu Qingxiang. He would be inconvenient for her if he followed her. It would be inconvenient for himself as well. After saying goodbye to Yu Qingxian again, Xiu Xingyu headed to the city where the zombie king Yu Qingxian had met was located. He certainly wasn't looking for trouble with the other party. He was just going to take a slight look around. Xiu Xingyu thought that he had advanced fast enough, but didn't think that there were still zombies that were faster than him. However, when he entered that city, he once again encountered Gu Evening Ching. And upon seeing Gu Evening Ching, it changed his mind again. Since Gu Evening Ching was in this place, that zombie wouldn't dare to act rashly. Maybe the zombie would be cut down by Gu Evening Ching at some point in the future. Therefore, Xiu Xingyu did not look at the zombie king after meeting Gu Evening Ching on the narrow road. And Xiu Xingyu knew that if he and the one called Knight met, it would definitely be a fight. First of all, he was not yet level 5. While that I Knight was already level 5, no matter how powerful he was, the possibility of victory was not very high. Not all zombies are reasonable. Even if they want to be reasonable, it is also when the other party is stronger than themselves and willing to be reasonable. However, more often than not, the other party needs to submit. Of course, Xiu Xingyu was not willing to submit to the other party. Not all zombies were like Yu Qingliang who had no interest in ruling zombies. Moreover, for a zombie like himself, even if he did submit, the other party would not trust him. It might just lift his own skull at some point. So Xiu Xingyu turned around and left the city. The weather in the end times was always changing suddenly. When Xing Yu felt that he couldn't move his body, he was in a city. First it rained for days, then it changed to hail, and finally the air froze. Xiu Xing Yu was just frozen on the street. His consciousness was blurred after that. It was unknown how long it took for his consciousness to recover. And after recovering, Xiu Xing Yu felt a bit weak. He moved his arms and legs, dragging his weak body into the house. Although he felt that a change of clothes shouldn't work, but Xiu Xing Yu still went to change his clothes. It was thick like the clothes Yu Qingxiao had changed for him for the first time. He didn't know if it was a psychological effect, but he did feel much better after putting on the thick clothes, but his body had consumed a lot of energy, so he really had to make up for it. He pulled out the crystal core from his bag. This crystal core had been carried by Yu Qingliang, and for some reason, he felt that the energy of this crystal core had not decreased in the slightest, and had even increased. Forget it, it was useless to dwell on those useless things. If he asked Yu Qingxian himself, Yu Qingxian didn't even understand. After Xiu Xingyu absorbed this crystal core, he felt unprecedentedly refreshed. He knew that he had advanced. Before, he had been stuck there unable to move. No matter how many crystal cores he ate, he couldn't break through. That's why at the back, Xingyu didn't eat it. It would be a waste to eat it. He didn't expect that after being frozen for a while, after absorbing this third level crystal core, he actually advanced. After Xiu Xingyu advanced, he stayed in the house for a few days to make sure he had adapted to the current temperature before he left the room, and those zombies were still erected on the road like an ice sculpture. Of course, in the good habit of not wasting, Xiu Xingyu collected all the crystal cores from those zombies that had them. It was just that Xiu Xingyu had just gotten rid of Court Lady One, but she was being targeted by Gu Evening Ching again. She encountered Gu Evening Ching several times in a row. Humans were now staying in the base and didn't dare to come out, with temperatures that could freeze even zombies. Humans definitely didn't dare to run around, except for the likes of Gu Evening Ching. At first, Xing Yu was actively avoiding Gu Evening Harvest, but in August, Gu Wanqing took the initiative to block his path. Can we talk? Gu Evening Ching opened her mouth. When Shi Xing Yu heard this, he stopped trying to leave. He looked over at Gu Evening Cheng, somewhat puzzled as to what this human and a zombie of his own were going to talk about. However, he was not interested in Gu Evening Ching, although he felt that Gu Evening Ching was very tasty food. It was just that this food could not be eaten. Since it couldn't be eaten, then there was no need to take care of it. It was just that he was a bit curious as to what this Gu Evening Ching had done that would make Yu Qing Xian so afraid. Gu Evening Ching wasn't holding a weapon, but the teenager behind her had already started to draw his sword. Ah Shang, don't worry. Gu Evening Ching glanced back at Wen Qing Sheng before speaking. When Wen Qing Sheng heard Gu Evening Ching's words, he put his long knife back into its sheath. What do you want to talk about? Shi Xing Yu opened his mouth his voice slightly hoarse, obviously because he didn't talk often. Of course it's about embracing you as king. Gu Evening Ching was succinct, and with just one sentence, she captured Xiu Xing Yu's mind. As an advanced zombie, it was natural that he only wanted to become stronger. Becoming the king of the zombies was something that all advanced zombies wanted to do. 
but he was a zombie, and the other party was a human. Humans couldn't trust zombies, and zombies wouldn't have trust in humans. It could be said that zombies wouldn't develop trust in any person or other zombies. Thus even though Shi Xingyu reacted to Gu Evening-Ching's words. However, Shi Xingyu only glanced at her and turned away. It was clear that Gu Evening-Ching's words would not be trusted by Shi Xingyu even if his heart was moved. So Shi Xingyu left without a hint of hesitation. Gu Evening-Cheng watched Shi Xingyu leave and did not have any expression. Rather, it was when Qing Qing next to him who was a bit puzzled, Sister Qing, if you say this to a zombie, does it understand? Can zombies really communicate? In Wen Qing Qing's eyes, zombies were man-eating monsters. Although he also felt that Sister Qing's idea was too whimsical. But if Sister Qing wanted to do it, he wouldn't stop it. Shi Xingyu turned around and entered the city. But he really didn't expect that there was a high-level zombie in this city. And it was still a zombie king. He originally didn't want to take care of it. But the other party seemed to have seen the contact between him and the humans. It didn't rush up to fight him, which made Shi Xingyu somewhat surprised. However, if this zombie did not fight him, Shi Xingyu would not be grateful to the other party. Before, he might not have had much confidence in that I am. But against this level 5 zombie, Shi Xingyu was still sure of himself now. He had only been passing by, but he hadn't expected this zombie to follow him all the way at all. At first, Shi Xingyu didn't care, probably because he thought the other party was on guard. But it wasn't until he was about to leave that the zombie spoke. The words in it were mocking himself for even being afraid of humans or something like that. In short it said something he didn't like to hear. It wasn't that Shi Xingyu was afraid of humans. It was just that there were some people that he couldn't mess with. This was what Yu Qingliang said to him. He felt that this zombie was definitely going to suffer if he underestimated humans. Originally, he also didn't want to care about these words from this zombie. But this zombie just chased after him and kept talking. This caused Shi Xingyu to be overwhelmed. Even though the zombie did not have human memories, some emotions were still inherited. Especially when this zombie grabbed a dying human and threw it in front of Shi Xingyu, saying that it was for Shi Xingyu to eat. This pissed off Shi Xingyu. It wasn't like he couldn't eat humans. Not just any zombie could come and throw themselves at him. This was the dignity of being a king. Shi Xingyu finally couldn't help himself and rushed up to fight with this zombie. The level of the two zombies was about the same. And even if they used their powers, they couldn't hurt each other. Therefore, the two zombies directly fought each other. The zombies in the city were shivering at this moment, all cowering in the corners not daring to move, because the two kings were pressing down on their heads. Gu Evening Ching was originally here to deal with the zombies here. This zombie had slaughtered several alien squads one after another in just a few months. That was why the people from the other bases could only turn to the capital base for help, wanting Gu Evening Ching to come and clean up this zombie. At this moment, she heard the commotion in the city, and from afar, she saw several buildings directly collapsing. However, there wasn't much tremor on the ground. In other words, the collapse of the tall building wasn't due to an earthquake. Then there was only one possibility. Two high-level zombies were fighting inside. And by the time Gu Evening Chun brought Xiao Tian to find Shi Xingyu, the fight had already ended a while ago. Shi Xingyu was covered in dust at this time. Half of his right hand was missing, and his clothes were covered in blood. As for the other zombie, half of its head was gone. But Shi Xingyu was so badly injured that if he didn't care, Shi Xingyu would have died as well. It was just that the current Shi Xingyu was already somewhat unconscious. He only saw a woman walking towards her, seemingly asking about him. But Shi Xingyu could no longer answer at this point. And for some reason, the back of a woman flashed through his head. It was just that he couldn't see the other person's appearance. But as soon as he thought of this back, he inexplicably felt at peace. When Shi Xingyu woke up, he saw the ceiling. There was a fire not far away, as well as three people and a dog. This made Shi Xingyu immediately alert. He turned around and wanted to break the window. But one of them's words made him stop again. Didn't you Qing Xian teach you to say thank you after accepting someone's help? Pei Yuan opened his mouth as he stared at Shi Xingyu's back. When these words came out, even Gu Evening Cheng and Wen Qingsheng looked at Pei Yuan unexpectedly. Who was Yu Qingxiao? And when Shi Xingyu heard Pei Yuan's words, he retracted his legs and sat quietly on the futon. But at this moment, he did want to eat. His golden eyes stared at Tsunami. It's not okay for these three people. So it's okay to eat a dog, right? Tsunami was stared at by Shi Xingyu with some chills on his back. So he moved behind Gu Evening Ching. Gu Evening Ching immediately knew what was wrong with Shi Xingyu. She took out several bags of blood out of thin air and threw them over. This tastes better than tsunami. Gu Evening Ching opened her mouth. Shi Xingyu reached out and took the bags of blood. Because it was sealed. He couldn't smell the odor until he opened the seal. And the aroma inside emanated out. Leaving him refreshed. This made Shi Xingyu think of the level 3 crystal core that he had absorbed earlier. 
It was just that Xu Xingyu hadn't thought that this Gu Evening Ching had brought blood with her. Two bags of blood went down, and Xu Xingyu's sanity returned. Those golden eyes regained their calmness. Gu Evening Chang watched as Xu Xingyu regained his composure. So she reached out and rubbed Satsi's head. See, as long as there's food, zombies are able to find their sanity and not make a move on humans. Only she didn't know if she was saying this to Wen Qingsheng or to Xu Xingyu. Xu Xingyu didn't say anything. Even if this was said to him, he didn't care. Instead, it was Wen Qingsheng who bristled. This is also just a high-level zombie. Wasn't the one in the capital also, knowing that the base couldn't be attacked, it gave up. But that zombie's level of danger can be much more intimidating than before. When Qingxing's words were not false, a wolf kept barking. Then humans could determine the location of the wolf. But when it suddenly stopped barking, then inevitably the wolf would have to act as a demon. This was why the capital base's shifter battle team was a bit cautious when entering and exiting. It was really too quiet. It was so quiet that people were scared. So of course when Qingxing could not completely trust Xu Xingyu, advanced zombies were very cunning. Before reaching their goal, they were very good at being patient. Of course, once they had the chance, they would not hide their nature. It was like just now, even if they saved this zombie, even if this zombie stayed with the one that wouldn't eat people, but he had just tried to eat tsunami. So how was Wen Qingxing going to trust a zombie like this? Even if turning into a zombie wasn't something they were willing to do, but now they were already zombies. If the humans were soft on them, then what about those humans who were hurt by the zombies? When Xu Xing you listened to the words of these people, he also knew that it should be Ai Yi who was talking about them. It was estimated that Knight had also sensed that aura on Yu Qingxiao's body before he stopped attacking. So Xu Xing Yu felt that these few humans' thoughts were a bit complicated. Although they zombies would endure, it was only for humans with that special blood. Take for example that person who knew Yu Qingxiao's name. His blood also had a strong attraction to high-level zombies. Of course, he wasn't stupid enough to just pounce on him and take a bite. It was just that he hadn't said Yu Qingxiao's name to these people. It seemed that only that person knew Yu Qingxiao's name. Did he know Yu Qingxiao? But Yu Qingxiao didn't know him and didn't even know what his name was. You know her? Xu Xingyu's eyes went to Pei Yuanyan, who was all he cared about right now as well. He didn't know where on earth this person knew Yu Qingxiao's name from. Heard of it? Don't recognize it. Pei Yuan replied. And the fact that Pei Yuan was having such a normal conversation made both Gu Evening Ching and Wen Qingxing a bit surprised. Because there weren't many times when Pei Yuan was so serious. Of course. The conversation between this person and the zombie ended here, and in the middle of the night, Xu Xingyu left. He was a zombie. There was no need to be in the company of humans. If the other party is a zombie, it's okay, it's still the same kind of person. If you don't like it, you can fight. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. When zombies fight, the result is you die and I live. When Xu Xingyu wanted to leave, Gu Evening Ching and the others didn't stop him. Xu Xingyu saw that Gu Evening Ching and the others didn't catch up but he didn't care either. After all, humans were nothing more than food to him. It was just that these few people were a bit special and couldn't be eaten. Xu Xingyu left this urban area and headed towards the south. He thought about it and went back again. Gu Evening Ching and the others had just sent Xu Xingyu away, but as a result, he came back in less than three minutes. What month is it now? Xu Xingyu inquired. Although he knew that dawn and darkness was a day, and 30 days was a month, but he doesn't write it down every day. So what month was September? He didn't know. August. Gu Evening Chang replied. Then how many days until September? Xu Xingyu asked again. It was fortunate that it was August and not September. It was also fortunate that he folded back and asked. There's still 21 days left. Gu Evening Chang took out her cell phone and glanced at the date, telling him the exact time. Although she didn't know why Xu Xingyu a zombie cared so much about time. Xu Xingyu turned his head and was about to leave. His head remembered Yu Qingxian's teachings again. And after some thought, he turned his head again. Thank you. After saying these two words, Xu Xingyu left. Although he didn't know what these two words meant, Yu Qingxian said that after asking for help, and someone else helped him or her, then he or she should say these two words to the other person. Gu Evening Ching was thanked by a zombie and couldn't react for a moment. Only Pei Yuan stared at Xu Xingyu's back and smiled slightly. It was as if he could understand why Xu Xingyu had come back to ask for the time. What's going on with this zombie? When Xingsheng was also a bit surprised, because this zombie was indeed popular. Where had I seen a zombie that would still say thank you? Ah, when can we see the bloom? Pei Yuan opened his mouth and looked out the window. The sky outside was dark, but a hint of a golden thread had already emerged from the sky. It was just Pei Yuan's words that made Wen Qingxing look at him again, completely unable to understand what exactly Pei Yuan was saying. Gu Evening Qing didn't open her mouth either. Although Pei Yuan always spoke strangely, she knew that Pei Yuan knew exactly what he was doing in his own heart. Over the years, 
A large portion of what she wanted to do was pay Yuan's help, even if he didn't say so. After knowing the time, Shi Xingyu headed in the direction of the Wai province. However, Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingliang was probably still in the north at this time. With her speed, she didn't even know which corner she was hiding in right now to eat and take pictures, but he had previously promised to go to Autumn Color Lake to see the scenery this September. As he looked at the frozen zombies and trees everywhere, he felt that this year's Autumn Color Lake probably didn't change much from last year. Even though Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingliang shouldn't come, even if he came, he would probably be late. So the closer he got to this place, the more Shi Xingyu put down his speed. Thus it was on the first day of September that he arrived at Autumn Color Lake. He was actually a little scared. As a zombie, it was kinda surprising to Shi Xingyu that he would have the emotion of fear. But when he walked to the Autumn Color Lake, he saw a zombie and a big white dog. At the sight of the big white dogs and Yu Qingxia who was smiling happily, Shi Xingyu really wanted to rush to beat up that dog. It inexplicably looked bad. Of course, he went down on it. But actually, after really fighting this dog, he felt that the dog wasn't that unpleasant to look at. At least Yu Qingliang was a lot happier when he was with this dog than when he was with himself. He wasn't jealous or anything. He just felt that it was good that Yu Qingxia was happy. Every time he saw Yu Qingxia happy, he always felt inexplicably relieved. Shi Xingyu knew that this was something left over from being a human. It was like he wanted to make a person like that happy. It was just that he didn't remember it. When he saw Yu Qingxiao smiling so happily, Shi Xingyu envied her for the first time, envious that she still had the memories from when she was human. In fact, when Yu Qingxian asked him where he wanted to go, he wanted to follow Yu Qingxian for another walk. Perhaps he could learn something more from Yu Qingxian, but he knew that he would be inconvenienced if he followed her. So he didn't follow. After seeing Yu Qingxiao leave, he chose to go find Gu Evening Cheng again because the only one who could help him was Gu Evening Ching. Since Gu Evening Ching could even get the poison to kill zombies, wouldn't it be okay to try and help him get his human memories back? But he didn't know where Gu Wanqing was. He could only go back to the city where he met her and stay there. After waiting like this for a few more months, he waited for Gu Evening Cheng again. Gu Evening Ching was indeed a bit surprised after hearing his words, but she was still happy. Don't worry, I'm not sure if I can help you get your memories back, but someone is definitely able to remember everything about you. Gu Evening Chang spoke. She didn't feel that the change in Shi Xingyu, the zombie, was just because of some feelings. She still felt that Shi Xingyu was influenced by the zombie that didn't eat people. It should be a spiritual influence. In other words, zombies could indeed change their minds by mind control. Pei Yuan was right. Thinking of this, Gu Evening Ching glanced back at Pei Yuan and saw that Pei Yuan was actually smiling in the direction of the convoy, laughing at what? Gu Evening Ching was a bit puzzled. Although they had been together for quite a while, but there were times when Pei Yuan's behavior was still a bit confusing to her. It's nothing. Pei Yuan put away his smile and began to tilt his head back to look at the sky again. Seeing the conversation between these two people, and glancing over at the car, Shi Xingyu took two steps back. Come back to me when you're done with things. I'll always be here. Anyway, this place wasn't far from where Gu Evening Cheng was staying. When Gu Evening Cheng heard this, she nodded and left. What Shi Xingyu actually cared more about was the words Gu Evening Cheng said. That someone definitely remembered everything about himself. In this world, where else would someone remember everything about himself? Before he met Yu Qingxiao, he didn't even know what his name was. Until several days later, Gu Evening Qing brought a woman to meet him. Of course, Shi Xingyu didn't remember who this human was. He just watched as the other party's eyes reddened at the first sight of him. It wasn't until after entering the base that Shi Xingyu realized that this person was his own sister. But he didn't have a single impression of her. But the other party didn't care at all either. Every day, he came to talk to himself, then gave him a bunch of photos, all of them of him. When he saw these photos, Shi Xingyu was a bit surprised. This person who claimed to be his sister had met with Yu Qingliang. The photos were given to me by her. I'm very thankful that she took a lot of photos of you. I have a copy of these photos on my side. So I'll give you this one, Shi Xing Tian said. After saying this, Shi Xing Tian stood up. As he walked to the door, Shi Xingyu spoke up. She spoke to you? After all, Yu Qingliang was afraid of people and didn't know how to get along with humans. When Shi Xing Tian saw that her brother cared about Yu Qingxian, she didn't have any hard feelings, because she knew that her brother would care about others, and that was what warmed her heart the most. If Shi Xingyu didn't have any feelings for his kind who had been with him for a few months, then Shi Xing Tian felt that there might not really be a way for her and Gu Evening Qing's idea to materialize. But right now, Shi Xing Tian felt that it was good that Shi Xingyu would care. She wasn't sad about it. Well, spoke to me a few times, then she gave me these photos. She should know that you're my brother, that's why she gave me these photos. As soon as Timothy Sky talked about that little girl, 
The expression on his face softened again. It wasn't those zombies' fault that they turned into zombies, but it wasn't the humans' fault that they feared and resented zombies, but it was a fact that zombies ate people, and it was also a fact that people either fled or fought back when they saw a zombie, and it's true that what they're trying to do is difficult. It's not something that will work once or twice, either. It's a constant battle, but it didn't matter, even if it was difficult. The world was going to return to normal. There was no way for the officials to completely kill all those zombies. There were less than 200 million survivors in the entire country today, but there were nearly 2 billion zombies. This number alone was not something that could be killed off at random. When Shi Xingyu was in the base, he didn't feel bored. He looked at the anklet on his foot. The green light on it flickered. Although he didn't know what it was, it didn't affect his movements. After staying like this for a while, Shi Xingyu stayed in this place. He tried pulling the door, but couldn't. It was obvious that this room, and even this building, was reinforced. However, he had agreed not to run away. But even then, Tokoyami didn't think anything was wrong. Until at not a specific time, the door to his room opened. He turned around but saw Yu Qingxiao. Shi Xingyu didn't know what Yu Qingxian was doing in this place. Clearly he had cooperated with the humans. Why did he have to bring Yu Qingxian, who was so afraid of humans, here? But looking at Yu Qingxian's appearance, it didn't look like he was forced. Of course, every day after that, Yu Qingxian would come, and she even had the key to her room. It seemed like Gu Evening Qing really trusted Yu Qingxiao, but it was also true that Yu Qingxian had never been towards humans, but she wouldn't really want all the zombies to die either. She hadn't killed as many zombies as other zombies. Even the zombies killed by humans weren't as many as those killed by them, the high-level zombies. Gu Evening Qing and their experiments continued. Their own bodies were also slowly being transformed. Until that day, a strange liquid was injected into his own body, making him feel a pressure. How does it feel? Gu Evening Chun looked at Shi Xingyu, who was lying on the bed, and asked him, It's okay, it just feels as if my body is bound by something. Shi Xingyu spoke. When Gu Evening Cheng heard this, she looked up at the person next to her. Transport Shi Xingyu to another specially prepared room. Gu Evening Cheng opened her mouth. After saying this, Gu Evening Cheng turned her head to look at Shi Xingyu again. We need to monitor you for 48 hours. Once you're in there, just do what you want and you don't have to necessarily restrain yourself. After saying this, someone pushed Shi Xingyu away. This made Shi Xingyu a little confused. When he was sent into that room, he was indeed a bit shocked, because it was full of humans, and all of them were altars. And there was also that human with a very special flavor that he had seen a few times. It seemed like his name was Peiyuan. It was just that he had just been operated on, and had used a lot of energy to recover his wounds. Was it really okay to throw himself in the pile of people? Although Shi Xingyu had self-control, he wasn't sure how much endurance he had in his current state of semi-starvation. But Shi Xingyu also felt that the humans were really crazy. The loss of just a few of the aliens here would be a blow to humanity. Was there really no problem? Shi Xingyu walked to the corner, and those Ultrans just acted as if they didn't see Shi Xingyu doing what they should do. He just sat in the corner, his eyes staring at the ground. In fact, he was a bit puzzled as to how on earth Yu Qingliang managed to not eat at all. No matter how advanced a zombie was, it needed to suck on blood and flesh to replenish its energy. Instead of eating people, it was better to suck the energy contained within them, because in their zombie eyes, all humans, are alien preparers, as long as the time is ripe. Then these humans can evolve into psychics, and zombies are better at utilizing this power than humans. If humans control this power in their bodies and exercise it, they can also awaken their psychic abilities. Of course, this kind of thing Shi Xingyu would not take the initiative to say. After all, Gu Evening Cheng and the others did not ask. Time passed by minute by minute. The smell of fresh blood and flesh kept circling around the tip of his nose. The healing of his body consumed too much energy, making Shi Xingyu not want to move at all. Perhaps sitting like this for 48 hours should be fine. But obviously, these humans wouldn't let him sit like this, because they wanted to experiment and push their limits. So naturally, some humans came up to fight him. He was already a bit tired, and now he had to avoid their attacks. This human does things, it's really desperate, always pushing themselves to the limit. It was no wonder Yu Qingliang disliked being around humans. He didn't like it now either. These humans cooperated quite well, and although they didn't kill themselves, they didn't show any mercy either. Shi Xingyu's mood of not wanting to get along with humans reached its peak in this moment. At this moment, he seemed to resonate with Yu Qingliang. Getting along with humans was really troublesome. Shi Xingyu felt that it was fortunate that he was a zombie, and even in the future, he would not have to get along with humans. If he did this often, Shi Xingyu felt that he would turn into an abnormal zombie. Fortunately, this place was very empty, 
Except for the fact that he couldn't leave from this floor, there was a kitchen room bathroom here, and where he was now was an indoor garden. He was on the green grass by himself, and there were a few trees. There was no telling what this place was used for before. Shi Xingyu dodged a few times to avoid the humans' attacks, then disappeared into this atrium. He found an unoccupied place and leapt up into what looked like a mezzanine. Anyway, let's avoid the humans for now. On top of that, he was losing stamina as well, and needed to replenish his food badly at this point. But this experiment was to see when he would go after the humans. At this moment, Shi Xingyu thought, what if he just hit the wall and left? Even if he couldn't lay his hands on this base again, then catching a few zombies to get a few crystal cores to replenish his strength would be fine. Just as soon as this thought came out of him, he felt his whole body shed some energy. Originally sitting on the mezzanine, he directly fell down from the top. Someone then walked up to him. Originally, he was eager to eat right now. But it turned out that the one who came in front of him was still someone with special blood. Shi Xingyu felt that why must he follow the rules of humans? After all, this kind of experiment was originally not in his favor. But when he looked up at Pei Yuan, Pei Yuan deliberately revealed his arm. The other party almost passed his hand to Shi Xingyu's mouth. As long as he opened his mouth, he could eat the food. Shi Xingyu did want to take a bite, because the current him was already very tired. How long it would last, he didn't know. At most a dozen hours had passed now. It was still early to 48 hours. Shi Xingyu stared at Pei Yuan's arm as the corners of his mouth began to secrete liquid. Obviously, Pei Yuan's breath was really destroying Shi Xingyu's sanity. His golden eyes were filled with blood, while his expression became somewhat hideous. When Shi Xingyu was just about to pounce on Pei Yuan, his brain felt like it had been hit by something and he instantly fainted. Gu Evening Ching was on the second floor at this time. She looked at the clock across the room and was able to hold out for 13 hours. Shi Xingyu's endurance was indeed top-notch. After all, other zombies, even when they were in a very healthy and full state, rushed over without much hesitation when they encountered Pei Yuan. This also included the zombie outside the base. Of course, if Shi Xingyu could last for 48 hours, then it would be declared that their experiment had succeeded. But this time now, it also proved that they had made the right decision in choosing Shi Xingyu. When Shi Xingyu woke up, there was a bright surgical light above his head, and he was once again lying on the operating table. He didn't know what Gu Evening Chang and Lu Si had injected into him, but his body did recover quite a bit. It was just that Shi Xingyu didn't know how he had fainted. He didn't ask either. When Gu Evening Ching saw that Shi Xingyu had woken up, she just told him to stay still. Shi Xingyu just lay there. Actually, he couldn't move even if he wanted to. By the time he was able to get off the operating table, it was already 20 minutes later. He stood up and looked at his body. Although there wasn't any change, he still felt something strange. But what was strange, he couldn't say. It wasn't like it hurt. And for the next while, he always had to perform this endurance experiment. Of course, every time he ended up fainting, but it took longer than once. In the second year of conducting the experiment, Shi Xingyu finally made it through 48 hours and walked away from this place. With him being extremely weak and needing to eat, he had also stayed with the exalted and the special blooded for 48 hours. This would probably not have been possible for 3 minutes if he were an ordinary zombie. When Shi Xingyu walked out of the room, he did not see Yu Qingxiao, but his sister was there. Gu Evening Qing was also there. They checked Shi Xingyu's body, which led them to take a few bags of blood to him. Congratulations, starting today, the force knockout device can be removed from your brain. Gu Evening Ching spoke as she watched Shi Xingyu sit on the chair and suck in the blood. The tone sounded happy. Shi Xingyu did not know what was meant by the forced knockout device, but he knew that Gu Evening Ching and his sister's experiments seemed to have taken another step forward. Of course, it wasn't until after they had removed an unknown device from his head that he realized why he had fainted. As soon as he couldn't control it enough to produce a predatory action, an energy would pound his crystal core so that he would lose consciousness instantly. At this moment, Shi Xingyu felt that he had indeed been too heavily influenced by Yu Qingxiao. Surprisingly, he had already trusted humans to such an extent, but whenever Gu Evening Ching wanted himself dead, he probably didn't know how many hundreds of times he had died. But now, Shi Xingyu felt that he could indeed really trust humans. It was only this thought that, in the next few moments, caused Shi Xingyu to start doubting his decision again, because Gu Evening Ching was really good at tossing zombies. Before, it was a test of his endurance. Then now Gu Evening Ching was not feeding him at all, and she kept depleting his stamina, before locking him up in a dark room afterwards. It was just like this over and over and over again. Finally, after a few months, he felt that vague energy in the air, and by absorbing this energy, he gradually stopped sucking blood. From three months in the beginning, to half a year, a year, two years later, in the fifth year of entering the base, Shi Xingyu completely cut off the habit of eating blood and flesh. 
Even when Pei Yuan slit his wrists from dangling in front of his face, he was able to hold back from looking at him. Although Shirshing Yu felt that he was no longer like a zombie at this point, but he was also satisfied with the current situation. It was just that he was a bit confused as to what those things that could provide him with stamina and energy were. And Gu Evening Ching didn't tell him. Instead, she started to let him exercise his physical abilities, even using weapons. At first, it was Wen Qingsheng who fought him. Although Wen Qingsheng didn't look like he was very strong, his blade skills were really strong. If he were to just fight with his sword skills, then he really couldn't fight with Wen Qingsheng. After that was the marksmanship, then all kinds of weapons to use. At the back, he even had to learn the languages of various countries. Yu Qingliang came to accompany him for a few lessons, but she fell asleep on the table. This was the first time that Xu Xingyu felt envious of Yu Qingliang. It was because Yu Qingxiao was really idle and didn't have to do anything. Other than occasionally drawing some blood and being studied for body changes, he could do whatever he wanted, but he couldn't, so he had to be forced to study. But over the years, in the entire base, only he and Yu Qingliang hadn't changed a single bit in their appearance. Everyone else, more or less, had changed a bit. Even Gu Evening Ching, her black hair couldn't hide the white strands in it. The young girl who was 23 years old at the beginning was now about to turn 30. And this person next to him, who should have been almost 40, was still the same as before. Of course, Shirshing Yu couldn't just spit on Yu Qingxiao because he was also 16 years old. There wasn't a single change. Of course, he knew that he was 16 when he turned into a zombie. And it was also what his sister said. And although Sher Xingyu was a bit confused about the matter of learning about humans, but he did learn quickly. I don't know if it's because he's a zombie or his learning ability is very strong when he's a human. Anyway, after seven years in the base, he successfully obtained his freedom. Although the monitor was still on him, none of that mattered anymore. He could finally leave this place. After seven years, one didn't even know how the situation outside was. And humans were much better at dealing with zombies. Though many of the responses had their own share. Humans didn't know what walkers thought, but he knew what walkers thought. On the day he left the base, Yu Qingliang did not come to see him off. He had long gotten used to Yu Qingxian's heartlessness, but he also knew that after so many years, she was still the same as she was at the beginning. Afraid of people, emotionally weak, able to take care of her own emotions has been very remarkable little zombie. Shirshing Yu looked at the people in front of him. One was Gu Evening Chang, and one was his sister. Although he wasn't really able to understand the meaning of the word sister and still had no way to remember the memories from when he was a human. But he did accept the matter of Shi Xing Tian being his sister. Remember, you have to beat up all the high-level zombies, and if you have the chance, any high-level zombies in any country as well, and send the news back by the way, okay? Gu Evening Chang stared at Shi Xing Yu, seriously handing him things. Shi Xing Yu didn't answer, but just looked at Shi Xing Tian. Sister, I'll call you when I leave. After saying this, he also just nodded slightly to Gu Evening Ching and with a flash, he disappeared. In short, he could finally detach himself from humans and didn't have to learn things anymore. The people at home couldn't move, so the ones abroad would be fine. But Shirshing Yu was looking forward to the future. When he thought of the future where he would still have to climb towards the top, Shirshing Yu also felt a lot better. Finally, after seven years, he had once again entered the world where the strong were honored. When Pei Yuan opened his eyes, he realized that he was covered in instruments. He blinked and also realized that he seemed to have been reborn. Reborn back to 13 years ago, 3 years before the end times. And at this time, he still needed to live off of various instruments. Pei Yuan laid on the bed for a while, making sure that he was now in good control of his body, before sitting up. And as soon as he moved, the instruments next to him made a ringing sound, followed by a bunch of doctors rushing in. They were scrambling to get Pei Yuan to lie down. But Pei Yuan wanted to unplug those instruments from his body, which surprised the doctors. The good thing is that Pei Yuan also knew that taking it off in such a hurry now would only be counterproductive. So he took a few days before he told the doctor that he was much better. After the examination, Pei Yuan's physical condition was indeed much better. On the sixth day of his rebirth back, Pei Yuan finally stepped out of the hospital room where he had lived for more than 20 years. While in his previous life, it was only after the end times happened that he awakened his alien ability body gradually improved. Now, his alien ability had followed him back. Pei Yuan talked to his own father for a long time, and he finally met Gu Evening Ching. However, at this time, Gu Evening Ching's body was also covered with many instruments that seemed to be channeling the energy out of her body. Although this process would cause Gu Evening Ching some pain, but it was the only thing the current human could do. Gu Evening Ching and Wen Qingsheng were the two people who had survived that incident, but these two people were indeed of great help to the big picture in the future. Although the most crucial ones were still missing, 
but the most crucial zombie was in three years, so there was no rush now. If he could, he naturally wanted to stop the end times from happening. Pei Yuan entered the lab where Gu Evening Ching lived and directly stopped all the instruments. When the instruments stopped, Gu Evening Ching's entire body began to feverishly burn. She felt pain in all her organs. Pei Yuan, however, ignored her pain and just stood by her bedside, letting Gu Evening Ching grab his wrist. Until he heard Gu Evening Ching's somewhat weak voice, Am I going to die? After all, with so many instruments, they were all very expensive, and with the current medical skills, there was no way to determine what was going on with this energy in her body. So it was normal for Gu Evening Ching to feel that she was being given up. Luckily it didn't slice her up. It won't oh, you'll make it through. If you don't, then the world will really be over. Pei Yuan's tone wasn't really serious. It was like he was coaxing a child. This made Gu Evening Chung, who was lying on the bed, feel towards this boy she met for the first time. What an unreliable bullshitter. Pei Yuan didn't leave either. So he stood by the bed and waited. Waiting for Gu Evening Ching to get over it. The energy that had been dissipated for three months before was already wasted. It was even more wasted in his previous life. But it was three whole years. It caused Gu Evening Ching's spatial upgrade to be exceptionally difficult. It took ten years to break through the third layer. And he had heard Gu Evening Ching mention that there were ten layers in that space of hers. The first layer was food and water. The second layer was clothing and gasoline for the car. The third layer was a weapons arsenal. The most important thing was that at that time, the exalted were also infested by the zombie virus, causing many exalted's bodies to develop zombified lesions. Ten years after the end of the world, many alterans had broken arms and legs. The most important reason was still because those crystals were still transporting the zombie virus and were still mutating with the length of time. That was why purifying the crystal origin was also a top priority. Therefore when Xingsheng was also important, when Xingxing's ability was very special, it belonged to the purification ability. In other words, as long as when Qingsheng was willing, he was able to purify the viruses on the zombies, but it required a corresponding lifespan as a price. And this supernormal ability, it could be said that it was used once and less often. Right, Pei Yuan knew about when Qingxing's supernatural ability, also because he had used it once. At that time, he had already taken over his father's position and became the chief commander of a base. Therefore when Qingxing purified the zombie virus for him, that's why Pei Yuan was bitten by a zombie but didn't turn into a zombie. But in the end, the result still didn't change. He still died. Died in the tenth year of the end times. Thinking about it this way, Pei Yuan felt a little sorry for Wen Qingsheng, wasting his supernatural abilities and his life. It took Gu watching a day and a night to endure it. Of course she had awakened her alien ability. It should be the first alien ability in this world. Pei Yuan had determined Gu Evening Qing's condition. So naturally he had someone come in to determine her physical condition. Instead, he went to find Wen Qingsheng. If Gu Evening Qing could, so could Wen Qingsheng. But right now, his body was still weak. Just by being around Gu Evening Qing for a day and a night, he was a bit physically exhausted. Under the doctor's compulsion, Pei Yuan rested for two days. He had wanted to check on Wen Qingsheng's condition, but it turned out that Gu Evening Qing, who was dressed in a hospital gown, came to him first. At this time, Pei Yuan was looking out the window at the blue sky. He hadn't seen such a clear blue sky in a long time. When Gu Evening Ching entered the room, she saw Pei Yuan staring out the window. He didn't hear him even when he spoke. After almost five minutes, Pei Yuan turned back to look at her. Have you eaten lunch? Pei Yuan asked her. Gu Evening Ching felt as if she wasn't very good at getting along with Pei Yuan. It's seven in the morning. Gu Evening Chang reminded Pei Yuan. That means no lunch. Pei Yuan spoke to himself, not feeling that there was anything wrong with the question he asked. Gu Evening Ching stared at Pei Yuan for a while and realized that she really couldn't see through this person's thoughts. How's the physical condition? Pei Yuan finally said something important. It's good at the moment. I've been able to stabilize and control that power. Gu Evening Chang spoke. Before, she always felt like her head or body would explode. But now, she could clearly feel the power flowing through her body. It eventually entered her consciousness. As long as she wanted to, she could control this power with her consciousness. For the previous three months, it was all about using instruments to channel this energy out. Now, she was able to control this power. Obviously, Pei Yuan knew how the power wasn't really going to tear her apart. And as long as she got through it, then she would be able to utilize this power. When Pei Yuan heard this, he pressed down on his wheelchair and he sat on it and went out the door of the room. Gu Evening Cheng also followed him out. After walking for almost five minutes, Pei Yuan came to another room. The room then opened, and inside was a teenager. The teenager's body was the same instrument as the one Gu Evening Ching had on her before. Rip it off. Pei Yuan opened his mouth, already making his way onto Gu Evening Ching. Gu Evening Ching wasn't sure why Pei Yuan had so much power. 
but she still pulled off all the instruments on this teenager. Sure enough, the teenager started to have the same reaction as her, and the end result was that the teenager did make it through. This made Gu Evening Ching a bit surprised. This Pei Yuan actually knew how to deal with the energy. When she turned back to Pei Yuan, Pei Yuan was staring at something and began to drift off again. In the next few moments, Gu Evening Ching realized that not only had she awakened her supernormal abilities, but she had also inexplicably obtained a space. This space was like a 10-story building. The first floor was like an ordinary big supermarket, and it was even possible to put things in it. This made Gu Evening Ching immediately understand. She didn't just have psychic abilities, she also had a space, and the appearance of such a thing was bound to not be so simple. So Gu Evening Ching knew if something big was going to happen in the future. It wasn't until a month later, when Gu Evening Ching and Wen Qingsheng had both recovered almost enough to live like normal people, that Pei Yuan took them underground. Here, all the crystals in the country were stored, and most of these crystals actually landed in no man's land, but it still left a lot of people dead in the country. It couldn't be helped because there really weren't many real no man's land for domestic businesses. Pei Yuan did feel a bit dizzy when he saw these crystals in front of him. It wasn't just because the energy on these crystals was very strong, it was also because these crystals carried a very strong zombie virus. It's just that this zombie virus hasn't been released, so ordinary people can't touch these crystals. So Pei Yuan took over the matter of the crystals after he was reborn. Of course it took some effort. What we need to do is to get rid of the virus on this crystal so that the crystals can be used by humans. And to get rid of the virus, we still need your help, Pei Yuan said, his eyes turning to Wen Qingsheng. Wen Qingsheng felt a bit nauseous and dry heaving at this point, and when he saw Pei Yuan say this, he reached out and pointed at himself. It wasn't like he was a scientist or that kind of school bully, barely making it through high school and then getting ready to work odd jobs to earn high school tuition. After all, he was an orphan, and grandma and grandpa had a lot of people to take care of, and there were a lot of people younger and better than him who needed money. He's just a dropout, so he's still working on his own. As a result, he got into a car accident, but survived. As for what happened during the accident, he doesn't remember. When he woke up, he was already in this place, and now there was someone saying that he had to rely on himself, which made Wen Qingxing not know what to say for a while. Of course, it was true that he wasn't asked to come personally in the back, he was just asked to cooperate with those researchers. Although Wen Qingxing was an errant student, he was also concerned about social news anyways, so when he saw those researchers that he had only seen on the news appear in front of him, Wen Qingxing actually felt that his life was worth it. Of course, Gu Evening Ching also started her training. After all, originally, she used to be a martial arts blogger. Because she was a child born from a martial arts family, Gu Evening Ching had naturally practiced martial arts since she was a child. So swords, guns, swords, halberds and whips, Gu Evening Ching could use them all. She also had quite a few fans on some video platforms. It was just that this accident had really made her disappear from the platform. It also took Gu Evening Ching a long time to accept the death of her parents but she was still alive, and she definitely wanted to live well. Now that almost half a year had passed, Gu Evening Chang wouldn't be too upset. Anyways, she was very lucky. Also because of her awakened psychic ability, coupled with the fact that the officials took care of the aftermath for her parents as well, Gu Evening Ching naturally became an official as a matter of course, but not someone who did things on the surface, but quietly. The rest of the time, Pei Yuan was thinking of ways to build a base to prepare food in advance. Base construction wasn't that hard. The hard part was the food. Ordinary people who didn't have the ability to go out and look for food would only starve to death. Ten years after the end of the world, the number of humans killed by zombies was not as many as the number of humans who killed each other for food. So whether it was a base or a weapon, in short, food was important. Then there was also the water source. As long as a filter could be produced to purify the zombie virus through Wen Qingxing's supernatural ability, then life in the future would at least not be that difficult. It was just that there were still more than two years to go so I didn't know if I could make it. Even Pei Yuan had thought about Jean having to talk to other countries about this kind of thing, but then after thinking about it, he still felt like forgetting about it. After all, it's not like looking like a human is considered human. So Pei Yuan felt that as long as he managed his own country and his own people, it was enough. He wasn't exactly someone who could run a country, but his brother was still young. More than two years passed quickly. Even with Pei Yuan's and the official's abilities, the end of the world still happened. It was even on time without a single change. However, the officials had always done this kind of maneuver because the official people naturally reacted very quickly. But while the officials had practiced, the residents hadn't. Even if they were more prepared, they naturally couldn't manage a population of nearly 2 billion. Plus, zombification was just overnight, so there was no time to prepare. 
So many people suddenly turned into zombies overnight. As for what the principle is, Pei Yuan hasn't been able to figure it out in these nearly three years. In short with one person or a few people or even just a country, it was impossible to stop this kind of calamity. And the first thing to determine was naturally the situation on the borderline of the country. If Pei Yuan was going, of course it was impossible for Gu Evening Cheng, who was a bodyguard, not to go. If Gu Evening Cheng was going, then Wen Qingxing naturally had to go as well. There was also the dog Xiaotian that Gu Evening Cheng had raised over the past few years. When Pei Yuan watched the car leave the base and head towards the southwest, he knew that the gears of fate were beginning to spin. He just didn't know what the fate of their human race would be this time. Welcome to National Line 3. This trip is 3,000 kilometers and three and a half hours long. National Line 3 welcomes you. Yu Qingliang sat in the single luxury compartment, her eyes looking around with some curiosity. She had wandered around for 20 years. When she returned to the human cities again, she found that many of them had actually become green fields, but not a single zombie was left inside. She took the introduction book on the table. On it was an introduction of the entire China now. At this time, it was divided into the northern and southern cities. The north side was the alienated city where the alienated people lived. The alienated people were the zombies from 20 years ago, but now they were separated by an energy wall. Alienated people have the lives of alienated people. Ordinary people have the lives of ordinary people. Alienated people were allowed to enter the cities of ordinary people, but they had to wear monitors and tranquilizers on their bodies. After more than 10 years of human research, the zombies have finally regained their sanity. Just even though they regained their sanity, they still feed on flesh and blood. And of course they don't remember their previous memories. And in these 10 years, the officials have given all the zombies a one by one check. The bodies of zombies that have eaten humans are detectable. So today's alienated people, all of them have not eaten humans. Of course, the technology nowadays was not something Yu Qingliang could imagine. When she purchased the ticket, she found out that her identity was an alienated person. It was also unknown how these people knew about it. In these 20 years, she had occasionally gone to Shaoji and got some things from that little store of hers that could change her skin color and pupils. Of course, those things that restored Xiao Ji to being a human, Yu Qingliang of course had no way to use them. So when Gu Evening Ching found Xiao Ji in the first place, Xiao Ji didn't hide from Gu Evening Ching that it was because she had the system even though she was able to turn back into a human. She didn't have anything in her hands that would allow a zombie to turn back into a human. Thinking of Gu Evening Cheng, Yu Qingliang didn't think that in the blink of an eye. She was 50 years old and she had logically become a hero in the hearts of humans. Pei Yuan, on the other hand, was now the leader of the humans. Ever since she left the base, Gu Evening Cheng would occasionally send her messages. Most of them were holiday wishes for her, and many reports on the results of her research. Of course, there weren't many humans who knew about her who provided the blood. For this kind of thing, Yu Qingliang didn't care, because even if there was only her plasma, without those hundreds of researchers, there was no way to create the current life. And Yu Qingxiao also knew one more thing. That was the reason why the end of the world happened and wasn't leveled out with hot weapons was also because those zombies were once human beings. The motherland wouldn't really give up on them. Even if the technology was not enough at that time, then there would be such technology in the future. There wasn't any reason to blame the zombies that hadn't eaten people. Of course, the zombies that had eaten people were all dragged off to be used as laborers. I heard that knight was beaten into submission by Gu Evening Ching and later accepted the training. Gu Evening Ching even complained to her that although her talent was a bit higher than Shi Xingyu, her endurance really wasn't as good as Shi Xingyu's, and she was dying all day long. Yu Qingliang was taking pictures on a mountain at that time. By the time she got off the mountain and received the news, it was already half a month later. Yu Qingliang had seen the training given to Shi Xingyu. Although for her, it did make it difficult for her in terms of learning. She had followed Shi Xingyu for a few lessons. Every number letter was recognized but merging them together was a complete double take. She was like an illiterate person who only felt that it was a heavenly book with words and couldn't even listen to it for three minutes before falling asleep. That's why Yu Qingliang felt that it must be difficult for him to study when Knight looked like a college student or a recent graduate. And for the training, or staying in a room with an alien and a rare blood type, it would be a hell if Ai Yi could endure it. But Ai Yi and Shi Xingyu were completely different. Shi Xingyu had followed himself for three days and starved for nine meals. That endurance wasn't comparable to an ordinary zombie. Most importantly, during the time Yu Qingliang was at the base, Gu Evening Qing told Yu Qingliang about the reports she had received from different survivors all over the country that they had been attacked by a young zombie. Although it was said to be an attack, more often than not, they were saved by this zombie. Because this walker only ate the bad guys that forced their way. There was even someone who had the guts to take a picture of the young zombie. Obviously, it was Shi Xingyu. 
Yu Qingliang was still a bit shocked when he learned of this news at the time. This was also why Gu Evening Ching had taken the initiative to find Shi Xingyu. Yu Qingliang felt that it wasn't completely unreasonable for Shi Xingyu to be chosen. That kid had really listened to what she had said. It was no wonder that Shi Xing Tian had always remembered this younger brother as a good one, not the kind of brother that hit his brother while he was small. And over the years, Shi Xingyu had also been in contact with Shi Xing Tian, although there were no longer any memories of the past, but they had now created another 30 years of memories together. Now they had known each other for a much longer time than before. Of course, even though they were exalts, time hadn't stopped for them. Even if a shifter was much stronger physically than an ordinary person, it wasn't like a zombie who could live forever. According to Gu Evening Chang and their research, they could tell that an alien could probably live for 200 years, which was already the limit. However, right now, all the exalts were at the age of young adults, so it wasn't very clear what happened to the exalts after they aged. At least 30 years ago there were also alterans who were over 40 years old. And at the moment, those people, even though they were now 70 or 80 years old, didn't have much of a change in their bodily functions compared to a few decades ago. In other words, the alterans might have shortened the aging period of humans. After all, humans spent 20 years to grow up and 20 years to start a family, but they had to spend 40 years to grow old. The amount of time that humans could really master was not really that long. Those who marry early may go straight from children to parenthood. For those who marry late, the years after graduation are spent worrying about jobs, cars, and dealing with their parents urging to get married. Nowadays, human beings have very little time to live according to their own ideas, plus the long period of aging. Yu Qingliang suddenly felt that maybe zombification was really the evolution that solved this trouble for humans. After all, zombies can rest wherever they are, and they don't necessarily really need a house and car, and they don't have the ability to procreate, and one is a lonely spirit and they don't have to worry about being urged to marry. Most importantly, as long as they fed and kept the energy in their bodies, they could stay alive. Of course, Gu Evening Ching was also worried that someone would privately use the zombies to study this kind of similar immortality. So she spent almost three years numbering and recording all the alienated people. If foreign zombies were used, then Gu Evening Chang wouldn't care too much. Zombies from other countries were not under her protection. Most importantly, even if someone did want to research it, they wouldn't do it on their own soil because it would be easy to be discovered. Nowadays, technology was so advanced that not only the alienated people had records, but also the humans. Places like that kind of energy anomaly would immediately be locked. In other words, in this land of China, it was impossible to plot against it. Yu Qingliang knew that it was because several female leads were put together to have such a great ability. If it was an ordinary person, it would definitely not be possible. It was true that only those who had a heart of righteousness were heroes while those who were only willing to protect themselves were the ordinary people, the people. Yu Qingliang didn't sit through the entire journey, but got off the express train in an hour. Because the alienated people had their own exclusive passage, there would also be no contact with humans, unless it was necessary. It had been 20 years since she had entered the world of humans. After getting off the train, Yu Qingliang found a corner to cheer herself up, saying that she was sure that she would be fine. She was just looking for Gu Evening Chang, and she wasn't interacting with anyone else and Gu Evening Ching had actually been waiting here. She had directly used her privilege to enter the exclusive passageway for the alienated people. Those alienated people stared at her, but they were just looking. It was because this human in front of her was strong. So those alienated people also just looked at her and left. But Gu Evening Ching didn't see Yu Qingliang. After thinking about it, she headed for the drop-off point. Sure enough, she went around a few pillars and saw in a very hidden corner, crouching in the corner not knowing what he was doing. But before Gu Evening Ching could say anything, Yu Qingxiao immediately stood up. In fact, she had sensed it when Gu Evening Harvest had just entered the passageway. But she still thought it would be better to wait for Gu Evening Harvest to come to her. That woman was a handful at finding her. As expected, when Gu Evening Clear appeared, Yu Qingxiao knew she had guessed correctly. Even though they had only met a few times in 20 years, they still knew each other well. What are you doing squatting here? Another five years have passed. How come it's still the same as before? Gu Evening Cheng placed her hands in her coat pockets. It looked like she had just come out of the lab and was in a hurry to get to her. I'm just like this. Why should I change? Yu Qingxiao subconsciously patted her clothes, and then followed Gu Evening Cheng with her bag on her back. This time, she came back to check on her body as well. Because her blood didn't have the ability to regenerate, it was still different from other zombies. So every few years, Yu Qingliang had to find Gu Evening Cheng to check her body. It had been another five years since he had come and Yu Qingxiao felt like a country bumpkin every time he came to the human world. However, the buildings now weren't that tall, but they were earthquake-resistant. 
There weren't that many humans now, and the houses didn't need to be built that high. Although the zombie crisis was lifted, natural disasters would not disappear. With Gu Evening Ching's current technological capabilities, they really didn't have the means to reverse nature yet. Therefore the city's houses could avoid storms and rainstorms and earthquakes and the like as much as possible. On the entire planet today, earthquakes and tsunamis and the like were already commonplace, and the zombie creatures in the sea have evolved to a very scary level. There are no countries that can safely cross the sea, so the sea has completely returned to nature. Yu Qingliang was following Gu Evening Ching through the exclusive passageway and didn't come into contact with any humans. The body check was quick. Although Gu Evening Ching felt that she could let Yu Qingliang rest and rest first, it wasn't like Yu Qingliang felt that he needed to rest. It was best to get these steps out of the way quickly. In almost half an hour, Yu Qingxian's body check was done. Because Yu Qingxiao didn't have the ability to heal herself, the blood in her body was used some less. So Gu Evening Ching didn't dare to draw much back then. Enough for experimentation was enough. After so many years had passed, the plasma in her body hadn't increased any further. Of course, according to the basic health of an alienated person, Yu Qingliang's body was in a very unhealthy state. Only this state was also the state from 30 years ago, and nothing had changed. Only after checking her body did Gu Evening Ching take Yu Qingxiao to the place where she was resting. As soon as she opened the door, Yu Qingxiao saw two familiar zombies playing games in the house. These two zombies were Shi Xing Yu and Anight. After all, the North City side belonged entirely to these two alienated people in management. Although they were the ones managing it, they spent more time in South City. Mainly because they stayed in the North City, those zombies would not be able to carry on with their normal lives due to the intimidating pressure from the two of them. Shi Xing Yu and Ai also instantly sensed Yu Qingxiao's aura and turned around to see Yu Qingxiao and Gu Evening Qing standing at the door. Seeing the two of them playing games in this place, Gu Evening Qing didn't pay them any mind and instead led Yu Qingxiao to her room. On this floor, other than an extremely large living room, the rest were all rooms. These rooms were for alienated people. Not only would Shi Xing Yu and Ai come over, but there were also other advanced alienated people who would also come over to live. This was because the energy absorbed by the advanced alienated people would sometimes be overloaded. The main reason was that they didn't need to find food nowadays, and they didn't need to fight with other alienated people. So naturally these energies couldn't be consumed. If they couldn't consume it, then these advanced alienated people would also fall into a berserk phase. Entering the berserk phase, then they would cause very serious damage. That was why these advanced alienated people would regularly come to this place to channel their energy. And as soon as Yu Qingliang came in, these two alienated people stopped playing the game. But after being blared at by Gu Evening Chang, they didn't follow. But when Gu Evening Ching left, Yu Qingxian's door was not done. Yu Qingxiao treated it as if she didn't hear it. It wasn't until the door to her room was about to be demolished by these two alienated people that Yu Qingxian opened the door. However, after Yu Qingxiao opened the door, the two of them fell into silence. It was as if they didn't know what to say. Seeing that they had nothing to say, Yu Qingxiao spoke first, You guys go ahead and play the game. Don't worry about me. I'll leave in a couple days. After saying this, Yu Qingxiao closed the door again. The entire room was then quiet. She took a tablet and then tapped on one of the apps, which contained the streets of the entire southern city as well as various cities. She could go anywhere she wanted. This was an app that Gu Evening Cheng and Court Lady One had researched in recent years. Of course, this app was unique to Yu Qingxiao herself. In other words, it was the only one of its kind in the world. In the past, Yu Qingliang liked to wander around the city, and that was because there were no humans. But now that there were indeed a lot of humans in South City, it was naturally impossible for Yu Qingliang to go shopping. So there was this app. It allowed Yu Qingxiao to go shopping in an immersive environment, and these places could purchase things. Of course, the payment did not require Yu Qingxiao to pay, but Yu Qingxiao just really went shopping and didn't buy anything. After coming out, Yu Qingxiao passed the photos and videos taken during these years to Gu Evening Ching. In these 20 years, Yu Qingliang had indeed traveled to many places. Of course, it was only places that could be crossed on foot. Crossing the sea was impossible. She had witnessed the demise of some humans and the rise of others. Of course, Yu Qingliang also knew that not all humans were as eternally united as the country she was in. But she still couldn't do anything to help. She could only pass by silently and take some videos and photos. Yu Qingliang sometimes understood what Gu Evening Ching was requesting herself to do. After all, the essay she wrote in elementary school, decades later, society had evolved. Now she had sort of seen the picture of the city she had imagined in her early childhood. This made Yu Qingxian suddenly feel that it was actually quite good that she wouldn't die. Maybe in the future, one could really resurrect dinosaurs. She really wanted to see a dinosaur. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxiao sent a message to Gu Evening Ching. If I keep living, will I see dinosaurs? 
Gu Evening Ching was a bit surprised when she saw Yu Qingxiao's words, but there was a smile on her face. Twenty years had finally given her some thoughts of living. In the past, every time she came back to check her body, she would discuss the matter of whether or not to bury her with herself. This was the first time Yu Qingliang said that if she could keep living, as long as you live long enough, you can see everything. Yu Qingxiao looked at Gu Evening Ching's reply. Even though she knew that her words were tantalizing her to keep living, Yu Qingxian was now someone who had seen the world. It wouldn't be that easy to die, but in a few tens or hundreds of years, you'll already be dead, right? Yu Qingxiao thought of an important question. If Gu Evening Ching died, then she wouldn't have many acquaintances left. Then who would contact her in the future? Gu Evening Ching felt a bit amused when she saw Yu Qingxiao's blunt words. As she was about to reply, Yu Qingxian sent another message over. You're so powerful. Are you able to resurrect people? Or rebirth them or something like that? You add up. Gu Evening Ching looked at this message and was somewhat helpless. What was this little girl fantasizing about? If these technologies really existed, then there would be no need to divide the entire country into South City and North City. Those alienated people wouldn't be able to recover their memories, much less turn into the original one. It was precisely because she couldn't do this right now that Gu Evening Ching wanted Yu Qing Xian to stay alive. As long as she lived, then she would be able to suppress the group of advanced alienated people in North City. She tried as much as possible to have Yu Qing Xian come back every few years for this same reason. Gu Evening Ching couldn't live long enough to control the changes in the future. And while she believed that her descendants could do better, she couldn't control the alienated people's side. She needed a lock on these alienated people. Although she knew that she was indeed taking advantage of Yu Qing Xian, it was all she could do. And while Yu Qing Xian certainly knew why Gu Wanqing wanted her to stay alive, she felt that Gu Wanqing really had a lot of worries. After all, the life of an alienated person today was much better than in the old days when they would roam around and still get killed by humans. That was why Yu Qingliang felt that the alienated people wouldn't really rebel. Forget it, who made her an angel Yu Qingliang? After she saw the message sent by Gu Evening Ching, she replied back with, Actually, it's mainly because you're not here anymore. I don't have any acquaintances in this town, so I won't come when the time comes. But Gu Evening Ching obviously didn't eat this. Then you'll just go to find Shi Xingyu in a night when the time comes. Recently the alienated people have also begun to learn about medicine related. Don't worry, it's all taught by Lu Si personally. If they are not qualified, they won't be released to go back. There's also that app. I fixed all of the updating programs as well. Roughly 500 copies of the updates are installed. And in the future you won't have to contact humans to buy things. Yu Qing Xiao looked at Gu Evening Qing's text message that looked like it was explaining the aftermath and rushed to Gu Evening Qing's office in a hurry. This Gu Evening Qing couldn't be dying of some terminal disease. Gu Evening Ching had just put down her cell phone to talk to Shi Xing Tian about a new experiment when the door was slammed open with a bang. Yu Qing Xiao was seen walking in with a hint of panic on her face. Shi Xing Tian was also a bit surprised, although she knew that Yu Qing Xian had come back, but thinking that Yu Qing Xian was socially terrified, she didn't take the initiative to look for her, but she didn't think that she would take the initiative to come. Gu Evening Ching, you're not going to die, are you? As soon as Yu Qing Xian entered the room, she said something that shocked the two. Of course, in the end, it was just an oops, because Gu Evening Ching felt that with Yu Qingxian leaving, she probably wouldn't be able to get in touch for a few more years, and it was still easier to communicate with Yu Qingxian by text. Yu Qingxian heard this and then left Gu Evening Ching's room, continuing to communicate with her using messages. As Shi Xing Tian watched Gu Evening Ching's communicator light up again and display a message from Yu Qingxian, she couldn't help but say, it's still you who understands her the most. That was also learned from Sister Shi. I'm still far from it. Gu Evening Ching smiled. After all, in those 10 years, the one who had the most contact with Yu Qingxiao was Shi Xingtian. In Yu Qingxiao's words, it was that staying by Shi Xingtian's side would be safer and not uncomfortable. After a few days, Gu Evening Ching and the girls all received a message from Yu Qingxian saying that she was leaving again. I'll come back to see you guys in a few years. Give my regards to Xiao Ji. I'll go see the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I wasn't with it when it passed away. I'll stay by its side for a while longer. Then I'll see you next time. Gu Evening Ching looked at this message and could only helplessly shake her head. Regarding her safety, Gu Evening Ching wasn't worried. This was because she would pass her a punch card photo every time she went to a new place. She would also take pictures of the novelty zombies she encountered and ask them if they wanted one, so she could mail one back to them when the time came. Of course, the return is sudden, waiting for her to get to her doorstep before messaging you. When she left, too, she didn't send her a message until the person had run off somewhere. Forget it. She still has a lot of work to do. She can't die for a while. They are destined to come the day long.